Hey everyone, Brandon here. With it being the new year and there being a new me, I figured what better way to take a look back and see how far we've come than with a marathon of every region review. That's 16 hours of region review for you to watch or just play in the background while you do something else. This is definitely a blast from the past, so be prepared to throw it back. I mean, be prepared for a throwback. All right, past me, roll the intro. Hey everybody, welcome back to Region Review, where we review different regions around the Fakemon community. Today we are talking about an Australia-based region named the Agrios region by none other than Fakemans. Anyway, before we get started, go ahead and hit that like button and subscribe, and hit that notification bell. Also, we have members on the channel, so join and get some awesome perks and it would be really helpful to me. And one other item of note before we get started is uh, a lot of these Pokemon have been redrawn and, re and some of them redesigned by Fake Man's over on his Twitter. So um, if you want to check that out, go ahead and make sure to do that. Um, he wanted me to let you guys know before we got started. Um, also, one more thing of note, the starters, um, like he said in our uh, podcast episode, aren't completely Australia based right now. So um, he I think he said he started in Argentina. All right, they, like the region started out as Argentina. But let's go ahead and get in it and get into it. Um, we're starting us off with Professor Acacia. Apparently, he studies the different environments around uh, the Pokemon world. One thing I should say is that this region I'm not super familiar with, uh, like I was with the last region. I haven't um, completely delved into the Agrios region. There's a lot of Mons I don't know 100% about, so. We're learning something new here with Professor Acacia. Conservation programs to help save endangered species. That's awesome. Okay, starting out, our first Pokemon is Bandicoon. Um, little raccoon bandit uh, grass type. That, love that. It's the tiny thief Pokemon. Uh, they are very misunderstood Pokemon. They steal food, but not for themselves. They're for, oh, so it's got a kind of a Robin Hood thing to it. Okay. Uh, next up, we've got Turtorch. A fire rock type. It's a Kappa Pokemon. Okay, I dig it. I dig it. Kappa. Um, being the um, Japanese, uh, what's the word? Um, yokai. There it is, the Japanese yokai. The so the thing about this one is its head. I don't know what it is. It just kind of weirds me out, man. Like I just like maybe it's just that human thing to me that like does like that's where a brain should be. I don't know. It it, it weirds me out, but it's I mean it's a it's a really cool design and really well done. So I I, I dig that a lot. Next up we got Nartike, the narwhal Pokemon. Uh, water type, they travel in large pods. A member of the group is ill, Nartike will stop to help them. Oh, that's sweet. We got a little bulbous boy, circular. He looks like a little bubble with a tail and a horn and fins. I I, I like it. I, I think it's a really cute, cute uh, water starter. It's not exactly a semi-aquatic. It is a mammal, but it's not semi-aquatic. I don't think that narwhals can go on land, if unless there's something I'm just completely missing. It's, it's a really good design. I, I, I like it. Okay, next up we got the evolution. We got Vigileaf, which is a, like a vigilante. Uh, playing more into that like rogue theme that he's got there. He kind of explained to us what the starters themes are in the episode of the podcast. Um, so yeah, it's got that kind of, it's got the hood now. Like the, if you know, it was kind of a little bit of a design element before, but now it's a full on hood. Um, uh, uh, and he's got these little leaves on his tail. So, oh, there's another part to, oh, it's got the full art, and then, oh, shinies too, okay, cool. Next up, we got Lavile, who is the evolution of Deterred Torch. It's continuing with the coals in the head, it's got more, like, spikes, it's looking very Bowser-esque, which I think he, uh, he said it was kind of, like, a little bit of an inspiration there. I, I, something you can't really see in the back here is actually, it's got these, like, plumes coming out of its tail that are, like, shooting fire out, which I think is really cool, it got that, like, Cyndaquil esque thing to it and these like spikes on the ch yeah i really dig this and i like these little flecks of um different texture he put on it too kind of this spiky pattern i don't know why they do it in pokemon a lot it just reminds me of a pineapple every time i don't know all right and next we have club wall club wall the night uh the night pokemon okay so it's mo getting more nightly it's got that little that little tuft of feathers that kind of those nightly helms have even the little pattern right here kind of resembles the like face mask thing that they have that goes up and down right uh, it's got more spikes on it getting a little bit more spiky gauntlet kind of thing to it i dig that i, I like that i like that okay next up we've got rogoon this is uh the final stage uh of the bandicoons line um let's see vines growing out of their arms can extend a long range attacks okay so it's kind of got like a spider-man kind of feel to it 
kind of like use those vines as like Spider-Man kind of things. I like that. It's got this big, like the hood is now down and you kind of see it actually has little ear holes right here for him if he wants to put it over his head. And he's kind of going like, shh, like you didn't see me, which is cool. It's cool. And he, he's got these little armor, these little spiky vine armor. Oh, that's the vines they're talking about. They kind of like unlash. I like kind of went with a, a Spider-Man kind of feel to it, um, but with like a vigilante. Next up, we got Terror Pin, and there, I, I, that's that's what I feel. Terror. That that thing is awesome. It's kind of got this Koopa shell on the uh, on the arms. It's definitely got that more of that Bowser inspiration. Got the coals in the head. Still, little cracks of lava, like the the, the lava is about to burst forth. Got these big fists. Like you could, this dude could definitely learn some dark type moves alongside. His uh, fire and rock uh, moves. What's his ability? Does he have an? Uh, oh, it doesn't say the ability. Okay, I, I it's got the. He's the berserker Pokemon. Okay, so that's that's. It, it looks like he's. Oh, he does look like a berserker. Kind of got that like really beefy um, attitude that or beefy attitude that beefy look and like that attitude of a berserker. He's got this like volcano on the back, which you know you got Ovasuvius who's got the volcano on their back, so. Both of our fire starters have the volcano on the back. Love that. We got Impaladin. What's the name? Impale plus Paladin. Okay. So Impaladin. There you go. Um, it's got the f water ice type. It's got the shield of uh, like a snowflake shield. Its horn is now like a sword. Um, it's actually a tooth. Um, fun fact. It's a tooth. And now that pattern that it, it's got that full on like little visor thing got like a, a frosty beard which i like i, I like that um and then these fins are like made of ice it's got some battle scars too it looks like it's been through some uh some crusades <laughs> moving on let's move forward we've got ourselves oh bubby which is the regional rat it's an opossum plus bubby kind of simple got a little diaper pattern to him got the little curly cue on the top definitely Got that baby. I love how he's holding his tail like a blankie and he's sucking his thumb. That's cute. Okay, so it evolves. We got Mamasum. Oh, that's adorable. She's got a bunch of little Obubbies. You know? It's like, just... Oh my gosh, she's like Octomom. Holy crap. Oh, she looks... She look, it's got that look of like, oh, I'm so happy, but also really concerned for my life. Setamut, which is the regional dog. Ground type. It's the Dingo Pokemon. So we got a Pokemon based on Dingoes. Scratching himself like a good boy. Uh... <laughs> He's just super cute. All right, we've got Digingo. So it's got like a fist. Like it's got like two paws with the, the, the mud caked onto it, but it's got this like fist on its tail. That's kind of cool. Got like three arms ready to freaking do battle. Almost like it could be a ground fighting type, but gotta have those, gotta have those solo types, those single singular typed Pokemon in your region, right? There's a balance with that. And I like its design, its aesthetic. It feels very different than other um, other regional dogs, you know? So, it definitely feels like a good fit, though, alongside, like, things like Boltund and... Or is it Boltund or Boltound? I don't know. I said Gardevoir, Gardevoir, Gardevoir wrong in the freaking last video, and people got so upset at me. <laughs> Next up, we got Frytaz, based on a Tasmanian devil of the dark electric type, uh, which is sick. I've got this little men menacing look in its tummy, but also looks like it's crazy up here. Uh, Frita is the scare Pokemon. Okay, so, oh, it's like, fr uh, Fright, Tasmanian Devil, and Taser. Like, Taz the Tasmanian Devil. I dig it, I dig it. Okay, so, it looks like it tries to intimidate people with its belly, but if that doesn't work, it just, like, will shoot blinding beams of light. That's cool. We got Revenge. I, I like that name, I like that name, Revenge. Um, it's Raven plus Revenge. Um, it's, a, you know, pretty standard bird Pokemon. It's a Raven, um... Which, it looks like, I'm pretty sure this was done. So this actually was before Rookity was even shown. Because I don't think they show, showed Rookity until the games actually came out. So, this is kind of before, uh, that this came before that. Because it's in uh, 2019, as you can see right here. Miseraven. Okay, it's ghost flying. It's got this, like, collar. And, like, this kind of, like, I think it's supposed to be, like, a spine uh, aesthetic to it. It kind of reminds me of uh, the pattern on Litten's head. Um, but it's got this, like, skull collar. Kind of actually gives me that, uh, um, Mandibuzz feel to it. Um, ghost flying type. They are drawn to mournful souls. Like, especially the souls of Cubone. Or adorning themselves with bone of their dead mothers. Oh, okay, so they got that, they got that, uh, Cubone, uh, kind of thing going on. So, see the shiny. Ooh, that shiny is badass. Wow, that's awesome. Next up, we got Ravenoir. 
So Raven, Raven, Raven Noir. It's got that Shakespearean kind of thing going on with it. It's got the skull of the Revenge actually on as its color, and I think it's even is head has like this like that skull and then it's got a cubone skull it's using to perform shakespeare which is freaking crazy they are often found in marowak graveyards what are these dudes grave digging bro what <laughs> all right next up we got platterpus oh my god ground normal how is this thing not part fairy what it's got that breakfast aesthetic to it it kind of has that um polywag it's like it's got that polywag shaped body but it's got like a, like a side. It's like if Psyduck and uh, Poly Poliwag fused, with like all creamy. It's it's so it's it's so cool. I I really like the waffle tail and the syrup on the head with the berries. Now I'm like suddenly craving waffles. Next up we've got Lar Larvision, Larvisi Larvision, Larvision, uh, Gardevoir. <laughs> We're just gonna make fun of it at this point because bug type I think this is probably gonna be looks like it's got a gem in its head So it's probably gonna end up being like bug psychic um, This is even before blood bug was shown off too. So this is before we had that bug psychic um, Type representation. That's awesome. And I like his little tail. It's kind of got this like almost uh, genie aesthetic to it uh, Like a gin next up. We got Kinesada. There it is the bug psychic typing So it's got that it's almost like a turban actually kind of like that turban. It's got this these like really cool um, antennae. It's very floofy. I like that. We've got Lepifambra, the bug psychotype. Oh, so it's, it turned into a magic carpet. It's and I was right. It kind of turned into like a turban-looking thing, and it's, it's like a magic genie with its magic carpet as its wings. I love that. That's awesome. We've got Cat Cadant, like Cadet plus Ant. <laughs> he just looks like he's already. He's like, yes, sir. I'm here, sir. Let's go, sir. I love that. I love that. It's so cute and bug grass type too. I was talking about this I think in the previous video. I think bug grass is not done that much I think bug grass type is like a unique type. I just I, I like that. I don't know I don't know how to explain it next up. We've got squadrant. I like that. And he's kind of got like a little Goatee moment going on here with his uh, with his uh, what are they called mandibles? Hell if I know I don't know um, it looks it looks cool though, and he's still got those like little hairs coming out um I like him. He, he looks like he's ready to go. He's like, I'm ready for action. Okay, Tank Ant. Wow, what an evolution, bro. I like his, like, arms. He looks like he's, like, ready to guard. He's got that Obstagoon kind of feel to it, too. Um, and he just looks like he's ready to freaking tank a hit, man. It doesn't have the stats on here, but I would imagine it has a really probably high defense stat or special defense stat, maybe to guard against those fire types. I don't know. I love that. And it's got, the go like, the goggles. Sick. Oh, we've got our first regional variant. We've got Mudbray. Agrios form, normal grass, and it's based on hay. I love that. I love that that it's based on hay. It's so floofy, and it's just kind of like, I don't know. It's it's like a little derpy. It still has that derp kind of feel to him, but he's like kind of scraggly. I love that. I, I like that a lot. Okay, it's shiny. is like more vibrantly hay colored and brown, kind of like its original form. I love, I love, love, love that. We've got Mudsdale Agrios form, and it just plays more into that hay. It's the hay's a little bit darker now, and it's kind of put into little, it's it's kind of got those uh, strands that they put around hay bales and stuff like that. Ah, man, that's really well done, really well done. And they kept the eyes guarded. Oh, I kind of how like uh, horses have their like blinders on, but like to the extreme, <laughs> like complete blind horse here. Is it the same? Oh, actually, no, that's the shiny's different. That's cool. All right, we've got Sleep. Oh my gosh, Sleep. Oh, it's so perfect. It's so fun to say too. Sleep. Sleep. Um, I love that. He's this little sleepy sheep. I love that so much. What's this shiny? Okay. And I love how it's like a thought bubble. It's its tail. Like, oh wow, that's really that's cool. It, it's it's kind of like those like thought bubbles, those dream bubbles you have that in the cartoons where they would go up and then you'd have like you'd be counting the sheep. That's exactly what this is. I love that. That's awesome. Then we've got Satrest. So Sater plus Rest, I, I I assume. Yep. It's fairy fighting type. What was it was fairy it was just pure fairy. Okay, so it's fairy fighting type. There's a neat unique type type combo. I love how it has this little eye cover. I can't remember what the name of them are, but it has this little eye cover to make it look like it's awake, even though it's not. He's like super tired. He's got the drool coming out. Oh my god, so cute. And it's still got the uh, thought bubble tail, which I, I dig. Looks like Schleep has a split evolution, actually. So it's Ulalam. It's very psychic. So they have a fairy psychic and a fairy fighting. I like that. 
Um, and it just, it's, it looks, it's just like a sleep. And it's just like, she's just, eyes are closed. She's like, I'm too good for you, but also I'm sleeping. So, like, it's psychic, so maybe it has, you can see what's around it without opening its eyes. That's what I thought. And it always is getting beauty sleep. That's awesome. It's almost got like a poodle-esque aesthetic to it, too. And it's like these, it's, it's like using its, it's like wool as, as a fashion statement. I like that. All right, we got a Smeargle Agrios form, a uh, regional variant. It's it's got that tail as a uh, as a lasso now, so it looks like it's like a farmer, rancher, farmhand, cowboy. I don't are are cowboys prevalent in Australia? I mean, I know like ranching and farming is pretty prevalent in Australia, but Agrios they're bred Smeagles to help them wrangle and herd Pokemon. Okay, yeah, so I was right. I like the little hay um, instead of its tongue. You know, it's got the little piece of hay coming out uh, and oh I, I i just realized it has this little vest like a like a little vest in its pattern okay we've got crevice seal so this little eel is hanging out in like a little thing of coral kind of got that binnacle but uh you know, like that binnacle vibe with the, it's the water water rock type it kind of looks like these are supposed to be its hands almost like these little things of kelp or like sea weed kelp and seaweed are the same thing Cool. Little water rock type feel. Alright, looks like Crevice evolves into more rays. <laughs> As in there's more rays. I like that. So it's double headed. Um, it, it's got that, like I said, that ban binnacle feeling to it, but I really like what he did with it. He's got, it, and it's like, it looks like it's, it could be land based now. It's got feet. Like it's got, like feet. That's crazy. These like little seaweed accents come out now, like are like they look like almost like they're supposed to be like shoulder cape like or something like that. I don't know. Okay, we've got kelp me, <laughs> kelp me, kelp me. Oh my gosh! One thing I said in the podcast with him is that his puns are so on point. Kelp me, the grass water type. Kelp me, the helpless Pokemon. Even with the help of humans, kelp me are always getting stranded on beaches. Oh, so sad. Such a sad little kelp me. We've got Aljade, who's a grass dragon. Uh, they live in large groups on the ocean floor, form, or forming sort of an underwater forest. Oh, cool! So like they they, they is, is referencing the kelp, the mul multiple kelp forests, and it looks like they provide homes for new Pokemon and maybe help the kelp me. Maybe I don't know. And grass dragon is such a really cool typing. I really like grass dragon. It's even got these little shells on it too. We've got Chikoko, the coconut Pokemon. Okay, so it's like. <laughs> It's got a little face. It's got a little uwu face on its on its coconut. <laughs> it's like Wilson. Oh, I love that. I love that. <laughs> it's like an ostrich or a kiwi. I'm not. I'm not sure. It's got palmuari. Oh, so it's like a cassowary. Okay, so it's more of a cassowary kind of thing. Now the little face is like. I love that. It's got like it looks like it's got little bangs, and now it looks like the coconut's been opened. Like its head is popping out of the coconut. I like, I like, I dig a cassowary Pokemon because I feel like cassowary Pokemon, they always just make like a cassowary and then they like make it fighting type, or, like fighting flying or something like that. But I really like that they went a different direction with this and even have this like little plume of like palm leaves. Katoxin! We've got Katoxin poison water kitten! Freaking a water cat. They made a literal lionfish. Like a little kitten. A little kitten lionfish. This is amazing, and I love the way they did the patterns because it it looks like a pattern a little cat would have. Awesome. Next up, we got Sea Lion. It's a, a continuing that poison water type. It's now got some more like uh, lionfish features. Got those additional spikes and the the whiskers are more of those kind of poisonous quills. It's kind of got this aquatic like, but still like tiger esque pattern to it, and the, it's got now fins on the back of its uh, uh, legs. And we've got Leotion. 10 out of 10 name and and now it's like got like this webbing on its whiskers too and and it's got like an actual like tail like a like a aquatic tail and it's it's just really majestic and i, I really love the way he did the patterning on this it almost looks like a little face right here kind of like a rorschach test <laughs> kind of like rorschach from the lee Weeka region which we did last time yeah i i love this pokemon it's it's amazing it's the sea ruler and he looks like he's ready to rule the sea I love it. We've got Seteco. Okay, so it's like a little steel. Okay, steel psychic. So no water type whatsoever, and it's got a little radar, and it's it's like a submarine mixed with a dolphin. Um, 
it's like cetaceans are like dolphins and uh, whales. They kind of come from that same family. But I like the way he did this. I really, it's simple. It's part dolphin, part submarine. You get the point, you know? Oh my gosh, I just realized even its eye has the little like crosshairs here. That's that's a really nice attention to detail. Next up, we got Dwebble, the Agrios form. Oh my goodness, what happened? It's bug poison. That's so sad. I like how its little pincers are, are like the um, little trash pickup things though. What are those called? I don't even know what they're called. But people pick up trash with the little spike things. I don't know what the name. Sue me. Um, it's the trash in Pokemon. What ha what happened to make it like this? It doesn't really say what happened to make it like this, but it's kind of sad. It's kind of like a statement on pollution. And it's got the little... I like the little, like, smoothie cup with the Pokeball on it. We've got Crustle, who's a full-on dumpster now. It's got a Trubbish hanging out in the back. That's hilarious. <laughs> I love that little reference. That's cool. That's cool. We got Ha Hyena. It's a Ha Ha plus Hyena. Um, it's in its fairy type. It reminds me of that Lee Weekend um, Mighty Yena, but it's kind of got that clown aesthetic to it. It's, it's got the reds with the yellows and the white, like red button nose. It's cool. Cool Pokemon. And then we've got Hamaniac. This is giving me major Hisoka from Hunter Hunter vibes if you've watched it. That's what this is giving me major those vibes. Very dark type. Hemaniac. Oh gosh, it's 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 giving me that that creepy vibe, like Ahsoka mixed with freaking Pennywise. Trionet, like Marionette. Yeah, Trio Trionet. Oh, it's Trionet. So it's like it's a puppet with sock puppet hands. Are these his only friends? If so, that's really sad. Psychic like ghost type. Is this its? Oh, this is its real eye. Oh, that's creepy. That's creepy. That's creepy. But I like it. Tripleteer. Wow, okay, so we're going, we have like a, more of a Hydreigon thing going on. This reminds me of something you'd see in like Courage the Cowardly Dog. I just recently saw a clip of Courage actually because the voice of Muriel, Muriel died, um, unfortunately. So, but that, that's that's what this is reminding me of majorly right now. There, here it is, the one I talked about in the podcast, Fire Kraken, which is the perfect pun. It's just so perfect. Fire flying type, it reminds me of a little blooper, but like a... Like if a blooper, there's a fire blooper or something like that. I love it. Love it. Love it. It's just perfectly done conceptually, name-wise, type-wise. Amazing. We've got Shackid. He's looking like he did something wrong. Hands behind the back. They are always runs with their hands cuffed behind their backs and use their feet to attack foes. Okay. So they, they're, they're just permanently under arrest. <laughs> steel. Oh, it's a pure steel type. I would have uh, coined it as dark, but maybe... Maybe it'll get that dark type later on. We've got Bracel, so it's Steel Rock. That's interesting. I did not see that coming, actually. He's, he come, he's got behind the bars. It's like he's inside the old ball and chain, that, as they say, and it's got the cracks on it. Wow, that's that's sad for that's sad for uh, Shackid. I'm I'm sorry. I'm sorry for you, Shackid. Oh, okay, Bale Angel. Okay, okay. So it goes from Steel to Steel Rock to Steel Flying. That's cool. And it evolves from happiness. That's that makes sense. And now it's free from its chains. It can fly like an angel. It's kind of like a bug line because it's got that little starting almost kind of worm-esque stage, then the cocoon, and then like the flying beautiful butterfly stage. I love that. Oh, that's really cool and well done. Like way to take a concept done in Pokemon and kind of put a new spin on it. Wallaby, I love this. It's got the little pompadour. It's amazing. It's it, it looks like it's about to freaking pull out a shiv on you, dude, out of that pouch, man. At night, Wallaby will join together in groups and cause trouble around the cities. Oh, so he's a little punk. A little punk. A little punk Wallaby. I like that. We've got Greaseroo. Oh my goodness. This is sick. I love the way he did the kangaroo's face. Because it looks like a real kangaroo. I feel like the, a lot of kangaroo Pokemon are so like cutesy and like adorable. But, uh, yeah, at least in the fake mod community. But the way he did this, it made, it elongated it like an actual kangaroo's face. And it has that, like, those cheekbones to it. And it's got this humongous pompadour. And it's got, like, brass knuckles. It's so cool. And it looks like it can learn a couple, dark, like, dark-type moves, like Sucker Punch and stuff like that. That's that's amazing. All right. Parasite Egg. So it's, like, a, it's a normal type. The Bad Egg Pokemon. Sneaks into nests of other Pokemon where it sucks out all the nutrients. Oh gosh. Oh gosh. I oh is it is it is it an egg? Or is it just like a disguise? I don't know, maybe it'll evolve and we'll find out. Yep. 
egg glutton. So it's normal dragon type. So it is actually an egg. Interesting. Why the dragon typing though? That's my curiosity. Why, why dragon? So we've got a Wooper Agrios form. It is a psychic water type now. It looks more like an actual axolotl. It's got these little plumes that just look so cute and little wiggle lines. I like how he changed it from like the Wi-Fi signal to these little wiggly lines. And it kind of got these like loose skin too. Kind of like um, real axolotls do. I love that. We've got the Quagsire Agrios form and it's got this like like the eyes look like they don't even exist like it's it definitely has that real axolotl like almost like lifeless feel to it i don't know they kind of just look like they're floating there you know and then they move and you're like whoa um and it's elongated it's kind of got that like long serpentine-esque feel to it like an actual salamander we've got ambuzz who's got like amber right like, as its butt i can't think of the bug term for butt someone in the comments let me know but it's like a little like mosquito and i think it's a reference to like the mosquito found in amber kind of like the amber mosquito that was found in jurassic park where they got the dinosaur blood and were able to reincarnate the dinosaurs wow i can talk holy good goddamn what <laughs> atlasquito it's got a full-on mega aerodactyl trapped in amber and it's like carrying it that thing is wild looking what this thing's crazy i love that wow that's awesome oh and i read the comments i know aerodactyl was originally rock flying type i in the last video i know it was originally rock flying type i know that now thank you for correcting me oh okay looks like we got fossils we got gem fossil Galea fossil and the tail fossil. Okay, so I know which one of these is. Uh, oh, we got six. Okay, so we got crest fossil, snout fossil, and bark fossil too. Okay. So we've got min mineral, which is rock steel type. I don't know if it's supposed to be a stegosaurus or like an ankylosaurus or what what kind of so like dinosaur it's based on. Uh, but it's got these little quartz deposits on its back and I dig them a lot. I, I, I dig them. Oh my gosh, Brandon. The puns, they just happen. Okay, so we got Ankorts. So it is an Ankylosaurus. Okay. And I love that they did the more, like, formed quartz deposit. Like, like it's got, like, a little full-on quartz, like, uh, tree here. I love that. And it's all glowing, and it's just, like, refracting the light. It's got this little spiky part in the back, too. Next up, we got Demetrogen, which I talked about in the podcast. It's got this, like, Trojan helmet, and it's rock fighting type. It's just a perfect rock fighting type. The pun of the name is it's amazing it's got these little battle scars amazing we've got a more how do you say this a more inches a more inches i i don't know you know people are going to correct me in the comments but it's got a little heart for a tail i love that it's got a little oh is that supposed to be like a little heartbreak i'm not sure it's got a little crack in it like it's like the heart's about to break i don't know but it's it's very love theme love themed rock the uh, fairy type it's even got a little crack in the fossil down here actually so what is this based on the ram oh my gosh that's a mouthful ram for inches ram for inches i don't know next up we got orinth -Kurg. i don't know how to pronounce this i'm sorry i butchered that probably it's still it's got that little heartbreak in it it looks like kind of like a spade now um and it's got this big old heart mouth and another reference got the crack going right through it like heartbreak Wondering why it has these little poofs around its neck and its ankles here. Maybe that's a reference to the original dinosaur. I'm not sure. All right, we've got Yggdrasaur. Oh my goodness. That is amazing. It's based on the world tree, Yggdrasil, and I think uh, Triceratops. I love that it's like got this mask on its face and it's got this like foliage. It looks like a, like a, you would mistake it for a, like a hill with a tree on it. I, I love that. <laughs> We got Didgeridon. <laughs> I love this thing. Oh my gosh. It's got these fire notes coming out of its big old head. Oh my gosh. That's... <laughs> love that. And I love the patterning. It's very much got that, um, I, I think, aboriginal patterning. I think that's the, kind of what the reference is supposed to be there. Oh my gosh. That's amazing. That's amazing. Oh I, I love that. We've got Corionyx. So it's uh, probably, yeah, Baryonyx. The Baryonyx plus coral. And it's got this little, like, hairdo. Like, this awesome little coral hairdo. Looks mischievous. Kind of like it, maybe an ancestor to, like, um, Feraligator line or 
the crocodile line. Is it say actually? I'm not sure. But it, de it definitely looks like it could be an ancestor to those two. I, I like that. Next up, we got Corusail. Oh my gosh, this thing is awesome. I love like the dragon, like, uh, like whiskers, like the, the those Eastern dragon whiskers that adds to it. It looks very, like, badass, and it's rock, still rock water type. Man, that's awesome. It's it's reference to the uh, Spinosaurus, I think, or maybe it's continued from the Baryonyx. I'm not sure. It looks like it fought Tyrantrum in the good old days. So this thing was duking it out with Tyrantrum. That's dope. Going toe to toe with that beast. I mean, you gotta. You gotta just gotta say this thing's badass. That's awesome. Next, we've got Tiburon, the sand shark uh, Pokemon. It's based on a sand shark, literally a sand shark. And it also has another reference. Uh, Tiburon will get riled up and gather in large groups to create a tornado of sorts that destroys many things in its path. And here is that tornado Tiburon, Tiburon, storm form, ground flying type. It's a reference to Sharknado, a really, really well done reference, really do well done mon. I love this mon. It's 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 awesome. Next up, we got Mon Dune, who's doing the hang loose symbol here, and he's got these like trunks. He's kind of like a mixture of uh, sand surfing and like traditional surfing. He's got these trunks, and its board is actually layered sediment. That's really cool. Yeah, he's doing that hang loose symbol. He just looks like he's got not a care in the world. That's awesome. Next, we've got a kid art. It's a uh, echidna with like a like a dark. Uh, uses its nose as a dart gun. That's cool. Uh, electric poison type, so we got that kind of toxicity vibe going on. We've got Jack Kindle. Oh my gosh, he's a little floof. He's like a Angora rabbit. Oh my goodness, he's so cute. A cute little pure fire type bunny. Oh my goodness, that's adorable. Next we got Fluff Flaflare, Flaflare, the combustion Pokemon. Uh, isn't Combuskin the combustion Pokemon? I, I I'm not sure, but I love this. Kind of has like these fires or horns, almost like a jackalope, and, and the way it's like floof is going, it's kind of got that almost Chinese-inspired cloud look to it. I really dig that. It's the the coloring on the bottom reminds me of Ho. -Oh. I really, really like this design. That's that's awesome. Finally, we got Lutu. Is, is that L Lutu? Oh my goodness! I just realized it's got the Japanese uh, character for flame on it, and it's got these like nice little patterns on the back holy crap i just noticed its horns how did i just notice its horns oh my goodness they're like giant candelabra like this things are wild looking man wow really really well done next up we got sir skink it's traditional electric type got that those electric type vibes to it it's a skink pokemon i like that they included a like a reptile in there fake fake man's loves reptiles so and fossils so it evolves to gigawana Electric, I put its ability on here. Static. Oh, wait, did it always have its ability? No, no, it didn't. Okay. Oh, shoot. Uh, we got static. Uh, the ability is static. It's got the electricity coming from its eyes. The tongue is, like, fully out on display, like it was in the last one, but, like, it's even longer now. Got this electric pattern on it. So, yeah, it's a, just a great all-around electric type. And, look, oh, it's Gigalania. So, it looks like it's a reference to Megalania, the dinosaur. But it's got these like electricity running all over it. It's got this like spit bubble, which I think might be a reference to the fact that I think Megalania were poison, poisonous, um, because uh, they are an ancestor of the Komodo dragon. Um, and so maybe this spit like paralyzes them. I mean, I don't, I don't know. Let's look at the ability. Uh, it's got static bite. Any bite moves that this Pokemon uses will have a forty percent chance to paralyze. Yep. Okay, I thought that. I like that a lot. So it paralyzes. Electric Dark type. Ooh. So I think that's the second Electric Dark type we've seen in this region, right? We've got Marowak Agrios form. Fighting Dragon. It's got like, is this, oh, it's bo uh, Bone Mering is literally just a Boomerang now. And it's got this like tribal, like, uh, paint on its, on its body and stuff like that. That's, that's cool. Fighting Dragon. Just go straight from ground to Fighting Dragon. Like... I guess I guess it makes sense because um, Alolan Marowak went from grounds of fire ghost, so I guess it's possible to just evolve to something completely different typed. That's that's wild. Next up, we got Agrios form Nummel, which is rock ground type, which I think is actually the same exact typing as um, Leweekin Nummel, um, but this one is got a d definitely a different design to it. It's got that rock 
um, hump and then like these little stones. And I really like his little floofs here. It looks like he's actually a little bit taller, so he might go the uh, more traditional camel route with this one. We'll see. Oh, wow. Okay, so we got Illumal, um, which is Uluru. I think that's like the, uh, there's that big, um, big red crag, rock, I don't know how to, like mountain in uh, Australia. I think this is a reference to that. I really like what he did with it. Um, yeah, rock ground type continuing. He's got these patterns that almost look like giraffe-esque. I really like what he did with this one. Completely different direction than Lee Weekends went. That's, that's awesome. Next up, we got Drodagon Agrios form, dark ground type, and it's, uh, it's kind of, I think it, isn't there like a, uh, lizard called the Horn Devil? I think that's what this might be a reference to. It's got these, like, spikes all over it, um, same with the, same with the, uh, Drodagon. They, it has the, those spikes everywhere, so I think that might be what it's a reference to. Next up, we got Snobbling, um, which is a little cute duck, but he's got that little sinister, cheeky grin. Fairy flying type, okay. It evolves into Malord. <laughs> Malord. <laughs> Very flying type. Malord. Uh, he's got this little uh, flower, the vest, but it's also like its plumage. It's got the little cane top hat made of like a flower of some type. I, I like this. This is cool. And then uh, we've got Milady. <laughs> the puns. The puns. So snooty. Her uh, outfit it looks like it's different foliage from around you know rivers and ponds and stuff like that oh my gosh she looks so snooty so snooty next we've got helioptile agrios form um i can't exactly tell what this is inspired by it's flying ghost um it's got like this like doily-esque look to it I'm, I'm not entirely sure what this is inspired by but uh it's ghost typing was gained after living in haunted manors the rich ones lived in hmm so they used to be, oh, okay, so they used to be like a, kind of like a, a lowland Meowth where they were like owned by like upper crust people. So maybe it's just supposed to be like fancy. It evolves into Heliolisk, which it looks like a, oh, it's like an umbrella. It's, it's like a parasol. Is this supposed to be a reference to that like yokai, uh, that umbrella, like one-eyed umbrella yokai? That's interesting. I like the little skull like faces on it the umbrella that's cool flying ghost that's what a not a unique like form like a unique regional form wow that's awesome okay i like that a lot next up we got tauros agrios form whose horns have gotten much bigger covered in mud groundwater type wow that's that's it's really good that's that's just that's just, just a, that's a good mon right there I, I, you know on calls it how i sees it that's a good looking mon so we got aplor who is a grass ghost type. Um, it's just like a reference to bad apples. Um, it's cute, got a little mischievous grin on there. Oh, this little the rot right here, it kind of looks like a little skull. We've got corrupt. <laughs> I really dig this. Uh, the way it's like body is shaped, like the, 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 I love how he plays with body shapes because he made the shape of the body, like the core of the apple like look like a body shape so it's like hunched over and then it's got these like brush arms with the uh wood wooden legs like the uh, uh what's the word stem the stems are like the that come out of the head the legs it's really well done and it's still got the little skull over here and then over here too next up we've got toto sham oh it's a mixture of totodile and total sham okay his parents use used to scare off bird pokemon such as pikapek and revenge so it won't be preyed upon. Oh, okay. So it's like a mimic, like the, the way that bugs will mimic predators in the wild so they won't get attacked. Okay, cool. Oh, it evolves into Mimigator. Wow, this thing's face is intense. Bro, what? Dude, this thing's about to throw hands or feet or whatever it has. I really like Bug Dragon. Okay. We have a Bug Dragon type. Wow. This thing is really really crazy looking i like it i like it though I, I, it's a good kind of crazy it's just really wild next we got impostodile okay so we've got some continuing with the imposter theme here um it's but this one is actually a crocodile it's just like trying to look like rocks it says it's the phony rock pokemon but it is actually rock type kind of be be funny if it were reverse it'd be it's grass type but it is you know uh, the reverse of a uh, sudowoodo where it's grass type but it's trying to look like rocks, so you kind of go for those rock-type resistances, right? 
Oh, yes, this one. Yeah, okay, so it evolves into Croc Cavern, Rock Dark, which I think is so well done. It's just so creepy, but, like, really just... It's just, it's perfectly describes... It just, it just, it, it just... It's just such a good concept. It just mixes together so well. And it reminds me of that, like, the entrance, uh, the, like, tiger entrance to Aladdin, but, like, more sinister. Next up, we got Terrena, which is ghost and uh, water. It's a mixture of terror, terrain, and piranha. Okay, so it's a little ghost-type piranha. It looks, like, plenty, plenty ghostly, sinister. It's got that, like, bone-esque face to it, like a, like a skull. Uh, next up, we've got... Narciss <laughs> Narcissus, Narcissus, Nar okay, Narcissus plus Nar uh, Pisces, so it's like self-absorbed. It's a swamp siren. Okay, the discontinued uh, tale here. I I don't think Pokemon would go that far. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe they've done something like that. Maybe there's a Pokemon I'm just not thinking of. But I don't know. D like a cut in half head doesn't seem very. Pokemon to me, but that's that's just me. Okay, we've got Yuck Yuck. Oh, interesting. Okay, so now I see what's going on here. Okay, so it's like a ghost mermaid. Got this ghost mermaid tail. It's kind of got that uh those that bone, like the bones coming out of it. Um, and the rest is ghost. Okay, yeah, he talked about this in the podcast actually. Ghost water type, and um, it's based on a Yuck Yuck, which I think is uh some kind of. Australian siren. I, I I actually like the way that he did this. This is really well done. So oh, so next up we've got Piscuba. So it is a split evolutionary line, uh, kind of like Nidoran, Nido or Nidoran male, Nidoran female, kind of thing. Okay, so it's Piscuba. It's got a little scuba helmet. It kind of looks like a uh, oh gosh, what are those things called? They're in uh, Sahagins. Sahagins in. Uh, um, or Sahagans, however you pronounce it, from Final Fantasy. That's kind of what it reminds me of. We got Lagool. Uh, ghost Water. Were they Ghost Water or Water Ghost? Okay, yeah, they were always Ghost Water. Okay. The Swamp Diver Pokemon. He's got kind of that Delmize anchor to it. Kind of that old-timey um, scuba outfit. I, re I, I really like this. It's, uh, it's, I, you can see his little mer face in there. Yo Yaweep. Yow the Yowie Pokemon. So, is it... What's a, is a Yowie, is it supposed to be like a Yeti? So it's like a water type Yeti, but it's like always crying. Okay. Next we've got Yowrage, water fire type. Okay, so it's maybe a reference to like boiling over, like boiling mad. Um, like after you cry, you know, you get really angry. I think that's like the stages of grief, like, like anger comes after sorrow or sadness or something like that, right? So yeah, it's kind of like a Yeti, fire, water fire Yeti. That's a really interestingly done concept. Okay, so we got Oranguru Agrios form. It's ghost fairy type. It's a, like a sage. That's really cool. And it's got like this powder. It's like uh, concocting some kind of maybe medicine or smoke. It's got like handprints on its chest. Interesting. But I, I like the paint, uh, the, the, the like tribal paint it's got on its face. Oh, it's even got one of those little nose the septum piercings that go straight through. Okay. And, and, and its plumage is not even made up of like grass or whatever it was it's like feathers now okay i was curious if they're gonna do it it's got passimian agrios form we've got the grass fighting type that we so rightly deserved originally i felt like passimian should have been grass fighting from the beginning but now it's uh going it's gone from rugby to uh cricket which is another like kind of um what's the word kind of like british sport right is it a british sport or is it exclusive australian dumb americans not knowing their shit you know that's just me <laughs> Next up, we've got Quokenki. So it's a uh, electric fire type. Okay, so this is the Pika clone, and it's electric fire type. Interesting that they made, went with the fire type. I don't really see too many fire type aspects to it. I mean, this kind of this kind of here looks like maybe a flame, but it doesn't really scream fire type to me. It's based on Quokas, which are those things you see in like all the memes where they're like smiling, and he's got the smile too. They like always are smiling for selfies and stuff. So it's, yeah, it's a mixture of Quokka and Denki, which is electricity, which is where Denki B and Denki Rai come from. If you missed the recent video on uh, the more staple mons, check that out. I'll link that. But yeah, they're incredibly photogenic, and it's quite common for tourists to take selfies with them. Same thing as the Quokka. Yeah. We got Mimikyu Agrios form. Okay, so it looks like it's trying to mimic Quokenki. So that's cool. It's ghost dark type instead of ghost fairy type. 
Interesting. Why why the why did they switch to dark? Okay, so it looks like they photobomb Taurus, so maybe they're just more mischievous than the Mimikyu. Maybe Mimikyu wants to be loved, right? But maybe this one just wants to cause trouble, I guess. We got Porcupine. It's the to it's a toxic pig Pokemon. Interesting. So it looks like kind of like a mixture of a boar and a like a porcupine. Interesting. I really like this little, little teeny little tusks. It's like looking like it's like, oh my little tusks. I got little tusks down here. Okay, then we got Putrig. Wow. Okay, so it's got those like this, those kind of boards that have the horns coming out of their nose, but as well as their like teeth. That's really interesting. I love that it's got these like toxic fumes coming out. It's got this little shaggy hair that's coming out, spikes everywhere. It looks really menacing. I could even see this being poison dark type, honestly. Like, it's really menacing looking. Next up, we've got Cryptocene. Ghost normal. Ghost? What, what is it supposed to be? It's Oh, it's supposed to be like a... It's supposed to be a thylacine? Oh, wait! Um, isn't this a reference to the Tasmanian... Uh, isn't the Tasmanian tiger? Right? Wasn't there like a Tasmanian tiger that went extinct and it's also called the thylacine? I think that's what this is a reference to. And it's a reference to its extinction. That's cool. That's neat. So it's like a... Goes to what it once was. I'm not sure why the normal type, though. Oh, yes. It was hunted to extinction 80 years ago. Dodo. <laughs> I love this. This is just it's a little Dodo Pokemon. Normal type. Perfectly, you know. Can't fly, so it's normal type. Dopey as all hell. I love it. <laughs> Predator. Dark Steel type. I did not see that coming. Wow, he's like a hunter. He's like... Dude, you thought you you thought you were gonna get me? Not the case. Is this supposed to be like a reference to like the Australian terror birds, maybe? Okay, so yeah, so this, this might be a reference to like back when uh the, there was terror birds, terror birds versus humans. I'm pretty sure like humans lived during the era era of terror birds, and they had to like fight them back. So maybe it's like a mixture of that. That's wild, wild. We've got cats, catscabel, normal poison. It's like a little kitty snake, got a little bell in its tail. He's so cute! He's just a little cute little cat snake. I, I really adore it. It's it's really cute. Oh, wow. Serpanthera. On, onca form? This must be must be two forms to this. But this one's dark poison. And Serpanthera can stealth is a very stealthy that can remain unheard, stalking praise for hours. Even though it has the bell on its tail? Well, once that bell is heard, it's too late. Okay, I see, I see. Is there... Oh, the Serpanthera tigress form. Wow, this is way different. It's like a... Uh, snow tiger ice poison oh we got another unique typing there it's an ice poison type it's still got that bell uh it's prey it surrounds its prey with its icy breath so they won't see from where it attacks okay cool and it's kind of like a reference to rattlesnakes too with the little bell rattle we got servin <laughs> mixture of server and penguin got a little bow tie little outfit just like a little penguin little ice type penguin you know standard but it's got the little server aesthetic to it i Really enjoy that. Does it evolve? It does. Oh yes, Bon Appetit. Uh, a reference to App Bon Appetit. It's the ice fire type he talked about in the podcast. Bon Appetit. It's got this furnace in its like tummy, and it's got the little ascot for like a chef and the little mustache. Oh, that's that's really cute. We've got Hatena Agrios form. It's grass electric type, and so it's a reference to Christmas trees. That's cute. It's just a little little Christmas tree Hatena. Uh, evolves into Hatrim. Oh my god. It's even, how did it get even cuter? How did it manage to get even cuter? It's like, it has a little Christmas tree hair. And it's got a little holly skirt. Oh my gosh. Okay, is it gonna have Hatterene? Yep, Hatterene. And they just go full Christmas tree, big old lights, big little poof balls. Oh my gosh. <laughs> that's, that's adorable. Grass Electric type is a unique typing too, and I, I really like that. Rotom is the only one with it right now, and I feel like there, we could, we deserve like a better Grass Electric type, you know? We got Impidimp, so they did Agrios form Impidimp as well as Hatena. So we got Ice Fairy now. Uh, reference to elves. Just, he's a little cute. Got the little boots. Just a traditional depiction of an elf, but thrown onto the Impidimp. Then we got more tr oh, more Grim, uh, Agrios form, and he's making little puffy snowballs to throw at each other. I really like how long its hat is. Like, it's a reference to its, uh, its like, long hair, but it, it turned into a hat instead. Kind of like looking like it's slowing on a form into Santa is, is, uh, is it going to turn into Santa Claus? 
Yep, Grimmsnarl is a full-on Santa Claus. And it's, oh, I like how he kept, like, the little pattern that it has on its, like, stomach. Except it turned into, like, a beard. And it's, like, beard, like, mixes in with the rest of it. That's really cute. That's really, that's adorable. That's just, frankly, adorable. Ice Fairy type is a really cool type combination, and I, I love that. Oh, it looks like his hat is the bag, actually. Or, like, his hair is the bag. That's cool. Completely different take on Grimmsnarl. Oh, and we got Kookaburr. It looks like the layout changed. I think the layout changed in the last post, too, actually. Yeah, these the layout changed a little bit. We got Kookaburr, which is such another, just another perfect pun. Flying ice type. It's got a little sweater. It's got that nice little pattern. It's shivering, maybe. So, yeah, they make a strange noise, sound, kind of sounding as if they were shivering from the cold. Yeah, Kookaburras make crazy noises. So, this is a really well, well done pun. Well done, Mon. Is it going to evolve is the question. It does not. Oh, we got another ice type. Cryothere. It's like a little ice cream rhino. What? <laughs> it's from the Elasmatherium, which I think is that... That's actually uh, the rhino ancestor that has like that humongous horn. Like, it's just like this one massive horn that comes out of its head. And I love that he turned it into a little ice cream cone. It's got Sweet Veil, vale, which just makes sense. Next up, we got Neoral. It's like a psychic type coral. And it kind of looks like almost like digital with its like is this its face right here that's kind of crazy it's it's in a reference to brain coral i think there's like a kind of coral yeah brain coral pokemon duh 240 that's a heavy boy wow uh sun steel water and it's a reference to like the electric saws i really like the way he did this because it just it looks like a fish but it also looks like those electric saws it's just perfectly what it is you know i, I don't know how to say it it's perfectly what it is Chain Maw. Wow. Okay, so he went even further with it. And he's got that, like, grip on the top. It's it's a it's a chainsaw now. Full-on chainsaw. Not one of those, like, little electric chainsaws. But full-on chainsaw. It's The fins are the grips. That's, yeah, really well done. Oh, it evolves again? What? Jawsaw. Okay. Oh, this is a reference to those sharks that had those, like, spirally um, saw blade-like-esque jaws I, I can't remember what they're called but yeah this is a, that's what this is a reference to and they just went that step further with it and just made it a full-on like rotator saw that's really cool and it's got strong jaw now nice this thing's tall this thing's taller than me what the hell we got sordine <laughs> oh that's that's brilliant it's like a little paper airplane water flying type reference to flying fish but also paper airplanes and sardines Oh my gosh, that's great. And it's got, even got, like, these little passenger windows. Like, you like it could hold a passenger in the plane. That's really cool. Jetuna. Oh my goodness. Wow, that's sleek. That's so sleek. I really, really like how, like, it, it really made it feel like a jet. But also it has that, like, fish aesthetic to it. Like, you know, it's just a jet. It's Jetuna. That's what it is. Mantike. Electric form. It's got that, like, David Bowie, like, uh, shock, like, a uh, lightning bolt on its eye. That's more of a reference to, like, a uh, stingray than it is to, like, the kind of, or I don't know what kind of rays they are based on, but it's more of a stingray. And he even made this little gill part right here, like an electric. And he gave him, like, the Elekid plug, uh, <laughs> plug ears or feelers or whatever they are. And then we got, oh, original evolution, Mantoon. And it made him like a freaking uh, electric guitar. That's so cool. Wow, okay, original evolutions. We, you, Agrios has got him if you're looking for him. Wow. And it's got this little electric shock. The blue electric shock is what it, what gets it for me. I really like a nice blue lightning. I feel like all the, you know, like Toxtricity has that blue lightning and it's, just, it's a really cool aesthetic. We got Lapras. Yes, this is my favorite. Freaking Agrios form Lapras. It's got this full coral reef on its back. Got a star you chilling out there. Oh, it's so pretty, man. Ah, oh, he did such a good job with Lapras. Lapras is like my favorite Pokemon. Like one of my favorite Pokemon, if not my favorite. It's so, so pretty, so well done. We got Clavopus, who's now poison type. It's really great. Like I think it's got, it's limber poison point. It's no longer fighting type, just pure poison. It's really interesting. Then we got Medusoct. Okay, so they went with like a more Medusa route, and it's Poison Psychic now. Okay, 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 okay. 
We got Fortishell. Oh, <laughs> it's this little sea slug with a castle on its back. It's dragon type. I was thinking water. That's really cute. And it's got like the opposite pattern on its ears, right? So this like inverts it up there. Wow, okay, shell armor, of course. And it's like, oh, it's like a dragon in a castle. Like, uh, just protecting a castle, and it's like hooked onto the back. Wow, okay. It's kind of like, kind of got that Goomy vibe to it almost, but like more like European dragon. We've got Abyss Shark. This is one I've seen before, and it's one of those things where you're like, I wish I had thought of this idea first. It's a psychic dark, like space um, whale shark. It's just amazing. It's It's got this, like, cosmog s feel to it where it's got a black hole in its mouth. It's just you don't know where it's going to, where you're going to go if you get swallowed by this thing. It's crazy. And I actually, I'm pretty sure there's a story of a surfer getting swallowed by a whale or a whale shark. And then they just got, like, they, they weren't really hurt. They just had to hold their breath and it was really scary. So, you know, they, did, they didn't die. We've got Bobite, fire ground type. It's, uh... Fire Worm Pokemon. It kind of reminds me of an Antlion, but we kind of already have an Antlion Pokemon in uh, Trap Inch. But it's got this like, I like think it's like exploding out like a, like a volcano, like plumes of smoke out of volcano. It's got a new ability too. The opposing Pokemon cannot escape, and there is a 30% chance it will get burned if it tries. Wow, so it's Arena Trap mixed with a burn chance. That's wild. Uh, Tynamo, it's dark type, so it's like a vampire, it's based on a vampire eel, right? Is there some, is there such thing as a vampire? I'm pretty sure there's a vampire eel. But it's, yeah, it's got this, like, draconic, oh, and the thing on its side is like a heartbeat now. That's crazy. It's got an ability Bloodsucker. If attacked by a critical hit, it'll take half the HP it lost in, from the opponent to heal itself. Damn, that's broken. Then we got Electric, and it's got, like, that those like wing bat-esque wings and yeah it's got that the continuing with the heartbeats pattern on the side now we've got electros who just went full dracula vampire pokemon it's the vampiric pokemon now it's got bloodsucker continuing got the bat and it's got this nice little pattern on its chest that kind of looks like a like clothing you know it's really cool we've got arachat Ar arachat it's a, oh, it's like a hat spite, a rack, a rack, a rat chat. So it's like uh, a arachnid plus hat. It's like a little hat spider. Aw, cute. Does it evolve? No. Insomnia? <laughs> this poor dude. This dude looks like he hasn't slept in years. Oh my gosh, this poor guy. He's got like the little psychic eyes all over him. Its vast knowledge of the universe keeps it awake. It'll never shut its eyes even after losing a battle. Ah! If the human mind were to know everything Insomniel knows, it would explode. That's so sad. We've got Growth You, uh, which is like a skeleton. It's like an it's the anatomy Pokemon. It's like it's got skeleton, but it's got like some like meat on its bones. It's a skeletal form. Okay, it's fighting normal type. Its ability is gains. If this Pokemon is level twenty or above, and its HP is above fifty percent, it will be in skeletal form. Skeletal form. Once it once it reaches 50%, it will do muscular form, and then 20% dermal form. Okay, so I guess we'll see dermal, uh, muscular. Okay, so here's muscular form, so it's a little bit more beefy. I'm assuming stats change, right? And then uh, is this gonna be dermal? Oh, okay, so dermal it gets like gets skin. It goes from getting muscle to skin, so it becomes more and more human-esque. But it's got these like sp these dermal spikes on it. It's got like this helmet. Kind of terrifying, honestly. That's that's, but that's really cool. Really cool concept. Kind of reminds me of the armored Titan um, from Attack on Titan. We've got Europole. It's the bomb frog Pokemon. So it's got it's a little grenade. It's got the magma um, feel to it. it. It looks like it's really sad. It kind of just like, don't blow me up. Don't do it, please. We've got Bomb Bufo. Wow, fire poison type. He's got a little. Erupt holes on its back, and that's kind of a reference to uh, the the frogs that can um, they kind of have the babies in their back, which terrifies me. It's so creepy. Um, it's got the grenade reference um, in the chin, and it's got the pin in its nose. It kind of reminds me of the Tetsu Cabra from Monster Hunter. We've got Tweedalisk, dragon type, 
Um, it's got this little pattern on its skin. So this is like supposed to be like a cockatrice. Um, it's born with no fear. They can make the bravest man run away with a single glare. Interesting. This little thing is intimidating. That's funny. Okay. Shockatrice. There it is. Shockatrice. Um, that's... <laughs> It's got like wings, but like they're not quite its wings. It's like signals it's shooting out. Dragon electric type. And it's continued that little pattern. Wow. This is really cool. I, I really like this mon. You got glide kick. What is what is this a reference to? It's a oh, it's a sugar glider. Oh my gosh, it's like a superhero sugar glider. That's so awesome. It's kinda of got that Batman plus sugar glider. It's got limber and huge power. Okay. About the body some fools flying fighting type okay okay we've got yamask okay so we got a regional yamask agrios form um it's got like a book oh yes i've seen this before it's uh the bob uh babadook yeah the babadook babarigus it yeah it kind of comes out it's ghost poison type it's like the boogeyman okay i like that i like that it kind of just like takes the comfort Confer soul and like brings it out and it's like this is what i really look like i like that we got Grimer. <laughs> is this supposed to be a reference? Oh yeah, he said this is a reference to Fairy Bread. And I think Ve it, it kind of is this supposed to be Vegemite? I don't think it's Vegemite. Maybe I'm wrong. I think I said that in the thing and it wasn't. It's Grass Fairy type, which is a reference to Fairy Bread, which I'm pretty sure is what he's referencing with here. Yeah. Okay. So Vegemite. So it is Vegemite. Yeah. So it's a reference to Fairy Bread, and it just is just a total abomination. <laughs> it's just an abomination of bread and Vegemite and eyes and tongues and ugh. Patrat. Oh my gosh, I love this Patrat. Actually, this is one of the first things I saw on his page. Was a ground electric Patrat. It's a reference to miners, and it's got it's just got these little shock whiskers. It's it's just so perfect. He's a little worker, little worker bee, going through the mines, trying to get what he can. And then it's Wombolt, so it's a reference to wombats. So he made the Patrat turned into a wombat. Got this little beard with the electricity in it. Uh, it kind of reminds me of those vests that people wear. At night times, uh, worker, Pokemon, uh, worker people wear at night so they don't uh, get run over by a car. You know, uh, what's the word? Road workers and stuff like that. And even people on bikes wear them. I really like the way he did this. Ground electric type is like such an underused type. I think I think only one Pokemon has it. It's uh, Stunfisk. Stunfisk is the only one with that type, I think. Next, we got Rain Sparse. Evolution to Dunsparce. It's Fairy Dragon. It's got like the rainbow on all on the back. It's kind of simplistic, and I kind of like that. I like how he just kept it simple. The pattern on the back is a little much. Like, Pokemon tend to stick to not crazy amounts of colors, and this is kind of a lot of colors. But, I mean, it is kind of its gimmick, so, I, you know, I'll, I'll, like, that it's supposed to be, like, a rainbow. So, I'll, I'll say that. I, so I'll say that I really dig it. It's about based on the rainbow snake. It's a rainbow snake Pokemon. Is there a rainbow snake? I'm not sure. Lyric, uh, Lyrical. So it's uh, evolution to Chatot. Also got the rainbow aesthetic to it. Kept the normal flying type. Interesting. I would have pegged it as uh, fairy flying, but normal is kind of an embodiment of sound. Um, it's got soundproof and tangled feet. It's got this little lyre. It's uh, it's lyrical. Maybe I pronounced that wrong. Lyrical, but it's supposed to be like lyrical plus lyre. It's got the little lyre as its tail. And actually, this is the last Mon. It's Royaling. It's a Steel Dragon type. It's the very starter stage to his pseudo line. Um, it is not the the line is not completely finished, but uh, um, so yeah, this is where we are ending. But before we do, this thing is really interesting looking. It looks like it's gonna be like some kind of kingly thing. You can't see it. It doesn't have eyes. Are these are these supposed to be its eyes? Because they look like teeth to me. So, just a note, I don't know. They, they kind of look like teeth to me. So I can't tell if this, like, these are, is these its eyes and these are its teeth? I'm not 100% certain. But I think it's really cool. A little orb Pokemon. Steel Dragon type, I really like. I really like its typing. But that's it for the Agrios region. Um, let me know what you thought. Which Pokemon for this region was your favorite? Uh, make sure to go follow Fake Mans on Twitter for updated versions of all these Pokemon. Uh, make sure to like, comment, subscribe. Hit that notification bell. Become a member if you can. 
all those awesome things. And uh, yeah, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you guys next time. Hey everyone, Brandon here back with another region review where we review different regions around the Fakemon community. Today we are talking about the Bayon region, a Philippines based region that is not just a Fakemon region. No, no, no. It is also being developed into fan games. We have Pokemon Eternal Light and Infernal Dark where they introduce a whole new typing called the light type but we will take a look at that later stay tuned but if you want to show some support to these guys all of their links will be in the description down below they have all the things they have a discord that you can check out updates on the game they have twitter they have instagram they have a youtube with some gameplay on there it's amazing so definitely go check them out also don't forget to support this channel right here we do lots of fake mon content just like this so make sure to like subscribe and hit that notification bell to keep up to date with future videos anyway let's just jump into it we got pokemon eternal light and infernal dark here are the logos i probably showed them earlier but we have the region map in the background, which to me is very reminiscent of the Alola region. You have those little rocks covering the borders, which just feels very Alola to me. That's They had that a lot in Alola with all the different beaches and stuff like that. It looks like that this used to be called the Philippines region, or it still is. I'm not sure if the Bayon region was a name change or what the situation is there, but I'm sure that'll be explained to me in the comments. <laughs> but let's look at our starters. Here we have th our three starters. It looks like, oh, actually, it, they don't say the names. Here we have our protagonists for this region. We've got Dre or Aurea. I really like their designs. I like the Teddy Ursa leggings on Aurea. And I'm wondering what this little gadget is right here on their hips. They both have them on their hips. So I'm interested to see how that'll work out. And I also like how their colors match. You know, they have the red with the red and the yellow with the yellow and the, the like uh, pant, the denim pant look. I like that. Looks like we have our grass starter here. It is Bintu Kit. The, uh, what is this? The Bear Kai? Bear, Bear Kai Pokemon? I think that's what that says. I think they're based on Bintu Wrongs. I'm not sure. I think, I think Bintu Wrongs are like in the same family as Red Pandas. I don't know. I've watched a bunch of naked, na naked documentaries. Wow, Brandon. Nature documentaries about, about this kind of stuff. Um, but yeah, I, I really like its design. You got the black and the green, which is always a good look. It's got the leaves coming out of its tail. It looks pretty fierce. I like I like it's, it has quite a bit of personality. So uh, let's move on to the fire starter. Okay, it's Agu Aguilet. Uh, it's an eagle, an eagle fire starter. Okay, I like its wings. I like the way they did their wings. It's like got the magma on it, but I like this little swirly right here. I don't know. It gives me like ho -Oh vibes. I know that they're both fire flying, so that kind of makes sense. But, I don't know, it gives me ho vibes, or even maybe, like, do you guys, anybody remember Gaia Online? I, I, uh, maybe I'm crazy here, but that's kind of what that reminds me of. Anyway, we have our water starter, which is a fish cow? The water calf Pokemon. It's a water, a, a, is a sea, a sea cow? Oh, is this, like, based on manatees and the, how they're called the sea cows? Is that what this is? Because that's smart. They literally just made a sea cow instead of making it a manatee. It kind of has that, like, you know, the nose of a manatee. So I could see it. I could see it. Oh, okay. So it looks like we're getting into our Route 1 Mons. So first off, we have Peepibon, which is the tiny Sparrow Pokemon. Interesting that they chose to do a Sparrow when we already have Spiro. Pretty standard Route 1 bird, seems like. I like its little, I like its design elements, but it's pretty, you know, it, 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 it's a Route 1 bird Pokemon, you know. Looks like we have Caterspike, which is our regional bug. Looks like it's going to turn out to be Bug Dark, based on the coloration. <clears throat> it's got that Black Widow aesthetic to it. Okay. And we got Lupup, which is our regional dog. It is normal type. It is the Pooch Pokemon. Interesting. So we got Lupup, which sounds like Lillipup, and then it's the Pooch Pokemon, which is like Pooch Gianna. I like its little paw print on its, like, leg, hind leg there. It's a cute mon. It's definitely cute. I think uh, I'm excited to see where they go with it. Okay, we got Harrybon, which is uh, the evolution to Pippibon, and it's very menacing looking. It's got like, almost like a crooked looking smile down here with this eye, like an eye. Interesting. Yeah, it's got a very interesting design. It, it is really reminiscent of Spiro to me now. Like, even this little wing is very like Spiro-esque to me, but that's just me. I kind of like it. It looks like it has like a little ascot right here. I don't, I don't know. That's just that's just me. So we got Spikeoon here. So it's it's a uh, the evolution to Caterspike. It looks like they uh, reduced everything. It looks like less saturated. You know what I'm saying? So it's like gray, less saturated, black, and then they have like a less saturated red here. So I'm interested to see where they go with it. 
So we've got Ding Geo or Ding Geo. I'm not sure what they're supposed to, what they're trying to go with there because it's Dingo plus Geo, but either way, it's a normal ground type now. I like how they kept the little paw print that's cute and then it's got like kind of like mud on its paws and then this dirt clawed collar. It's got this little crystal, kind of like a little like name tag that they have on their collars. I wonder if you look into the crystal, if it'll just like show you what the who the owner is and what number to call. <laughs> So it looks like we have our Ruan Professor, and we have a, some new mons down here, actually. Like a banana alligator? What the heck? He looks like he's almost inspired by like Steve Irwin a little bit. Alejandro Nara, known for being an explorer, weatherman, TV host, athlete, actor, and prof Pokemon professor. This dude does it all. Wow, okay. Okay, that's cool. Also, I did not realize how huge this Route 1 bird mon is. Holy god. It is a massive bird. Wow. All right, looks like we have our rival, maybe? Jasmine, it's your childhood friend. Yeah, childhood best friend and uh, rival to the player. She is the niece of Professor Nara. Okay, cool. So we got kind of got that blue Professor Oak kind of relationship there. I like her design elements. I really like her long pigtails, giving me a Hatsune Miku vibe. It's cute. Next up, we have Buko, your other childhood best friend. He's kind of giving me, like, Gladian vibes a little bit. But, I mean, he might, he looks like Gladium, but he might have, like, that personality of, like, a, like, a how or a hop. Not sure. So, it looks like he has a rebellious spirit. So, he, he's probably more of a mixture of the two. Okay, we got Sparkit, which is, I guess, our regional cat. I love this mon. This is so cute. I like it's, like, a static whiskers. It's really cute. And I like how they didn't over-design the electric elements to it. Like, they just gave it the little design element it needed to tell you oh yep it's an electric type but then they, they, they didn't go too ham on it and I, and I appreciate that I appreciate that a lot and it's kind of got the you know yamper bolt on counterpart to it so that's cool that's cool we have Copor <laughs> he's so cute he's like, he's like I'm gonna look at my little horn that's cute he's got he's got almost a mini or vibe to him but like if mini or stood he's the mineral Pokemon which I'm pretty sure mini mini or is also the mineral Pokemon but I, I like this. I, I really like this. All right, next up we have Cinturoc, which is rock poison. I, I dig that. It's got that Nihiliko typing to it. It's got the interesting, like, mandibles and the little, like, ears? I, I don't know. Antennae? There it is. God, ears. Wow, yes, because all of those bugs with ears, Brandon. It's got battle armor, which it looks like it's wearing armor. It definitely has, like, the shoulder pads, almost football player look to it. Okay, we have Kokik. A fight. Okay, so it's a fighting type polywog. Like, what? What is it? It's got the tail, but it's also like a frog. Interesting. It's like in between. So yeah, we got this fighting type frog. It is reminiscent of uh, Toxicroak for me or Krogunk, and I. I but it. I'm. Wonder, I'm interested to see where it'll go. We've got Kua Kua Gal. This thing is cute. I think this is so cute. Dark flying. It definitely gives me that hoodoo vibe, but like the level of cuteness that hoo hoo has, not its design. Like it definitely has that like cute, like almost a little lost. Like he looks like he's a little lost. Like oh, where 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 am I right now? I I, <laughs> I, I really like that. He's a it looks like he's a guide Pokemon. So maybe he's not lost. Maybe he's trying to help the lost. I'm not sure. <laughs> okay, so we're going right into the evolution with o o o Oscar Rowl, Oscar Rowl. I'm, I'm not sure. I like I like what they did with the pose because it very much feels menacing. Like, I could see this, like, being a statue. Like, you could see an Oscar Ralph statue hanging out, like, on one of the town, like, town hall. Like, the top of the town hall. It's kind of like a gargoyle, almost. I, I think its design elements are very interesting. Though, I think the horn, these horns very much remind me of, obviously, Noctowl. Just the way that the it goes over the eye it gives it that like kind of mean look. It's very, very Noctowl esque in that one. And even Noctowl sounds like it should be Dark Flying type, even though it looks like it should be Psychic Flying type. But that's just me. I I, I think it's a really well designed mod, but it does remind me of Noctowl a lot. We've got Dandela. Okay, I really like its pattern. It's oh, okay. So we have our first Light type Pokemon. Okay, does it show us the light? Okay, no, no, no. Okay, so this is. This is the evolution to uh, the uh, Caterspike and Spikeoon. Interesting. I, I thought they were going to go straight up dark type, but they went a complete opposite. Oh, wait, wait, wait. It's a, it's a 
Eternal Light. So this is an, an exclusive. Oh, okay. So maybe there will be a Dark type evolution as well. It, but I, I like the pattern. It's got this like uh, sunrise pattern to it, which I really like the way they played it into the edging of the wing. Like... It goes like spike, 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 then more spikes, and then it continues the part of this little sun they have going. They they really did that well. I really appreciate that. I wonder if it if it'll be like flipped upside down where this will be the top and that'll or this will be the top and that'll be the bottom. Oh, okay. So we've got Nui Luna, a bug dark type. So it's got the moon on the wings instead. Okay, okay. I see you. I see you. That's cool. I like that split evolution, dark and light type. Next up we got Skull Rock, which I believe is the evolution to Center Rock. The ordering of this has been a little confusing, so it's kind of hard to follow. Um, but I really enjoy this design. I like what they added the elements to it. It looks very intimidating. It's like a like a rock crossbreed between Scolipede and Drapion, and I appreciate it. I think it's I think it's really cool and unique. We got Silvor. He's rock steel type now. Okay, okay. I really enjoy this. It's got that. It's that. You know, the uh, token rock type of the region. And it's got these little spires coming out of it of silver. And it just looks like a wholesome little guy. He just looks like he's going to hang out in whatever caves are there and just chill, bro. I don't know. I, I, I just get that vibe from him. Next up, we've got Golden Ore. Rock steel type. And he's just blinged out. <laughs> I know this is way too on point. But this reminds me of the, the rock. Johnson, Dwayne the Rock Johnson, you know the picture of him with his gold chain and then the fanny packs. <laughs> totally what it reminds me of. Oh, we've got the Nurse Joy with two new Pokemon. Uh, doesn't say what they are over here, but um, she's cute, super cute. I, I enjoy a good Nurse Joy, and we have the little Nurse Joy Pokemon of the region with her. Okay, so it looks like we're gonna find out about one of those Pokemon. We got the Grass type. Um, Pokemon, we got Habibi and Mushini. We got Habibi, who's this cute little bulb Pokemon, it looks like. And it kind of looks like a strawberry to me, but I don't know. It's very cute, very cute. We've got Hibiscute. <laughs> I just said it's cute, and it's a, it's kind of cute in its name. So it's based on a hibiscus plant, grass fairy, of course. Very cute, very cute. This is the one that was next to Nurse Joy, so. Very cute, you know, regional grass type. I don't, is it the grass waifu? I'm not sure. Is this the mid stage or the final stage? We'll see. Okay, Hibitrix. Yep, it's that grass type, fairy type waifu. And waifu material she is. I love the way it's the flower witch poke. Oh my gosh. My wife would have a field day. She loves witchy stuff like this. This is super cute. I really enjoy its design elements. Like the big flowery hat with the, you know, grass over the eye. The hair over the eye, grass hair, whatever. Very well done. Very well done. We've got Machini, little mushroom guy. Got the Laring, super cute. My wife would also love this bond because she loves mushrooms as well. So let's see what it evolves into. We've got Shroom Age. Okay, so we're going witches and mages here. I see, I see. Okay, I like that. He's got that VV from uh, Final Fantasy IX vibe. I I really like that grass psychic. Okay. Next up, we have Shroom Magic. Ah! Oh! <laughs> now this is my Pokemon. This is my Pokemon. Shroom Magic, and it's misspelt too, like mine. Perfect. I love it. I love it. Vivi is also what are, like the Black Mages in general are like my favorite characters from Final Fantasy, and this is definitely giving me that vibe. I love this mod. We've got Shellos. We got two regional Shellos. So the oh, okay, so they're gonna be like light and dark type. It looks like. We got water, they're both water, so are they different kinds? Or, okay, it's not telling me here, but maybe they're like different forms? Is it, okay, oh, so it's North Sea and South Sea. Okay, so we had East and West, now we have North and South, okay. Okay, we got Gastrodon. Oh, they're just water ground still. Okay, so they just, okay, I see. So it's not really regional variants, it's just new forms. Um, kind of like, you know, we had East, West, now we have North and South. Okay, okay. So we got Illigret, uh, Water Flying, Egret Pokemon. Pretty standard. Kind of kind of got that, like, crane feeling to it, which I, I, I think... Do we even have a real crane Pokemon? I don't think we have, like, an actual just crane, dedicated crane Pokemon. I can't think of one off the top of my head, but if you think of one, let me know. All right, we got Seagret. 
That is a good name. That's a great name and a good design as well. I really like its majestic, like ruffled feathers. It got that, that regalness to it and the hair, like its feathers slicked back. He's even got a little mask, kind of like almost thiefy, but not really like masquerade, you know? Cool. It's, it's cool. We've got Boozle. <laughs> like Bamboozle. Oh my gosh, this thing's like... <laughs> oh, that's so... <laughs> I'm like thrown off by this. Like I don't even know what to say. It's pure normal type. Is this its eye? It just it's it's got that huge mimic energy. B M E big mimic energy. <laughs> I I just love it. it. Like reminds me of a dog. Like it just like come here little boozle. Come on, come in, come here boy. We've got Leopur, an ice fire type. Interesting. Okay, so is it? It's like leopard Leopur. This is supposed to be like burr plus leopard maybe plus purr obviously its ability is frost fire boosts the user's ice and fire type moves in the hail interesting interesting that's an interesting ability but it very much fits its typing the design is really well done it's got the fractals with the like misty flames like blue fire which i think blue fire on pokemon is just so cool but yeah i i, I dig it. it maybe is it based on a clouded leopard or maybe I'm not sure. We got Bleozard. <laughs> I like that. I, I like that. I, I, I wish they had stayed with more of the white, though, because I really digged the white of Leopur. Like, the way, the white and the blue. Because now it's just kind of gray and blue. But I, but I still like it. I still think it's a solid evolution. Awesome typing. We got Terrarau, I think. Terrarau? Terraro? Terrarau? Terrarau? I'm unsure. And this is not helping. <laughs> this this little section right here. I don't know why they use this font. It's very like I, I like you can read it, but it's also kind of like this looks like an eye. I don't know. It's just me. But we let's let's focus on the Pokémon. We got grass ground. It's like an ox. It's got the little it's I think the cute aspect of this is it looks like a little garden on its back. It looks like it's like growing carrots out of its back. And the layering, the way they made like a layered sediment pattern but it also looks just looks like a like a like a pattern on a like a piece of pottery or something i think is really really cool and uh good aspect to it i also really like the design elements of its mask because it looks like the actual skull like if you've you know if you pretty much live in the west there's tons of those like cattle skulls and stuff like that and that's what this reminds me of very much and also i can't tell if it's a part of its design or if it's just munching on grass either way i think it's cute next up we got instick a bug grass stick bug pokemon i really like it and i appreciate that they put a little leaf on the end as its tail it's a really nice little design element it very much feels this this to me like the design elements of all of it feel very pokemon like i could see this being in the actual games i, I really do it's, it's just a really, like, I know it's simple, it's just a stick bug Pokemon, but the way they did it feels very like, much like what Game Freak would do, and I appreciate that. Looks like Instick evolves to Foliage. <laughs> I love that name, I appreciate a good pun, and I appreciate what they did to further it, because now it looks more like a log, but it also has those insect elements with the leaves as wings, it, like it's now it's like a praying mantis mixed with a stick bug which is really cool we got basarunt or basarunt I'm, I'm not sure I, i'm gonna pronounce these both ways so if people come at me at least i tried <laughs> so it's a poison type rat it reminds me of those rats from uh from legend of zelda wind waker actually it gives me very much that vibe which makes me like it a lot more actually i like it's one tooth it's a little tooth and it's got these little toxic elements on the side yeah, it's a cool, solid mon. Next up, we got Basarat. It's like dead. This man dead. <laughs> this man straight up dead. Look at the X's, bro. He's gone. He's gone. What? I love this. Poison dark type, which I appreciate. I could even see it being poison ghost just because it looks like it's straight up dead. But maybe it like just plays dead. The dirty rat Pokemon. Maybe it looks like it plays dirty, it plays dead, and then goes for like a sucker punch maybe. I could see it. It's solid. That's a solid one. These are some these these past few have been my some of my faves. Your starters are evolving. Okay, so we got our starter evolutions here. We've got Bintu Fern, a grass dark type, which I figured it might go to. It's giving me is it is it supposed to be a pirate? 
A tribe, it's the tribal Pokemon. It reminds, it's very much giving me that pirate aesthetic to it. It's got the little like, um, I don't even know what this thing's called. The little floofy part to the, that they have the pirates. It's got the earring. It's, it's got this little like, uh, it, I can't tell, maybe it's on both sides, but it kind of has like a gauntlet. And I, I really like that actually. But you can definitely feel it has, it very much has that Litten to Toracat feeling to it, which is really good, really, really well done evolution. Next we've got Pyragila. Okay, definitely, definitely like this. I still haven't, I haven't, I don't just determine what starter I'm gonna pick until I see the evolution, which made Pokemon Sword and Shield really hard because I had to just guess. Um, but for Fake Mon, I usually never pick un unless I see the final form. But right now, the, uh, the uh, Pyragila line, I can't remember the first one's name, but right now, it's 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 speaking to me. It's speaking to me. I love the way they, the coloration, like the gold. It it has almost like a Pidgey aesthetic to it, but like a Fire type Pidgey. Ooh, Fire type Pidgey would be cool. I might have to do that in a future video. Stay tuned. We've got Wallabow. I think that's how that's pronounced. It's a Water Buffalo. Okay, Water Fighting type. Okay, so it looks like we're going Fighting Flying Dark Trio. Okay, I, I I really like that. This is, this is a unique little type trio there. I like that. It's got the little nose ring for bowls. It keeps its fishy aesthetics. It look like it's slowly becoming more armored. Like its hands kind of look like sharks, which I kind of dig. That's cool. Cool. I really like this evolution. Hmm. That's making this is making this a tough choice for me. Okay, shock it. Okay, so we finally got that evolution. Uh, I think it was Spark Hit originally, right? We got Shock Hit. Same thing, too. I really like that they just kept it simple. Little electric whiskers, and now they add a little electric tail. But it still feels very electric type. I like that, because I feel like a lot of electric types go crazy with the, like, oh, it needs to have electricity exuding from it at all times, or it can't, you know, it, it needs to show that it's an electric type majorly. But I really like the subtlety of this design. I really do. Okay, we got Voltine. Okay, so we're going straight to the next evolution. Wow, this is this is definitely going on the team. Like uh, Shrew Magic, Voltine, the freaking uh, Stick Bug, I'm or Instick line. I'm gonna. That's my team so far. I really like this. It's giving me that major Luxray energy. But like, again, it kept the simplicity. It's got the, even got these little uh, stripes on its back, which is um, like Raichu esque. So. Yeah, I, it's simple but effective, and it's super badass. Does it have intimidate? It sh of course it should. It should have static and intimidate. That's perfect. Wow, really well done. When I play these games, this is definitely going on the team. Okay, we got Crow Kick, well, which was uh, what was it called? Kick 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 Hawk. It's, it's so, <laughs> so we got Crow Kick. Um, it's the evolution of that previous mon. Um, it still kind of keeps its tail, but it like, kind of look at that wise. Elder with the huge eyebrows, kind of like what I went with with uh, my Genos Golduck. It's it's got that same aesthetic to it, which I enjoy. It's got that kung fu master, you know, martial arts master kind of uh, vibe to it. Okay, so we got the Aegis Corporation. So it looks like we got our evil team. We got Lagaya, the vice president of the Aegis Corporation, uh, is the secretary to President or Ernesto. So maybe we'll see him. Up, oh, okay, okay. Oh, we got our bad guy for the region. <laughs> Look out, we got a bad guy. <laughs> yep, getting major bad guy energy from this guy. We'll see, we'll see. I like his hair though. His hair is on point, on point hair. And the goatee, the goatee kind of looks like the Rebel Alliance symbol from Star Wars. I love that. We got Mastoed, fighting dragon. What? <laughs> What? Bro, the focus Pokemon. I love how it has a little Shenron, you know, dragon horns to it. It's like a, it's supposed to, is this supposed to be like modeled up to a horny toad? Uh, wow, really like this. Man, I might have to throw that on the team as well. Man, we're at five already. I don't know if we're, how far we are into the decks, but we got, we're five already. This thing is epic, bro. We've got Baboink. It's a fire ground type. This dude is adorable. He, give, he definitely gives me Tepig energy, but in a different way. It's like Swinub and Tepig had a baby, and I, I love it. I truly do love it. We've got Babor. Wow. 
this thing is badass. It's got flame body and anger points. What? Dude, this thing is wild looking. It's got like a superhero eye, like like one of those like superhero masks, but like an eye, like Venom almost, like kind of Venom, Carnage-esque eye. The beard with the hair. Do the carpets match the drapes? <laughs> I don't know, we can't see down here, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> I'm such a freaking idiot, Jesus Christ. It looks great though, I really like it. It actually kind of reminds me of uh, Mad Sweeney from American Gods. Anybody watch that show? It kind of gives me that same feeling, I don't know. We've got Palanfrost, an ice rock type. This thing is so cute and like it's, it's design is like so unique. Like, <laughs> I feel like I haven't seen this like kind of eye like design uh, and like the pattern on many fake mom before and I really like what they did with the horns. They're just little tiny guys, little tiny ice guys. Wow, okay. Crystallized. Oh, it's ice rock because it's like a little crystal, little crystal fawn. Wow, okay. Okay, I mean quad weak to fighting. Also, does it get rid of its ground type weakness? I'm not sure, but that's, that's cool. That's cool. We got Servifrost. Okay, so we kept up with the, the the crystalline ice look. It looks like a little bit more angy, a little angy now. Maybe is this maybe the final form, or maybe it's I can see it getting uh, getting bigger. Maybe this is the angsty teenage phase. Maybe it is frostier. Yo, yo, this thing is sick. Are you kidding me? Look at this. Is Royal AF, bro? Dude. Okay. I think we have our number six slot. I think we have our number six. This thing is sick. Wow. That's majestic. That is super majestic. We got Batini. Little ghost flying bat. He's got that gold bat tongue. He just, he's, I really like this. This is super cute. It's the specter Pokemon. It's got a new move or new ability. Fang Leech, HP is healed by using biting moves. That is such a perfect idea. That's such a good idea for like a vampire bat Pokemon. Oh, and that's what it, it's why it's ghost type. That's why it's ghost type. Vampires are the undead. Perfect. Perfect. We got Bat Terror. This dude. This dude. He's got that little dreepy freaking Dragapult tail to him. It's got the hair. Are these are these supposed to be? They look, kind of look like boobs. Maybe. Or is this like a chest plate? Maybe. Anyway, this this design is epic. I really like with the use of the red with the like, like it's like a. It kind of looks like a brownish purple color or grayish purple. It's really, really pleasing to the eye. I, I really like it. it oh, it's, it's a girl. It's definitely a girl. Look at this freaking, is it, is it pure girl? <laughs> is it pure girl? Pure girl type? Yeah, female Batini. So yeah, it's got that, it's got that salazzle energy to it. We've got prof uh, another professor, Professor Hannon Aster. These, what are these two mons? It's like a little starlight and a little, it's like a moon, straight up moon. That is so, these are so cute. I can't wait to see them. I will need to know about them now, please. She works at the Astronomy, Astronomy and Astrophysics Research Center, the AARC. It's like a little NASA on her cup. That's cute. What are, are these Clefable slippers? Bro, this girl's cute. It's got a, she's got like a Steven Universe shirt too. I love her hair. I just noticed her hair is like all galaxy freaking Cosmog themed. Cute. I like her. I like her. She's cute. We got Luciano. Whoa! Is that a light type EV Lucian I see? What? Bro, that's sick. Bro, it's got the little halo. It's so angelic. It's giving me major carbuncle energy. Major carbuncle energy. Luciano is the resource engineer and former branch chief at Aegis Corporation. He also led the light tribe. Oh, so each of, each of the tribes have like a sage? Or eight, there's eight sage. Okay, so each of the one's a tribe. Interesting. We got Tillifin, cute little fish Pokemon. I think this might be the fish. Do we see the fish Pokemon? I don't know if we saw the fish Pokemon of the region yet. But he's like Tillifin, Tilapia, plus Finn. Cute. It's got adaptability. Interesting. Interesting. I wonder why. We got Banguz. Okay, I'm trying, like, this looks like it's supposed to be something. It looks like it's armored, but it almost looks like it should be like a cannon. Like, this dude gets shot out of its own body or something. <laughs> I don't know. It's kind of giving that Remoraid feel to it. 
It's, it's definitely got that feel, that like artillery feel to it. We've got uh, a Momol? Yo, this thing looks super tough. The mystery Pokemon. He looks kind of like a cousin to Oren Guru, actually. Like, 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 like a distant relative. Like they evolved differently eventually down the line. And this guy grew more of a, like a savage aesthetic while Oren Guru was more of a sage. So the sage versus the savage, that's kind of cool. I actually like that. That would be a little bit cool of canon, but I'm sure that's not the case. But it's really cool. Regardless, this is a really cool mod. Got that Yeti, like baboon, monkey, ape, other synonyms for monkey, <laughs> other simians. I, I really enjoy this though. I really do. We've got Chicklog. Why Chicklog? I'm, I'm trying to figure out where, where the name comes from, but I'm not, it's, like, I, does it wear clogs? These don't look like clogs. It's flying normal type, so it's pure, it's a uh, primary flying instead of primary normal. It's probably going to, oh wait, this is probably going to evolve into that Nurse Joymon we saw earlier, huh? Yep, it does evolve in a hen. That sounds like a suggestive name. Are you in a, <laughs> I'm not even going to finish that sentence. All right, it's flying fairy type. It's very, very matronly, got the, you know, the little apron with the little plumage that looks like a, a nurse's, uh, were they even hats? Do, do they wear hats? Were they hats? I don't know. But very matronly, very like nurse, nurse joy-esque. She looks like she's, it's, she's holding her tummy too, which is kind of a neat little pose because it's kind of like she's like pregnant because she has the little egg there. That's a nice little touch. Oh! Oh boy, Chicklog evolves and is about to throw some hands, boy. What? This thing is, got, is ripped. This freaking chicken is more ripped than I am. Damn it. He's very like, he's got that like, I'm ready to go. I got this pent up aggression. Let's go, let's go. I dig this thing's energy a lot. I, de I definitely dig this thing's energy. We've got Cam Billy, a ground fighting type. Okay. This one's nice too because... I feel like the type isn't overly explained. Like, it's ground fighting. You could kind of see how it could be that, but it's not overly explained to you, you know? I, I I like the little, like, fringe it has on its arms, its neck, and its, like, hooves. That's cute. It's a cute moment. I dig it. Okay, we got Cragoat. There it is. That's a, that's a dope name, Cragoat. The hike Pokemon. Okay. It's got that go-goat, like, those go-goat kind of horns. I could see it being used as, like, a, like, also another distant cousin to go-goat. Maybe in the Bion region, they have Cragoat. Instead of, you know, go-goat running around, they have Cragoat to climb mountains. I like that. I like that. They just use them as on hikes, you know. They've kind of, like, uh, guided horse trails up in the mountains in Colorado. So, I could see this kind of being a similar situation in Bion. Okay, so we got Team Techno. Oh, I thought the Aegis Corporation was going to be it, but maybe Team Techno is a part of it? Interesting. This technology advanced secret society... Technology... Oh, sorry. This technologically advanced secret society is well known for how little they value Pokemon life. Pokemon rights activists have been trying for years to put... For, to see them punished for their crimes they commit on Pokemon. Oh. So we have some, like, Pokemon experimentation, huh? Interesting. Oh, we got the Team Techno grunts. Bro, I just have like, I just list, like I could hear their theme in my head. Just like super bouncy electric music. I I really want to hear the theme for them because that's this sounds sick. This this team looks sick, actually. I really like the way they did the grunts. They feel very like of their team. They're not like overly done. They have a little, you know, symbol on their chest. They kind of remind me of Power Rangers, honestly, a little bit. And then they have the headphones on. They're probably jamming to some freaking Skrillex <laughs> or Dead Mouse, you know. We've got Commander Blade. This dude looks psychotic, and he's got a freaking like eight pack. So he could have a ten pack. I don't know. This dude is ripped to the gills. Looks like he could murder someone, and looks like he would murder someone. Damn. We've got some Commander Kala. That booty though. What? <laughs> she got the boot. Dude, she got the booty. She do. And she got the hair, girl. What? She got such long hair. What? She got some boobs too. What the freaking dang? Okay, okay. Watch out, Olivia. Kala's <laughs> coming for the freaking thick queen throne. My God. So we've got Commander Ara, which is a straight up robot. What? 
Dude, she reminds me of uh, Penny from uh, Ruby. Also, like Peridot from uh, Steven Universe. She's got like like those two combined energy. Interesting. This thing, a, a straight up cyborg. We've got Leader Anon, of course, anonymous. He's got that like Halo helmet to him. Wow, this is interesting. He's so. I'm gonna assume this was probably that um, the president of the Aegis Corporation, if I had to imagine, probably what's the big reveal is there. We've got, oh, so we got the final evolutions, Bin 2 Vine. Okay, Grass Dark type, he's got these freaking mega claws, bro. He's gauntlets, straight up. I like his little ponytail. Interesting, I really like its aesthetic. Like it's very like, feels very light and like fast and like, like Assassin-E almost. I wonder what the theme is of these. Okay, next up we've got Fugila. Yup, <laughs> this is my pick. This is it, right here. It switched to Fire Psychic? Yo, what? I thought it was gonna be a flying dark fighting trio, but now it's a freaking psychic dark fighting trio. So dark, wow, okay, so it kept the type trio while still changing its type. That, that is really well done. Wow, wow, okay. I love this. It definitely, like its pose reminds me of like Lugia. But also, its aesthetic reminds me of Ho-Oh. It's, it's really sick. This is a really well done mod. It's like Pidgeot, Ho-Oh, and Lugia all had a little baby. It's... Wow. I, oh, I, I, I love it. Obsessed. Hashtag obsessed. Okay, and we got Carabrawl. This dude... He, he has like an armored... Such a really cool armored aesthetic. Very much, very much cool aesthetic. And also, I appreciate that... Even though two of them went bipedal, the third one is technically bipedal, but it is like flying, like it's it's mostly flying. That's something I appreciate about appreciate about these this trio. I'm interested to know what the theme is of them. Maybe someone can tell me in the comments. Maybe the creator can sneak down in the comments and tell me themselves. We'll see. We get the Stim Drive, a device developed to stimulate and enhance Pokemon's capabilities. Certain Pokemon can evolve with this. Oh, I was, I was thinking it might be developed by Team Techno, and it is. Oh, uh, so this is where that Pokemon experimentation is coming into play. Okay. K9. The tech Pokemon. Steel electric type. It, it's, this must evolve from the Stim Drive. What does it evolve from? Oh! Okay. What was its name? Lapop? Lapop, I think it was. So they used the Stim Drive to evolve interesting so instead of ground normal it becomes steel electric okay so are all stim drive pokemon gonna be like steel electric or some variant of steel or electric that's cool though that's an interesting concept a new evolutionary item developed by the evil team that's cool we've got andrilling okay this is steel electric too oh was this did this evolve no okay so this okay i see uh, for a second, I thought it evolved from Boozle, which would would have been kind of cool, but I really, I, as its own, it's cool. Androling. Okay, so it's a little android youngling. We've got Spydroid. That's cool. I like the name. I really like the name. The design, I'm okay on. It kind of reminds me of uh, my life as a teenage robot with this, like, the way they did the mouth. Not my favorite, but it, it's still, like, the, the name and the overall concept are really cool. Okay, next we have Arachnoid. Bro, that is a 300 IQ name right there. Bro, Arachnoid? Are you kidding me? It's got the Brainiac symbol from, <laughs> from DC on its head. That's sick, bro. This thing is this thing's cool. I actually like this. I didn't like the mid stage, but I really like the adult stage. That's cool. So I'm assuming this one, yeah, you had to use the uh, stim drive to evolve it. Interesting, okay. So there's already technology Pokemon that use the stim drive, but there's also Pokemon that were not technologically driven that become technologi technologically driven because of the stim drive. Oh, okay. Is this a regional or is it like given the stim drive? Okay, so this is a regional. Interesting. How did it come to be like this? That's my curiosity. Turning into a Techno Species Pokemon, they gain more enhanced echolocation than regular Zubats. 
yeah, I, it doesn't say how they came to be like this, but I'm, I'm interested to see how, why they got technology, technology incorporated into their being. You know, how did that, you know, evolve? We got, oh, I forgot to mention, we got Steel Poison type here. Golbat is Steel Poison, which is cool. That's really cool. And it's looking like the te Techno guys have Steel as incorporated into their type still. This is a really badass, actually. I, I should mention, like, I really like the way they did the wings. They kind of have that, like, Tron aesthetic to them, which is really cool. And it just, like, looks like someone tried to build a Golbat droid. And, like, maybe... Maybe this is what the Golbat of the region is, but they don't actually have a Golbat, but they made one. Like, Team Techno made one, which would be interesting. Crobat. They did my boy justice. They did my boy justice. Look at you, bro. Crobat, if you don't know, is, like, my favorite Pokemon. Like, one of my favorite Pokemon. Like, it's like Lapras, Flygon, and Crobat keep getting interchanged. Bouflin's in there, too. But Crobat... Bro, this is so sick. And it has Levitate? Bro, it has no, like, what? Whatever its weakness is, fire? Bro, they got rid of an entire ass weakness. Dude, that's freaking OP. And also super sick. Bro, okay, so instead of happiness, you use the stim drive. Dude, that's, oh, who am I gonna kick off my team for this? I need this on my team. Bro, I just need it. Wow. What am I looking at? Skarmament? This is a stim drive evolution of Skarmory? Yup. Wow. Wow. Just steel dragon type. Bro, just I'm I'm floored, bro. This thing is sick. The war machine Pokemon. Wow. I have uh, there's no words, but wow, that's really badass. Okay, so we got fossils for the region. There's five. Okay, okay, that's a lot of fossils. It's a lot of fossils. The rare fossil. Interesting. Isn't a rare fossil an item in previous games? Maybe they're trying to, like, canonize that the rare fossil actually has an evolution? Maybe? I don't know. We'll see. We have Plumpent. Plumpent. Oh my goodness. Plumpent. Rock grass type. This thing is so cute. I love this, bro. It comes from the tusk fossil. Is that what it said? This thing is cute as all hell. This thing is cute as all hell. We've got Fern Fernadon. Cute. Cute. He kept his like cute aesthetic, but it has now has like shrubs on its back. Cute. Cute. I like that. We've got Cubburn. Rock fire type. Oh my gosh, I love this. People are crapping all over the rock fire type because of Hisuian, Growlithe. They don't want it to evolve into rock fire type when it turns into Arcanine. I think it's sick. I think rock fire type, though it has a lot of weaknesses, is also just a really cool type combo. And it can do some really cool things with it, like this. Like, this is a sick little Bengal, Tiger, rock fire, like Sabertooth Tiger ancestor. I really like that. It's really well done. Okay, it evolves into Tigneon. That's cool. That's cool. Yeah, it just improves on the previous design elements. And I really like the way they did the tail because it has like magma flowing through it. Did it have that with uh, Cobburn? No, it didn't. Okay, yeah. I really like what they did with the back. It has like this like burning furnace aesthetic to it. Like there's magma coming out and then it explodes out the tail. That's really well done. Really, really well done. We got Volcroc. It's rock water type? Interesting. Interesting. It's like a water-based lava? What is what is this little material made of? What, what, what is that made of? Whatever it is, it's glowy and it really works for its design. I, I think it's really cool. This is a really, really well done, like, volcano crocodile. I never would have seen a volcano crocodile Pokemon coming to, coming to fruition there, but it's really cool. We've got Volong. Interesting. This thing is wild looking. Three volcanoes now. Got that freaking glowing band everywhere. It's very, very much, I said this earlier, Tron. It has that Tron aesthetic to it, even though it's not a stim drive, maybe? No, it's not. It's not a stim drive Pokemon. That's really cool, though. It's badass, for sure. We got Rhinor. 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 Do you see it? Do you see it? Rock Fairy. 
who am I kicking off of my team for him? Who? 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 I need to know because there's no way it's not on my team. Are you kidding me? This thing's adorable. Wow. Just, just claps for this, this design. It's so cute. What does it evolve into? It doesn't. It doesn't evolve? It doesn't evolve? Okay, maybe I have to rescind <laughs> coming on my team. Does it have good stats? Okay, it has decent stats, actually. Wow, okay. It just stays cute. That's adorable. Okay. Oh, they're um, they're exclusives. So we got Megalitholo Me Megalithos. 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 We got Megalithos. Wow. Okay. It's fair. It's a fairly basic design as far as like dinosaur Pokemon go. It kind of just you know it looks like a dinosaur, but just like kind of a hybrid of different dinosaurs. It's rock dragon type. I think it's cool. It's not my favorite, but it's it's still well done. Still well made. Okay, we've got Crematar. Ghost ground type coming out of the little urn. Got the ashes. That is terrifying, but also really cool. <laughs> It's really, really terrifying. Like, the ashes are coming back to life. Bro, it's like a Gara on, like, Ghost Gara, <laughs> dude. Like, Gara. <laughs> it's like if Gara cremated himself and then his ghost came and did sand jutsu <laughs> out of an urn. Thing's wild. We've got Fanturn. Okay, so it's getting better. It has the Yamask face on it, too. And now it has two eyes. These eyes are, like, very. Hoot Hoot. There's another Pokemon that has these kind of eyes, but it reminds me of Hoot Hoot, even with this little thing right here. It's got like a beak, almost. Very cool design, though, and I like how it made it look like it's arms, but it, and it, it's like face, but it's still got the face down here. This is definitely very, like, it's like the hands are a little too real for me. I feel like they would have done like three fingers, maybe, at Game Freak, but it's very, it's very well, well designed. Oh, it evolves again! Menungul. What? This thing is wild. It's got that Dusknower energy. It got went back to one eye. It went from one to two to one. But it's got like that gin, like demon in a bottle energy. I don't know why there was a demon in a bottle. Like, <laughs> I'm so dumb. I'm, so, I'm just dumb. <laughs> But very cool, and I like how they have these little swirlies here. You can can't kind of kind of can't see them. You got the swirlies that look like flames, like got that demon flame energy. Okay, next up we got Elizard. Oh, it's got a forest form. Oh, cave. Okay. Wait, wasn't there a lizard before? Maybe I'm wrong. Wasn't there an, a lizard that it evolved from? Oh, it's got a shore form too. It's three forms. Does it? Oh, they're just. They're just a single Pokemon. I thought they evolved from something. Okay, so we got Shore Form, Cave Form, and Forest Form, Elizard. Wow, okay, so it's kind of like, I, I guess it is kind of like, it's like Gastrodon mixed with an Eeveelution situation, but there's no Eevee clone. Interesting. I kind of dig that. Like a Pokemon that's from the same species, but has regional forms within the region itself. That's really interesting. And does open up possibilities for more regional forms, you know, kind of like an evolution situation. So that's cool. That's a really cool concept. Okay, we got Mongrim, Ghost Fire type. Got the skull on its head. Got the little ghostly flame. It's nice. It's pretty simple. Pretty, you know, it is what it is. It's, and I think that I like that about it. That it's got that Poochiana where like, Poochiana, it's like, oh, okay, yeah, it's a dark type. And this one's very much like, oh, yeah, Ghost and Fire. Got it. It's really, it, and it's well done. It's not just, it gets, it's just like simple and not good. It's, it's, it's well done too. Oh my goodness, Mutuary? <laughs> Bro, that pun's too good. What? This thing is wild. It's like Houndoom on steroids, bro. What? It's got that Hellhound energy, but like he turned that shit to 11. Okay, that's, that's super badass. I like that. We got Nimbolt. Oh, cute. That's our Pika clone for the region. Electric Ice type. And it's got a little cloud behind it for its tail. Cute. I love that. I really do. Does it, I'm assuming it doesn't evolve. No, of course not. That's cute. If it, 
you know, that's the thing with Pika clones. If they had better stats, I would throw them on the team, but they never really do. But this thing is cute. Super cute. We got Janifry. Wow! This, like... Th though it's simple, it really screams Pokemon to me. Like, just the way they did the eyes. And, like, you know, it's kind of got that Whiskash aesthetic to it. But it's, like, different enough that it makes it really unique. And, I like, the black and the blue color scheme together is really, really cool. We've got Mudalag completely changed it's so different now it's the mudfish pokemon wow they added like purple and brown in there too it's water ground type just like uh just like whiskash too i'm not sure if i'm 100 percent a fan of this one but i i really dig the former foreign form and i'm kind of sad about the evolution i'm not gonna lie we've got power light a light fairy type yes we finally see this dude now that i'm thinking about it i feel like we haven't seen a lot of light types Maybe they were planning on giving it to other Pokemon, like that from before, like they did with Fairy type. But this one is super cute, and like just, I, I'm sure these are based on like paper lamp, like star paper lamps, and it's just like really just a cute, well done Mon. And I, <laughs> I can't say much more than that. It's really cute. We got Joselito Rosal. We got Doctor Joselito. He's, you visit him in Vista City. For many years, he's been researching and exploring various sites and ruins in search of the secrets of the legendary Pokemon that created the Bion region. Interesting. So they're not gonna they're gonna do their own like creation story because I'm pretty sure isn't it that Groudon created all the continents and then like it was like Kyogre and him were battling to form the continents and then they eventually agreed on like the 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 difference in size i don't know whatever we've got kimachu Intra it's a fighting electric type okay that thing's cute it's i think it's definitely like our uh lucario you know zorark furbate mon of the region seems like that's what it's leading into but it's cute it's got a little tooth the one tooth it's got like oni horns which is interesting it's like a wolf it's a beast okay so it's called the beast pokemon and it looks like a beast it's kind of giving me zynogre vibes from uh, Monster Hunter. It's got Terror Shock. Has 30% paralyze. It has 30% chance to paralyze the opponent when the user goes on the field. So it's like Intimidate with mixed with like static. That's kind of cool. I uh, It's a little OP, but it's kind of cool. We've got Kimatric. Yo. This dude. <laughs> this dude is on some other shit, bro. What? Dude, this it, it exactly reminds me of Zynogre. Like, the the way they did the horns, and like it's electricity all over. Wow. I'll be honest though, I think like the little lightning bolts on the arms, I probably could do without. It seems a little heavy to me. Like, I think just the tail and the arms would have been fine and the horns. But I think this is really cool. Really, really cool. I've got Toku. It's just a normal type. He's a, the mimic Pokemon. Power uses users sound. It powers up the user's sound-based moves and never miss. Exclusive for Toku. Okay, so we got a little gimmick mon here. So he he's like, oh, is he based on on a steel drum? Do are there other lizards that can mimic sounds? I'm not sure. Oh, okay, so they're at the evolution. So I'm gonna stop here because I want you guys to go check out their Instagram. The link is in the description down below. The rest of the evolutions are coming out one by one, but definitely, definitely go show these guys your support. They uh, are doing some amazing work here. Uh, anyway, I'm going to end this off here. So thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed, make sure to hit that like button, subscribe, notification bell, all that jazz, and join, maybe become a member if you're feeling you want to show that extra support. Um, anyway, I will see you guys next time. Hey everybody, Brandon here with another episode of Region Review, where we review different regions around the Fakemon community. Today we are taking a look at the Mojave region by Tubbs AZ, who we interviewed in the Just Like Magic podcast, so take a look at that if you want to see the mind behind this amazing region. I am semi-familiar with this region just because I did do that interview with Tubbs, but I would say I'm probably only about 
30% familiar with the region, so there's like 70% of this region that I still have yet to explore. But before we get started, make sure to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell to keep up to date with everything going on in the channel. We do lots of Fakemon content just like this, so make sure to subscribe so you don't miss it. Also, become a member if you want to show some extra support to the channel. It really helps me out, and any contribution is greatly appreciated. Anyway, let's just jump into this region. We are starting off with the grass starter, which is Cactike. It is a little cactus lizard, which is so cute. My my uh, my grass starter of Cornera is cactus based as well, so this is kind of a, a starter after my own heart. But this this is an amazing starter. Like it's based on Gia monsters and cactuses, obviously. I like its little cactus sleeves, and it's got a little uh, um, pricklies on its tail. The design elements, I'm very interested to see how those develop because um, it looks like it's got like a little design and it's almost like a star on its butt. Like the tail leans into a star. You can see that like right here. It kind of looks like a star. So we'll see how that develops. But let's go ahead and move on to the fire starter, which is Fuebre. Fu Fue 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 I don't know how to pronounce this. Fuebre? Maybe Fuebre, like Fuego. So this fire starter is based on donkeys, which is, I think is a unique take on the Chinese zodiac of, you know, the horse. We had Fennekin, who was a fox, not quite a dog. And then we had Linton, who's more of a cat rather than a tiger. I mean, he became a tiger in its later stages, but still, it's, it's a really interesting take on the Chinese zodiac, which I think is really cool because... I, you know, a lot of people just go straight up horse, but he went, you know, donkey mule instead. Next up, we have the water starter, which is Bubbeat. It is a water bug type. It is a diving beetle with floaties, which is just so cute. I, I think this is one of the most adorable starters I've seen lately, and it really captures the essence of a starter, even though it d breaks from tradition with the typing. Bubbeat, the name, it sounds kind of sounds like upbeat, which is what he looks like. He looks like an upbeat little bug who's ready to just take on the world. And I, I love this. I love, this is one of my favorites for sure. Uh, Fuebre or Bubbeat are definitely my, all three of them are really tough. It's really tough for me to decide between the three, honestly. Next up, we have Kwiku, which is our Route 1 bird and it's normal flying type. And it's based on the Greater Roadrunner, which is so perfect. And it just perfectly encapsulates all the, you know, Route 1 bird energy. You know, it's kind of got the spikiness of like a, like a Spiro or a Pidgey, but it also has that like joyfulness and jovialness of a, uh, of something like Pidov. And I think that's great. It just really, really captures that energy perfectly. Next up, we have Crag 6, which is ground flying type. I like that typing, a, a little bit of a unique typing. Um, I'm not sure if this is going to evolve, but it, it looks like it's got that kind of Spiro to Firo kind of thing going on. And it definitely captures Firo's energy. But but as well, it kind of gives me um, like Mandibuzz energy as well. And I, I love this, this, this mod. It's really, really well done, well executed. It definitely gives me that feeling of, of the Route 1 bird. But, but takes it on in a new way, which is super unique to this region. Next up, we have Micellis. It's a normal type lizard. Interesting. Uh, I, I was wondering if we were going to get a root one uh, rodent or something like that. Maybe, maybe this is a substitute for that? I'm unsure, but it's based on just lizards in general. It's just generic lizards, so I guess that's why it's normal type. And Micelle is, it's like miscellaneous, which I think is such a cute name, perfect name for it. Um, yeah, it's just a miscellaneous lizard. So next up we have Shamaliz, which Micelle's evolves into Shamaliz. Interesting that it went from normal to ground psychic. Hmm. I would have thought, like, Micelle's sounds like it would have almost been an Eevee clone, but I'm, I'm interested to see that it, it you know, goes from just pure normal to entire double type. So it's based on shaman, wizards, monks, geckos, and the banded gecko. I mean, it's really well done. I like that it's um, scepter. It kind of looks like, oh, it is. It's its cut off tail. That's, that's super cool. Wow, what a unique little thing. It like cuts off its tail and uses it as a scepter. Okay, that's awesome. Next up, we have Florama, which has a fairy grass type chocolate dipped strawberry. That's super cute. Wow, okay, and it's got like, it's little things here are little legs. That's super cute. It's got that like bound sweet cherubi thing going on to it. It evolves into a, a morama. So it's like a more plus florama. It's based on fancy dresses, chocolate cakes, and chocolate strawberries. Wow, okay, this almost gives me like a, a German, what is that called? German, cho no, it's a chocolate forest cake. Isn't that what that's called? 
I, I might be thinking of the wrong thing, but it, like it's the one that has like either cherries or strawberries on it, something like that. That's what that kind of reminds me of. I like the little swirls to make it look like it has hair. It kind of gives me that Nurse Joy Mon of the region. Next we have a Daptile. You know, I was wrong with Missiliz being a normal type and not being the Eevee clone, but I feel like this is probably gonna be it. I'm not sure, but let's check it out. Okay, so we got Sumagama, which is a fire and dragon type. That's that's really cool, and it's, uh, what is it based on? It's based on the toad-headed Agama and cannons. This thing is super sick. Like, it's almost, I like its little thing on the end. It's kind of like a, um, like something exploded, like when, in the classic cartoons, when something, well, like a, like a gun would explode, it'd like go, like that. Um, kind of like in the uh, Looney Tunes cartoons. But I think this is really well done. Like, it even looks like it has a little mustache here. It's an interesting, it's an interesting concept. I wonder, like, are we going to get more of this? Is it? Oh, yeah. So we got Haruzard, which is a grass dragon. So, yeah, we're going to get grass and fire. It looks like I wonder if we'll get water. Um, uh, but it's got, uh, it's the bloom Pokemon. It's got four. Wait, wait, wait. It's got four different colors. Oh, okay. So it's got red, purple, yellow, and, and white. Okay, so it's got a, uh, it's got a Florgis, Floet, Flabebe thing going on. Okay. Next up, we've got Dinkaki, which is an electric dragon. Um, so it looks like they skipped water. I'm maybe an electric, grass, and fire. It's an interesting trio. I would have guessed, I would have pinned water because, you know, it's starter trio, but whatever. Um, it looks like it's inspired by whips, whiptail, lizards, and wires. So you have these little wires coming out of its tail, and it kind of looks like a cord, some kind of cord. Um, for its tail, which I think is cool. It gives me that rubbery vibe to it. Um, and it's got like an equal sign for a pupil and a little electric, you know, tongue, which is cool. I like the subtle design elements of this being an electric type. You can definitely feel that it's got that electricity to it. Like maybe it zaps things with its tail um, or even with its tongue. Uh, I think this is super cool. Oh, we've got Moninter. Okay, so we're doing a, a quad here. So we got water dragon, electric dragon, grass dragon, and fire dragon. Cool. Uh, it looks like it's kind of happy. That's kind of cute. It looks like it's just like, I'm swinging my tail around. Yay! Like, <laughs> it's super cute. It's based on water monitor lizards as well as the Mosasaurus. It's kind of even, it's kind of got floaties like, uh, uh, Bubbeat as well, which is super cute. Uh, it's got like a fin like tail. It's, it's a solid, it's a solid mon. I think it's uh, super cute. Looks like it's enjoying itself. So, yeah, let's move on. Next up, we've got Infestic, which is a mosquito. Uh, looks like it's our Route 1 bug, our regional bug, and it's bug poison type, and it looks like it's a mosquito with a uh, thermometer? Yeah, the mosquito larvae and thermometers. That's awesome. Uh, it's super cute. It looks super sad. Um, we'll see what it evolves into. It evolves into Cacovery. Oh, that's cute. <laughs> it's, like, wrapped up in a little bandage. It's, like, recovering from its, like, sickness. So maybe, like, the mosquito was sick? And it's, oh, yeah, the thermometer looked like it was filled to the end. So maybe it was, like, super sick and had, like, a fever. And now it's recovering. It's got, like, a really long nose. Maybe, like, red nose, you know, um, this traditional depiction of people who are sick in, like, cartoons and stuff. You have those, like, that red nose. It's, like, super drippy. Kind of like that, maybe. And so it's just, like, little cocoon. Uh, mar mosquito larvae cocoon. Bandages, cocoons, and mosquito larvae is the inspiration. Super cool. Super cool. Next up, it evolves into Vaxkeeto, it's bug normal type. That is hilarious. Okay, this was made in 2019, before the whole pandemic. Make sure to get vaccinated, folks. But that's super, super cute. I love this. It's got a... Oh, it looks like it has an ability. Vaccination protects allies and users and the user from status conditions. That's super cool. Is that an ability or a move? Whatever, it's super cool. It's, it's super cute as a little nurse. And she just looks so nice. Like, usually, you know, we have Buzzwall, who is, like, a terrifying depiction of a mosquito. But it's nice to have this little cute one. This whole line is super cute. Though it went to bug normal, so that makes me wonder, is it going to have a split evolution? Let's see. Yep, okay. Oh, God. We've got Masquerte, who's bug ghost. Interesting. So they just completely said, screw the poison typing, ghost and normal. That's interesting. It looks like a crackhead, bro. What the hell? This thing looks cracked out. It's got red eyes. It's thorny all over. It looks like it's like, it kind of looks like a pen. It kind of looks like I like a go with it and just write. 
This thing is terrifying looking. Uh, it's ba- <laughs> The Squirtle is based on diseased mosquitoes and anti-vaxxers, bro. <laughs> That's great. That's awesome. Yeah, make sure to va get vaccinated, folks. Definitely vaccinate. Um, get, get your vaccine as soon as you can. Protects all of us. Anyway, continuing on. We've got Nezu Dagaru. It's our regional Pika clone. It's electric dark type, and it's based on kangaroo kangaroo rats and bandits. It looks like it's kind of got like a little whip tail here. This thing is super adorable. It definitely gives me like Togodomaru energy, but like I, I, I'm a I'm a sucker for a nice like round Pika clone, like Togodomaru or even Dedenne. Like what? It's just a nice little round boy. I just I'm such a sucker for like little round Pika clones, and this one fits the bill. It's so cute. It's got this little bandit's mask. It looks like it's a mischievous about to get up to no good. That's super cute, super cute Pika clone. Next up, we got Prickly Pine, which is our Root One rodent. It looks like it's normal type. Cute little name, Prickly Pine. It looks like it's got like some kind of uh, Native American marking there, little feather kind of thing, kind of like what I did with uh, our Cornera and Rowlet. Check out that video if you missed it. Um, but it's super cute, super cute. Well done. Definitely has that energy of a Root One rodent. Next up, we have Stoquill, or, or is it Stoicquill? It looks like it's stoic, so it may be stoic will, which I think is super cool. It's normal steel type, got that unique type combination in there, and it's represented well. You know, it's not completely obvious why it's steel type, but, like, it, it's, you know, you can see why, because, you know, you think steel when you think quills, like, those sharp quills, you think steel type for a porcupine or a hedgehog. It's got that Native American inspiration, which I thought would happen with prickly pine. Um, it looks like it's based on native clothing and chieftains. Really well done. Just a solid, solid Route 1 rodent. Next up, it looks like we have our grass uh, mon of the region. It's a little cactus, Opuntita. Opuntita? It's based on the bear cactus and bounce wheat. Okay, so it's got that, like, another bounce wheat energy mon. Um, we had uh, Florama, I believe, was the other one. So we've got a lot of cute little grass types inspired by bounce wheat. Super cute little cactus got this little bud. And this is a second mon based on cactuses as well. So you can tell it's definitely based on the West. Um, this is, I, Mojave was more so based on the entirety of the Western United States, more so than just the West Coast. But I wanted to feature it because it has a lot of those kind of inspirations with it. Um, but anyway, yeah, Opuntita, cute little bounce sweet esque cactus mon. We've got Opuntine. Uh, it sounds like poutine to me. I don't, now I'm thinking Canada region. Um, no, it's cute. It's got that little... You know, uh, what's what's Bounce Wheat's evolution? Same Steeny. It's got that Steeny energy to it. Even guy has the teen in there. Definitely cute. Uh, just a little middle evolution. It kind of has that uh, ballerina look to it. A poutine evolves into a a puntiora, grass water type, which is I think a reference to the grass. You know, the water being held inside cactuses. People you know often drink cactus water to survive in deserts and stuff like that. Um, it's got these little fruit like cuffs or uh, shoulder things it's got a little flower coming out the top it's really cute it's based on cactuses fancy dresses and sun hats which yeah you, i can definitely see that it just looks like a nice you know prim and proper pro, prim and proper southern lady <laughs> oh next up we have kernikid so we have another uh grass type of this region it's based on corn uh you know corn kernels um, yeah, it's just a nice little corn kernel mon. It's simple. It's well done. Kernicate evolves into soul deer. Oh, oh, like ear of corn. Oh my, like soul deer. Oh my gosh. It's grass fighting. <laughs> it's hilarious. And also its design is hilarious. It's got a little popcorn for hair. He just looks like he's like very militant, ready to go. <laughs> he's kind of got like the collar thing going on, like a little collar to him. That's cute. I like this. I like this mon. It's, it's simple, but really well done. Oh, looks like it stops there. We've got Chihuab, Chihuab, oh my god, Chihuabra, like chi, chi, Chihuahua, but Chihuabra, man, that's hard to pronounce for me, but that's, it's a little dark type Chihuahua, which, you know, I mean, it fits, it, I mean, a little Chihuahua, freaking evil little monsters, um, but it's based on the Chupacabra and Chihuahuas, which is really interesting. It's got this little chunk out of its ear. It looks like its ear is like a part of its head, like... That's, that's an interesting little design element to it. Um, but yeah, okay, let's see what other little simple 
Chihuahua Dark type. It fits. Next up, we have Cabriablo, which is continues to be pure Dark type. It's got this skull and like bone pattern to it. It's got straight up spine here. I was gonna say it looks more like a pattern, but yeah, you've got straight up spine, you know, stuff right here. I kind of wish there was a third spine, but that's just me. Um, it looks like it's based on pit bulls and the chupacabra. Not sure if I like the connotation of pit bulls being a dark type because they're super lovable and stuff, but whatever. Um, st solid mon, still a solid mon. Looks pretty terrifying, but also at the same time, it looks like you could tame it and it'd be a real loyal friend. Looks like we got the evolution to Cactex. We have Cactlaw, and it's got this giant freaking cactus on its back. And it's little bandit, um, like, scarf here, which also looks like it could be like, you know, I know it's not a frog, but it looks like it'd be like one of those things that like poofs up. Can do, do lizards have those too? I'm pretty sure they do, right? Where it just poofs up. It kind of looks like it could be that too. It's got this giant cactus on its back. Just enormous. I'm wondering what this pattern is supposed to try and emulate. It looks like it's supposed to be something. Almost like a like a hat of some sort. Like if you look it sideways, like this kind of looks like it's supposed to be a hat. But it also kind of oh, you know, more like a helmet. It looks like it's supposed to be like a like a like a helmet. Um but I love the giant spikes on it. It definitely gives that threatening feeling to it, which I, I dig a lot. It's based on Gia Monsters and Outlaws. Okay. We've got Stubborn, which is such a freaking perfect name. You know, Stubborn as a Mule, or is it Stubborn as a Donkey? One of those two. Definitely has that perfect name to it. It's got these, like, this fringe. Uh, got that cowboy-esque fringe, or like a... Not cowboy, but also like Native American fringe to it. It kind of has this like lightning bolt aesthetic to it. I don't think it becomes a fire electric type, but it could be wrong. But it, I, I really, I really dig this design. It's, it's a perfect little mid stage because it looks like it could stand out on its own. This looks like it could just be the final evolution of the fire line, but you know, it's, it's, it stands out on its own um, without being oh, like overshadowing what I'm sure will be the final evolution. I think I've seen the final ev evolution before. But yeah, it's based on, oh yeah, donkeys and Native American clothing. Super cool. We've got Bubrawl. Oh my gosh. This thing is so cute. What the heck? He's just so happy. It's based on luchadors and diving beetles. I love that. It's it's a luchador little water bug. Super cute. It's got like, these water, they look like little t barrels of water. Like its arms look like little water barrels, which is super cool. And it's got this, like, um, chest plate to it. Definitely looks like it, it works out. It gives me that, like, that uh, Heracross energy to it. Except it's, you know, bug water, not bug fighting. But it looks like it could learn a fighting type move or two. You know, especially given the uh, Luchador inspiration. Next up, we got Pitafowl. Oh, so with this poor thing. He looks so sad. It's a little, little quail. It's a... Uh, Pitafowl functions as a second regional bird for following Kwiku. Oh, so it's like the Spiro to the Pidgey kind of thing. Okay, okay. Oh, he looks so sad. I hope he gets not sad anymore when it evolves. Oh, yeah, that's right. That's my boy, Pomplume. This dude looks like he's like, he's like, yeah, I'm better than you. Yeah, I was a little sad. Had a little sad boy moment. But now I'm on my king energy. Like, <laughs> I'm on that king shit, bro. Like, he <laughs> I love this thing. That's so super, super cool. I, I like how he goes from being a little sad boy. He gets over it. He's like, no, I'm the shit. Let's go. Even though he's just a normal flying type, he looks like he could take on the world. Oh, okay. We got Regaliant. Okay, so this one gets a third evolution, unlike uh, Crag Cragsix. Dude, fairy flying. Dude, this guy looks like he came, he was like, I was down, I was out, I started getting a little cocky, got maybe a little too cocky, but now, I am elegance, I am supreme, I am, I am regal, I, you know, I am regaliant. That is super cool, fairy flying, he's got that regalness to him. I always love a good regal mon, and he's got that, you know, the little quail thing, and it just looks like a little crown, almost, and it's little floof, like little, like, uh, sw swooshed back hair. Wow, okay. Yeah, I really like this mod. This was, this was, I, this, I haven't said what was going to be on my team yet, but I think Regalian would probably be on my team. I really like it's like, sto the story it tells with its um, evolutionary line. He's literally on that king shit now. Literally. <laughs> Next up, we have our first Mojaven form, I think. This is a Mojaven Ralts. This thing is so cute. It's got a little tuft. It kind of has, you can actually see its legs now, which is interesting. It's got that like curlia thing to it, but a little bit early. Um, it's based on spoiled children, so it gave them the dark type. Okay, 
So it's Dark Fairy instead of Psychic Fairy. All right, let's see what's next. We've got Mojave and Curlia. Oh, she looking goth. It's, a, yeah, still based on spoiled children and, you know, okay. Interesting. I like this. He they, they, It has, like, a goth energy, like a, like, one of those, like, rich kid, you know, rich kids who decides instead of being, like, a dickhole, they're just going to go straight up goth and reject their parents kind of thing. Interesting. I, I, I like its little, like, almost, uh, like, broom-esque, like, pigtails. Super interesting. We've got Gallade, Dark Steel type. Dude, what? This dude's got like a mega pompadour. Dude, he's like straight up greaser. Yeah, he's straight up based on greasers, Japanese delinquents, Jotaro and Josuke. Bro, we've got the freaking JoJo's uh, references here. Is that a JoJo reference? All right, I, lo I love that. I love that. Dark Steel type, fighting types, oof. But it's still, still really cool. Yeah, it would definitely be weak to... Uh, I mean, I don't know. It'd be kind of a fair counterpart against regular Gallade, so... I don't know. I, I this is really cool. It's really funny, actually. I, I, like, I like that. Next up, we've got Mojave Inform Gardevoir. Is it, did I say it right this time? I said Gardevoir all throughout my childhood, and it just stuck to me. So, I, I didn't know it was pronounced Gardevoir. Gardevoir. I, I, I don't even know how it's pronounced. Am I pronouncing it right? I don't know. But it's super cute. It looks like it's got, like, a little feather boa thing to it. It's based on Flapper Girls. Okay, so we've got like a 20s um, and 50s kind of thing to it. So we've got the Greasers. It, greasers were 50s, right? Were they 50s or 60s? I don't know. Well, we've got like the 20s and then the Greasers times. So it's very rebellious. So it's they're based on kind of rebellious phases for both men and women, which is kind of cool. I, I like that. Like they, they're, you know, spoiled children and then they grow into their rebellious phase in their final evolution and that presents differently depending on the evolution, which is really, really clever and I, I like that. Looks like we've got Dream Mini, which is a Dreamcatcher Psychic Fairy. That's cool, like, a Dreamcatcher Mon, I, 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 I've only seen a few Dreamcatcher Mons that were purely Dreamcatchers and this one's really interesting, it definitely gives off that, like, Sigilith, Cryagonal kind of you know, inhabited thing that doesn't look like it has an entirely huge personality. Even, like, uh, Clay Doll has that kind of thing, too. But I dig that. I dig that a lot. Drumini evolves into Night Snare. Okay. You got a little, like, crooked smile here. Fair Psychic Fairy. Night Snare has a new ability called Broken Dreams. What do you think it does? D does it give it a new form or something? So, looks like this is the alternate form for Night Snare. It's Dark Fairy. It's got Spiritum, Gengar, and Kafagrigus coming out of it. Uh, oh, dude, it's okay. So it's called Broken Dreams because the Dreamcatcher breaks and releases all the nightmares. And that's why it's called Night Snare. It releases all the nightmares into the world that it was holding because, like, that's what Dreamcatchers do. They catch nightmares. So it just is releasing all of them. That's so cool. It's like Pandora's box in a way. Wow, that's a really cool concept. Well done, Tubbs. That's really cool. That's, 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 sorry, that's such a cool concept. I really like that. Next up, we got Mulray, which is a Moray eel, and based on Moray eels and camouflage. So it's just a little derpy, derpy boy who hides in the sand. Cute, cute. Next, we've got Magmoray. Okay, so it evolves from Mulray into a water fire type. So it was pure water before, but now it's water fire. Um, it's inspired by Moray eels and deep sea vents. Bro, that's a perfect combination of, of concepts, dude. Wow, okay, because, yeah, it's kind of like the steam or smoke, whatever comes out of the vents, coming out and, like, kind of has that, like, Mori Eel-esque feeling to it. Wow, I dig that a lot. That's so cool. And it's got, like, you can see around the base of it, it's got that little heat coming out of the, the vent. Wow, okay, that's a, that's a neat little mon. Next up, we got Fodag. It's ba it's based on uh, the Hodag. Okay, so it's uh, I I have a mon based on a Hodag myself actually. Um, it's Dragon Dark type. This thing is menacing. Its eyes are red. Its teeth are red. Its claws are red. Giving me like bloody <laughs> bloody teeth and claw vibes. It's got like a scythe for a tail. This thing is terrifying. I would not want to meet this in a freaking dark part of the woods. Um, it's based on false myths as well as the Hodag. So like what's what's a false myth? Like a like a like a folktale or something like that? That's interesting. 
Uh, or, or maybe it's based on like myths told wrong. I'm not sure. Looks like our starter Pokemon are evolving. We've got Cactex, it's Grass Steel type. And it looks like it's based on Outlaws still, or is it based on, okay, it's based on Megalania as well as Sheriffs and Cowboys. Okay, so it was based on Outlaws and it's myth stage and then it reformed and uh, became more of a Sheriff. I like the little Cactex, Cactus gloves. Oh my gosh, I can talk. All the little cactus, jeez, I can, I keep wanting to say cactus. The cactus elements of it are really, really, like, well-placed, not too much. It's got the little cactus, you know, cowboy hat. It's got the little spike um, for the little piece of hay. I, I've, I'm interested as to why they didn't keep the, you know, bandana thing going. Maybe it's just too much to add the bandana on top of all the cactus elements, but... Really, really cool. I, I like um, the like Megalania inspiration because you still have that um, extinct megafauna thing to it. Next up, we've got Flamule. Okay, Fire Fairy type. It looks like it's got little sparkles and it's fire. Cool. Well, it's it got these electric patterns on it. Maybe it learned some electric type moves? I don't know. But this thing is... Yeah, I, I've definitely seen this before, but I've never really taken a close look at it. I really enjoy that they that he went for the mule rather than the, like the the full on horse because it is it is like a donkey mixed with a horse. That's what a mule is, right? I'm, I'm pretty sure. Um, but that's so cool! Wow, like this is really well done. It's got that you know um, Native American clothing to it. Kind of got that um, the war bonnet kind of thing going on up here. And it just looks really cute, and like it kind of has like a feminine energy to it, which I really appreciate because I feel like not a lot of fire starters have that feminine energy. It's usually more associated with water, with like Pokemon, like uh, kind of like Primarina, and I, I I really like that. We've got Bubalucha, who is water fighting type now, just completely ditched the bug type, so it's a fighting steel fairy trio. That's cool. Okay, and it's got four arms now for ultimate just pummeling. It's based on Diving Beetles, Bodybuilders, and Lucha Libre, or Lucha Libres? Or is that like Lucha? Do I I'm not sure. But that's really cool. Like, I like how it has the forearms, like, just ready to just pull out a full-on pummel attack. Whenever I think of pummel, I think of Sabin's ability from Final Fantasy VI. When does anybody else get that when they think of pummel? I don't know, maybe I'm the only one. Okay, so it looks like we got some Eeveelutions here. Okay, let's see what they go into depth on them. We've got Flufion. I'm in love. <laughs> I was just straight up in love. What's Flufion? Oh my gosh, this thing is adorable. <laughs> wow, I just love how it's just based on like little clouds. That's such a perfect little freaking evolution. Cute. Okay, what's the what's the next one? We've got Quarion. Who looks like they're a little miner. Yeah, it looks like different ores and miners. It's got the little pickaxe in the tail. Cute little design elements. I definitely, ugh, man, these feel real to me. Like, I'm getting real, like, a, like a real aesthetic to them. You know, like, I, I mean, I think to me, the pickaxe might be a little much for an evolution, but I, the, the other elements to it just feel very, like, real. I don't know. And it, it, I like how the gem looks like a little miner's helmet light. Cute, cute. Lights a little attention to detail there. Finally, we've got Clobrion. <laughs> Its tail is a freaking hand? Wow! It's based on kangaroos. Interesting. A brawly, like, a brawling, it's based on, it's a brawling Pokemon. That's an interesting little choice there. It's like, looks like it's one ear is shorter than the other. Maybe it, like, got damaged in battle or something? This one is definitely damaged a little bit, but it's an interesting one. That's probably my least favorite out of the three. But I, I definitely, I, I respect the, the, you know, intent there with giving it a, like, a hand, like, to, like, like, just smack, <laughs> like, kind of like the freaking jackass bit where they, like, smacked him with the giant hand. Next up, we've got Laura B, which is, I believe, based on, yeah, La Llorona, um, and Banshees. Okay, so it's, like, a little baby La Llorona, which is, uh, I'm pretty sure it's, like, the crying woman or something like that. It's like a, I, I can't remember the full story, so I'm not going to try and BS my way through it, but it's, it, it's a very sad story if you look it up. I was going to base a Pokemon off of it, honestly, but I just couldn't think of a strong enough concept, but this is a really strong concept. I really like how it's just like a little crying little baby, gives me that Ralts, you know, hat, uh, I can't think of the name, Hatena. It gives me that little, uh, Ralts, Hatena energy to it, so... It's it's almost got like a, like fishy 
elements in the dress. Okay, let's see how it evolves. We've got Lorona. Oh, God. <laughs> this thing is terrifying. It looks like a, like it's become part, it's like more part fish now. It's just really, like, it's got tears as, like, little hair accents. It just looks like it's so sad. Oh, my goodness. Well, I mean, obviously, it's so sad based on the story, but... Wow, this thing is just... It's not pretty. <laughs> it's, it's not a pretty sight. Does it evolve again? Nope, it's just that, those two. We've got Chumera. Electric Ghost. Oh, God. It's just a mixture of all of them. We've got more Pico. We've got Plus of Minin, Pachirisu, Dedene... Uh, we've got Umbolga in there. Um, I don't see Pikachu at all. I am I missing Pikachu in there? But it, it, it's not just all the Pika clones. It's based on, yeah, Pika clones, zombies, chimeras, and Frankenstein. Yikes. But the name is perfect. Chumera, Chimera, that's perfect. We've got Hauntlet, which is a little haunted gauntlet. It's kind of got like a spider thing going on to it. It's like that hand from the, 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 the Adams Family. Yeah, there it is. Man, my brain shut off there for him. It's like that, that hand from the Adams Family. I don't, I'm not sure what its name is. I can't remember off the top of my head, but it's super cute. It looks very jovial, you know. It looks like it could be your friend, but also it looks kind of terrifying. Hauntlet evolves into Doolahand. What? So it's based on uh, Doolahan, right? Like, the, that's probably, that's got to be what the name is based on. Doolahan, and it's based on severed hands and ghost body parts. It's so interesting. Its eyes are on its hand. It's got no eyes except on its hands. That's an interesting design concept. And it's just kind of, it's got like a Matang, like a uh, Beldum Matang thing going on to it where the, the like body becomes the arms, but like a little bit more morbid. It's ghost psychic type. Did I, did I say it's type in the last one? Is it ghost? It's just pure ghost. But now it's ghost psychic. Okay. Does it evolve again? Maybe? Oh, we've got Necromanos. Ghost Psychic. Oh, God. So many of these are so terrifying. Oh, it's got feet, too. Feet eyes. Oh, God. Feet eyes. You never see the feet eyes coming. It's based on the Tenome and monsters. I'll have to look up what the Tenome is. I don't know what that is, but this thing is terrifying, <laughs> to say the least. It kind of looks like um, uh, the Dula hands, like, torso, that kind of just, like, evolved, like... It, like, split and then, like, fused together. Like, like it's two Dula hands fused together. Kind of got that Magnemite feeling, or Magneton. More so Magnezone kind of actually feeling. Like, the Mag... Uh, it's, 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 a, it's like a mixture of Magnemite, Magneton, and Magnezone, and Beldum, Matang, and Metagross. Kind of that feeling to it, but also, like, a lot more morbid. We've got Mojave Form Litwick, which is Ghost Electric type... This is one of those concepts that's just so perfect and makes me so mad that it's like one of those things you wish you had thought of first because it's genius for this region because in Telluride uh, in Colorado was the first fully electrically lit town because Nikolai Tesla lived there and he like made the town fully electrically lit with light bulbs and stuff like that. And so this is just kind of perfect for this region um, to have like that the modernization that like of elect electric lighting. You know, because we had the candles of the past, but now we have, you know, moving forward, we have the, you know, advancement of technology, and Litwick looks like it went along with that. And now we have Lampent, which is this full-on lamp, like, it's got that, like, little street lamp feeling to it, but, like, the classic ones where they have, like, the little things going up. But, yeah, just an advancement on the Litwick line. Cute. Let's see what, uh, see what Chandelure looks like, and we've, oh my gosh, it's just... <laughs> it's so perfect. It makes me so mad. It's so perfect. It, uh, it is like it, it's 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 so well done and makes me uh, uh, so appreciate it. But it makes me so mad that it's like one of those concepts you wish you had thought of first because there's no copying this, right? It's so well done. If if Game Freak ever did something like this, I think this is the perfect way to go about it. Doing a ghost electric type if you wanted to, you know, move outside of Rotom being the only ghost electric type, right? Next up, we got Bullish, um, which is just a straight up word, but it's like bull plus fish, but it's like bullish is a word. It's water steel type, and you can definitely tell without it being too obvious. I, I love mons that have a typing that presents itself, but it's not entirely. To me, like one of those things that's typical of that is you know, electricity with electricity flowing flowing all over. I did that with Ovasuvius, and I regret it a lot, actually. Um, and so, the, you know, I really like a subtle secondary typing. 
because you could tell it, yeah, definitely water type. But oh, also, it kind of looks like it's a little hard. Like it kind of looks like a bullet bill in the front, like a bullet. Um, oh, that's why it's called bullish. It's not because it's bull. It's bullet plus fish. Dumb, dumb, Brandon. <laughs> Perscope, bro. <laughs> this thing is based on archer fish, swordfish, and sniper rifles. That is insane. It kind of looks like it's got like a super soaker, like thing on the back. That's super cute. Well, not cute. It's it's super cool. Is what I meant to say. It's super cool. And like it looks like it's got like a the like the fins are a, the like sniper stand. Wow. Okay. Really, really well done. Oh, it's even got the little hole at the top. Wow. Okay. Yeah. I respect that. I respect that. Perscope. Next up, we got Breluga. I actually think this is a mon that's been um, scrapped and changed. Um, there are a few of these actually that I should say. Um, that are being changed and scrapped. Um, uh, Mojavo is actually rebooting here soon um, and changing a lot of the aesthetics. This, this is, uh, but I wanted to review this uh, because it is such a solid region. You know, I, 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 from what I've seen, I, you know, Tubbs does really solid work, um, but there's a lot that are that has been changed. This being one of them, um, and I'll, there, I think there's a, a couple coming up that are different than how they are originally. So. This one is scrapped, ultimately, it's different than, but it's still a solid mon, I, but, yeah, it's scrapped. Next up, we've got Grime Mouse. Grime, Grime Mouse. And this thing looks disgusting. It looks like it's probably going to be a normal poison type, if I had to guess. Um, it's just based on sewer rats. It looks like it's got a little cloak. He's smirking. He's like, yes, I know I'm stinky. <laughs> oh my god, what did I just say? <laughs> oh yeah, I'm quite stinky. <laughs> Anyway, yeah, let's let's see if he evolves. Probably does, right? Yep, Corrodent. That is a great name. Normal poison type. He looks straight up evil. Like I've poisoned the water supply. Like he's based on plague doctors, sewer rats, and alchemists. Maybe he's, he's on a quest to find the Philosopher's Stone. I don't know if America is the best place to search, but next up we've got Mojave Munchlax, which is fighting type. It's based on grizzly bears. Okay. Oh, yeah, it looks like he's a little grizzly. He's got the sharper claws now. Like all, like his even the little toe claws he has are a little bit like more arched and sharp. Um, cool. Yeah, I could I could definitely see this. It definitely looks like it's ready to you know scrap up. We've got Grizzlax. Okay, so completely different. Uh, no, not Snorlax, but Grizzlax. I mean, it kind of makes sense to give it um, a different name, cons considering it wouldn't be like very Snorlaxy, uh, or Snorri, more Grizzly. I mean, I think it ultimately could have been just Mojave and Snorlax, but I think the name makes sense. Like, why would it be Snorlax if it was super fighting and Grizzly esque? So I, I dig that. It kind of reminds me of like, you know, Bigfoot. Maybe it's maybe it's that. I don't I, I don't think so. I think there's a, a Bigfoot mon later. We've got a Dobor. Got that adobe clay pottery with pigs. Super cute. I did the adobe with uh, with Turtaus, that adobe housing kind of thing. Um, but he did it with the clay pots. I, I really like the design elements. He kept it simple. Got the little clay pot. You can tell what it's all about. It's got these little, like, it looks like mud. Like, the pattern on here looks like it's kind of like mud falling on him. Really, just just a perfect little mon. It evolves into Infernog. Infernog? Infernog? I think it's Infernog. Uh, that is really awesome. Ground fire type. It's it's got the little in you know furnace and stuff instead of it being clay pot. Like the plot the uh, it's the the smelter you put the the pot in or not the smelter but the the furnace you put the pot in to bake it. So it evolved from the pot to the thing you put the pot in, which is awesome. I like its little beard. Kind of got like a Viking energy to it. It's very well armored. It's just sick. It's just a sick mon. We've got Dust Mutt. Oh, he's just so cute and sad. He's just like a little dust bunny coyote. Oh, is it supposed to be like, is it supposed to be like a, sh a wolf in sheep's clothing kind of thing? It's the coyote Pokemon. Okay, so it's a coyote in sheep's clothing. Maybe trying to, maybe it's trying to blend in with like the Wooloos and the Mareeps of the world. Next up, we've got Soy Lobo. Okay, so that's a, that's a cool name for one. It's pure ground type. He's got that, continues that dust bunny aesthetic on its stuff. It kind of looks like... It's, you know, malnourished, like it's got mange or something, like, like it's, it's, you know, it's got these like spiky elements to it, like, it just looks like it's losing its fur maybe, and it's replacing it with, like, dust bunny or something like that, I don't know, 
but it, it definitely looks like malnourished. It, interesting. Oh, we've got Prow Prowlobos. Okay, okay. So this is, uh, is this like a alternate evolution? Wow, this thing is ter- does not evolve. Wait, so this is thing, some, something completely different. Okay. Oh, it's based on Skinwalkers. Okay. So it's supposed to look like Soy Lobo, but it's it's a Skinwalker. Whoa. Okay. I thought this was like a Lycanroc thing, but no. Wow, that's really creepy when you think about it that way. Ugh, it's really ugh, ugh, I actually don't I don't I don't like that. I don't I don't it's creeping me out. It's also based on an SCP, which also creeps me out. So I'm gonna move on. We've got Mohaven form pseudo wudo and it's steel type now. That's cool. It's got it's like super huge one of those super huge cactuses. That's a lot of cactus mons considering you're gonna have Maractus and probably Cacturn in there as well. Um, but I think it's cool. I think it's like it's really well designed and it, the concepts fit really well together. Next up, we've got Pebliz as a rock dragon. Holy lizards, Batman. There are so many lizards that that's like that makes eight right now. And this is probably the pseudo line if I had to imagine. Maybe not, actually. Who knows? Uh, actually, you know what? I do know what his pseudo line is, and it's not this. So, um, but yeah, we got a little cute rock dragon type horned lizard based lizard. We've got four tile. He's a rock dragon. He's got that little bunker on his back. That's so cool. It's based on horned lizards, castle towers, and turtle species. Cute. Okay. I like the little... It very feel, feels very defensively bul uh, bulky. Like, it, you could take a, a hit really well. And I, I, I appreciate that. I always love a good bulky mon. It reminds me of my, uh, my Torturous in that way. Um, that it's got that little bulky shell on its back. Now we've got Marathorn. Wow, this thing is sick. This looks like it should be the pseudo, honestly. It's kind of got that Haxorus thing where it's like the pseudo but not. Like it looks like, Haxorus looks like it should have been the pseudo but it wasn't the pseudo. Pseudo was Hydreigon. Anyway, it's based on Horn Lizards, Castle Towers, Ankylosauruses, Bearded Dragons, and Turtle Species. Wow, I, I like that. And you can tell the little, you know, tower bricking, you know, bricking, the, the bricks to the tower. Um, to like a castle in there and that's it's just really menacing and it looks it's got that beard kind of thing too It's almost Bowser-esque in a way and I really like that. We've got Mojave and Oddish What looks like it's based on wheat? Yeah, it's based on wheat that's <laughs> That's like so cute. It looks like it might be grass. It's just pure grass. So it lost the poison type Maybe it'll be grass ground when it evolves It's super cute. It, it looks like I know it's wheat, but it looks like straw to me like straw like a straw hat or something I don't, I don't know super cute though we've got gloom pure grass as well and yeah it looks like it's more of like a straw straw hat thing going on there it's got like the wheat in its mouth kind of like cowboy-esque and instead of it's like closed eyes it looks like they're like spiky like 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 hair coming over them or something i wonder if they'll do blossom as well as vile plume we'll see okay so we got vile plume who is grass normal it's got the full-on grass hat like it looks like a broom yeah, it looks like uh, it's based on wheat, farmer hats, and hay bales. Yeah, okay. Super cute. Super duper cute. I really like the aesthetic to it. It looks like it's just, you know, just a normal little farmer mon. So I guess we're going to get Blossom next, right? Oh, okay. We've got Ghoulossom. It's Grass Ghost. That's a cool, like, little name there. Ghoulossom is a Scarecrow Pokemon. Wow, okay. I like that. It's, it's kind of got, like, a Mimikyu, like, slumping over thing to it. It's kind of, it's really, not kind of, it's really cute, actually. I like, I like, I can appreciate a good old Scarecrow Mon. Next up, we've got Thermal, which is such a cute name for a little freaking camels. It's based on camels and thermodynamics. Sub-Zero, okay, so it's got an ability. Sub-Zero does not allow the Pokemon to be hit by fire-type moves. Wow. Okay. So it's, it's got these, like, nice little, you know, droopy hair all over its body. It looks like a kind of a coat. Man, that's super cute. And it's got like a little frost breath. Wow, I, I really like this mon. Okay, it's probably gonna evolve, right? Let's see it, let's see it evolve. They've got Normadary. It's Ice Psychic. It's based on camels, hippies, shamans, and thermal dynamics. It's got this nice little mountain on its back. It's got like the frost and the sheen on it. 
And it's, oh, it's squatting. Okay, I, I, for some I don't know why I thought those were its legs. Like, it was just, like, suddenly got short legs. I don't know. But that's super, super cool. Like, I love the, the design elements here. It kind of looks like a, like a peregrine falcon. Like, those things, the, the falcons you can train with the little, you know, thing. Like, that's a, is that a Chinese, China thing? I, I don't know. I, I, I know that there's a, like, those falcons you can train. And that kind of reminds me of this. Next up, we've got Scooter. I think Scooter or Scooter, I, I'm not sure, but it's uh, based on alligators, crocodiles, sewer monsters, and sewer gators. That's cool. I like a, a nice little sewer gator reference there. I kind of feel like they should have had this in Unova, honestly. Like, maybe they could have had Crocodile or that line be, you know, available in the sewers or something like that. I don't know. But... It's just super well done mod. It's got the little, you know, six pack thing wrapped around its neck to represent like kind of those polluting elements that get put into the sewers. Yeah, it's cool. We've got Garbodile. It's wearing a trubbish around its neck. That is savage. Wow. And it's like dripping poison from its mouth. It's kind of got like a hobo, like kind of like thing to it. Oh my gosh. Wow. That's... That's morbid. That poor, poor. What did I say? Did I say gar garbodar? Trubbish. It's got a that poor freaking trubbish, dude. Wow, wow. That's that's insane. We've got Trashukas. I think that's what that's how that's pronounced. It's the sewer monster. It's just got filth all over it, just like oil and filth, just all over. It. It's dripping that poison type. Of, I don't want to be bit by this thing, both because it would probably snap something on me and poison me at the same time. It sounds terrifying to be near this mon if you're not if it's not being used by you it's got these little like slashes on its arms like it's been in battles or something wow this thing's terrifying <laughs> next up we've got mohaven tauros fighting fire type this thing it actually got the state of i think this is texas in its pattern here that's hilarious and it's got these like the smoke snort which is really cool and like the vein popping out of its neck, it looks like it's ready to do some freaking battle. It's based on Texas Longhorns and Rodeo Bulls. Yeah, I believe it. It looks it looks angry, it looks pissed, it looks like it's ready to do like run over some kind of freaking rodeo clown man. Yeah, I like this. And it's got looks it's, it's more muscly, like and uh like um, malnourished. What's what's the word I'm looking for? There's a word for that. Uh, emaciated. It looks emaciated. Um, and it's, I love the little reference to Texas right here. That's so funny. Next up, we've got Mojave Mill Tank. It's normal poison type. Guess you couldn't do Tauros without Mill Tank, right? This one is based on, uh, the methane cows produce. Dairy cattle who get nice and fat, and they're impregnated all the time. Not gonna get into the dairy industry. I don't like the dairy industry. Whatever. Anyway, uh, but yeah, this is a really well done, though. Will really well represent, uh, represents what they're going for. I like how it just became nice and fat, and like I like how it changed the pattern on its face to be like fully black. And it's got these like big bulging cheeks, like it's just eating, which is what you feel. I feel like I see cows doing all the time when I pass by them. Um, but yeah, it's got this little drool kind of thing going on to it. I think that's supposed to be like a drool thing. But yeah, it's it's a really well done uh, regional form. We've got Stingling. Ooh, that's cool. Bug electric type scorpion. Oh man, those design elements are so cool. It's got the little like clamps for like uh, jumper cables and the little plug for its stinger. It's super cute. Like, move over, Joltik. This is a this is like the next awesome bug electric type. I love this mon. I would definitely add this if I could if, if I found it in Mojavo. It evolves to Score Pulse, bro. Dude, I need. <laughs> I'll try to replicate that. I mean, like, come on. Give me the, get, like, I, I want this so bad. Bro. And it's got the little trio. Isn't that, like, isn't that, like, um, European plugs? Am I wrong? I don't know. It's the three-pronged prong, plug, and it's just, it, it exudes that epicness of a bug electric type. And it's got these, the, the you know, jumper cables continued, but they're bigger now, and they've got the red and the blue. Just perfect perfect and the name is amazing oh i love this mon definitely going on the team we've got chihihi which we talked about this in uh in on the podcast episode is the fire grass type it's got uh, the ability demolitionist it incru increases the uh damage of all bomb and ball based moves 
and it's based on uh, chili peppers and grenades. I said in the episode that Chihihi and its evolution, which we'll see in a second, are remind me of Bomb Voyage from The Incredibles, and it definitely gives me that energy, that Bombardier kind of feeling to it. It's uh, it's called the snicking, Snickering Pokemon. You know, it's obviously a reference to Chili and Hihi, like laughing. Just a really well done mon. I like that it's got these little peppers on it. They're not quite ripe because you, you can tell because they're, you know, green and yellow. And then it evolves into Papaha. And, and it kind of just, it's like, it, it's, a, it's a laugh, but it also kind of reminds me of like Papa. Like, it's like the father. I don't know. But yeah, it's got that bomb voyage feeling. Like it's about to freaking throw these chili peppers and explode and just sear you with spice. Um, it's based on uh, Chili Peppers, Demo, Demo Men, Junkrat from uh, Overwatch, Jesters, TNT, Bomb and Cr It's There's so many concepts mixed into one that just work so perfectly. I love that its chin is like, you know, like a curled, you know, pepper. It just looks so evil. Looks like you learned a couple dark type moves. I said this in the thing. It's like these gloves are very reminiscent of the Jester. It's even got these little pattern here that's got that Jesterness to it. It's just... 10 out of 10. 10 out of 10. This is definitely going on the team as well. Next, we've got Mojavan Impidimp. I actually think this is another Mon that's been redesigned, so I'm going to skip ahead with this one. But uh, yeah, there are there is another Mojavan Impidimp up ahead. Okay, I had to skip a couple because there were a lot that was that have been redesigned, so I have to I skipped up here. But next up, we have Larvomen, which is a Bug Psychic type. You know, it's a Moth Larvae. I wonder is it going to be like based on Mothman? Are we going to get a Mothman Mon? I think, I think he has one, so let's see. We've got Stock Moth, which is the Mothman Pokemon. It is Bug Psychic type. Um, probably a referen reference to like premonitions and like omens and stuff like that because of Larve Omen. Um, it's based on Mothman, Darkstalkers, and Men in Black. So yeah, Mothman is like, has been said to show up or be seen right before a bunch of tragedies have, that have happened. So that's where Larve Omen comes in. It's an omen of a tragedy that's about to happen. And, you know, Men in Black come in and they, you know, a tragedy happens and then they erase everybody's memories kind of stuff like that really well done mixing of concepts and i like it it was kind of has like a little like a little goatee beard thingy going on there but really well done mothman mon mothman mon that's that's a tongue twister <laughs> we've got the titles of the you know games there's no actual games but if they were it would be pokemon rejuvenation pokemon extinction tubs has actually told me that he's changing these names so don't get close to them but these logos are just so cool i thought i had to you know say something about them next up we have the gimmick of the region which i believe is called alter forms it's alter power that you know pokemon with alter energy can raise their power and change their type which is super cool so yeah we got the alter band here which is used to uh, use alter forms let's see if we can get some yes yeah, so we've got alter cactex it is now fire steel type and it is switched back to becoming more of a bandit outlaw and it shoots chunks of molten metal so it's just like a bullet, but like a fire bullet? That's terrifying, but also really cool. <laughs> we got Flamule Altar, which is Water Fairy, and it looks like it's like based on uh, Kelpies, uh, like the the like the the from Irish uh, mythology. Everything looks very muted and sad. It kind of got the almost La Llorona um, feeling to it again, and it's yeah, it, it definitely reminds me of Kelpie. You can kind of see those like like it almost looks like seaweed now on its um feet so i could definitely see this being inspired by kelpie i don't it doesn't say here what it's inspired by but that's kind of what i'm the feeling i'm getting from it finally we have bublucha altar which is grass fighting so it looks like he like switched the trio around so you know the fire the, the grass becomes the fire the fire becomes the water the water becomes the grass which is super cool the grass is epic it's got this like like freaking headdress and the barrel like they look act like actual like wooden barrels or bongos or something now and it's just really unique like this is really unique and well done like with me you know nucleotypes in my region were to change a mon that already looked like they should be a type to, into the type that i thought they should be but this is changing their types entirely to make them into new like new concept new inspirations and we talked about this in the podcast it's like you know, putting a new, you know, concept, the grass, switching the concept around and seeing if it'd work and putting new, adding new concepts into the inspiration, which is super cool. I also like that it has this little leaf goatee. Go goat leaf. Yeah, that didn't work. We've got Mojavan Tyrogue, which is ice fighting type. That is sick. <laughs> I like this. He's got a little cold. He looks like he's got these earmuffs on. He's in his winter jacket. 
Got these like ice feet, almost like skates. Yeah, based on winter winter sports and snow clothes. Will you add Tyrogue to your team? Okay. Uh, is it, I'm thinking it's gonna evolve differently. Let's see. Yeah, I've got Hitmon Sean, which I think is a reference to Sean White, right? Uh, he's uh, based on snowboarders. Got the little helmet. It's definitely like it's completely different than like Hitmon Chan and Hitmon Lee. You know, like. It, you can still get that feeling of like the Hitmon from it because it's Hitmon Sean, right? Yeah, it's ice fighting type, but it definitely feels like the design, like it's so different. Like the face is different than Hitmon Lee or Hitmon Chan, right? And and that's interesting to me. But I think this is uh, definitely cool. Like the snowboarder aesthetic to it is really really fun little addition. I'm assuming we're probably gonna get a skier too or something like that. We've got Hitmon Bode or Hitmon Bodhi. I I'm not sure. I don't know. I know I don't know skiers as much as I know because like Sean White's like super famous, but it's a skiing Pokemon. It's got those like ice skis, and it's got these like there's no like I would have figured there'd be like ice. You know, uh, I don't know what these things are called. What are these things called? This looks suggestive. But anyway, it looks like those things. Uh, but there's no ex like maybe it can summon ice with it. I'm unsure. But it's it's a cool mod nonetheless. We've got Pelestrich, which is a reference to Cocopelli and ostriches, I think. Yeah, um, it's cool. Like if you've seen, if you've been anywhere in the Western United States, well, like mostly the southern uh, southern Western United States, you'll know about Cocopelli. Like it is on all the like all the merch, all the freaking like. There's so many um, bumper stickers with Cocopelli on it. It's just widely known so this is definitely like a mon that you should include it's just it's just perfect well and i like how they made he usually is playing a flute they made the flute into its like beak so that's super unique and cool i actually have a coco Pelly mon um in in my region as well but that won't be revealed for a bit we've got therazer which is the machete pokemon oh my god oh god they've got straight up machetes for claws it's based on the therizinosaurus that's, I guess, the razor that makes sense. It's rock steel type. It's got these, like, little leaves on it. Maybe it can learn some grass moves, like leaf blade. That would make sense. Um, it's based on machetes, survivalists, and backpacks. Wow. Okay, this thing has got this, like, Freddy Krueger hand blade scariness to it. But also, like, it, it, it's, it's almost like um, Weevil and Sneez uh, Weevil and Sneasel. Like, or is it Weevil and Sneasel? Do, do you guys pronounce it Weevil or, or Weev Weevil? I, th I think it's Weavile. And then there's Sneasel, right? Okay, anyway, sidetracked. But it kind of has that feeling to it. Next up, we've got Tricera Chop. Oh my goodness, it's rock fighting type. It looks like it's based on axes. Yeah, Triceratops and axes. Oh my gosh, it's got the little axe beak. The design element of the axe really works well into the Triceratops. Like, I'm I, I'm not, like, I shouldn't be surprised, but I am kind of surprised that it just works so well in, as a design element there. Next up, we've got Tomatops. Which is rock fighting. It's based on tomahawks, right? And it's based on uh, it's the lumber Pokemon. It's based on Nasut Nasutera. Oh my god, Nasutoceratops and axes. But the name is based on tomahawks, right? And yeah, it just it continues to work well. It's got this kind of like longhorn thing going on to it. Like you kind of the bull horns things you see a lot in uh, like Texas and stuff like that. But overall, that I really like that line. That's that's really cool. Really simple design elements, but it, you know, it plays up to what it's supposed to be. We've got Zapter. Look at this little crackhead, dude. What the heck? He's got that hair that's, like, Doc Brown. And it, it would make sense. He's got, like, 1.21 gigawatts. He, like, he gets shocked with the electricity. Maybe it is a reference to that. I don't think so. But it definitely has that, like, feeling to it. Like, Doc Brown getting shocked by electricity mixed with a raptor. It, mixed with a freaking crackhead. Dude, dude looks like he's ready to zoom, bro. Let the man zoom. Let the man zoom. We've got Velocivolt. Yep, considering that same thing. is The eye here kind of reminds me of Rick and Morty, the way that's done. But maybe it's maybe it's Rick. Because Rick is based on Doc Brown. So maybe it's Rick-based. I don't know. But uh, I, I really like the design elements to it. It's got that, you know, little lightning bolt hair. Uh, it's got the more obvious uh, lightning tail. Which is what that, done well. Because it looks like it could, like, be turned off. Like... You know, it's got this little part, and then it, like, the tail part glows. Almost like maybe it could be chopped off, but I know that's, like, a more of a lizard thing than a dinosaur thing. But, I, and I appreciate that the Velociraptor, he gave it more feathers, because that's, like, you know, 
the more accurate thing to do now rather than the you know the hollywood um you know jurassic park thing to do it's based on utah raptors which awesome it's the ella claw pokemon i think the um last one was uh, zafter was as well man these names are perfect velocivolt and zafter that's that's awesome i it's one of the ones i'd consider adding to my team but i already have the bug electric type so not sure we've got igneosaur yo this reminds me of the that uh volcroc from uh from the Bion region, but like what I imagined it would act the typing it would actually be, you know? It's got the, those like rocks all over it that it, like, it looks like it's, the mountain on its back just exploded and like all these rocks are gathering on its back. This thing looks like it me could mess you up real good. It's based on uh, Spinosaurs and Volcanoes. And you kind of got that Spinosaur aesthetic to it, which is like the volcano, but it still kind of looks like it has that fin feeling to it. Yeah, well done, well done. We've got Hatterina. It's based on ocarinas and the Corythosaur and musicians. Oh my gosh, that's so well done. That's and it's got this little like music note, you know, stomach. It all it just all looks like one big like instrument, and it just looks like it's singing. So cute. I think this evolves. It's rock fairy type, right? We've got Parasong, which is rock fairy type based on parasaurs, flutes, and musicians. It kind of gives me that didgeridon feeling from uh from agrios region but it's just like it's it's bulkier it's kind of got the like um maestro like conductor um you know suit to it it's got the continued you know little uh music what's it called staff um to it and with little notes on it it's just really subtle really well done and i just love the flute for the parasaurs like horn thing next up we've got liznip so there's a lot of fossils in this region. I will say there's tons of fossils. Tubbs loves his lizards and his fossil and his dinosaurs. So we've got Liznip, which is rock ice type, and it's based on Demetrodons. Um, I love its little ice, you know, one little ice uh, spike on its back. It's still got the little fractal here. I would have maybe put it a little lower. It feels like it's a little too exposed to be attached to me. I don't know. But he looks like he's about to take a nap. I feel like he should have been named Liznap. <laughs> like it looks like he's about to sleep dude <laughs> we've got arctosaur oh my gosh i love the icy elements on this it's got this full like icy it almost like it looks like a toboggan oh yeah it is it's based on bobsleds wow i called that um based on bobsleds it's got this little thing on the back um like it could skate along the ice if it just went like you know naruto naruto ran and then dived um and it's got this like whole wheel on the back, which it's kind of it's based on the Arizona Saurus or Arizona is it Arizona Saurus or Arizona Saurus? I'm not sure, but I really like the detailing on the little ice wheel on the back. Yeah, it's a it's a simple like the elements you can see them. It's very clear, and it's a really good mixture of concepts. Okay, we've got Extinguix. It's flying fire type. It is the Reflare Pokemon. Extinguix is based on Phoenix Rebirth chickens roosters and cooked chicken burnt out after using three attacking moves it will revert to its extinguished form well that's why it's called extinguix so is there oh yeah it's like a little oh my gosh it's like a little roast chicken that's so cute so it just go, becomes pure flying after it's been extinguished but it still has a little flame to remind you i love that it's got that hoopa thing oh you can actually see its body in oh that's cool that's a nice little detail. You can see its body inside there. It's kind of like a like a stand from JoJo. Maybe is that is is that a reference? Is that a reference? Is that a JoJo's reference? We know Tubbs likes his JoJo's. I could see it being a JoJo's reference. We've got Sightgeist. Oh my god. I love that. I'm pretty sure it's like Setgeist, like Cetacean, but I'm pretty sure it's supposed to be like Sightgeist, like Zeitgeist. It's based on a, Vaqu a Vaquita and a Baki Kujira. Yeah, Baki Baki. Oh my god. Bake Kujira. 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 Bake Kujira. I can't... I can I can say Japanese words. Um, is like a ghost whale. Which I think is super cool. And it's got these little dead wishy-washy hanging around it. That's cool. I, I'm sure it evolves, right? Neck... Oh, so it doesn't evolve actually. So it looks like we've got the Pokemon Extinction Box Legendary. It looks like it's called Calamitiavis. And it's uh, new ability Extinction Wings. Cutting the damage reduced, uh, cutting the damage reduced by not very effective move on its opponent. Oh, so like it does more damage? That's phrased a little weird, but okay. So maybe super effective, not very effective moves do neutral damage instead. That's kind of cool. 
What's its typing? It doesn't say, does it? Does it say? Oh, it's rock fire type. Okay. I can see that, yeah. It's got the little rocks in it. And it's based on uh uh vultures and uh buzzards and stuff like that. So we've got the legendary of Pokemon Rejuvenation. It is Naturus. Naturus? Um it is got a new ability, Rejuvenating Hide, which cuts the damage of super effective moves on itself. Okay. So we've got one that ups the power of not super effective moves attacking and one that cuts the damage of super effective moves on itself, so it's more defensive. So this is, like, based on, like, Taurus, Bull, Energy. I think this is probably Rock Grass, right? So we got Rock Fire and Rock Grass. Okay. I like the green and red aesthetic. Usually we get a blue and red aesthetic, but I kind of like the green and red of uh, Rejuvenation and Extinction. Okay, so we've got Naturus. Here's, the, here's a closer look at it. It's based on Texas Longhorns, Cows, Bulls, Megafauna, and the concept of nature. Nature's constant growth and change to survive. Okay, cool. So it's like a, a, adapt, adaption. Like it's adapting to survive nature. It's called the growth Pokemon. All right. We've got Calam... Oh, it's actually Calamitavis. I think it might have been misspelled in the last one. So we've got Calamitavis. It's a uh, rock fire type. Uh, it's got a revive... There's a primal form to it? Hold on. Does the other one have a primal form? Wow. Okay. That's kind of cool. So they both have primal forms. All right. It looks like we're moving back into the regular stuff. We've got Mojaven Sphiel. It's fighting water type. It's got an interesting little design here on its on its side. I wonder what that's going to change into. We've got Mojaven Celio. It's fighting water type. Oh, it's based on like strongmen from like carnivals and stuff. Yeah, based on sea lions and strongmen. Okay. That's kind of cool. It's got the little mustache and we made the mustache smaller, giving the little curly cue. Nice. Yeah, you can I can definitely see it. I can definitely see it. Oh, we've got a new evolution. It's Wall Ring. So it's like the it's the Ringmaster. It went from the Strongman to the Ringmaster. It's got that little bow tie and like the God, I don't know. It's the coat. What's underneath the coat? This little floofy thing. I couldn't think of it in the last one, but it's got that 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 whole aesthetic to it. That's cool. It's got this cute quirky little mustache. Yeah, I really I really like that. So it's a new evolution. It's a Wall Ring. It's Wall Ring. Cool. Cool. Next up, we've got Mojaven Vanillite, and it is Ice Fire type, and it's based on fried ice cream. It's got a little cherry on top. It's got the little craggy, like, um, you know, flecks of friedness on it. Its cone is even different colored. It's like almost like a maple leaf, maple syrupy, ambery color. That's cute. That's a like, cute little way of doing it. I like that. We've got Vanillish continuing. It's like, oh yeah, it's so it is kind of like maple syrupy, like it's dripping. Uh, it's just maple, is maple syrup on fried ice cream or is that caramel? Is that supposed to be caramel? I'm not sure. It's got these little chunks here. It, maybe it looks like it's supposed to be some kind of design into the clothing. I like how it's breathing out. Like instead of the frost that it's breathing out, it's got the fire it's breathing out. How do people fry ice cream? I don't know. Like I need, can someone explain to me how people fry ice cream in the comments? Please tell me. I would like to know. Next up, we got Fried Dilux. So I was right, those little chunks did become like a like a scraggly beard of sorts. It's got the fire around it. It's got the chocolate little chocolate swirl with the vanilla. It's, you know, and the chocolate unibrow now. And it's got these like buff shoulder pads. It almost looks like a football player in a way. That's cool. I really enjoy that. I think it's different enough to justify it. It doesn't have the, you know, um, what is it? Two faces. It doesn't have the two faces of Vanillux. Um, and that's, that's super neat. I like that it's just one face and it's different enough to justify a whole new evolution. Next up, we got Burrowl, which is based on Burrowing Owls, which I based my Corneran Rowlet line off of, but he did it in a completely different one. The, uh, you know, the male one is covered in, like, feathers, and then the female one has, like, a little dirt crown with a little leaf poking out. I like that. And it's, it's just based on Burrowing Owls, but it looks like it has some, like, you know western clothing in mind let's see what it evolves into we've got dustrix it's ground dark wow i like that it has little dust devils yeah it's based on howls dust devils horned owls and demons yeah that's cool i like it's little whirls like little dust devil like tornado thing to it and like it looks like it's a it looks like it could be like elemental in nature but it also looks like it could just be you know feathers or fur or whatever around it so I, I dig that. Next up, we got Buru, 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 oh my god, Buruho. It's ground fairy type, and so this is the female evolution. The last one was the male. This is the female evolution of that. And it's got, like, this, like, you know, sedimentary rock aesthetic to it. 
um, more like motherly feeling to it. It's ground fairy type, which is a unique typing there. I should mention that. And yeah, it's just the uh, the opposite end. It looks very wise and motherly and like it, you know, come under my wing. I will protect you, which I really like that you can just feel that from the Mon. Next up, we got Pitrick. It is steel electric type. It's a little pit viper. Was that it's supposed to be like copper wires and copperhead snakes? That is a nice little detail. I like that. It's got those copper wires and a little clamp on top. Just a, you know, simple little copper wire snake. And it fits its typing very, very well. Next up, we got Viper, which I think is a mixture of Ampere and Viper, right? Um, that's so cool. It's a little rattlesnake. But instead of having a rattle, it's got this little electric ball that sends the electricity to the ring. I don't know what that's called. Oh, yeah, it's called Tesla coils. Tesla coils. That's what they are. It's a Tesla coil. Um, it's based on the Diamondback rattlesnake as well. And, it, you know, still got the uh, copper wire inspiration there. But yeah, it's just like, and then they change the pattern halfway through. That, this is a really cool mon. Like, I, I, there's so many cool electric types in this region, honestly. He does electric types so well, and I really appreciate the electric type representation in this region. Next up, we've got Becker Job, which is based on Beckett's and Monkeys and Office Workers. <laughs> this dude looks straight up sad. He's just like, okay, have a seat. Let's talk about your finances. Let's talk about your stock portfolio. You need to diversify. You want to apply for a loan? No. That's just the energy I get from him. I don't know. He's got that Squidward feeling to him. Just like he's, he's kind of got that proboscis monkey to him too. We've got Pepodle, which is a pure rock type. Um, it's based on Monument Valley rocks and Moonlanders. Okay, so it's kind of like kind of a UFO feeling to it. It's got this nice like pottery esque like layered sediment, but like also pottery esque, you know. Uh, design to it the one eye makes me feel like yeah we're definitely like and this probably is going to expand to a ufo right that's what i imagine is going to happen we've got unstone which is like unknown plus stone i like that it's rock psychic looks very meditative very calm you know like and it's based on monument valley rock still but also moon bases okay yeah i can kind of see how it would be like a moon base and it just looks very meditative it's, it, i think this is a third like leg back here Got that Metagross feeling to it. Then we got Rosrock, which is based on Roswell, New Mexico, where, you know, the first UFO supposedly was found. Um, it's it's definitely, a, it's based on ancient aliens, UFOs. Like, I think there's like a thing that like a lot of Monument Valley rocks look like they might be just UFOs in disguise or something. Um, but it's got this like sheen to it to make it look like kind of modern. And almost like it's like brain is hiding underneath there. Like it was hiding the whole time in this rock and now it's becoming alive again. We've got Piasma, which is pure dragon type. It's based on Piasa birds and Western style dragons. So it's really cute. It's got this little goatee. I love a good goatee moment. What I'm discovering from this region is a lovely little goatee moment. And apparently so does Tubbs. But yeah, it's a cute little dragon type. Uh, I'm pretty sure it evolves, right? We got, yeah, Piasor. It's dragon flying type. Got the... Wings now. It's got the like Viking beard now, um, and just like the like, it kind of like has like that that aesthetic to it, almost a gremlin aesthetic to it, and um, it's got like a helmet. You know, it kind of has that Shenron feeling to it a little bit too. Yeah, I like this nice little dragon flying type. We've got Blue Gall, which is water dark type based on bluegills. I assume yeah, bluegills and game fish, but it's like gall as in like, do you have the gall like the gall of this fish? You know. Oh, it's got a hook in its fin. That's sad. It evolves into Muscalarge. It's got a hook in its fin and its lip and its other fin. It looks like it's been through some crap, dude. Wow, it's got scars all over its body. Oh, this is its eye. I thought this was its eye up here, but no, it's actually down here. I thought it was just like an evil eye, but no, it's just down here and it's just scratched. Damn, okay. Oh, it looks like we've got Gigantamax forms of uh, the starters. we got Gig Gigantamax Cactex. I assume we'll get... Yeah, Flamule, whoa! Damn, we got Extinguish, you know, Extinguish who? This is the freaking Flamule is Gigantamax now, oh my gosh. Gigantamax Bubalucha, it's got the huge, that is freaking, that is a One Piece reference. That's gotta be a reference uh, to uh, King Kong Gun, right? I'm pretty sure that's, it's called King Kong Gun. That is so crazy, that, that's a massive arms on that. I like also its feelers are super long too. I like how they didn't make everything huge, but they just made its freaking arm massive. Next up, we got Tumble. It's ground ghost type little tumbleweed Pokemon. I didn't do a tumbleweed Pokemon. I probably should have, because this thing is so cute. But I don't, I, you know, honestly, I don't think I probably could have matched how cute this freaking thing is. It's a cute little one-eyed 
Tumbleweed Ghost. It's just like, you know, a vagabond, a traveler, you know, a ghost in the wind. Next up, we've got Duskberado. That is epic. I like how it's just shadow energy covered in those, like, little dry vines of, or dry, you know, branches of the tumbleweed. That's super cute, and it just has that, like, Kakashi-looking, like, hair and then the, the eye cover. It's based on bandits, desperados, shadows, and old western duels. I wonder why one arm is, like, complete and the other is, like, shadowy. Hmm. But, I mean, I kind of like the uh, asymmetry of it. Next up, we got Infernog Altar Form. Wow, okay, so it's Ice Fire. Now it's based on an igloo. It's got these little mittens. And the beard is more, like, you know, fluffy. And I think this is the tr supposed to be the kanji for fire um, in its stomach. So it's still a little furnace, but it's an igloo furnace. That's cool. That's cool. We've got Normadary Altar, which is Steel Psychic type now, instead of Ice Psychic. That's got, it's got a little bunker, it's like a teepee? Is this supposed to be like, it, it's supposed to be a, I think it's supposed to be a bunker, but it kind of looks like a teepee in a way. I love that. Like a little, little bunker, maybe a reference to like the bunkers people build, like the apocalypse, apocalypse planners kind of thing, maybe a reference to that. Because, uh, you know, you have the hippies, but then you have the opposite end of the, uh, the super stressed out apocalypse planners. Next up, we've got Pronghop. It's electric normal type. It's a pronghorn. I have my own pronghorn Pokemon. Check it out on Instagram if you haven't seen it. Um, but it's the bounding Pokemon. It's super fast, which is a reference to the fact that, the fact that pronghorns are super duper fast. Um, my I made mine ghost type because its nickname is the ghost of the prairie because it's so fast. Um, but yeah, it, I'm pretty sure it evolves into Gazult. Yep. It's electric normal type, continuing on the electric normal type, which I appreciate. I think the electric normal is a, is a fun and unique little typing. I think people don't, like, shy away from normal typing because they think it's boring. But I think there's some really cool things you can do with normal type. Um, but yeah, Gazold, it's got the electric horns instead of the prongs on the horns. Um, and it's just perfectly done. It's just, the design elements to it are just really amazing. You can see the long legs makes it seem really fast, kind of like cheetah-like with those long legs. Yeah, I just, I, I like this mod a lot, if you couldn't tell. So this is the Mimith, uh, you know, we got Mimith, uh, Beehide, and then Gorilli. Um, these are all being reworked into what I assume is a legendary poke or what I'm pretty sure is a legendary Pokemon. Tub said this on the podcast. Um, but, so this is going to be reworked. Um, so this is not officially a part of the region right now. So we've got some challenges here that are actually a part of the Mojave region, so I didn't want to skip them. This is Wakanavis which is Wakinyan with Avis. It's electric flying type. It's kind of also based on Thunderbirds, I'm pretty sure. Um, or, or I think the Wakinyan might be something. Um, but yeah, it's got that like totem-esque feeling to it. It's electric or flying electric type, which I like the primary flying. I feel like more bird Pokemon should have pro primary flying considering they're birds. You know, a f I feel like a flying secondary typing should be something like on Charizard where it's mainly fire, but then it has the, you know, the wings to it too. But yeah, I really like the design of this Pokemon. It's well done. It definitely has those, like, the eagle look to it. Like, you can see those eagle carvings on, uh, you know, in the western U.S. They have lots of these kind of statue, wooden statues and stuff like that. Next up, we've got Unovan Raichu, which is electric fairy type. It is definitely based on the Jackalope, right? I think this is such a cute idea for um, Raichu. Even though Raichu isn't really based on a rabbit, I think it fits the concept super well. You've got those horns that Gazult has in there because it's, you know, a uh, jackalope plus an... You know, a jackalope is a jackrabbit plus an antelope. So if the only antelope you have is Gazult, you give it Gazult horns. And yeah, it's just really well mixed together. And I love its floofy tail. It's so cute. Next up, we have Grobber, which I'm pretty sure is a robber. It's based on zombies, grave robbers, and boot hills. Oh my gosh. He's a little, like, he robbed his own grave. <laughs> like, he's a grave thief. So what, it, like, is there any more uh, to that? Okay, it's just a grave robber, robber Pokemon. Okay. Next up, we got Grimstone. It's ground fighting, another new typing. It's holding, like, it's got, like, a um, gravestone on its back that it ripped off and is using as a weapon? Oh my gosh, it's got, like, skeleton. Wow, this thing is really interesting. It's, like, part skeleton, part mud. Like, this thing is so sick. I really like I really like um, this aesthetic to it, and it definitely looks like a right evolution for uh, Grobber. It's got like a... Is this a bell? Is it supposed to like ring to make sure you don't... 
Like, it's gonna ring the bell just to make sure you don't get attacked by Grimstone or something. Next up, we have Mojave Meowth, which is the perfect fighting type Meowth. If you're familiar with the channel, you've seen. I've shown this, this uh, Meowth off in our Meowth of Every Type videos. We did the, had the shorts version as well as the long version. And yes, before anybody asks, I have seen Subjective Lee's fighting type Meowth. I personally just find this one better. So just please stop commenting. Um, <laughs> um, but yeah, it's based on cowboys. You can see its tail is kind of like a belt. It just it has a little hay in its mouth. It's just cocky, and it just it feels exactly like it fits in with the rest of these meowths up here. And I just I just love it so much. Mojave Meowth evolves into Perserter. It sounds like Berserker, but it's Perserter, like herder, which is what cowboys do. They herd cattle, and you can see it's got a little lasso tail here to help herd the you know Mojave Miltank and Mojave Tauros. It's got these little chaps here, like the perfect little. Um, cowboy chaps, and it looks like kind of it's got like leather gloves, leather chap, you know, leather cowboy hat, all, all part of it, but it is actually just its fur, which is just so well done. They moved the coin down to its belt buckle, which is just big brain, like, I didn't show this off in the Meowth video. Um, people have expressed interest in a, uh, Persians of the, uh, of every type video. I'm not sure if I'll do that, because not all the Meowths that I featured in that video do have Persian equivalents. But anyway, this one is just so big brain because you know the big belt buckles that cowboys have in modern times. It's just it's just amazing. Next up we got Foloy, which a full and alloy. I love that. It's the steel hoof Pokemon. It's got Sprinter, which doubles its speed for the first three turns. That's wild. So steel types are traditionally slower, I believe. Um, so it's really cool that it has like a it doubles its speed. It's based on horseshoes and the American quarter horse. Next up, we got Sturdied, which is the evolution to Foloy. It's pure steel type still. It's got this, like, these little steel aspects to it. This, these look like armored boots. It's, you know, it's simple, It's it's but it's elegant, and I, I really like how, you know, the, the little steel elements to it. Next up, we have Mojave and Patrat, Dark Normal, continuing the Dark Normal trend of Zigzagoon and Rattata. Um, except this one's based on uh, prairie dogs and burglars. Which is just so freaking cute. I love its little, like, you know, the ski mask that it has on over. You can kind of tell it's got that aesthetic to it. Um, and it just looks like it's ready to rob your house, but be cute while doing it. Mojavin Patrat evolves into Mojavin Watchog, continuing the dark normal. It's got this little bag on its tail that kind of looks like those, you know, stick and cloth bags that you would see in, like, the classic movies where, in the cartoons where they would, like, you know, go become a hobo. They would bring their stick cloth bag and the or stick and cloth bag full of all their prized possessions and stuff. It's got these this little pattern to it, which has the classic, like, you know, prisoner black and white pattern to it, so you can tell it's kind of, like, evil. It almost looks like it has, like, it's like a bag. Like, this, its head is like a bag that's tied up, kind of like this looks like a bag that's tied up, so it's kind of doubled up there for the theme. Mojave Watchog evolves into Maradog, which it still has that, like, little bag aesthetic to it. It's got this coil around its neck and the tail is a full-on bag it's just ready to rob you blind and the full-on you know prisoner um uniform is you know present here and it's got it's just it's just a perfectly well done you know third evolution you know continuing on with the obstagoon trend next up we got snobloin which is pure ice type he's a little snow goblin he's based on odies goblins ogres and having a cold he has a cold and he is cold and he's a little oni he looks so sad. He's, he's like, the thing on its feet kind of remind me of snowmen, where they have, like, the little twigs. You know, people give the, you know, snowmen twig arms or, like, twig toes. Stuff like that. Snobblin evolves into Snowney, which is just a perfect name. It's got the, it's still got a cold, got that big old booger, got that, you know, uh, cub chew aesthetic to it. It looks like it's wrapped up, it's bundled up, it looks like it's getting a fever, the poor thing. Oh my goodness, it's like, it's it's another one of those things where it takes the cocoon idea of bug types and puts it into a different kind of Pokemon, which I really love. It evolves into Snogre, which is ice fighting type. I love that typing. It looks like it's got an um, ice club, but there's also something inside it, like there's a club inside of the ice, like a double layer club. It's little snot dribble, looks like it's a like a broken off, it kind of it kind of looks like a broken off um, icicle now. Uh, it's got this big old, you know, Audi belly. <laughs> button oh i love this mon it's so and its beard is like wrapped around it like a freaking scarf 
<laughs> the design of this mon is so wacky and fun, and I just I just love that. We got Mogurai, electric psychic type. Oh, I guess he got rid of the other Pika clone. So this is the this is the new Pika clone, Mogurai. Um, it's got Receptor, it uses accuracy. It, accuracy cannot be dropped, nor can the enemy's evasive, evasiveness be raised. Wow, okay, so it's based on echidnas and electrical receptors. That's kind of cool. So it's super, it's it's like, oh, it's got senses. It uses its quills to, like, sense movement. So it can, like, be super accurate with its attacks. That's cool. Next up, we've got Gunkub. He's poison ground type. Why did they he make all his mons so sad? He's a tar sloth? Oh, he's like a sloth that got caught in the tar pits. Oh, he's so sad. Oh, I hope he becomes happy or at least like cocky or something. Nope, still sad. It's Goliath, which is just an amazing freaking name. But also, it's so sad. It's poison ground type. I love a good poison ground type. Honestly, I think there should be more poison ground types. We only have Nidoking and Nidoqueen as poison ground types right now. And I think it could be really well done. It's got Tar Trap. Physical contact moves cause the attacker to be unable to escape. Okay, so it's like Arena Trap, but instead it has to. They have to make contact. That's kind of cool. I really like that. That's that's a really unique little little concept there. Next up, we've got Kitox, which is uh, the Tar Tooth Pokemon. Okay, so it's got like he's got some like Mons based on the uh, the Tar Pits, and like the fangs are like little bits of tar, and he looks like an emo kid. It's based on the Smilodon and it's Tar Stained Bones. Wow. Okay, so he looks like he's going to be probably Poison Dark type. Just has that emo kid aesthetic to it, and I think that's like super fun. Yep, we got Tartaror. Wow. Yeah, full on emo kid. Big old, big old freaking teeth. It's based on Smilodon's Edge Lords, Gods, and Tar Stained Bones. Edge Lords. I love that. Yeah, you definitely got that emo like purple and black and ripped clothing kind of aesthetic to it. Wow, well, yeah, that's a really well done concept. Next up, we got Dribile, which is another Gia monster mon, but it's straight up just poison type. It's got the like little beard to it. It's got the like gross little <laughs> like drool beard. Um, it's the saliva Pokemon, which makes sense. Yeah, it's based on Gila monsters and drool. It's just, it's like, it's pretty sure Bile. Yeah, like Vile and Bile is in there too. Yeah, so Bile is like as in like stomach bile and the eyes match it, which is really really like I love a good coordinated color You know when the colors are coordinated like that So next up we've got Cauldrula and as we said in the podcast This is like a cauldron in its mouth, which is super cool. It's like brewing a poison like you know bu Bubble bubble toil and trouble, you know I, I, I like its little design elements where it um, the bubbles on its back, like the poisonous bubbles, have this little dripping, but also like pattern. It's like a dripping pattern. It's not quite like authentic. It looks like it's supposed to be a pattern. I love that. So yeah, called Drula, super epic poison type. Next up, we've got Belugan, which is the replacement for uh, Breluga, which I said earlier. It's looks like it's a ghost. It's got this like skeleton aesthetic to it. And it looks like it's got a skeleton you know face like making a mean face at it but it's actually the eyes are right here and they're kind of just chill it's just which is funny because it's a nice type um but yeah it's just like this chill little beluga ghost mon next up we have mohaven hatena which is dark type it looks like a witch's broom which i just think is so cute i'm pretty sure these are supposed to be its eyes which is interesting because we didn't see hatena's eyes in the past but yeah, it's kind of like looks like yeah, it's based on brooms and nests, and I just think that's so cute. Next up, we've got Mohaven Hatrim, and it's starting to look kind of like owl-like. It's got these like almost like feather aesthetic to it, um, and it's more based on nests. It actually has these little feet poking out that look like um, like owl's feet, um, but I'm pretty sure that I know the direction this goes. So let's see, Hatterene. Oh wait, it's Hatrix. Yeah, that's right, it's Hatterix. It's like full-on owl. It's based on uh, brooms, hats, witches, La Luchuza, harpies, and barn owls, which I think is just super cool. It's got this big old floofy, like, owl body protecting it and this, like, uh, owl, um, claw. But the owl claw kind of looks like a witch's hand going like, come here, my pretty, which I think is just a really cool design element. It's dark flying type, so it is no longer psychic fairy, completely different type change, um, which 
I just think it's it's this is a really cool and well done mon. Next up we have Mojaven Impotemp. This is the different Impotemp I was telling you about earlier. It is pure dark type, no dark fairy. Screw the dark fairy. It's got like a black tongue. It's crazy. It's got these little hair poofing out. It's still got the devilish horns. It's you know it's just a slight change, but a nice change. It's got the backwards feet, which are a reference to the thing that we were discussing in the podcast. I can't remember what it's called, but it's a reference to a myth. I think it's a. Uh, Mexican myth. It evolves into Mojaven Morgrim. This dude looks like he's lost. He's like, huh? Huh? Where am I? He just, he just looks lost. He's got his backwards feet. I think his hand, no, his hands are facing, or his hands backwards? Or are they facing backwards? It's based on, oh yeah, the Duende. The gnomes and Duende. I think that's, that's what the Mani was talking about is. Yeah, but it's a nice little difference. Instead of its hair going down, its hair goes up, and its ears are upside down. Everything's reversed on this Mon, and I think that's probably a part of the Duende. Uh, design element to it. And next up we got Grimmaul, which is, it's got three fingers. It's got only three fingers. It's dark ground type. It's, oh no, it's actually based on the Sisimito, not the Duende. It's the Sisimito and Gorillas. So yeah, the Sisimito is probably the whole aesthetic with the backwards stuff we've been seeing. Um, but yeah, it's just like this big old gorilla, beefy looking um, Grimmaul. And it, it just looks cool. It looks, I like it's like lack of pupils and stuff. It looks very menacing and like almost like some kind of spirit you'd see in the middle of the night. You could just see its eyes in the darkness. I can, I can definitely get that feeling from it. And it's also based on, uh, big, did I say Bigfoot? It's based on Bigfoot as well. We've got Mojaven Farfetch'd, which is just so cool. Me and him both did Farfetch'd both for a reason. He's this pure normal type. It's got a giant leak the, um, and it just has that like, it looks like it's part leak itself. Like, the pattern goes with the leak right right here. You can kind of see that. And it just looks like a frustrated old man, which uh, it becomes even more present in its evolution, which is Parfetched. It becomes an old, like, Scotsman with a little, like, uh, Argyle pattern on there. It's, it's leak becomes a golf club. It's just it's just so cute. I love I love this aesthetic. It becomes, like, Parfetched is such a good freaking pun. It's based on mallards, snowbirds, and golfers. It's, it's just it's just perfect next up we have the final uh, line of the region this is the pseudo legendary line it is not it is not a meowth i thought it was a meowth at first but it's actually Murkitty. it's a dragon type and it is based on uh the water panthers that my water starter is based on um he uh, we actually discussed this in the podcast he said that he actually saw my mon and was inspired to make this line so it makes me really happy um, but this is, yeah, Murkitty, kind of looks like a Meowth. Um, I think it's, it's it's supposed to be based on Meowths, but it's based on house cats, Meowth, and catfish. Um, and it's just such a well-designed little Mon. I could definitely see this being, you know, a Dragon-type Meowth. I would love to see this as a Dragon-type Meowth, honestly. Um, if you ever want to try and turn it into Dragon-type Meowth and give it a Persian evolution, I wouldn't be, you know, upset about that there, Tubbs. But anyway, uh, continuing on, we have its evolution, which is Meyer Malkin. And this thing gives me huge Perugly energy. It's Dragon Electric type. Um, and it's based on Electric Catfish and the Underwater Panther. We get the more of that inspiration here. Um, you can kind of see, it kind of has like a, uh, isn't there something called a Glowfish? It's got the like, um, like Anglerfish almost. Like that ugliness, but like the tactic to it. Like it could glow these in the night to attract, you know, prey and then, you know, attack them. I kind of give that feeling to it. And I like the subtle electric elements to it you can tell it's an electric type because it's just purely based on coloration and not based on any outside factor which i really appreciate and the last mon of this region currently is mishi bagwe and that is based on mishi B B mishi i can't pronounce the the native american version it's underwater panthers you can see it's got like now it's got the full aesthetic to it like the whiskers are now like little lightning bolts and it's just got the subtle little you know, lightning elements to it on its horns, on its eyes, little whiskers and stuff like that. Um, it's based on tiger sharks as well and now in tiger fish. So it's literally a tiger fish mixed with a water underwater panther mixed with, you know, it's it's so many aesthetics in one, but it's it just comes out so well. It's so well done. And it's a dragon electric type, which is such a cool type for a pseudo. Honestly, I think um, dragon electric type, water dragon type, like, I think dragon types deserve to be the pseudo. I think giving them different type combinations besides the one we have is super fun and super cool. Anyway, that'll do it for this region. That was the Mojave region. If you liked it, make sure to hit that like button, subscribe, comment, 
hit that notification bell, do all those amazing things, become a member if you feel so inclined, show that extra support to the channel. It really, really helps. I've, I've, I've gotten a couple of members now and it's really been helping. So thank you so much to those who have decided to become a member. Um, yeah, anyway, that's all I have for this region. Uh, and thank you guys so much and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye. Hey everybody, Brandon here with another region review where we review different regions around the fake mod community. Today is not so much a region review, more a regional variant review, because Pokemon Forum Edition has all the Kanto Pokemon as different forms, different regional variants. And it's super sick, I've seen a good portion of it, but I've not seen the whole thing. I've been following this account since its inception in February of this year. Um, I haven't seen every single Mon, and there's some Mons I might have forgotten about because it's been so long. They just wrapped up um, Gen 1. I'm not sure if they plan on doing Gen 2, but if they do, I'll let you know. Um, but definitely check out this account. It's really, really cool stuff, um, and I'm really excited to show you guys. One more thing before we get started. Make sure to hit that like button and subscribe. They're both free, and they really help out the channel. Also, make sure to hit that notification bell to keep up to date with everything going on on the channel. But let's go ahead and jump into it. We have ourselves Bulbasaur. It is pure ground type, a pure ground type Bulbasaur. It has the last dust ability, and it's essentially a ground type version of Blaze or Overgrow and stuff like that. Um, but to me, this this looks like a little bun, like a, like a pastry, like a little, like, I don't know. <laughs> it just looks like it has like a little bit of powdered sugar on top, like a cream puff uh, <laughs> or something. I don't know. It just looks so cute to me and just like a, a dessert of some kind. But it's super cute and I love it. And I really love its red eye or red eyes, yellow eyes is what I meant to say. Next, we have Charmander, which is pure ice type. Um, and it has a glaciers, a, you know, blaze, but for ice type, you kind of get the picture. Um, but I really love its design. It's very floofy. Like, it looks like it has, like, a winter coat, which is interesting considering it's, like, supposed to be, like, a lizard. Are there lizards with fur? I don't think there are. They usually have scales. So it's interesting that it's, like, maybe its scales mimic that of, a, like, a winter coat. And I also like how it um, looks like the flame still on its tail, except it's, like, a, you know, a glacier. To finish off the trio, we have Squirtle, who is a steel type. It has Meltdown. You get, you kind of can understand what that is. But yes, we have a steel ground ice trio, which I think is super cool. Um, I, I think we could get that in the games in the future. Hopefully, it's it's a good trio. You know, maybe fire steel, grass ground, you know, water ice, something like that would be really cool. I could, I could definitely see that happening in the future. But um, yeah, I think this design is also really cool. It's super spiky. Like, guys that like, um, like, what's the word like uh, snapping turtle aesthetic to it kind of like dreadnought in a way um, but yeah I love this design next up we have spike soar so a uh, new evolution to uh, to Bulbasaur it's spike soar it's ro uh, ground rock type so um, it's still got last dust and it's more of like a like a horned uh, what's the word horned de horned devil I'm, I'm I can't remember if the exact name of the lizard but yeah that's kind of what it looks like to me um, it's super sleek. I, I really like it's a lot of spikes a lot of spikes on these this trio I'm noticing next up. We've got Glamillion, which is <laughs> It's glam and is also a glacier. Um, I really think that's cool. I like yeah continuing with the spikes um, We've got the uh, an igloo aesthetic on its arms and its legs and I really appreciate that like I think it's like super um, What's the word? Um, like, it's like, like, for, fortified, fortified, yeah, it's like super fortified by the ice, which is cool. Next up, we got Drilltoes, who's got drills everywhere, it's got drills on its, on its shell, it's got drills on its tail, drills on its arm, like, even this is, like, the spikes everywhere, it's so, so many drills, it's like my favorite anime, Gurren Lagann, it just spiral power all the way through. Finally, we have Gemsaur, which is the final evolution of Bulbasaur, and it's just got these, these rocks coming out of everywhere, they kind of look like they're, they might be a little bit gem-like, you've got the layered sediment design at the base, it almost looks like it could be part fire type. I'm wondering what these little eye parts are, but they're, they kind of they look intense. They make it look intense for sure. Next up, we got Glacizard, which is an ice dragon type, which is super cool. We got that dragon type for Charizard. Um, it's just now an ice type as well. Um, it's got igloos with little, like, they almost look like bubbles coming out of them. It kind of has, like, an aesthetic of a Blastoise, like Blastoise in it traded places with the cannons coming out of its back. Um, or, like, shell, if as it were. But, uh, yeah, super sick. Finally, for the starters, we've got Oni Turtle, and this one is just my favorite. It's just like a little turtle Oni, and it's just got all the little, like, a Japanese aesthetics to it with the shell, and then it's got, like, the Oni Club for its tail. 
super spiky. It's just such a such a well-made design. I, I love it so much. Next up, we got Caterpie, and it is a bug water type, and it looks exactly like a Tardigrade, which is a water bear, and that is, like, the best Tardigrade mod I've seen. A lot of Tardigrades, they, like, try to go with, like, they, it's called a water bear, and so um, they, like, try to mix the, like, water bear, like, an actual bear in there, and it just doesn't come out right. But this one, they did the aesthetic really well, and I really like how it has, like, the water drops. They, like, replace the side pattern with water drops, too. Next up, we got Met uh, Blaboon. Excuse me, I was going to say Metapod. It's got Blaboon. Um, and it's kind of like the meta. It's kind of like Metapod. It's got Water Absorb for an ability. It was super cool. Its eyes are really stunning, and it just looks like, it almost looks like a fire water type, because it just looks like it's boiling from within, but that's probably just, like, its actual, like, body inside, you know, uh, you know, metamorphosizing in there. Finally, we've got Glowfly, which this thing is wild looking. Bug water type. It's got, like, a rainbow aesthetic to it. Super, super cool design. Like, I really like how it just looks like pure liquid, like, almost mercury in a way, and it has, like like a fire type aesthetic to it too like it could be like steam like it, it looks it looks like heat within these wings maybe you can learn some uh you can learn some fire type moves it's also based off sea butterflies which are also just a super cool um uh thing to uh, base on design after next up we got weedle which is a bug steel type in my opinion i think it should have been bug steel from the beginning it's weedle it's like needle mixed with worm like it's got spikes and then even freaking um uh, B drill has the drills in its hand. Drill, literally. What is a drill made out of steel? I mean, you know. But uh, this is that. This this like the aesthetic of this is really cool, and it's got like the floof, kind of like a like a moth, um, in a way. And I, I I really dig how he gave it the two horns. Gives me like blue oni aesthetic to it, and it's got the drill in its tail. Now like more an actual drill in its tail. So let's see what it evolves into. It evolves into Shilkoon. Yes, that's right. Sorry. A, a lot of this I'm remembering as I go. But yeah, it's got like uh, it's like a shield. A shield uh, cocoon, which is such a cool idea for Amon. Like, I, 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 I think like a, a shield-based um, cocoon Pokemon. Like, if there we ever got a bug steel type in the future um, for our, like, a regional bug, I think this would be really cool as an aesthetic for, like, a shield cocoon. That's just my opinion. But I think it's really, really well done in that, in that regard. And finally, we've got... Ongwasp. Um, it's a fencing um, Beedrill. It's like a more sleekly designed Beedrill. Kind of like a halfway between Beedrill and, and Scyther in a way. And I really enjoy how like like angular and, and thin it is. It just looks very like speedy. Um, it's got no guard which is what perfect for this, this design. And yeah it's just very armored. Really cool aesthetic to it. Next up, we've got Pidgey, which is pure flying type. And with the flying type, they didn't just give it flying type. They gave it, like, the wind aesthetic to it. You can see, like, this, like, wind-esque symbols in its, uh, in its plumage there. And, like, on its, like, like, yeah, like its plumage. It's more, like, flowy. And it's got the, like, whirlwind tail, which is super cool. I know what direction this goes, and it's super sick. So here, here we go. It evolves into Pidgeabolt. So we've got, uh, instead of it evolving to Pidgeot, uh, Pidgeotto and then Pidgeot, it, it turns into a trio evolution, kind of like Eevee in, in that way. Um, and it, so it's got Lightning Rod, it's the Bolt Pokemon, based on Thunderbird, it's kind of got that Thundercloud on its head. Like, I really like what he did with the plumage there, giving it like a, a Thundercloud for the, like, the plume of its, um, on its head. And you can see these little, like, they, they look like, um, heartbeats in a way. Oh, what's that called? There's, there's, there, there's a, is it stenographer? No, a stenographer. That's not it. Um, I'm thinking of something, but it's also, but the design all around, it's got very electric elements to it, and I, I, I really like that. Next up, we got Pidgeot Blast, which also has like the fire, like a fire cloud now, and it's just, I really love this pose, like when it's like, whoa. <laughs> I like how it's this pose, is what I was trying to say, like, when they, when they go like this, I don't always feel like that's a, such an epic bird pose. And you can see, like, the tail slowly gets hotter, like, as it gets more white, you know, I think the, like, the closer to white the, the flame is, the hotter it gets, um, kind of thing. So, really nice design there. And it, it's got the, it's got, like, the Moltres vibes in its wings, where it's got the flames going along, and Talonflame, obviously. Um, but yeah, I really liked how he managed to make the, it unique with the plumage. Finally, we have Pidgeot Weiss, which I think is my favorite out of the trio. I think it's so cool. It's, it's got these little snow-capped mountains on its plumage, and like these little curlies that go over its eyes. 
It just kind of feels a little derpier to me, just because of that. And I really like the ice shard in the tail, and like you can see the plumage. I say plu I've, how many times have I said plumage in the past freaking minute and a half? Um, but it looks like snow and uh, with the feathers, but it's actually just a part of the feathers, which is genius. Genius. Moving on, we've got Rattata, and it is a psychic type, and it's super fluffy. It's sitting up on its tail. It's kind of got that Abra look to it, um, but it kind of can see the ears. They have, like, little eyes, like, as if it put its uh, ears over its eyes, it looked like it'd be awake. With, like, those um, like those sunglasses people wear where there's the eyes that make them look like they're awake, but they're not. Kind of like that, and it's it's super cute, super cute design. I like how they made it cuter, Rotata, and they went kind of the opposite direction of Alona Rotata, where Alona Rotata was dark, but this one is psychic. So next up, we've got Rotataf, which is a psychic type. It's got this little uh, it, using telekinesis on an orange berry, and it's just got eyes on eyes on eyes, and there's actually like it looks like actual eyes in the ears. It's got a third eye, and they all just look very like hypnotic and super like in tune and i think this might like its tail might be trying to replicate a staff yeah all the, all of its power from its tail and staff like its tail its staff and it's a tail that's super super cool i really like that that little aesthetic to it like it has a staff um as a tail next up we've got spiro the other uh flying type pokemon and this one's ice flying type um and it looks like super like bundled up like it, i don't know I don't know if that's like a hat, like a kind of hat. It looks like it would be some kind of hat, um, like it's like on a design basis off of. But we've got another ice flying um, bird here. So we've got Pidgeot Ice, and now we've got Spiro. Um, I wonder if it'll evolve into a unique evolution. There's a lot of unique evolutions in this region, but um, no, it's got just regular Firo. Oh, I love, oh, I love that. I love how they made like the the little um, crown that it has into more of like a spiky. Um, plumage um and they gave like the sharpness of its beak and like an ice like an ice pick aesthetic to it but it's literally made out of ice um and yeah just super super cool next up we got ekans which is a water poison type and it is based on sea snakes sea crates whatever you want to uh, name them after but yeah poisonous sea snakes um it, it's just really well done i like how it's the water like the blue for water type and the black but usually they're like some of some of them are blue or black blue and black some of them are white and black um, and I just really like this aesthetic. I want. I think it doesn't evolve into Arbok. It evolves into something different. Yes, it evolves into Adnokana, which is Anaconda backwards. Um, and it is Water Dragon type now, not even Water Poison type anymore. And it's got Swift Swim. It says Swim Swift, but I think it means Swift Swim. Um, but yeah, and it, I, I just I, I think this is super cool. It, like it has that face of Arbok without being Arbok, you know. And it's got the coils, kind of like Sandaconda. Um, and I, I think that Adnokana is such a good name. Um, I think there could be lots of different names, like Viper, there could be Ripev, or something like that. I don't know. Just spitballing. Next up, we've got the iconic Pikachu, and it is the new radiation type. Um, it's got an ability called Active, and it's that when the user faints, the attacker's stats will all be decreased by one stage. Super cool. Like, it's just like a way of, like, uh, is there, a, I think the move Parting Shot does something like that, where, like, they like um, it's like um, U-turn, but instead it um, it like gives them a like weakens them instead of damaging them. I'm, maybe I'm wrong. I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure there's something like that. I might have to move wrong. But this is super cool. It has this like magnets on its ears. Like I'm not sure if those are supposed to be magnets, but it's radiation, and that's just, I don't know something about the radiation type seems feels so uncomfortable because like you know you're supposed to stay away from radiation, right? So this mon is like very like different than anything we've seen before. It evolves into Raichu instead of Raichu because it was the Ray Pokemon before. Now it's the radi uh, you know, radiation Pokemon. It's also it's still the Ray Pokemon, but it's uh, it's made of radiation. So it's Raichu. It's got these bulbs and it's like very like, it's super happy and it like has those like star eyes. Um, so it's really like, it looks very jovial. Um, but yeah, super, super interesting Mon. Next up we got Sandshrew, which is a pure dark type. And it is just so cool. It plays very hard into the armadillo aesthetic, which I dig a lot. It almost has pangolin-esque features to it in a, in a way. Um, and it's just, it's really just, I, I just, I enjoy this. And I love its eyes. Its eyes are very, like, capturing. And I like the dark typing with it, too. Yes, it's Toxlash. 
Yeah, that's the thing about the eyes. The eyes look like sunglasses. That's why I dig them so much. I remember this now. Yeah, it's a dark poison type now. And it's got these poisonous claws. And it's got these, like, huge... Oh, man. It just... <laughs> I, I really dig this aesthetic. It looks very, like... I almost said Bamfy. Who has who said Bamfy in the last, like, ten years? Me, apparently. <laughs> Next, we got Nidoran, and it is normal fairy type. So, uh, no poison type. It is just the complete opposite. It's a little stars, little star child. Um, it, it's super cute. It's Nidoran. This is the female version, so let's look at the male. We're going straight to Nidorina, actually. It's still normal fairy type. Got Q Charm. It's the Star Rider Pokemon. Kind of like Kirby. Super cute. Like, just looks a little chubby little cute in the face the ears are a little different and I, I think that's instead of making them like spikes they're kind of like taped or tapered off to make them look like more spaceshipy almost it's interesting and then finally we have Nido Queen it's dragon fairy and it's just got these like huge star wings wow and the, I like the cause like cosmos like flowing through it almost it like very like like stars all over it um, in its um, pattern too Wow, oh gosh, I, I I never really took a hard look at some of these mods, like I, I saw them and I thought they looked cool, but I never really looked at them in detail before. Oh yeah, it also has a star on the horn, I didn't notice that before. Like there's certain details I've, I missed that I'm like learning now, which is super cool. Next we've got Nidoran Male, which is also normal fairy, um, and it's got moon, it's more of a moon aesthetic than a star aesthetic, and I really like it's like little moon horn, and like just the, the moons all over it, very... Very Umbreon, but also like, oh, it's also even got these crescents coming off of its ear. Like, all it, it's just moons everywhere. Moons for days. Next, we've got Nidorino, also normal fairy, riding that that little disc here. I'm pretty sure they stay the same type, right? I, I think I think that they, they keep that typing. But yeah, it's got the double moons in the ear, and the, the like, it's got little crescents coming out of its back now. So I wonder what King's gonna be like. King is also Dragon Fairy. Wow. I like, I, I, I always prefer regular Nido King over Nido Queen, but I also prefer regular, ne or this Nido King over the other uh, Nido Queen. Because it's just like, the blues and like, the little bit of the yellow just match so well together. And it just like, it reminds me of like a, like a kid's storybook, like a nighttime book or something like that. Like something I'd read to my daughter, just the, the, the blue, the way the blues mi mix together. So cool. Next up, we've got some more stars with Clefairy. It's very flying. Um, now it's, it's you know got that flying type. I'm pretty sure it evolves into something different, but I'll save that. Uh, but it kind of looks like a Luma from uh, from Mario Galaxy, which I think is super cute. It evolves into Clefagon, which is a fairy dragon type. That's that's where I was leaning with the you know it evolves differently. Um, it's got these like cute wings. It reminds me of I think I've said this in the past. It reminds me of Gaia Online. These little swirls with the wings. Um, and it's just very cutesy, like, very big Gudra energy, Guma, Gumi energy, where it's that cute dragon type, and Dragonite as well. Yeah, that cute, cute dragon type. Just curious, I forgot what they did with Dragonite, actually. Next up, we've got Vulpix, which is a ghost fire type, and it's got, like, this skull mask now. It, it's got these, like, like, lines under its eyes. It's just pure, that pure red eye is just terrifying. And I really like how all of its tails are like up in like, like, like ready to attack. Almost like, you know, you know how like there will be certain animals that stick like their tail up when they're like ready. Like scorpions, for, for example. It's kind of got like a scorpion tail um, look to it, but it's very, very like ready to attack. Next up, we got Nine Tails, which is not Nine Tails as in like the T A L E S. It's Nine Tails as in T A I L S. Um, so it's. Tell me if I spelled that wrong. I probably did. But it's more of an Inari. We kind of got um, Hisui and Zoroark to fill that now. But uh, this was back in like... This is 29 weeks ago, so it was April. Um, so it's like... It's got the full-on Inari with the face paint. And it's like Ghost. And it's got that little... Um, gosh, I can't remember the name of it. But it's like the rope that's like a necklace. And, and it's kind of... You see them at temples a lot. Anyway, super cool. Next up, we've got Jigglypuff. Which is super interesting. It's got two different forms, fairy and fairy ice, which is super interesting. So we got we got one, a jello one and a ice cream one, and they're both like they're both desserts. And I like how it has little bits of pineapple floating in it. <laughs> I love pineapple; it's my favorite fruit. Um, it's just super cute. Uh, but yeah, it's got the it's fairy for an entirely different reason. Like it was fairy. I'm pretty sure it was normal fairy 
or maybe it was pure no it's normal fairy and so now it's just pure fairy and it's something completely different and it evolves into wiggle cream which is fairy iced so the way to evolve it is to like i think raise a, a fairy ice one with the fa normal fairy one and they like evolve together and like fuse in a way yeah if the they raise together at the same level they will evolve into wiggle cream so yeah exactly and the wiggle makes complete sense like like it's jiggly it's wiggly from the the jello and it's creamy from the ice cream and it's got this little it's got like an all creamy aesthetic to it next up we've got zubat who's looking like he's straight out of dragon ball z got that super saiyan 3 hair to him he's electric flying type i i a lot of people don't know this but i like zubat i think zubat is super cool i love uh, golbat and i especially love crobat crobat's one of my favorite pokemon um so this is super cool it's got like these little spikes on its wings that are like it is all it exudes that like staticness to it and these um like its feet kind of look like like jacks to like a um, stereo stereo jack um which all around super cool like i really it really improved the design honestly i really like the improvements they did there next up we've got golbat and it is just full-on hair hair like it is a hair band glam rock <laughs> just go going crazy with the hair um, super, super neat aesthetic. It, instead of having a huge mouth, it has huge hair and huge ears. Next up, we've got Oddish, which is grass dark type, and it looks like, like a turnip or a beet or something. It's, uh, it's, it's, it's more so like, or a radish? Is it a radish? Um, but yeah, it's, it's grass dark type. It's a prankster. It looks like, it's kind of got like a sinister face to it. It's kind of got like a little emo bang coming over a little bit. It evolves into egg gloom. So it's like an eggplant? Dude. <laughs> I forgot about this, an eggplant gloom. Oh my gosh, that's hilarious. It will prank Pokemon and people by making them eat plastic food instead of its group. Interesting, so it replaces, like, people think that they're eating egg gloom. It's a little morbid, but, um, instead they're eating plastic. That's fun. That's fun. That's a fun little prank. Next up, we got Eggu Bloom instead of Vile Bloom. It's, you know, continuing the grass dark type. It's got, like, the, it's like a scarf made of... Um, like leaves and I think that's super cool. It's got like a mixture of um, Blossom and uh, vile plume here in its aesthetic like it's got so like it's like little um, Flower on top is bigger than uh, Blossom, but it's also smaller than vile plume and it has the same kind of face as vile plume and rather than the like different kind of face that um, Blossom has next up is Paris and it is a bug ground type and you can totally see it Literally, it's just like a slab of dirt for a shell and on its head. And it looks like cracked earth, like, on its on its shell, too. It's an interesting aesthetic. I would have probably kept it this the square. I think this little crack here is a little interesting. I, like, interesting as in, like, I don't know if I like it. <laughs> but it's cool. It's cool nonetheless. Next up, we've got Trafisect, and it's bug ground type. It actually looks like that um, that thing that was um, coming out of its shell was actually a rock. So it's just like a big old rock. Got the crustal um, and almost Avalug flatness to it in in that way i think that's cool it's cool instead of it having like a parasite taking over it, it has a rock taking over it next up we got venonat and it is a bug fighting type which is interesting i don't exactly see where the fighting type comes in it kind of looks like Mankey in a way these maybe kind of could be nunchucks I'm not, I'm not exactly seeing the fighting type here but um it uses its hard horns to fight okay so it uses its horns as like a weapon so i guess i could see it i, I guess i could see it next up is Venom whip that is sick completely different than venomoth i really prefer this evolution honestly this is sick like freaking using its like little um antenna as whips like he's a whip fighter so cool and i love the gauntlets that they gave it wow yeah super cool evolution next up we've got diglet which is a groundwater type and it is sea sponge it's a little sea sponge diglet got the little blue head kind of reminds me of the um Slowpoke, Corneran Slowpoke, as well as Galarian Slowpoke, have that little thing there. Um, but yeah, cute. Next up, we got Doug Trio, also groundwater type, and now it's like sponge with a little, like coral and other kind of um, different bits. And it looks like it's a camouflage, so it like mimics sea creatures so that it doesn't like get eaten or something. I, I'm not, I'm not sure. Oh, so it can hunt, duh. So it can hunt, um, makes it think, uh, you know, its prey think it's safe, and then they attack. Next up, we got Meowth. Um, and you know every region has a Meowth, but this one is radiation type and this dude it looks like he is coked out Rabies out the butt literally just <laughs> Rabies everywhere. It looks like it's melting. It's 
it's in interesting aesthetic. This radiation type is throwing me through a, throwing me for a loop because it's just so different than any other design aesthetic we've seen from Pokemon. Next up, we've got Dister. Oh yeah, I remember this. Literally, Dister as in it's disturbing. It, like it's literally disturbing. That thing is creepy, bro. <laughs> it's so creepy. This looks like like our Cronenberg monster or freaking something from the you know, like Cthulhu-esque monster. What's the what? What is Lovecraftian? It's very Lovecraftian. Next up is Psyduck, and it is a psychic type. Yes, Psyduck, psychic type. Finally, it only it just makes so much sense. I got in an argument with someone on Instagram about this. It it it's a psychic type. It's it, it deserves to be a psychic type. It has psychic in the name. It has psychic powers. Doesn't matter if it can control them or not. It still has psychic powers. It has access to them. So why shouldn't its powers be reflected in its type? Just saying. Anyway, continuing on, the design is super, super awesome. I really like the, uh, like, it's little, like, it almost looks like its head is part of a crystal ball in its stomach. Like, it's channeling its psychic energy through its stomach. Kind of like Buddha rubbing my belly kind of thing. I don't know. Next up, we've got Golduck, which is also psychic type. Looking super knowledgeable, super elderly. The advisor Pokemon looks like, yeah, yeah, he looks like those advisors in sci-fi movies that you see that are like, yes, you should make this move, king, my king, my lord. Yeah, definitely has that aesthetic to it. And I like its little collar around its neck. It looks like it evolves again into Wise Duck. It is a psychic flying type. So we added that flying type. It's got more, like, feathers, more word of the day, plumage to it. Um, and I got the little, I like the little V coming out of its chest. Like, almost kind of looks like a heart. Um, very cool, very cool. Next up, we got Mankey, and it's a dark fighting type, and I love that. It has full-on boar aesthetic to it. Got those tusks coming out and, instead. Um, I, I just, I just love this. I love this in, incarnation of it. It gave it, like, a more thicker, bushier tail. All around solid. Next up, we got Apor. And so, it's just like a mixture of a freaking... Gorilla with a boar, and that's so cool. I really, really dig that. It gave it more boar-like features in its face. I love the huge fists, ready to just like pound on someone. They got the little X's on the arms, just you know, it's it's a dirty fighter. It's it's been through some stuff, so you know, you know, when you see these X's, you know that character's been through some stuff. Next up, we got Growlithe, which is fire poison type. This one is sick. I really like its design. Like it's got this scorpion tail to it. Very got the, like the like hair. It's cr like as a crown very angular and it evolves into Arcor. It is and finally a Manticore Pokemon and I like how he made the tail not a straight up a stinger but it's like a fur stinger um, and it's he's got this like mask it's very Spyro actually it's kind of what it reminds me of is the, his the the horns there and the wings um, but yeah just a sick Manticore Arcanine Pokemon. Next up, we got Poliwag, continuing with the poison type. It's got poison point. It's got these little spikes coming out of it. Very spiky, very poisony, very up to no good. I like it. Next up, we got Polybarb, which has got this whole ass cactus looking thing on its back. Very, like, it's got these spikies. Oh, and I noticed too on its, like, swirls, it's got spikes on its swirls too now. Like, kind of like rose poison in a way like kind of looks like a vine and the sp and the spikes next up we've got poly spike and now its head is just like this full it's got look at this chrome dome dude like full-on spikes everywhere and it looks like a, it's like a fruit it's got like these it was like it's almost like Manetta from <laughs> my hero where it can like pull from its head and like throw spikes yeah, it shoots it shoots the orbs on its head and it will explode and spread toxic gas. So it's like a poison version of Mineta. Um, and so yeah, it's also got the spikes on its thing now. It's look, it looks like they're like facing different directions. Next up we got Abra, which is a psychic dark type. So <laughs> this design is so cool. Like I really like its flowiness. It's very ethereal, dark, menacing, and its eyes have changed a little bit, and just like it's just all very like menacing and like it looks it kind of reminds me of the puppets from uh, naruto um it's got that kind of aesthetic to it next up we've got hocus so it's not kadabra so we got hocus i'm sure you can imagine what the last one's gonna be but uh yeah i got hocus that's holding this scroll uh, scroll what is this marvel um sc <laughs> scroll oh my god wow scroll in its hand and it's got the the, the rib cage like designed exposed it's uh, it's got a third eye here very subtle detail there, but yeah, it does have a third eye, like, slit. I don't know how else to say that. Um, got a third eye slit there. Um, like, it's got these kind of, like, gauntlet. Like, he's very, like, 
armor. Like, all these mods have very, like, armored aesthetic to them. Most of them, I shouldn't say. Not all of them. Finally, we got Pocus. Yes, you, you, you could see it coming. Hocus and Pocus. It's got this grimoire now. Its third eye is open. He's got the, um, uh, Plague Doctor mask look. And I love the way that, like, it has this, like, armor, armor on its chest. And the colors just mix so well together. The, the you know, yellow of Abra with the black of this new thing. It's just very, like... Very cool. And it's got Contrary, which I'm pretty sure actually, um, the other Psychic Dark type, what's its name? Oh man, it's escaping me. Malamar. Malamar also has Contrary, I'm pretty sure. So this kind of got like a Malamar, um, rival to it. Next up, we got Machop, and it's a Fighting Fairy type. Interesting the choice of Fighting Fairy. I would have, I would have thought Fighting Dark, um, with how, like, it looks like an Oni, right? It's got this very Oni, Ogre, Goblin look to it. It's very spiky. This man likes his spikes, you can tell. Next up, we've got Machoger. So it's an ogre, yeah, full on ogre now. It's got that scratch on the front. You can tell, been through some stuff. Um, <laughs> it's got a scar like that on his chest. He's, got, he's been through something. Um, so I like this, It's got. It, it feels teenagery to me, which I like that. Cause like, I feel like the transition from Machoke to Machamp feels like a, almost a little forced. Like you just, it, like it only gives it for, like to the two extra arms, which is huge, but like, I feel like this, like, makes it feel like, oh, you know, it, it's a more of a progression. Because it already feels kind of like an adult, like a two-stager with Machop and Machoke. But then you add Machamp in there, and it kind of just doesn't make sense in a way. I don't know, kind of a hot take. Finally, we've got Mach King, which, oh, I like this so much. I love this aesthetic. Like, the fighting fairy type really doesn't make sense to me. I think it should be fighting dark. Like, it feels very dark, menacing, evil. Like, he's got some bulging veins. My god! <laughs> This dude's been hitting the roids. Um, <laughs> dude, jeez. Um, got this, like, V scar, which is interesting. I wonder what could have formed that. But, yeah, this very, like, very macho fighting type. It's got muscles on muscles on muscles. And, yeah, I dig it. Next up, we got Bellsprout, which is a grass water type. I think it's off to those bell plants. Are they called bell plants? Bell? Something like that. But they have, they, like, let the rain hit the top of their little like leaf and it knocks flies who are sipping the sweetness underneath like it knocks the flies in and eats them i saw this in a nature documentary this is what it reminds me of but yeah it's cute it's got this little like karen like karen haircut to it <laughs> next up we've got lily bell grass water type it feels feels so pure like so pure because it's not grass poison anymore is it grass poison yeah, it was grass poison right yeah so it feels so pure and innocent next up is like uh, leo crabel wow that's a tough one to say um but this one is just like completely on the opposite end of the spectrum of victory bell like <laughs> like it's so like it's almost it almost looks like sea life like some kind of like fish or something it's so interesting it's got these like lilies coming off of it like it's so pretty. It gives me that Belossum feeling to it, actually. Next up, we've got Tentalpha. It's a ghost psychic type. Wait, hold on. Tentalpha, that's a new mon. I've never heard of that mon. Well, you might you might hear about it in here in a second. It's a ghost psychic type, and it involves it too. Tentacool. Tentalpha, Tentacool, Tentacruel. Maybe. I'm not sure. I can't remember if it evolves into Tentacruel. But it's a ghost psychic type. All of them are, uh, all, the whole trio, I'm pretty sure it's ghost psychic. And it's just such a super cool aesthetic. Um, I, th I think, like, the way he made the, like, its head transparent, like a traditional jellyfish, and it, like, feels like a flowing cloak. And it's, it really, like, the ghost type really fits Tentacle very well um, with that, like, that, that kind of um, aesthetic to it. Finally, we've got, oh, yeah, Tent Omega. Excuse me. Tenta Omega. It's not, uh, it's like a Tenta Alpha, Tentacool, and Tenta Omega. I feel like, like, Tentacool doesn't really fit in the Alpha and Omega in the middle there, but that's just me. But it, it kind of looks like a Portuguese Man of War, um, in a way, and it's got these, like, I, I can't tell if these are eyes, but they're menacing as hell. Like, maybe they're supposed to be used to, like, like, keep, you know, distract predators so that they don't think that like they're gonna get hurt because big eyes usually means big monster or something like that it's big regardless and it's got like all this flowing -ness to it it's just so flowy it's just so flowy and i like that next up we got geo dude which is rock steel very spiky pointy like looks like gold yeah it is the, it's the gold pokemon so there you go geo dude it's got it, it's a it's a gold version of geo dude next up we got gold spin 
Um, it reminds me of those freaking monsters from Chrono Trigger. I can't remember their names. I'll have to look them up. I probably won't remember to edit this in, but we'll see. <laughs> anyway, it kind of looks like an ice cream cone mixed with like, like a pine cone mixed with gold. It's it's interesting. It's an interesting mod. It's not my favorite. I think it's a little bit different. Um, I, I kind of like the original line better, but we'll see what it evolves into. It evolves into Goal Beast. Okay, I kind of take back. I, I like this. I like this better, actually. I really like Goal Beast. Like, I really like how it, like, gains. It, you know, goes from having two arms to having two arms and, like, a base and having four arms. It's really interesting. It does kind of look like ice cream cones to me, which makes me feel like... <laughs> makes me not take it as seriously, but I think that, like, its fierceness really is super cool. Alright, we got Ponyta, which is a water type. It's got a starfish, a little star you, on its chest there. So cute. I like its little fin coming from it. It's kind of like a Kelpie. Is it a Kelpie? Is that what it's called? There's there's one, there's 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 a water horse. It's there's a Kelpie and there's also another one. I can't remember it off the top of my head. I think it might be Capricorn. I think Capricorn's actually part horse. No, that's part goat. I'll figure it out. Next up we've got Kelotion, and it is beautiful. It's got like a Kirin aesthetic to it. And it's like it's got this like the shell on the front. It's almost like reminiscent of uh, of Slowbro on its on its front there. It's armored. It's very elegant and like it's like a Kirin mixed with a Kelpie, mixed with a seahorse, like an actual seahorse. Like it's a seahorse, kind of wild. It's really it's really a wild aesthetic, and I, I like it. I like it a lot. Slowpoke. Oh my God, what have they done to my boy? He's ghost water type. He's got these like. Ugh, ugh. The vents in the back's giving like triggering my tryptophobia because it's just like skin that just coming it's just coming straight up. Ugh, ugh, I don't like it. Creepy, creepy. Next up we got Slowbro, and something I didn't point out about the last one, it's actually the tails like cut off. So these are like the Slowbros who got their tails cut off. But uh now it's got the shell on its back and it releases it in vents. A little less creepy to me. It's still a little weird. It's got a new ability called Moist Mist, that if the Pokemon uh in, in battle if the Pokemon with this is in ability is in battle, it will normalize any status change. Just normalize. You mean like kind of like neutralizing gas? I guess that must be what it means. Next up, we got Magnemite, and it is a radiation and steel type. This is so so interesting. I like it. it's got like the robot aesthetic to it rather than like the magnets. That's interesting. I, I like that. Next up, we got Magna Raid. Okay, so new evolutions here, um, and they're both like you know they're connected by like their their like quote unquote tail. Which is interesting, so they can't be too far from each other, but they can spread out a little more than Magneton can. Next up, we got Farfetch'd, and I thought it was going to be Magnezone, but Magnezone is in Gen 4, and this is only Gen 1 Pokemon. But anyway, Far Farfetch'd, it's rock normal type, and it's got, you can see it's beak has, it kind of has that rock aesthetic to it. It looks like it was actually, like, a fossilized version of uh, Farfetch'd, like a, like a, a one lost to time kind of thing. So that's really an, an interesting aesthetic to apply. It's like a prehistoric... Farfetch, which I find cool. Next up, we got Kidu. It's a ground ice type. It's so cute. So cute. It is a pre evolution to Doduo. And I just, I, I love it. If we got something like this for Doduo, I would not mind. Like, even if it were just normal Doduo and it was just kind of like this little kiwi guy, I think it would be super cute. Like, one, two, three kind of builds to it. But next up, we've got Doduo, which is a ground ice type. It is the bird Pokemon. It is, um, it is just got. It's just got this droopy, kind of hippie aesthetic to it, with the hair, like the ice, like slush coming over its eyes and stuff like that. Very, very cool. And finally, we've got Dredrio. Yeah, it's dragon and ice type. <laughs> like it's representative of it, you know the move Tri Attack, and it's it's got like the the electric. The fire, and then the uh, the ice, kind of the it's kind of water actually, and then it has ice here. And this almost looks to me like eyes, like it's actual. It's like got a fourth face down here with the little beak, kind of what it looks like to me. Could be, probably not. And then you can you know you could just add a fifth face on the tail, kind of like exact <laughs> alone an executor. Next up, we got a fighting type seal, and it is super like muscly and like ready to fight. Um, it almost kind of reminds me of, like, manatees, how they would, 
get the scrape up on their back because of the, the motor boats makes me really sad kind of reminds me of that but maybe it's like something like that it says it was a struggle being hunted as always but this form makes it impossible to be hunted so it can hunt the hunters okay so it's kind of a reversal of that in a way next up we got leo mock which is just wild looking i hate to say this because i don't i think it might be kind of an insult in a way it's not really an insult by the way i mean it it looks like a digimon to me it reminds me of a uh, ikakumon or, or gomamon or something like that like th that kind of aesthetic um super muscly freaking walrus sea lion mon and it, even like leomon too because like it kind of in there next up we got grimer it's so cute <laughs> it's a ground type which i think is a perfect variant for uh grimer i think i think a sandy grimer would be super cool like maybe a grimer who made its way into the desert and like adapted into ground type i don't know ground poison would be cool too um <clears throat> i know we've already had a variant but i think it would still be cool but i like this one it's kind of got like a like a muddy or like a putty what's the word putty is that, a, is that is that a thing i'm thinking of the putties maybe from uh from power rangers in that in that way that like is just like this dirt that came to life kind of thing next up we got grumby oh no he's like <laughs> it's like gumby but uh it's like it, it's a zombie but it's um a ground ghost type zombie um it's just like that face that face is crazy that's a face only a mother could love <laughs> it's it's so it's really cool though i like i like the like dirt zombie because you know zombies come from the dirt right next up we got shelter it's a water normal type and it's an oyster um, which is, like, interesting, because we had cloister before, but this is, like, a literal oyster, and it's got liquid ooze, so it's, like, oozing. The, it likes to smell on Slowpoke's back, and will feed on it. Ugh. Ugh. I don't like that. Ugh. <laughs> I forgot about Slowpoke, and then it reminded me. Next up, we got Cloister, and it is Water Fire type. Screw the water normal. We got Water Fire now, and this thing is intense. It's, it's like, got the shell of um slowpoke like it's 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 using the shell of that like that slowpoke mon that's on its tail that no one like it's got no ex quote unquote explanation to it like it's it's supposed to be cloister but it looks completely different i'm pretty sure like it was planned to be its own original mon um you know and so it, like kind of like arocuda with uh Cramorant. We figured out that Aerokudo was going to be a Pokemon because of Cramorant. That's how I feel about Slowpoke's tail. I feel like that was what was going to happen, but then didn't. But, huge tangent. This mon, this mon is epic. I really like the heat coming from the tip of its tail, and it just looks like a like a heated pearl um, sitting in this like Slowpoke tail, which is a, 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 dope, a, a dope design aesthetic. Next up, we got Ghastly, and it is not a ghost. It is a normal poison type. It is re It has been revived. It is that prankstery little kid that, um, that like, uh, it's, it's the, there are a lot of ghastly have been revived and returned to life. People love this ghastly more, but it is also naughty and toxic. Exactly. So it's that toxic little kid in the playground. It evolves into Haunter, and, uh, it look, it's got like that freaking Phantom Thieves design aesthetic to it. You'll never see this one coming. Um, <laughs> it's cool. I really like how they managed, they, what they did was, um, they made the gloves on the hands and then the mask kind of like the original Haunter, like because you, you can only you know have the you know hands in the face right but then they added like around that which I, I find to be really cool it's got this like excavalier like or I should say I guess cavalier um, floof on the back of its head and then finally we have Gengar oh this is so cool I really like what they did with this because they managed to keep that Gengar aesthetic while making it humanoid because it's like oh this is actually a revived version of what Gengar would have looked like instead of being a shadow it's actually like this full-on human knight kind of thing almost and yeah it's called the noble Pokemon um it only shows its toxicity towards its enemies and it will protect its partner and and from all damage it's just so so cool such a cool aesthetic Gengar is what it like it's a fan favorite for sure and so they, he did this justice for sure next up is Pebix I think uh, Pebix is like a common uh, thing in the community. A lot of people do like a Pebix or a Peblix, something like that. It's a pre-evolution to Onyx, obviously, um, and it's kind of like got like like a sunstone, like but literal sunstone aesthetic to it. It's rock fire type, obviously, if you couldn't tell already. I don't know if I even said that. It's got flame body, but it's a fire snake. It's really cute, and I like the like the the gems 
like uh, uh, that like the color of the gems is very inviting and attractive very warm you know like a fire <laughs> Next up we have Onyx, which is a rock fire type, and got the full on sun. Like, got that sunstone, freaking soul rock aesthetic there, and it's got it on its face. Very cool. Like, managed to keep that, like, it's still, it feels, still is very much Onyx. Um, like, almost like Mega Steelix, but if Steelix didn't exist, this is what Mega Onyx would look like. You know what I'm saying? Next up we got Drowsy, which is a psychic electric type, which is such, such an interesting type there. Um, it uses electric waves to heal or harm, so it can use it like like a like a taser in a way. Interesting, like electroshock therapy in a way. Next up, we've got Sagro. Yes, I remember this dude. This dude is wild looking. Like this guy looks like he just came straight from like an Am a party in Amsterdam or Germany or something. Just like like a like Halloween party in Amsterdam. Like just crazy drugged out looking kind of dude <laughs> that's what it looks like to me i like it a lot though it's 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 a cool design overall it's just that's what kind of what it reminds me of next up we've got crabby steel water type i dig this i dig this so much and i like how it has like a little screw on its on its claw to make it look like it's cl opening and closing i think that's that's a nice little design detail um but yeah it kind of looks like armored like samurai uh, like Samurai Knight or something like or a knight something like that um, That that kind of aesthetic to it kind of has these like the the um, it's like teeth Quote-unquote are more sharp and they kind of look like a helmet in, in that way um, And it evolves into King Kava So it's like a cavalier like I said before and now it's, it's almost like a steam engine mixed with a cavalier like and I like how it has the sword and then like a spiky shield like they made it even like one big like the Kingler has the one big claw and the one small but this one has a big claw and then a defensive claw which I think is a really neat idea for maybe a future um future crabmon I think it could be really cool like a steel type crab have we done a steel type we don't have a steel type crab do we have I, we have we have freaking um Caesar but that's not really a crab huh I don't know next up we have Voltorb steel fire um, it's just like, it's just like a hot ball of iron, like someone just took it right out of the freaking, um, forge and just threw it out here and just like, hey, here it is. It's gonna fight you now. <laughs> like, imagine trying to escape a hot ball of iron, like fighting a hot ball of iron and you can't escape. <laughs> just as an arena trap, oh my gosh. Sorry. Yeah, but that thing, this thing looks menacing. Super menacing. Next up, we've got Boomrod. And this is giving me the bomb from Final Fantasy aesthetic. I love that. I love it so much. I love the bombs from Final Fantasy. They're annoying as hell, but they are just so iconic. And this is, this, this follows suit with that. Next up, we got Execute. And it is a poison and rock type. And I like how the broken one has turned into like a pot of like poison now instead of it being broken which is kind of sad it's got new purpose it's a bowl he's now a bowl to hold the poison and it's i like that it's it's, it's like the rocks are sharp they're like um it is a foreign execute but came from a different region by some other pokemon interesting so this even in this kanto version like this new version of kanto is got its own um origin story there it evolves into exotoxis exo exotoxy Interesting. Exit is a exotoxicity. Okay, I think I got it. Exotoxicity, and it is yeah, like it has actual bowls now. Like it's using the dude that was a bowl as actual bowls to hold this, to hold this like poison gelatin. Like it's a, it's a toxic syrup. It can kill an elephant in an instant. Interesting that they chose to use elephant instead of like a Don fan. <laughs> but yeah, it's cool. It's like a tower of poison, giving me that like, you know, Lord of the Rings tower thing aesthetic sauron there it is man killed it brandon <laughs> next up we got cubone which is dark ground and i like how they played into the skeletal aesthetic like they made the give it gave it a bigger bone gave it this like rib cage pattern and made it like more fierce with the like its um skull you know very very menacing feeling to it and i like that then it evolves into marowak bro you gotta be kidding me this is dope Look at that, it's got, a, a, like, it's sharpened the bones into, like, weapons. Like, it's a hunter now. I like that, and it's kind of got this, like, like, Native American, 
you know, aesthetic to it too. And it's got these like this mohawk. So cool. So cool. Oh yeah, I forgot. It evolves again into Dreadnought. Uh that is sick. Wow, look at that freaking full on Zabuza level freaking <laughs> sword there with the serrated edge. Bro, this this dude's taking out anybody that comes to fight it. Wow. I like how it went full with the the skull. It's like full on helmet now. Like it's just a part of it. That's cool. That's cool. Next up we got him on Lee, and it's fighting water type. It looks really unsure of itself. Also, I don't know how I feel about it having abs. I don't know if I like, I don't know if I like that. Oh man. But it's we got we had Raichu, uh, Lola Raichu, which was a surfer Pokemon, but this is a full on surfer. And he's got these like tattoos to him too. Still unsure on the abs. Don't know if I like the abs. Next up we got him on Chan. That looks that's that's wild. How like it it's you can see all the elements of Hitmonchan are there, but it looks just so completely different. Like it's got the hair, like this, it, like the hair that's usually like it's not like hair, but like the crown that it has, it's usually folded up. Just they just folded it down instead to make it look like surfer hair, you know. And it's got the like the uh, it doesn't have the uh, boxing gloves anymore, which I guess is a huge aesthetic to it. But it has these like this design around his feet that look kind of look like sandals. And I really like the like little way he's, he incorporated water into the design with like tribal tattoos in in that way. Next up, we've got Lickitin. And it's dragon type. Oh my goodness. It's got that like Oni tail, kind of like um, the uh, Blastoise, the variant uh, or new evolution does. Uh, Oni Turl. Um, and I. I ah, this is so cute. It's just so darling, isn't it? It's like. I think it's this is actually a pre evolution to uh, Lickitung. And so we'll see what it evolves into. Yes, Lickitung. Yep, they got actual Lickitung. And it is pure, still pure dragon. I would have pegged just poison dragon, but they, I think they, he already did poison dragon, right? Um, but yeah, I got spikes all over. Very spiky boy. Spiky cute boy. I just love its face. It's such a derp. I love it. Next up, we've got coughing. Dude, some of these mons are just so cool. Like, the instead of putting out poison gas, it puts out electricity. It looks like it's got, like, a little battery meter. That's actually a part of its ability, apparently. I'll read that in a second, but I think that's so cool. Like, changing. I saw, also, there was another one. I saw that was an ice type. I believe it was by Maison. Fake mon Maybe I'm wrong. But I'm pretty sure Maison did it, um, and it was a ice type, ice poison type, where it was like little ice poofy clouds instead. I think that's so cool. Like it's in replacing the little clouds of poison with different things. Like a fire cloud, could, you could easily do like little puffs of sm like actual smoke. Fire po poison type, smog could do that. I mean, we already got the you know fairy poison type from Galar, but I still think that's super cool. Coughing is a highly highly adaptable design. In my opinion, um, but yeah, it has this ability called charging. Um, the Pokemon changes its form, alternating between full charge mode and low energy mode at the end of each turn. Um, so here is the shiny, but yeah, here's here's low um, low power mode, low energy mode. I usually try not to show off the shinies because I like that to be kind of an incentive for people to go to their page and check out the shinies. So definitely, I didn't I don't I didn't mention this, but definitely check out this page. I I, I mentioned it at the beginning, but. We're about halfway through, so make, definitely check this out. Uh, this page is really, really awesome. So we'll continue on to what I'm pretty sure is Weezing. Yes, Weezing. Look at that. Look at that. And it's like, it's got the little battery on the side. It's got, um, it's got, uh, wait, it's got a new move too. It's got charging and contaminated electricity. It becomes electric type move when it is full charge mode, but in poison type when it is low energy mode. That's cool. But yeah, this dude, this dude looks like a coughing, like high on caffeine or, or, or on like, you know, more illicit drugs. Um, but yeah, it's kind of, and it's almost got like a, uh, barbell look to it in a way. I like that. Okay. So let's see what the, yeah, this is, this is what the, uh, low charge mode is. And it looks like an actual wheezing like now, like it has like the little, uh, wheezing side thing here. And it's, it, it, I, that electricity looks like poison now. It's so interesting how like he managed to just like change one little aspect about it. And now it's like, Oh, that's poison. Yeah. Got it. Next up, we got Rhyhorn, which is a bug ground type. So it is like based on literal rhinoceros, rhinoceros beetle. It is now a literal rhinoceros beetle. It's so cool. And it's like heavily armored, which is just, ugh, I like this aesthetic. I, the holes in it are giving me a little tryptophobia, a little bit. Same like with the slowpoke, a little bit, but not as bad because it's just the part of the design aesthetic. And it kind of looks like just like their ears or something. It's, it's all good. All good. Next up, we got Rhyneros. Oh, this is sick. 
This is another one that reminds me of Digimon. Um, it reminds me of, oh uh, gosh, what's its name? Gabuterimon, or I think it's Metal Gabuterimon. Yeah, this reminds me of Metal Kabuterimon. That's what, kind of kind of what this reminds me of, and I love that. A like actual rhino beetle, like ugh, so cool. Next up is Chansey, and it is a Steel Psychic type. It's essentially just a Chansey bot. Uh, apparently, the Chanseys went extinct, so they made this like kind of robot to, um, a, you know, fill that role, which is a really cool like idea, like a a, po a man-made Pokemon. That, that based off of an old, I guess they have done that before, haven't they? Well, it's still a cool concept. Next up is Tangoopa. What? Tangoopa is a bug normal type. Kind of looks like Tangela, huh? Well, I mean, I wonder what it does. Oh, yes, it evolves into Tangela. And instead of vines, it's a bunch of worms. <laughs> this thing is so wild. Like, this thing, this, thing, this dude went so out of pocket with this design. <laughs> It's giving me that, like, very Halloween, like, plate full of worms, like, ooh, fear factor kind of thing to it, and I, I just like that. I just think it's silly and fun. Next up is Kangabo, and it is the pre-evolution to, uh, Kangaskhan. Um, it's the baby that it has in its pouch, it's giving it, giving it its own official, um, version, but also variant, too, because it's rock type. So, we will see what it evolves into. We got Kanga Tank. Which I'm pretty sure this is like um, the male equivalent to Kangaskhan, but it's like really armored, heavily like very Nido King aesthetic to it, which is, is super super neat. And I'm pretty sure we also get yep Kangaskhan. It's also rock, so it's kind of got like they kind of adapted the Nido King Nido Queen vibe into Kangaskhan, which I think is super cool. Like I think that uh, Kanga, what was it Kanga Tank was really really neat. Next up we got Horsey. Which is looking pretty mean, looking looking kind of like Cedra in this to me. Um, it's very big, but it looks it looks very mean. It's water psychic and it's it's very serious, very serious in the face. So I'm interested to see what they do with Cedra here. Yeah, so it's it's just kind of even more mean now and more angular. Got more coral, kind of got that coral thing to it. Um, got very angular, and I, I I think that's cool. But it's a water psychic type, which is an interesting thing because I figured it'd be water rock type because of the coral. Kind of like Corsola, but interesting that they like channel maybe their psychic power through the coral. I'm unsure. Next up, we got Goldine, which is like a um, what's what are those called? They're like the big eyed goldfish, the Popeye goldfish, I think that's what they're called, um, instead of the traditional goldfish, which I think is just so fun. It's just so derpy. Like, I, I, like, it's, it's a good idea. Like, oh, how about we make a freaking regional variant off of a like Popeye goldfish? rather than a regular goldfish, and then we can maybe give it a new, like, that, like that's such a genius idea, like, and it, it's like one of those ideas where it's like, oh, I really wish I could use that, but I can't, because it's here, and it's amazing, so it's like, it's, it, I don't know, like, they, they did it really well, really well job, uh, done job with this, like, this whole idea, the concept of it. Next up, we got Celio. Okay, so instead of evolving into Sea King, it evolves into, like, a lionfish, um, water poison type, which, that's so, ugh, it's one of those concepts, man. So you're like, I just wish I had thought of that first. It's just that's that's how awesome this con this like whole concept is. Like, in the execution is really well done too. So that's 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 really good, really good. Next up, we got Star U, flying psychic type, and it's it's very like cosmic. You know, I like that. Like a lot of uh, cosmic Pokemon. You know, like Deoxys or Sogaleo, Lunala, Cosmo, um, um, you know, Necrozma also use that like psychic typing as a as a you know cosmic you know that's the kind of the filling for the cosmic type i mean we even have the uh psychic type gym leader of uh kalos who was um is her name olympia i can't remember but she's very cosmic like in in that so i like i like using psychic type as a cosmic a substitute for a cosmic type next up we got star we not star you not star me star we <laughs> That's I just think that's funny and I really like um, how they did like it looks like a shooting star now And it gave it kind of like an armor extra armor there I will say the jewel not being like in the center like I wish they had kind of filled out the Pentagon rather than like putting it off to the side It's just something about like it's just like Making me OCD about it. I don't know. It's weird next up. We got mr. Mime, which is a psychic normal type He's got these big poofy sleeves. He's very much a jester like a court gesture, court like like a Joker from a like a playing card kind of look to it, 
which I appreciate. I like the normal type on it. I think, I think honestly, Mr. Mime could have be psychic normal by himself. Honestly, I think, I think that's one of those types that could really work for it. Next up, we got Scyther, and it is a bug dark type. Are you joking with how dope this thing looks? Like, it's got the full-on, like, freaking Grim Reaper scythes. It's got this, like, Jon Snow freaking cloak, like, uh, what's the word? The Night's Watch cloak to it. Yo, this thing is wild. Wild. Just, just wild. That's all I can say. Like, that's so sick. So sick. Next up, we got Jinxed, and it's Ghost Normal. Oh, God. Oh, 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 God. The Cat Lady Pokemon. Oh my god, he made Jinx a cat lady! Oh my gosh, that's that's like, that's spooky. It gives me the vibes of Palm from Hunter x Hunter. That's what that kind of, the vibes I'm getting from this. And also the, like, the, um, uh, ghost specialist, what's the name of that? Um, the creepy girl from Gen, uh, Gen 6, too. It gives me that kind of same feeling to it. Next up we got Electabuzz, and it's not really Electabuzz. More like Fractabuzz, you know, because Fractal, it's a ice type. It's an ice type, it's got that snow, like, white tiger. Like, I, I, it's like, I should say, I say snow tiger, but there's not really a such thing as a snow tiger. But it's got that, like, white tiger snow looking to it. And I think it's a really good adaptation onto um, Electabuzz. I think, like, so we've got Jinx, which is ghost normal. We've got Electabuzz, which is ice. So what is Magmar going to be? It is water flying. <laughs> Oh my god, I forgot about this, dude. <laughs> this thing is ridiculous in the best possible way. Oh my god, they made it an actual he made it an actual duck. <laughs> oh my gosh, I love this. Such a funny concept. I love that. Next up we got Pinsir, and it's a bug fighting type, which is kind of one of those things I feel like it should have been from the beginning. Another one of those things. It's very how do I say this? It's got lots of shell to it. It's very shell-y. Is it keratin? Is that what their, their shell, shells are made out of? That's what that's what it's giving me. Like very that much of that vibes. Um, I'm, I can't. I don't exactly see the fighting type in it. Um, it's it looks like it says it's like body is more sturdy than before and able to fight back more viciously. But I feel like it would have been steel. Like, it looks steel. Like, if, it, you know, if its body becomes hardened. That being said, it would make it weak to fighting. So, I don't know. Next up is Tauros. And it's a fire ground type. Got a full-ass pyramid coming out of that back. Literally, like, there's, like, dust and pyramid and fire everywhere. Just it's all just incorporated into that. Like, you can really just feel it from the design, you know? It's very in-your-face about that. Like, oh, yeah, this is a fire type. Oh, by the way, ground type. Like, <clears throat> not to say that's a bad thing. Not a bad thing at all. I And I think it's interesting how it's, like, three tails are, like, horns now? Like, they're not really tails. They're, like, solid horns. Interesting. Next is Magikarp. And it's water ice type. Yo, it's transparent. That is sick. Like it's like a transparent, the parent like see-through snowflake. It's like it's like those like that those things of ice you see, where it's got like the water trapped inside it, like and you like, you, like or the ice cubes. You know when you put the ice cubes in the fridge and they're not quite done, so it's just like this layer of ice around the water, kind of like that. That's what that this this gives me, and it's I really like the what they he did with the fin to make it look like a snowflake. Wow, that's cool. I wonder what Gyarados is like. It's ice poison. What? Dude, he's like a what? It's oh, it's Yormados, like Yormagonder, uh, Yormagonder. That's sick. Wow. Okay. Wow. I think that um, you know, I, I think that Magikarp and Gyarados are one of those things that could really have have like really awesome potential for regional variants, and I feel like more people should tap into it. My friend Wesco Region um did a regional Magikarp and um, new um, it's called Sakaos. Um it, it, it's a, it's like a salmon because <laughs> salmon Gyarados it's super cool check it out um, but anyway yeah this is this is sick next is Lockrass um, it is like lap Lapras is supposed to be like um, rock plus lock I think like lock like the Loch Ness monster plus rock 
Um, and it's a rock dragon type. It's a pre-evolution to Lapras, which I think in Gen 4, Lapras could have gotten a pre-evo. I think it should have. I think that would have been cool. Like, I know it's practically pointless, but I think it'd be cool to have, like, a cute little baby version of Lapras. It would be, be able to give you early access to Lapras in, early, in like, some games. Um, and, like, you could, you know, bond with that Lapras that you're riding on, you know? That's just me. But anyway, it's a rock dragon type. I think rock dragon is super cool, and the, the way they handled the shell um, is really, really a neat aesthetic. Next, we've got Lapras, which is rock dragon. Yep, it's it's like that neck, bro. That neck is huge. It's massive, massive neck. Um, he's got he's got neck mad neck game. <laughs> um, anyway, I really like uh, Lapras. As you know, is one of my like favorite Pokemon. So. It's I, he did this one justice. I'll say he did he did do this one justice. It doesn't seem like it can hold passengers anymore, which I think is cool. I always like I like that's exactly what I did with mine. Mine mine's a water rock type. My uh, regional Corneran Lapras is a water rock type, so I dig it. Next up we got Ditto, and this is a radiation Ditto, and it looks like yeah it's unstable. It's like its DNA is going crazy. It's like trying to be Pikachu, EV, Magnemite and Voltorb all at once, and then maybe Trappage? What is that supposed to be? That little claw down there, I'm not sure. Um, but yeah, a group ditto got exposed to radiation and fused together. It's but it can't transform anymore, and it cannot move anymore. <laughs> people need, people don't, what? People keep them in radiation storage. Some of the grammar on this is not 100% great, I'm trying to read it, so. Um, anyway, <clears throat> next up we got Eevee. Eevee. Whoa. Eevee. We already had the Pidgey line before, so what is Eevee going to do? Well, Eevee is a ghost type now, and as you can see, all of its different evolutions are along its fur, its neck fur, and it's called now the No Evolution Pokemon. After a lot of Eevee have perished because their trainer forced them to evolve to get stronger, they couldn't handle the power of the evolution. They still have the grudge over their previous trainer, and this Eevee cannot evolve. In battle, it's got a new ability called Withering. In battle, all Pokemon can in the field cannot increase their state or their status. I think. <clears throat> in party, no Pokemon can evolve. So it's in a group Everstone. If you have this in your party, super cool. Like super cool concept. Like an Eevee that's been scorned. It's kind of got that like you know he's doing Zora. Like now this was before he's doing Zora, but it's a Pokemon that's been scorned by trainers, you know, and so it like scorns them back like even if you hold it you can't quite you know make it as powerful as it could be and you can't make any of your other pokemon as powerful as they possibly could be which is super cool super dope super op dummy op I'm just gonna keep saying words next up is porygon it is grass normal and it's like a little toy duck the little ducks that go like you know the dipper ducks whatever they're called uh and it's now um it's not a necessarily like um, it's a computer program anymore. It looks like this is the original form of Por Porygon before it was a cute computer program is what it looks like, which is super cute. It's still got that angular vibe to it, like that Porygon. It's like halfway between Porygon and Porygon 2, which I, 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 I dig this. It's like a little, little, you know, duck. I, not, not, not much more to say than that. Next up, we've got Nanite. It is Water Steel. Um, it's a shell Pokemon. This is an Ammonite des Descendant. And it has evolved from diff into a different species. Uh, you may find them in in different regions. This has happened to, after increasing the Ammonite uh, population. Interesting. I would I don't see. Okay, so we don't have Ammonite. I wonder, I'm a star. Wow. Argonon, like as in Ar like Argus. Dude, or Argonaut? Excuse me, Argonaut, not Argus. Argonaut. Bro, that is some wild, wild crap right there. Like, I think it's like, it looks like it's part boat, part Argonaut, part Nautilus. Wild. It's got Mega Launcher as its ability, which makes sense. It's got like cannons in its freaking dome. Wow. That thing is just stra straight wild. Straight up wild. Next, we have gotten Dubato. So we got, so we don't have Kabuto, we don't have Kabutops. We don't have Ammonite or Amastar. We have these. We have Dubato, Bug Seal type, Battle Armor. It's the shell Pokemon. Um, and it looks like Kabuto, but it's just like, it's more like insect-like. 
which is interesting to me. I wonder... So it looks like, yeah, it looks like the fossils are steel now. Both of the fossils. Hmm. What does it evolve into? It evolves into Metapede. Bro, this is giving me some, like, Dark Souls vibes. Dude, what? <laughs> this is, like... And it was also kind of like Garchomp in a way. Like, got the same kind of, like, shape to it. Wow. That's that's sick. Bug Steel type. Oh, wow. I just, I dig that. I dig that a lot. Next up, we've got Goldorus. The Fighting Flying type. So this must be the replacement for um, Aerodactyl. Interesting. It's Fighting Flying. Wow, it gives me like electric flying or like dark flying even, but fighting. That's that's wild. This thing is like so it's super vicious. This is believed this is an aerodactyl descendant because of its behaviors. So it looks like instead of getting fossils, you get like what the fossils evolved into over time. Like a direct descendant rather than like, you know, saying like, "Oh, you know, this Pokémon like Venusaur came from this Pokémon." It's actually just the direct descendant. That's cool. Next up, we've got Snorlax, and it's poison type. Oh, did you got a tummy ache? Oh, he's a sick Pokemon. After eating bad foods, its behavior changed and adapted to it. It uses its vomit to attack. Snorlax, use vomit. <laughs> That's hilarious. I love that. All right, yeah. Let me go a tummy ache. Little tummy ache. Tell me ache Snorlax, I love that. Next up we got Articuno, and it is a water flying type now, which, ugh, it's, ah, so, so beautiful. Love, like the little curly mist that they, like the, the square, like square curls, like the little square curls gives me that like, and the curlies in general on the mist give me that um, Legend of Zelda Wind Waker, like thing, you know, vibe. And that's just what this gives me too, and and also like El Dorado, like the 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 movie, the DreamWorks movie. That's that's also what this gives me, and it's just, yeah, it's water flying. It's like mist. That yeah, it's the mist Pokemon. After the meltdown of Ice Mountain, Articuno got Articuno got affected, and its body vibrates and becomes mist. Ugh. So cool, so cool. All right, what's Moltres? Let's see Moltres. Or no, actually it's Zapdos. Duh, Articuno, Zapdos, Moltres. Duh. Uh, we got Zapdos, which is Ghost Flying. Uh, it's called the Dead Light Pokemon. After Pokemon used its uh, Zapdos used its light and power, it got lost and started to use its soul. It used its own soul to make energy. Wow. I, you can use your power, but at the cost of your soul. It's very much like almost anime, but like like cartoon anime, like the hero. Who, uh, you know, Hercules, who has to sacrifice himself, kind of that thing. Interesting. But uh, I think it's kind of like in a design, or like an anime aesthetic too, where it's like, the hero that can only use its most powerful weapon, but if it, but it, you know, costs him a part of his soul or something. I'm sure there's something like that. That's That sounds familiar to me. Um, but yeah, it's really interesting design. It's not my favorite of the three. Very, like, ethereal, though. We got Moltres! Bringing back the square clouds, it's ground flying type. Um, we got the these like layered dirt. It reminds me of the freaking sandbird from Mario Sunshine. The legendary sandbird, who can freaking that's uh, such a pain in every speedrunner's butt. I'm pretty certain, um, uh, or a hundred or hundred percenters, whatever. Anyway, it's very like it still feels very Moltres while getting those really cool dusty cloudy elements to it. Next up, we got Dratini, and it's an electric dragon. And it kind of has, like, an eel, like, tail at the end here. Like, instead of the orb, it's got, like, a little eel tail. And it's these you know, fins coming out of its head rather than, like, the like the way they looked before. I like the diamond on its head, too. Very cute. You know, pretty pretty standard, you know, electric dragon Dratini. Next up, we got Dragonair, which I really like how they improved on the elements here. Like, to make it look more electric type. Like, the giving it the, like, this, like, frill on its back to make it look spiky. And then the gems, making them, like, this, like, amber, jasper kind of looking to them. And I like how this kind of looks like a spear, too. Kind of looks like a, like a javelin. And then the little electric in the ear, too. Wow. Ugh. 
the improvements the they, they improved this design for me with uh, the the like like the elements they they chose to add finally we've got dragorai not dragonite dragorai so get out of here goofy dragonite this boy is a dragon it's got like the armor uh, for the crystals instead and it's very long still got gave the arms but it's got that like you know asian kind of dragon aesthetic to it rather than the you know goofy western or not western but the uh european dragon to it i'm not sure i i there's like eastern and western dragons i'm not sure which is which so i just kind of say the area but yeah it's got that a asian kind of dragon aesthetic to it and i really like the little lightning bolt tail just perfect little accent i love that so we have new legends for the these games we have infrared version um and this is infrax the fire and radiation type legendary pokemon of uh, pokemon forum edition it is very wild looking it is <laughs> it's it's just it's insane looking <laughs> like it, 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 it very led got that legendary aesthetic to it but like the lack of eyes just makes it so interesting like to me like not many Pokemon lack eyes, and so this 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 like has that kind of intimidation to it because of that. Next up, we've got Boron Blue, and this is a Boron A. It is the Water and Radiation type. Um, as you can see, they kept the um, blue and red. You know, infrared Boron Blue. Um, I think there's green too, uh, but they actually have their own legendary Pokemon with them too. And this one is just gives me like monster hunter vibes like I, I feel like i could be fighting this with my freaking switch axe or charge blade it, in, in like even monster hunter try like when you used to like swim to uh fight that's what this vi this kind of vibe gives me very primordial is is the word i'd use for it and finally we've got radon green it is a grass radiation type deer kind of got that xerneas aesthetic to it but i like i like what they did with the horns it kind of looks like some kind of like uh what's the word crest or something like that um very very interesting like it, it gives me like a mix of xerneas and like verizion kind of like that that's what that feels like to me very interesting and i think that's it actually no wait no there's two more i think there's two more yep there is muters so this is created this is like um a almost like a robot or like a like a creation this was created by Mewtwo in this thing it was created by Mewtwo himself to replace him and to do to protect um the world from like it says from space Mewtwo is now classified as human and removed from the decks so like there's actually you'll we'll, we'll, I'll show you what what, I, what what it means by that but yeah this dude talk about a mega mind holy crap there's like brains all over it <laughs> But uh, it's psychic and radiation type. I forgot to say that. Psychic and radiation type. Next, we've got Mew. Not M-E-W. M-E-U. It is M-E-U. It's a dragon psychic type. It's known as the first child Pokemon. It is the first child from Mew. Naturally, it was sealed by Mew a thousand years ago, is what it says. So this was the child of Mew. This was Mew's baby, and it became a dragon type. So cool. Like, like it was sealed away by Mew to, like... Like, it, it is, like, it abandoned its child. It's, so, like, it's dark. It's gritty. It's it's really cool. It's a really cool story and a really cool-looking mon, too. Okay, so this is the last thing I'll show of this. This is Professor Mewtwo. Um, he is officially, like, become human. Like, a, like a, 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 essentially. Like, he's he, he's disguised himself. Um, <clears throat> he created um, muters to, like, to, to reduce the power of radiation-type Pokemon and to stop Mew. Um, M E U. Um, so like, you know, Mewtwo was the villain from like kind of the movies, and now he's like the hero, which is kind of cool. But um, yeah, I think that's like there's a couple of trainers and stuff like that. I don't think there's any more Pokemon. Yeah, there's trainers. You can see that all that. Definitely check that out. Um, on Pokemon Form Edition's page, they're still posting, I believe, some trainers and like gym leaders and stuff like that so definitely check them out but that's it for the decks make sure you guys like the video subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell to keep up to date with everything going on in the channel thank you guys so much for watching and i will see you guys in the next one bye
Hey everybody, Brandon here, and welcome back to another region review where we review different regions around the Fakemon community. Today, we're going to be taking a look at the Metis region over on Instagram, which is a Mediterranean based region with a focus on Greece and Spain. If you don't know what the Mediterranean is, it is the area around the Mediterranean Sea. Metis is a good friend of mine. We've been in the Fakemon community for a similar amount of time. Our region started up around the same time. Um, and so I'm kind of familiar with the region, kind of like I was with the Leewika region with Michael. Um, but I still have a lot to learn about this region. There's a lot I don't know about this region, and so I'm excited to explore that. But before we get started on this Mediterranean region, make sure to hit that like button, subscribe, and hit that notification bell to keep up to date with future region reviews. But let's get started. We've got Lee Cub, our grass starter, which is the green cub Pokemon. It's supposed to be based on Melanistic Big Cats, aka Panthers. Um, so it is kind of the, a general big cat, um, cub with these little leaf-like elements. I really like the little leaf-like elements because the bodies, there's not so much on the body because it's quadrupedal. Um, but they added some little leaf-like elements to the face, um, on the head, the tail. So they really accent it, make it feel like a grass starter without going overboard with the details, which I feel like a lot of grass starters do. Next up is our fire starter, Novair, which is a mixture of Nova and Bear. It's got a starry eyes. It's a star, you know, Pokemon. I just love the little star tail with the stars on its back and in its eyes. I love the way that the, you know, there's the good balance of the design elements. So it doesn't feel like too much. And you get the point of what they're trying to go for with the starter. You know, fire, bear, cub. They're actually kind of both cubs. We have the green cub and then the bear cub. You know, interesting. But anyway, uh, but our fire starter, bear, it's not exactly on the Chinese zodiac, but, you know, that's okay. You know, not all of them can be, uh, you know, because we're going to eventually run out of ideas for all the different zodiacs. There's only four left. So sometimes you got to think outside the box. And I really like the starters here. I know what the, the final evolutions look like. And I think what he did with this is actually really incredible. And lastly, we've got our water starter, Spodgy, which is a sponge Pokemon. It's like based on sea sponges, which is kind of crazy because sea sponges are these very not like animalistic things. They're very, you know, they look like coral almost. Um, and they don't really have any kind of expression or anthropomorphism to them. So um, uh, Meta is adding this anthropomorphiz anthrop anthropomorphization to this sponge is really interesting and a unique concept for uh, just a water Pokemon in general, not even just a water starter. Kind of in the same vein as Corsola, adding that like little bit of personality to a seemingly inanimate object. Next up, we've got our trainers for this region. They're looking very ready to hit the open sea. They've very got that like that like beachy vibe to the Mediterranean vibe. I like the the stripes of their designs and the the hat the matching hats being kind of like straw hats. I really, really like. Um, so these two, yeah, solid. And I really like the the way his bag is. It almost reminds me of like a milk carton. It's, I don't know. That's just me. It's interesting. I don't know. Next up, we have the titles of what the games of the Metis region are. There's no actual games, so don't get your hopes up. But uh, we have Pokemon Matriarch and Pokemon Patriarch. And I find these titles interesting because they're not really opposites of each other. They're not antithesis. And a lot of Pokemon titles seem to, to seem to do that. Like we have Pokemon Sword versus Shield. Not opposites. O often you're you know using a sword and a shield in combination. Um, you know Pokemon Sun and Pokemon Moon. The Moon isn't really the opposite of the Sun. We think of it as the opposite, but they just kind of come up on like separate times of day. But they're not really quote unquote opposites of each other. Um, so I think it kind of is interesting to see Matriarch versus Patriarch the feminine versus the masculine, which aren't opposites of each other in any regard and can be commingled in a lot of ways, which I assume would probably be kind of the idea of if there was necessarily a third title. Um, but I think that's a really interesting take on the, you know, Pokemon titling because a lot of people like to do those polar opposites, Pokemon life, Pokemon death, Pokemon creation, Pokemon destruction. And they're really not exactly opposites. Um, most Pokemon titles are. So I just find this really interesting that they went in this direction with the titles. I know I spent way too long talking about titles. Let's probably should, you know, get to the Pokemon. So first up, we have our regional bird, which is Metachick. It is the soothing Pokemon. It is a pure flying type, which I always appreciate a good pure flying type. I think like the normal flying type, it's kind of just like, there's no point in putting the normal on it. If you know, it's just I don't know. I feel like normal should be applied to uh, different things, not just anything that's considered regular, if that makes sense. Even though some birds aren't really considered regular. Birds are weird, man. I don't, I don't know. Anyway, we have Metachick. Um, and I really like its very happy-go-lucky grin. It very much looks like 
it's there to be your friend. It's there to soothe you. Um, Dex Entry says, like, always interested in the well-being of Pokemon and humans. They will often chirp cheerfully to restore their health. Oddly enough, it often works. That's really awesome. I think that's fun. Just having that friend that, like, you know, can always cheer you up. I really appreciate that kind of Pokemon in this region. Next up, we've got our regional bug, which is Pushect. It's a bug ground type. Love a good bug ground type. I feel like bug ground type is a very underutilized type combo. The only one I can, that comes to mind right now is Ninkata. I'm pretty sure Ninkata is a bug ground type. And then it evolves into bug ghost or bug flying. So, like, it completely gets rid of that bug ground typing. Um, but I really, really like this. Based on a dung beetle called the mud beetle Pokemon. Even though we all know what, <laughs> what it is. Uh, but the dex entry says they are always carrying mud, which they use for many purposes, including nutrition and housing. All the effort makes them very strong and durable. And they very, it looks very much strong, but it looks and durable, but it looks like almost like it's struggling, which I think is really an interesting thing there. It's like, yes, it, you can see it's exerting effort, which is a nice little design detail to show like, hey, though it is strong and durable, it still struggles, you know? Next up, we've got Weevil, which is bug dark type. So like it's a mixture of Weevil and Evil. Great, just great play on words there. He looks very mischievous, very like twisting of the mustache tying you to the train tracks kind of evil going on there but with a weevil and i really like how the little you know nose prong things that uh that weevils have how like we're able to reach and that you can definitely it's definitely doing the little you know mustache twirling kind of thing going on there which is super cool and i really it's very basic but also gets the point across really well and i, I really appreciate that kind of um basicness that like a lot of people like to over design but this one is simple and gets the point across, you know? Next up, we've got Squibble, uh, which is a squirrel plus pebble. It is called the Collector Pokemon, and it collects little rocks in its fur, apparently. So they, uh, it says on the dex entry, they love to picking up stones and pebbles. They will wear their favorites and eat and eat the rest. They get so caught up in this that they will often neglect looking out for predators. Oh, no. Squibble about to get hunted. That's not, <laughs> that's not good. Uh, well, definitely, definitely keep an eye out there, Squibble. Um, it's, it seems like it's going to become like a normal rock type. Actually, I'm pretty sure it does become a normal rock type. So let's continue onward. Next up, we have Ascladrius. It is the evolution to Metachick. It is uh, Asclepius plus Caladrius. I don't know what those two words mean individually. I'm assuming one of them is like the breed or the kind of bird or something like that. <clears throat> Frog in my throat. Anyway, um, it's flying fairy type. It's the healing Pokemon. It's supposed to be based on doctors, it seems like. Um, it says they can diagnose ailments just by fe placing their feelers over a sick, it says a six heart, I think they mean a sick person or a sick Pokemon's heart. Um, they will employ every bit of their power to try and heal them, which I think is really cool because Metachick is all about making people smile and making people feel better internally, um, uh, like, like, like emotionally, and Ascladrius is about making people feel better physically. So it's a really interesting little evolutionary line there. It goes from like kind of more of a therapist role to like a medical doctor role. Which I think is a really cool little, you know, concept there. So, yeah, I really like this line. Metachick and Asclagerius is a really good line. Next up, we have Beetslay, which is bug ground. It is the wheeled bug Pokemon. It's Beetle plus Clay. I just think this is so cool. Like, it's a little, little, like, dung beetle that turned into a car. <laughs> it's just like, it's like, I am speed. Um, it does not evolve further. It says it has a new... Ability called off-road that the speed increases when a terrain is active. That's interesting. So it's like about like off-roading and like tough like like going through the mud and stuff like that because it's got these like wheels that are made of mud, so you can just you know carry through that pretty easily. That's super interesting, and it and it kind of has like a like almost a military kind of aesthetic to it as well. Next up, we have We Vicious, and it's gone full tie it to the train tracks kind of evil he's like yes yeah, so i will get you i'll get you like very very much so evil the traditional depiction of evil i mean dark type is evil type in japan so this dark type very much fits that you know that evilness and to the nth degree next up we have jamatli which i'm pretty sure is the evolution of squibble and now they have full-on crystals and stuff in their tail very much serious like it looks like it's it, it, it kind of has that like the patternation like the patternation what even is that word the pattern the patterning what is the correct word? i don't even know well it has a really cool pattern and it kind of reminds me of like giant flying scrolls and stuff i don't know if you know those like they have really unique pattern um to the scroll and that kind of gives me that same aesthetic um it's a normal rock type which i kind of predicted would happen 
The Dex entry says once they evolve, they drop plain stones and start collecting precious stones and crystals. As a result, their, became, their fur became incredibly colorful. They fire beams at anyone that tries to steal their gem. Yeah, this dude's shoot, certainly shooting off some power gems. You can just flick his tail and there's a power gem for you. So, yeah, Jamatli. I don't know what Motley means in terms of squirrels, but I'm very interested. Next up, we have our first regional variant, which is a regional weasel. I'm assuming it would be Medizian. Medizian weasel. It's a pure flying type, got that tails prower, miles prower, tails thing going on there with the spinning tails, which I really think is cool. And I love the coloration on it. It going like the black, blue, and white with the little accent of yellow in there is very, very interesting. And like the the uh the like markings look like less like um what's the word? Whiskers. And they look more like almost like vents, like in like, like an aircraft, like aircraft vents, or like uh, what's the word, turbine. In a way, I don't know, it's a little bit of a stretch there, but I like how they turned the little thing around its neck, and it's it's more of an, like, an inflation device to keep them afloat, like like a filled-up helium bloom, uh, which I just think is so cool. And this whole, like, the, the transition from water to flying type feels so natural in such an interesting way. And maybe it's because I, you know, I like tails, you know, but this just kind of gives me that kind of same vibe. Next we have a Monkid, which is a normal-type monkey, um, it is the carefree Pokemon. The Dex entry says it's curious and carefree. They try to befriend every Pokemon in the forest. It has a special interest in the bug types that live in the trees. It's a really interesting little tidbit there because it's kind of a reference to monkeys and how they like pick bugs and different little bits out of each other's fur and eat them um, to cl clean each other. I think that's such a unique little concept there. It's got these like little stripes on the side. Um, like I, I know what this turns into, so I'm not going to spoil it for you. But these got these little stripes on the side that are like very like, it leads into the next part very well. Um, it's I like its little mask because it adds a little bit of dimension. You know, if you took away that mask, it kind of just looked like a normal monkey. But like that little mask gives it almost gives me Joltik vibes in a way. Like it kind of reminds me of Joltik's face. If that's I don't know if that's weird, but anyway, on to the next. Next up, we've got Turnipod, which is grass ground type. It is Turnip plus Cephalopod. And it's giving me, like, Deku Sprout freaking Octo Rock vibes. And I love it so much. Just a little flipped upside down tournament turnip that's also, like, like an, a little octopus squid thing. It's freaking adorable. It's really adorable. And I, I just, I honestly, super, I don't know how to explain it. It just is overwhelmingly cute. So next up, we have Temper Troll, which has two forms. It's first it has the fiery form, and then it has... The icy form. Um, so we'll we'll stick with the fiery form for now. But uh, in the dex entries, it says the fiery form. Temper trolls are very hot headed, no duh, and don't plan their pranks at all. They get don't get along with icy form temper trolls uh, as they find them to be too haughty. Um, and then the icy form don't get along with the fire form because they find them to be too reckless. So let's look at the uh, the icy form here. So I like this kind of duality going on here. This you can definitely see the different like. This is very, the, the ice is very structured, very sharp angles, no like flow to it. Whereas this one has very like, it's very a little bit more spiky and flowy like fire um, in its design. And the, it's very interesting. And like, it's, it's also red, which is like bright and passionate and colorful. Whereas white is very solemn and peaceful. And, you know, you know, I, I think that's really an interesting um, little juxtaposition there. So I can't wait to see, I'm pretty sure this thing evolves, right? I, I might not, I might be wrong, but I'm pretty sure this thing evolves. Next up, we have Medizian Floatzel, pure pure flying type. And y'all know how I feel about Floatzel. If you watch my top five best and worst Pokemon of Sinnoh video, it's one of my worst. Um, I don't like Floatzel's design at all. I'm not a fan of Floatzel at all. But Ma uh, Medizian Floatzel just is literal perfection. Like, it took the awkwardness of Floatzel, that I, the things that I don't like about Floatzel, and transferred it into working into a, a different typing, and it works so well. Like, the fluffy, poofy little, like, life raft thing it has turns into this more blimpy kind of aspect. Like, it, it transfers so well over, and, like, its little fins are, like, you know, guiding wings. And it's, a, it's just a little, this blimp Pokemon that's so perfect. It's just it literally so perfect. It's, it's the, it takes that awkwardness of Floatzel, like I said, and just works it into this amazing flying type concept i'm just like i i was i truly do not like floatzel it's one of my least favorite pokemon um and so to see floatzel in this aspect really like kind of renews my love 
of uh, of like floatzel. Like I just want this to be the real floatzel. I don't want the other floatzel we have. This is the real floatzel. Um, so the dex entry says floatzel's body is filled with gas, but makes it very hard for them to land. They love being up in the air though, and are very helpful in carrying large packages between cities. So they're kind of a parcel delivery service, which I think is really cool. Their abilities are Cloud9 and Aerial 8, which I think are just such clever abilities. Like, Cloud9, obviously, reference to it being up in the clouds. Super cool. I I, I I needed to harp on this a little bit because you guys know how I feel about Floatzel, so. Next up, we have Arachnape. Yup, this is what Monkid evolves into, and this is kind of what I was leading into. It's a literal spider monkey. It's a monkey spider. It's just, it literally has... <laughs> It has multiple arms, like it's got a, it's got a stinger even, and it's a normal bug type, which is such a unique take on a normal bug type. Uh, this is actually one of the first Pokemon that uh, Med is shared with me when we first started talking, and I have such a love for it and such a reference for it because it's just so different than anything I've ever seen. And it doesn't, it, to me, it might feel weird to some, but it, to me, it just really doesn't feel like awkward like it feels really natural of an idea of a literal spider monkey like a, a, a monkey like spider like spider-man like more man spider from the marvel comics mixed with a monkey like it just i don't know it just fits so well and it's got this new ability called buzz off which gives which I, for one love the pun uh for two it gives priority to bug moves when the hp uh, pokemon's hp is full so if you're like sitting there at full hp and you want to just get a quick shot in with a nice bug type move uh, bug buzz or something. I don't know. I don't, what is it? It's a it's a it's a tide worth special. It's a mixed attacker. So this thing could do some really good damage. I think I, I, I don't know. I don't mean to harp on this too much, but this is one of them, uh, the mods that has a special place in my heart. Next up, we have tuber tickle. So it's uh, it's tentacle plus tuber, which is, you know, potatoes, those kind of root vegetables. It's a grass ground type continuing and it's just a full on octopus. Now it went from like the like cutesy uh, Deku rock to rock thing to like full-on like actual um octopus vibes and the roots um th or the tentacles being roots such a good little design aesthetic can i say like like you can and like the turnip head it, it all just fits really together really well i have such like i don't know Med Medes does a really good job with their mons and like their ideas and honestly there's some mons that I've like looked at in the past and I've uh, and I didn't realize how in-depth they were until I've been taking a look at them that's why it's fun to have it be a region review because sometimes it's a region review where I'm reacting to stuff but this one's fun because it's a region I'm like actually reviewing and getting to learn more about through a little bit more of a closer inspection. Next up we have Farin Hell, which is a fire ice type it is a combination of both temper trolls it's you know Todoroki incarnate um, and it very much gives me that like feeling of like someone took as like the aspects of ice form or, or icy form and fiery form and, like grafted them onto this third bond kind of like Omni slash Omega Mon um, where it's like the Grey Mon and the where uh, the, the Guru Mon uh, kind of come together as the fists of it it kind of gives me that same thing like there was this third black Mon that like absorbed into it Kind of a weird thought process, but that's the vibe it gives me. It also gives me the vibe of um, freaking uh, the devil from Cuphead. Kind of gives me that same energy to it. But uh, anyway, the dex entry says, Farron Hell has honed both hot and cold techniques. You know, Todoroki who. And now command hordes uh, command hordes of temper trolls to do its bidding. When they are bored, they pitch fiery and icy forms against each other. Oh my gosh, this dude is a right troublemaker. Like, seriously got that devilish energy to it and i love that and I, f I feel like it definitely could learn some like dark type moves in there too um it has a new ability called ignite um which is essentially refrigerate but for fire type so normal type moves become fire type which is a really cool move and the, and the you know those boot moves get boosted a little i think that's super cool and it's like got an ignite plus refrigerate are its abilities and it also has anger point or analytic so there's like four possible abilities kind of crazy i don't know if the pokemon would do that but i still think it's a really interesting concept in general next up we have flare Raff, and this thing's just darling it's just so cute like i love the star fire aesthetic we have it with no bear we also have it with flare Raff, but the pattern just works so well on a giraffe pokemon and also like the little horns turning into fire stars it's just perfect this thing's so cute and also its tail i just realized is like a oh like a like a bomb like a wick would you call that like a wick like the rope to the bomb is that called a wick i don't i don't freaking know Next up, we've got Raptike. It is the Gust Pokemon. It's a flying type. I'm pretty sure this is supposed to be based on Harpies. 
Um, which is kind of cool, like, to see a bird Pokemon take on more of a humanistic, anthropomorphic form. Um, like, I guess that we have that with uh, Blaziken, but... Like, I don't think, like, uh, like a, like a regional bird has really done that. Unless I'm fail, it's, unless my memory's failing me. I'm pretty sure, like, Torchic, um, Combusken, and Blaziken are the only ones that have that true anthropomorphic nature. Um, and they're a starter Pokemon, so it's kind of, like, a given, um, at this point for a certain Pokemon to be anthropomorphic. But, and, anyway, cool little Harpy Pokemon. Next up, we have Hatashiku, which is the regional Pika clone. It is electric grass type, which is just... I love, I love it when people use those, like, in my head, the Rotom forms don't count as a representation of that type combination. Like, that's just another form of Rotom. Like, I want true, dedicated electric fire types, electric grass types, electric ice types. I want, I want all of those to be actually represented by other Pokemon, other than just a form for a Pokemon. And so this is really cool, and so... It, uh, it is a mixture of Hata Nezumi, which is a vole in Japanese, and then Shiku Shiku, which means sneezing. Uh, it's an onomatopoeia for sneezing in Japanese, which, you know, it keeps that trend of uh, Pika clones' names being Japanese, and it does it so well, like a little sneezy vole. And so uh, let's read its dex entry. It says, they generate pollen, which makes them sneeze, and they spread it even more. The pollen cannot provoke, uh, cannot, cannot only provoke allergies, but also little jolts of electricity as well. So these little pollen spores have little of energy i don't know how to describe it but little you know little bolts little how do i even describe it little jolts of energy in them which is super fun because like you just kind of like it does make your nose like tingle it kind of like you know electricity like that tingly sensation so it's a very good combination a good mixture and i like how its tail is like a, a plant that releases those spores so super clever design next up we have rafagoff which i think is such a fun name it's not the giraffe rig kind of thing to it um, but Rafaga in Spanish means burst, um, so it's like burst draft, and it's just, this thing's wacky in the best way. It's fire fairy type, it's got like fireworks, it's just like, it's like a big firework, like its neck is like one of those long like fireworks that you like shoot off, and like its tail is the wick to that firework, like its head is about to like burst off, kind of like Mulan, how he like they pointed the firework and then the avalanche happened, kind of same thing, and it's like horns are just floating fireworks. This thing is so wacky, but I love it. I, I, I truly do. I love this mod. Next up, we got Harspoil. There you go, Harpy. This one is even more anthropomorphic, which I think is almost Uncanny Valley. It's um, it's really interesting. I will admit, it's not my favorite. Um, I like, I really, but I do like that they included a Harpy Pokemon. I feel like Harpies would be really make really cool Pokemon. And this being a Flying Poison type also is really cool because the only Flying Poison type we have is the Zubat line. Make more poison flying types. It's such a cool type combination. Get rid of that ground type weakness, please. So this is cool. And I also just noticed something that I actually find I really this actually is very endearing to me. Its nose and its little quill on the back form like a little pen. That's so cool. I really like that. Next we've got Puchato, uh, which is it's got a daydream form in another form, uh, a nightmare form I assume. Um, and so you can see it's got a little shadow underneath there. It kind of looks like a cat. Um, but I, it, I'm interested in this whole, like, it holding this bone in its tail. It almost looks like the tail should be ice cream, but has a bone in it. So I'm very interested. Let's, let's see the uh, nightmare form. Oh, that. Yep. So it's a full-on cat. It's got the fish bone in its mouth. So rather than, like, the leg, like, it, they chewing, like... In cartoons, they always have the cats liking the fish bones, and then, like, the dogs liking, like, the, the beef meat, like, big bones. So that's really interesting and a really fun play on that. And his shadow being a... It's like cat dog, you know? Like, his shadow is a cat, and his, like, true form is a dog. So we got normal ghost type, um, which is a really cool way of doing a normal ghost type, might I add. Like, having two separate forms. Kind of like the electric dark typing with more Morpeko. Though Morpeko isn't really my favorite. But anyway, we'll save that for another day. Next up, we have Munchum, which is an ice dark type, and it's a vampire. Like, <laughs> this, this mod makes me laugh so hard because it's so cute, but based on such a horrific thing as vampires, like, sucking your blood. Like, how did, they, like, they managed to ma perfectly capture the Pokemon feeling of, like, oh, he's friendly. He's getting little tiny fangs, but he's friendly. And, but he's an ice dark type, and he's called the Bite Pokemon. 
Um, the dex entry says its teeth are mo the most sensitive part of its body and uses them to examine everything. It always looks at its reflection to make sure if its hair looks sleek. <laughs> I love the little reference there because freaking vampires can't see themselves in mirrors on some of that. And it's an ice type because, you know, they're, they run ice cold. They're the undead, right? As well as uh, the saying its teeth are the most sensitive part of its body is essentially a reference to sharks. Because sharks, it's like it's putting that whole sharks are misunderstood because sharks bite people out of curiosity to, like, get a feel for them. It's essentially like like touching you, like, hey, what what are you? And so it's essentially putting that same thing onto a vampire, like a baby vampire. It's just so clever. I love it. Next up, we have Low Brawl. It's a fighting-type wolf Pokemon. And it's Lobo and, you know, Spanish for wolf plus brawl. I like the inclusion, uh, the inclusion of um, the Spanish, like... You know, because this is partially Spain inspired, so that that addition of Spanish. I forgot to uh, I forgot also to mention that Metis is also from Spain, so that's partially why um, this region is based on Spain as well. Um, but I like the little X. You can you know, get that little. Oh, I've been in. I've been through it. But it gives me kind of almost a fighting dark type vibe, like just coloration and like the little scar. You know, like kind of gives me that same thing. Um, but its text entry says it will challenge any Pokemon that crosses its territory. Deep down, it has a noble heart, and it carries a, a, it's carried away by instinct. It becomes oddly calm, staring at the moon, like most dogs howling at the moon, you know? Next up, we have Quilebrut, which is based on the Quilebre, and, you know, the name is, as well as the design, and it's Brute. Uh, it's a pure dragon type. Um, from what I understand, actually, the, um, the first gym leader uses this. Um, as their only Pokemon, they use only a Quilebrut, so it's supposed to be like a big challenge for you because, um, as you can see on its wings, it's got fire, water, and grass, because it's kind of almost to like mock you in a way, like, hey, you know, all these three things you have at your disposal, but none of them will work against me, which I find is really interesting. Um, the Dex entry says, it is a real plague in Metis, terrorizing entire villages at a time. Defeating one will earn the beginners the respect of their peers, and they will be considered seasoned trainers. Um, the story of the Quelebre is actually really interesting, um, but you should definitely look it up. It's, it's, I'm not going to go into full detail here, but it's a really cool story. Um, they have a really big um, thing about it in Spain, like this whole celebration um, of, uh, surrounded by this specific kind of dragon. But anyway, continuing on. Next up, we've got Vladinx, which is Vlad plus Jinx, um, which is interesting because it's like supposed to be like, it, it, it kind of is almost like the opposite of Jinx, the Pokemon, but it's supposed to be like Jinx as in like putting a Jinx on you. But Jinx is usually spelled with an I, so it's kind of like... A, 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 a lack of a better term, bastardization of the word in general. But Vampire, Ice Dark type, still managed to make it friendly, still managed to make it feel like a friend Pokemon. Still creepy, but like still at the same time, like, oh yeah, I could see myself using that as a Pokemon. Next up, we've got Celine Obo. It's, so it's uh, Celine plus Lobo. I'm pretty sure Celine is like an, uh, a moon goddess, if I'm not. not mistaken i'm pretty sure um that's fighting fairy type so fairy being based on the moon in this case so it's very like calming it's almost psychic type in a way it's very like calm um but in the dex entry it says under the influence of the full moon it's mastered its wild instinct to become more calm and collected uh selenobo harnesses the power of moonlight to imbue its kicks and punches with magical force very very cool very anime in a way like very like like i don't know like almost red 13 from final fantasy uh from final fantasy 7 kind of that same kind of aesthetic to it next up we have tuatero which is a really clever wordplay it's tuatara plus taro tuatara being a kind of lizard um it is the clairvoyant pokemon it is psychic dragon type and i just love this you kind of got that mysticism that crystal ball you know uh psychic kind of like not psychic typing but like psychic as in like like a medium um, and I think that's really cool. Um, Tuatero, it says on the dex entry, uh, Tuatero's third eye not only allows it to see into the future, but also allows gifted seers to peer into it and get a glimpses too. When threatened, it unleashes powerful psychic power. So this is kind of like the Tuatero are like the partner Pokemon of the mediums and like kind of, uh, psychics of the Metis region, which I find really cool. I like, I like imagining occupations with certain Pokemon. It makes me really imagine the world that they're going for just a little bit better. Next up, we've got Bronzely, which is a mixture of bronze and athlete, and it's a bronze Olympic medal mixed with an Olympian, which is just so good. I love this 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 uh, um, concept because it's, it's very, like, it, 
very human. Like it's I love I like object Pokemon that but managed to make them feel like anthropomorphic in a way. I've used anthropomorphic a lot, but that's the word of the day, anthropomorphic. That's what it feels like to me. It's very, very much that. And like I love that. Like some certain object object Pokemon are just object Pokemon, but when you can make them feel like almost human-esque, I think is really cool. Next up, we've got Silvastic, which uh, which is a mixture of silver plus gymnastics, and it's the silver. It's the silver trophy. Uh, instead of a medal, it's a trophy, and <laughs> it's just so fun. You can see it's very like supposed to be like very nimble. You kind of see like it's got the like the ribbon twirling kind of thing going on there. Very, very much. The mid stage is very much supposed to be like the. Um, what, the first stage was like running. This one is very much the elegance of gymnastics and that kind of stuff, um, which is really cool that they're progressing that not only in in like the fact that it's progressing from a bronze medal to a trophy, but progressing the type of of Olympic, um, you know, uh, sport that they're doing. And finally, we've got Gold Dictor, which is gold plus Victor. And this dude just got, you know, he's Macho Man, all about the heavy lifting, probably like the 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 physical categories of kind of stuff like that. Um, and it's it's really cool. It's it's giving me like Hercules vibes in that way. Um, it's very much supposed to be that like that like champion, that like big brooding champion, you know, that you imagine. So I think it's really cool. Steel fighting type is also just such a fun combination we haven't seen since Lucario. I'm pretty sure. Am I wrong there? I'm pretty sure it's only Lucario that has that typing. So this take on a steel fighting type is very interesting. Next up, it looks like we have our professor for the region, Doctor Carob or Carob. Um, it's the resident researcher in the Medes region. He is in charge of overseeing the start of the journey of many trainers. He's also best friends and former co-students with the re with the reigning champion. So he's really well connected. Uh, he's very hands-on and loves exploring every bit of the region to study how Pokemon relate to their environment. You can see he brought along his Muppy um, that he probably he met in one of the field trips, I believe. Yeah, Muppy is a new Pokemon that we'll see in just a second. Next up, we have the Rotom Compass. Um, this is a recently developed uh, item and exclusive to the Metas region. Metas is a long story of navigation and cartography, obviously kind of a reference to, you know, the Mediterranean. You can see all of that kind of thing, go uh, the kind of stuff going on in the background. So it's very much that, um, kind of vibe to it, that, 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 that vibe of exploration and stuff like that. So this is kind of compounding on that. Um, it's still a novelty in the region. So Professor Carib only gives it to new trainers he trusts to use it well. Amazed with how eager for adventures the newcomers Aura and De Deniz are. I didn't even read the Protag's names. Sorry. Um, he gave each a Rotom Compass along with their new starter Pokemon. So this is really cool. Like I said, very much into that um, that exploration exploration uh, of the region that I very much like that vibe. Feels very adventurous, you know, that the Odyssey kind of vibes to it. Next up, we have Cell Luzu, which is Sail plus Luzu. I'm pretty sure Luzu is a kind of boat. So it's like a boat fish Pokemon, which is so cool. And honestly, it remind it almost feels like an evolution to Bruxish with its coloration. Like I could see Bruxish turning into this very long, elegant looking thing. Not to say that the you know, necessarily the, you know, concepts mix very well together, but this is some the kind of the direction I could see if we ever did get a Bruxish evolution. Not that we would, because statistically, you know, it has the stats for no, no evolution. Anyway, sorry, getting into semantics here. This Pokemon is really cool. It's just a boat. It's like a certain kind of boat, but mixed with a fish, which I just find super fun. Next up, we've got Pantheek, which is the evolution to our grass starter, Lee Cub. Um, and uh, yeah, the starters were, were kind of far out. Some people, you've noticed in some of these region reviews, some people immediately put the starters at the beginning of the whole evolutionary line. Some wait a little bit. Uh, Meta's waited a little bit to kind of build up the anticipation um, of, of these starters. But here we have Pantheek. It's got more of a wooden mask now, which I think is really cool. I think wood, I would love to be incorporated into more grass type designs. I feel like we have wood incorporated into like Sudowoodo, who's a rock type, then Trevenant and Phantom. But like, I'd really love to see it incorporated in, uh, in different kind of ways and more interesting designs. Um, I think they kind of they kind of have it in uh, Rillaboom too with his drum set. So there's that, I suppose. Um, but anyway, I like the bands around its arms and uh, or I should arms, but its uh, legs, front legs and back back paws. Um, and generally, it just looks like a very interesting. Like I'm, I like I kind of know what the evolutions have uh, looks like. I haven't seen it in a long time. Um, and you, as you can see, like it went from two little leaves on its tail to three, which I find also interesting. And its little leaf turned into like a little hairstyle, like a little you know Simba kind of thing going on there, which I which I think is really cool. Next up, we have Ursaster, which is a mixture of Ursus, which is bear in Latin, and Aster, which is star in Latin. 
I love the Latin mixed in there, uh, but it all manages to come to a, a word that just sounds very English to me. And it almost sounds like it's like almost like disaster, but like mixed with Ur like Ursa. That's so anyway, it's supposed to be based on uh, the like Ursa co like constellations. I'm pretty sure there's Ursa, Ursa Minor and Ursa Major. Um, so it's kind of based on that. Um, and I just love how it continues this whole star aesthetic. It's got a, like a little constellation. I'm pretty sure that's Big Dipper on its little um, chest there with the little star. It almost looks like a sash. And it's so simple. It's so effective and so cute. Like this middle stage is, this is one of my favorite middle stages um, out of the three. And, and and like one of the middle, favorite middle stages I've seen so far because it's just so simple and so effective. I said this already, but it is very simple and effective, which I love. Next up, we've got Spongent. Um, which is a mixture of sponge and absorbent. This dude has like little shields now, like little almost fists or shields. Um, they use their shield-like sponge, oh, it's the also shield. Shield-like sponges to absorb large amounts of water and expel them with extreme pressure. I love that idea. Do you ever like sit, like you ever had like a sponge where like, let's say you're doing the dishes. Sometimes you just like soak up the thing and then pull it up and then you let it go. Like it's just something satisfying about that. And that's kind of what this vibe gives me. It's like that satisfyingness of like, the like but it's it's using it in a unique way like the squeezing and then ex, like expelling of uh, of water which is really interesting like absorbing it and expelling it is really cool as a concept for a, a pokemon not only not just like a pokemon in general but also a starter pokemon i like i like how it's almost it almost feels like kind of like a clown thing going on with a little thing so i'm interested to see where this goes i'm pretty sure i remember where this goes but it's been a minute since i've seen the starters so we'll see next up we have medizian loudred which is normal steel type it's straight up got trumpets and tuba like like all those you know horn instruments mixed in rather than being like um like speakers they're actual manifestations of instruments um because of that steel typing it like adds that like that physical physicality of the instruments which i think is super fun and clever um, and, uh, the next entry says, diet changes made Loudra develop a metal coating. Not sure what it's eating to give it steel body, but I want some, I want, I want to have a hard body. Um, sorry. Since they created sounds and melodies unknown to Loudred in other regions, they challenged each other to create better music. I think that's super fun of a clever concept. It's just like, kind of like a jam, like a jam sesh, like the, the other Loudred, let's say like Hawinian. Loudred and then the Medizian Loudred challenge each other to and like try and build off each other to make more an awesome a more awesome sound together like a jam like a jam session with musicians is it's such a fun and clever concept next up we've got Cricketune uh Medizian form Cricketune it is bug ghost type and I love how they've hammed up like the violin aesthetic to it and made it like thinner and sleeker like kind of like a violin to a viola situation. It's very thin and sleek and ghostly. Um, so the Dex entry says that Cricketune and Medes tuned their musical abilities around graveyards, and the spiritual energy around them turned them into ghost types. They sound melancholic even when happy. So that's oh, that's super cool. That's really cool. I, I really like. I like this. And it, um, for the record, this and um, the Medizian Loudred have a new move called Orchestra, which powers up the uh, sound based moves. I have a, an ability in um, in Cornera called Orchestrate, which is essentially like um, uh, Refrigerate, but for sound type moves, turns normal to sound type. You know, obviously that was a solid transition. Anyway, it's not enough talking about myself. I love this design. I think it's very elegant and uh, eloquent. Next up, we've got Gorgoral, which is <laughs> such a fun name to say, Gorgoral. Um, it's a mixture of Gorgonia and Coral. I'm not sure what a Gorgonia is, but I assume it's like gorgon like a like a gorgon so it's a poison rock type um obviously based on coral but i'm just interested where the poison typing comes in um let's see they are very calm and relaxed but they also care about their environment when threatened just scratching their horns can send a whale lord howling in pain broken horns become prized items okay so i guess it's I, there are certain kinds of coral that i guess are toxic I'm pretty sure I've heard about that, but that's it's, it's ringing a bell. But I think that's really interesting. It's a different take on a coral Pokemon rather than just making it a rock water type. You made it a rock poison type, which I think it's fun that like things that are aquatic in nature can also be made into different Pokemon that aren't necessarily aquatic in nature. Um, so I just I think that's super interesting, and I, I really I really like this as a coral Pokemon. It's very pleasing to look at, and I like the the way like the the flow of all of the like it almost looks like a fancy headdress in a way. <laughs> Next up, we have Medizian X-Cloud, 
This thing just makes me laugh. It's so ridiculous in the best way. Like, it has a giant tuba that comes from its face. Like, this. it's just crazy. I love it. And it's got this, like, whole, like, organ thing going on with its head. It's just awesome. And I, I'm realizing now it's got, like, kind of, like, got, like, a band uniform going on there. Like, a marching band uniform. Um, which is... <sighs> this thing is just... It's so over the top. It's so extra, and I love it. Next up, we've got Cricka March, which, yes, Cricketune evolves in this region. Uh, it is a bug ghost type still, and it's expanded to be, even, like, kind of even bigger. It's more, like, it kind of gives me, like, bass, like a, like a, a stand-up bass uh, vibe to it. And it just expands on the things that I liked about Cricketune. Um, that, 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 like, elegance and eloquence. And it's got, like, this cape. It's, like, flowy, see-through cape, which is so cool. And I like how it's got the little tuning knobs on its nose. They almost look like piercings in a way. Um, I'd like to see the dex entry. It is said that Cricket March will compose a beautiful, heartbreaking piece when their beloved trainer passes away. Oh, when the when a, the form of uh, when they form a choir with Cricketune, they can make the spirits cry. Wow, that's that's like chilling in like a really beautiful way. I really like that. That 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 made me feel something. And I love when Pokemon, like Fake Mon especially, make me do that. They make me feel something. Also, I just realized that its little hands, like, are the bowstring, like the strings. Yeah, that's it's great, great, excellent. Next up, we've got Cone Slime, Poison Steel type. That's another new type combination. Um, it's Cone Snail plus Slime. Pretty simple. I like. I I, so I often like sometimes that Pokemon just throw two words together. You know, like Talon Flame. Cone slime. It's a slime with cone. You know, like I, sometimes it's it's just simple and effective. You know, I, I that's simple and effective and anthropomorphic. Those are the the words of this video today. Anyway, Dexentry. It's passionate about defending the reefs they live in. They're quick to anger and lash out uh, about their lash out their poisonous harpoons. Oh yeah, the hands are like harpoons. I wonder if one hand's like a harpoon and the other's normal, or if they're both like that, and or like they can transform. I don't know. Anyway, uh, I. If treated correctly, their venom can be used as a prized dye. That's cool. Um, it does not uh, evolve further. I like these single stage mons. Cone Slime, uh, Gorgoral, also really good. I think they're supposed to be... No, they're actually... No, they're not exclusive. I thought they were supposed to be exclusives. But they both... They make sense. They kind of counteract each other. Like, Cone Slime defends the Gorgoral in a way, you know? Next up, we've got Muppy, which we saw earlier. It is Mud plus Puppy. Ground type. Um, yeah, Muppy loves to play in the mud. Which apparently not only makes them happy, but also raises its vitality and strength. Just a clever little concept. You know, just a clever little, oh yeah, uh, you know, dogs like to play in the mud. Make them, you know, a mud puppy, muppy. And I just like how its pattern on its little toes, the little mud patterns along its body and on its, like, eyes. It's just super cute, adorable. And it looks like a little sad. And when it's just a little sad boy, it just makes the, just, inst you know, a little bit more cute. Next up, we've got Soylinx. Uh, which is also ground type. We've got a ground type cat and a ground type dog. We also have a dog with a cat shadow. So the dog and cat parallels are really strong in this region. Um, anyway, I like the name Soylinx. Works out really well. Um, Dexentry says having hunted, having been hunting down. Oh jeez, having been hunted down for their rich pelt and their habitats reduced, they are now very shy and will try to blend in with the ground. Perfect. Lynx is this is a, probably uh, a reference to the Iberian lynx of Spain, uh, one of the most iconic animals from that region, and I like it's it's got like a rocky texture to it. I almost would think it's a rock type over a ground type. Um, to me personally, I think I would have made um, it a rock type, um, and like because it just that, that 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 vibe it gives me that vibe. Honestly, fun fact: I did make a rock type lynx in Cornera, so. There's me speaking from my bias there, but it's still a really solid mod. Personally, I probably would have made it a rock type. That's just my opinion, though. You know, whatever. Next up, we've got the Mineral Stone, which uh, is an item that used to evolve certain ground, rock, and steel type Pokemon. Um, the first to evolve with it are Muppy and Soylinx. So I, I'm assuming we'll probably see that shortly. Next up, we've got Kanesith, um, which is the Fey Dog Pokemon. And yes, it is the evolution to Muppy. It is a ground. Fairy type. Uh, Canisith is based on Canid plus the Kusith, um, which is a, a famous uh, bit of um, mythology. Um, I'm pretty sure it's from. Oh gosh. I think it's Scotland? No? I can't remember off the top of my head, but I'm pretty sure it's Scottish or Gaelic or Celtic in, in origin. 
Um, Kanith, uh, Kanisith can be seen running free in the wild. The soil it touches becomes rich in nutrients, uh, and the Pokemon around become happier. So I think this is interesting. So to me, it's it's interesting because like the coloration and even the tail lead me to feel like oh grass ground type, but I like how it went for the grass fairy type instead because it changes up what a fairy type can be because a fairy type doesn't always necessarily need like it en it enriches the soil it doesn't necessarily make plants go but it enriches the soil with nutrients that's very like fairy lights life bringing that to life and that and it's also based on like a legend a mythology so that fairy type makes sense even though you kind of feel like it's a grass type it, it, it you know subverts expectations in that way next up is wrestling and it's a ground fighting type so we have a ground fairy and a ground fighting this makes a little bit more sense to me. Actually, you know what? After seeing this, I kind of take back what I said earlier. I like the ground fairy, ground fighting counterpart kind of thing going on there. Um, and if, especially because fairy type is strong against fighting type and cats, you know, cats and dogs. Dogs are always, you know, the ones chasing the cats. Kind of that thing. Um, wrestling plus links. Wrestling's golden. Golden name, uh, name there. It is called the survival Pokemon. They fight tooth and nail for survival of their species. Their camouflage fur... And Deadly Claws are their biggest assets. Um, and yeah, these are both evolved via the Mineral Stone, which I think is super cool. Its face is really intimidating. You know, just taking a look at the design real quick. Its face is really intimidating. It's got this, cam like, I like the camouflage aesthetic it has to it. Like, it, it expands upon that, um, the thing that was already there with Soylinx, um, but makes it even more, like, traditional camouflage, you know? Next up, we have the Navi Ball, which I think this design is so cool. Like a compass on the front of a Pokeball. Very cool design aesthetic. But uh, it says it, the Navi, the, or Navi, not Navi. Oh, God. Hey, listen. The Navi Ball was developed in the Metas region to cater to the abundance and love for water and flying type Pokemon who always help the seafaring people of Metas sailing the blue seas. It's so cool. It, it says it has a 3.5 uh, times chance of catching water um, and flying Pokemon. I assume that means like a three times... The 3.5 times chance on top of the Pokeball is what I'm assuming it means. Um, and I just think it's so cool. Like, the level of adventuring, like, the sailing the open seas, very, like, explorative nature of this region really gets me. And especially, like, you can really feel it in the, like, the background, too. Like, the maps and the compasses and ships and, like, that, that classic kind of map aesthetic to it really like this whole region very much feels like it's a, like, got this sense of whimsy and adventure to it you know next up we got lackerel it's just a water type you know fish cute little fish it's got, i think it's supposed to be like a mixture of lackey this is lack and mackerel so uh dex entry says many schools populate the seas of the metas region making them a common site they try to hard to stand out within the group honestly i feel like the normal type would have fit on this well like a water type because it's just it's a very simple design like it's a very simple fish you know pure water type but i think the fact that it's trying to stand out it is so regular it's so common that the normal type would have fit on that as well that's personal opinion next up we have shellag which is a water ghost type and it actually evolves from lacquerel using a dawn stone um uh but they are it's a mixture of uh shell plus sea hag so this is based on all kinds of sea hag and it's got little design parts from a bunch of different Pokemon. You got Cloyster, you got Shelder, you've got, um, uh, what was it called? Cone Slime in there. You've got Sloking, you've got Oshawott and Duwat in there. And I'm, there's pro I think there's one more that I, it's, it's a little bit more broken up than what I'm used to, uh, or than what I'm like capable of kind of figuring out, but it, it is, it is another water Pokemon and I can't put my finger on what Clamperl maybe. Uh, I don't know, but it's got all these kinds of shells and, and, uh, different Pokemon in there. Um, the dex entry says they use occult powers to crack open the shells of Pokemon and absorb their souls. They wear their pieces as prizes. Oh gosh, all of these poor Pokemon. Look at them all. Poor things. Oh my gosh. Shell egg coming, coming in clutch trying to terrify everyone. My gosh. Next up, we got Finmate, which is a water fighting type. <laughs> this sorry, of this, this gives me a hundred percent SpongeBob energy that I literally cannot. Like, literally, I just imagine this dude walking into the Salty Spittoon. Like, that's... The, <laughs> literally, that's just the vibe I get from it. It's a good design, but, but I can't help but feel that way about it, you know? Next up, we've got Cycloder, which is green team. They also have a red team. Um, not much of a difference there, aside from coloration, it seems. 
Um, but it's so cool. It's a steel type, like, uh, it's supposed to be, like, um, a satyr. But it's also kind of got a centaur thing going on there, where, like, the wheel equals its legs, even though the legs are attached to the wheel. It's so interesting, and its horns are handlebars. Such a clever concept. Next up, we've got Medizian Elgium, and it's ground psychic type now, and it's based on pharaohs, because, you know, Egypt is in that kind of Mediterranean era, uh, era, area. Um, and so the text entry says there is evidence that Elgium had appeared in Medes thousands of years ago, much earlier than any sightings of uh, Elgium in New Nova or other regions. They live next to ancient monuments. This is, of course, a reference to ancient aliens. The theories about aliens coming and helping and building the pyramids, because Elgium and Behem are both based on, you know, that, uh, the, the aliens and stuff like that. So I think it's super interesting that, that, that like, they, they combine the concepts. It really works well. I don't know if the pattern's different on its head, but I kind of feel like the pattern is different on its head. I'm not sure. Next up, we've got Eldegoss, uh, a Medesian Eldegoss. Um, so it seems like Goss of Flora doesn't get an actual, like, um, you know, regional form itself, but this one is grass steel type, and it's called the Cotton Cactus Pokemon, um, and I think it's really cool to, like, have that steel type be incorporated as, um, little spikes, and, like, little accents on its eyebrows, and the little jewel on its thing. We have, a uh, water, or, water, grass poison type, uh, Corneran, Eldegoss, and Gossiflora in our region, and it's fun, because I actually shared that, we shared our little Eldegosses with each other, which was, uh, super fun. Uh, but its dex entry says, Blown away to an arid area, Eldegoss and Medes adapted to their new life by absorbing minerals in the soil soil and developing sharp needles. Their cotton is, cotton is finer and harder to collect. Super cool. I really I really enjoy this concept a lot. It's just just a solid, solid you know, regional form. Next up, we've got Cyclotar, and it is a mixture of Cycle and Centaur. Yes, so cool. I love it so much. It's literally a centaur bicycle. It's a centarsicle. I, you, you know, like it's, 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 I don't know. It's just great. It's all around great. Looks speedy. I like the lightning bolt elements of it without it being electric type because, you know, there are sometimes you want a sick paint job and that's, and that's what this is. It's just a sick paint job. I like to see that we have the red team as well. Um, I think they might be the uh, yes, you can see that there's the height here as well. I, I haven't been paying attention to some of these, but I, th I just think in general it's a really, really unique concept and adding, like, the handlebars as, as like, horns to and a helmet. The whole thing just comes together really cool. I just noticed that its tail is the bike seat, and that's so good. This is Go-Goat. This is Go-Goat to the extreme, you know? <laughs> Next up, we've got BHM, Ground Psychic, full-on Pharaoh mode. And I love that they put the little, you know, crown uh around its big head because it fits it fits on it really well it really does this concept matches on behem and tracks really well i like how they have the little eye thing like most egyptian kind of art depicts i think that's ugh, clever concept just a clever concept in general next up we have seth thunder which is based on seth or seth um from uh, egyptian mythology but mixing in the dark typing you know you got set with the jackal kind of thing going on there and i i just I am so in love with the design, this design, as especially as a dark electric type, mixing in those um, those Egyptian art elements and the, the the Egyptian deity elements to it, having like the little makeup be lightning bolts, having that split tail with the electricity, it almost feels like like a like a whip, like it's like crack it, like that just all around, it's really well designed, and I, I it's just super sleek and a, definitely a mine I would use if I were ever to you know play the game of this. Um, the dex entry says that this sleek Pokemon will swiftly deliver powerful electric jabs to anyone it considers a threat. It will summon thunderstorms even in the middle of a desert. That's cool. That's cool. I like that a lot. Um, it's got a really high attack and uh, speed as well, which is really, really fun. I, 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 just, I just genuinely enjoy this mod. Next up, we've got Solyris. It is a mixture of Sol and Papyrus. It's literally ghost paper, ghost psychic type, and it's just... We haven't... Like, we haven't had, like, a genuinely a map or, like, paper Pokemon. I'm pretty sure this, this turns eventually into a map. But I love that its eye is supposed to be, like, kind of like the compass rose. You know, like, it's supposed to be, like, the compass, but it's still an eye. And it's just so... Uh, it's just so clever to me. Like, I, I I know how this thing evolves, and it's just... I, I can't... Okay, let's, let's just move on. Ready? Next, we've got Fanta Scroll. So cool. It's a, literally a scroll. Its eye is developed even further. 
And it's got this, this like, language on it. I'm not sure what the language says, honestly, and the last one, too. It looks like the last one said, like, 100 or something. I can't exactly read what this says. Um, I would love to know what it has on there. It doesn't actually have a dex entry, either, I just realized. Um, but th I, I love that its hands are opening up the scroll. Like, it has hand like, it's, you know, phantasmic arms are holding it up. And it's got this crooked smile of ripped paper. So clever. Uh, it's such a great way of developing, like, oh, a paper goes to a scroll. And I'm pretty sure this evolves one more time. We have Grimordum, the final evolution of this line. And it goes from a piece of paper to a scroll. To a scroll? What is this, Marvel? Sorry. To a book. A grimoire. Which is such a clever way of keeping uh, keeping that line going. And I love that its face is, like, fully on the book. Like, its face is actually fully formed now. It isn't like this... Like, one eye, kind of a mouth, you know, half an eye, kind of a mouth. It's literally fully formed, fully put in there. And it, the and it's, like, got this tongue that's also a bookmark. And then, then, and then, just look at its arms. Its arms are made of letters. So clever. It, sa it says a mini, and I'm not sure what that means. Or a ra mini. I'm not sure what that means, but that's still super cool. Ugh. Gorgeous. Gorgeous idea. Next up, we have some new evolutions. Um, one of these evolutions is actually included in our evolutions of every type, which you'll see it coming up. Uh, but this first one is Baneon. It is a poison type, um, and it's based on Wolfsbane. Uh, it's, it's Bane plus Wolfsbane plus Eon, you know, the Eon trope. Um, and it's a bloom. It's just based on poisonous flowers in general, which is a unique thing uh, to, I think, a poison typing. I think a lot of poison types like to go for the, like, like sludge or like toxic aesthetic. But this is going for a more florally a gentler poison typing with um and, and it's got these flowers and its ears and tail are like little blooms little little tulips almost and i think that's i just generally think that's super fun and unique you know as for for an evolution next up we've got xenion which is the flying type evolution and this one's super cool to me too because it's very simple and it's got this like collar very much like gives me like you know old and you know fashion as well as kind of like clown in it too it's very light and its ears kind of have that uh, like wing aesthetic its tail its legs even have that for me it's a little too much wings i think i would have uh, like not done like maybe the little hair poof or maybe just made the the ears a little bit more implied as wings and maybe the tail leave that alone so that we could have like it's just a little too much wings for me i, I don't like the flying type um evolutions that all go wing i like trying to shoehorn in wing this one does it well i will say it does do it well it's just not my favorite design aesthetic for flying type evolutions granted it is still a solid evolution in my opinion and finally we have marbleon which favorite rock type evolution like it is so good like it's got a kintsugi thing going on there with like the gold in the cracks uh, kintsugi is like the art of um you know reshaping and re uh, putting together old pottery that is broken and putting um, gold in the cracks to make it look you know um, look at even cooler you know and that's kind of got that same thing here with marbleon and like the 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 you know columns like the column ionic i'm pretty sure it's ionic column design of the the you know little collar as and and it's just it's, it's it looks like a perfect little EV statue carved out of out of marble and I just love that and it's also called the sculpture Pokemon and it looks like a sculpture it looks like you could you, you I can imagine vividly going into like the more Grecian era or like area of the Metis region and you just see these dudes sitting on top of like these little you know stone areas and you think they're a statue you walk up to them and they're like one of those static Pokemon you don't realize it's a static Pokemon kind of the vibe I get from this next up we have Gecko, which is Get, like gecko plus egg this is a little gecko and an egg rock type it's very simple design very like just kind of cute just a cute little egg pokemon next up we have julie which is a mixture of jewel plus joey it's literally a kangaroo with a battery backpack and what i think is especially cool about this design a little unique little thing on there its ears have the little connecting parts that connects to the bottom part of the batteries you know those little things you can some things have like the little clamp you put on them to keep the battery in place. It's exactly that. And it's just a little clever design element like that that just makes this mod infinitely better. I do think the idea of a Gengaro with straight up a battery in its back is a little simple, but 
also really cool. I don't know. It's it's so interesting. It's such a weird uh, dynamic there. Next up, we have Medizian Wooper. It is an ice poison type. And when I tell you, these concepts mix together so well. The little things off the side of its head, the head becoming little fractals. That it, 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 It's just... <laughs> I literally love Wooper even more by seeing this. Like, it's so simple. And it, it looks like a little snowman. It looks like a little snowman version of Wooper. That's what it looks like to me, and I love that about it. I mean, the ice poison type, a unique type combination. I do think that this could have been pure ice type and would have been fine, or ice water type and would have been fine, in my opinion. But I, you know, I know this thing evolves. I, I say that way too much. I know this thing evolves. But, it, but I do, and I, 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 I understand it based on that. So next up, we have Lith Armor, which is Lithos plus armor. Um, and it's it turned its egg into like this rock solid armor, which is really an interesting like concept there, like of holding on. It's like it's like holding on to a piece of your childhood and using it as a way to strengthen you, which is a cool really unique concept for a Pokemon. It's rock fighting type, um, which I, I, and it looks like it uses its tail like a sword. They've kind of just started un unincluding the uh, dex entries here, so I'm curious. I can't, I can't get all the details on these ones. I tried to read the dex entries um, uh, to these ones because I think that there's some, um, Metas writes some really interesting and lore um, providing dex entries that I think are interesting. Next up, we've got Kangarome. I love the idea of Ohm. Like, the, like, using Ohm and then mixing Kangaroo in there. Electric Fighting type, another unique type combination. Um, and it's, it's instead of a Joey in its pouch, it's got a, it's got a battery, which is just great. It's just funny, and it's it's just so funny and unique. And it kind of reminds me of uh, Kangaroomon. I'm pretty sure that's what's called Kangaroomon from Digimon. I think that's a thing. I'm pretty sure that's a thing. Sorry if it's not a thing. Digimon fans out there, if there are any of you. Next up, we've got Nutoxire. It's a mixture of Newt plus Toxic plus Quagsire, and it is chilling, pun intended. Like the the rib spikes. Ah, sorry, that like that gets me. Like get like it's one of those things that makes me cringe. Like rib spikes. Ugh. Like it's the like the I said this in a past video. It's like the 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 bone jutsu guy from Naruto. That stuff kind of just makes me go like. Ugh, ugh. But it's a really cool design, and I like how it differs from Quagsire. It looks very non-plus, very like, mm, what do you want kind of vibe to it. And it's it's and I like how they kept like Quagsire gets rid of those these little like I almost want to call them horns on the side of the head. Um, but I like how New Toxire keeps them. Next up, we've got Isolisk. Such oh god, such a clever name, such a freaking clever name. Icy plus Basilisk, Isolisk just works. It just works. Um, it's a dragon ice type, similar to our uh, our uh, regional, you know, our Corneran, uh pseudo legendary uh, ice uh, dragon ice. I don't, is it, did I make it ice dragon or dragon ice? Whatever. Anyway, this is Isolisk, just a cute little basilisk. It almost has like cockatrice cockatrice vibes to it. And I really like. Honestly, the coloration is really pleasing to the eye. The coloration is very very pleasing to the eye, which. I really like, and I like that it's ice, it's got like an icy beak and icy claws, so like the aesthetics of the things it would use to attack, and it's, and it's got claws too, and it's like little wings, it's got little icy claws here, all, everything it would use to attack are all icy, which is really cool. Next up we got Sareo, um, which is a mixture of Brontosaurus and Rayo, which means lightning in Spanish, and also you kind of get the ray in there, like ray gun. Um, this one is a dragon electric type, we got, we have dragon ice and we have dragon electric. I think this is interesting, uh, like very different from uh, other, you know, Brontosaurus kind of mons, like Aurorus, kind of that 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 mon. I'm not sure if that's a Brontosaurus. I'm pretty sure it's a different kind of Saurus. There's a word for that. Is it theropod? I'm probably wrong. Don't come for me, paleontology community, please. Um, but it, it it very much differs. I like how it's like an electric tower. You know those electric towers you see. Um, I'm not sure if they're around the world, but they, we have these electric towers in the U.S. that are like really, and they have the cords attached to them, and that's what this reminds me of. And I think that's super clever, super fun little, you know, electric type Brontosaurus. Next up, we've got Blizzalisk, which is Blizzard plus Basilisk. Also a genius name. Um, just dragon ice type, cockatrice ass Basilisk, crazy mon. Like it's look, it almost looks like its beak is a drill now. Um, and I, I still love it. It just keeps that like icy aesthetic to it where like all the things that would be used to attack are icy. Its tail even now has like this spear on it that's icy. So I really like that little bit of, you know, like 
that, that idea that like everything it uses to attack is reinforced with ice reinforcing that ice typing next up we have Sorumble, rumble which i think is such a good name um a dragon electric type and it is it's exactly it's 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 like those towers it's like the towers with the wires coming off of them and it's very badass i really like the like it just feels so grand so it's just grander kind of like the colossi in uh, in shadow of the colossus that's what that's what it feels like though that like level of grandeur to it next up we've got formidant um and it is formidable plus ant and it is uh formiga is ants in uh catlin so it's also a mixture of formiga in there um and it's a bug dragon type type we have a uh a, a electric rat dragon type and we have uh, a bug dragon type which is super cool i will say i don't necessarily get the dragon type it kind of looks like it's in like the general shape you know of like a western dragon where they're like on all fours and they have the wings and they're it has a general shape but i don't get draconic elements or even arcane like the like like the the magical elements from it at the current moment um, I think this might only evolve. Yeah, it's only evolves from female, um, for female valiants. It seems, um, kind of like a Slazzle thing going on there. But yeah, I guess I, I just don't really see the dragon typing in this. It's not not to be overly critical. I'm trying to be critical of these. I'm just trying to give my honest thoughts, my honest feedback. Um, but yeah, it's just I'm just not like, like I maybe the kingly element to dragons. So maybe something like that. I don't quite know. Next up, we have the final evolutions of our starter Pokemon. We have Xylophon. Which is Xylos, which means wood in Greek, plus Griffin. Yes, this is a full-on, like, panther. Everybody gets mad at me when I say panther. What do you mean by panther? It could be a leopard. It could be the... I mean a panther. You know what I mean. It's a big cat that's black. Just, it's a big black cat. Don't come at me. Um, it's, this This is full-on. It's got this wooden armor. and such a cool aesthetic. Like, the, I like the way they handled Griffin. They didn't just give it straight up wings out of its back, but its wings are more so like an incorporation of its armor and like this extra flair to it. I like it's got like a little hook tail. It got rid of the leaves on its tail, and now it's like just full on wooden armor hook tail. It's a really cool aesthetic, and it, it's interesting because it has like this like mane too, like this grass mane. So it almost like it's like a, a melanistic uh, uh, lion in a, in a way. Next up, we have Rady Astral, and this is a fire steel type. This is my starter Pokemon, 100%. If you don't have to ask me, this is, this is my starter Pokemon. Look at this thing; it's crazy. It, it like the full-on Big Dipper armor has become like linked to the big metal starry claws, and it almost looks like it has like a serpent, like a serpent constellation biting its head. Like it's just so cool in every definition of the word. It's just except for you know it being a fire type, I suppose, but. Fire Steel type as a generally as a typing for a starter is really cool. I like the Grass Dark type um, of Xylophon, but this one Radiastral is just next level for me. Definitely my starter Pokemon. And finally, we have Sponge Bolt, which oh, it's <laughs> this thing is crazy. Like this whole line is so crazy. They they like anthropomorphize sea sponges, <laughs> which is such a crazy thing to do. It kind of looks like one of those like like Mad Max, post-apocalyptic, armored people that like they just scrounged together what they could and made some sick armor out of it and then like like this just went with that. That's what this gives me in the best way. And like the, like I really enjoy the aesthetic of this mod. That being said, yeah, Radiastral is definitely my pick. Next up we've got Willowfish, which is a water fire type. I just I just I think it's just unique. Could have called it you could have actually could have called it Willow Willow Whisk. Like Willow Whisker, actually. Whatever. Said Willow Willow Fish also works though. So. Next up we have Crest Slither, and it's a fire grass type. So we had a water fire type, now we have a fire grass type. It's a you know fire grass type. Snake Pokemon, and I think it's just super interesting. I honestly, to me, the little horns it has, they don't I don't know, it just doesn't match the rest of the design to me. That's just personal opinion. But overall, it like it's a good, it's a good, it's a good mon. It's not my favorite. And next up, we have Sharid, the grass water type. You know, got to complete that trio. And this one I find to be really clever, actually. I really like that they used the cattails, you know, you know, as, as, um, you know, the glizzies as they were. But it looks like a little river next to the shore. Like, when you look at it, it's like this little river flowing down its its side. 
into a shore. I'm not sure if it's supposed to be a duck. It's some kind of aquatic bird. Um, but it's it's just I like I like that little like it, it's almost calming in a way. Weird. I know it's kind of a weird thought, but it's it just does feel like a little calming river with some cattails flowing in the breeze. You know, Tombolt, which is tomb plus ghoul. Um, I don't know where the T comes from. Tumbul. So maybe Tumbol? Tumbult? I don't know. I think this thing's cool. I think this thing's sick. I like the idea of a shadow inhabiting this, like, this monument, you know, and just moving it around, you know? Very, it gives me very much, uh, Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood vibes, you know, the door that they go in and out of and stuff like that. Rock Ghost type, also another unique type combination. It done really well. And, like, gives that one-winged angel Sephiroth kind of thing going on there as well. Next up, we've got Bunsky, an ice type, pure ice type bunny, the skier. It's really cool. It's giving me Sonic vibes, 100%. Very much Sonic vibes, that same level of aesthetic, like the spiky, gotta go fast nature of it. And I just think that's cool. And I think a speedy ice type is really fun. I always I always enjoy like a speedy ice type. A lot of uh, speedy mons tend to be electric types, but seeing a speedy ice type is really, really fun because ice is usually associated with slow, you know? slow cold freezing you get you know you kind of move more slowly as you get cold but this one is just like the opposite of that and i like it how it i just realized it's got these little ice pick things is the thing i don't know what these are called i'm not going to do that motion again don't ask next up we've got avu terra which is avatarda plus terra i'm assuming the avatarda is a kind of bird um it looks like a turkey to me it's some kind of pheasant and it's interesting it's neck it, like it looks like it's a mustache but it's on its neck so that's weird um, ground flying type, it's just one of those, it's like one of those simple mods, you know, I think it's it, not to say it, it's an insulted at all, but it kind of reminds me of those like kind of simple forgettable mods, kind of like Stunfisk before Stunfisk got a regional variant, but like Stunfisk or Drampa or that kind of, that kind of mod that you're just like, oh yeah, that's just, you know, what it is. And then you forget about it. This is not an insult at all. I still think it's a cool mod in general, but I actually just realized that it's like wings are supposed to be like layers of mud which is really cool um but generally that's kind of the vibe i get from it i don't know that water type growlith that we wanted to um match the ice type of vulpix and nine tails um so yes it's, it's just a pure water type growlith just throwing those little watery design aesthetics onto a growlith this is obviously before um legends arceus you know with our fire rock type this was this was made way before that made way before Legend of Arceus was even announced. Um, but yeah, just Growlithe, but wet. That's what this is. And next up, we have Arcanine, which is now a water dragon type, which I think is cool. It, it adds those like fin-like, you know, Kingdra-esque elements to it. Gives it those like more long, fang, like very draconic fangs. And it just adds on top of um, what Ar Growlithe was already doing, but in a really great way. Next up, we've got Spyclops. Which, my god, it's just such a good name. It's a steel dark type, and it's a Cyclops whose eye is a spyglass. Like, <laughs> it's just so clever. Like, it's such a simple mon. It's, it's one of those mons where you're just like, that's really cool. Like, I probably wouldn't use it, but it's just really cool to look at, you know? Next up, we've got Dolphoam, which is a water fairy type. Dolphin Pokemon. Yes, let's get that dolphin representation. We need a dolphin Pokemon. Make it happen, Game Freak. Water type, uh, uh, water fairy type is really cool and great for this. It's very cutesy. Got the little foam coming out of its, you know, blowhole. And it makes a little heart. Just a little heart. Um, and it's just great. It's just, just a lovely little dolphin mon. Next up, we've got Dwebble. It is a Medizian Dwebble. And Dwebble is now a pearl. And that's just, that's just great. It just makes me happy. He just looks so happy with his little pearl shell. He's like, look at me, I'm glistening. Like, I just... I love it. I love Dwebble, and I think it deserves more love, honestly. Next up, we've got Delmize, which is Ghost Steel. Enhances those ghostly elements and gives it, like, a phantasmy captain's hat with a hook. And it's just very, like, got rid of all the moss. It almost looks like, like, an updated, like, maintained version of Delmize, in a way. You know? Um, it's also got a, um, a new ability called Shipwright, which powers up water-type moves. So it continues that like that trio of like uh um the the giving like steel worker before it now has ship right so it powers up water type moves super cool next up we have neridal which is narried plus dolphin i'm not sure what a narried is i'm assuming it's some kind of fairy uh and it just very much has that idol aesthetic to it it's very much got the long flowy multicolored hair and like super cutesy 
you know, almost Japanese-y kind of level cute to it. Looks like it, it could be some kind of new, you know, I don't know, idol of some kind. <laughs> Next up, we've got Crustle, Medizian Crustle, and look at this boy! I love that his shell is just like this big, glistening, pearl-like, like, and it's got the shine in its eyes, and it just looks so happy. You know, you know, Crustle just deserves to be happy. He doesn't deserve to have a big old rock. He deserves to have, like, and it's also it's a pearl necklace, which is great. It just looks like it's pimping, like, big pimping Crustle over here, you know? <laughs> Next up, we have Hakatrio, which is a psychic dark type. It's based on Hakate, uh, the mother and the maiden and the crone, um, that, that, that kind of trio. Um, it's got, it's, you know, the maiden is at the bottom, the mother, and then the crone at the top. It's very interesting. It's kind of like peas in a pod. In a way, mixed, mixed in with that psychic and dark typing. It's got the ability Necromancer, which powers up ghost, ghost type moves. Super cool in general. It, it, it So it, it's kind of a, a match to um, Delmize in that way, where it has technically a trio of types. So I just, I just, so it like, it has the psychic, dark, and ghost typing because the psychic, um, the dark, and the ghost each match up to a different age of. Of, of, of Hakate. Next up, we've got Medizian Elekid, and it's fire type, and I like how they turn the plugs from the little plug thing to little volcanoes. And that's a really clever little concept there. I like, I like the, and they made like the things more wavy, like lava as a symbol, and then you have the fire, and the fire symbol is, or lecture symbol is now fire. So, changed everything to be just slightly fire type, and those slight changes really make a difference, and they add up. Next up, we've got Magby, which is electric type, so we're switching Magby and Elekid, so now it's electric type. Its head looks like a little storm cloud, and now it's got, instead of the flame, it's got a little lightning bolt. So it's just like kind of that switching of typing, kind of like I did with uh, Corneran Ice Q and Corneran Stone Journer. It's kind of that same kind of concept. Next up, we have Dumoth. <laughs> it's literally just dumb plus moth, and it just looks like such a derp. It's just such a derp. It's a bug type, just little derpy moth. And I just love moths. So it's just like, it being just a little derp moth, it's just simple and effective. Next up, we've got Medizian Electabuzz. Fire type. Um, and before anybody comes at me in the comments and says, Oh, Magby should be named Elibi. And Elikid should be named Magkid. Or, and like, it should be Magtabuzz or whatever. No. <laughs> no. It's freaking... Alolan Sandshrew called Ice Shrew and Ice Slash? No. It's not. So why do you keep saying that it should be? It shouldn't. It's just a freaking regional variant. They swapped the typing. Doesn't even mean it needs to change the name. Especially if the design, like this, Electabuzz, is very similar to the origin. Like, so, anyway, continuing on with this mod, I really like the, the fists that he went with. Like, the way the fist looks. It almost looks like a glove with a flame coming off of it. I really like that as well as the flame on the chest. It just all comes together so well. And the way that they did the horns, uh, yet again, made them like little, you know, candles almost. Just really well done. Next up, we've got Magmar, and we're continuing on that storm cloud aesthetic. His arms look more like storm clouds, and his tail looks like a storm cloud with little lightning bolts coming out of it, as well as it's got a little lightning bolts thing. It's just lightning everywhere, just really hammering in that Electabuzz vibe. Electabuzz and Magmar are just both fire and electric incarnate in their designs. Switching those two is just really, just... You know, they, it does switch those two in the best way. We've got Kakanshush, which is a mixture of Cocoon, Conscious, and Shush. So it's self, it's a self-conscious, introspective um, little bug type. Like, in, in so like when it goes into its little cocoon, it's just like introspecting. It's like going inside, you know? It's like when you're like trying to self-analyze, it's doing that exact thing. It's self-conscious. Next up is Electivire, and it's just gone full on magma. Full-on magma fire ground type. Interesting, they added that secondary typing in there. But it's just full-on magma. It's got magma dripping off the tails. Its arms look like magma. It's got lava coursing through its, like, little beard here. It's just full-on, full-on fire type in that regard. And then next up, we have Magmortar, which is a electric flying type. Because electric and flying work so well because it's a storm cloud. You got the electric. You got the air which is like commonly associated with with flying type flying type is essentially a substitute for air type and so it just it just combines so well and i just really like these two for that and then the final stage of dumoth it is catenlight it is caterpillar plus enlightenment it is a bug psychic type and it literally went <laughs> dumoth went in self-reflected was like yo i'm dumb i'm gonna learn some shit and then and then evolved and was like no you know what i'm enlightened I, like, I meditated, and now I know the answers to the universe. Like, 
I love that. That's such a fun aesthetic for a, uh, or in concept for a bug type. Next up, we have Trubbish. Poison normal type, and it is just a little more cute version of Trubbish, I guess. I don't know. He's like, his bag is a little less ripped and more, like, seems like taken care of a little bit more. He's a bit more derpy uh, in general, and yeah, he's just, he's got a new ability called Recycle. So he's, I guess he's based on more so recycling. Um, it raises defense and special defense stats when hit by a poison type move. That's interesting. I like that little ability, kind of recycling the poison typing, you know, because if it gets hit by a poison type move, then it recycles the, the toxic nature of it and, and you know, turns it into something good. Next up, we've got Medizian Skiddo, and it's Grass Rock type. It's just great. It's just a little craggy Skiddo, and I really like how they subtly change things. You know, they got the little rocks to the hooves, the, the its back and, like, fur on its, uh, 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 like, like mid area kind of looks like a hail covered with brush and then you have the little little horns coming out that like look like a little I don't know, stone monument like it just looks like a good like terrain you know it just looks like terrain that's what it looks like yeah terrain that's what I'm trying to think of the ghost type based on sound waves and sonars like that's it's so interesting actually like I like Noibad I think Noibad and uh Noivern are really cool um cool mods in general but turning it taking taking away it's dragon typing and making it ghost typing is very interesting and i wonder what the ghost typing has to do with like it's like sonar abilities i'm very interested in that i wish they had a dex entry here to explain that a little bit further but you know we'll see how it evolves also i just realized it now now that it's ghost type the gray of its face looks more like a skull rather than like the, the way it looked before that's cool next up we've got garb cycled so instead of uh, Garbador, it's Garb Cycled. So they're a poison, uh, poison normal type all about recycling. And I just think that's that's great. I mean, it's really it's really good. Recycling is important. And just kind of spreading that message. I think the recycling symbol on the chest is a little much. But <laughs> overall, the design's pretty good. It's very reflective of uh, Garbodor and that, that kind of same thing. I love how its feet are a trash can and a stool. <laughs> Oh, this thing is so ridiculous. I love it. Oh my gosh. Next up, we've got Cragoat. And yeah, look, we're getting some uh, original evolutions here. And what I love is that it continues to look like uh, like the back looks like a, two ferns. You know, two like two trees. I don't know what a fern is, but it looks like two trees like the, the uh, along its back. I just think that's super, super clever. Um, and it's got full on like rock feet. Like help hopefully to try and traverse the like rocky terrain of the Metas region. Burn, no longer, Noidar, full on radar, full on, like, looks like huge, huge ears for its tiny little head. I feel bad for this dude. He's got to have insane neck, uh, neck muscles. My gosh. Next up, we've got Minima, which is the rock dark type fossil of the region. I am not entirely certain of the uh, kind of uh, fossil and dinosaur this is based on, um, but it, someone, someone in the comments here is saying Intelodont or Hyenodon. I'm not 100% sure what the what the answer is here. Anyway, it kind of looks like a mammalian crocodile in a way to me. I like the rock dark type. It feels very much like like it, it just exudes that dark typing. Next up, we've got Predama. That's cool. Yeah, it's full on gone. Like uh, like before, it kind of seemed a little bit maybe reptilian uh, with like like kind of like reptilian mammalian mix. But this is full on mammalian. Um, and just big on like dog with a pompadour and crazy big teeth like this it's crazy how like sometimes pokemon can be so terrifying yet you're like oh i want to use that on my team even though like it, it, it and you you think of it as friend like oh my friend predama but this thing is like also so terrifying and as the counterpart we have the handprint fossil which turns into nerd and thal it's a mixture of a nerd and a neanderthal so it's <laughs> I love this. I love this mod. It's a rock psychic type. It's literally just like a primitive man that's also a nerd. <laughs> like, you just added that like nerdy aesthetic to it. It gives me a Psychonauts vibe, um, for sure. Nerdenthal evolves into Paleolect, a rock psychic type continued. It's got a little abacus that it's using its mind to hold and use. Um, its name is a mixture of Paleolithic and Intellect. And honestly, Dr. Stone who? Like, what? <laughs> this dude is literally Dr. Stone. <laughs> Freaking rock hair. It's very much like feels that like Dr. Stone aesthetic to it. 
Next up, we've got Keelikin, which is a dragon fairy type. Its name is based on the Keelin and uh, Lucky. It's, it's also based on the Keelin in, or Kirin in uh, Japanese. Uh, but the Keelin is like a horse, dragon, deer thing. And it's crazy. And it is really a good service to that idea. I think it's very fantastical. And like fairy type fits it very well because it's very elegant. And um, it's called the elusive Pokemon, I assume, because it's very like, it's like got a lot of grandeur to it. Very holier than thou. Not like in attitude, but like, not holier than thou, but that's what I mean. I mean, like it's like very above everyone else. It's just very holy in that way. Next up is Irishard. And I just, I just think this mod's super cute. And I love the inclusion of the pride flag. It is, it is a pride flag. It's not just a rainbow. It is actually intentionally supposed to be like a pride flag. Because you can see it's hanging from to their head like a flag. It's it's, it's intentional. Um, and it's just super cute. And I love the little representation nod there. Super cool. Next up is Pyrelmo. And before you go like, oh, Elmo? It's uh, Saint Elmo. That's what they says there. So it's Pyros plus Saint Elmo. And I like how it has like... It's, it's, it's an antithesis to Irish art, if you couldn't tell. And it's an electric fire type. And what I like is that it has, its feet look like little jet boots. Like, you know, like Astro Boy or something. Like, it just looks like that. And it looks like it has, like, a little marshmallow lava lamp-esque hair thing coming out of it. It's just very, a very simple and clean design. Next up is the Pseudo line. And we talked about this in our favorite fake mon of November. This is Squant, or Squant. Um, it is the Beast Pokemon. It's based on a, just a bunch of different um, little mythological creatures you got the like you got deer horns pig nose boar nose but it's also bipedal it's just a like impy kind of thing going on there um satyr almost a little bit thrown in there and it's just a pure normal type but it evolves into hoofty sorry i just love that name hoofty it just it's so much fun to say and it's more of like kind of a getting playing more into that mythical beast like it's like pig nose goat horn devilish kind of thing going on there very very like cheeky is what it looks like very cheeky in a way um and then its final evolution is three evolutions and i, I if you watch my favorites of uh, november you'll know what these are but here it is first we've got goliathorn forest form it is a normal grass type and i it's got these base aesthetics you'll see in a moment but it's got these base aesthetics um, where the horns got these shrubbery on them and like the shrubbery on its arms and like it's very much hanging like hanging moss off of it But it changes when it becomes Goliathorn hill form and it's normal fire now and it's got more Flamey elements. And it's got that like it looked like it had kind of like a suit going on before But now it looks like a straight-up like just like fur and then the horns are different The horns being different too is really what makes this for me is like the fact that they made the, the horns were not only like the like added different elements of the actual typing but i also changed according to the typing this gives me very ifrit vibes from final fantasy very much the very much so that wow let me just trip over my words geez but there's also the third form of goliathorn river form and this one is just next level i love the little orb of water between the horns it's also drippy and flowy and elegant and like this it is like each form brings a different kind of like elegance to it and it's just so cool. Like, and also the fur on the bottom, like, makes these little, like, wispy, watery, swirling patterns. Just so cool. I, I th this, this is why I included it in my favorites of that month. Because it, it's just, it's just great. Next up, we have Stimfell. This is a, a, a legendary Pokemon. It is a dark flying type. It's a part of a trio of dark types. But um, they're all based on some kind of disaster. I know what you're going to say. Oh, this looks like Mandibuzz. It's different than Mandibuzz. It's legendary Pokemon. Don't be that guy. Um, and if you are that guy, and you didn't, you type the comment before you listen to me, someone go call that guy out. Say, hey, dude, clearly you didn't watch the video. And overall, it's really cool. It's got this mask, um, and it's, uh, it's based, I'm pretty sure they're based on mythological beasts that, like, I can't remember if, like, I think it was Hercules fought, or I think it's just mythological beasts throughout, like, different lore in, the, like, the disastrous beasts. I think that's like, kind of like the idea it's called the flying menace pokemon so it's essentially supposed to be some kind of like menace to society next up we have ermanster which is based on the er ermanthian boar um, and plus monster and it's dark ground type so we have the dark flying dark ground um and this one is just monstrous it has that same kind of helmet with the moon coming off of it with uh instead of a red uh, little ribbon it has a brown ribbon now 
and it's just cool. I think this little trio is kind of unique and different. And I like, I just realized that it's like got like armor on its arms and like as its toes too, the same kind of color. Next up, we have Skiller, which is a mixture of Scylla and Killer. Um, it's dark water type, and it's yeah, it's based on the Scylla. If you don't know what the Scylla is, it's from the Odyssey. Um, and it's it's just this crazy beast. It's actually in Smite. I actually play a Scylla in Smite sometimes. Um, <laughs> But this is crazy beast, and I like it. It continues that armoredness um, in like this pot that it's encapsulated in, because usually the Scylla is in water. It's like it's kind of like a Hydra in a way, um, but this one now it's encapsulated in water and uses like it's kind of like one of the, <laughs> it's kind of like uh, Octodad in a way. In that way, like it uses its appendages as feet. That's just kind of the vibe I get from it. But it's also got like a way different vibe than other like Hydra esque mons like Hydreigon. Um, and I just, I really respect the design aesthetic of this. Also, I just realized this one, the, the ribbon on the back is black for this one. One thing I should mention is these actually represent the sky, the land, and the sea as well. Kind of like a Kyogre, Groudon, Rayquaza thing going on there. It's really, and the, the, so they're the, the menace of the sky, the menace of the land, and the menace of the sea. That's kind of what they represent. And it's a really, really cool trio idea for legendaries. Next up, we have the box legend for Pokemon Matriarch. This is Ophidna. It is based on Ophidia plus Echidna. Echidna is not being like the, the you know, the Echidna, the, like the animal, but the, the mythological beast Echidna. It's kind of based on that. It is a water rock type, which I think is such a cool uh, co type combination for a legendary Pokemon. Rarely seen. And it's got... And like very, like it has that, you know, we already had Shellag, but it's very Sea Witch sea hag kind of vibe to it but like in the most elegant way very it kind of gives me almost a god of war vibe to it with its level of like beauty but terrifyingness at the same time and the last mon of the metas decks is typhurno it is a flying water type so the water rock type conquers the fire flying type the blue the blue typically overpowers the red legendary that's a pattern not many people notice but the blue typically overpowers the red so flying fire type is <laughs> quad weak to a water and rock type um but i think this is interesting they didn't decide to go for the fire dark type which or ghost for that matter and it's very much uh it's based on typhon and inferno and it it i don't know i just i just like this mon it like it's very gives off that masculine energy where as opposed to a fitness um feminine energy and it's very much like all the things boys would like you know like very like edgy and ghostly and ghastly and serious and like there's very it's very not like it's beautiful but like in a it's more like i should say like handsome it's like it feels very handsome in that way i also like it has like little fire snakes coming out of his thing very lovecraftian in nature like they're both very lovecraftian which i really like actually kind of a different take on a legendary pokemon i was wrong there's one more pokemon it's chrysor it is a mixture of chrysos which means gold in greek and soar it is the physical representation of the Golden Fleece. Um, you know, Jason and the Argonauts, the Golden Fleece. It, it's literally the, the 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 sheep that bore the Golden Fleece um, as a Pokemon. It's very much Shaman Sky form, incarnate, pure steel type. Super cool. Um, I, I almost would have gotten steel flying, honestly, because it looks like it could. It could fly, but I like its long ears and, yeah, kind of Dumbo vibe. But it's got these horns that are like double horns, and they're very, like, it's like like almost like a crown kind of a teeny esque very much the you know pixie pokemon pixie mythical pokemon of this region but that's it for the metas region what did you think which one was your favorite let me know in the comments down below and make sure to go check out the metas region over on instagram they do some amazing stuff they're they're going to be doing another region so follow them and uh, check in for stuff currently they're posting all of their mons by type so you can see, uh, you know, kind of a conglomerate of all of those different Pokemon by that type. But if you enjoyed the video, make sure to hit that like button, subscribe, and hit that notification bell to keep up to date with future region reviews and all other Fakemon content on this channel. We do lots of Fakemon content. But uh, anyway, with that, I will see you guys next time. Hey everybody, Brandon here, and yes, today we are finally reviewing True Green 7's A Sown Region. I've gotten so many requests over the past region reviews to review this region, so I am so happy to provide this for the people who've been asking. For those unfamiliar, the Asson region is a video series by True Green 7 that's taken place over the past few years in which he's been making fake mon for his own Middle Eastern based region. So the age of these designs ranges from 2018 all the way up till now. So, if you want to know the design basis, origins, all that good stuff, 
make sure to watch the video series. In this video, I'm only going to be covering the designs. I'm only going to be reacting to each of the designs because I myself have actually not watched the video series. I tried to remain spoiler free of the Asone region, so that way if we ever did a region review, it would be my genuine reaction. So a lot of these mods I'm going to be seeing for the first time. But I am familiar with some of the mods, I'm fairly familiar with the starters, I've seen a couple regional variants and the legendaries I think. Anyway, before we get started, make sure to hit that like button, subscribe, and hit that notification bell to keep up to date with future videos on the channel. So the format of this video is going to be a bit different just because this is a YouTube video that is the full text rather than the Instagram where I'm scrolling through things. So uh, I'm going to try and work it out best, but if certain parts of this video get cut off, I'm sorry, it's just the way I have to format this to make it work. First up we have the grass starter which is Elephant, the moss elephant Pokemon, and I really like this design. I really like the, the yellow eye, the color, the color choices in general are really cool, and the little sprout on the head and the sprout on the tail gives that that little... Uh, how do I say, je ne sais quoi, that, <laughs> that little bit of uh, that grass starter element to it, while maintaining a different kind of coloration of a, of a gray against the green, which we we're not usually, we don't really see gray prominently featured in a starter Pokemon before, but uh, against the against the green, it kind of looks like, um, like, uh, mountains, you know, it kind of looks like the gray is the mountains, and it almost looks like these little dots are kind of like the sun peeking over the mountains, which is kind of a cool little design, uh, you know, element there. So, um, like I said, I'm familiar with the starters, but I'm not 100% familiar, so uh, maybe this is going to be a grass rock type, just based on that whole, you know, mountain design element, but uh, we will see. So Ron does provide a little bit of an explanation to these, which I'm pretty much covering right now. If, uh, at least that's what I'm thinking is going to happen. I'm probably going to cover up the dex entries. But um, if you want to read them and you want to hear more about these things, yet again, make sure to check out the playlist. I'm only going to be review reviewing the designs of these, and I'll be probably reading the dex entries in my own time. But anyway, let's continue onward. Next up, we have Mustrunk, the overgrowth Pokemon, and this is grass rock type now. So I, I did indeed call it that it is a grass rock type, and it has overgrow as its ability. Um, that's a really cool typing and ability. I love a grass rock type for a uh, grass starter. It's a unique type combo. I don't think we've had that in grass starters. We have grass ground with Torterra, but never grass rock. Um, but this is cool, and it is indeed leaning more into its back, kind of being that kind of mountainous kind of thing, and... Those berries are becoming more prominent and looking more like a uh, looking more like some form of jewelry on its head, like these two dots up there. They're kind of looking like it's going to form into some kind of jewelry. And I like the 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 bush on the back and the it, the the dot. I like how they made the yellow into more of an orange now, the like yellowish features of uh, of elephant into more of an orange now. Um, and it's got these little tiny tusks. It still kind of feels like it has that baby elephant vibe to it without, um, you know, it's it's that, definitely got that teenager energy of the middle stage, but without being too outwardly feeling like it's the, you know, final evolution. I feel like a lot of middle stages in, um, in fan regions can look like they're supposed to be the final stage when they're in, you know, just the middle stage. So this perfectly has that balance of that, that in-between of the base and the final stages. And the last stage of the grass starter is Pressifent, the mountain Pokemon, and it's gone full tilt into the mountainous back. And like I said, the berries have become this, like, this, um, you know, this jewelry, and kind of, like, on the side, it's a little bit of an accent. It's kind of like those, uh, like, the saddle cloth things that you see on, um, on elephants, um, that, they, like, when people are riding elephants, they have this little saddle and the cloth off the side. That's kind of the design element there. Um, its, it's feet are very, like, they have that, like, mountain to them, like... Every part of this design screams mountain, and I'm now just seeing that it's <laughs> it's, it's trunk is a fist, which is really interesting. So it's it that must be like some kind of reference to like how you know elephants use their trunks as kind of like a second or like like a, not a second hand, but a hand because they don't have hands. Brandon, duh. Um, <laughs> but kind of like how they use their trunk as a hand, kind of like that kind of thing. So maybe it's just taking that that idea literally. But this is really cool, and it almost looks like the Mossifs become like a mask for him, um, which is, you know, really cool. I, I really I really dig this design. Next up is our Firestarter, which is Smokehalf, the calf Pokemon, and they're going along with the, uh, the Ox of the Chinese Zodiac here. And it's just simple. It's just a simple, fiery calf Pokemon. It got little fire elements, you know, with the chest kind of looking like a flame, the wisp of, ha wisp of hair kind of looking like a flame, and even the tail. Um, and it's kind of giving me Growlithe vibes with its coloration and that little wisp of hair kind of 
gives me that Growlithe energy to it. Um, but yeah, it's just kind of a simple design, which I appreciate. So as I'm looking further into the video, it looks like smoke half can like ignite its hair and tail, which is kind of cool as well, given that fiery element that some of those fire stars have like Charmander or Chimchar. Um, giving the literal fire element to its um, its design. Smoke half evolves into Agnite, the cattle Pokemon, and its tail is fully on fire now. No on-off situation like Smoke half. Um, and it's got this eye marking, like Egyptian, kind of got the same vibe as you know Pidgeot in that way. It's got this emo band going over it, and then it's got this jewelry on uh, on on its on its forehead, kind of similar to the Elephant line where where they had kind of like the berries as the feature of the jewelry. This one is like more like almost like it's supposed to be a third horn or a third third eye i'm not sure um, but it's got gold incorporated into its design so i'm kind of curious what uh, typing this is going to be because uh uh the the elephant line had the grass rock typing present in the secondary stage where in the second stage it's still pure fire type so I'm, uh, you know i'm getting this uh, kind of electric vibe from it the bands around the arms are kind of spiky kind of got that yellowish goldish tint to them but we'll see Finally, we have Oxinerate, the sacred Pokemon, and it looks like it's become Fire Fairy type, which I like that interpretation of Fairy type as kind of like it's sacred, it's it's venerated, it's holy, it's you know got that Fairy typing to it, something godly um, like that. It's kind of cool to implement that Fairy Fairy type, um, and you know a Fire Fairy type, you know the Rock and Fairy, you know secondary typings don't align, which is really cool because a lot of people get caught up in like having to have the type trio makes sense for the final evolutions they have to have that secondary type trio to make sure that that to, you know it does a full circle but it doesn't always have to do that um and i think it's 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 good to kind of try and break out of that if you can um so i love this design i love the little jewel encrusted elements to its shoulders and its knees and that gold you know aspect that i was talking about in the previous stage is now presented even more um, in this stage, which is a good, you know, it's good to carry over those little elements and then improve upon them, which is, you know, just kind of the basis of evolution. A lot of people will just, like, make their starters bigger. Um, like, oh, this is this starter, but then bigger. But this, this is, like, it actually adds more elements. Like, it improves upon the elements of its previous stage, which I think is really cool. For our water starter, we have Dolphlo, the wave Pokemon. And this is so good. I actually adore this Pokemon, it is so cute. Wow, like I, these, this is perfectly like what I think we would get if we got a dolphin Pokemon. I don't know how we have 900 Pokemon and there's no dolphin Pokemon. Make it happen, Game Freak. We like it's a dolphin. Like it's so like I I, I don't know. Anyway, Dolphlo is just so adorable. Ron really really nailed the cuteness factor on this on this Mon and and like I said, the the, the starter the like base stages have been so simple which is so good like i like how like simplistic the 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 base stages have felt they're not overly complicated there's not too many design elements to them which is good because it's the first stage you give it give it room to grow you know dolflo evolves into mentitle the psychic wave pokemon so it looks like we're moving into a uh, a water psychic type which is interesting because it's not present yet it doesn't it's it's water but it has these psychic elements to it that aren't actually a part of its typing right now so that's interesting it looks like it's doing like the kind of like kind of like that kind of meme uh, which is kind of funny to me but um it's got this like x on its chest i'm very interested oh wait hold on i'm like looking at it and these little psychic elements are actually not it looks like they're not actually a part of its body because like the 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 fin stops and you can see like it's it's kind of see-through with this like psychic you know like thing going on here that's that's really cool so it's got like the psychic water it can control. Cool, cool, cool. So yeah, I read the decks a little bit. It looks like these are some kind of psychic bubbles it can control. I am curious as to why we haven't gotten the psychic typing yet, especially considering its name is the psychic wave Pokemon, but I'm sure it will be present in the final design. And the final stage is Bellumar, uh, the psychic wave Pokemon continuing that psychic wave. And its psychic waves have been like enhanced and even are more pink now and vibrant. And like the way this was like the, 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 what's the word? The art style on this is impeccable actually. Um, the shading and the lighting is really well done. Um, and I really, I, I just really like the way he did this. And the X on that chest has become like this, like spikes, like the, it has like spikes throughout its design, which is really, really, uh, different. Like for a psychic typing, it's, uh, you know, psychics, you know, usually are more like calm, cool, collected. Um, but this design has, is more of a, uh, like, you know, 
a grunginess to it in a way, which is really interesting. It says it can shoot pressurized water uh, mixed with psychic energy, so they never miss. So, cool. Like, guess they never miss, huh? As far as who I'd pick, I'd probably have to say the Dolphlo line. I think I think Dolphlo is so adorable, such a cute freaking dolphin Pokemon. Um, and then it evolves into Bellomar, like all the way to Bellomar, and it is so epic. Like it just got this like I don't know this like it's so different from the traditional psychic types. It has like this edginess to it. That's the word, like this edginess. And I'm also just noticing it has a scar over its eye, which is epic. Like, it's got all these, like, kind of spikes and slashes, and it's been through some stuff. Like, it's it's really cool, and I think it's a really, like, Water Psychic type is just such a cool type combo, especially for a starter. So, yeah, I think I would go with the Dolfo line. Looks like we have a Route 1 Rodent, and it is E-Rodents, and I think that name is super clever, and it's based on a Naked Mole Rat, which is so cute. They made this Naked Mole Rat so cute, because Naked Mole Rats are not very cute in real life, um, but this one is super cute, and it reminds me of Rufus from Kim Possible, so I just love its vibes. It's kind of, it's just a simple, normal type, you know, Naked Mole Rat, super cute. A rodent evolves into Rat Dozer, which is a normal ground type. It is uh, another ro normal ground type, along with uh, Bunnelby and uh, Diggersby. So it's really cool. To me, the design is like really blocky. It almost gives me rock type. Um, it even has like the jewel in its forehead. So kind of, I kind of gonna get more of a rock type feeling from this. But I can kind of understand rock and ground. They're kind of just hard to separate in Pokemon. Certain design aspects are hard to separate from a, a rock and a ground type. Um, but I'm assuming, I think naked Rorats live underground. So I think that's kind of where that design basis comes from. And I'm sure in like the dex entries and stuff like that, it probably has some kind of digging. Um, aesthetic to it kind of looks like its teeth might be used for that kind of purpose um, But anyway, this is a really cool, uh, you know, Route 1 rodent Pokemon Looks like we have our Route 1 bird and it is Lubbard and it is a pure flying type It kind of looks like it's based on a Kingfisher. I'm assuming it's supposed to be like a Kingfisher Pokemon um, And it's just really simple and cute got that whole, you know, Route 1 Bird, you know, aesthetic to it. I like the coloration coloration is very different I'm assuming we're probably going to get Flying Water type, which is unique for our, our, our Route 1 bird. I was say we had Wingull and Pelipper, but they weren't exactly the Route 1 bird. Um, that was like Swellow and Taillow. But we kind of got two Route 1 birds because they were both, like, you know, the Route 1 bird typically has two evolutions rather than just one. So we kind of got made up for that with that. Anyway. Lubbard's really cute. I enjoy it. Next up, we've got Mateen, which is a water flying type. I was actually expecting it to be the other way around, to be flying water, but whatever, you know doesn't matter that much um but this is kind of cool it's kind of like a it's almost like got kind of like a crown forming so maybe we're gonna go like king fisher literally um and it's got i like i like the design on its like chest and like stomach region because i i really i like really like when pokemon in their designs start to hint at kind of like clothing like it almost like has like like this uh like actual fisher uh, fisherman aesthetic to its clothes uh, like its design um it's what's the word feathers my gosh i can Think of words. It's kind of got this fisherman aesthetic to its feathers, which is really cool. Finally, we have Cap Torrent, um, and I like the name because it's got like Captain plus Torrent, but also there's like Raptor in there, which is really cool. And it kind of looks like we've gotten like a pirate captain route. I was thinking like we were on fisherman, but no, we got went straight up pirate captain. It's got the like floof on the chest, like the little frilly thing. I never know the name of this. I always I, I see this design aesthetic in in, in Fake Mon, um a bunch, and I never like actually know what to call this little floofy part in the front. But yeah, I I, I dig that, and I like the little pin like the sides. You know, it's kind of got the coat where it's got the buttons on the sides and they're three different colors it's really cool and like the browns and um the browns and tans really remind me of pidgey in in coloration so really cool kingfisher captain of a pirate ship kind of thing going on which i really enjoy oh my goodness we have chwug which is the root bug and it is so cute <laughs> i'm just hoping it's a mixture of twig plus bug so that's Tw <laughs> it's so cute Oh my goodness, I love that. Wow, okay, so just, it's, it's really simple. It's just a simple little stick bug Pokemon, but the rod made it incredibly cute. It is incredibly cute. Twelg evolves into Stick Kid, and we got a bug fighting type for our Route 1 bug, which is really cool. So it looks like um, Twelg was kind of like, the, you know, the the kid getting bullied. He had little tears, you little sad boy. And then, like, Stick Kid comes in, he's like, no, I'm gonna learn martial arts, and I'm gonna, you know, bully you know, the bullies back. This was really cool. And it's, I like that, um, the, the stick bug aesthetic has mi been mixed with this kind of wrap, like, you know, the wraps you get around the fists, and, and, like, with boxers and just martial arts in general. Um, and it's got this, like, structure around its hips. 
that's like I, I don't know like a, like a like almost like sounds dumb but like a jock strap like I don't know how else to describe it but it's it kind of like the aesthetic it gives me sorry that's not meant to be rude or anything it's just it's so dumb and finally we got faz mask which uh is I don't know what that's a combination I know mask is in there but what's faz like phasma I'm not sure well bug fighting type and it's like got this all might kind of thing going on to it it even has a little antenna it's kind of like his hair it's very very all might um and it's very just like kind of just like the hero like you know i was the weak it's got a deku aesthetic to it a hundred percent it's like deku transforming into all might in a way this is really cool um i don't know if that was like supposed to be a thing but it very much is what it's giving me like as far as a design story um, and in general, I just think it's kind of cool. It still has that like, little teardrop thing. Just like almost like saying like, hey, I haven't forgot the kid I was before I was a hero. But now that I have it, I wear it as like proudly, you know? Like I wear my tears proudly because the tears I shed grew me into the person I am today. I mean, it's fake mon, so that's a little dramatic, but that's kind of what it gives me. I don't know. Next up, we've got Hopinch. So it looks like we have two bug uh, Pokemon. So this one's a bug dark type. I kind of what I did with uh, Cordera, where I had two, like a bug fairy and a bug dark. So this is bug fighting and bug dark. And it's really interesting. It's like, it's uh, it's supposed to be like a grasshopper Pokemon. It's got this like, ma. It's got that, like the, the huge, this huge like, um, like chomper mouth going on here. Um, and I'm curious how it stands. The anatomy is a little confusing to me. Like, it don't, it doesn't have two legs or the things under, like, the blue part underneath the mouth, like, legs as well. I'm a little confused by the anatomy, but I think it's a cool design. Uh, you know, nonetheless, I think it's a really cool design. Yo, we've got Grassassin. That is so neat. Wow. I really, really enjoy that. That's cool. It's got this, like, Arabian assassin, you know, like, mercenary thing going on to it obviously grassassin got the assassin in the name so duh but it's um it's it's just really cool it's got this like camo vibe to it like it's trying to blend in and uh, you know like very sneaky and that's like it's got a, almost like a scyther thing going on with its like claws that it like has this like almost sword you know very sharp claw slicey kind of vibe going on to it which is really really cool and i just genuinely just really enjoy this mod. I don't know if I'd pick the Chwug or the Hop Inch line, honestly. Like, I'm, I'm, that's, that's a heavy debate between the two. Because Bug Dark, new typing, and also you get Grassassin, which is really cool. And then, but you have Phasmac, and, you know, Chwug is just so cute. I, I don't know, man. That's a tough choice. Next up, we got Sharpine, and it's a cute little normal type Porcupine Pokemon. Super adorable. It almost looks like it acts as, like, a secondary Route 1 Rodent, in a way. Um, which is super cute, because, yeah, it's got, like, Runaway as an ability, which is kind of interesting. Um, that's super, super cute. It's just, frankly, adorable. Like, Ron's, uh, no, Stage 1s are really, really cute. He really got a good way of capturing that, that cuteness level. And I like that it's got these, like, almost like horns. Like, these little horns, which makes it totally Pokemon. Like, oh, let's make a Pokemon, but give it a horn. Like, that's so Pokemon, you know? It just, that slight difference that, you know, branches it off from reality. Which is, you know, like I said, completely Pokemon, and I love that. Next up, we've got Crustoxic, a normal poison type, new type combo, and it's really, really cool. Really, really cool. Very, very edgy. You know, got that, like, toxic edginess to it with the sharpness of the quills. You know, kind of going with that, like, poisonous quill aesthetic to it. Um, and, like, I like how the horns have evolved into more of, like, a like a face mask, almost. Like, it's like armor, um, which is really nice. Like... Generally, I really enjoy this. It kind of is an antithesis um, and like a secondary uh, Route 1 rodent to the Erodent line because they, you know, have normal ground and then normal poison. They kind of counteract each other, kind of opposites in a similar way that Phasmac and Grassassin are to each other, you know? Oh my gosh, it evolves again. We got poor Simpale and it is a poison steel type now. So we went from normal poison to it's poison steel. So we've got like all the new type combos in in one line, which is kind of wild. Um, and it, it it looks like it's like using its quills now as like a like a like almost I was gonna say like a like a walking stick, but also kind of like a weapon, which is really it almost has like this like elderly sage kind of aesthetic to it. Whereas like like the old man with his like wa like his uh like wizard staff or whatever kind of thing. Which is really cool. It's very, very armored. I, I, I kind of, I thought, I initially thought it was gonna be normal steel when I, when I saw the, when I saw the first stage, 
I can totally talk. It kind of implemented both of those little design aesthetics that I was kind of expecting out of the line, um, but do, they did it at the end. We Next we have Gerbalt, an electric fighting type, and it is so cute. That is our Pika clone uh, of the region, and it's giving me, it's giving me Raichu vibes, and I love it. It's like, it's almost like, Raichu in a Molga had a baby, and this is what it is. And I love the use of the electric fighting type, brand new type combo, super cool. Um, and I just, yeah, it's just like a, a Jer I'm assuming Jerboa is, or Jerboa is Jerboa, like a kind of gerbil, or are they different? I don't know. Um, but I, I love it. It fits perfectly, and it is a super cute Pika clone that I would totally use. Next up is the regional Grassmon, which is Tindril. And it is just adorable, giving me huge Oddish vibes, um, and I and I love that. And it's just, it's just like this little, you know, dude on, you know, little kind of cute boy walking around with two legs. Oh, look, I got a little sprout on my head. So cute, so cute. Tindril evolves into Vitendril, and it is a grass fairy type. And I really, really like this. It's giving me like, weirdly enough, it's kind of giving me like white mage vibes from like Final Fantasy, or or even like. Um, it's almost giving me Rydia vibes from Final Fantasy IV, if that makes any sense. That's kind of what the vibe is getting me, and I, I really enjoy that. And even Terra from Final Fantasy VI. I'm getting Final Fantasy vibes from this thing, and I love it. And the final stage is Vivites. Um, I, I really like that. You could even say it as Vivites, and then we still get that Final Fantasy thing. VV, Final Fantasy IX. Anyway. <laughs> I'm really trying to shoehorn in this Final Fantasy thing, but uh, generally it's really cool. It's just got these like berries all over, just berries on berries, um, and it's just very, you know, uh, fruitful. <laughs> you could say that the uh, final stage of this really paid off in uh, four fruit. Okay, I'm I'm done. No more no more fruit puns for me. Next up, we've got Poi Lover and then Inva Lover, and they're both normal flying type. It's really interesting. I, I'm, I'm, I've seen this kind of bird before. I don't know its name, but they're the little guys that go like -la 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 along the beach. That's exactly the vibe I'm getting from them. It's really cute. It's just generally the line is, you know, cute. And then a little bit of that uh, kind of almost Corviknight level of uh, like sternness to it. Next up, we've got Voltalope and Thundorix. And I, I think this is like Thundorix especially is really cool. Pure electric type. Oh man, that's that's really cool, and it kind of like gives me like, like I don't know, the the horns are giving me like some kind of electric, um, what's the word? Those things that like, you know, we put them up, and then the, like electricity branches between. I don't know the name. I am not <laughs> educated enough to know. Um, but generally the design is really cool, very, very epic. Next up, it looks like we have our first regional variant of the Asone region, so this is Asonian Pidov, uh, I assume, and it is Grass Flying type, which is super cool, and I really enjoy the way that they, um, uh, made it feel just that slight bit different, adding these leaf-like elements to it, um, and it almost looks like they, I don't know if the, the eye got better, bigger, but for me, the eye looks, just looks a little bit bigger. Just slight coloration changes and a little bit of addition of leaf-like elements is just enough to make um, a regional variant work. And I feel like a lot of people get caught up in making overly designed regional variants, but the, you know a, a lot of regional variants in the real games are just kind of simple changes that that pay dividends. You know. Next up, we got a Sony and Tranquil, and it continues that little simple changes. Now the little fluff on its fur kind of looks like a little leaf bush. It got the little leaf-like elements uh, on its head, and then the tail looks a little bit like. You know, almost like a peacock tail in a way, um, and it's it's got this. It just has this very, you know, grass aesthetic to it, and it's just very simple, very simple change, and I appreciate that. Whoa! Last up, we've got Unpheasant, and it is so cool. It's a peacock now. That's so cool. Um, or maybe it's supposed to be like the uh, like a like a peacock pheasant. There's those those are a thing. They're 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 like pheasants that look like peacocks, and they're called peacock pheasants. Anyway. But maybe it's that, because, you know, I don't know if peacocks are actually pheasants, or peafowl, I should say peafowl. I'm not sure if peafowl are pheasants in and of themselves, but they do have the peacock pheasant that exists. Really, really cool. I really enjoy this uh, this regional variant. I would definitely throw this on my team. Looks like we've got another Asonian form, and it is Asonian Slackoth. And it is electric, pure electric, no normal electric tip. That's really cool. Um, so it looks like it's kind of gotten, <laughs> it's, it's got the Vigoroth pose. So maybe this one is more of a get up and go kind of guy, um, and, rather than uh, the slack off, which is usually the chilling. So I wonder if they're going to reverse Vigroth and make him more like lazy and then go back to being super energetic with uh, slacking. Yep, exactly how I thought. Asonian uh, Vigroth is very like calm, 
You know, they're very, they're sleeping as comatose. It's kind of like they're like meditating in a way. Very cool. And just like a, these little simple changes to personality and slight design aesthetic changes make for a really, really cool regional variant. And here we go. Final stage, a Sony and Slacking. And it, it has an ability called Rampage, which makes sense. This dude is look, looking like he's straight out of the game Rampage. Slacking looks like he has those blinders on. He's filled with rage, filled with his like electric, electric rage. And he's just ready to just destroy anything in his path. I mean, look at that freaking 670 base stat total, stat total is nuts. Looks like we have two mons here, which is Faluna and Boneko, um, which is Psychic and then Fairy. And they look like they're kind of might be um, like, you know, what's the word? Uh, version exclusives. Um, and one is giving me kind of that Esper moment. The other is kind of giving me Sneasel, oddly enough. Like the little like um, Boneko's like little ear is giving me like kind of sneezel vibes with that and i like these little dots and these little you know celestial elements on faluna and then like the kind of like almost they almost look like piercings um on Baneko is really interesting as well but luna evolves into felance and it's a dark psychic type got that celestial kind of vibe to it the stars and the and the like like planets kind of going through its body in its design and i love its mustache i am an avid facial hair advocate i love facial hair so Definitely, definitely a fan of this. And it looks like Baneko evolves into Baneko, which I'm pretty sure is Bakeneko. Uh, it's supposed to be like a reference to Bakeneko, the yokai, um, which is super cool. It's a it's a dark fairy type, so we have a dark psychic and a dark fairy. That's cool. I love a good uh, dark fairy type, you know, and fairy types generally that branch off, you know, the kind of expected path of fairy types is really cool. And I like how it has that split tail and generally has this like jewelry kind of thing going on to it all of these mods have this kind of like jewelry aesthetic to them and i think it's supposed to tie them all together into this general idea of a middle eastern region which is super cool and as far as the design it's, it's kind of giving me zangoose a little bit which is which is kind of cool and i, I like I, I generally enjoy the dark typing so super cool next up is a sonian camera up and it looks like there was no art for a sonian numel but there is an Asonian numel um, but this is water ground type, and I'm sure it's a reference to the fact that, you know, camels can store water for long periods of time so they can survive in the desert. So this is kind of a really cool aesthetic to it, and I like how it's like almost like a volcano, um, like oh, like a, one of those water volcanoes on its back. What's the word? A geyser? Oh, God. Geysers are water volcanoes, guys. That's, yup. Mm -hmm. I always enjoy a camera up that goes in a different direction with the camel thing, because, you know, camera up isn't really quite a camel. It's just kind of like it's short and stocky when and camels are large and long and elongated. So I like whenever they kind of can go with a camel that is more in that direction. I did it with myself with my Camelitia um, in Cornera. So definitely, definitely cool. Next up, we have a Sonia Meowth, and it is a pure psychic type, which is really cool because psychic type is stronger than fighting type, even though the past three versions of Meowth have been weak to fighting type. This one is strong against it, which is really cool. And it's gone for this whole... Um, you know, Egyptian design aesthetic, you know, kind of the veneration of cats known in uh, Egypt, known throughout Egypt. And I love that it's, you know, coin is now a little scarab thing. That's really cool. Whoa. So we've got Profit. <laughs> I like that name. That's, that's, that's a clever, cheeky little name. And they went in very interesting and different direction. They like gave it the face of Persian, but the body of Perserker. Which is so interesting, like, well, the body of mouth, technically, but, like, that, that, that same kind of Berserker vibe where it's on two legs, continuing that, like, Meowth thing where it's on two legs that Berserker does. Um, but they've given it this, like, Sphinx Persian face, which is so different, and its tail is, like, Deoxys vibes of, like, the, you know, the, the DNA. That's so different, and it, and it is kind of giving me uh, Bakineko vibes, too, because with the split tail kind of thing going on there really interesting really different and i really i think yeah i just i appreciate that the level of difference this is of than than typical um persian or berserker kind of things going on there they kind of fused the two elements of them next up we have a sony and mightyena apparently there's an sony and puchiana there's just no art of it but uh just kind of like normal um but this is uh a sony and mightyena it is a dark ground type now it got the ground additional type and it's probably a reference to like african hyenas and that that kind of like they like live in like that kind of plains deserty kind of area to it and that's just cool i i really like the the changing of like the full 
like huge amounts of fur that Mighty Anna has and you know thinning it down and turning it into more of this like mud like pattern and it looks like Mighty Anna actually evolves into Barbarina um which is super cool dark ground type we got the bone and like it's giving me like cubone the houndoom mighty enna fusion going on here that's super sick um and it it's generally just a really cool design it's a kind of a reference to uh the were hyena of africa which is super dope super do i'm sure there's where i in is other than africa like you know in other regions i'm pretty sure there's where i in is in like india and that kind of area too but super super cool um i i think that's really interesting it kind of gives me that obstagoon kind of feeling to it as well next up we've got two new pokemon and ground fighting types habitat and stretch ridge those are really cool i am interested in the whole shrubbery aesthetic um like i can get the ground typing more so from stretch ridge than i can from habitat um, I am assuming, like, the, the, the bushes are supposed to be kind of maybe, like, it's supposed to be disguising itself so that it can, like, evade from predator, predators. I'm not, I'm not 100% certain, like I said, haven't watched the videos, so once I do, I will get a better idea of that. I'm sure lots of people are going to correct me in the comments anyway, but, um, <laughs> still, um, I, I can, I can definitely get ground type from Strutridge. Not so much Habitat, but, uh, definitely Strutridge. Um, I guess, you know, Habitat kind of looks like it has that layered sediment kind of thing going on to it. But generally, ground fighting type, new type combination, super neat. Next up, we've got Halite, Sepaline, and Thar. And it's a grass rock type. Interesting. What? That's like giving me like... That, it's giving me like Reuniclus vibes, but like rock type. I'm interested in the grass typing. Is it supposed to be some like... Is it supposed to be like petrified wood? kind of a thing going on there like it's supposed to be like some kind of like petrified wood it, like wood encased in in rocks i'm not sure what this is a reference to but i'd love to figure that out it it's really really interesting and I, I do enjoy how like it starts to like more so break out of the rock and like kind of have the rock more incorporated into its um anatomy rather than just being in the rock and then having two little legs now it has like a rock and it's the tail is coming out of the backside it's got arms coming out of the side kind of a thing which is really it's just generally just an interesting concept and i'm, I'm excited to learn more about it next up we have suicban and mysoine um a ground and a ground poison type this is a really cute concept because it looks like suicban is like really like like uh, almost like germaphobic and like really uh, yeah it's got these like little gloves and masks to like cover itself it doesn't doesn't want to get dirty and stuff like that but then you trade it with some mud and then it gets all dirty and now it's poison type it's like yeah no i'm gonna embrace my you know my inner pig and you know go for it and get get all dirty in the mud um and it's kind of giving me peccary vibes peccary are these kind of pigs that roll around in the mud and they're extremely foul smelling so poison type would make sense for that i just generally enjoy this like going from this neat and orderly kind of uh pig to the you know down in the dirt you know muddy pig next up we've got giraffarin so this is an evolution to giraffarig and is part kieran now i really really appreciate the uh the uh, the giraffarin like it mixes in with giraffarig it's like you just changed like two letters and then and it made it the uh, like a uh, kieran part which is kind of cool it kind of goes in that same rhyming scheme that being said i kind of do wish it was kind of like near a kieran you know or something like that like the the inverse of kieran but it makes sense and it sounds it's it works it very much works and it, it kind of is in line with giraffarig giraffarin giraffarig it works um and it's a dragon psychic type super cool like it's very intimidating and it like leans more into that like draft aesthetic like being very tall and looming and that draconic like looming intimidation factor that like a lot of dragons have next up we've got plumace a flying dark type and oh my gosh is that terrifying um this is this is based on um some birds of paradise like there's a certain bird of paradise that can do this thing and it's supposed to like it where it like makes like a face and it's supposed to like be a courtship display but this looks terrifying it's really great like the way they did the smile at the teeth is really creepy it is not friend shaped <laughs> when a design can strike fear in you and make you feel something like that you know it's a good design next we've got sparkter and jolterra and they're an electric ghost type and i think electric ghost type definitely needs to be a thing aside from rotom there's so many avenues you could go with an electric ghost type and this is one of them and it's 
just super cute. Sparkter is so adorable, and even Jolterra is really, really cute. I think I think its face is super snowman-y. Very cute in that. It kind of gives me uh, Persona, uh, like Persona, Shin Megami Tensei Persona vibes. Um, I don't know why I said the full title. That's just literally why, why I felt like clarifying. Anyway, <laughs> um, Jolterra actually is kind of giving me... Um, the Guardian of Ansem and Kingdom Hearts 1 kind of gives me that same vibe as well. Next up, we've got Terrafract and Terraflect. And these dudes, uh, that Terrafract is giving me huge puppet from, from FNAF energy. Very creepy. Um, Ghost Dark type fits very well. Terraflect, not so much. It is kind of scary, but the way that Terrafract is looking at me, I do not like. <laughs> They almost look like they're beings from, like, another dimension. They have that kind of, like, digital, pixelized, kind of, like, floating aesthetic to them. Almost kind of, like, Porygon, but, like... Oh, and, and I'm and, and kind of FNAF in that way, where, like, they have, like, the pixelized, like, purple guy and stuff like that. Kind of gives me that same vibe to it. Next up, we have Glodal and Luminsect. Uh, bug lecture types... I am such an avid fan of the Bug Electric type. We've got Vicavolt. We've got Galvantula. I love though that that type combo is such a cool type combination, um, especially given that Bugs resist ground. So like I'm pretty sure ground becomes neutral, and so it really helps out that Electric typing for the Bug. Um, and I'm pretty sure Electric type does not cancel out Fire type. I'm probably wrong. Um, but as far as Glodal and Luminsect, uh, Glodal super cute. Little Firefly um, electric type kind of thing going on there. And Luminsect, I like that its whole body is kind of, you know, luminous. And, you know, kind of given the name. And it's just really simple with the electric elements incorporated into a more insectoid design. Next up, we've got Possessed. Um, I'm not sure if this is supposed to be like, like Possessed plus Insect or plus plus Infestation, maybe. Something to that regard. Um, it's a bug ghost type, which we haven't seen since Shedinja. So that's really cool. Um, and it's just kind of like this, got this like little, it's almost like Slimer from, uh, <laughs> from Ghostbusters kind of like energy, but like cuter, but like way cuter than, than Slimer, like super cute version of Slimer. Um, so I'm assuming it's got this like larval aesthetic to it. So maybe it'll evolve. We've got Vermant. So it did evolve from possessed Vermant, um, which is also bug ghost type. And it's kind of these floating limbs. I just think floating limbs on ghost types is just super cool. Um, and it it's almost giving me poison type. I'm not supposed. Sure, I'm not sure. That's like purple spot on it. It almost looks like it's supposed to be, like the like vermat's supposed to be see through, but it's not quite. Like it doesn't quite have the transparency to be see through, as at least on the image here. So, kind of interested in in if the, what that's supposed to be. But I guess I'll find out. Next up, we've got Offly, which is a trade evolution of vermat, and it is bug ghost type. So we keep that bug ghost type throughout the entire design. Um, which we love to see it. Three stage bug ghost type. Um, where, you know, gives it that true respect that it deserves. Um, giving it its own line, not just some kind of offshoot shell thing that it had with Ninkata and Ninjask. It, it's actually, you know, a full on, full fledged three stage line, which I really like. Um, and it looks like it's supposed to have this spiritual energy in its stomach, which is what I think Vermant was supposed to have. It didn't quite have the transparency, so that didn't kind of come across to me at first, but now I can kind of see that that's what it's supposed to be. Um, it's, the design to me is very interesting because the top kind of looks like this, like, itty bitty dude, like, mm, gonna get ya, like, but then the bottom is like this hulking, like, bug. Next up, we have Torpices and then Duncraft. That is sick. So it's a water steel type, um, and it is, uh, based on torpedoes and, like, uh, submarines, I think? That's, a, I think that's supposed to be the thing. It's, like, a torpedo that evolves into a submarine. Um, and it's supposed to be on Dunkleosteus, Dunkle, what was it called? Dunkleosteus, I, I'm pretty sure that's how that's supposed to be pronounced. Um, it's also the inspiration of, of the Vish part of the Galar fossils. Um, so that's super cool, and I really enjoy the whole fish combined with watercraft thing, or like, in this case, torpedo as well. Um, so fish combined with watercraft thing, water steel type is a really, really cool underused type combo, so... I greatly, greatly appreciate this line. I think uh, Dunkraft is particularly cool. Probably one I would have on my team. Next up, we have Stagmite and Actite, which are rock flying types. Super cool. Uh, you know, incorporating, you know, the stalag and stalagmites of, uh, of caves in with bats who usually typically hang out in caves and hang from the ceiling like a stalag stalactite. I'm pretty sure stalactite's the one that hangs from the ceiling. And stalagmites, yeah. Well, I mean, you can see here, stalagmite is on the on the ground, kind of 
resting on the ground and actite is you know has the once actually that's really a cool little uh design aesthetic that the the it's called stagmite and the little you know rocks are growing from up and then the actite the it's growing down from its wings that's super cool Actite is probably another one I think I would have on my team. Next up, we have Asonian Furret, which uh, there's an Asonian Sentret, just no art of it. Um, and it is a pure ice type, and it looks so, so cute. I think the little floof around its neck is super, super cute. I'm, I'm assuming this is based on, like, um, Least Weasel, which can have a fur coat, uh, like a snow coat. And then, like, there's the Ermine, I'm pretty sure can, that can do that as well. Um, so, like, they're kind of having a snow coat of, uh, like, the winter coat, not a snow coat, the winter coat of, of, of Mustelids and stuff like that. Um, and it's just kind of got this little snowman aesthetic to it. I like the, the changing of the um, the whiskers to these little ice crystals. Um, very simple, and, but effective uh, changed to make a really dope regional variant. Oh my goodness, we've got Burret. That is adorable and such a freaking cute name. And it's got fur coat. That's dope. Okay. Um, it's very long. Very big, long boy. Pure ice type. This is this really cool evolution to fur it, like a really well done um, way of handling it. And it's got this like crown on its head, and it's very royal. It got this like royal cape and royal crown kind of thing going on. Just the the king of the rodents, um, which I think is super super cool. No pun intended. Next up is Carbunk, and this is actually one of the ones I've seen before. Um, and I just I genuinely genuinely enjoy this mon. I, I think an evolution to Carbunk is super cool. Diancy are like mutated Carbank, so there's kind of like that kind of thing going on there. But seeing a true blue Carbank evolution, this looks like it would be a protector of, of you know, Diancy. I'm pretty sure Carbank are supposed to be protectors of Diancy, but um, seeing uh, like an actual full fledged like stone guardian, like Gollum almost, go like guardian to it. Um, you know, like I could see statues of Carbank like hanging out around like where you would maybe find uh, Diancy in the Asone region. Um, super cool. And those defense stats are cracked out the gills. My goodness. <laughs> Next up, we've got Asonian Azumarill, which apparently there is an Asonian Meryl. I it didn't say if there was an Asonian uh, Azuril, um, but this is a fire rock type uh, Azumarill, and it's kind of giving me almost Delta Pokemon from uh, from Pokemon Insurgents. That's, that's what it's giving me. It's very interesting. I wonder what kind of change brought this on i'll find out of course uh, but I'm, I'm wondering what kind of change brought on the full shift from water fairy to fire rock um so it's as far as the design goes really cool really well done and i like how they incorporated the you know kind of water pattern that uh, like the bubbles pattern that uh, azumarill has and turned it into more stones you know like you know the the stones being held together by like magma and stuff like that next up we have zapuni oh my goodness is this supposed to be like based on a like a pygmy marmoset is that what it's supposed to be um but it's it's just this little bean he's just this little bean tiny little cute big-eyed bean with a little electric tail he's so adorable <laughs> So cute. I I just, just it's there's something about this. It's just like it's the bean shape for me. It's friend shaped. It's hundred percent friend shaped. Oh boy, we've got ourselves an electric fire type in Activolt. This dude looks like he's he's about to teach some kind of aerobics class. I I like he just looks like he's ready to go. Like, let's go, let's get into it. I think like having energy, like the the idea of having energy, um, translating that into the electric typing like having just a lot of balled up energy is a super fun ad uh, design aesthetic next up we have laura surge and i really like this design i gen like this is another one that would be on my team the design of this is so well done um i'm not sure if the entire line is supposed to be based on loris's maybe i'm like different breed like kinds of different breeds different species of loris's um but i like the name i like the design concept and it generally looks like one of those just really epic mons that I would, you know, want to have on my team. Yo, we've got a Sonian Rotom. That, it's Ghost Poison. I'm pretty sure this is, like, supposed to be um, a reference to those, like, kind of, is, is it bacteria? Those kind of cells that have that, like, kind of, like, like almost, like, robot look to them. Um, it's very much that. I wonder, does it, like, get new forms? Or is it, like just purely this um i think that's super cool. ghost poison type by the way super type uh, super cool type combination that is only used by the ghastly hunter and gengar line like that is the only one that has ghost poison and i think that's such a shame because 
That's such a cool type combo. Let's get more of that type combo, please. Next up, we've got a Psychic type Spinda, which is so unique. And it, it, it's very much like, I, I think it's supposed to be a lava lamp. It looks like a lava lamp with its pattern. Um, and that's really cool because you could keep that whole thing about Spenda where it has the varying patterns because, you know, the lava lamps always moving, always changing, you know, so, so like you could keep that design uh, aesthetic to Spenda while giving it a new typing, which is super, super fun. I think that's such a fun regional variant. Spinda evolves into Swirl Lava, a fire psychic type. I kind of felt this this one coming on. Um, a fire psychic type makes sense for the lava lamp, that lava lamp design aesthetic. And it looks like uh, Swirl Lava has broken out of said lava lamp because it has these like glass like like almost pants going on, and it's just like spinning and it's crazy like all all this swirling energy like it's using like uh, telekinesis to hold all its like swirling elements together. Um, it almost looks like it could have a third arm going on underneath in this, like, little tummy section. Like, it's, it's like, it's craziness. But, um, I think as a uh, Spinda evolution, this is super well done and super neat. So, it looks like we've got Ventex, and it looks like this was probably a part of some kind of, um, challenge where they were trying to guess real or fake Pokemon, something like that. Um, so this is just, like, a little, like, almost crab or, uh, I'm not sure it's supposed to be a crab or a bug, but it's, like, a, you know, some kind of insectoid kind of thing with a vent coming out of it like a like a heat vent i'm not sure what the typing is there um but i'm sure that'll that's probably explained in the video i just can't i'm not listening to the audio i'm just looking at the designs here but generally kind of just a cool concept and i'm, I'm excited to see more about it next we've got a sonian lux man that's really really cool and really well done i love the flowing elements of uh, of its fur. It's got that split tail again, that, that Bake, uh, Bake Neko vibe. Um, and I like the little bits of crystalline, you know, little ice, little uh, pattern on its fur. This is so well done. Oh man, I really, I really enjoy that. And then a Sonian Luxray. It's got that flowiness to it. It's giving me like uh, Hisuian Zoroa vibes. And I dig it a lot. I love Hisuian Zoroa. Um, and this was probably made before Hisui and Zoro was a thing. So, um, really cool. Ice Fairy type also is a really cool type combo. I really like that type combo. Um, yeah, just generally a really, really epic regional variant. So we've had Smoke Cap and now we have Cap Frost. So this is a, a like, kind of like almost the antithesis to our Fire Starter, but it is a supposed to be the idea. It's supposed to be like a yak. Maybe I'm wrong. Um, but it, I really enjoy the use of it, like, having, like, this, this, uh, what's the word? Like, saddle. Like, saddle mix, like, mixed with the clothing and, like, and the, the hats. I'm not sure exactly what culture that comes from. I apologize in advance. I, I, but I've seen this before. I've definitely seen this kind of clothing before. And I, like I said before, I always enjoy when they kind of do nods to clothing in fur of Pokemon designs. Kavros evolves into Cryo Vibos or Cryo, Cryo Vibos. I guess I could listen to the video and find out, but anyway, um, I love the ice horns, like the hexagonal, you know, structured ice, like, like, like ice sculpture horns that it has, um, going on, and it just looks very bulky and beefy. It's really interesting. It has, it looks like it has a very high attack stat and a very high defense and special defense stat, which this thing looks like it would be pretty, pretty monstrous. Um, another one that I think I would add to my team. I usually like to do new Pokemon and regional variants and stuff like that. So, um, I'd probably pick this over a Sony and Luxray. Um, though I really do enjoy a Sony and Luxray. I always like using new Pokemon over regional variants. That's, but that's just me. Next up, we've got a Sony and Whale Lord. And apparently there is an Asonian Whale Lord. Then yet another one that doesn't have art made. But anyway, a Sony and Whale Lord giving me Sandworm from Dune vibes. Um, kind of almost giving me like a Monster Hunter uh kind of aesthetic to it which super cool this is also one of the ones i have seen before i i, I but i do like love the like idea of a like ground type whale that just buries its way through the earth next up we've got an evolution to shuckle called shuck castle which i think is such a clever name and the design is next level like if we ever get a shuckle evolution i hope this is it that is so cool, and it has like a kind of a gourd, like kind of like a like a like a like a storage gourd thingy, kind of like um, kind of like Gara from Naruto. It kind of has that same kind of aesthetic to it, and it looks like it has cannons coming out of everywhere. 
so cool and such a cool way of handling a Shuckle e evolution. Next, we have Clown9, another Psychic Fire type. Um, and it's just got this, this is just a, you know, gestury canine. <laughs> that's, the, that's the best way to handle it. I think the design's really cool and it incorporates the jester kind of aspects into it very well. Kind of gives me that like Lucario of the region vibe to it. Next, we've got Patrolith. And this is like, uh, this is so interesting. So it's like a, a turtle covered in oil, which is very sad. Um, water poison. But yeah, it's kind of got that thing about, you know, the, you know, the poisoning of the ocean and dumping oil into the ocean and covering uh, Pokemon or Pokemon animals. But in this case, Pokemon. But as far as the design goes, I think it is really interesting. I like, uh, I've, I've said this in the past, but I like it when there's patterns that aren't exactly like set patterns that it's very flowy and flows the design well i'm curious does it have one foot or is that like does it have only one fit back fin or are there two and it's just hidden i'm i'm unsure next i've got putridome which is really cool because it's like a sea turtle but it also is giving giving me like plesiosaurus vibes which is super neat um and it's got almost like this trippy it's, it's you know what it is it's the coloration is like the sheen on oil it has that kind of like rainbow sheen to it um, which is really, really, really neat way of incorporating that oil into the design itself. And generally, I, I, I'm digging the water types of this region. The, you know, Ron really has killed the water types of this region. And so I feel like, I feel like I'm going to have like a full team of water types. I've got to be a water type gym leader in a zone, you know? Next, we've got Madama. And this is super interesting because it looks like it's a snake with two faces. Um, and it also is kind of like the idea of being two-faced. Because it's fairy and poison type, which are kind of like types that are opposite of each other. So on one hand, you have this really nice forward-facing face that's like very like, you know, pretty and like, hey, I'm I'm your friend. And then on the other side, it's got this face that's very like malevolent looking like it's going to like, don't get too close or I'm going to get you kind of thing going on there. Next, we've got Claustrap. Um, is this supposed to be like a mixture of trap and claustrophobic? That's kind of cool. A bug steel type and two of its arms are these just big walls that it's holding up. I, I, it's, it's, I love, I love spider Pokemon. I think, like, we should do more. Let's do more fluffy, cool spider Pokemon. Like, Galvantula is super neat. And I just want more of that kind of design aesthetic going on. Um, so this really speaks to me. And I like that it, it kind of almost like it's camouflaging. Like, you couldn't see it, like, behind this wall. And it's, oh, is this supposed to be like a trap door spider? Duh, this is supposed to be like a trapdoor spider. So it's like trying to make you think, oh, you're about to walk into this wall, but actually, no, it's me. I'm going to eat you. Next up, we've got Menhis, which is a dragon grass type snake Pokemon, which is super neat. And I like that they've in like incorporated this like palm tree. Um, and they've incorporated that into these scales on the on the you know its neck, tail, and the like underside of it. And that's super neat. That's a super way of making like a snake Pokemon look intimidating. It's like a rattlesnake in that way. Like rattlesnakes have these very like sharp looking scales. Um, and that's so neat. And I like the way they gave it like little fringe on its chin and that's you know, a little hairline there. Really cool. It actually looks like Menace has another form where it's like kind of dried up like this dried up tree. Uh, I'm very interested to learn uh, what, what, what causes that. Echleon evolution and it's Psycholeon, a normal psychic type. Um, and so it's got this new ability called pigmentation. I wonder if it's like, you know, keeps the primary typing um, or changes the primary typing and keeps the secondary typing. Um, so it, like it becomes, you know, water psychic or fire psychic the second that it gets hit or something like that. Um, but as far as the design, it's a really solid chameleon Pokemon. Like it's a, you know, just in general, a really solid evolution to Kecleon. It really improves upon those little elements, expanding that little red stripe across his stomach and making this like, you know, multi-layered color blocked kind of design it's super super neat and really well done next up we've got Sailumen, and it's actually a fire dragon type which is interesting because uh they just decided to forego the primary rock typing um i think that's kind of become like a thing that like people really want to see the original typings of these revived fossils so i'm curious how he explained away um getting rid of that primary rock typing um but uh, aside from that I think this is the really, really cool design. It's uh, supposed to be a Spinosaurus, I assume. It's going to evolve into a Spinosaurus. Um, and as far as, like, a Spinosaurus baby mon goes, this is really cute and really... But also, like, has that draconic and, like, really fun typing. And it, it, it kind of has, like, this explosion 
kind of aesthetic to it within the eyes on the stomach in like in the tail and even on the spine like it looks like it's kind of like exploding and um this is a really really well done design i'm really really like this one next up we've got bradiates um that is so neat the fire dragon type this is this definitely has to be on my team i really like this and i like the pattern incorporated onto the side and almost like the mask kind of thing it has going on its face it's really really neat wow next up we've got basilapis and it is a water dragon type instead of a fire dragon type so both of these fossils have dragon type in them and basilapis so i'm assuming uh basilosaurus plus lapis lazuli um you know because it's famous for being very very blue um but as far as just a you know fossilmon this is next up we've got Drownormus. so it's water dark type so it completely abandons that dragon typing i understand the design very much screams water dark type but i could also see like it changing uh like not having such of a dark coloration maybe being a lighter color kind of like it's pre-evolution and keeping that water dragon type this does still scream like say water dragon type to me um but i'm very interested as to why he decided to change it to water dark type um maybe to avoid it completely being the same but i would have just made the first stage just pure water at that point i don't know that that's just me next up we've got paraterra another normal ground type in this region and those stats are b -b busted my guy 105 hp 130 attack and 120 defense wow this dude is physical let's get physical my goodness um but as far as the design goes i think this is really really, really neat design i think this is based on uh another fossil yeah this is a fossil so this is a normal ground type fossil um i'm very interested what like how is he going to explain away the uh, lack of rock typing um i could see this easily as a rock ground type as well um but as far as the design, we got that layered sentiment kind of going on, the chunky mud kind of uh, design going on there, mixed in with this kind, of, this uh, like almost uh, Okapi kind of design. I'm pretty sure this is supposed to be like an ancestor of the Okapi and the giraffe. I'm pretty sure that's what this is supposed to be based on. I'm not 100% certain. I know. Don't come for me, paleontology community. <laughs> oh my goodness! It looks like we've got Dredagon, and it's a dragon rock type. Me and Ron, same wavelength. I have my um, my Geno Stratagon, which is uh, Dragon Rock type as well. And it, this one looks like it adds more craggy elements than more of my like the the you know Mayan aesthetic I did with uh, the Geno Stratagon um, of Cornera. Um, but I really really like this. It it um, it has like super villain energy to it, and I, that adds that to that dread uh, part of the Dredagon. Oh my gosh! It looks like we've got an Evolution, which is Alluvion. And I genuinely enjoy this design. I love how he kept it simple. It seems that Ron really understands that not every, you know, design has to be overly designed, especially when it comes to evolutions. A lot of evolutions are so over designed, but this one keeps it keeps it simple. Has this little collar on its neck, has a little thing on its eye, so you can say, oh, oh yeah, that's that's you know that's a nod to uh, uh, Egyptian. And it's even got the tail, the way of the tail shaped. It's kind of like a like a a crook. It's even got like a, a like a crook in its tail. So, like the little subtle design details that make it a solid evolution. Next up, it looks like we've got Drakeon. Um, and this one's giving me kind of Vaporeon vibes. Um, and we've got this like really long flowing fur, kind of that like um Chinese or Japanese dragon kind of aesthetic going on to it. Very the very much the wise dragon. And these little scales added throughout are really, really neat and add to this design. Next up, we've got Metallion, which I think is a great name for an evolution. Um, steel type, and it's just got these armory vibes to it. This little, you know, plating along its back. Very, very simple. Very elegantly done uh, steel type evolution. Next up, we've got Spectreon, and another very simple little design thing going on here. We got the got the little stripes in the back, the wispy hair and tail. And boom, evolution. Very simple. Like I'll, uh, I, th I think like that. It the simplicity of it is really what like makes me drawn to this evolution. I think Alluvion and Spectreon are probably my two favorites um, of these. I'm not sure if he's gonna do every type, but it looks like he's done Ghost, Steel, Dragon, and Ground. So um, I don't know if we'll go all the way and do all of them, but it looks like four is is currently what we've got going on. Next up, we've got Infantrek, which is infant plus something. I'm not sure what the trek part is, but it is a pure poison type. I think pure poison types are super cool. I, I think there should be more pure poison types. I'm sure there's a lot already. I'm pretty sure there's a ton in Gen 1 and there's one in Gen 3. 
I can't think of any off the top of my head, but I think pure poison types are fun. I just think that's cool. And this lizard just being simple, like it's, it's you know, it, it looks like it probably could be ground poison as it evolves. It's kind of got this like pottery aesthetic going on to it. I think it's super cool. I'm excited to see how this evolves. All right, we've got Cap Toxic. So maybe like Captain plus Toxic, like it looks like it's leading these in fan track and it's a poison dark type that's cool poison dark is a fun type combo you know we've got um drapion there with the the poison dark typing and their only weakness is ground i'm pretty sure so that's super cool um but as far as the design goes it's kind of giving me you know komodo dragon bipedal komodo dragon with these like armor elements which is super neat Ooh, we've got vera lurk is this our this is our uh our pseudo legendary i just realized it's a poison dark pseudo legendary no dragon to be found that's cool and it looks like it's almost like its body is made up of like this like vial of poison like you can see like there's these poison stored in its cheeks and maybe like it looks like it's throughout its body maybe that's neat it looks very very intimidating um very much that in line with that pseudo vibe very and also that komodo dragon vibe that i was talking about with uh with its previous form it's very very oh, wow a poison dark pseudo super unique looks like we've got our first of the legendaries i think this is azarera azarera I, i'm not sure how to pronounce it uh, psychic steel type um and i think this design is super neat very like i'm, I'm, I'm unsure what the, the design aesthetic of the two legendaries is supposed to be but to me this looks very modern maybe this is supposed to be like like past versus present kind of thing um it's very much giving me you know digital like new age you know that psychic steel type is you know kind of like that, that like that kind of thing that new age aesthetic to it it's also giving me that baphomet kind of vibe um with the the wings and then the horns so i wonder if that was some kind of um like there was some kind of uh allusion to that in its um oh it says like the forbidden knowledge book one oh so maybe it is kind of like supposed to be that kind of like almost satanic like fallen angel kind of thing going on to it next up we got shemarera which is the hidden technique pokemon fighting ghost type and it uh, shares that with um with marshadow and it almost has like the same kind of marshadow esque plume kind of thing like helmet thing going on with his uh with this thing i wonder if there's any kind of relation there looking at the dex entry it does have some kind of uh relation to marshadow there so that's really cool really nice little nod and giving a little bit more lore to Marshadow um, is really cool. Next up, we've got Emissarif, and this is, yeah, Emissary. So, an Emissary plus Seraph, very dark type, which is so neat because it is actually gives me very much Draconic vibes, but, like, I could have seen Fairy Dragon for this, but Fairy Dark is really well, like, works really well with it, and I love, like, the biblical feeling it has to it this is very almost like it has very Quasar vibes too um it's supposed to and I think it's supposed to because I think it's supposed to have that like that uh you know middle ground between the two or not middle ground but that uh that trio leader vibe to it it's very much giving me Absol like mega Absol vibes and I just read a little bit of the decks and it says that it actually created Absol in its own image which is super cool and also has like some uh relation to Arceus it's just like literally just an emissary for Arceus also very cool and it looks like Emissarif actually has another form, which is so cool because it is based on biblically accurate angels, which I love. And seraphs in general, seraphs are that what I want to say, biblically accurate angels. Seraphs are what come to mind. Seraphs are so cool, and like the twisting and the, all the thousand eyes and wings. And so this incorporated into a Pokemon design is really, really neat. And I think it works really well. Next up, we have Crocosmic, which is a water psychic type. I love the idea of a cosmic alligator. I'm not sure. I think it's supposed to be a legendary. Okay, yeah, its height is 32 feet. So I'm assuming this is supposed to be some kind of legendary or mythical. Po I like the way that Ron does like cosmic, um, like the psychic cosmic energy kind of thing. I really enjoy the way that he does this in his designs. Next up, we've got Nemetophyse, which is a ground dragon type. And I, I thoroughly enjoy this. This is supposed to be like called the... Oh, man, I... I said this and people corrected me. There's thing called, called like the Scaly Devil, I think. Is this like the name? Something like that. And I know people are still going to correct me. Um, but this thing is 65 feet tall. <laughs> wow. Okay. That's really cool. I like that they... I, I This is another one I feel like Rock could also fit really easily. Just because of the craggy elements to it. Like, once again, ground rock type, very hard to differentiate between di design wise. So, next up, we've got Macog, an ice steel type. This thing is 13 feet tall. That is huge. This is a big boy. 
Um, I like the the incorporation of the of the ice steel type into a Norse kind of inspired thing. Plus, like the macaque, you know, like combining a macaque with a Norse, you know, a, a design aesthetic. Like, who would think of that? That's like wild, and I and I love it. And like like the um, I was gonna say the cryogonal. <laughs> I mean, it works. The hexagonal um, little cryogenic. <laughs> Man, I really cannot uh, I cannot escape cryogonal in the brain. The, the, the hexagonal ice-like features on its arms and legs and then like going into these like Norse rune bracers is really cool and I like the the Norse helmet and it looks like it has like that thousand yard stare kind of going on like it looks like it can see through your soul like and I really dig that next up it looks like it has a counterpart called Babog um, and I'm not sure what the design aesthetic this is supposed to be replicating um, I can't attest to it but it, I'm assuming some maybe kind of Arabian vibe going on there but I think that they might be supposed to be kind of, yeah, they're, they're the invading Pokemon. Um, so maybe they're supposed to be based on separate kinds of invaders, like Vikings invading, and and then this maybe some kind of invader of of uh, of the you know Arabian inv invader that I'm I'm not 100% sure sure here. I am talking out of my butt. So, <laughs> um, but as far as the design, I, I rock steel type, it it goes it like the bracers are really cool because it kind of has that layered sediment thing to it as well as the helmet has that layered sediment thing to it in you know getting that rock typing in there and then like kind of like a stalagmite um tail i got the stalagmite right stalagmite because of that bat i remembered thank you <laughs> thank you ron you helped me learn the difference today um <laughs> um but yeah generally like the spiky kind of energy very much feels rock type to me next we have alexano a fighting fairy type a new type combo and this is very interesting to me from a design perspective. This has to have some kind of like mythological basis to it because it is so unique and different like uh, as far as like a Pokemon goes. It looks very like sage, like very, very, very wise lion. Like you'd come to Alexano to like learn the secrets of the universe. And maybe Alexano is supposed to be like a, um, like a reference to like the Library of Alexandria. Next up, we've got Adolucent. And that's so, that's so neat. It's giving me uh, the Kodama from uh, Princess Mononoke, and I think they're in um, uh, Totoro as well. But the Kodama, the the tree spirits um, from from those two movies, are uh, like that's the, exactly what this is giving me. And it's got this stained glass thing. It's very much like stained glass art, and like the color mapping, color blocking is super cool. And like a lot of the time, Pokemon will use only four or five colors per the design, but for this. It makes so much sense to have like all these different colors and it's, it's really just cool the way it like it's very it's just beautiful it really is it's just beautiful and cute at the same time okay so we have an evolution to many are called Kometa and it's giving me like Ledian vibes <laughs> um like the body shape is very like Ledian um but a rock psychic type and I just I I know honestly I do think that uh many should have gotten an evolution and I like how it's kind of bursting out of the shell that uh, that Minior had and using it as a pants and collar, that is extremely clever. And I'm also realizing each little spike from Minior expanded to like like a, a headpiece and then it's little like cone-like arms and legs. That's insanely clever and I really, really, really like that. Next up is Dracosmic, a rock dragon type. And this thing is giving me the dragon statues from Spyro 1,010%. That's, oh my gosh, I, I I love Spyro. Spyro is one of my childhood games I played on the PS1. So fun, and I loved freeing those dragons, but I loved the look of the dragon statues, and that's exactly what this feels like to me. Um, and I just, again, once again, I love the way that Ron does cosmic. I love the way that he does this cosmic kind of feeling to it. For the Asson region, so thank you so much to Ron for letting me review this region. It was very fun time. I very much enjoyed it. I'm very much excited to watch the full series and get the lowdown on what all these Pokemon were about. But if you guys enjoyed, make sure to let me know which one was your favorite in the comments down below and hit that like button, subscribe, and hit that notification bell to keep up to date with future videos. And with that, I will see you guys next time. Hey everybody, Brandon here, and welcome to another region review where we review different regions around the Fakemon community. Today, we're going to be taking a look at Trainer Matt's Arcadia region. If you guys remember, a while back, we actually reviewed Matt's Norden region, which was such a fun time. I very, very much enjoyed that concept, and I'm really excited to see what he does with a Grease-based region. 
But before we get into this region review, make sure to hit that like button, subscribe, and hit that notification bell to keep up to date with future videos. And starting us off, kind of odd, but the fire starter is starting us off. Usually it's the grass starter, but we have the fire starter Cathlaze, which is a fire bull Pokemon. You know, going along with that, you know, Chinese Zodiac, the Ox. So we've got a bull. I'm imagining because this is, you know, Grease Space region, we might be getting a Minotaur kind of thing going on here. But we'll, we'll see uh, as it evolves. But right now, it's just pretty cute and simple. It's just, you know, a little red calf with a fiery tail and just a cute expression. And I like that its uh, nose has, like, kind of that, like, you know, Greek kind of, like, ionic pillar kind of thing going on to it. That swirliness that you kind of... Uh, um, associate with the Greeks and the Roman kind of architecture kind of thing going on there. Next up, we have Fani, the grass deer starter of the region, which is really cool. I'm imagining maybe some kind of satyr thing going on. We got the minotaur and the satyr, which is essentially half man, half bull, half man, half goat, or half deer, maybe in this case. I'm not sure. Um, I'm very excited to see how these, these you know, starters are going to evolve. But yeah, grass deer, you know, I, I love grass deer starters, you know, I have an elk based one in Cornera. So I genuinely think this is pretty cute. The, the, you know, Matt's has the cuteness factor. If you watched our Norden video, you'll know Matt's just knows how to make them cute and they just make my heart explode. So I'm very excited to see what direction this takes. Next up, we've got Finaqua and it's our water starter and it's a shark, which is particularly interesting because Usually, the water starter is amphibious, meaning it can be on land or water. Semi-aquatic is also a word. Um, usually, they, usually, they can be on land and water. Um, but it's really interesting to me because this is fully aquatic. So, never seen something quite like this. I'm excited to see if, like, maybe it develops to be semi-aquatic. Maybe it grows legs. Maybe a Garchomp moment kind of thing. I'm not sure. But as it is right now, I'm very intrigued as to what the potential of this starter can be. As it is right now, it's pretty simple. Um, it's just a simple shark Pokemon. But I like I like that it differs from like sh the you know likes of Sharpedo, um, in in that it's like actually like it's shaped like a shark rather than just half shark cut off with X on face and savage teeth. And you know it it just is pure water, um, not really anything crazy or you know intimidating about it right now. Um, but I'm excited to see how all three of these starter lines, you know, evolve and what they move into. I'm pretty sure Matt's did this the same way he did Norden, where the evolutions come throughout the region. It's not going to be like immediate thing, so um, we'll see them as they come. And looks like we have our Route 1 bird. It is Chippered, which is kind of a cute... He's a chipper bird. That's cute. And uh, I like the simplicity of it. It's very pure flying type, which is cool. And I really like the coloration that, like, you know excuse me, that like straw yellow against the like the black is really appealing to my eye. Um, I'm very, like, I, I also like that it's friend shaped. It's definitely very, very friend shaped circular. I'm like, I'm such a fan of like the cute little round boys. Those are just like, I don't know, those make me just super happy. So let's see how this thing evolves. It evolves into Chickick, which is a fighting rooster. So flying fighting rooster. That's super cool. And I like that it's not traditionally rooster colors. I um, wonder what kind of rooster this is based on. Maybe it's based on a specific kind of rooster. I mean, there's the... Uh, I'm sure there's, like, a specific fighting rooster kind of rooster. I said... I've, how many times am I going to say rooster? Oh, my God. Um, but Chickick itself, I really enjoy the design. Simple, yet effective. And I love the flying fighting type. But, you know, my boy, Halucha. I love Halucha. So this is kind of speaks to that kind of flying fighting type combination. It's just great. It's just great. It evolves further into Harp harpies are oh it's a it's a harpy oh i did not put that connection together that that's what this could be but i love that wow i really like the way that they handled the harpy that's cool like a rooster harpy that's sick okay so it's like a like okay i'm sorry this is really interesting to me i really like the you know, usually the starters go kind of bipedal, humanoid, but you never see the bird do that. So that's a really interesting take. Wow. Okay. I really like. I really like the the one being uh, bird being a harpy. That's a that's a really really cool take. Wow. Okay. We have our root one bug here, which is Krillump. Um, that's super cute. It's just pure bug. Um, kind of like an ant. Uh, what? It's a cricket. It's supposed to be a cricket. Okay, okay. I can see that. I'm, I'm curious where the cricket elements are going to come in, I assume, probably in its evolution. Or maybe it'll go a completely different direction. We'll see. 
Next up, we've got Dralibra. Yo. This thing is wild. Okay, so it's a, our first bug dragon, new type combo. Um, but it went from like a cricket to a dragonfly that has these giant ass googly eyes on the end of its tail. What? Dude, this thing's crazy. Like, it's giving me, it's giving me Yen Mega, but like, it, it, I don't know. Honestly, to me, it almost feels like a Yen Mega variant. I hate doing that because I hate, I hate like trying to say something that feels like a variant. But to me, this feels more like close to a Yen Mega um, variant than it does like a, a new original Pokemon. Um, and so, that, but the googly eyes are what is throwing me. That <laughs> Uh, are those actual eyes, or are they just play eyes? Okay, it uses its tail to hunt tiny Pokemon, is looks what it says. I wonder what Pokemon is trying to replicate, or if it isn't even trying to replicate a Pokemon. Maybe it's just like, oh, my eyes are actually very friendly, when in the fracture at the front of my face, they're very, very red and angry. So, hmm. Looks like we have our Pika clone, maybe? It's a normal electric type, so maybe it's the Route 1 rodent? But it's called Tesleaf. Um, obviously, Tesla plus teeth. It's the Volt Bu Volta Bunny Pokemon, and yeah, I'm giving like I'm getting like plus or minus infusion things going on here. Um, <laughs> the description, the description says this is what happens when plus or minus take their time. If you know what I mean. <laughs> oh boy, but yeah, this is cool. I kind of like the idea. Like I would, I always thought it would be kind of cool to see a plus or minus infusion. Or like maybe a third version, like a like an origin form of Plusle and Minin that's purple or something. I've always wanted to see, kind of see that. So I'm, I'm a little confused as if this is the Route One Rodent or if it's the Pika Clone or if it's maybe both. We'll, we'll we'll see. We'll see. Looks like we've got Weaver, but which is a bug grass type Weaver uh, Orb Weaver spider, which is super cool. And I like it's kind of giving me these like Hollow Knight vibes on its tail. That's really cool. It just looks kind of goofy and fun, and I, I like that. It just kind of looks like one of those goofball Pokemon you'd see in the anime, just, you know, being goofy, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Design-wise, I like the coloration. It's kind of got a lemon-lime kind of coloration going on to it with that that black against it, which is pretty uh, unique and, and just gives that, that fun pop to this already goofy kind of uh, spider Pokemon. It looks like it evolves into Toxido. Um, which is poison grass, got rid of that bug typing, kind of pulling a uh, Skorupi Drapion, Drapion, I don't know how you pronounce it, but it's one of those. Um, it's pulling that kind of move on there, and I really, I think this design is interesting because it like very much desaturates the goofy um, colors of its previous form uh, uh, of Weverb, um, and which is interesting because it like really ups the. Um, you know, that poison feeling, because that desaturatedness, and then they add, like, that purple in there, it makes it feel very much like poison ivy, or maybe rose vines, something like that. It's very interesting, a very, very cool design. I wonder, I wonder if this is supposed to be based on Arachne, obviously I based my legend Arachnera off of Arachne as well, so I'm curious if that's what this is supposed to represent, or if it's just, you know, a uh, fun Spider-Mon. Next up, we've got Ampharade, which is a water psychic amphora with a little water hair coming out of it. That's super cute. I, re I like, I really like, um, like object Pokemon. I feel like object Pokemon are heavily underrated. A lot of fake Mon regions will just focus on the animals. I fell on, fall in prey to that myself, where you'll just focus on the animals of the region. You won't focus on the objects and the culture and other aspects of that region. Um, to make Pokemon and so using this kind of amphora is, is really cool and it's kind of I wonder if it's supposed to be like Represent Aquarius or something like that like because that and, and Aquarius has the amphora that they pour out and maybe something like that But really cool and I, I, I dig the psychic typing the psychic typing comes in in a subtle way of, of the coloration with a little bit of like a oh, this is a alive Object so it's gonna have you know some kind of sentience that kind of psychic typing you know that elevated mindset of a of a inanimate object kind of thing which is super i just I, I genuinely enjoy this i wonder if it's gonna evolve it does and it turns into ampharel and it is the it's the aquarius pokemon so i called it that's awesome um i really like the way he incorporated aquarius that's such a unique like concept of of taking aquarius and making it based on the thing she's holding or or it's holding i'm pretty sure it's supposed to is, is she I'm, i don't know 
I'm not trying to misgender constellations here, I guess. Um, but <laughs> but it is really unique to to use the amphora part of Aquarius into a you know a design like this. I think this is so elevated. This is like a very elevated way of of handling the design of an Aquarius Pokemon, and I really really like this. I would definitely have this one on my team. I haven't picked my starter yet because I like to wait till the final evolution. Call me a coward, I guess. Whatever. But I mean, whatever. Next up, we have Leoxin, and it's a Manticore Pokemon. That's interesting. Okay. I It's a dark poison type, and it's giving me Litleo vibes, but, like, also it's got these, like, three little tufts, like these stinger tufts on its face. I'm very interested to see how this evolves, but, like, honestly, I really dig how they handled this because this, like, a Manticore Pokemon is so hard to do. How do you handle a Pokemon that essentially has two sentient beings on it. And I like the way they did it with this one. They made like it them each have like this like they kind of have this like relationship. You can see it. Like they they they're like they're friends. They're friends attached to the same body, you know, cat dog kind of thing going on there. Um instead it's cat snake, I guess. But I just think I really, really enjoy the way he handled it. Next up we have Chimerion, which is so cool. Oh my gosh, I really, really like the way they handled this evolution. Because if you look back at, at its previous stage, they looked really happy and friendly, both of them. Together, these friends that are on the same body grew together. They are like the Chimerion, it, like the face, is, I should say the, the face, both faces are very serious. Like they're very like determined looking and they evolved together from this more friendly look to this more determined look, which is such a smart way. It tells a story of these two Pokemon, which is it's just genius. It's just genius. The way to handle two Pokemon, two Pokemon on one body, really, really, really well done by Matts. I I really like this. This is another one I would probably put on my team. Next up, we have Belanter, a Rock Psychic type, and it looks like it's those like stone towers that you get to like try and you like balance all these differently shaped rocks on top of each other to like make this really cool tower kind of thing. It's very interesting concept of using that like balance. You know the. The, uh, what's the word? The, that meditative kind of, you know, balance, harmony and all things kind of thing equating to a rock psychic type, I think is really interesting. Next up, we have Librebium. Lib, Libreb, 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 Libreb. Oh, Lib, Libra. Okay. Oh my gosh. So we had Aquarius. I'm assuming that that the last one was supposed to be Leo constellation. And now we're at the Libra constellation. I wonder if we're going to get all of the constellations. That's really cool. Um, but this is, yeah, Rock Psychic type Libra Pokemon, and the way they're handling the balance is the balancing of, oh my god, Matt's dude, you are so clever. Wow, that's super clever. I really enjoy that concept. Wow, that's a really, really clever way of handling that. Okay, next up we have Azurine, the pony Pokemon, and it's looking like it's going to be some kind of Pegasus. It's a normal, pure normal type, which is interesting to me. Um, or is it Azurine, Azurine or Azurine? I'm, I'm not sure. But a normal type horse Pokemon, I would almost, it, the wings, usually things that have wings are, are, are associated with the flying type. So I'm curious to see if this is going to evolve into more of an actual Pegasus and then gain the flying type. Or if he's going to go a completely different direction with it. We'll, we'll see. Next up we got Pegaspark. So it completely changed his typing to electric flying. So we've gone full on like Storm Pegas Pegasus, Pegaspark, I like that. Electric Hoof Pokemon. So it, it's looking to me like we're not actually gonna get the all of the uh, the constellations unless this is a constellation I'm not 100% sure. I mean, I, I'm assuming there's probably a Pegasus constellation, but I was thinking of like the Zodiac, the, uh, you know, the horoscope kind of <laughs> constellations, you know what I'm saying? Astrology, that's the word, astrology. The astrology constellations are the ones I was thinking of. So it looks like we're probably not going to go that direction. Maybe the, all of them are going to be based on constellations of some sort. I don't know. We'll see. Next up, we've got Cortac, which is a rock ghost type. Interesting, the rock ghost type, because I kind of see this more as a steel. But it looks like the Blades of Chaos from God of War, which is interesting to me. Um, I'm, 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 I'm curious to see... Uh, like what the really I don't know if like the blades of chaos were an actual Greek weapon or if they were just basing this on that uh, I guess we'll see I, I hope it evolves so we can get a further maybe explanation there next we have Corenz the defensive Pokemon it's rock ghosts continuing and it looks like it's it's got two shields now rather than two oh actually wait hold on maybe these are a part of a like a kind of a trio thing where they're not exactly you know uh, they're not exactly of evolutions, but kind of that same, like kind of like the pan slash simis kind of thing going on. So we have Cortac, 
Corrents, so attack and defense. I mean, is there going to be a third one? No, it's going to be Cortac evolving into Shablade. And we got a kind of a, a Spartan kind of thing going on here with, with that, like, I guess the Ghost of Sparta. There you go. Boom. There it is. It's Kratos, everybody. <laughs> but overall, this design is interesting. It doesn't, to me, doesn't do much crazy differently than, the, uh, like, serve a crazy different purpose than, than Aegislash, in my opinion. But that's just me. Next up, we've got Fantagious. Now, this is cool. I actually really enjoy this. This seems like something like very, very different to me, like a shield-based Pokemon rather than a sword. I don't feel like we have a shield-based Pokemon, do we? If we if we do, someone's gonna leave a comment saying something like, "Oh, blah, nah, 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 cry softly" or something. I don't know. Whatever. I'm over it. <laughs> Sorry, guys. I'm on one. <laughs> I'm on something for this region review. Anyway, continuing on. Next up, we have Gladiator. Uh, which is a rock dark type. Let me see. It says, when Shablade is traded with a Fantagious, it will evolve into Gladiator. Okay. So we've kind of got a, um, we've kind of got a Carablast Shelmet thing going on here. Okay. I, I see that. I see that. Uh, I like this a little bit better than Shablade because it's, it seems like it seems, it, 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 it kind of gives me like Gengar mixed with Aegislash mixed with, you know, Phalanx kind of thing. I know this this was made before Phalanx was a thing, so I don't like to compare Pokemon to Pokemon, you know, because this was made before that. Um, but that's kind of what it's giving me, and it's it's really an interesting concept. Um, and it's also got this kind of like telekinesis thing going on with the blades. I'm interested to see if we'll get the reverse for Fantasius. And we do, we get Pro Gladior, um, and it's a Steel Ghost. So one goes Rock go ro Rock Dark, and the other goes Steel Ghost. That's cool. I like the, like, faces on the shields, and I like how the Miasma is kind of more of a Spiritomb color, color. Um, so they kind of have that distinct difference. One is more red and black, the other is more, like, violet and pink um, kind of a thing going on there. And I like the way they did the, in, like, inscription on the side of the shield. It's very, like, Gollum, or, go ah, Gollum. Galette and Golurk, um, uh, Golurk. But these two lines are pretty interesting. I, I like I like the whole gladiator aesthetic that they have going on there. Um, adding that reference to those, you know, the, both the defensive and the offensive. I'm assuming this guy is super duper defensive, especially and uh, physically, and the other guy is super like glass cannon, you know, super high attack, super low defense kind of thing going on. Looks like we have the evolution to Cafle's Bolarge. Um, that's an interesting one. It's just bull plus large. Um, but it's pure fire type still. Haven't gotten that secondary typing yet. Um, and I, I like these small little additions to this line, making it a little bit bigger, giving these flame, you know, hooves things. And then horns are a little bit bigger, kind of getting into that teenager feeling uh, for this bull. Um, and I assume like this, you know, this, you know, uh, was it the right? <laughs> The right's um, hoof getting up, I'm assuming, is probably like kind of a reference to like, oh, he's probably going to get up and become a Minotaur. It kind of looks like it already could be bipedal. It looks like it could stand up on its back two legs already to me. But um, we'll see. Quote of the video. We'll see. Next up, we got Fawnade. Fawnade's evolution. Still got that grass, so we haven't gotten our secondary typing on this line yet either. Um, and it looks like it has a little stick. Is Fawnade supposed to be like Fawn plus Serenade, maybe? Um, cause maybe that stick will turn into some kind of flute. Currently it looks like a weapon of some kind. Um, like he looks like he's ordering someone. Maybe it's supposed to be like the Pied Piper where, you know, he, like he plays a tune and something like that. I'm, I'm unsure. Um, but generally as far as this design, it's already become bipedal here. So, um, the, you know, Fawny was, was quadrupedal. Now we're bipedal on this one. It makes me question whether, whether or not he's going to do two bipedal Pokemon. I mean, we've gotten three bipedal Pokemon in the past, so I don't even know what I'm saying. But I like the uh, pattern. Kind of looks like a helmet and armor. Kind of like, like a soldier of some kind. So I find that really, really interesting. I always like when the fur pattern is, looks like clothing. That's kind of like a aesthetic I just enjoy in Pokemon. So um, we'll see what the evolution for our water starter is. We've got Bladerine. Uh, so we've got Marine plus Blade, the Sharp Fin Pokemon. So I'm see, thinking Water Steel. Um, I'm wondering, so Water Steel, maybe Grass Fairy, and then Fire Fighting? Uh, maybe. <laughs> we'll see. Um, but as far as a teenager, this feels a little bit too final stagey for me. Um, they, it did, they did, he did make simple changes by enlarging it, but I just feel like the proportions are a little too big for a mid-stage. That's just me. Um, 
me being critical as I am, that that's just a nitpick. This the the, the um the hands and the tail remind me of a uh, Titus's blade from Final Fantasy uh, X. All of them, like well, not all of them, but most of them have that kind of like hook on them. Um, so this is kind of giving me that energy. Yeah, I'm thinking water, steel, grass, fairy, fire fighting. Maybe we'll see. We've got Medusa tit. <laughs> I think it's supposed to be Medusa teat, like. Petite, but it's just, <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm a child. Anyway, we have another example of a Pokemon where it's two po two Pokemon on one body. This one's Fairy Poison, so it kind of counteracts our uh, our, our uh, Manticore Pokemon here. Um, but it kind of looks like um, Ekans, like a baby Ekans or something. Um, <laughs> those who think they're cool by writing tits even acknowledges it in the description. <laughs> Oh, man. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry, Mats. Oh, man. I fell right into that trap. Wow. Okay. <laughs> anyway, I like this Pokemon. It's very cute. I like the whole snake scarf aesthetic thing it has going on with it. Next, we have Gorgadel, um, which is really cool. And now we have the two snakes. Um, and they're still going on that, like, scarf aesthetic. We're kind of getting a Curlia... You know, we have Ralts to Curlia kind of thing going on here. I wonder if this is going to be the fairy grass, you know, psychic waifu of the region. I'm assuming so. Yep, we have Venomusa, which is probably the fairy waifu of this region, which is super cool. Um, I like that it has three snakes now. It went from one to two to three um, snakes, which is kind of given that like Doduo Dodrio kind of thing going on there. Um, and generally, I like the way that he does like this humanoid shape. It very much feels like... A friendly Pokemon um, while still being pretty menacing because it's, you know, a Medusa. Fairy poison typing for Medusa feels very, you know, appropriate. It feels like that, like, that fairy typing of it being a, you know, a mythological creature along with it having the poison type because of snakes. It just, it really makes sense. Next up, we've got Sheeper. Um, it is a normal grass type ram Pokemon, which is super cool. I really like the color of its, like, fur. It's, like, what what is it called? It's, um, it's fleece. Hold on, hold on. Wait, wait, wait. Is this going to be the Golden Fleece? Is this going to be a reference to the, the Golden Fleece? Are we going to get like a Steel Grass type here? Okay, I'm, I'm excited. I got to see this now. Yo, we've got Capricarge. No, actually not at all the Golden Fleece. This is supposed to be um, Capricorn. Okay, so we're going back to the constellations. So we're just spreading them throughout. Maybe I've just been missing which constellations are which. Now that I'm thinking about it, I feel like some of these could also still be constellations. Like Medusa could be Ophiuchus. I think it's Ophiuchus or Serpens um, constellations. Those are all. Those are both snake constellations. So maybe we're still going along with this constellation. Maybe everything in this region is a constellation. I just have no idea. But generally, I really enjoy the way they incorporated the rock typing into this, making those big rocky horns and then having these vines. But they also kind of look like almost rocks. Um, like rocky vine thing. I don't know how to explain it, but veins, I guess rock veins um, going along the hooves and the legs. Um, and maybe this is just a reference to the golden fleece. Maybe it's just, you know, the fleece itself is golden, but it doesn't need to actually have that steel typing. Maybe there will be in the future. I don't know. Next up, we've got Woozard, a pure grass type, and this is just cute. It's wood plus lizard. It's a lizard just stuck in a log. <laughs> it's, just, it's frankly just... Just kind of adorable, and like, you know, like I said, Matt's does cute best. i just saying. Just, he loves those cute Pokemon. Next up, we have Ladorber, which is, I guess, Arbor plus something else, or Ardor. I I'm not sure. Um, but I like this because they've expanded. This is kind of like a... I don't like to compare this often because people get frustrated when it is. Digimon, it's like, it's like the armored Digivolution, where... You know, you had the base stage, and then the ar armored stage just looked like an expanded version of the base stage with armor on it. This is that ex exact same aesthetic, like Vmon to freaking Flame Dramon kind of thing going on, where it turned the little log into its armor. Super cool. Oh, we got one more. We've got Tree Lagon, and it's a Grass Dragon type, um, full on. And I like how it kind of like an arcane staff as the tail, and then it's got this like vine at the front that almost looks like runic in a way. Super cool, and it very much has that European um, dragon aesthetic to it, while still managing to be bipedal. And it's, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna say it, Sceptile Who, Sceptile Who. Next up, we have Gaiaf, which is a ground rock type giraffe mixed with an Ionic column. It's called the Architecture Pokemon, and I love this with my entire soul. 
Are you joking me? I love this so much. Wow, what a creative way to handle a column Pokemon. Wow. Wow, 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 wow. I the 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 like grass around the neck makes me feel like this would learn some like grass type moves. Um or maybe it'd have some kind of ability like Steelworker where it has like partial um stab to gra grass type moves, but Damn, this is such a, a unique and fun concept. Wow. Next up, we have Leribdis, which is based on Charybdis, um, the sea creature, and it's water dark type. And I, I really like how it's like, it's it's almost, it's it's kind of has that Medusa aesthetic going on to it, but it's like a mermaid, but in the, like its tail comes around and it's this wicked thing. It's, it's kind of like Tokuyami from My Hero Academia. I don't like bringing up My Hero Academia because literally every time I mention my Freaking Pika clone. Everybody's like, Dinky Kaminari, yeah. Stop. Anyway, this has got like anglerfish, meets mythical creature, meets Tokuyami, meets mermaid. It's just a bunch of amazing things combined together. I love it. Next up, we've got Dracharge, and it's quite simple, in fact, and I kind of enjoy the simplicity of it. Um, it's just legs and, and a snaky body. This dude definitely didn't skip leg day, that's for certain. <laughs> it's impossible to, it's literally all he uses. Anyway, um, the it's just kind of that basic dragon electric typeness to it. I almost thought it was water uh, electric when I first saw it, but I like the little glowing orb it has as its tail. Just kind of the, those simple little elements of, of the electric typing to get the point across, like, hey, this is a dragon and it's electric. Boom. Next up we have Voltagon, and we're, it looks like we're going like a like a Hydreigon route here, and this is like the Zwilus of the, of the of the group. We've got... The, like, these, it looks like it's wings slash arms are, like, these, like, battery, I don't even know what how to say, like, what are the things that hold electricity? I cannot think of the word to save me right now, but it, it looks like there's, like, just shooting electricity out, and that's their wings, kind of giving me Ghidorah, you know, from Godzilla kind of vibes. Interesting. Okay, let's see this what this final stage is, because I'm assuming this is going to probably, you know, be a Hydra-based Pokemon. Yep, okay, we got Electrija, and yeah, that's exactly what I thought. So the, the electric wings are full, fully out, coming out of these, like, I don't know, battery, like, what is the word? Ugh. Um, anyway, like, the coil? Tesla coil? I don't forget, his, his tail looks like a coil um, of some kind, like a Tesla coil or something. But yeah, this is full-on crazy electric dragon type, and I like that. I, I'm, is this supposed to be the pseudo? Yeah, when Voltagon reaches level 64, it'll evolve into. So this is definitely the pseudo Pokemon. Wow. Wow. Okay, that's really, really cool. And they, I like how they managed to separate it design-wise. Yes, like it has the one, two, three heads thing. Um, but they very much separated it in, in like design aesthetic from Hydreigon, which I really respect. Um, instead of making, you know, Hydreigon was supposed to be like Hydra plus Dragon plus Dry, you know, three. But this is Elect Electhydra, which is, you know, you get what I'm trying to say. I really enjoy it. So let's just move on. <laughs> Next up, we've got Nema Leo, which I think this must be the Leo Constellation uh, Pokemon. And it's supposed to be based on the Nemean Lion, which is additionally cool. It's steel ground type. I think the Nemean Lion had this thing where it's like its pelt was like impenetrable. So the steel typing makes very much sense. So that's a cool little reference. And I really designed its aesthetic. Uh, I, I'm sure a lot of people probably will say, oh, this looks like Solgaleo, yada yada. But it, it is different enough to me to, like, justify it being a completely different Pokemon. Next up, we have Bownish. Uh, it's apparently the Magikarp of the region, according to the description. Um, and it's just, I don't know what to make of this. It's so interesting. It's like little, three little bubbles as a fish. I wonder what kind of fish this is based on. I don't, I don't know, but... I'm assuming this evolves into something crazy, considering it's called the Magikarp of the region. Next up, we have Marin... Mer... Merightmare? Ice Dark type? These... This is nuts. This is nuts. This is the mermaid Pokemon. This is... Ugh. This is crazy. <laughs> this is probably the nuttiest evolution I've seen. <laughs> like, Magikarp to Gyarados is one thing, but Bownish to Merightmare? What in the world? Wow. Like, this is a Remoraid Octillery situation going on here. Wow. As far as the design, it's giving me, like, Heartless vibes. Like, straight up, like, someone's gonna get trapped in that. Pinocchio's getting trapped in that mouth right there, and we're gonna have to save him. <laughs> Something like that. Next up, we have our trainers of the region. We have Diomedes or Helena. 
And I like this. I like the way that, like, they did the, like, symbol of the region. Or, like, the Pokeball um, symbol with it. It's very, looking very structured. That's really cool. And Trainer Master always just does trainers really, really well. Next up, we have Vitrape. Uh, which is grape plus vitality. Um, I'm 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 not 100 percent sure. Uh, it's grass fairy type, and it's just kind of cute. I will say like proportions are a little strange to me, but I guess we'll see how this thing, you know, continues. We have pallid wine. Whoa, that's cool. Okay, so we've got like a Gallade hero wine grape moment. We could probably see something like this for freaking, uh, <laughs> for, uh, Scarlet and Violet, considering they're supposed to be, like, grape and orange themed. So, maybe we'll get some kind of freaking <laughs> grape legendary hero. Who knows? But this thing's really cool, and I like how it's kind of, like, the, the vine is encircling it, turning into its belt, and almost like a lasso, like a lasso of truth kind of thing, Wonder Woman thing going on. Um, I wonder if this is supposed to be, like, a Wonder Woman kind of thing going on, actually. Uh, I said this was a Gallade, but now I'm getting, like... Uh, Gardevoir, or half Gardevoir, half Glade kind of thing, like Am Amazonian thing going on here. Hmm, I wonder. Next up, we have Hephaestar, which is a great name combination. Hephaestus being the god of blacksmithing and fire, um, mixed with tar, like fester, fester, like festering. Um, this is fire steel type. Okay, so I actually did I did I say the fire? I said the steel type for the water type. So I'm wondering what the water type's gonna be. Maybe water dark. Um, Overall, I did predict the Minotaur Pokemon, but I think this is a really cool way of doing a Minotaur Pokemon. Very believable to me. Like that, like, and we've got, you know, these gauntlets now with the flames coming off of them, and now the flames are coming out of the hoofs of the feet. Flames everywhere, but I just, I really genuinely enjoy this. I'm, I'm going to wait to see the other two before I make my final decision, but we'll, we'll see. We'll see. Hmm. Next up, we've got Artemir, which completely makes sense with Artemis is uh like animal being the stag or the deer that completely makes sense and it's grass fighting so i might have gotten the whole type trio mixed up here maybe it's fighting steel fairy with the water typing fairy i don't i didn't see it going a fairy direction but i guess we'll see i wonder what greek gods gonna be based on because we have uh artemis hephaestus what is the water type gonna be next up we have caruncher is that supposed to be like cruncher that's kind of cool. I don't know. But um, Water Ghost. So we've got Water Ghost, Grass Fighting, and Fire Steel. Not a perfect type trio, but still a really cool type trio nonetheless. Um, but this is based on the, uh, the I don't know if it's a, he's a god, but the, the Fairyman Charon, who ferries you into the afterlife or into the underworld, Hades, whatever you want to call it. Um, but I really like the design aesthetic to make um, the head kind of look like the, the bow of the ship. You know, like, kind of like the, you know, you see them, you typically see, like, the mermaids or whatever on the, t uh, you know, bow of the ship. But this one is, like, this one is a little bit more menacing. And it's got the skull that's exactly pretty much like Houndoom's skull on its front. Super cool. I really like that. And, like, using not, like, not using the, like, main, main gods as, as inspiration, but using, like, Artemis, Hephaestus, Charon, not using, like, Zeus, Poseidon, Hades, you know? But I'm wondering if those are going to be the basis of the legendaries. We'll see, but I think this is... The starters, I'd say probably I'm going to pick Hephaestar, Firestarter. I don't, I don't know. I really enjoy the Firestarter. It's in between that or Artemir for me. I, I, it's just like Gen 9. I'm in between the Fire and the Grass starter. Next up, we've got Smogrin, a Fire Dark type, and it's looking like maybe it's going to be Cerberus related? It looks... Oh, it's the pseudo-legendary of the region. I thought that was Electydra. So, I guess we're going to get a Cerberus uh, pseudo-legendary? I'm excited to see how this progresses. We've got... Oh! Bifernal! Oh my gosh. Wow. Fired... I love how he handled this. Instead of actually just giving it two heads, he gave one of it a real head and then a smoke head. That's so neat. Okay, and I'm assuming the third one will have two, but... This one's called the Double Anger Pokemon, and I really, really, really like that way. That's such a clever way of handling it. Okay, let's let's see this final stage. We've got Inferberus, and it has it does have the two heads, and they're coming out of its chest cavity. That also kind of looks like Houndoom. I mean, it's kind of a little. I feel like maybe we should have avoided that, considering you know it's another fire type dog, fire dark type dog, I should say. Anyway, but 
this is really cool. I like this as a pseudo legendary, and I think the idea of making smoke heads as its uh, as its two other heads is incredibly clever. And I think it'd be kind of cool to see it like pull in those heads and like they could like retract them, kind of like you know um, Typhlosion's flames in a way. But this is the design aesthetic is just super neat. I love a smoky fire type as well as it has that like the, these veins of heat running through it. Oh man, this is. This is really cool. I, I would definitely, definitely want to have this on my team. No, who, who doesn't want to have a pseudo legendary? But this is this is next level for sure. Looks like we have some new evolutions with Steelion. Um, we've got a Steel type. It's the Diap Di Diapason. I don't know what that is, but it you level it up while holding a metal coat. It looks like it has like a like a tuning fork for a tail. Maybe that's like kind of like the basis for it. I'm very interested to see what the design like basis is for this. It doesn't say anything in the description so this is purely me guessing but yeah it looks like maybe it's supposed to be like a tuning fork maybe resonance um is like the idea of it um it looks like there's three i saw in a previous slide there's three so we'll see what the other two look like next up we have shady on which is the ghost type evolution and this is sick it's got that talisman on the head and it's just so simplistic i love a simple evolution people way too often overcomplicate uh, overcomplicate evolutions and then I would even take the talisman away, honestly. Like, the little wisps on its ears, tail, feet, face, that's enough. I think that's definitely enough for, to justify this as an evolution. I don't even think the talisman's necessary. Maybe even putting, like, the, the little symbol on that on its forehead would be cool. But I just think this is a really neat one. I, I really, I quite adore this. I, you know, I the mummy on from uh, Luica region is, like, always my top. But this is a close second, for sure. Next up, we have Brawlion, and it's the fighting-type evolutions. <laughs> I'm sorry. The fist ears, man. The fist ears just make me laugh. I don't know what it is. To me, it just... To me, it seems ridiculous. I'm, I'm not trying to slight maths at all by saying that. I just think it's just so silly to me. Um, but the rest of the, the design is really cool. I like the scar over the eye and on the side and the bandage wraps. I think that very feels much fighting type. I just think the fighting ears just take it a little too far for me, but... That's just me. Next up, we have our regional Weavile. And this is our first regional form. I don't think we've seen one yet. So this is an ice fighting type Weavile. That's cool. This is before we even got Sneasler, which was a poison fighting. So this is pure ice fighting. Um, and I really like the like the choices. It looks very, it has like a king, like a crown thing going on here, as well as like this like tattered cape. Very interesting. Um, it is, you have to, oh, they even did the, the evolution method. So this is level it up during the day um, in Arcadia's highest peak. So that's a different method altogether, but it's still during the day. So that's different. Next up, we have Mythero, like mythical hero. It's a normal fighting type. Is this going to be our Hercules reference, maybe? Um, it's giving me that simplistic, you know, Machop kind of, you know, vibe. Um, and I'm excited to see. Maybe it'll turn into a steel fighting or something maybe fairy fighting let's see next up we've got Persenum. excuse me so Mithero is leveled up by defeating a venomusa it will evolve into Persenum. so this is supposed to be perseus this is not even not even hercules it's perseus and he's got <laughs> he's got the snake from venomusa around his, his like belt it's like a badge of honor that's really interesting he's got the blade one blade hand and one normal hand that's that's cool. So yeah, so this is a, our Perseus reference. That's cool. Cool. Oh, we've got Heracleo. So, okay. So this is like a like a like a, a Hitmonlee Hitmonchan going on here. So Heracleo fighting ground type, and this is if you defeat Anemoleo. Okay. 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 I like that. I like that. She, giving different things different evolutions based on what they defeat. That's cool. So this is Heracleo based on Heracles. I wonder if we'll get like. Her Heracles and Hercules are kind of the same person, but not exactly, so maybe unsure. Next up, we've got a regional form for Ponyard, and it's still fighting instead of still dark. And now instead of having both, you know, blades in, you know, both hands, now that it is, has a shield in one hand and a blade in the other. It's learning to adapt to not always be on the offensive, so maybe this one is, you know, more of a mixed attacker. I'm not sure what Ponyard's base stats are, but I assume it's probably more of an attacker than a, you know, defender. I don't know. It evolves into Bisharp, a regional form, and this is full-on Spartan sword blade. Wow, that 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 arm though, it's like full-on freaking like a lance. Um, and then the and then the shield on the other one. That's really cool. 
I really like that. I, I do, I do, I like that a lot. There's not much else to say there, honestly. I think this is just a really cool design aesthetic for uh, original form for Bisharp. Next up, we've got Griffini or Griffini. Um, it's a normal flying type Griffin. Oh man, I'm so excited to see how this evolves. Man, I, I love, <laughs> I love Greek myths so much. And so this region has just been a very much a delight and a treat to, to see how Matt's tackles these different concepts that I love so much. We have Griffoon, still normal flying. Okay, so we're keeping that normal flying. I wonder if it's going to evolve further. I don't care if it does, honestly. A normal flying type Griffoon, like Griffin, it's pretty cool. I think the flying type is supposed to represent not only that it flies, but also the element of air in this case. Because it kind of seems like it has these like wispy shoulders that are supposed to be like, you know, a tornado kind of thing. Um, and also Griffoon, I assume, is Typhoon plus Griffin. So uh, if it evolves again, we'll see. But I kind of like the way it is now. Yep, it evolved one more time into Griffiscent, and now it is a ground flying type. Okay, that's cool. That's cool. I like that. And also, it's just like... <sighs> this feels like such a, like, if Pokemon did a Griffin, you know? This feels very much like, oh, if Pokemon did a Griffin, this is what it would look like. Guaranteed. This is exactly what I imagine it would, you know, they would, how they would handle it. Um, it's, I like the ground flying type too. Such a sick type combo. You know, Gligar and Gliscor have that, and it's such a fun combo. You know, quite a weakness to Isis, you know, whatever. But, I mean, there's a lot of really cool immunities. Immunity to electricity, which is one of the only other flying-type weaknesses. Super neat. Next up, we have Cariato. Or should it be... I guess it would be Carriage? Maybe it's Carriage plus Shadow, but it says it's the Chariot Pokemon, so it shouldn't be Chariot. Whatever. It's a Ghost Ground-type, and I think this is menacing as hell. It gives me that Spiritomb vibe. Like a Spiritomb possessed a freaking Chariot and is ready to throw down. Um, and I, I just love the way these design, like these little like angular patterns on the face, kind of like you can kind of see it in the background too. Very, very Grecian, like ancient Grecian. Um, and I just like that he's added that onto these Pokemon. It very much makes it feel like a Greek region. Next up, we've got a regional trap inch that's bug type. Okay. 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 The ant pit Pokemon and it's bug type. Okay. Okay. I kind of like, you know, I love me some Flygon. So I'm very, very excited to see where this goes. Um, but I, as far as Trap Inch goes, this is cute. This is super cute. Um, very much feels like Trap Inch, but like giving it a little bit more of an extended jaw rather than like the perfectly, you know, perfectly oval one. It's very much extended, like an extended oval. Um, just those slight differences that make, make regional uh, variants really cool. We got Vibrava, which is a bug flying type now. So we're going going bug flying rather than dragon, huh? Okay, I like the way they did the wings. Like, uh, just a, another one of those slight differences that makes it a really cool, uh, um, really cool variant. And I think there's, like, the wings and then, like, the eye color and body color are, the, are different. I can't tell if there's too much different than that, but um, let's see what our Flygon looks like. We have a... Oh, no, they went Bug Dragon. Okay, so we ch changed types uh, two times. I shouldn't say two times. Technically three times because it's an original variant. So changed once and then changed again and then changed again. Um, it's a Bug Dragon type, which is super neat. And it's actually... The design is giving me my low tick, actually. Like, the, the wings and, like, the way the tail looks is giving me kind of my low tick vibes. And also, I think it has more legs now. I think it has six legs now. <laughs> Did it always have... Oh, I'm pretty sure it only had two arms and then and then the legs now it says two arms or four arms and then two legs which is technically you know six legs but you know the mystic pokemon though this is this is cool i think they did flag on justice here giving it that blood dragon type that i feel like it truly deserved i know a lot of people say it's you know ground dragon for a certain reason i get that but i want a bug dragon type gosh darn it next up we have sagentar which is our sagittarius representation um and it's a plus a centaur which you know sagittarius is a pretty sure a centaur that's kind of like the thing and instead of giving it a bow, it they made the horns its bow, which is kind of cool. I will say, the bow line being over an open flame make, gives me, like, survivor, like, you know, fire final fire-making challenge where they have to, like, you know, burn the rope to, to win. That's exactly what this gives it. It's giving me almost anxiety in a way. Um, <laughs> it's a fire steel type, which is super cool. And again, having those, like, Grecian patterns on the body just makes it feel, give it a little Greek touch. Love it. Next up, we've got Krabby Air, and then we, we've got the our Cancer representation, the Ice Water type Cancer being the crab. Um, ice Water type, which I find really cool, and I like the way they handle the claws. It's kind of like that yin and yang thing, but like also it's got like the, their like teeth too, like very like stabby. Um, and this is like really interesting because I always love when an Ice Water type is just an Ice Water type based on the like the environment they live in as well as like their coloration. Like Walrein, there's nothing, there's no 
like actual ice elements to Walrein aside from it's a walrus which hugs out you know usually in colder places same with dugong same with seal um and so i kind of appreciate that this is just a coloration difference you know so it's really cool and i like i like that this is our uh, our our uh, cancer constellation representation next up we've got glacy answer okay okay so we went full on now we have more of the uh ice aesthetic now like i like that that evolved into that honestly the first stage wasn't very you know icy and now this stage is very icy and those whiter elements turned into that directly icy thing i think that's cool that it evolved into that i was saying before that i like it when it's just that but I, the fact that it evolved into that i think is, is super cool too um, and it just very much has that like ice like iceberg aesthetic. I, I really like this. This is actually one I would throw on the team. I think I, I love crab Pokemon and I wish we could get like better representation. I guess we have, like Krabby. We have the like, Corefish, which is not even a, a crab. We have Clauncher and Clotzer, and then we have um, we have Crabomitable. And it's just like this is just a, I don't know. This is just really cool Crabmon. Next up, we've got Bulbale, which is a grass fairy type. And I like this. This is cool. It's just a little bird with the bulb tail. It's that, you know, whole Bulbasaur aesthetic, but applied to a bird, which is interesting. It actually is giving me uh, Biomon from <laughs> Digimon kind of thing going on there. I've mentioned Digimon a lot. Karn, Karn EX has, you know, gotten into my brain, I guess, and made me think more about Digimon relating to Pokemon and stuff like that. But this is cool. I really enjoy this. Next up, we have Pivotus, which is a Lotus plus a Peacock. And that is such a unique way of handling a Peacockmon. Wow, that's super neat. Wow, okay, it's beautiful too, and it has it captures that beauty. You know, it's called the elegance Pokemon, and I was about to say it captures that elegance of both the lotus flower and the peacock, and combining them together. That's so smart, very clever, very clever, Mats. Next up, we have Daphnos, um, a grass ground type. And I'm pretty sure I actually don't know what this is. It looks like it, are these supposed to be based on Ents? What is Daphnos? Oh, that sounds so familiar, and I feel like I should know what it is, and I'm going to be really mad if I don't, like, when I don't know what it is. Maybe maybe it has an evolution, and it'll help. Maybe not. Um, but Grass Ground type, like, Ent Pokemon, but also also has, like, like, like Curlia aesthetic to it. Interesting. Nope, no evolution, but we've got Pinchorm, um, which I assume is our Scorpio representation. Rock Poison type. I love that type combo. It is such a shame that only Nihiligo has it. Rock Poison type is such a cool type combo. I wish it'd be more, you know, quad weakness to ground. Whatever. Still a cool type combo. Um, but this Mon, in general, is super cool. Um, it's giving me a little bit of Skaroopy, but, like, like just in the tail. But the rest of the, the rest of the aesthetic looks way different. But the tail looks a little too Skaroopy-esque to me. That's just, that's just me. Um, but I, I really, really like the different um, type combo there. Now we have Scorpioc. That is so cool. And yeah, the, the tail even more so is now giving me like that Drapion, Scorpi, uh, Skorupi kind of thing going on there. But the, the tail, the tail aside, this is a really neat design, honestly. Like the the Rock Boys type and the, the claws. This is ah gosh, this is very, very Pokemon. I mean, that's when I say that. this is very Pokemon. That that's giving me the, that that claw or claw like the Dragon Claw, but like giving it almost feel like making it feel like it's also a living being, you know, on it. I just think that's super cool. And the coloration is really neat too. I'm giving off that rock poison typing. Next up, we have Electrike, a fire Electrike regional form, and it is blue and purple, which I think is a really cool way of handling uh, fire type. I like it when fire types aren't exactly just red and orange all the time. I really like when they can incorporate, oh, there's blue flames, there's purple flames, there's white flames. Like, I really like when that can happen. And I like that he has this little tufts of fire fur. And the fire type works really well on Electrike. We've got Manetric regional form and fire ghost type now. Okay. Um, that's, that's really cool, and it fits really well on Manetric. Like, the fire typing fits surprisingly well. Like, the little, even, like, its little back leg fur that's usually very st stood straight up, and now it's got these flames, and then the hair that stood straight up is now with flames. It just really, really works well. Next up, we've got Caduceolisk, um, which is based on the Caduceus. Um, it's the Gemini Pokemon, so this is our Gemini representation. Could, uh, like Gemini with Caduceus is a dark psychic type, which makes sense. So like that Gemini, you know, the opposites kind of thing with the Caduceus, which is the symbol for healthcare. Well, there's a lot of like healthcare in general. They use that like me medicine and stuff like that for the Caduceus. You've probably seen it on like hospital signs and stuff like that. So this is really cool though. And I really like that this is our um, Gemini representation. That's very different. Next up, we've got Turtlelora, which I assume is a mixture of Pandora's box with a turtle. It's dark ground type, 
And that's super cool. Like, using Pandora's box as a shell. Super unique. Very interesting. I'm wondering if this thing evolves and maybe it unleashes all of the evils onto the world. Let's see. Indeed it does. It actually has a chaos form instead. That's cool. That's super cool. I like that. Dark ground type. Chaos form. You can see it's like a little head behind all the shadows. Like, <laughs> you've done it now. Um, it's, so it says it's got a new ability called Dark Inside. When Turtle Aura lost one-fourth of its maximum HP, it changes form and boosts its stats. Wow. So it's kind of like a almost a schooling thing, but like reverse. That's cool. Next up, we got Venus Shell, which is going to be our, I assume, our Aphrodite representation. Got the Fire Water. It's based on the you know famous painting of Venus um, as well. That Fairy Water type is really cool, and I like how you know Matt's incorporated that shell into it. You know, giving that fairy with the love, because, you know, goddess of love mixing with that shell from the water and the sea foam you know being born from the sea foam kind of thing going on there um with i'm pretty sure that's just venus though i'm not sure if aphrodite was born the same way but venus and aphrodite i'm pretty sure are the same goddess oh man people are gonna come for me if i'm wrong yep i got it right aphrodural uh, afro aphrodural afro a little hard to say but regardless of the fact it is supposed to be that famous painting of venus um that's really really cool like i i like that they um, that Matt's incorporated that whole idea into, you know, of the Venus with the Aphrodite in incorporating that in with the reference of a painting of Venus. Clever beyond all belief. Super clever. Next up, we have Sparkaf. We had, we had Calf, uh, Calf Lays, and now we have Sparkaf. So, uh, an electric type Calf Pokemon. Um, it's called the Snort Pokemon. I'm interested to see. We have two cows. I'm wondering what, what what's what's this one's gonna evolve into. Ah, yes, Blastoro. This is our Tauros, our Taurus, rep Tauros. This is our Taurus representation, and it's an electric ice type. That's unique. Um, that's that's super unique. Uh, I like that the the ice typing is in these little you know glacier iceberg horns, um, ice structures on the horns. That's really interesting. I wonder what the, the why why electric ice for the Taurus. Um, is there some kind of like what what is Taurus's element? I could have sworn it was fire. Oh, it was like a fire element. Maybe I'm wrong. Next up we have Giraffe Rig Wisdom Form. Wisdom. Oh, is this maybe the mechanic? So we have the Wisdom Form of Giraffe Rig and its Psychic Fairy type. Um, are we gonna get a Madness Form? We are indeed Giraffe Rig Madness Form Dark Fairy. I was gonna assume it would be dark psychic because to keep that psychic typing but that's really crazy and it's completely ditched the you know that that back part where it's like um the the dark part of it and like that part is taken over in the reverse for the wisdom form that's a unique way of handling that and i think that's that's really cool concept um for i wonder what other pokemon you could you know do that with maybe we'll see Next up, we have Frozacorn, which is our actually our Capricorn representation. I thought the one before was Capricorn, but maybe that one was just Aries um, instead. Well, I should have probably predicted because Capricorns actually have like the fish tail. Um, this is super cool. I like that they interpreted the water elements of Capricorn as ice. Um, that's that's super interesting, and I just think this is a solid mon. Next up, we have a regional Conkeldurr. Which is fighting rock type. That's super cool. We always we always wanted Conkeldurr to have that rock typing because it's holding concrete and it's hold, holding these pillars now. I like the slight coloration difference and then giving them something different to hold makes it uh, like a new form. That's that's super clever and I like that. Next up we have Amazurl. So I'm guessing this is our Amazurl, uh, Amazon representation and the wine one before is not actually our Amazon representation. So it's pure fighting type. Are we going to get like a Hitmon? Uh, so next to this, or is it just going to go straight down the line? Next up, we have Amazant, um, which is fighting dark type. And we're he really likes this whole uh, <laughs> the Houndoom skull. Likes putting that on things. Um, it, it maybe, you know what, honestly, I'm looking at it. it. Maybe it looks like they like skinned a Houndoom and just like took its pelt or something like that. That's kind of what it looks like. Um, it's the hunter Pokemon. It's fighting dark type. I can I can see that like uh, in its design and stuff like that that, that dark typing makes sense, and may, and even so like that whole you know Houndoom thing I was talking about it kind of has that Houndoom aesthetic and maybe that dark type incorporated into it with the whole you know you know giving making clothes out of it. Man, this is got a little dark for Pokemon, isn't it? Finally, we have Amazon. Oh my gosh, Louisa, <laughs> freaking 
Louisa from from uh, the Amazing Magicals here. <laughs> the Amazing Magicals. <laughs> oh, sorry. Okay. It continues that fighting dark type, but it has a more of like a brawny aesthetic to it. I like that. That's super cool. <laughs> That's funny to me. We have Virgence, which is our Virgo representation. Uh, pure psychic type. It's got these little... Um, these little loops that kind of remind me, what's that chick's name from, uh, from Sinnoh? Mira. Mira is her name. It gives me that Mira kind of thing going on, that little innocence to her. I'm curious, um, if it'll evolve. I'm assuming it will. Yes, yeah, so we've got Buturgo, um, mixture of beauty and Virgo. And it's just angelic, psychic fairy type. It just makes sense. That innocence mixed with that angelicness of, of you know, the Virgo kind of aesthetic. It, you, it evolves um, by teaching Virgence uh, Dazzling or leveling up while knowing uh, Dazzling Gleam. So that's cool. I'm not sure. Have we run out of constellations yet? I'm wondering. I, I don't know. Next up, we have Hoaxish. That's interesting. So it's got itself on its tail to try and trip people up. That's cool. Okay. Okay. So just pure water type little illusion fish thing going on there. Next up, we have dual Ices. Oh, this is our Pisces represent. How did I forget about Pisces? So this is our Pisces representation, which makes sense because the Pisces are two fish. So it's dual, like those the one fish on one side, one fish on the other. That's really, really clever. Very, very, very unique way of incorporating that whole Pisces two fish thing. Yep, there we are. Now we're finished. We have all of the uh, the 12 Zodiac there. And so that was Aries. That, that was Aries before. So that's really cool. Wow. I like that. Next up, we've got Darmanitan Wisdom Form. So we're getting those, some more of those Wisdom Forms in here. And this is going into its Zen mode, but like it's still like, it's like half. It's like half the Zen mode, half of the non-Zen form, which is cool. And it's Psychic Fire type. I'm curious to see what the Madness Form is. If it gets a Madness Form, maybe it doesn't. No, it does get a Madness Form. And this thing is crazy. Dark Ghost, and it's like completely flipped upside down. He's just like, screw it. Balls to the walls. I'm upside down now. You can't handle me. That's... <laughs> this thing's nuts looking. I love it. Next up, we have Slowbro Wisdom Form, Dragon Psychic. That's kind of crazy. Um, I wonder if we'll get like a Slow King, a Slow King Madness Form, maybe. No, Slowbro Madness Form, and it just went completely. <laughs> oh my gosh. Where are its eyes? Oh man, this thing is freaking a Lovecraftian nightmare. <laughs> Holy crap. This thing's been like all consumed by this freaking. Um, Shelder, dude. That's nuts. It's dark water type now. Crazy. Wow. That's nuts. Next up, we got Mawile Wisdom Form. That is... Com what the... That is completely different. Um, Mawile is Psychic Ice type now. And it's got, like, this orb on its head. No, no more mouth on its head. It's got, like, a pure orb. Just chilling. Oh, my God. I wonder... Is the Madness Form just gonna be purely the mouth part? It is. Whoa! Steel Dark. This thing is wicked. I said before that Pokemon gave me a Tokiyami feeling. This gives me that Tokiyami feeling 100%. Wow! It's like the like when he combines with it, right? Like, and he, 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 you know, works in sync with it. That's exactly what this is like. Wow! That's cool. Next up, we have Wobbuffet Wisdom Form. Man, these Pokemon I didn't realize that could this could apply to are actually really making sense to me. I'm assuming that the tail is going to more come out uh, in the the uh, the madness form, um, but this is really cool. It's it is very much like a Mega Wobbuffet in that way, and having that orb and enhancing that psychic type. It's like it's steel now actually, so giving it that extra little oomph of uh, of you know resistances and stuff to help it you know use that counter and. Uh, mirror coat a little bit more effectively without getting immediately bodied, right? Next up, we got the madness form of Wobbuffet, and yep, that's I was right. They they fully brought out the thing that's on the inside. He's like, you know what? I don't care. I am a dark type now. I'm mischievous. I don't care if I'm out and about. I don't care if you see me. I am all powerful now. I am madness, which is super cool. Man, that's the shading on this is uh, pristine. Next up, we've got Ippoli. Ippoli. It's water type, and it's a little seahorse. Um, I'm interested to see what direction this goes and how they're going to differ it from like a horsey kind of thing. It already kind of has, has much of a difference because of just like the, it has arms for one and then the fins on the, on the back and the head. It's got like a mohawk thing going on. Next up we have Horselore, um, the wave rider, and it looks like it's getting more of a, you know, kind of a soldier-esque thing going on to it. Maybe it'll finally evolve to a water steel type. Um, I'm unsure. 
Finally, we've got Trisidon. Okay, so here's our Poseidon representation. Um, it, and it is a water steel type. That And, oh, I like that, that they made the tail into the trident. That's cool. Wow, it's giving me kind of Kyogre mixed with Lugia. And, like, oh, I really like the epicness, the epic feel of this mon. Wow. Next up, we've got Spark Kit, and it's a little electric cat. There's actually a Spark Kit, I think, in the Bion region. Uh, check out that video if you missed it. It was a, that was a fun one. Um, Philippines-based region. Um, but this one's cute. Keeps that, like, simple, cute aesthetic while adding those little little touches, little whiskers in the tail. Little touches to make it feel very electric type. Next up, we've got Sabernang. Wow. Electric ground type. I like that. This is giving me uh, Raidramon from... <laughs> Man, or I'm just all about the Digimon today, but this is giving me Raidramon, like the, the the black with the gray with the yellow aesthetic, you know, kind of that flowing mane coming out of the thing. That's very much what's giving me that. And it's also got, the, like, its mane is like a thunderstorm, thundercloud. This is cool. This is a one I would use as well. I don't know how many people, like, how many Pokemon I have on my team right now, but this is one of them, 100%. Next up, we've got our fossils for the region. It looks like our first one is Thorn Icy, and it's a rock ice type. I love rock ice types. Rock ice types are cool. And I like how it has the, the only the little bit of icy aesthetic. The little spines, you know, the horns on its nose, teeth, the gloves, a little pattern. It's simple, yet effective. And it looks like it's gonna be more of like a like a like a carnivorous dinosaur. What are those called? I can't remember. Um, but like, you know, T-Rex, Allosaurus, um, Spinosaurus, stuff like that. Next up we have Jurassic. <laughs> That's awesome. That's an awesome incorporation of names. And this is exactly what I was expecting. Like, you know, that more T-Rexy. Um, there's there's a term for it in the paleontology community. is going to come for me. But anyway, it's got that more of that aesthetic. And it differs from Tyrantium in a really good way. I think it's more simple. Kind of got almost a raptor feeling to it. Like halfway between a T-Rex and like a Velociraptor sizing wise. Um, even the, like the Jurassic Park version of a, of a, you know, Velociraptor. I know for us, Velociraptors are very actually short in reality. I know that you don't have to tell me, but actually the ice kind of replicates feathers in a way like you, cause you know that, you know, there's a lot of dinosaurs that actually had feathers, um, that, um, you know, that's just a really cool part of it. <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, I really enjoy this one. Uh, I'm not sure. I'm, I'm excited to see the other fossil to set, decide which fossil I'd pick. Next up, we have Staraki. It's a rock fire type. So we got the rock ice and the rock fire. That's cool. A little, you know, battling of that thing. Because, you know, we have the carnivore, which is the, you know, aggressor. And it's an ice type. But the defense is that the, you know, defender, the herbivore, has the fire typing, which I think is really cool. Um, I'm, in, I'm interested to see how they incorporate the fire type into the Stegosaurus aesthetic. So, we'll see. We've got Stegolcano. That's cool. I like that. They add, they, you know, they turn the little spines of it into, into little volcanoes. That's cool. Like, kind of give it, like, man, I'm talking about My Hero Academia and freaking Digimon today. But this is giving me that Bakugo kind of thing with the little explosions coming out of it. I think this is very cool. And I like that they didn't put too much detail on the face. Like, it just feels like the right, right level of detail for this kind of Pokemon. Next up, we've got another Gibble. So, <laughs> so, this is the second Gibble. Well, technically the first Gibble regional form that Mats has done for each of his regions. He had a water type in Norden, and now he has a fire type in this one. I wonder if each subsequent region is just going to have a Gibble regional form. Um, but this is a dragon fire type Gibble, and it's just a simple kind of color swap in a way i don't see much difference as far as um anything aesthetically yet but i assume that's probably going to appear in the later versions yep gabite and now i'm noticing it's like fin is like more solid i'm pretty sure um gabite's fin is more like a and gibble's fin are more like kind of like they have like little scratches in them so this is a little bit more firm like 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 not like beat up i guess in a way so i guess what i was trying to say there so it's kind of giving me a little bit more of that volcano feeling that we had from the last thing like maybe these spines are going to have some kind of effect on that um uh but it is like a simple change i always say there's regional forms they don't need that much change sometimes it's just a simple change that can be the most effective and be the most cool next up we've got garchomp and screw what i said before i guess <laughs> so this is kind of a bigger change in that regional form um all those little bands and little parts to it are now like flames which is cool that is kind of a simpler change like maybe it, it is a little bit uh jarring as far as the extreme flamey kind of aesthetic to it but the other, there are little other aesthetics that are simple, like the jaw having that little, you know, ridging to it and the back and the arms having more of a ridging than like a, you know, scratching, like, I don't know what the term I'm trying to form. 
worn feel to them. Um, so, and like even the little thing on its uh, nose is a little bit more explosion y. Um, so it kind of, yeah, it kind of does have that more of an explosion y feel to it. Overall, it's a really cool mod. I don't know, I, I, I've never really liked Garchomp. Hot take, even hotter take, because this is a fire type. Um, but I've never really liked Garchomp, so I don't think I actually would put this on my team. A lot of people love Garchomp, but eh. So it looks like we have our professor of the region, Professor Driss Dries. Um, he studies the legends of this region. Interesting. I like how he's got the kukui, freaking lab coat, open, no shirt. Got the laurels and like the, the Greek sandals. I love his coloration too. Very cool. Next up we have Kidoris, which is an Icarus reference. It's a flying type. I wonder if this is going to be some kind of mythical Pokemon? So it's a flying type, um, and it's, oh my gosh, it's wings are melting. That's crazy. Okay. So it's wings are melting. That's, 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 that's dope. I wonder how this thing's going to evolve. Maybe it's wings go away when it evolves. I don't know. We've got Flycarus. So still flying. Still a little bit melty. The, I like how they made the hair and the wings like waxy, which is pretty cool. And I, I'm noticing this, the, the chest piece is becoming more of a sun. I wonder if they're going to go Helios mixed with Icarus kind of thing going on there. It's called the Brave Pokemon, or the Foolish Pokemon, if you ask me. I don't know. And it evolves into Icarath, like death plus Icarus. It's called the Failure Pokemon. It's flying ghost type because he flew too close to the sun. And like now that, that sun that was on his chest is now a hole in his chest. It's got that hollow from Bleach thing going on. Wow. So I guess it's not a mythical Pokemon because it evolves, but this is still really neat. Next up, we've got Trinake which is a poison type, and it looks like it's a snake, uh, mul the multiple Pokemon. This Pokemon is very special and has different evolution depending on its colors. Okay. Okay. I wonder uh, I wonder what these evolutions are going to look like. First, we've got Terralisk, which is the orange and black one. Um, it's poison ground type, um, and it is the earthquake Pokemon. Okay. Okay, so we've got a poison ground type snake. What? I wonder what the other ones are going to be. We've got Razaguana. Okay, so we went from snake to lizard now. So one turns into a snake, one turns into a lizard. wonder what the third one's going to be. But this one's poison steel type. Um, pretty cool. It's like a simple coloration, but making it like really, you know, snake-like too. Like adding that iguana aesthetic, but still keeping the snake-like elements of the pre-evolution. Then we have Dragonos. Yeah, okay. I thought the final one might be a dragon. So poison dragon, poison steel, poison ground. That's cool. Wow, wow. That's a unique way of handling uh, a Pokemon, and I think that's really, really fun. I, and also, I love the Poison Dragon typing. Gra Dragalge, Naganadel, both really, really cool uh, Poison Dragon type Pokemon. And so I want to see that that, that, does, uh, that type combo more. Next up, we've got a Mega Garchomp, but regional. That's, <laughs> that's bonkers, but fits because it's a Mega. It just so fits because it's a Mega. Um, apparently this is like a special exception that, that he wasn't going to do Megas, but because so many people requested to see Mega Garchomp in this form that he did it, but this is still pretty cool. Next up, we got Stiklops, which is our Cyclops representation. Ground type makes sense to me. I think it's really cool. Like we don't have a, do we have a Cyclops? I guess we have, we don't really have a Cyclops Pokemon, I guess. We have Pokemon that have one eye, but no dedicated Cyclops Pokemon. So that's cool. It has the stick, a little ogre, you know, bat like thing. Um, and I just enjoy that it's just ground, you know? Just a very simple Cyclops Pokemon, which, you know, I always appreciate a simple but effective design. Next up, Stiklops evolves into Cyclophem, which is a ground steel type. And my freaking goodness, this thing's crazy. It is, I'm, I'm curious about the ground steel type. I would have assumed maybe ground fighting. Because the steel type, like, I get the spikes aesthetic. But I feel like it's more of a fighting type because maybe its club should have been, like, metal instead of wood. I don't know, but nevertheless, it's a it's a uh, very cool Cyclops mon. It looks like we have our legend of Pokemon Wisdom. This is Owlegesty. Um, it is a psychic fighting type, and I think it's Owl plus Majesty or something like that. Um, but it is I love the psychic fighting typing. It's such an interesting typing for an owl Pokemon. Um, but that psychic typing coming from like the, you know the wise and and the Pokemon Wisdom coming from the wiseness. You know, usually owls are depicted to be very wise and stuff like that. But as far as a legendary Pokemon, this is really cool, very epic. Um, it has that kind of like wing thing, like uh, like Lunala in that way. Um, and even like the little you know V kind of collar thing kind of gives me Dark Rye vibes in that way. Um, but super duper cool uh, legendary Pokemon. I'm excited to see the other one. Next we have Destrondor, a dark fighting type. So we have psychic fighting and dark fighting. So I like the commonality of the fighting types there. 
Um, this is super cool. Uh, a condor mixed with, and it's got like the whole Trojan, you know, helmet thing going on there. And I really like the design on its wings and the patterns. Man, this is really cool. And it's, it's also got that like kind of dark gray thing. I like the shared elements between the birds of this like, you know, floof and then the tail floof and then the, ah, this is really cool. I think I would probably go with mad, uh, madness as weird as that sounds. Um, I, I would, I would pick madness. Um, but Pokemon Madness sounds really fun, and I really like Destrondor. Next up, we have the start of the Arcadia League. We've got Gym Leader Menelau, um, which is a got the Column Badge, Normal Type, you know, kind of a tr more traditional type for a starting up. Gym Leader, he's, he looks pretty standard. He got the basic clothing, nothing too crazy, right? Um, and it's got a Sheeper, a Zurine, and a Test Leaf, um, it looks like, which is cool. I think that was Normal Grass, Normal, and then Normal Electric which is a nice little trio of, of mons to have. Um, but as far as the design bases, I think this guy's, you know, supposed to be simple. He's the normal type, a simple design. Next up, we've got Gym Leader Hera. Okay, so we've got a straight up Hera reference. It's the Laura, a Laurel badge, and we got a Grass type for our secondary Gym Leader. Um, and they've got Daphnos, uh, Vitrape, and Paladwine. Okay, so they've got the, like, the pre-evolution and the evolution i like when they gym leaders do that they have like the evolution and the pre-evolution of them on but it's design wise this is really cool I, it's interesting her name is Hera. i wonder if the rest of them are going to be actually based on gods was metalow based on a god and i just didn't know uh, i mean i guess we'll see next up is gym leader cassiopeia with the fan badge and they're a flying type gym leader cassiopeia sounds familiar i'm not sure if that's a god name though i'm i am very unsure but it's got flycarus um chickick and then Griffiny, which i think is really cool is that Griffiny? I thought Grafini was the, the smallest one. I'm I'm not sure, but um, flying type fan badge, really cool. I I enjoy I enjoy her design as well. Kind of like that, got that like, uh, what's the word? Winona uh, mixed with like it's it's got that typical female flying type gym leader feel to it, while incorporating that Grecian you know uh, fashion in there, that ancient Grecian fashion, I should say. Next up, we have gym leader Laerte. Um, I'm not sure if that's a god name. I don't think I've ever heard that as a god name, so I think these might just be Greek. Grecian names kind of thing going on, but they give the phantom wheel badge and they have a Cariato, a Shadowblade, and a Fantagus, which is just a perfect little combo, little trio there of ghost types. Um, this is our fourth gym leader, so excited to see the, the rest of them. Next up, we've got gym leader Uri Urania, um, and we got the storm badge. We got our electric type. We've got Pegaspark, Blastoro, Sparkit, and Saberning. I love me some Saberning, so it's very exciting. Um, and also her design is just really cute. Just the cute little lightning bolt headband with the like, Grecian little clothes. Super cool. Next up, we've got gym leader Cersei. I think that's supposed to be how it's pronounced. Cersei. And it's the spell badge, our psychic type gym leader. And I like that it's like a sorceress rather than like kind of like Olympia. She was more of like a kind of a witchy sorceress kind of thing going on. Um, and so we've got Wobbuffet wisdom form. Uh, Bu uh, Butrigo. I could not remember it. Buturgo. Um, Caduceusk and uh, Libre Librebium. Oh my gosh, I can. T she has three um, freaking uh, constellation mons, uh, zodiac mons. That's really cool. Next up, we have a pair of gym leaders: gym leader Castor and gym leader Pollux. Um, and they're the shield badge. They're fighting types. So I guess they're a couple of Spartan brothers or something like that. Um, that's really cool. I wonder if they do a double battle. Um, but they've got themselves Persenum, a Maisant, a Maisong, and Heracleo. So super neat I, I i like using them those like typical you know hero plus amazon mons super cool i wonder i think i i assume one of them is using the like percentum and heracleo and the other is using amazon and a uh, uh, Maisong. i think that would probably be make sense and also the shield badge is just the fighting type that's cool next up we've got gym leader arrows and i yes i i love that we can get a fairy type male gym leader. I don't think we have a single fairy type gym leader that's actually a man. So this is the cool is Eros, god of a god of love. You know, um, Cupid, per, you know, particularly. I like that his Pokeball holder is a bow. Um, and you get the Cupid badge, of course. Looks like he's got Venomusa, Gargadol, Pivotus, and Aphrodural, um, which is perfect. Love that. Got um, you know a couple. Goddess of Love and God, you know, Medusa representation in there. We have Elite Four Cassandra, which is a poison type user. I like having a poison type Elite Four member. I don't know how many poison type Elite Four members we've had. I think we have Koga. I'm not sure how many else there are. But she's got these little pauldrons, which I'm pretty sure are the face from Chimerion's tail, which is a nice little design touch. Um, her just her design aesthetic in general is really cool. And she has like the the long braid, kind of like snake like kind of thing. She is almost like kind of Medusa esque in and of herself. 
um, which is fun. And, and I wish that maybe they Chiu had been able to use the uh, um, the Medusa Mon rather than um, our fairy type gym leader um, Eros. Um, but she's got a Terralisk, a Chimerion, Scorpioc, and a Toxido. Um, which is just, I, I think this is a really cool team and a really cool uh, Elite Four member. Next up, we've got Elite Four Enya, and it looks like they are a Rock-type um, Elite Four member. And this, they also have Pauldrons, and it's the Pauldrons from Gaiaf. That's super cool. I wonder if they all have little Pauldrons that reference Amon on their team. Um, but that's cool, and they've got they've got the um, the fossils on their team, as well as the regional Conqueror, Conqueror and... My favorite, Gaiaf. I think that's probably one of my favorite mons of this region. I, I definitely love that mon and that concept. Um, but as far as the design aesthetic for Enya, he's pretty simple. I like the pauldron, you know, thing going on there. And you can kind of get that rock typing from his design. Next up, we've got Elite Four Scylla, um, which is cool because she's got Laribdis, Charybdis, and uh, Scylla are two monsters that are um, on opposite sides of each other. I'm pretty sure this is in the Odyssey. You have to sail through the middle of them perfectly, um, or else you'll get eaten by one or the other. Um, Karib just has this giant, like, whirlpool, and then uh, Scylla is this giant, like, multi-headed Hydra-esque monster. So her using um, Laribdis is really cool, and she's got a Lib Laribdis pauldron here, too. Also, she's, like, hella cute. Super cute. Love uh, a water-type uh, Elite Four member as well. And she's using Amparel, which is another one of my favorites. Mer Merite Mare, which makes sense. And Glassy Answer. Her whole team makes very much sense. Like, they're all kind of water monsters, except for Amparel. The Amparel kind of references how she kind of looks a little bit more graceful. But her whole team is, like, monsters. Which is just super a super cool little nod to the fact that Scylla is a monster in and of herself. Next up, we got Elite Four Alexander, who is our dragon type representative. Very feels very much feels like Lance in that dragon, you know, type representation there with its armor, his armor and his cape and stuff like that. His pauldrons, I think, are I can't tell if they're um they're the regional Garchomp or if they're Electri or Electhydra. Um or I can't tell which which one they are, or if they're both, maybe. Um, I'm not sure, but they kind of have that same feeling to them. Um, and I just like his spiked gauntlets, kind of give him that dragon. He's got that draconic feel to him. Um, and I like he's got these little spikes in his beard to kind of replicate the fangs of a dragon. Super neat. I wonder what our champion is like. Looks like the champion of Arcadia is Olympia, which is interesting because we already had an Olympia as the gym leader of Gen 6. Maybe there's some kind of relation. Maybe this is Olympia. I, it doesn't look like it's Olympia to me. I'm not sure. But uh, regardless, really cool team. We've got Grifficent, Turtlora, Trisidon, uh, Inferberus, and Cyclophum. So we've got some very much like the classic, like a repertoire of, of, of Grecian, you know, ancient Grecian beasts of mythos. Um, and I like that they, ha you know, she has the, um, the Pandora's box kind of thing. Her design in general is giving me like Diantha, but like mixed with Greek, and I love it. And I like how she has a very mixed team. Also, they're like level 70 and above, which is nice and like seems very powerful. She's, she has a very powerful uh, elegance to her, very, very intimidating, which I love in my ship. Very Cynthia in that way of that, that like, like subtle intimidation. Looks like we have one final Pokemon, and it is Aliglius. And it is our Trio Master, I believe. It is Electric Flying type, and I believe it's probably. Uh, based on Zeus. That's my assumption. I'm pretty sure Zeus's animal is like an eagle or something like that. So I think that's supposed to be kind of the representation here. And it even has a little poof kind of like the other two. So this is kind of our third legend, as it were. Super epic. Very, very cool design elements to it. Having that kind of pattern that I've been talking about for these Grecian mons lifted off of the wings as this like kind of almost robe. And then having the, the also the patterns within the wings itself. Very elegant, elegant, very elegant, very elephant. Um, <laughs> very elegant, very cool. Um, and what a way to cap off this region. But that's it for the Arcadia region. So let me know which Pokemon of this region was your favorite. And make sure to hit that like button, subscribe, and hit that notification bell to keep up to date with future videos. Once again, thank you so much to Matts for letting me review your regions. They are always a treat. So I really, really appreciate it getting to explore the different Greek elements of this region. But anyway, with that, I will see you guys next time.
Hey everybody, Brandon here, and we're back with another region review where we review different regions around the Fakemon community. Today we're going to be reviewing the Wesco region over on Instagram. Wesco and I are actually pretty good friends, we talk fairly frequently, so I'm pretty familiar with the Wesco region itself, but I've never really taken a deep dive into the region to learn all there is to know about the Wesco region, so I'm excited to do that today. Before we do that though, make sure to hit that like button, subscribe, and hit that notification bell to keep up to date with future region reviews and other Fakemon videos on this channel. And and starting us off is our grass starter, O-Cub, which is a grass bear Pokemon, a uh, grass cub Pokemon. It is the baby bear Pokemon, and I love this design. It's so simple and elegant. It has the maple maple leaf mohawk, uh, the little headphone situation as like, you know, its ears kind of look like little headphones. Looks kind of like it has that little punk aesthetic to it, which I like. It's super cute, but looks super tough at the same time, and I love that about this design. Next up, we have Kittle, the goat Pokemon. It is our fire starter, and I just love this design. It's so simple it follows the goat on the chinese zodiac which is great and i love its little tail it's so simple and effective um all of these you know base starter stages are very simple yet effective with the design they feel very much like starter pokemon that would actually exist i really like if we get anything close to Kittle whenever we get to the Goat Zodiac uh, representation in the actual games, um, I'm really excited to see if it looks like this because I would love for it to look like this. I'm rambling, sorry. Anyway, next we have Osprey, which is such a clever pun of a name. The Osprey plus spray, like spraying water, super clever. Also, I love you know this is this is the original this is the original water um, water bird starter um, before we actually got Quaxley. This one was was my favorite like. He's still is my favorite. I actually really like Osprey. Um, and I, it's got that sailor aesthetic to it. This is the, the original sailor water <laughs> bird Pokemon. I love its little, you know, handkerchief neck band. What's it, what's it, what are those things called? Ascots. It's a little ascot around its neck. It's super cute, super simple design. Like I, like I said, all, all three of these base stages, super simple yet very effective. Next up, we have Fisticub, which is O-Cub's evolution, and it's just such a great wordplay. We have Fisticuffs plus Cub, as well as it looks like it says Fist plus Stick plus Cub, so it's Fist, fist Stick Cub, which is also great wordplay, because, you know, sticks are, you know, grass. You get the association. Anyway, Fisticub looks like it has this training headgear, like, you know, O-Cub was like a fighter. It kind of just like was a pretty scrappy, but Fisticub's actually getting in to like do some actual training. Like it's trying to refine its skills, which I think is a really cool little bit of a design story there. I love its green boxing gloves and the little, you know, fall, autumn, maple, leaf kind of situation going on there. I love that they included like the kind of an autumn-y feeling to this Pokemon because it's got those browns in there as well as the greens. And I like how they're featuring the browns of, you know, a traditional grass starter in a very different way by making it orange because you know brown is just dark orange moving on we have gotemp and it is a fire rock type i absolutely adore this this uh this little billy goat with the flame beard like they're upping the fire elements a little bit and making literal fire el fire elements uh, rather than kittle who had like kind of more of a subtle design elements I, I really like the fire beard um you'll see how this progresses it's one of my favorite um fake monster starters of all time um for this reason but you have the little crags like little cracks and like craggy um you know uh what are the word hooves <laughs> has the little craggy hooves and it's just a, it's a really good mid stage definitely progresses progresses in a good way to the final stage, which you'll see in a moment. Next up is Ayasail, the evolution to Osprey. I don't know what an Ayas is, but I'm assuming it's some kind of bird. Uh, but I think this is a really really clever wordplay I say it's a pretty simple yet effective name um this all these starters that's just the, the label of these starters simple yet effective um and I like how it plays up more into the sailor elements um like I said in a video where I was talking about like my video on the gen 9 starter evolutions if Quaxley starts evolving in this direction I would absolutely love it um so I really appreciate and love this design itself the sailor aspects really just they really mer merge well with a bird Pokemon, I will say. I just think it's a really natural fit. And again, I love how the Ascot has gotten a little bit bigger, and now it looks kind of like wings. Super cool. Next up, we have Bruisley, which is the final evolution of the Okub line, and we've gone full-on fighter, martial artist, boxer. Um, this is one of those fake mon that I could definitely see in, like, Pokémon or Smash. I mean, like, the, the Super Smash Brothers, not, not, I don't want to smash this Pokémon. Markiplier screwed up this community, I swear. Anyway, I love the hood and cape elements. It definitely feels like a champ, ready to enter the ring. Like, it would take off this, like, this, this, you know, hood, hood situation and just be ready to, like go at it i don't know i love i love bruce lee it's it's not my my starter pick but it's one of my favorites of this region They're, the starters all just fire off they just the 10 out of 10 
firing on all cylinders. I can't think of the proper words to describe them. Whatever. Moving on. Next up, we've got the final evolution of the Kittle line. It is Eldram, and this is definitely my starter pick. Eldram is so good. Turning the Billy Goat beard into a Viking beard and like the horns to a Viking helmet, giving it that flamey beard. Like all the elements of this just merge together so well. And I love it so much. It's one of my favorite fake monster starters of all time. Um, it is just so good. Eldram, like this is <laughs> freaking uh, Opasubius wishes it was Eldram. I'm kind of, I'm calling myself out on this one. My, my Cornera fire starter wishes it was Eldram. This is, this is what, El you know, freaking Opasubius could have been. Also the little elements like the, you know, Norse kind of rune in on the, the on the leg. All these little detailed elements come together so, so beautifully for this design and I love it. Fire rock type is also unique. I know quad weakness to water and all that, but I think it's really just a fun type combo to see for a starter. Last of the starters, we have Cap Talon, which I featured in my Gen 9 uh, starter predictions video. This one is so fun and I love the little star me, star you kind of badge uh, that it has, that it's wearing, you know, to make sure you, you know, show you it's the captain, um, that captain's badge and the, the hat mixed with the, the like, the plumage of the shoulders to give that kind of uh, military officer kind of feeling to it is so good. I like the water flying type. You have the rock flying fighting trio, which is super cool. I like this that the secondary typings play into each other in, in a unique way because I feel like a lot of the time we get fighting dark and psychic or some kind of uh, variation of those three. But getting a rock flying and fighting type trio is really fun. Anyway, Cap Allen, the, the elements all work together really well. Like this is some of my favorite starter set in any fake mon region ever. So, so clever and so well done. Next up, we have the professor of the region, which is Winona Pine. And gosh dang, is she a cutie. She just cute. The little lightning bolt bangs is so adorable. And I like that. Um, I, I'm pretty sure. Is this supposed to be a wind goal? Like thing around her waist? It kind of has that wind goal coloration. I'm not entirely sure. Maybe a Pokemon from this region that I'm not familiar with. Um, but generally, she's just super cute. I really, I really like her aesthetic. And she's got, um, I'm pretty sure this is a Vermini is the name. Um, and we'll see that in a second. Next up, we have T-Peep, which <laughs> I love this name. It's T-P plus Peep. Um, it's, it's, I think it's supposed to be a turkey Pokemon. This is our, this is our normal flying route one bird. Um, and T-Peep is just a fun name. It's just fun to say T-Peep. Um, that, and, and, and it also kind of gives me like a cheap, cheap, like the cheap, cheap, like, you know, the sound that birds make like little little baby birds make you've got that native american inspiration playing into a turkey pokemon which i'm, I'm fairly certain this is supposed to be like a, a turkey pokemon um so i think this is super clever and i'm i, I like to, i have i feel like i've seen its evolution but i'd love to see it again next up we have gnawing which is adorable i'm actually not fairly familiar with this mod. i don't think i've actually taken a look at it the route one rodent i always thought it was for many um and that they did something different with the route one rodent but we've got two normal flying types in a row which is interesting um going with the flying type for the normal rodent we've got ourselves a flying squirrel um it, it's called the aviator pokemon so we got a flying squirrel mixed with like an aviator we've got the aviator goggles and helmet there super fun aesthetic and i, I just very floofy and cute and i just i really enjoy it generally just generally enjoy it next up we have Princect, which is our route one bug pokemon and i just love the name the names in this region are top tier princess or prince plus insect great best just so good and giving a royal aesthetic to a bug is super fun i'm pretty sure where i know i know where this goes and it's even it's even more fun the, the further it progresses so uh, we'll keep going next up is tribeak and tribe plus beak again the names the names the names in this region are so good and once again it's key it keeps that normal flying type and it is you know a turkey which you know honestly i feel like this you could have even done a fun thing where you switched it just being a normal type because turkeys can fly but not really they're kind of like chickens in that way where they can just like fly short distances but turkeys are so fat that like they i'm pretty sure that they can't fly can they fly can turkeys fly i think they can fly short distances i'm pretty sure they can fly short anyway moving on next up we have air rodent i'm never gonna get over it the names dude air rodent great and also it's just giving me a whole squub it to greet it kind of thing going on there where it goes from like cute little chubby cheek boy to big large like boy i don't know how to say it, like chunky boy um and that, that's what this gives me like I, it's one of those things where you're like how do you fly with that big a body you know one of the, one of those pokemon that makes you ask that question but design wise it keeps that whole aviator aesthetic you know giving enlarging like the whole you know goggles and kind of what do you call that a helmet would be the le a leather leather hat leather cap kind of thing going on there with the scarf 
works really well on a flying squirrel and yeah and the name just it's just the the cherry on top next up we have Eris, which is Eris or air plus rest and i just think that's so clever i'm never gonna stop saying the freaking names in this region dude the names are so clever um the fact that you can do air or Eris plus this is it's just, like that 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 in and of itself is very clever as far as the design goes it's actually really not my favorite pokemon of this region i think it's a little the proportions are a little weird to me and i'm not quite certain like i know know where this goes but i'm not sure how this exactly progresses in that line eh, that's that, that that's just my personal opinion the name though just on point finally we have pole tree <laughs> so good so good it's a grass flying type and we've now added these kind of bushy more bushy aesthetic to the already existing you know parts of this kind of native american inspired turkey mon i love the blue face to break up the rest of this design as well as the little green elements from like you know the bushes along the back and the tail super well done i and honestly the name the name the name Next up, we have Dignify, and that's Dignify or Dignified plus Butterfly. Great name. We have a female and a male version. I like how the male version has a little mustache. You know me, I love facial hair. But it is a Psychic Bug type, and I just... I love that psychic bug I, I i love that as a type combo it's a fun type combo to play with the ideas of and it is a play this whole design is a play on the monarch butterfly it's literally a monarch butterfly that is top tier top tier top tier if there were one bug pokemon i wish we could bring into reality i think this is it a literal monarch butterfly is so clever dignify the, the cleverness of this region knows no bounds next up we have shocks you know what I'm gonna say. All right, it is an electric ox, and it's just <laughs> it's so good. It's super cute. It's so cute. I like that the elements of the electricity are subtle, uh, but not like out there in your face. It's just like a little electric bolt, and it's tufted on its fur, and a little like electric tail, and its eye. Just simple yet effective. I'm just gonna say that a thousand more times. There's always like one phrase per region review that I just have to say over and over again, and it just encapsulates the entire region. Simple yet effective and super clever are probably gonna be the ones for this region. Next up, we have Phantom. Um, it's just crazy. I can't get over it, man. The names, they get, they get me every time. So it's just when I think, I'm like, oh, there's probably going to be one that's not clever. It just keeps coming. Don't take that out of context. I realize how weird that sounds. But as far as the design, this reminds me of my own fond Pokemon fantasy. And it just kind of speaks to my, you know, heart here. I love I love the skull with the, the flame eyes. It's badass and cute at the same time, which is really hard to do. Um, and they, man you know, Wesco managed to do it really well. Next up, we have Steedster, which is Steed plus Speedster that's fun um uh, fire steel type heatran is the only fire steel type we have currently and i just think that's a damn shame like give us more another fire steel type there's so many design possibilities with a fire steel type um as well as this is just such a fun idea it's literally like horsepower <laughs> like it's it's a horse plus a car and like it's that's great and it's like it's got this locomotive thing to it almost as well and it's called the racehorse pokemon is literally i just feel i can imagine people racing their steedsters um and i'm, I'm pretty sure this evolution kind of plays into this as well um i could just imagine both of those just like racing i could even imagine like one of those race movies where there's like the evolution and then this the 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 steedster like there's a guy who wants to ride a steedster it's the little steedster that could i don't i don't know that's that's what's playing into my head right now could even be an episode of the anime i don't know i don't know, I don't know. moving on next up we have bisurge which is an electric ground type super great stunfisk is the only one with the electric ground type what a shame so that element of it is fun element i guess <laughs> no pun intended there but anyway as far as the pokemon goes this doesn't really feel like a pokemon to me there's something about the design or maybe the artwork that's done it just doesn't really feel very pokemon to me that's just me um but the name typing and general concept are all really cool and i like next up we have venison the name <laughs> dude venison I've, I've seen this pokemon before and i know the name but the name always is so good venison for a ghost type is so good it's so good it's just it's just so good and the the the, the mon itself is all right i think it's a little too much but um i think i still think it's really cool the general idea of it is really cool i like the way they did the flames i love that whole you know flame with the little circle in the middle reminds me of uh, wind waker with the bombs and the little curly smoke that's kind of what it gives me and I, I just really adore that kind of design aesthetic um i like how it's kind of see-through you can see like certain parts of it are are transparent 
super cool. But like I said, as far as the design, just a little much for me. Next up, we have Engine A and great name. Engine plus Ne, also giving that kind of has ingenuity in there, ingenuity. I don't, I don't know, something like that. Um, but like I said earlier, this reminds me like Steedster, like the little Steedster that could versus an Engine A. I can imagine it. It's, I can picture it in my head. Um, this very much gives Go Goat, but like literally like a motorcycle plus a plus a horse, which is this is so fun. It's so fun, and I like the uh, little like um, smoke mane kind of thing going on there kind of looks like one of those horses that has their like their mane braided and then they let it flow at the top i think that's a thing i'm pretty sure that's a thing but that's that's kind of what it reminds me of in general this design is really fun again one of those it's a little bit too much there's a little bit too much going on here but generally the concept really shines next up we've got capricci which is capricious plus chihuahua and it kind of plays on the idea of chihuahuas being super cute but also little hell spawns it's very dark type and you can see it has a good doggo mode and a bad doggo mode. Yeah, so you can see it literally has a little demon. It's a little demon, it's perfect. It's exactly what I think of when I think of Chihuahuas. Next up we have Starsky, which is like Starling plus Birdie, but it's also giving me like Starsky and Hutch kind of thing, I don't know. Anyway, this is Psychic Flying type and I'm actually pretty sure this has a schooling form. It's a it's a murmuration form. It's a murmur of murmur of starlings there. Um, and I think this is super fun. I, I, I generally enjoy grouping or schooling forms um, for Pokemon and I think this one is super fun. I like the whole space galaxy aesthetic it has going on and each of the eyes looking like a little star. Um, it's super fun. I will say though, generally the shape of this feels a little weird to me, like the, the proportions of it. And I think I would have made the head bigger or made the wings do something different. It just looks a little weird to me. Generally though, I like the concept. Next up we have Pawseam, which is a ghost normal type and you can see it has a stitch form. Um, you know, you can, pretty sure you can see where this is going, but generally let's start with this form. The stitch form is fun. It plays kind of on the whole possums playing dead thing. And we will see here, we have the seamless form and it is literally, you can see the the seamed for, stitched form is, you know, playing dead and it has the ghostly spirit coming out with the, the fuzz of it. Like that the fuzz is its being, its essence, which is kind of fun because a lot of people think of like the stuffing as the thing that gives, you know, the stuffed animal's life in some media. Um, and I just think that's fun. Generally, this concept is just a really enjoyable um, play on the whole playing dead of the possum as well as just kind of incorporating that kind of almost Build-A-Bear aesthetic to it. Next up, we have Water, which is so good. So good. I would have done an A to get the water, um, but I guess that would have been too, like, on the nose um, because then you, it's it's watt plus water plus otter which is fun i just i kind of i do i do wish there had been the a there because it would have made the watt whatever anyway electric water electric type super fun typing i'm pretty sure the only one that has that is lantern if i'm not mistaken i'm pretty sure lantern and uh chincho are the only ones that have the water electric type i think it's super cleverly designed you get the water type you get the electric type from it, it the design elements speak for themselves and it's, you know, I, I, the name is super clever. That, what, what else can I say? Next up, we have Treaver, which is a grass type beaver Pokemon. And it just makes perfect sense. Beavers, they gnaw down trees, they build dams. It just kind of makes sense for a tree, you know, beaver. Treaver. I think the name is also really, really clever. Like I said, I'm going to say that a thousand and one more times. Someone make a counter. Say, you know what? Someone in the comment section, count me how many times I say that this, you know, the names are clever. Please do. Um, anyway, I like the overall design of this. I like the kind of, it has like a polyworld swirl here, but it's actually supposed to be the inside of a tree, like the trunk, like the, what's the word? You know, the, the life rings that trees have, that kind of thing. Um, the wood elements play into it really well. I would say, it, I, I would say, <laughs> I kill me. Um, anyway, <laughs> I would say that um, there's a little bit too much going on here. I think that like you could you could subtract a few of the leaves or something, or maybe uh, maybe some of the woody elements, uh, stuff like that. But generally, again, once again, concept strong. Next up, we've got Ocelot, which is a fire type Ocelot Pokemon. Ocelot, Ocelot plus lit. What am, I, what am I gonna say, folks? What am I gonna say? It is clever. That's you know, it's just kind of, it's just kind of, you know, it's a clever name. It's a clever name. But something you might have noticed about the last three Pokemon is that they are fire 
water and grass um and i think that kind of plays into the idea of a secondary starter trio in a way i think they kind of would act as the pan or semis um like in unova where you pick you know the grass starter and they give you the fire or the water or whatever you know that's kind of what i feel like they would play into with that maybe maybe i'm wrong i'm not sure what the exact intent was for wesco but that's what i kind of imagine them as as far as the design it's simple it's cute gives off of those fiery elements mixing in perfectly the elements of an ocelot mix with the fire type just simple yet effective next up we have the evolution to water and it is lutricity um lutris plus electricity i'm not sure what lutris is i'm assuming it's something to do with an otter or some kind of mustelid something like that um but i like the design it, once again this one what, that's not my favorite design it's a little I don't know what to say. There's, there's just something about it that it's not like doesn't make it my favorite. Generally, it, like I said, it gives water, it gives electric. It's good. It's good. It's a good design. Next up, we have Lumbi, which is grass steel. I love that. Once again, I think there's just one step too far with this. And I'd say like maybe subtract the leaf elements. I think the chainsaw tail, while cool, is just a little too much. Little like it pulls away from the rest of the design very much so. I like the grass beard, the grass glove, gla the, the leaf, the leaf beard, the leaf gloves. That's what I'm trying to say. Um, but generally, I think it is, there's just a little too much going on. And lastly, we have also hot. Good one. Yet again, another good pun there. Um, and I think this is probably one of my favorite of the three just because they keep it simple. Um, the flame patterns are really fun, really cool. Incorporate into an Ocelot's, you know, pattern really well and doesn't put too much into the design like the other, you know, or like Lumbeef or even um, Lutricity um, does. I think this one, you know, plays into those fire type elements without taking it too far. Next up, we have Snow Me and oh my God, the name. <laughs> it's Snow plus Homie and this dude is my homie. Ice Psychic type. I love this type combo. I love this concept. A little snowman friend. He is friend shaped. He's 100% friend shaped. Love it. Love it to death. Um, gives me that Frosty the Snowman, which is kind of, you know, classic Americana, that, that, that classic American, you know, Christmas kind of aesthetic to it. Love that. Um, has the top hat and the scarf and the and the mittens. I, I just love this little guy. Next up, we have Wesco and Baneri, and it is a pure ice type. Frankly, just adorable. Just, just adorable. An adorable version of Baneri, and I like how... He played into the one ear being down. Now he brought both ears down and made them into little earmuffs. And it's just a floofy little bun. And it's so cute. And I have nothing else to say about it. <laughs> Next up, we have Lava. That's that's fun. That's, that's, a, little, that's a little bit of a stretch, but it's, it's fun. It's, uh, it's Llama plus Lava, kind of plus Lava Lamp. Actually, I just realized that's kind of clever because Lava Lamp, LL, Lava... Okay, I take it back. That's 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 really clever. That's really really clever. Fire fairy type, little lava lamp, llama Pokemon. So unique, so unique. I like. I've seen a, a good amount of uh, llama Pokemon, but I've never seen one quite like this. So, and I just like how floofy it is. These last few have been just so friend shaped, and I I just I love it. Next up, we have Frigician, and it is a magician, uh, snowman Pokemon. That's so fun, and it's kind of giving me House Moving Castle. You know, like the I think his name's Turniped. The one that has like a little, he's like bouncing around the whole time during house moves. I, I love that guy. And this is what that gives me. And it's also kind of got four hands in a way because it's got the gloves and then it's got the hands on its scarf. That is super clever. Um, generally, I think this design is super fun. Something about it doesn't feel very Pokemon to me. Um, but generally, I think the idea of this monster is really fun and, and unique. Next up, we have Wesco and Lopany, and it's Ice Fairy type. And this is so cute. This gives me, like, you know, the original Lopany is kind of based on, you know, Playboy bunnies. Um, but this one gives me, like, one of those, like, models that goes on a winter trip. And she's in these, these really fun, you know, wintry clothes. You can see them in, like, the winter edition of whatever magazine she's, you know, featured in. You can also see there's ice skates there as well. She's got little ice skates. I will say, this does not... I, I don't like the, the skates being between the toes. I just, I don't like things being between toes and like standing up. That just doesn't sound nice to me. That sounds painful. But overall, as a design, it works well. Next up, we have La Mera, which is Lama plus Mera. I'm pretty sure Mera, so like, there's Mera Mon in Digimon, which is a fire data Digimon. It's like, he's like, all, he's a 
you know, fire elemental. So I think maybe that's where they were going with this. Like, I don't know if Mera actually translates to fire in, Jap uh, in Japanese. I'm not 100% certain on that, but I think that's what they're going for on this. Uh, but continuing that fire fairy type, adding these little globby fur, you know, elements to it, and it kind of has like a pompadour kind of thing going on. I think it's super cute and, again, very clever. Next up, we've got Lopsky, which is a alternate evolution to Baneri, and it is an ice electric type rather than the ice fairy. Um, and so, yeah, we got a split evolution for uh, Baneri, which is super fun. I, again, don't like the toes with the, between the skates. That looks painful to me, but I love the lightning bolt. Um, I, I, I don't know. What are these things called? I, what are they called? The poles? Whatever, the skiing poles, I guess. Skiing poles are cool. I like how the ears have become like this kind of wrap helmet thing for them. Based on speed skiers, which is super, uh, super neat. Um, once again, I think this is one of those that are a little bit too much for me. I think the there's too much going on with the body and head with the, you know, skiing poles and the and the skates i think there's just uh, there's a little too many too many elements for a pokemon for me but that's just me next up we have the pen ultimate pokemon of the wesco region and that is comic kid comic kid was actually the first uh pokemon that wesco made along with his evolutions um and it inspired him to make the wesco region so um so yes that's, this is definitely the mascot of the wesco region and it is so iconic it's based on comic book superheroes that kind of very americana kind of thing going on there um and i just love it i love i would love to see just a classic superhero pokemon um, just, but not like a Japanese one, but like an actual American superhero, um, kind of thing in an America region. You know, I think we had a chance with that in Unova, but I would love to see it if we ever got a West Coast based region. I'd love to see this kind of superhero Pokemon. Next up, we've got Vermini, and it is based on Lab Rats. It's giving me Pinky in the Brain, kind of that, that kind of aesthetic to it. Um, but the way it evolves is super fun, um, and the Lab Rat aesthetic really plays into that, and it's actually really fun how the, you know, the Lab Rat plays into that. You'll see in a second. Next, we have Comic Kids Art nemesis crooked um and it's a pure dark type it's based on classic comic book villains just super fun just got that kind of old-timey robber bandit kind of aesthetic to it that, that that classic villain archetype to it and i just generally enjoy it and it's a nice foil to comic kid next up we've got the first evolution to comic kid this is dark owl obviously based on Batman or Owlman. I guess there's Owlman too in there, um, but it is Dark Knight plus Cowl, Dark Owl. Um, good one, and I just think that's super, super fun. Super fun to play into the whole, you know, Batman thing. This is one of three evolutions for Comic Kid. You'll see the others coming up, but Batman Pokemon, dude. Batman Pokemon, so cool, especially with the recent movie that came out. It's, it, you know, my, my Batman love has been relit, and so this one that especially appeals to me. I really, really like Dark Owl. Next up, we've got Moisturat, and this is an evolution to Vermini. As you can kind of tell, there's going to be a multiple evolutions thing going on here where um, Crooked, Comic Kid, and Vermini all have multiple evolutions. Vermini takes the kind of Eevee route where it takes the, you know, original evolutions into account there. And I like the lab rat aesthetic it has to it. Like, instead of the DNA just being unstable, this rat Pokemon was experimented, experimented on um, giving it these multiple evolutions. As far as the design goes, this one's super fun. Plays on the whole Vaporeon thing. Uh, this is one of those things where I think it's a little just too much. Like, the the tail plus the, the ears and the bubble helm. I think you could probably pull it back. I do kind of like how the tail is like... Um, one of those like half-eaten fish where you can see like the bones and then there's the tail kind of like that Next up we have the foil to dark owl and it is joe crime fairy dark type Perfect type combo for a joker pokemon This is just so well done. This is just so 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 well done joe crime as a name is great plays on the joker But also plays on the fact he's a villain and the fairy dark type so fun because he's just this cheerful villain who just wants everybody to laugh but is just also just this sadistic it's it's great it's perfect perfect joker pokemon next up we have hero bust which is hero plus robust and it is steel fighting to play on the idea of the man of steel himself superman this design really plays well on the whole superman aesthetic and it just very feels that that feels that heroic feeling that the heroic superhero the, not the one that has dark past or anything like that kind of like dark but this one is just that perfectly and perfect embodiment of good you know it definitely has that aesthetic to it next up we have generat which is probably my favorite name in this region generat is generate plus 
rat or generator plus rat great and also the design is really fun really fun i like how the lightning elements like the you know the kind of scraggly elements of a rat are played up into a kind of electricity kind of thing going on there super fun um and yeah just generally the name just makes it it just it just does next up we've got luthority lex luther plus authority psychic dark type to play on um to play on you know lex luther being brainy particularly good foil to superman this is a good foil to a hero bust um and it's the mastermind pokemon and it's just it, it has got that kind of like armor thing that Luke Lex Luthor has sometimes. Design wise, it's kind of, you know, it's Lex Luthor. So, you know, Lex Luthor is just an ordinary dude with a really big brain. It's kind of like the Iron Man of this. This is a hot take. It's kind of like the Iron Man, like the villain Iron Man of DC. Is that a hot take? I think that might be a hot take. But generally, as a design, it's. It's okay. It's okay. It's almost giving me Buzz Lightyear a little bit with the coloration. Next up, we have Whamazon, fairy fighting type, and I just love the name Whamazon. That's it's just Wham, like the classic like superhero like onomatopoeia, like Wham, you know. Um, plus Amazon, it's clearly based on Wonder Woman, um, and we've got, even got um, the W's in there to kind of Wonder Woman and Whamazon. It's great. And yeah, this is that the final evolution of Comic Kid. Um, and it, it really plays in, you know, of course, to Wonder Woman. Wonder Woman's a good one. Kind of, they, they, didn't, they didn't do a good job with the last movie, but we'll forgive them. The first one was really good, but. <laughs> Next up, we've got Pirate. Wait, hold on. I thought that was a Corneran Pokemon. I'm just kidding. We have the same name, had the same name in mind Pyro plus Rat. Um, he has his pirate. I have my pirate. I actually like his pirate better than my pirate. I think it's really clever. I like the smoky tail. I like the ears and like the the fiery mustache, like whisker thing. I, that's super fun. I really, I do, I do really enjoy this mon. Um, and I like that. I also just noticed that their stats are 520, which is awesome for like a rat Pokemon to get that kind of representation. Super cool. Next up, we have Manita, which is so good. It's play, it's the play on the word man eater, like she's a man eater, um, plus Cheetah, because Cheetah is like, you know, we got the uh, the Wonder Woman's villain, and I just think it's cool. It's, it's especially speedy fighting dark type. I find that super fun, um, and the way that they incorporated the, it's kind of giving me Lipard in a way, because Lipard is, you know, a leopard Pokemon, Cheetah, leopard print, kind of the same idea there um but that, that that's fun that they play that into it like a super villain that wears a leopard like a dark types you know skin as a as a that this sounds creepy the, w the way i say it it sounds creepy but it's to me it sounds cool i don't know Wh whatever next up we've got devisaur which is devious plus dinosaur or sore um or sores i guess um and it's rock fire type and it is just this little devilish theropod i just think that's so fun um, and it, it's got the little spiked tail to give it, you know, that little devilish aesthetic to it. Um, I've seen its evolutions. Its evolution is one of my favorite fossil Pokemon in the Fakemon community. This region has a lot of my favorites. I'm not going to lie to you. This, this region is really just fires on all cylinders. So anyway, let's move on to the next. Next up, we've got Prechu, which is an rock electric type. And this is the ancestor to P the Pichu Pikachu line. Um, this is their ancestor. So it's a rock electric type. Um, and it's the prehistoric mouse Pokemon. And I just think this, this is so, so, so ingenious. So ingenious. It's giving the Pikachu line a caveman aesthetic and calling it Prechu big brain huge brain i'm assuming this i can't remember if it's pikachu i think it's Pikachu is the evolution but we'll see um but overall this aesthetic is super fun and super fun to see these kind of concepts combined next up we've got cubble which is rubble plus cub great name rock dark type i think this one is super fun i love having a saber tooth pokemon that's not just raiko or raiku however I freaking pronounce it i pronounce things wrong Get over it. Anyway, as a little baby Sabertooth Pokemon, I think this does the, does the job wonderfully. Um, and I like his little mask. It's super cute. Let's see how these dudes evolve. Next up, we've got Satanosaur. Rock fire type. The name, not my favorite. The design, absolutely one of my favorite. Oh my gosh, this thing is so unique, so fun. I love the blacks against the reds and grays and yellow or like yellowish oranges. Um, that, ha, it's so good. It's so, such a good design. So clever. You've got that. It's, it's literally supposed to be the devil. It's literally like it, it is a Satan dinosaur. 
<laughs> and that's so fun. Uh, rock fire type is uh, such a fun type combo. We quad wing just to water, but you know, whatever. We, we forgive because it is so badass. Next up, we have Pikadai. Sorry, it is not Pikachu. It is Pikadai, which is Pikachu plus Pika plus Kodai. Kodai means ancient in Japanese. I like this. It, it's interesting because it's more human than Pikachu. It's kind of got like that, like the very, um, what's the word? Neanderthal Pikachu. Like, like if Pikachu evolved to be human, you know what I'm saying? Like instead of apes, it was Pikachus. That's kind of what this gives me. I like how it's holding its tail like a club now. That's super fun. And I like how they muted the cheeks. Uh, that they're, they're 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 not actually red. They're like a very bright brown, like almost like a, a desaturated reddish brown, which I appreciate because it plays into this whole rock electric typing very well. Next up, we've got Mount Tiger, which is rock dark type. Oh, I love this design. I love this design. The fossils of this are, like I said, some of my favorites. The the Mount Tiger especially is really great because I love how. It's not just the teeth, it's not just his teeth, but it's like a mask, like a mask it's wearing. And then it's got the freaking like pirate eye patch aesthetic going on. Looks totally badass. And I just love the scraggly kind of scruffy fur element. It's just chef's kiss. Next up, we have Gorochu. That's right, Gorochu, uh, the beta evolution to Raichu. Instead, it's been swapped in as a new evolution for this prehistoric Pikachu line. Um, Rock Electrotype, and I love, I love, love, love that they put the little, you know, Raijin um, swirls on the club of, of its tail. It's got this like, club tail. I will say, it's a little crazy. <laughs> There's a lot going on. There's a lot going on here, but generally I think it works. I think it's super clever to use a beta design as a prehistoric version of an uh, you know evolution of Pikachu. Very, very, very genius. Great. Next up we have Capadre, which is a dark psychic type coffee Pokemon. It's like a coffee plus a genie. It's Cup plus Compadre or Buddy, or um, and that just. He's your just little coffee buddy. Give you a little kick of caffeine. Say, hey, what's up, dude? You need a little lift? Pick me up? Here, take it. Like, that's, that's, I imagine he almost is kind of like deli buried with his gifts, except it like, he gives you energy. That's, that's kind of what I imagine. It's just super fun. And I believe that this is actually like kind of like a mascot for coffee in the Wesco region. I think it's super fun that he, he incorporates like the Pokemon into brands and stuff like that. I love when Pokemon does that. So him doing it is really fun. Next up, we have Quilder, a pure steel type porcupine builder Pokemon, giving me Bob the Builder energy. And that name is so good. I just think this dude's super cute. I like how you can see kind of like the quills as it's on you know, his like little utility belt. I think that's super fun. It's using a little rock to hammer its quills into the ground. The design story of this is just gold. Just gold, pure gold. Actually, it's silver because that's a lot of his quills are silver. Okay, I'm sorry, I'm moving on. Next up is Filfur, a ground type dog Pokemon. It's filthy plus fur. I think this one is cool. It has, it has you know, the basics of a dog Pokemon, giving it that kind of scruffy, dirty aesthetic really helps play into that ground typing. I think that's super fun. Filfur has something special to it, but we won't see that till a little bit later. Next up, we've got Brudini. Oh, the name, the name, the name, Houdini plus Brew. Great. And also this design is super fun. I love the like steamy coffee genie aesthetic. Oh, it's so good. It's also, I also just realized that it, genie is in there too. Brudini, because that's Dini, genie. You see what I'm saying? Um, generally, this mod is just so fun. It's, it's so fun. It's just such a classic mischievous, you know, that kind of like, genie that wants to play a trick on you kind of thing it gives me that aesthetic next up we have histrofix and it is a steel type and it's kind of like a master builder um it's histrix plus fix histrix i'm pretty sure is like the porcupines like the scientific name that's what i mean the scientific name um it's not my favorite name in the world from his i think this is one of my least favorite names that he's done um but generally the design was really fun and it's give it evokes that kind of like japanese like the precision of like a japanese builder you know what i'm saying like they, they kind of have that headband with the whole ponytail you, you know what i'm saying that, that's the kind of the aesthetic it gives me next up we have bar cop and it is ground fighting and it, it seems it's like that dog that's reformed it's a german shepherd i'm pretty sure this is supposed to be like a german shepherd and it's like that scrappy stray that reformed and became a cop it's like it's like it's bar cop <laughs> Saying it that way makes me think in the Pokemon world, there's gotta be some kind of good cop, bad cop show with Bar Cop, like Bowowski and Bar Cop or something like that. 
I can totally imagine it. Oh my gosh. Next up, we've got Wiscoa and Meowth. And if you are familiar, you should be because it is our uh, fairy type representation in the Meowth of every type video. Check that out if you missed it. That was a good one. That was one of our first of every type videos. I'm pretty sure it was the first. Was it the first? I think it was the first. Yeah, the first of every type video. Um, and I love this mon. It's just so cute and cuddly. Cu cute and cuddly Meowth. And just you just want to you want to have it as a pet i don't even like cats as pets i don't i'm not really a pet person but i want this to be my pet you know my comment section is going to devour me for saying i'm not a pet person uh next up we've got west Goen, magikarp and my goodness gracious if there were ever a more perfect variant of any pokemon it's this giving you know uh giving magikarp that kind of bass aesthetic to it it's it's called the bass pokemon but giving uh, giving giving magikarp going taking from a carp to a bass so clever i love the evolution as well by the way i love the evolution and this i just i love giving magikarp that variant love it's one of the few pokemon that hasn't had that kind of love uh, the kind of variant love and i just i don't see it very often um and i just think it's so clever so clever next up we've got wisco and han edge and it is a tomahawk it's an axe well it's an axe but it's supposed to be a tomahawk it's rock ghost got that new type combo in there that hasn't been seen yet as of this video i mean gen 9 is coming up so who knows but i love the idea of taking han edge which is this you know the sword Pokemon and making it a little bit more gritty and giving turning it into this like axe. I think that's super fun. Kind of shifting it, um, you know, instead of a possessed sword, it's a possessed axe. I like I like that idea of possessing a different weapon. I would love to see this concept incorporated in actual Pokemon having Han Edge, you know, possess a different kind of weapon. Just be super cool to see. As far as the design goes, I think it's super clever. They keep it simple with the coloration. You go white, red, grays. Very simple and. and Next up, we have Pampered, which I think is fun. It doesn't play on the whole Purr thing where you got Perserker, Persian. It's Pampered, so it puts that at the end. I, th I mean, the the, the 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 name is pretty clever. I will say the name is clever. It doesn't follow that that you know whole idea, but it gets it in there in in a, in a in a in a unique way. As far as the design goes, I think this is super fun. It's got that spoiled house cat kind of thing going on to it. It does very much exude that fairy typing. It's very jovial, happy, spoiled probably, spoiled rotten by their owners, but I just like it. Next up is Sakeos, which is sake, which uh, it says it's salmon in Japan. I'm not 100% certain on that, but it, it plus chaos and it's a water dragon type finally giving that dragon typing to a magikarp evolution not exactly gyarados but i think it's super cool i think it's so unique to make a salmon gyarados so unique so unique and giving it that dragon typing makes sense a dragon salmon oh this is so unique this is one of those concepts that i constantly think about and i think man i wish i had thought of this concept first because it is that smart it is that clever so um this is one of my favorite pokemon from the wesco region for sure next up we have wesco and dublade and it you know continues that whole you know, now two tomahawks rather than one continuing that rock ghost type and now it is blue so we have red and white and now we have red and white and blue and gray. So we're kind of getting that red and white and blue thing too. I mean, you have it in the layout here. It's very Americana in that way. I've said Americana like three times, but you know, it's it's the word to describe it. It's very America in that way. And finally, we have a new evolution. No more Aegislash. No, this is Axorcist. Top tier name, top tier name, rock ghost type. And it puts all of the elements together, red, white, and blue, very America, you know, and we got the Tomahawk. It actually has two forms. Um, this is the axe form, and then it has a bow form, which I think is so cool. I think that's so cool. Like you have the axes that get turned into a bow. Instead of being a sword and shield form, it's an axe and bow form. So, so incredibly clever. Next up, we've got Tripoli. And now that I say that, I said that like Tripoli, like the game. <laughs> Well, anyway, we've got Tripoli, um, and they are three separate little entities. It's kind of like Phalanx in that way, where it's just like one Pokemon that's like a couple Pokemon. This one's kind of interesting. Yeah, so it's Triple plus Flea, obviously, um, and Plea, apparently. I, I don't know where the Plea comes in, but this one also has another thing that's special about it that we'll see momentarily. As far as the design itself, it's cool. I like the little mustaches. It's not my favorite. Uh, it's 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 decent. It's decent. Next up, we have the gimmick of this region, which is called Imix Evolution. And yep, it is 
Pokemon Fusion. Straight up Pokemon Fusion. And the way that Wesco handles it, I think is super fun and super unique. So I can't wait to show you guys. We have our first MX evolution and it is Swarmut. And it is Filfer plus Triply. And so you get the fleas overtaking like the filth of, of, of Filfer, like the filth mixing in with the fleas. And the fleas like do this swarming thing and turn into two other heads, making a Cerberus. This is so out of pocket, but genius at the same time. Absolutely love this design. And the name, just ugh, the names, the name. Next up, we have Dirt Timid, and it is a ground type groundhog, and it's a play on, you know, the groundhog seeing its shadow, but this one is afraid of a shadow. It's very ghostly, very ghastly, very creepy, um, and I think that's really fun. It actually has an ability called Spooked, where it gives it the ghost type weakness, so like it's, it's, it's scared, you know, it's scared of the ghost type, so therefore it's weak to it. Um, and it's just so sad, it's sad, um, but, there's, there's a story to this. There's a story to this that you'll see later. Next up, we've got Barbary, which is a grass type, and it is Barb plus Berry. Like, you gotta get a Barbarian kind of in there too. Um, but this one's just kind of cute, just simple, you know, bound sweet kind of aesthetic to it. And yeah, it, it, it just kind of has like a cheeky, like I like how it's less cute, but like kind of more cheeky and like, like confident, you know? I like that. Next up, we have Wescoan Apum, and it is a normal steel type. You know, the normal steel type's not done yet as of right now. I mean, you know, again, Gen 9, we'll see. And it's a grease monkey. So clever. Um, I love the, like, and also I just noticed has kind of like an unknown face on its wrench, which is also a monkey wrench. I, it's not a monkey wrench. I mean, but it's a monkey holding a wrench, so therefore it is a monkey wrench. Anyway, this concept works so well, and especially for the normal steel type, which we haven't seen yet. Yes. Next up, we have Terrain. And it is terror plus terrain plus rain. So like to rain. And it is gotten, it, uh, this is Dirtimid has imixed evolved with a ghost type. And so therefore it has gained control over its shadow, uh, Tokuyami style, giving it that ghost typing. And it also has long reach, which is fun because like it's, it's also got like kind of like a stand from JoJo's. It's like a stand mixed with Tokuyami from My Hero Academia. There's uh, all kinds of anime in this and I love it. And it's such a fun concept. The, the groundhog who has had mastery over its shadow and now uses it to to, you know, fight. That's super clever. Next up, we have Bear Rage, which is an MX evolution of three Barberries. Um, and that's, it's super fun. I like, I like how um, Barberry has, you know, fused together with two others to make this kind of beast. It's like a bush beast, bush beast. Like okay. something fun about saying bush beast. Uh, I don't know. Anyway, next up, we have Wescoan Ambipom. And to get this one, you have to do something a little bit different because as you can see by the background, it is an Imix evolution. To get this form of Ambipom, you need to mix a Wescoan Apom with a Magneton. And I just think this is so clever. It's got this little tool belt and it, instead of having hands attached to its butt, it has hands that are freaking metallic. And it's giving me that like junk rat, like genius who, is makes you know a tinkerer tinkerer that's what i'm thinking of like a kind of a tinkerer kind of thing going on there that's exactly what this reminds me of and i love this aesthetic when wesco showed wesco showed this to me before it came out and i just died because it's just such a such a, such a clever concept I, I just i can't say it enough this is so clever so clever next up we've got berry Vern, and it is a grass dragon evolution to bear age and this one is just it's just fun it's just generally fun it's got that whole multiple headed dragon thing going on. I will say, I think the two barberries on the end might be a little bit much, but I generally, I think this is such a fun and unique concept. I like that it's breathing fire, yet it's a grass dragon type and like this, there's no fire involved in it, but maybe, oh, you know, maybe it kind of plays into like, instead of being a berry, maybe it's like a chili in that way. I don't know. I just think this is generally just fun. Next up, we've got Zenetic, which is steel type. I'm not sure on the name. It says Agassizi. Uh, Agassizi. I'm not sure what language that is, but um, maybe it's a kind of like specific thing. I'm not 100% certain on the inspiration of this one. This is actually one I'm kind of familiar with. Um, the idea of it is kind of fun. I like to play on a turtle who's got the, like this like kind of fragmented shell. Um, and I think it's supposed to play on you know, magnetism, obviously, because it's got magnetic in the name. So magnetic turtle, that's, that's pretty fun. Next up, we've got Cubling, which is an ice poison type. Got that ice poison representation. I think that's fun. You know, a freaking scorpion mixed with an ice cube who thinks of that. Also, its tail is a snow me to try and bait other Pokemon out and they can just 
get its prey. I think that's super fun. I think an ice poison type as a scorpion is a super fun concept that I'd really love to see implemented in in Pokemon. So um, I, this this concept I like, but I'd like kind of kind of like to see it implemented in a different way. Next up, we've got Viper Race, which is an electric type snake Pokemon Viper plus race. It's a speedy boy, definitely a speedy boy. Its speed stat is pretty high. Um, you can see that if you want to check out the Instagram. The stats, the stats are all there, um, but it serves a good electric type snake Pokemon. You know, it gives it looks like it's speedy. It the little electric type wisps. It looks like it just dart at you through the grass or wherever surface this thing hangs out, maybe in the power plant or something. Next up, we have Tromagzi. I'm not sure where the Tromag, like it looks like they got magnetic in there and the Z from the previous one. I'm not exactly sure, but it's a steel electric type. It kind of looks like uh, one of those orbs you would touch as a kid, like you put it, your, it's like electric orbs that you touch and the, the electricity would go to your finger. That's what this is giving me. I'm pretty sure that's probably what this is supposed to be. Anyway, as a design, this isn't one of my favorites. Uh, I think it's a little, again, one of those things. There's some, some designs that are just a little too much for me in this region, and this is kind of one of them. Next up, we've got Isoclaw, and actually, this is, this is what I kind of imagined when I was thinking of an ice type poison scorpion. I think this, this very much serves. Like, it's giving me um, Lavos from Chrono Trigger. It kind of gives me that. I love Chrono Trigger, so this makes me love it even more. The layering ice on top of each other. Really cool. Um, it doesn't really feel like a Pokemon to me, I will say. Um, like, it, there, there's something about it that doesn't, like, it feels a little too threatening to me. Um, Pokemon, you're still supposed to make him feel like your friend. Almost like an Ultra Beast. This almost feels like an Ultra Beast to me. Because Ultra Beasts, while they still kind of feel a little bit friendly, they have that kind of weird aesthetic that puts them, like, a makes them a little threatening. And that's kind of what this give is giving me right here. Next up is Hisilarate, and yes, it is evolved into an Ouroboros that's a tire. Electric Steel type, I think, is... <laughs> It's just, it's just it's just genius. It's just an Ouroboros that's a tire, kind of giving me that whole doll fan thing where it rolls up into a tire, kind of that kind of thing. Um, super fun. So I just think it's a, it's a, it's a very 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 fun concept. Next up, we've got the Box Legend for Pokemon Virtue. This is Zephyr, which I think is Zap plus Zephyr, which is very clever. I'm not sure what the typing is. It doesn't say whether the typing is here, but I assume Electric Flying. Um, you know, plus you know the wind plus the electricity plus being a bird. I assume that's what the typing is. Um, but this 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 is so cool. I like the design is very, very legendary. It has that elegance, but also that intimidation to it. The long flowing cloud-like uh, feathers and wings is just really good. I, I, I've seen the other legend and I think I'd, per I'd pick this one, but I'll show you guys the other legend. Here is the box legend for Pokemon Vice. We have Viserp. Really great, I love that. Um, Vice plus Serpent, obviously. And we've got a, ourselves a Horned Serpent. Looks like a Dark type, I assume. You know, by Vice, it would probably be Dark type. Maybe Dark Poison? I am not 100%. It doesn't, it doesn't say here, but I'm sure um, Wesco will tell me. But I love a Horned Serpent. Obviously, I have Hydrena in my region, which is a Horned Serpent. I love that whole aesthetic. And it plays into the logo really, really well. Um, yeah. Definitely a really cool one, though I will say I'll probably pick Zaffir. I'll probably pick Virtue because I'm just such a virtuous guy. No, I'm just kidding. I just, I just really like the legend. <laughs> Next up, we have Dakota, who is our rival for this region. He is actually also the professor's little brother. Um, his last name is Pine, you know, Winona Pine, Dakota Pine. I think that's kind of fun that their names kind of rhyme. I just rhymed. Oh my gosh, Rhymeception. Anyway, I think it's fun that um, Dakota is the little brother rather than being some kind of child or grandchild of another character. It's actually the brother that's your rival. I think that's pretty fun. Design-wise, I think it's really fun. I like the different kind of style he has, kind of got that Western style to him, as well as it gives me that punk energy, kind of like a blue or a silver, where they just kind of look like they're, you know, they don't really care about you. They're just kind of be trying to be stronger, you know? One of those rude rivals, you know what I'm saying? Next up, we've got the champion of the Wesco region, and this dude is Warren, and I'm pretty sure he's a poison type user, but he's a poison type hippie. You can kind of see like he's got like this um, nu nuclear um, kind of aesthetic on his pants. Um, let me see, I'm pretty sure, yeah, has his team. He has a um, ace Pokemon that we haven't been introduced to yet, but we will see shortly. Next up, we have Pebble, a rock ground type mole Pokemon, Pebble plus mole. Uh, it's kind of got that whole thing with the, you know, we had Diglett, which is a, a mole Pokemon, and then we have Drillbur, which is also a mole Pokemon. I think this gives me, doesn't really give me anything different than Drillbur, to be, to be honest. I, th I think the rock typing's fun. 
um, and I like the rock claws, but design-wise, it's kind of got a similar pose. It's very cute. It's very cute, but I just don't think it served. Like, we already had Drillbur. That's just me. That's just me. Next up, we have Raptile, which I think is so good. Reptile plus rap. He's got CDs all over him. He's got an ox cord tail. He's a normal dragon type playing into the normal type being associated with sound and music. It's just super fun. Super fun name. Super clever concept. Uh, I think the design is a little, a little much, but that's just me. Next up, we've got Sprucrow, which is a grass type scarecrow Pokemon. I think this is fun. This is once again one of those ones where it's giving a, a full on scarecrow, but we already kind of had a scarecrow thing going on with Cacturn. Eh, that, that that's a I, I think I think it's cute. I think it's fun to get a full-on scarecrow I just don't think it was entirely necessary. That's me I just noticed something and this is really this is a really clever thing. The shadow on its head is actually a crow That's 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 pretty that's pretty clever. I like that next up. We have Jemul. now this actually This has me rethinking because that yeah. I've seen this before but I've forgotten about it I really like the idea of like a straight up star nosed mole that has like a diamond. That's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. I like how like it's giving me like mega mar mega marsh top mega freaking swampert giving me mega swampert vibes with that like very bulky kind of low to the ground kind of thing. I really like Gemol. I kind I really like Gemol. That's a really fun one. Next up we've got sound bite. Oh my goodness. That name is too clever. That name is too clever. Um, it's the MC Pokemon, and it's a it's it's giving me what's his name? What's his name? Oh my gosh, what's his name? It's giving me Vector the Crocodile from Sonic. That's what it's giving me 100%, and I love that. I will say once again, I thought the little the one before was a little too much. This one is definitely too much. I think that the CDs being everywhere on it are a little much. I think maybe you could have just done the CDs down the spine. On the hands, I don't think they're necessary. The ox cord claws are okay. Generally, I think this is a little bit overdesigned. Next up, we have Scarecrow, which is a grass electric type Scarecrow. I think that's fun, though I will say the only thing really giving it the electric typing is the scythe. Um, like in the design, maybe the eyes, kinda, but aside from that, really the only thing that makes this part electric type is that scythe. I feel like I wish there was more electric typing incorporated into the overall design. Um, maybe even that instead of straw coming out of his body, it could have been like maybe a little electricity, like it's an electric scarecrow. I don't know, something like that. Next up, we have Crumbay, which is Crumb plus Bay. Um, it's a normal type, little doughy Pokemon. I think that's super fun. It's giving me like Milcery's cousin. Is it Milkery or Milcery? It's giving me whatever that Pokemon's name is, cousin. That's kind of what it's giving me. I actually think this is supposed to be a reference to the Pillsbury Doughboy, and I love that. <laughs> Next up is Narcrox. It's a poison psychic type. And this one is based on the Sonoran Desert Toad, just like uh, my regional, uh, my Corneran Temple line is. Um, but they handled this in such a different way. I love the smiley face on the stomach. I'm pretty sure this is supposed to reference, you know, yeah, the same thing that my Corneran Temple does. Uh, but I like that they went with Poison Psychic rather than Poison Fairy. I think that's fun. You know, you have that psychedelic kind of thing going on there. Psych, Psychic, it makes sense. Honestly, when I look back on it, I kind of wish I had done. Um, psychic typing for it, but I'm glad I didn't because we have this Pokemon. Um, I like how it's hold. I like the bubble it's holding. It's very pleasant, like the whole rainbow kind of thing going on in the bubble. Very pleasant looking. Next up, we have Baybite, which is baby plus bite, and this is just a cute little shark Pokemon. It looks like it's like drawn on itself, or some kind of kid has drawn on it to like try and make it look more tough than it is. And that's really fun. I kind of like that, trying to put on a face to be like, no, I'm, I'm, I'm a little guy, but I'm really tough, I promise. And almost like it, it's like, it's almost like it's trying to be a Sharpedo in a way. Like it's got these X's all over it. I think that's fun. Next up, we have Sweetum, which is a normal fairy type evolution to Crumbe. I think this is interesting. It's, <laughs> it's kind of giving me like, it's a, like she's got the oven in her stomach. So it's giving me like bun in the oven. You know, like just having a bait, like a baby crumbe kind of thing. I don't know. It, I will say it makes me very hungry for sweets that like that, like the top of its head, very giving me muffin or cupcake. And I really want a cupcake now. Overall, Sweetums design is really fun. And it gives me that fairy type waifu kind of thing going on. Next up is Cytodelic. Oh man, that name is a lot. I like that. I like it, but it's a lot. Um, 
The poison psychic type continues, and it's just kind of a hippie frog. Almost gives me Hypno Toad, but like if Ho Hypno Toad was like chill. Next up, we have Chompunk, and it is you know Chomper, little chompy boy. He's got like a hook through the nose. That's kind of sad, but I like that we've, we're getting a you know full on Sharkmon. I kind of expressed this in my Mega ranking video that I wished that Sharpedo in its Mega form had become a full on shark. So I really like this kind of idea that they have going on with a full on shark. A shark? Shark. Don't shark me. Oh man. Next we have a normal fire type evolution to Crumbe. We have Grill Yum. And it is the Burger King of the West Coast region is what it says. And yeah, uh, he does look like the Burger King. It looks like that proud dad standing on the grill, cooking up his burgers. Um, and instead of it being like a grill, it's actually his stomach. <laughs> I love this. I think this is so fun. I think the Crumbe line is just just fun. Just just a good fun Pokemon. It's just silly in the best ways. Next up we have Scrubble, a water poison type soap bubble Pokemon. I love that because it's kind of like, you know, you're not supposed to ingest soap or put it in your eyes or anything, but it helps does help clean you. Um, it's got a oh, it's got an ability called Squeak Squeaky Clean, where no ground type moves can be used. That's nuts. So you get rid of that freaking poison type ground weakness altogether. That's crazy. I think this is cute. It gives me almost ghost type in a way. Um, and I like, like, it's just like, it's kind of, we have like, it's like an object Pokemon because it isn't like a living thing. So that's pretty fun too. Next up, we have Joss Sunken. Water Steel type. Wow. I like how they did. I think this is one of those Pokemon I really haven't seen. Like, I don't think I, I, I've seen this. And I like it's got this kind of like pirate beard, but also an anchor tail. That's really clever. That's really clever. I will say some of the designs elements do reflect Sharpedo, like the scars everywhere. It's a little and, and even the coloration a bit. And this looks like 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 Sharpedo's sad cousin like like beaten up cousin like beaten up even more than sharpedo um and like someone hooked a to anchor to its tail you know super cool I, I think this is i think this is actually supposed to be a reflection of the beta shark pokemon i'm pretty sure there was a beta shark pokemon with an anchor tail that's why this is feeling so familiar to me i do i do very much enjoy this pokemon though though it is kind of similar to sharpedo next up we have the final line of the wesco region currently um, ha, huh, currently, because it's an electric type, it's Retrope, and the story behind this Mon is so fun. Like, at first, I was, like, a little not behind it, but the story really makes it for me. Um, the story is actually, Re Retrope is an attempt to recreate Rotom. So, it does have multiple forms, um, and they're all based on games. As you can see, Retrope is based on a Game Boy, um, and... I think this is so fun. It's so, so, so clever. I can't wait to show you guys all the different forms. So here we go. First up, we have Retrope Jump Form, and this is based on platformers like Mario, Sonic to a degree. Sonic is kind of a, is, is platformer. Yeah, so it is an electric flying type platformer, and you can see the little symbol on the bottom has changed to a wing rather than the little uh, electric bolt it was before. And as you can see in the bottom left, it has a little cartridge. Each cartridge that you give it, it's kind of like Genesect in that way, where each cartridge you give it gives it a different typing. Next up, we have Retrope Drive Form. It's electric fire type to reference racing games. You can see the little cartridge on the bottom left. It's got that fire type symbol on it, and it's got the fire type symbol on its little side here as well. Super fun. I think the fire type is fun because it kind of evokes that, like, you know, Mario Kart where you're drifting and then the flames appear or even like turbo boosting and other kind of uh, racing games and even though are like arcade cabinets where you can like turbo boost and stuff like that. I think that's super fun. Um, I just noticed that it's kind of got like one eye that's like, Ugh, like, oh, we're going fast, you know? I think that, uh, okay, let's go on to the next. Next up, we have Retro Shoot Form. It's electric steel type to reference shooters and it kind of has that, that Mega Man kind of thing going on to it and you can see the bottom left corner has like the little gear um i think this is so fun i love mega man mega man's a great series um it is a platformer as well but it is mostly a shooter and there's other shooter games that this could reference easily um even even uh metroid this could reference metroid as well like metroid mega man though anything that has those arm cannons next up we have retro brawl form which is an electric fighting type new type combo and it references fighting games like streets of rage or street fighter lots of streets Lots of streets where people are fighting. Smash Bros. Brawl could even be included in that. Generally, I think this is so fun. Just making it look so serious. You're like, yeah, let's go. Let's duke it out. And it is his uh, pants 
like little pants are even giving me Blaziken, which I find really fun. Last but not least, we have Retro Quest Form. It's an electric dragon type to reference RPGs, and this is my personal favorite because I'm a huge RPG fan, and the electric dragon type is such a fun type combo, and I love how it's like, it's almost like the Game Boy is inside it as like a little treasure. It's not even like that it's its main body. It's like this little treasure hidden in its stomach, kind of like how when you defeat dragons and RPGs, they usually have some kind of really great treasure. But that's it for the Wesco region. So make sure to let me know in the comments which of these fake mon was your favorite and what maybe your team would be for the Wesco region. And if you enjoyed the video, make sure to hit that like button, subscribe, and hit that notification bell to keep up to date with future videos. Make sure to go check out Wesco's page linked in the description down below. And a huge thank you to Wesco for letting me review this region. It was a really awesome experience. Thank you guys so much for watching. And with that, I will see you guys next time. Hey everybody, Brandon here, and welcome back to another region review where we review different regions around the fake mon community. Today, we're going to be taking a look at the Pangu region by An Artist Astray over on Instagram. I've actually worked with An Artist Astray on the Cornero region. They've done a few mods for me, so I'm fairly familiar with their work, but I've never taken the time to sit down and review their region, the Pangu region. If you're as excited as I am to review this China-based region, make sure to hit that like button, subscribe, and hit that notification bell to keep up to date with future videos on the channel. Starting off the Pangu region is Cat Hill, which is a really clever name. It's a uh, cattle plus till, like tilling the earth. So I'm assuming maybe we're gonna get a grass ground type or something going on here. Unsure, but as far as the design, I think it's really clever. I like the little grass leaf ears and then the tail, which looks like it could be hair, but also looks like it could be a leaf, maybe just green hair, or is it a leaf? I don't know. I, I think it's interesting that it's bipedal. Um, I think, you know, it's starting off bipedal. We'll see if it goes down to all fours or if it stays bipedal the entire time. I like how it's got these, these kind of like bushy outfit as well I th it's kind of like like a, almost like a tunic kind of thing going on there um but yeah i'm interested to see how this evolves next up is our fire starter charcoal which is charcoal plus full plus coal it's all mixed in there which i find pretty clever as far as the design goes i think it does a good job of branching away from ponyta as far as the whole fire horse thing this is obviously following the chinese zodiac theory in the you know the horse part um, a lot of those kind of horse Pokemon that uh, fire starters that follow the Chinese th uh, Zodiac theory um, tend to not branch away enough from that whole, you know, fiery horse, fiery mane kind of thing. So I think this does a good job of that. I will say something does feel a little bit off uh, about the like anatomy of this. Like I almost feel like there should be an eye on the other side of its face here and like instead there's like this big bulky part that's just me and I can hear it now. The Chinese Zodiac theory was disproven by Fue Coco. No. Not necessarily. I mean, Fuego still has room to become a serpent. Not that I'm saying it's going to. And even if it doesn't, that doesn't mean that the, the Chinese Zodiac theory was completely invalid. They could have just decided to go a different direction with Gen 9, you know? Bottom line is it's Pokemon. It's just for fun. Just, let's just chill. Next up is Skink, and it is Water Ski plus Skink. I think that's super fun. Um, I think the name is, is really interesting because you got the double eye in there. Um, but the design, I think it works well. I will say the eyes are like massive. <laughs> I'm not sure if it's just because of how big I have this pulled up on my screen, but the eyes look way too big for, to me. Um, as far as the design goes, I think it does a really good job of being a water lizard starter that differentiates from uh, Sobble. I think that's really cool. I like it's like more serpentine kind of um, body generally. Um, and yeah, I think it's just a really interesting water starter. I don't know who I'm going to pick yet. I kind of hope to see the final evolutions. I'm not sure what the final types are going to be, so I'm excited to see them. Next up, we have the evolution to Catzel, which is Gruffalo, and it is Graze plus Grass plus Gruff plus Buffalo. That's a lot of different things thrown in there. Um, as far as an evolution, it looks like it's, it's keeping that whole, you know, bipedal nature maybe grass fighting type from kind of or it's still getting grass ground i'm still getting kind of getting grass ground i like how they've added another leaf to its tail so it had two before and now it's had three that's a fun little addition um as far as the design goes um i think the horns 
uh, they're doing something a little weird for me. The, the general like clean cutness of this design is a little bit like it's a little wobbly feeling. I, I don't know. Um, as far as the design itself, as far as like the basis of the design, I think it's cool. I like the little singlet kind of thing it has going on here. I, I can get grass or fighting type from this, so I'm, I'm very, very interested to see its final stage. Next up is Charcoal's the evolution to Charfoal. Um, I think that's that's fun. I like it's like blazing hooves. That's kind of cool. Generally, it's kind of more of a dark feeling to it. So maybe fire dark. I kind of didn't have fire dark in mind when I was thinking of this uh, with uh, with charcoal, but I could see it going fire dark. And um, I'm ah, man, I, I'm gonna probably I feel like I'm gonna get proven in completely wrong or something. Um, but I like its main. I like how it has those fiery elements without straight up being straight up being fire like ponytail or rapidash. Um, this thing feels very intense. I will say it feels a little bit final stagey to me. Like it doesn't feel like a mid stage. It kind of feels like a final stage. That's just me. Anyway. Continuing to our water starter. Next up, we have a Zulong. Okay, so we got the long in there, which is Chinese for dragon. So maybe we're gonna have a water dragon type, like, you know, like Panthagon, like the Cornero region. Uh, that's fun. I like its little water scarf thing. That's cute. Um, it's kind of getting like a little crown thing going on here, kind of Empoleon vibes. Um, it, lo it looks like it is turning into that more of that serpentine thing I was talking about, giving that snivy kind of thing where the legs slowly stop becoming um, of use. Uh, man, I'm, I feel like I'm gonna be uh, I'm gonna be pleasantly surprised. I feel like so far right now, I don't think they're I'm thinking ground dark dragon um, for the like secondary type turbo, but we will see. No, we've got grass mystic. And it's Agrahorn. This is giving me like Greek, Greek god, like Minotaur kind of like mixed in there. The three sovereigns are said to be the mystical deities that were involved in the creation of the Pangu region. Agrahorn in particular was responsible for refertilizing the land scorched by another sovereign, as well as teaching the Pangurians how to sow and till the land. Okay, so interesting. So the starter Pokemon are more than just the starter Pokemon. They are like gods. So are all of them going to be part mystic type? Next up, we have Bustalion. Ooh. Ooh, that's really cool. Giving me major dragon type energy, um, even though it's fire mystic. So I, I, it is going to be mystic type the whole way. So they, so they are just like the three sovereign Pokemon of the Pangu region. So I guess they're like legendaries in a way. I'm very interested in how this this works. But Stallion, the most belligerent of the three, was known to have set up a great inferno that raised the land and drove the people into war until it was, it was extinguished by a deluge summoned by another sovereign. So it seems that Agrahorn had problems with Bastalion. Bastalion had problems with whatever this third, um, the third other starter is going to be. Um, but as far as the design goes, this thing is really sick. Definitely giving me that uh, Kirin energy. Uh, Kirin is like the dragon horse um, from Chinese and Japanese mythology. It's called a called a Quillen in China and then a Kirin in J Japan. I probably butchered that pronunciation, but whatever. Next up, we have Naguara, which is our water mystic final evolution to the water starter. Um, this thing is very pretty, very, very pretty. Just absolutely gorgeous, giving me that divine feminine energy. It, the, this whole like thing going around like this ribbon going around it, like this almost looks like it's made. A, it's like its hands, but it's also made of like like mist. Um, I really, really like that. It's giving me like Chang'e, um, like the moon goddess um, energy, which would make sense. Like the moon shifts the tides, moon goddess in there. Um, it looks like it's, oh, it's actually based on Nuwa, uh, a Chinese goddess who mended the heavens. It is also one of the three sovereigns. Okay. And it's also based on the dragon king and sea serpents, obviously. But this, I think I might go with the water starter skink. Like, I think that's really cool. Like the vibes it gives off. It's just very elegant and it's just, it's, Prima Arena wishes it was this elegant, honestly. <laughs> looks like we have the breakdown of the mystic typing. It looks like it is strong against itself and ghost. It's weak against itself and dragon. It's uh, resistant to fire, ice, and ghost, and is not strong against dragon or psychic. Interesting. 
Next up, we have Burndle, which is, I think, the root one bug. Um, it looks like it's based on a silkworm. Yeah, silkworms and Japanese adult swaddling therapy known as Otonamaki. Otonamaki, I've never heard of that. I'm going to have to look that up. That looks, that's, that sounds interesting. So just like adults wrap themselves up to make themselves feel, I mean, I get it, I guess. Cuddling up with a blanket feels nice. Um, but anyway, as far as, as the design goes, this is pretty basic. You know, it's just a silkworm wrapped in silk. Um, but as far as the inspirations go, I really like that they kind of have that like the, that double inspiration in there. It's super cute, Burndall. I, I, I'd like to see where it goes, but I, I'd, I'd like to think that I'd have this thing on my team at some point. Next up, we have Criscoon. Sorry, all I could think of is Crisco, like <laughs> the lard. That's all I could think of. But this thing's super cute. It's got like a big egg shape. It's like glowing now. I'm not sure if that's like a part of the layout or if it just actually glows um but yeah it's based on a silkworm cocoon silkworm cocoon i can say words it's got the little w eyes which are always just i always when i see those in cartoons i just think they're so funny i don't know like it's just it's just so interesting and he just kind of looks like a little baby swaddled up it's super cute and then finally we have muffluff which is a bug and fairy type and absolutely this thing is going on my team oh my goodness it's so cute Oh my gosh, honestly, this is like this. I feel like Adoropia, my Cecropia moth, and then Muffluff would be like the best of buds. They're both bug fairy type too. So, I, oh my gosh, I love this. This is so cute. My wife would love this. She loves cute moths. So yeah, definitely going on the team. Next up, we have Bibibi. That's all, folks. Anyway, we have BB Beak. Bo 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 bo. Okay, sorry. Okay, I'm done. I'm done. We have BB Beak. It is our normal flying root one bird. Um, it's giving me Chicken Little, like Disney's Chicken Little energy. Um, but it, it's based on a baby crane. I'm thinking this is probably going to be like fighting flying eventually, or uh, yeah, something like that. Um, looks like it's going to be based off some kind of martial arts. Um, maybe like I'm pretty sure crane style is a thing in like kung fu. I'm pretty sure. Or there's moves named like the crane, like rising crane or something like that. I'm pretty certain I'm not 100%. Don't quote me on it. Next up, we have High Crane, which is... <laughs> High Crane? <laughs> sorry. Anyway. <laughs> anyway, it's a mixture of Haiku and Crane. I'm sorry, that really tickled me. Um, it's based on the Red Crown Crane, a symbol of luck and longevity in China and Japan. Um, maybe, is it actually going to be like... The crane style, or maybe is it going to be um, based on Tai Chi? Because, like, I could see, like, a Tai Chi kind of thing going on there, maybe. As far as the design goes, it's a level up from Bibibik. Um, that's still so fun to say. Um, it's a level up from that, and it, it it's, it's a decent-looking bird mod. I really I, I quite like it. I'm, I'm interested to see if it'll evolve again. Yes, it does. It evolves into our crane, which is Arcane plus Crane. like that naming uh, there, and it's a Mystic Flying type. Okay, so not fighting. Um... I think the design itself is really cool. The eye is a little weird to me. I might have might, might have made the eye a little bit more like serious, less rounded, um, kind of like a Charmeleon kind of thing. The mystic typing choice on this is a little uh, weird to me because we get three starters that get that mystic typing. So it's kind of redundant to put this on the team because no matter what, you're gonna have a mystic type on your team no matter what starter you pick so it's kind of like it kind of just makes the, the root one bird redundant something i try to keep in mind with the starters and their typings and all the root one uh, animals is that their types are different so that way you can use a diverse amount of types sometimes those types repeat like normal flying normal rodent but you know at least try and break it up a little bit next up we've got woofer which is a normal dog and it's based on a pekingese and this thing is adorable this thing is giving me like Stoutland, like baby Stoutland, um, which is, I guess, would be Lillipop. I guess it would be Lillipop. But this thing is adorable as heck. It's giving me that, that you know, Yamper dog, that Poochiana kind of energy to it. And I like it a lot. I'm excited to see how it evolves. It evolves into Groomut. Oh my gosh. This thing is adorable. Oh my gosh. It's giving me fur fru energy to the nth degree but uh it's based on a shih tzu and a chinese emperor slash empress 
I like that. That's that's super cute. That's a super unique take on a dog Pokemon too. I'd like I, I like that. It's got it's apparently got a hidden ability called Royal Parade. All Pokemon in battle who are lower in level move after Groom Mutt. Oh, so okay. So it's got like a automatic priority if it's the highest level. That's kind of cool. It's kind of robe like fur is giving me like Azula from Avatar: The Last Airbender. Just generally like that gold and dark red and brown vibe. That's kind of what it's giving me. Next up, we have Rokoche. Is it Rokoshay? It's yeah, it's Rocket plus Ricochet, so Rokoshay. Um, and it's like a little cricket. Uh, it's Grasshopper. It's grasshopper. Grasshopper, Brandon. Crickets and grasshoppers are different things. But as far as the design goes, I think this does a Grasshopper Mon really well, uh, like a base stage one, because it has those big legs, which you know are typical of grasshoppers. But it's offset by its big body. It all feels kind of kind of like a circle, which works for a Pokemon. I think this does a Grasshopper Mon well, and I. Do we have a grass? We have we have a cricket mon with cricket soon and cricket's hot, but do we have like an actual grasshopper mon? I don't think we do. Don't quote me on that. Next up, we have Hopult, which is a bug flying type, and it's a grasshopper plus bolt plus catapult. Okay, I can see it like it's catapulting itself, um, but it also kind of has like a bow, almost like it looks like a bow. Is it supposed to be inspired by bows? Yeah, based on a grasshopper, a rocket, and a crossbow. Okay, that's cool. That's cool. Um, the bug flying type, I guess, pretty predictable considering you know they have the you know, uh, what's the word? Locusts and stuff like that can fly, and I'm pretty sure grasshoppers can too. Don't quote me on that. I think it does a grasshopper mon well, and I do say, I will say that the, the legs don't make much sense to me. Like, I feel like they should be pointed, like, forward so that it can hop like this, because right now it could just go like this, but it should be able to hop like that. You know what I'm saying? Next up, we have Shoe Tip, which is a grass type, and I'm assuming this is going to be a bamboo. Uh, it's like shoot plus, yeah, bamboo shoots plus... Zhangzi, Zhangzi, I, I apologize if I butcher these pronunciations, but uh, it's a Chinese sticky rice dumpling. This is what this is also inspired by. So it's got dumplings and bamboo in there. It's super cute. It definitely fulfills that whole little grass type, you know, oddish, bound sweet, hop ip kind of vibe. I like that a lot. Um, I'm curious though, because we already have this kind of this kind of Pokemon. I was gonna say it's the bamboo princess. Um, which is, I believe, Celestela, what Celestela is based on. So I'm wondering if they're going to go that direction or go a completely different direction. Next up, we have Bamzooka, which is a grass dark type. Um, it's bamboo plus bamboozle plus bazooka plus bam, as in the sound of a gunshot. It said it's based on film noir detectives and shooters. Interesting. Interesting, 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 interesting. Okay, it actually also has some inspiration from stick insects, which is kind of cool because like it's a bamboo stick insect cross hybrid there, which I think is fun. I think the design itself is pretty fun. It gives me bamboo, but like I don't feel like it feels like bamboo is the focal point. It honestly feels like the like a stick insect, like a stick bug is more of the focal point of its design, almost like it should be grass bug in a way, but I think it's still cool. Next up, we have Calabine, which is Calabash plus Bean. It look, looks like it's based on the Calabash or the or the Bottle Gourd, as it's called. Um, it kind of looks like a little bottle when you drink out of it. Um, this thing's cute. Um, I believe it said it's yeah, it's based on a TV show about seven Calabashes that turn into kids, called the Calabash Brothers, apparently, from China. I've never heard of it, but cool i mean good that they did their research i think that's really cool um it's it's fun to learn new things about the regions that you are making pokemon based on by making pokemon i do that a lot a lot of the time i learn a lot of new stuff about the region i'm making a pokemon region based on because i do all this research and it opens my world perspective and that's what i like to do uh with these region reviews as well is to learn more about of these Pokemon and their inspirations and stuff like that. As far as the Mon goes, it's a cute Mon. Not really much to say, and as far as the design department, it's pretty basic, but it's still really cute. Calabine has evolved into Jinsage, which I believe is Jinsang plus Sage, which is cute. Uh, it's a grass mystic type. Um, uh, apparently Jinsang is known for its medicinal properties. I think Jinsang's in a lot of energy drinks, um, typically. Um, which is cool, and you know, I think this ca definitely gives that kind of sagely plant vibe. I think the grass and mystic type, I, I'm i not really a fan of custom typings, but I think they, you within the mystic typing, they've managed to make the designs themselves fit really well into that typing. As far as the design goes, it's giving me like freaking Lavos 
from Chrono Trigger. There's that one stage that kind of looks like this, if you know what I mean. I, that's just what it's giving me, I'm sorry. Next up, we have Timoris, which is a normal and poison type, which is based on the Slow Loris, um, I believe. And I'm pretty sure the Slow Loris is the only poisonous uh, primate in the world, right? If I'm not mistaken. Yeah, they have like poison glands and like underneath their armpits apparently. So don't pick them up, I guess. I don't know. Um, but a normal poison type works for this because, you know, it's something normal like a primate mixed with that little poison aesthetic it has. It looks like it's a little shy, a little timid, which I think is great because its name is Timoris, which I assume is, what's Timoris mean actually? It looks like Timoris is essentially a synonym for timid. It's just very nervous and shy and stuff like that, which I think is super cute. Adds to the little personality that this thing has. Next up, we got Trigui, which is a trigger plus Gui, um, which is Mandarin for turtle, apparently. Um, it's based on the Matamata, Terrapin, and Chinese dragon turtles. Cool. Um, kind of fitting for it being a pre-evolution to Turtonator, which I believe it is. Um, and it's a it's a baby mom, adding baby mons. Super cute. I think baby mons are cute, though a little bit unnecessary. It just kind of turns something into a two-stager so you can get it a little bit earlier, which is fine. It's not my favorite design, I won't lie, but I mean, it's cute. Next up, we have Kidra, which is a normal dragon type, and it looks like it is a, you know, baby version of Drampa, which, cute. It kind of gives me Omi from Shaolin Showdown, if anybody ever watched that. Um, that's kind of like the head shape and the little dots that kind of gives me the Omi from Shaolin Showdown. It's apparently based on something called the Yayu, which is a small dragon and the son of like a bigger dragon, which is cute, like good way to play in that whole grandpa to kid pre-evo kind of thing going on there. I think that's fun. Next up, we have Chowger, which is an electric type Chow Chow. That's super cute and very fitting because like Chow Chows, whenever I see them, they always just kind of look like they're staticky. I feel like this thing kind of had like a, a pre-evolution that was like a Pomeranian. I always thought a Pomeranian evolving into a Chow Chow Pokemon would be so fitting. So I think this is really cool though. Like the electric type just fits on it perfectly. It's just the design concepts mix really well together and it's adorable. It's just freaking adorable. Next up is Thundrog. Never mind. Forget what I said. This thing is cute. Whoa. Whoa. This thing is a furry monster. There's so much fur. So much fur everywhere. Uh, but yeah, Thunder plus Dog plus Drog Key, which is the Tibetan name for the Tibetan Mastiff. So this is based on Tibetan Mastiff. I honestly think this could have been a three stage from Pomeranian to Chow Chow to Tibetan Mastiff. I think that would have made a perfect three stage line. I like the electric dark typing. I do like the electric dark, dark typing for this. I think it fits very well on it. And I just like the Thunder Eyebrows. Just a really simple way to get across the, that electric typing along with the, you know, the spiky fur everywhere. Next up is Loon which is a very psychic type moon rabbit Pokemon. And I guess we're going very little with the moon rabbit because uh, Wigglytuff was already based on the moon rabbit as well as um, Clefairy to a minor degree. We're both based on the moon rabbit. Uh, but this one is a more literal interpretation of that with it having like, is that its tail or is it like a part of its body? The like moon that it's sitting on. That's my curiosity. It, like, no, it, it has a tail. That's my curiosity. Is it a part of its body? I'm not sure, but it, is freaking adorable it's super cute like honestly i would i love this thing it's really cute giving me huge sailor moon energy with this whole like crest on its head though next up we have crush air i like that i like that it's got like crescent plus share plus hair um in there and i think it's super cute it's giving me the freaking dreamworks kid on the moon fishing kind of that vibe to it the, the little crest on its head has become a full-on crest kind of like a warrior's crest like, like like almost like a helmet um but it just looks continues that adorableness it's kind of got that mancino to Sinchino adorableness transfer you know i know that Sinchino is essentially just mancino with more fur but you know this one it's got that cuteness factor to it next up we have our chair so it is a fairy psychic type archer hair that name is that's not a name is too clever for its own right i will say and that whole crest thing has become like a like a little visor for it and i like it's got like these light arrows it's shooting that's really cool so this is uh must be uh based on the husband of chang'e which is what's his name huyi huyi is his name huyi Hoi, and then I'm pretty sure died or something, I think. Oh yeah, it says it right here. It's the famous archer from Chinese mythology who shot down nine sons. Damn, that dude's got good aim. Oh, we've got Selenair. So this one's fairy mystic. So 
Um, it's kind of got a split evolution uh, Gardevoir Gallade thing going on here. And this one is based on Chang'e, right? Yeah, it's based on China, Chang'e, the Chinese moon goddess who is often depicted with a rabbit by her side. I was right. I was right. I was right. I knew it. Uh, shouldn't have doubted myself. Definitely giving me big Sailor Moon energy, though, um, with this whole, like, you know, crest and the pink eyes with the pink, you know, it's very, very, very Sailor Moon. It even has that whole, like, kind of ribbon thing I was talking about with Naguara um, that ha that I thought would be based on Chang'e. It's got that whole ribbon kind of thing going on there. Next up, we've got Lovey Ducky, which is water flying type. It's a mixture of Lovey Dovey plus Ducky. And these are very different. Are they different? Oh, they're based on the Mandarin Duck, which is actually funny because I based the, uh, I based, um, spur fetched on the mandarin duck fun fact now that i'm looking at it i'm realizing their eyes like this little segment right here are yin and yang that's super cool um i wonder what the whole idea is here so this one is the f male is this the it doesn't say which one's which one's male which one's female i'm assuming the more brightly colored one is probably the male that's typically how birds go um, but this one's probably the male, but I'm pretty sure Yin is supposed to be female, right? Isn't Yin the female and Yang is the male? Oh, okay. It, it has a it has a blue outline. Which ones? This is the female. This is the male. But I thought the black was the masculine and the white was the feminine. So is that supposed to be like a reverse? Whatever. Next up, we have Rigorge, which is rigor mortis plus gorge. And it's Ghost Steel type. That's cool. It looks like one of those wind up toys. Maybe it's like one of those wind up mouse, like, like Hungry Hungry Hippo almost. It gives what kind of what it gives me. Uh, it's based on the Hungry Ghost from Chinese mythology. Interesting. Um, apparently, this thing was released around the time of Toy Story 4, which is hilarious. Um, but yeah, it kind of, I thought it was like a mouse at first. I thought it was like a, one of those mechanical mice at first, but then I looked further and it, it, it's actually giving me Bomberman now that I'm looking at it. If anybody's played Bomberman, love that game. And this is the little fists and boots and little, you know, bulb on the head that's giving me Bomberman. Rigorge evolves into Mortisel, continuing that ghost steel typing, and it is based on the Chinese hopping zombies, which I talked about in our Reggie of every type, which is the most viewed video on our channel. Go check that out if you missed it. But this thing is super fun. I really enjoy um, its like whole toy-like nature. It's like very, very Pokemon to take, take something so scary like the Chinese hopping zombies and then turn it into like a doll or like a, like a play thing. I think that's so fun. It really takes out that intimidation factor and makes this like more of like a Pokemon, like something you would have as a friend. Next up, we've got Gribbon which is like grip or grab plus gibbon. That's fun. Fighting type gibbon, I think is really cool. And it's got that shape kind of giving me Hanuman kind of feeling that like that might be the direction we're heading with this. But I really like the color usage here. It almost looks like it could be fighting ghost with that coloration. Um, like that 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 purple coloration is giving me very ghost type vibes because the, the ghost type is that like you know, faded purple color. The fighting type just fits on a uh, given Pokemon. They're just very like flexible and all over the place. I feel like I could see the fighting type on this Pokemon. Next up, we've got RPs. So it's ape plus trapeze plus chimpanzee. Okay, so it's a chimpanzee trapeze artist. So that's what Gribbon was all about. They, I guess they were a trapeze thing as well, but that's super fun. Um, I would almost give it fighting flying. If it's like flying around the air, if it's trapeze, trapeze artist that's the whole thing it's flying through the air so fighting flying would have worked as well as i'm pretty sure hanuman um or uh, could have could, could like fly like i'm pretty sure that's the thing like they, they learned how to fly so that could have applied as well um but i really like the design i think that it's kind of got that like that um trapeze artist like attire but mixing it into like the fur of a chimpanzee the rings on its hands are really interesting too because they you know they have the artists who use the rings and they do the all kinds of flips on the rings, um, like Cirque du Soleil kind of thing going on there. But uh, yeah, generally a cool design. Looks like we've got our first fossil, which is Torger, which is a rock psychic type turtle. Uh, so we already had the turtle fossil with uh, Tortuga and Caracosta, but now we have a psychic type turtle uh, with this. And it gets, has very sleepy brows, giving me father time energy. I'm interested, the shell looks like it's like cracked which is cannot be healthy for for Torger because uh 
Yeah, the shell, you need to kind of live if you're a turtle. So I looked into it and apparently the crack of the, like the bottom of the shell, that's called the plastron. And apparently, uh, like there's like an old way of predicting the future where they would burn the plastron of the turtle to see the future and stuff like that. That's why it has the psychic typing, which when put those concepts together, very clever, very, very clever. Next up, we have Orecalon, which is Oracle plus Archelon, which is super fun. It's giving me like the, the it's like aesthetic is giving me doughy. It looks doughy. Like the hair looks like dough, like these little parts on the side. They look like dumplings almost like kind of like dumplings. I like how it's become less cracked and more structured on the stomach, looking very patterned, like some kind of respected figure, like an oracle, something like that. It even has kind of like a third eye kind of thing going on with that with that dot in the middle of its head, which I'm pretty sure is from India, but I'm not sure if they do that in China as well. Next up is Infantry. Too clever, too clever. It's a rock fighting type elephant uh, Mastodon kind of Pokemon, uh, fossil Pokemon, which is super fun. And it's got this like headgear and the little pads on its on its knees. Super fun playing into that whole training, the infantry soldier kind of thing going on. Generally, this thing looks like it's really happy to just fight. It's got that Goku energy, it's just like it loves to fight. Next up is Armahut, which is armor plus Mahut, or maybe I'm pronouncing that wrong. I'm pretty sure those are the people that ride the elephants. I think they like tame and ride the elephants. Super cool. It's essentially tamed itself. And I think this is a nice evolution. I think the elephant having more of the literal elephant, big elephant vibes rather than like the smaller truncated out trunk hated. <laughs> More so than the smaller elements of Don Fan and Fampy. It even has a different vibe from Caparaja, which I respect. It's kind of hard when there's already two existing, you know, elephant Pokemon to try and make yours different. But I think that an artist astray did a really good job of it with Armahoot. Next up, we've got Mermoda, which is an electric bug type Pika clone. That's super fun. So Mermoda comes from Marmoda, like Marmots. Uh, Mermikis, which is Greek for ant. It's based on the Himalayan marmot combined with characteristics of an ant. The reason is based on a myth where the Himalayan marmot was once mistaken for gold digging ants by Western historians. That's hilarious. I like that. I like that that story, that design story. It's, you know, that's a good reason to get the electric bug type for a uh, Pika clone. The electric bug type is really hard to do. Um, like uh, bug typing is so hard to include into mammalian aspects like evolutions and other, you know, Pika clones and stuff like that. But I think that uh, an artist astray managed to do it really well with this one without making it feel too bug like. It has the little antennae and then you kind of get the point. You kind of get the point. It's like the, and even its cheeks are like that bug color. So I think it is very simple and effective the way that they handled the Pika clone. Next up, we've got Wheelit, which is a ground type spider. Um, I'm pretty I'm interested where the wheel wheel it's got dry form. So let's see. Let's see if it has um, a, a wet form. I, oh, a kindled form that is terrifying. <laughs> Holy God. That is some like Elden Ring stuff right there. Like, could you imagine a flaming spider spinning its way towards you? That is terrifying. As far as the design goes, it, I mean, it, it definitely looks like a Pokemon. It feels like a Pokemon, but it is definitely terrifying. Which, to be fair, a lot of Pokemon are. Next up is Bye Bye, which is a mystic ghost type, and I think it's based on incense. Um, Bye Bye, oh, it comes from To Pray in Chinese, and it's based on a Joss incense pot. That's cute, like a little incense uh, Pokemon with like little ghastly smoke coming off of it. I get the mystic ghost type from that, like, you know, something, there's some certain certain mysticism to incense that you can feel uh, there. I also like, I just realized that these, he's got the glow around these that match the typing, which is pretty fun. This thing's really cute and a really good example of an incense mon. We already have Muna and Musharna that are incense Pokemon, but a little more literal take on that is super fun. Next up, we have Zhang, Zhangqi, Zhang, Zhangqi, Zhang, Zheng, I'm, I'm trying my best here, guys, I'm sorry. Anyway, Bye Bye has evolved into this, which is interesting. I It has like the four hands, like some kind of almost Hindu god. Um, and it's got, it's based on the Jaw Senses pot and a shrine dancer, okay. Okay, 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 so it's like a shrine dancer, shrine maiden kind of thing going on there. And the incense are now like the kind of like chopsticks, like a lot of the time they have like the chopsticks through the hair, like in a bun kind of situation. That's kind of cool. 
Um, Design-wise, it's pretty cool. It's giving me like the waifu of the region, you know, got a, got a Gardevoir energy there, which is interesting given that it is a mystic ghost type, neither fairy nor psychic nor grass is present for the, you know, waifu of the region. Next up, we have Calding, which is a steel mystic type. This thing is cool. I, I frankly, like it feels like an ultra beast in a way, but I just think it's fun. Like I can see it's like mouth where like we just go rah, rah, rah. like, there's just something fun about that to me, like very Pokemon. And it's just very like, it's a cauldron. It's just like a very interesting little cauldron Pokemon. I don't know what else to say about it. It's just fun. It's just, just, it's just fun. Apparently its name comes from cauldron and ding, which ding is a type of cauldron that was used in ancient times in China, which generally I just, and it's eyes, man, there's so much about this design that I really, really like. I think I would definitely have a calding on my team. Next up, we've got Peachum. <laughs> That's just no shot. It's a grass normal type monkey. I can't even do. <laughs> it's. I'm losing my mind. Bro, this is so funny. It's like the peach emoji representing the butt, but it's a baboon. So the peach is the. I can't. I literally can't. This thing's so funny. Peach him evolves into Fuzzy Pan. That's pretty fun. Um, it looks like it's based on Fuzzy plus Marzipan plus Perspan plus Pan from Panto, which is the Chinese name for the Peach of Immortality. That's a that's a lot of inspiration there for a name. Okay, so apparently it's based on a macaque monkey wielding a peachwood sword, which are sometimes used to ward off bad spirits in Taoist practices. The design comes together well. I think the pinks of the peach with the green, uh, it all comes together really well. And grass normal type, it's only been done once, I believe, by Sazbuck, right? Sazbuck and Deerling, if I'm remembering correctly. So that's pretty fun, unique type combo there. And I can see like the peach fuzziness being kind of like the fuzziness of the monkey itself. Anyway, design wise, this thing's really fun. It's got kind of the Brock eyes, those kind of line eyes, which I think is pretty fun. I don't feel like I see that a lot in Pokemon designs. We got like Wobbuffet and Snorlax. Um, there's a few others, but those are like, we don't really get many of those in recent times, I don't feel like. Looks like Fuzzapan evolves into Tamarishi, which is grass to mystic type now. They're really playing into the mystic type. There's a lot of mystic types in this, this region so far, um, I'd say, considering that they just introduced the type. I think like, I would have probably toned it down a little bit with the mystic types before. I mean, we've, the fact that we got mystic type starters kind of makes any mystic type after that kind of redundant um unfortunately if you think about it that way because like you're gonna want to use the starter pokemon because it's a great pokemon but apparently this is based on the shushing i'm sorry if i mispronounced that again trying my best um but apparently that is you know a representative of longevity and is often depicted holding the peach of immortality which explains the mystic typing which is pretty cool i could have even seen grass psychic for this honestly i think this very feels very elderly that's what, that's my problem with the mystic typing is because it just feels too similar to the psychic typing for me anyway moving on next up we have uniwan i'll be straight up and feeling like this doesn't really feel like a pokemon to me um it feels very much just like a cartoon character but i think this is fun this is just fun it's based on tanguan which is a chinese dessert often eating during the Yuan Wan Shao festival to symbolize union that's fun because to symbolize union because these are all one they're a union yunwan oh there it is union yunwan connecting they're all one hive mind like you know execute i got it i got it yunwan evolves into gargantuan <laughs> this thing's giving me like stay up marshmallow man from <laughs> ghostbusters <laughs> with a bowl on its head this thing is just fun it's just gooey rice flowery fun I don't know. this thing's crazy this thing's just crazy i just i just think it's fun and crazy next up we've got carolyn which is a fighting ground type new type combo i'm pretty sure it's a pangolin uh carolyn Car sounds like a name carolyn or something i'm sorry anyway carolyn <laughs> carol caroline c-a-r-o-l-i-n carolyn or e with the e carolyn carolyn sweet carolyn 
anyway i think this is a fun take on a pangolin pokemon it's not like sand slash is supposed to be kind of a pangolin in a way um but i think this is a fun unique take on it them both being ground type is kind of interesting i would have made it rock because it fighting rock because um this is supposed to be based on the terracotta warriors and terracotta it's more like rock than ground to me because it's like solid on like ground which is like more dirt Eh, ground and rock type are very hard to separate as far as like design concept wise as far as a pangolin plus terracotta warrior vibe i think this executes it really really well i think the armor of the scales of the pangolin mixing in with the armor of a terracotta warrior works really well carolyn evolves into corporal it's funny rolling kind of i anyway i think that's fun um it, it's a good evolution solid evolution it adds upon the elements of carolyn without taking away from the design itself it's kind of i'm just re realizing as i'm talking about this this kind of feels like um this feels like como -o and a hakomo -o kind of situation i wonder if they're based on pangolins as well next up is curlinel or kernel 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 Kernel. That's hard to say. I'll be honest in that this doesn't feel like it's a part of the Carolyn line. Like you went from Carolyn to Corporal and the name makes sense, but it kind of like like the design itself just feels like it's a huge like departure from where Corporal was headed. I don't know. It kind of just feels like a pangolin with like scars on it now rather than having that like warrior aesthetic mixed in. It just kind of feels like an old man like hunched over pangolin next up we got force appeal which is a poison electric type and i just find that fun i like that type combo i like toxicity the design itself is okay <laughs> i mean it's kind of got like a ufo head looking very like i don't know alien like space invader kind of thing going on there um with the vibe what's it inspired by it's based on the chinese red-headed centipede which cool i'm wondering where the electric type comes in or maybe they just threw it on there because they thought it would be a good part of the design you know pokemon doesn't always have to have a reason they make something a certain type sometimes it's just fun to incorporate the elements into it just to see what it would look like next up is vitrigon which is poison electric and it's vitriol plus dragon dang okay this thing is like draconic but it's poison electric type does it ha I, th I could imagine this thing having like an ability like steel worker where the dragon types are you know moves are a little bit more effective apparently it's based on the mongolian death worm which is apparently a cryptid which is super fun i always like cryptid pokemon those those are super fun oh okay so apparently it gets its poison electric typing because the death worm itself could shoot out electricity and poison so that's where that comes in so that explains it next up we've got hawkite is this an evolution to halucha oh the only halucha who have mastered the art of fighting in the air can attain its evolution it's based on hawk plus kite plus fight and it's based on the chinese bird kite and kite fighting that's cool um yeah i mean i'm a huge halusha fan it's one of my favorite pokemon so this fits really well um i it does draw away from it's like more like fighting elements like the the the, the luchador elements it kind of just takes fully removes the luchador elements um which i think is a really fun part of it so lucha plus china region i'm not 100 percent certain but whatever i mean i think it's a solid evolution regardless next up we have incarnine which is a normal ghost type evolution to smeargol apparently this thing looks really cool as far as an evolution to smeargol it kind of just the only parts it takes with it are the tail and like the hat aside from that i'm not really feeling any kind of smeargol elements from it which I mean, I guess there's not really, you don't really need that many elements in an evolution. I mean, with Magikarp and Gyarados, the only thing it copies is kind of like the spiky elements and like the whiskers, I think. So there, apparently it has a new move called Shadow Sketch, which is a ghost type, and it's just a more powerful version of Mira move. It's a cool concept. I, 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 won't, I won't fault the concept. I do wish it felt a little bit more like Smeargle, though. Next up, we've got Telekirin which is a mystic psychic type evolution to giraffe rig that looks really sick so this is so this is a kirin pokemon we already kind of had a kirin pokemon with the fire starter so we're getting another one there the blue coloration and like pattern on its back kind of feels like crystalline this is the goodwill mode though so apparently there's another mode which is the hostile mode and it's a dark psychic type 
it's got that whole thing with the giraffe rig everybody wants it to have a split evolution one dark one one light um so i feel like this is kind of that same idea i like how it makes it a real giraffe in like the stature um of of it you know like the giraffe rig is kind of a short giraffe but i want like a real big draft pokemon monstrous draft pokemon and that this one fulfills that for me the hostile mode definitely feels menacing it has that energy of the tail of the you know of giraffe rig so it accomplishes that well i think the design is very like simple in in a good way um and i like that kind of like mace tail it has next up we have a lichen which is an evolution to pseudo wudo its name comes from a like and lichen which i'm pretty sure lichen are like the kind of moss or something that grows on uh, on on rocks and stuff like that which is funny because now it has more shrubbery like actual shrubbery um it looks like it's based on a bonsai tree also known as a penjing and petrified wood petrified wood rock typing kind of like a fossil wood that's fun and like getting that whole idea of an older sage pseudo wudo that's become like older and wiser and has become more like petrified wood because of that rock typing gotten the moss over it that's been growing over it because it's been sitting there for so long i think that's fun pseudo wudo evolutions are kind of hard to do and i think this one is a, is a good one next up we've got harmonel which is a psychic mystic type evolution to chimeco and I just think this thing's gorgeous. I did Skeleco, which is an evolution in my region. Honestly, I like this one better. Um, I think it plays into the elements of Chimeco really well and enhances on them. Um, giving You kind of have like four little Chimecos on the bottom kind of thing. I love when evolutions incorporate the previous evolutions, like bodies into their design kind of like Beldum, Matang, Metagross kind of thing and it almost gives me like Shrine Maiden as well kind of like that kind of Shrine Maiden aesthetic going on next up we've got Pandizzi which is an evolution to Spinda obviously and this thing is making me dizzy looking at it holy gosh I just realized it has a freaking Calabine on its waist wait is it getting drunk is this thing drunk yep it's based on drunk boxing or like the drunken fist that's <laughs> That's funny. Apparently, the Calabine is a reference to the fact that um, alcohol would be stored in gourds, like to travel with. They would be, they would store it in gourds in ancient Chinese times. So that's why. So this Pandizzi, essentially drunk. Next up, we've got Bullbash, which is a evolution to Volbeat, a bug fighting evolution to Volbeat. And I like this. I think it's fun. I like the little boom, like pow, like kind of markings on its knees and kind of around its um it's neck and on the little helmet thing i think a volbeat evolution and an illumise evolution are definitely necessary i'm interested to see i'm assuming illumise is probably going to be a bug mystic evolution if i had to guess as far as bulbash i really like this i'd probably put this on the team honestly a bug fighting type is a cool type combo and it really plays into the potential that volbeat has next up we have loose signal which is bug fairy type and i was wrong it's a bug fairy type evolution to illumise and this thing is graceful. I really like how it plays into Illumise's design elements and plays them up into this graceful, almost queen-like bug Pokemon. I will say this is the third Pokemon with that kind of like sash thing going on. So, I mean, if, if it were completely separate Pokemon in different regions, it's what one thing, but this is all based on one China region. So I feel like I would have dialed back the amount of like kind of sash things. You know what I'm saying? Next up, we have Oculion, which is our mystic evolution. Of course, we had a new type, so we have to have a new evolution with it, right? Um, so yin yang evolution. I think there's just one step too far in its eye, like this thing. I would have taken this eye part out or removed some kind of other element of it i think the tail like the tail and the ears get across the whole yin yang thing without needing the neck thing and the eye thing i think it would have been fine without those um but i generally as a mystic evolution i think it does the job well next up we have rufus 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 from Kim Possible? What's the sitch? Anyway, um, it's fairy type and it, it, it's pink. It's pink and like if it didn't have those clothes on, it might look like a naked. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm hammering this point too hard. Apparently, this is a bat Pokemon and it's supposed to be based on like the good fortune that bats traditionally uh in in body in uh chinese culture so that's pretty fun i like the reds against the and, and the gold against the pink of its like body i think that's pretty fun the eyes are a different kind of eye than i feel like i've seen 
um, in this region so far. Um, I feel like Pokemon has done this kind of eye before. I just can't think about like what specific Pokemon's done this sort of like gold, you know, two rings eye before. Here I am talking about eyes way too much, but you know, eyes are the window to the soul, so whatever. Next up, we've got Fanguin, which Fang plus Sanguin, great name, fairy type. I really like this design. I definitely think I would cop it. I'm looking at it now and it's saying it's a Pangorian form. So I'm assuming that this must have been from a previous region and they did a regional variant of a previous region's Mon. So that's cool. As far as this design, I think it's fun. I like the kind of um, like uh, holes in its wings. Wouldn't make it very good for flying, but as a design choice, I think it's fun. Next up, we've got Slagmite, which is a poison rock type. And this is also a Pangorian form, so this must be from a previous region, but um, I like the poison rock typing. Nihiligo, I'm pretty sure is the only one with it. I would like to see a different poison rock type, but apparently this is based on a jewel spider and um, it's based on Cinnabar, a toxic mineral found near volcanoes. That's cool. I think this plays into the jewel spider well, as well as it gives me, uh, it's kind of giving me the spiny back orb weaver. If you've ever seen that spider, I'm not gonna put it on screen. If you feel like you wanna search it out, go look for it if you feel comfortable with that, but that's kind of the vibe this gives me. Next up, we have Stega Titan. Wow, this thing, uh, I will say it's giving me major gigalith energy with the spike hand design element there feels a little too samey to me um in that regard but as far as the rest of the body it's really cool i think this, this just feels like there's one too many spikes on this thing you know what i'm saying there's just like so many spikes apparently it says in the description that they didn't intend it to look like gigalith but it ended up looking like gigalith anyway so that's fair i won't knock them for that but now you know next up we got lumen which has got a pigurian form it is a fire flying type um this thing is cute this is like a little lantern pokemon i think it's adorable it gives me drifloon energy i i adore it simply put i really really like it it's based on a will-o-wisp um and it's based on chinese lanterns that's that's super fun i i, I do enjoy that this is also another form a pangurian form i guess i'll have to go back and review their other region probably next up we've got halu hallelu okay sorry <laughs> i had to say that. that's exactly what that reminded me of this thing is adorable frankly freaking adorable a little spirit girl in a chinese lantern with a little hat super duper cute giving me huge like gothitelle not gothitelle or gotharita energy with this but like more cutesy almost like uh what's the word is it fire princess from from adventure time i have only watched like three episodes of adventure time please don't crucify me but that's exactly what this is giving me and finally we have candela which is a fire psychic type and it all just comes together really well the chinese lantern being a dress coming up into being kind of more of a like a less of a girl but more of a woman in this dress i, I it just it just works. It just works. Next up, we have Shriken, which is a poison dark type, and it's another Pangorian form. We've got lots of Pangorian forms of his last region, it looks like. Um, but this thing's cool looking. I mean, okay, apparently it's based on the Zhen, which is a purple and green Chinese bird that's said to be extremely poisonous. Um, I'm pretty sure there's a kind of poisonous bird that does exist in the like south asia region if i'm not mistaken i can't remember its name off the top of my head but it would make sense for this region next up we have aurora so we've got auroras amora zeraora now we have aurora aurora <laughs> it's a water and fairy type um flying fish i guess i mean it's fun it's simple i i like the like aurora kind of feeling it has going on with its fins and like like the the translucence of its fins Something about it just feels too simple to me. I can't put my finger on it. Maybe it's the proportions. Maybe I, I, I'm not sure, but it, it does feel a little bit simple to me. But I still think I like, uh, you know, there's parts of it that I do like. Apparently, Aurora has a sky form, which is flying fairy rather than water fairy. I think that's fun. That that feels that that feels different enough for me. I think I'm still not a huge fan. But I think I think that that whole mechanic of a flying fish going from a water type to a flying type is a really fun kind of you know, gameplay design choice. Next up is Shelmet Pangurian form, and it is a bug mystic type. I'm interested to see if they'll do um, Carablast. I'm very interested to see if they'll do both or if they'll just do one. As far as Shelmet goes though, it's kind of giving me like a genie lamp kind of feeling to it. 
um and i just i think it's really cute honestly like the way they made its eyes like look look this just looks extremely cute it evolves into a selgor bug mystic type this thing is dope <laughs> it looks like it's supposed to be based on a chinese strategist i'm not even gonna try, try and pronounce that it's a chinese strategist from history look it up it starts with a z <laughs> I'm not even gonna try. Next up, we've got Torkoal Pangurian form, which is a ghost rock type. Wow. Simply put, wow. This thing is so sick looking. I really like that. Transferring, like it doesn't even have the, the steam coming out the back now. It's just like this soul mist energy coming out of its mouth. That's it's giving me hollow energy from a bleach very much so. And it's even so, I think its shell looks like it's hollow too. Wow, that's cool. Definitely a hard cop. Definitely, definitely going on the team. Apparently, this is also based on tortoiseshell tombs, which are found in some parts of China, which that's so cool. It evolves. It evolves into Torstel. Bro, that's cool. I've always wanted a Torkoal evolution. It looks like it's got like a little Gengar on the top. But uh, it's got a like a monument. This is like, I guess it must be uh, what's the word? A tombstone of some kind. Like on its back, and it's got like the, it's almost got a Gigantamax thing going on with the clouds around it. What does it say on there? Chaos and gluttony. Chaos and gluttony. Interesting. Okay, that's cool. I really like how they incorporated rather than like Chinese characters, they made it into unknown characters. That's fun. This just gives me like the feeling that you would see this like sitting in like uh, some kind of like graveyard in the Pangu region. And then you would like walk up to it, click it and it would attack you like kind of that vibe. I am most definitely having this thing on my team. Next up, we've got, oh, I was talking about Gotha, Gotha Rita and Gotha Tell and all them earlier. So we've got a psychic fairy Gothita, um, which looks like it's based on Chinese princesses. That's super cute. It's very adorable. It's giving me child pageant vibes, which not the greatest, but I mean, it's a cool design nonetheless. Here's Gotha Rita, and I'm realizing the little flowers, I'm pretty sure are the Gracedia flowers from Shaman, which is really cool. Um, I really like the incorporation of these, this kind of flowy skirt. It's giving me almost grass type, um, which fairy types tend to do that. They kind of have like grassy elements incorporated in them, especially when cases like Florges, but fairies are kind of associated with nature a lot in most depictions of fairies or pixies or nymphs or stuff like that. Anyway, as far as the design goes, I think there's a little bit too much going on, like too many colors, like we got blue and gold and pink. There are two different kinds of pinks and white and green, and there's just a lot going on there. You know, typically they try to stick to like four, maybe five colors for a Pokemon. So it's just a little too much going on here, though the design itself is pretty fun. Finally, we have Gothitelle, and I think this works out really well. I think this flows into Gothitelle's design really well. I like how you've got the needles, like kind of holding the hair back but it's also supposed to reflect that kind of those kind of things coming out of the side of Gothitelle's head the original one then leaving the single Gracedia flower on its head it's, it's good that's good this is a solid design next up we've got weasel which is a dark type and this dude <laughs> this dude's just cute he's just like hi how are you like that i don't know he just has that energy to him but apparently it's based on the siberian weasel and feather dusters kind of got that nicket thing going on where um nicket has the tail where it can sweep up its footsteps and leave no trace of its thievery kind of that same kind of thing going on there but this dude just looks kind of like a dope i don't know just kind of dopey and i like it next up we got muskerade whoa that's quite the difference. That is quite the evolution. Wow. Apparently it's based on Wolverines, Weasels, and uh, and Gas Masks. Musk, it's like supposed to be like mus Masquerade plus. Uh, I think Mustelid is probably in there too. Probably, I would assume. I, I mean, it doesn't say there, but you know, you kind of have the Mustelid, Musquerade, Masquerade, all kind of comes in there. As far as the design goes, it's cool. It kind of gives me a fur bait, like Lucario, Zorark, kind of mon of the region. Kind of gives me Zara Aura as well. But I mean, it's pretty cool. So, I mean, I just don't really have anything much to say about it. Kind of just gives that vibe. Next up, we have Alpera, and it's a pure normal type Mast Owl Opera Singer thing. Let me look. It looks like it's based on Sichuan Opera actors, specifically 
beyond non i'm sorry i probably butchered that they're called face changing changing performers so that makes sense um apparently it has an ability called face swap where it can change its faces and stuff like that and uh oh okay so it you wears like a darmana tag tan mask a thundrog mask a lyprin mask a, a gyarados mask and a linoon mask that's fun um is, does it show these masks it does that's cool that's super fun oh and it's the galarian linoon that's fun okay 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 i see it i see it i see the vision next up is padolphin which is a dolphin plus a paddle i guess it looks like it's based on the baiji dolphin and the chinese paddlefish i'm not sure i've never seen a chinese paddlefish before but this thing is interesting it's kind of got like that lantern energy where it's like part dolphin part something else in that way it's very simple it almost gives me adventure time kind of energy like you'd see something like this in adventure time i'm just bringing up adventure time a bunch in this episode i don't know why i've hardly watched it next up we've got dracanu it's a water dragon type does this thing evolve from padolphin that is a magikarp gyarados moment if i've ever seen one but i just don't see the through line i guess i guess it did have like two fins kind of that looked like maybe like oh paddle the paddle i got it i got it now the paddles of the paddlefish were coming into the paddles of this dragon um it looks like it's a mixture of uh the like, dragon boat racing and like the kind of you know dragon literal dragon kind of thing it's interesting albeit a little bit too much there's like so many limbs here like i feel like there would only be like two paddles or th even three because it just kind of feels like five is too many next up is glazelle which is a pure ice type gazelle pokemon glacier plus gazelle you know just kind of good name combo there um it's simple and super cute it's just uh, you can you can get the ice type from it and it's a pure ice type which i think there's a lot of people that don't really like to do the solo typings a lot of people forget that uh, like more than half most of the dexes are just single typed pokemon a lot of people like to do those type combos i've fallen victim victim to it to myself but i feel like a lot of these solo type pokemon but i feel like a lot of these single type pokemon are some of the best designs game freak has made so i think this falls into one of my favorite designs of the region i would definitely have this on my team i'm excited to see how it evolves we've got chirush which is an ice electric type I like how I said the pure types and then it became a second a dual type. I would put this on my team anyway because Ice Electric's a really cool typing. We have Rodom Frost and Arc Dissolve, and that's it right now. Um, but I think it incorporates those elements well. It's pretty simple design. I do think the horns are a little too simple. I think it's just a little too simple. Like, I don't know. It just doesn't it feel like there should be something more here. Maybe like a tail. Maybe there should be like a third spike that's a tail. I don't know. Next up, we've got Psygacious, which is an ice psychic type. So there's actually uh, ultimate evolution to Glazelle. That's cool. And it's based on the uh, Saiga antelope, which have these weird long noses. They look very alien. It's really weird. This one is also pretty simple. I don't get the psychic typing exactly from it. I mean, it kind of looks like it's old and maybe wise, I guess. It kind of just looks like curmudgeon -y to me. <laughs> Next up, we've got Snowleo. I like that ice type um this assuming this is always oh, based on the palace's cat cute the palace's cat if you've never seen it it looks like the grumpy cat like it's so funny and cute and i love that i think the ice elements a little bit too much you probably could have done with two or three of the little ice crystals but i think it kind of draws away from the design because that's all your eye gets drawn to is those ice crystals at least for me um i think the design is cute as hell though next up we've got halinx that's cool that's cool that's cool it's based on the eurasian lynx and the saber tooth cast that's that's fun i like the like little crystal patterns here i will say usually patterns aren't like in pokemon are usually not that um structured they're not usually so structured they're usually kind of higgledy piggledy with the the pattern of everything uh, i think this one has a little bit too much of a structured which i mean it makes sense that it would be structured because it's an ice type so that's fair i really like this it's a pure ice type which i enjoy kind of those pure types like i said before so i think i'd put this on the team man i did it again it evolves into an ice mystic type <laughs> Oh man, I did it to myself again. But Hibernian, uh, it's hibernation plus neon, which um, I guess is based on a snow lion, which is the national emblem of Tibet. Okay, that's cool. That's cool. It looks just kind of like based on food dogs, almost. That's what it kind of feels like to me, like a food dog. Um, generally, 
I think there's just too much going on. The ice claws with the ice crystals on the chest, on the legs, on the tail, full ass mane, eyebrows, teeth. There's just, it's just, it's just too much for me personally. I think it looks cool. It definitely looks, as far as, far as uh, Pokemon Go is too much. As far as the design itself as a monster, I think this is sick. Um, I'd probably put it on my team, but as far as the design goes, I just think it's a little bit too much. Next up, we've got Squiboom, which is a pure fire type squib, which I guess a squib is a snake or something. I am not 100% certain. I've been very unfamiliar with this region. There's a lot of things I don't know about in this region. Usually I kind of have a firmer grasp on concepts, um, but this one I'm, I'm not as familiar with. As far as design goes, I think this is really fun. It's kind of got that snake like, you know, slithery feel to it. Boy, it's going really fast, but at the same time, it looks like a firecracker just like launching into the air or something. I, I just think that's fun. Next up, we've got Crackaboom. This thing is cool. Wow. Okay. Wow, that's pretty neat. That's pretty. It's giving me um, freaking Centiscorch vibes. Um, heavy, but like snake, snake, Centa snake, snake or snake scorch. I'm just not realizing that this is probably a reference, like on top of everything, to the fact that snakes hiss. They have that hissing sound, and there's that hissing sound before you uh, firework lights. I'm just realizing that that's probably what this is, and that's really cool and really clever. Finally, we have Crackalong, which is a fire dragon type, and it just looks like a bunch of sticks of dynamite <laughs> mixed with a dragon. This thing's nuts. This thing's utterly crazy. I love it. It definitely has that traditional dragon feeling and has long in its name, so ob obviously it's going to have that feeling to it. This is just a really fun concept, and I just really enjoy it. Next up is Phalanx Pangurian form, and it's a fighting ice type, and I'm pretty sure it's supposed to try and be replicating Hibernian. I think that was its name. And that's funny. It's kind of like those, like, Chinese puppets where it's the dragon or the tiger or whatever. It's kind of supposed to be like that, which is pretty fun. I kind of thought that might be something that happens in this region. It's like a phalanx with that kind of like dragon puppet. Um, so I think that's really fun. Oh, this one's called lion dance form. Oh, so maybe we will get a dragon dance form. We do. Okay. Okay. It's a fighting fire type phalanx form. I will say uh having a regional variant that has two types is a little weird a little, it hasn't been done by game freak not to say that we, they will never do it but the phalanx now look like little bombs to me which i think is kind of funny next up is temple pangurian form and it is a steel type that's interesting this just looks like a bronze you know just sculpture temple apparently it's based on jang hang seismoscope which was an ancient earthquake detecting contraption that's cool because temple is like kind of based on that kind of same idea that's really fun let's see what palpatode and seismitoad look like palpatode has that same kind of vibe going on as temple not much different there finally we've got seismitoad which is a steel mystic type it looks like its eyes are opened i'm is its tongue supposed to be like a coin that's kind of cool it, oh it's based on the money toad which only has which only has three legs hence why seismitoad's legs is blacked out oh okay that's cool okay i see i see i see that's a fun little design detail i wouldn't have picked up on okay so its leg is black because it's the the, the money frog is only supposed to have three legs that's fun wow okay and the money its tongue is a is a coin that's that's cool i don't get mystic from this i get i could get lucky but maybe like steal fairy because fairies kind of are associated with luck but not exactly mystic i, I don't know it's a fake type anyway, so what do I know? Next up, we've got Driblet, which is a flying type. Is this is this a baby Pokemon to Cramorant? Is this supposed to be a, a pre-evolution to Cramorant? It totally is. Oh, apparently Cramorant's gonna have an evolution. I was wrong. It's actually a split evolution. It's Tospray. It's a flying dark type. Um, uh, that's fun. So instead uh, instead of going the baby mon route and then giving it an evolution. They gave it a baby mon and then a split evolution, which I think is fun. Apparently this is based on a myth about a girl who drowned in the sea and then was reincarnated as a bird. So she drops sticks and stones into the sea as like a sort of revenge. I mean, yeah, you really showed that ocean with the sticks and stones. Sticks and stones may break the ocean's bones, but words cannot hurt it, I guess. 
Next up, we have Dunsparce, Pangurian form, which is a ground dragon. I'm assuming we're gonna get our Dunsparce Evo. It's pretty common in the community now for Dunsparce to get an Evo. It's just, people want it. People really want a Dunsparce Evo. And the ground dragon type, I can see. Um, I can see the ground type, not so much the dragon type in this, but I'm sure we'll see it more prevalently in its evolution. Apparently, this is a play on Dunsparce's Mandarin name, which translates to ground dragon little brother, which I think is kind of funny. Next up, we have Torquake, which is indeed the evolution evolution to Dunsparce. It's based on drills and torque is like torque because it's Guess all the spinning and the drills and Simone is quaking. Next up, we've got Chaling, which I am assuming is going to be our pseudo, and it's a dragon mystic type. Of course, got to have that new type incorporated into the pseudo as well. Honestly, I'm surprised the Pika clone didn't have the mystic type incorporated into it because, you know, everything else does, you know. This is based on Chinese pig dragons and the concept of chakra, so I'm very excited to see how this thing evolves. Next, we have Gorkraco. Gorkraco? It's apparently Guard plus Chakra plus Draco. It's kind of hard to say, hard one to say. It's got like these kind of Tory situation going on. There's a lot going on here. I'm not gonna lie to you. There's a lot going on here. There's just a little too much going on here. And I'm assuming this is the pseudo. So I'm assuming there's probably gonna be one more evolution. This kind of just feels like a final stage to me, not a mid stage. I won't lie to you. It just kind of feels a little too final unless there's some kind of split situation where the evolution is a split evolution or something, but it's just so there's just a little too much going on here for me as far as like a monster design in general though it really i really like it i think it's really cool i like the tori incorporation and the flames um it honestly gives me digimon i don't mean that in an insulting way it honestly gives me a digimon like some kind of champion level or is, is, is i was gonna say a zulongmon is a champion isn't it so yeah this would be like a champion form of a zulongmon or something like a flame version of a zulongmon like some kind of other longmon do you know what I mean? Finally, we have Shendrogu. This is better. This plays into those elements. Is uh, like it, uh, for a final evolution, the elements incorporate really well. I like how they've incorporated the different colors of the chakras into these jewels. This, though, I will say, though it's a pseudo legendary, feels more like an actual legendary Pokemon to me. Um, I feel like there's a lot there. I really like the idea of a Chinese, like a uh, traditional Chinese dragon being a pseudo legendary. I think it's very fun, but I think design wise, this feels very much like an actual legendary. Next up, we've got Urshifu Dual Strike Style, which is a fighting mystic type. So it's a new style on Urshifu, which is pretty cool. I, I like that take on it. Um, does it have a G Max form? Uh, no, I, I would like to see the G Max form of that. I'm assuming it'd be kind of like that same color as the as the mystic typing, but that's pretty fun. New new style there. We have a regional form of Celestela. So what? I'd like to know the story there. Uh, these alternate forms were originally UBs that ended up in the region by accident thousands of years ago and have since transformed into living landmarks. That's cool. That's a cool concept. So UBs, like, because we only knew, you know UBs from the present, but what would happen if a UB got sent to the past and got stuck there. That's a fun concept. That's a fun little what if experiment there. But this is a ground mystic type based on those kind of Chinese, uh, like what is it, temples, pagodas? That's the word, pagodas, those Chinese pagodas. I think it's fun they're telling, taking a Japanese tale, uh, the Kaguya Hime, I'm pretty sure is, was, is the name of the tale, the, the bamboo shoot princess, um, and transforming it into more of a Chinese thing. I think that's pretty fun. I'm very curious as to what other UBs we're going to see get regional forms. <laughs> <laughs> that's so good. <laughs> a stack attacka, Pangurian form, the pure rock type stack attacka being the Green Wall of China. <laughs> That's just, that feels like a meme. This honestly feels like a meme. I, I love it. That's so fun. This almost feels like it could be Stack Attacka's G-Max form. Not even a lie. Next up, we've got the protagonist of Pokemon Dynasty, which Pokemon Dynasty would be the game name of, you know, the Pangu region. Uh, we, we got Gon and Nyx, which are pretty fun. The designs are pretty simple. I don't think they're doing much differently. I'm not seeing much of a Chinese influence in these designs. I won't lie to you. I figured there'd be some kind of China influence in there, but they kind of just feel pretty standard. Um, but yeah, 
that's that's really all i have to say it looks like you're taking a school trip field trip from the city so i guess these are more modern designs because you're more from the city not from the countryside per se next up we've got taiga which is your rival i suppose and that's kind of giving more me more of what i was thinking about this guy looks more like he's from the countryside i assume you probably meet him out on your field trip to you know the countryside i also like how his name is taiga and he's got a tiger striped like kind of hoodie wrapped around his waist i think that's kind of fun don't really have much to say he kind of looks like he kind of looks like a, a one that would be kind of stern but also like kind of friendly at the same time that's just the vibe i get so it looks like we have our first guardian it's not necessarily a gym leader so they're kind of going kind of a more alola re route with it but there's the guardians that hold artifacts um this one's rue she's a fairy type user the first one being a fairy type i think it's pretty fun um i like the lay thing she's got going on this calm phase like lay that it's holding i'm getting more grass type than i am fairy type just because it's got like the freaking flower 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 everywhere you know what i'm saying um which flowers can be associated with fairies which is fine but i'm getting more grass types from this i don't, I don't know next up we have cinna and they are a normal type specialist and they the name is derived from cinnamon um yeah it's a normal type <laughs> it's a, I, don't, I don't see anything exactly special that would be denoting his design to be kind of normal type aside from like kind of just a normal beige attire kind of going on i really like his mustache though that's a that's a that's a dope mustache next up we've got lois which is our grass type user <laughs> and i get the fairy type from this why do i get the fairy type from this and not the other one because this one just feels like like she's holding the flower like floette you know what I'm saying? That like, like it gives me more of a fairy type than it does. A... Whatever. Maybe I'm weird. It actually looks like Lois is the mother of Rue. So that makes sense why there's this whole connection going on there. So I take back what I said. That makes sense. Next up, we got Vetch, which is a psychic type user. And he's got this whole flute thing going on. He's a musician, which is weird to me because I feel like that should have been the normal type. Because like music, normal sound. Maybe that's just me. Apparently, they use this artifact to put Pokemon to sleep, so I guess... I don't know, Sing is a normal type move, so I don't... Yeah, yeah. Overall, I like their attire. They look dapper as hell. Next up, we've got Anissa, which is a ghost type user, and she's definitely giving me huge Gerudo energy. Like, even the Gerudo costume from Breath of the Wild. Very much that energy. I like her skull top. It's just like that subtle little ghostly element. I mean, I wouldn't say that's subtle, but it's just that one little ghostly element that's I think is super fun. Next up is Wapu. And now I can only think of the freaking Cardi B song. Wapu, Wapu, Wapu. <laughs> okay, sorry. It's even funnier because he's a water type. Oh no. Anyway, we got that traditional old man kind of thing going on here. Kind of like the grass type gym leader from Kalos. Apparently, this is actually Hapu's grandfather, which I didn't even think of before reading. But of course, because it has the, the Mudbray there. He has the Mudbray there. And so this is actually apparently set in the past. Uh, Pokemon Dynasty is set before the events of Pokemon Sun and Moon, which is pretty cool. Next up, we got Ginkgo, which is the Steel type specialist. And I can get Steel type. He's got the whole stethoscope, doctor, you know, metal forceps whatever the hell thing going on i even think that his little cane here is supposed to be based on the uh pangurian temple line which is pretty fun finally we have goji which is our final gym leader uh or guardian as it were in the pangu region um and he's just fun he just gives me a goku vibe like he just he's a fighting type user so he just likes to fight kind of like i was saying earlier um kind of has that same vibe to him Tien. I don't even know why I didn't think of Tien. Tien from Dragon Ball Z and Dragon Ball. I don't know why I didn't think, and Dragon Ball Super, I should say. Um, definitely that kind of vibe too. I don't know why I thought Goku before I thought, thought Tien. And it looks like after you defeat the Guardians, you will face the Aura Masters. First up, we have Mei, which is an Ice type, which is kind of funny because Mei from Overwatch, Ice type, kind of got that kind of thing going on there, which I kind of think is funny. Um, I like the design. I think the dress pattern is super cool i think that's so no no pun intended <laughs> i think this design is pretty fun it, is this supposed to be based on may from overwatch because that's the vibe i'm getting next up we got camille which is a fire type user and she's got that classic chinese style dress kind of looks like she could be related to the fire type uh 
Elite Four member from the Kalos region, almost. I can't remember her name off the top of my head. Her design is simple, gets the point across that she's a fire type user. Next up, we've got Samantha, which I'm noticing we've had all girls thus far for our Elite Four, which is super cool. Uh, but they are a dragon type user, and I'm pretty sure they're a part of the Draconid tribe because those little ankle like leg bracer kind of things they got going on and the on the arms too so maybe that's a draconid reference but generally cool you kind of get the that feeling based on that like we got the draconid kind of elements to it that it, it that she is the dragon type user um i'm excited to see the final elite four member excuse me there is no final elite four member it's an elite three so we have master peach which is our essentially our acting champion and just that old man classic you know, wise elder master vibe going on. Um, I'm curious what kind of specialist he is. I probably should have assumed this, but yeah, he's a mystic specialist. Why? Duh, Brandon, duh. The background, the general vibe of him definitely feels like a mystic type specialist. So really cool. There's a four part story here that you can go and check out. Um, it's called the Pokemon King. I'm pretty sure it's supposed to be based on a journey to the West. Um, you know, the kind of tale of Hanuman, I think it is, or Son Goku, Son, one of those, those kind of thing. I'm, I'm probably getting my monkey gods mixed up here, but I think pretty sure that's supposed to be the idea. So I believe this is our first legendary Pokemon and this is Reliquine. I like the idea of Relic plus Equine. That's a, that's a nice little pun there. Um, it's a Pegasus Pokemon, just a straight up white horsed Pegasus Pokemon. It's very elegant, feels very cool, very unique um, for a horse Pokemon. I like its little elements. It doesn't feel overdone. It doesn't feel overdesigned. It has the little elements that it should to make it feel like legendary without feeling too overdone. Next up, we've got Bullgrim, which is a steel type. Um, it is Bull plus Pilgrim plus Grim. Grim, I don't, I don't see so much. Maybe I would see still dark type maybe for Grim, but whatever. As far as the design goes, this is the same same thing. It's got that same kind of um, vibe as Reliquine. I think they're supposed to be obviously kind of um, a, related in that way because this is all supposed to be based on Journey to the West. Um, and yeah, it's not too complicated. It's a little bit more complicated than Reliquine, I will say. The Axe Tail is, is cool, albeit a little bit like it, I think actually, you know what? I think it kind of balances out the design. You have the front and then that big axe tail in the back. I think it works. Next up, we got Swinobite, which is a ground type pig Pokemon based on Pigsy from Journey to the West, um, or the Zhu uh, Zhu Zhu Baiji. I'm trying my best. Please, please don't. Please be nice. But just like Reliquine, I think this is the perfect amount. I will say this doesn't feel like a legendary Pokemon to me as much. Um, it just kind of feels like a a pig with with a giant like teeth there's not much legendary feel to it but because i know it's a part of a legendary grouping it makes sense next up we've got mun king pure fighting type i think this is cool but i think it just pulls in too many elements of infernape i won't lie to you because infernape is directly inspired by that so it just this just feels a little redundant it's got all the swirly elements and that that infernape does it just eh, it feels it just feels too it just feels redundant to me and i hate to say it because it's a cool design it is a cool design i like the cloudy aspects incorporated into its design i feel like it is a cool pokemon in and of itself if infernape didn't exist this is a like i think this wouldn't feel as redundant obviously because it wouldn't exist but it still feels cool it's just it's just redundant. Okay, apparently relic they have different forms. Reliquine has the peril form, which is flying dark type. That thing is sick looking. I need to catch that, bro. What? Wow, complete transformation. I love that. Okay, I, I honestly, I feel like I know this reference, but I don't know it well enough to say anything about it. So I will move on, but I think this design is really cool. Next, we got Bullgrim Paraform, which is steel dark type. There's the dark type I was talking about. The freaking tail has merged into its body and now it just got these big horns. Wow, it's definitely giving off that evil energy now for sure. Wow, okay, I like that. I like that a lot. Next we have Swinobite Peril Form and my God, ground dark type. And like, it looks like it's tails like tilling the earth now, like a rake or something like, wow. But this is way different. That's giving me that pig from the, like the giant pig from uh legend of zelda wind waker that you can pick up once you have like the the gauntlets that make you like lift heavy things that's this is what this reminds me of very much so um terrifying though 
super terrifying. And finally, we have Monking Paraform, and it's a Fighting Dark type. Now, this feels different enough to me to justif to be justified. I think, n now that I see the Paraform kind of switch there, I feel like it's not as redundant. Still little, still little, but not as. The Paraform is way cool. Very, very, very cool. The dark menacing energy it has to it is that's really cool. Really cool. Next up, we got Charmera, which is a mystic food dog Pokemon, and it's apparently a baby legendary. This thing is probably my favorite Pokemon of the entire region. I'm not even gonna lie to you. This thing looks so good. This thing, like, honest to God, the art style, the proportioning, the design all come together so well. I could see this as a real Pokemon. I know we already have like a food dog kind of thing going on with Hisui and Growlithe and uh, Hisui and Arcanine and their originals were supposed to be based on food dog. But I feel like this is enough of a departure that it doesn't feel redundant. And God, I really like this Pokemon. This Pokemon is stunning, truly. Next up is Nefroil, which I'm assuming is supposed to be Gargoyle plus Nephrite which I think is Jade. Is Nephrite Jade? Is that right? Am I right? I'm probably not right. Am I Nephrite? Haha. <laughs> I'm probably Nephron. This design is pretty cool. I will say it doesn't look as much as a real Pokemon as its previous stage. But that being said, I think it's still a cool design. Um, I think the Jade elements incorporated into it are really, really fun. I like the Pokeball around his neck. I kind of want to use that. I think that's a cool looking Pokeball. I would love to use like a jade colored Pokeball. Maybe that is a Pokeball that makes mystic types easier to catch. I think that would be a cool design. It looks like it says it's an active mode. I can't quite see what it says, but it doesn't look like maybe there's some kind of other mode. Yes, there is a guard mode. So it's mystic rock type when it's in guard mode. So it's frozen. The wind like the wings are a little bit more back. The horn is away. So that's kind of cool. That kind of references that kind of gargoyle thing going on where, you know, they're active during a certain period of time. Um, I think this coloration is really fun. It has that kind of greenish gray to it, and it's really pleasing to the eye. Next up, we have Nephroyal Female, which I didn't realize there was a difference, but there is, because this one has a little Charmera under its under its paw, just chilling, saying, like, hey, I'm hanging out with mom. That's kind of what it seems like. That's super cute. This one has two forms, and, uh, two forms, two horns instead of one, um, and it's, it also has two forms. So let's, let's see the other form. This is the guard mode, and it's pretty much the same, but except um, the Charmera is frozen with it, which I think is kind of fun. <laughs> Next up, we've got Shiva Yama, which is Mystic Dark type. I'm assuming this is based on the God of Destruction Shiva from Hindu mythology. Yeah, it is. Okay, and it's also based on the Evil Eye, which is crazy. This thing's giving me like Galeem from Smash Bros. energy hard. This thing is absolutely wacky. I will say it's giving me Hoopa energy as well. And it just kind of feels like Hoopa fused with Metacham. You know what I'm saying? Though it is kind of samey with other mons, I think this design in and of itself is really epic and really fun. And that's it for the Pangu region. So make sure to let me know which one was your favorite in the comments below. And if you enjoyed the video, make sure to hit that like button, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. Once again, a huge thank you to An Artist Astray for letting me review this region. I definitely enjoyed it. It was a great time. Thank you guys so much for watching. And with that, I will see you guys next time. Hey everyone, Brandon here, and welcome back to another region review where we review different regions around the Fakemon community. Today, we'll be reviewing the Mezzo region by Lugio over on Instagram and DeviantArt. The Mezzo region is actually based on the American Cordillera, which is a chain of mountain ranges that starts in South America, goes up through Central America, and into North America. So I promise the title isn't clickbait. Latin America is in there, but you also have a little bit of North America thrown in there and a little bit of South America cut off. Latin America was just easier to describe this with because I feel like a lot of people know what Latin America is and don't really know what the American Cordillera is. I mean, I didn't until this video. Anyway, before we hop into the Mezzo region, make sure to hit that like button, subscribe, and hit that notification bell to help support this channel and to keep up to date with future videos. Also, one more thing before we get started, I actually stream on Twitch, so if you would go over there and follow me and show some support, I'd greatly appreciate that. I stream over there about five to six days a week with Pokemon Nuzlocks, other challenge runs like Ironmon, just chatting streams, variety content like fall guys so i'd greatly appreciate it if you guys would head over there and give me a follow anyway let's get started with the grass starter for the region and for this we have ivig and iguave and guavera that's right we have the entire line in one post that is one thing that the mezzo region does differently another thing that this region does differently is they go for the more classic ken sugimori art style with a more kind of 
painted watercolor look to it. It gives a lot of these designs that original Gen 1 kind of look and feel to them. Anyway, as far as the designs, Ivig is so freaking darling. I love it. It really is a cute little lizard Pokemon, and it does a really good job of varying from uh, Trico, who we already have as like a, you know, a lizard, grass lizard starter. It honestly gives me Mudkip vibes, and I love that about it. As far as Iguave, it's a nice step up. It kind of has that kind of teenagery syndrome, kind of that Charmander to Charmeleon kind of feeling to it. And then finally, Guavera, I think this thing is epic. It gives like, it's like a combo. It's like, you know, Venusaur mixed with Charizard and that kind of feeling it gives off. As far as inspirations go, I can't see any under the description or in the dex entries that they do over on their DeviantArt. Make sure to check out their DeviantArt, by the way. It has all the dex entries and stuff like that, but they doesn't have, you know, list any of the inspirations. So I'm just going to have to kind of guess. And to me, this Guavera kind of looks like it has... I think the term is Mayan. I'm not 100% sure. I can't. I, I don't know 100% the difference between Incan, Mayan, and Aztec. I don't know the 100% difference there. I know they're all kind of Central America based, at least. That's about all I know, though. I don't want to pretend like I know more than I do, but it kind of just has that kind of look to it. Next up, we have our Firestarter, and we have Fuecoat, Barbicoat, and Charcoat. And those names are just so brilliant. Fuecoat, like a you know, kind of has that Fue Coco. I mean, we already, you know, this was premiered before we even knew of the existence of Fue Coco. Then you have Barbicoat, like, like barbecue. And then you have Charcoat, which is like charcoal or char, you know, kind of that Charmander, Charmeleon, Charizard feel to it. These are all based on the Kawadi, and I actually made a Kawadi mod for Cornera, which is Security and Kawad Titan. Those two are based on Kawadis as well. So I love the Kawadi. I think it is a stellar looking animal, and this translates into a Firestarter really well. Like the tail specifically on Fuecoat is actually really cool and has that kind of a flamey element to it without it being a direct flame. I do kind of wish that Barbicoat and Charcoat kind of followed through with that and still had that kind of fiery tail going on for them. Charcoat I really like because it stays on all fours. You know, Fuecoat starts on, you know, two legs and then when you down, go down to Barbicoat and Charcoat, which are on four legs. Appreciate that. A lot of starters in the recent years have been getting more and more anthropomorphized, more, you know, humans with just, you know, animal heads kind of thing going on. Anyway, Charcoat's really cool. I like it as a final stage. It reminds me of Ursa Luna in the, like, kind of the way it feels, like the epicness, the way it holds itself. It kind of has that intimidation factor to it. Next up, we have our water starter for the region, and we have Wavern, Lindwake, and Levidron. Um, I am not 100% certain what these are based on, but to me, they feel like they're based on, they kind of look and feel like Lapras a lot, like very much so, like Lapras, if Lapras was like a three-stage Pokemon, I feel like this is what this would be. Um, and I mean, I appreciate that. I love Lapras and I love these designs. It gives me really, really cute energy for Wayburn. It like actually speaks after my heart and actually makes me want to pick this as my starter over the other two, just because I feel so familiar. It feels so familiar. It feels like coming home, right? But then Levidron gives this kind of edgy, epic feeling. It's its shell almost looks like the crown of Slowking. Like I said, this classic art style really evokes that kind of Gen 1 feeling. I kind of love how Wayburn has like this sand dollar on its back and then Lin Wake, it evolves into more of like a kind of spiral shell and then Levidra and we kind of get that sloking crown to it with its like edgy spikiness. Definitely one of those things where it's like the like edgy cousin of, of Lapras where it's like don't ride on me please don't. I, I will poke you. I'll stab you. As far as the starters go, I definitely have to pick Wavern. I mean, the whole line is really stellar. And like I said, really evokes that same feeling that Lapras gives me. And I love that. Next up, we have Spagnoth, Lothram, and Behemoth. And they are a ground type and then ground grass type sloth Pokemon. And I think they do a stellar job at separating this from the other sloth line, which is Slackoth. And I just, I adore this. I, Sp Spagnoth is so cute i love the little closed eyes you know kind of like hmm feeling you know it just feels kind of content he has that like contentment to him and then lothram has that same kind of thing that same very like they look like they're cozy in their fur like their fur is just like cozy they're just like cuddled up with themselves they're like hmm that's nice and then behemoth i additionally love because it's based on the megatherium and the fact that sloths um, are so slow and go like move so slowly that sometimes they'll grow moss on their backs, which is just so cool. A uh, really clever concept and a in way in to incorporate it into a design because it kind of just looks like a little grass cape. And I like the colors that they chose because it's not like it's not like a like a bright, vibrant green. 
Um, it's kind of a darker, more like subdued, mossy. Like it, it kind of looks like the moss mixed with the fur, you know, that kind of coloration. And honestly, this line is so, I think it's so stellar for real, because I just really like the progression of the design and the final, the final level just kind of feels like, you know, earned i don't know th there's something about this feel this one that i would definitely pick i would definitely have a spagnoth on my team to begin with next up we have halberd tomhawk and Faradox. and can i just say those first two names are freaking incredible halberd and tomhawk i love that that's amazing so we have steel steel and then steel fire which is interesting to me i don't really see the fire type incorporation right except for in the coloration but it shares that coloration with halberd and tomhawk anyway these are some sharp looking birds and i don't mean in like the looking handsome sense i mean in the literal sense they look like they would stab you slice you you don't want to be around them you don't want to coddle them and i kind of love that about them so far what i'm noticing a lot of with lukio is they managed to capture that gen 1 feeling where a cute thing becomes epic thing it feels like there was a lot of that in gen 1 in particular and i feel like they've really kind of captured that energy with a lot of these mods that i'm seeing so far so i'm very excited to continue going i really like how these aren't steel flying at all they're just pure steel ground-based birds for our you know kind of root one bird pokemon and then it eventually come becomes kind of like a raptor and it kind of looks like they also mixed in a cassowary in there as well they kind of managed to capture that ambiguousness that a lot of pokemon have where you can't kind of you kind of can't tell exactly what they're inspired by some you can some are like kind of like a hodgepodge of different concepts so i think that lugio did this well with this line next up we've got bluga arcticorn and narpoon and these things are adorable the whole way through the whole way through and instead of going from adorable to epic it's just pure adorableness the entire way through bluga is this cute little baby beluga whale you know pure ice type which is interesting because I feel like it should be ice water and then it should evolve and then lose the water typing considering it gains legs at the end but anyway i think what's a really interesting design element is that um it goes from you know being furless to having this kind of like mink kind of over its shoulders to the mink being incorporated into the design so like now it's like got fur which is so interesting for a whale pokemon and also it becomes bipedal which is kind of crazy usually like if it's going to be like some kind of water-based pokemon then it stays either water-based or or like you know fin based or it you know starts with legs and then keeps them but I've, i don't think i've ever seen a mon do that i'm probably talking out of my butt here probably it happened and someone's gonna correct me in the comments you guys always do this is another one i would probably have on my team i'd hate to fill up my slots so quickly my team slots so quickly but honest to god i just love this line so much Next up, we've got Sprite and Fablefly, and this is kind of wild looking. We go from this incredibly cute, like very long limbed. I, I thought that was just a part of its wings, but those are actually legs. That's kind of crazy. But And then we go to this like gremlin looking fly, which is still keeps that bug fairy type, which is cool because kind of gives that same fairy typing as, you know, the Grimmsnarl line. But this is freaking crazy. It's almost, it's, is this supposed to be like Chupacabra? Like inspired and also no this is definitely this is definitely um what's it called the Gre is it gremlins is it gremlins that it's called gremlins yes the 1984 film i definitely didn't just look it up at all anyway yeah kind of given that don't feed it after midnight thing i wonder if like there's some kind of evolutionary method where if you give it like a pokey you know a berry or a pokey block after a certain time period it would turn it from sprite to Fla fable fly I, I don't know, maybe something like that. I think it'd be really cool. Next up, we have Slumbug and Duststorm. And <laughs> they're so cute, Slumbug. It's like Slumber plus Bug. All it's And then Duststorm. I'm not sure what Duststorm is supposed to be um, 100%. I can't, I'm not seeing the inspiration 100%. Like, I get Slumbug is supposed to be like, you know, a bug with kind of like a, you know, sleeping hat on, but I'm not 100% sure what Dust Storm is. Um, like, it's it sounds like Dust Storm, but it, it almost is giving me like Slender Man with the tentacles. Is that what it's supposed to be? Like kind of like a nightmare? It's still asleep. It, I'm, I'm not 100% certain on this one, but regardless, it looks pretty cool. It almost looks like it's like, got like you know, the, the, the uh, what's it called? The sleigh? What is, what's the bottom part of the sleigh called? The thing that... I don't know. I don't know. Next up, we have Munchip and Munchuck, <laughs> which are both fairy. And Munchip is crazy looking, dude. This guy is wild. He's cracked out of his mind. 
He's like, he's a nutcracker. He's crack. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Did I just do that? <laughs> he's, he's a chipmunk nutcracker. That's hilarious. I love that. Wow. That's such a clever and fun concept. And then we have Munchuck, which is kind of this royal. He's giving me like the Kings. I don't know, like in, in Mario world, Mario Land. Mario, am I saying that right? Mario Land? One of, one of those like classic Mario Kings. I don't know why it's giving me that. It's just that's the kind of energy I get from it. Or even the like Cat King from uh, Nino Kuni. It's also kind of giving me that energy as well. But these two are just so funny. I, I love it. I love them a lot. And this is, I, I guess this would be our Route 1 rodent, wouldn't it? But it doesn't have that normal type. So I'm not 100% certain. Next up, we've got a regional Cottony and Whimsicott. And they are based on Tumbleweeds, it looks like. But... Um, they're still Grass Fairy, which is kind of, um, I don't know how to say it. I don't really like that. <laughs> I won't, I won't be I'll be 100%. I mean, if you're going to do a regional form, you might as well, you know, change the typing because why, you know, Game Freak has never done a regional form where they have not changed the typing. And it, you know, kind of nullifies the point of a regional variant if you're not going to change the typing with the design. Kind of doesn't make sense for something to evolve into a different design if it's not going to change its typing as well. That's just my personal opinion. But as far as the design goes, I think these are solid. Tumbleweed plus Cottony and Whimsicott is something I wouldn't have thought of, but makes so much sense now that I've seen it, you know? I really like how the horns of Whimsicott have turned from these like kind of sheep horns into these kind of more brambly vines. I really like that little design detail. Next up, we've got a regional Petalil and Lilligant, and we got the same situation here where, you know, regional variant without the type change. I These look like a grass fi fire type to me. I, you know, I would have done Petal a grass fire and then cottony grass ground you know that kind of just feels like those you know they're they are you know uh what's the word counterparts that's the word they're kind of counterparts in gen 5 so i think it would have made sense for one to have fire type and then ground type you know one's weak to the other kind of same dynamic there the designs of these are so so solid i really enjoy them they kind of incorporate a marigold rather than a you know whatever flower lilligant was before and petalil i guess and they incorporate a kind of latin style of dance i think it's a, some kind of mexican folk dance because i mean it's marigolds and marigolds are simply you know kind of associated with mexico with the dia de los muertos and stuff like that and so i think these are so cool i just wish they had changed that typing that's my only that's all my only little gripe about these two these last these these both you know the petalil as well as the cottony lines i just wish they had changed the type Next up, we have a regional variant for Arbok. We have normal Ekans here. Obviously, they can, you know include the whole line, but normal Ekans evolves into a brand new form of Arbok, which looks like it's based on cowboys, and it's got the Calavera face paint uh, as as this little you know chest marking or it's would you call that the, the snake's chest? I guess I don't know. I don't know what the proper terminology is for that, but it also looks like it's got partial rattlesnake inspiration. Kind of looks like it's got like kind of a whip as its tail. So many different aspects to this that I really, really like. And I think this is a really good example of a regional variant. Poison fire type is a sick type combination. And all the aspects just really incorporate well into Arbok's already existing design. Next up is Pygmy and Quibara. <laughs> so cute. Oh my goodness. Pygmy. I love it. This kind of looks like, is this the root one rodent? That's kind of giving, this is what the feeling it gives me is that this is the root one rodent. Maybe they just didn't kind of order this in the same kind of traditional way one would, but yeah, this is based on like, I assume a, uh, uh, a hamster. Um, I'm not hundred percent certain. looks like a hamster that evolves into a capybara. I, I feel like capybara should, I, I don't know. To me, a root one rodent, like that it's based on the capybara should be like normal water. That's just me. I know we already have Bavaro for that, but, you know, capybaras are semi-aquatic, so I figured, why not, but... Oh, ow, I just hit my elbow so hard. Ow. Next up, we have Puffridge and Algador. Algador? 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 I don't know. Puffridge is so freaking adorable. There's so many adorable mons in this region so far. You know, one way to my heart is really cute mons, and the other door to my heart is epic mons, and... <laughs> the Mesa region just knows how to do them. I don't know. I, I feel like I'm getting repetitive at this point, but they just really know how to do those. Um, Puff Ridge is just, they got that, there's a there's certain kind of eye, like the black with the, you know, big ring of black with the white in the middle that just evokes a level of cuteness. Um, and then Algador is giving me Swello kind of energy, that kind of vibe, as well as like Talo. And it kind of has like, you know, Talo, um, Talo's Gen 3 sprite has it like going like, ah, at you. And that kind of has that same, 
kind of thing going on there ice flying type is such a sick type combo and only two pokemon currently have it and that's articuno and delibird and so give an adorable puffin pokemon an epic type combo and you've got a match made in heaven next up we have scrubbles and swabber and oh my god this dude's giving trainer mats a run for his money as far as the cuteness factor of his pokemon this thing is a little like dog that's like kind of like a loofa it looks like kind of like kind of, or a mop or something where it's got like these suds underneath it water normal type that's a fun type combo and i this is <laughs> i can't even i can't even they're so cute i have nothing else to say and just but just marvel at how adorable these are and how clever the kind of concept is a kind of mop mixed with like shaggy dog um kind of thing going on there that is so i just so unique and fun and cute i just i can't get over it it's I, Scrubbles is on the team, guys. I'm just going to say Scrubbles is on the team. Next up, we have Heatred and Disgorge. And that is an epic looking Mon. I really like that. The Fire Dark type mixing in with this kind of demonic feeling. Um, it almost like it has like a bug kind of feeling going on to it. But then like when it evolves, it's kind of, like, it's kind of got like a, a reptile thing going on there. I can't, I'm not 100% certain. Like I have no clue what this could be possibly based on, but maybe dung beetle I, I don't know because like the first one feels like a dung beetle it has that kind of orb on its back I don't know man it's really cool whatever it is I I think this is a solid um really epic design next up we have Somnair and Netmare and they are psychic fairy type dream catcher Pokemon and that just it completely makes sense I mean I for a second I'm like wondering where their eyes were but I realized it's that little jewel in the middle that's supposed to be their eye kind of that like that sigil thing where you're not quite sure how it sees these are some definitely solid object Pokemon I feel like object Pokemon are often overlooked by the fake mind community um, a lot of people are favor making really cool you know elemental animals and stuff like that but there's some really cool object Pokemon that deserve love and this is one of them very good example of how you can make a object Pokemon or an object feel like a Pokemon and it feels like a very natural evolution you know one little dream catcher evolving into the ones that have like the two you know big dream catcher and the smaller little dream catcher kind of that like you know magnemite to magneton kind of feeling next up we have jitternut and cavin for Cavinifor. these things are wild looking jitternut gives me like majora's mask vibes and then this caffinivore like is it supposed to be like carnivore plus like well, what's, what's I, I don't know what that kind of plant is but it's definitely one of those like man-eating plant looking things like audrey 2 kind of vibes to it jitternut looks like it's on something like it just had like a double shot of a espresso and it's ready to just take on the world next up we have pinwin and winstrom and wow that is clever i really like the hummingbird mixed with a pinwheel and then the evolution it's almost got this like jet feeling to it like or or like a yeah just kind of just kind of just like a jet feeling to it or a drone maybe i really really enjoy that it's such an interesting like evolutionary path like a pinwheel to a jet such an interesting design story there also they're pure flying types which i love pure flying type honestly i'm excited to get more pure flying types we had a couple in gen 8 and i'm excited to see more we need more pure flying types folks we only had tornadoes for a while i mean come on <laughs> Next up, we have Prancert and Land Speed, and I think I know what these are based on. These are based on the Pronghorn, which I made uh, Idolope and uh, Fantasy based on for Cornera. Prancert is indefinitely in a cuteness battle with Fantasy. They both have those adorable big eyes. I love it. It's giving me Bambi a lot, like giving me very much Bambi energy. Um, and I like the ground fighting type. I don't, you know. A lot of people don't like to incorporate the fighting type into quadrupedal Pokemon, but I think that is so fun. Like, I mean, we have the Swords of Justice, which are all quadrupedal and part fighting type, and they're super cool designs. So I think more people should do that, you know, that kind of thing where it's the fighting type quadrupedal, you know? I also like the name Land Speed because it's like land as in ground and speed, you know, as in speed. But you, you know, put them together, it's land speed, which is like, uh, you know, the land speed record kind of thing. Next up, we have Darkula and Vampiter. <laughs> These things are so cool. I really like it. It's the bug dark type, which we don't currently have in the games as of this point. Um, and I just think that's so great. I just like it's just this cute little tiny like you know there's those little spiders that you see some spiders super scary some spiders are just these cute little guys that are just like 
hey man what's going on and then th 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 and then darkula takes that you know whole little hey guys what's going on spider and turns it into those really scary spindly leg spiders now with like a freaking bat wings and bat ears and like it's got the x on the back it's kind of giving the you know black widow vibes i think this line is really cool and i can imagine vampire flying through the skies and the thought of a flying spider is terrifying to me I don't want it to continue on that thought any longer. Next up, we have Beetle and Bedazzle. And I would have named it Bedazzle because Bedazzle is a word. So I would have probably, probably would have gotten Bedazzle, like Beetle plus Bedazzle. Um, we already had Beetle there, like as in bead. Anyway, Bedazzle is based on the Aztec pyramids you can find around Central America, which is so cool. It kind of is in that same vein as Paris and Crustle, where it's a bug with a big thing on its back, which... I kind of love that design aesthetic. I th <laughs> bug with big thing on back is just, I don't know, weird. It sounds so caveman y when I say that. Bug with big thing on back. All this to say, I really like these two Pokemon. Next up, we have Rowana and Rapaima, and they're pure water types, and they're based on Arowanas and Arapaimas. And I think it's kind of funny that they both just slash the A off of the name of the animal they're based on. These designs remind me of the children's book, The Rainbow Fish. I read that when I was a kid, I've read it to my daughter. Um, and it kind of gives me that same feeling. I really, really like that, 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 that kind of evoke that emotion out of me. And honestly, Rowana definitely gives that first stage vibe, you know, Goldeen, Magikarp, Feebas, all gives that same energy. And Raipama has a certain elegance to it, like the Rainbow Fish, it has that elegance. I don't know if it's based on that, but to me, I can just kind of imagine the Raipama that gives its really co colorful scales away and makes all its new friends. I don't know. I just really love that idea. Next up, we have Alpalfa and Pachama. They're both grass rock type, and I love them so much. Alpalfa, so adorable. And I think it's actually supposed to be based on Machu Picchu, because I think there's alpacas, either alpacas or llamas, that hang around that area, and a lot of tourists will try and take pictures with Machu Picchu, and like the llamas or alpacas will photobomb them. So I think they're both trying to give off the kind of structures of Machu Picchu. Machu Picchu has kind of those like triangular kind of you know, brick houses, and I think that's that same vibe this is giving off. Pachama is definitely elegant. It has that kind of like that pattern on it, its little saddle that kind of evokes that kind of um, ancient uh, Latin American feeling to it. Is it sad that I wanted to say I'm Emperor's New Groove is what it reminded me of? <laughs> Get that Pachama cronk! Wrong Pachama! Next up, we have Embryo and Tiberug. I don't know about the naming on that one, but sorry that name really caught me off guard just straight up embryo like you know no, okay anyway tiburag i really really like i really think it's cool that they mixed a you know kind of flying carpet with a stingray that's something one of those concepts that's like it comes together so well once you see it it makes so much sense but you kind of wouldn't have thought of it and the execution on it is really cool embryo i'm sorry for some reason can't get over the name also i kind of can't tell what's going on with the general design um, it looks like it's kind of got that anime eye where, you know, they have the hair over the eye, but you can still see the outline of the eye. I always thought that was so strange. So not a super fan, super fan of Embryo, the name and the design are a little strange, but Tiburog, really cool. Next up, we have Mildust and Moldu. <laughs> oh my God. I'm going to lose my brain at how cute these things are. Fairy poison type, um, because kind of evoking, like it's just a cutesy little Mildew Pokemon or dust Pokemon. Um, and you know, it's dust plus mildew and then moldew. It's this like cute little fairy incarnation of mildew and dust and like dust bunny kind of energy to it. And that's so adorable. It is so freaking cute. I can't get over it. Okay. Sorry. Mildust. I'm putting it on the team. It's cute. It's too cute. It's too cute not to. Next up, we have Reservant, Nectarne, and Gardrone. I adore that they kept this pure bug the whole way through. They have been really good with the attention to detail. A lot of things a lot of fake mon regions miss is the necessity of monotypes. A lot of regions will just do pure dual typed Pokemon, but a majority of most dexes in the actual Pokemon regions have a lot of monotypes. It's like 60 to 70% monotypes, I'm pretty sure. Um, or I, I might be, might, that might be a bit dramatic. I think it might be 50% uh, monotyped Pokemon, which is crazy. And so people, a lot of people ignore that little, that little detail, but I really like how Mezzo has paid attention to it. The designs are great. Reservant is super cutesy, has this big butt. It looks like it's got like a, like it's like storing honey in its, its thorax. Um, and then it evolves into a cocoon that is also a beehive. 
and then evolves into like a guard bee, like a drone bee with like a beehive tail. And I think the beehive tail is a little bit one step too far as far as designs goes. I think that's a little bit of an over design considering they have the kind of um, arm bands that look like beehives. Almost, it almost, you know what? I think I, I kind of, I know I just commented how I said I really adored how this was pure, the pure bug the whole way through. But a guard drone, I almost feel like should be bug fighting because I like the idea of you having these, uh, these wrist and um, leg guards that are also a hive. Like, that's really clever, but I, I can see how the pure bug type still makes sense. That the, the whole hive on the on the you know butt thing is the only thing I probably would have changed about this. But aside from that, really solid line. I I'm, I I want to say I would probably have it as a backup for my team. I, I don't know if I would put it on my like main team, but definitely like one of those ones I'd kind of keep in the PC and swap in and out. Next up, we've got Quartzel, Tropaz, and Peridot, and the names, the typing, the designs, all ten out of ten, all ten out of ten. I just adore this freaking line my gosh the whole way through the whole way through it gives very much that kind of pidgey to pidgeotto to pidgeot energy very very much so i think these are partially based on the quetzalcoatl because it's got quartzel maybe that's i don't know if that's me reading too much into it but the idea of like the gems mixed with names of like birds is just incredible yet another one i would definitely put on my team Aerodot is such a good name. I I really adore it. Next up, we've got Slugma and Macargo, but also a new evolution called Cauldropod. And my goodness, my freaking goodness, this design. It's got it's got cauldron, it's got demon, it's got this kind of like mass going on with the horns, but the horns are also like the kind of tendrils that slugs have. This it just all conglomerates into this amazing design. Like, I'm not really a fan of the Slugma and Macargo line, but if this was a real Pokemon, oh my god, would I take it? It incorporates the elements that were already there from Macargo and just makes them just like turns it up to 11 with an amazing design. Next up, we have Wooper and Quagsire, but then another new evolution, which is called Gilbender, and this thing's awesome. I think it's based on Ohms, or is it based on just the Axolotl? Because, you know, Axolotls are native to the Central America region. I'm pretty sure just Mexico, in fact. Like, I'm pretty sure they're they're native to, like, one specific town in Mexico. I, I might be wrong about that, but I'm pretty sure I researched it, and that, like, you know, the, the Axolotls are only based on, like, one specific town in Mexico. Regardless, this is a great step up from Quagsire. They really played into what makes Wooper and Quagsire great, and then just made an evolution for it. I, I don't, like, a lot of people miss the mark when it comes to evolutions for Pokemon. They make them feel so completely detached from the from the line. Um, but this just feels like a, such a natural progression for it. It brings back the little kind of side fins that Wooper has in a new way, kind of making them look like kelp in a way, um, as well as like kind of a mane, almost making it look, you know, lion-like. It goes quadrupedal, which kind of reminds me of Mega Swampert in a way, which I love Mega Swampert, honestly. I think that's a really solid design. So probably why I like this so much, honestly, but it, it just does all the right things for a Quagsire evolution. Next up, we have Crustocean and Atmantis, and my gosh, I love these. Bug Water type, that's interesting because it's a shrimp Pokemon. Uh, I'm not exactly sure if, if, if shrimp are, would you consider shrimp to be water bugs? Are they bugs or would you consider crustaceans to be water bugs? I'm not sure. Anyway, this line, I really like Crustocean. Once again, really, it's kind of derpy cute. It's a little derpy cute, but at Mantis is giving me the same energy as those kind of guardian crustaceans that were from the movie Atlantis, the Disney movie. Um, and I adored that movie. So this is giving me that same, that same energy. And it is uh, based on the Mantis shrimp, uh, which are super hyper colorful, colorful shrimp and um, they even have kind of like feathers, like Mayan gods typically are depicted with kind of these like feathery appendages going on. It, they, they really, really know how to meld these concepts together in a way that feels very Pokemon. Re they really do a good job of that, and I commend them for it because this far, thus far, I've been very impressed. Next up, we have Protoken and Arch Effect, which are Electric Psychic, and that's interesting to me. I, I would not have seen them as Electric Psychic, more so Steel Psychic, kind of like a Bronzong situation, but. Regardless, I these are just object Pokemon. Once again, doing object Pokemon in a really stellar and unique way. <coughs> Excuse me. Sorry. Doing object Pokemon in a fun and unique way. And honestly, Arch Effect is kind of giving me the same vibes 
as that like floating head and hand boss from uh, Legend of Zelda The Wind Waker. I'm not sure if that was an inspiration, but that's definitely how what I feel about it. It just gives me that same feeling. Next up, we have our regional form for Tentacool and a new evolution called Tentaquest. Uh, it's got a steel poison type, which is super fun. Um, but I these are unfortunately, I'm pretty sure based on conquistadors, because that's why, you know, quest is in the name. It's supposed to be based on the conquistadors uh, that came over and, um, you know, conquered Middle America, Latin America. Not great, but I mean, it looks cool. <laughs> the idea of mixing the kind of helmets that the Conquistadors had with Tentacool is a really cool concept, as well as Tentaquest. I really like how, um, you know, Tentacool has these kind of like jaw, that kind of jaw, and they changed that little jaw thing it has into a more of a like mustache, like a sharp blade, blade looking mustache. Next up, we have a regional Growlithe and Arcanine that are fighting and then fighting Dragon. This is so epic. This Growlithe is, I don't see the fighting type as much, I won't lie, I would have gone like dragon and then dragon fighting, because I really get the dragon feeling from Growlithe and Arcanine, um, because they're based on food dogs already, but it's really playing into that kind of food dog inspiration. I'm not 100% certain how the food dog plays into kind of this like Mesoamerican, Latin American, you know, even North American inspired region, but regardless, I'm not complaining because they're freaking really cool designs. It very much feels in that same vein for me as Charmera from Artist Astray's Pangu region. We did a review of that, so check that out if you missed it. Next up, we've got Platoon, Sepulcher, and Catacorpse. Wow, that's... I, I really like that. I really, really, really like that. I will say it's giving me like samurai, but I, the thing I like about it is that it's still giving me that kind of Mesoamerican feel. It looks like a samurai armor mixed with Mesoamerican kind of uh, Mayan depictions of gods. And that's a very game freak thing to do. I mean, they've done it before where they take kind of the aesthetic of the region and then add in a kind of Japanese inspiration into it. A good example of that would be Sock and Throw who are based on Oni, but they're also based on karate and judo. Can't forget judo throw is, throw is based on judo as well this is another one that i feel like i would have on my team the fighting rock type is a really really cool type combo um underused i'm pretty sure uh terrakion is the only one that uses it if i'm not mistaken i had it in my cornera region a couple times which i probably shouldn't have done so much but i think it's really cool next up is Wizwhip, whisper and Wizwill, all dark flying type i think that's super cool it's giving me a uh, whisper is definitely giving me like robin um from batman and robin kind of that same vibe to him and Wiswill is giving me Batman I think <laughs> I don't know if that was the intention or if that was an inspiration at all but I still think that's fun I don't really like this line per se it's like not my favorite it's still a good line but I wouldn't call it my favorite by any means um I yeah it's just you know it's just okay next up is Cryon, Weebstock and Tear Willow I love that Cryon like onion and then Weebstock as in like the stock of it looks like a leak um, but then we have Tier Willow. I'd say the Tier Willow part of this line is the one that makes the least sense to me because it feels it's like onion, onion, tree. You know, it kind of doesn't like progress to me in that like it doesn't feel like a natural progression to me. It kind of feels like Tier Willow is like a, a, a part of its own separate line. I absolutely adore how Weepstock has like its tears as using him to fight with like fists. That's so funny. Um, I, another thing about this line that I probably would have done with Weepstock and Tear Willow in particular is made them grass water type. I mean, you have tears, which are literally water from your body being incorporated so heavily into the design. I, pr I probably would have incorporated that that water typing into it. I could imagine an episode of the anime where Farfetch'd accidentally grabs a, a Weepstock instead of its leak. And then like the Weepstock becomes really angry and like tries to beat its butt with its tear fists. And I could just imagine the hilarity that would ensue in that kind of episode. Next up, we've got Hoot Hoot and a regional version of Noctel that is now ghost flying. I will say, I think that this could have been its own mon. Like, you know, I said before that certain mons weren't enough of a difference. I think this is big enough of a difference to make it its own original mon. The face in particular being so vastly different from Noctel kind of puts me off to it feeling like Noctel. Like, you still got the horns that are, the, you know, the great horned owl that Noctel is based on. Um, but it's still, it, it feels very, it's very much like too different for it to be still called Noctowl. Regardless of that little detail, I think it's a really, really cool design. I really like how they incorporated kind of more of a wispy, ghostly robe wing to it. I'm not sure. It, it, this seems like it could have some kind of like 
folklore ghost inspiration. Maybe there's some kind of ghost owl. I mean, I'm pretty sure there is a ghost owl, so maybe that's part of the inspiration. I just looked it up and barn owls are actually called ghost owls. So that is definitely the inspiration there. And I really, really like that. I mean, the barn owl ha kind of has that, you know, little ridge down the middle of its face of, of feathers. And so Noctel, this version of Noctel has that very same thing. It's a really solid design. I just would have probably made it its own original evolution rather than a Noctel regional variant. Next up is Spoink and Grumpig, and these dudes are so different. I love them. They're normal type. So they got completely rid of, of the uh, pearls that are in part of their design, and Spoink has an apple now on its head, which is a fun little nod to like when people put apples on their head for like aiming practice and stuff like that. Um, and Grumpig is like very different this is another example of one that is like if it, I, I can I, less so than the noctile variant but this one feels like it could could have been its own original evolution i mean i would have even incorporated the apple into the design more it kind of feels like spoink like you know spoink and grumpig both have the pearls or like the you know the crystal ball kind of thing as it incorporated in both the designs that kind of ties them together so maybe i would have had it in its mouth or something kind of reference to suckling pigs i don't know i really appreciate making a regional form that is pure normal type i don't think a lot of the community would have done this but a normal type is an often overlooked type in the fake mon community i you know i'm realizing as i'm saying this like i've said this like so many times about the mezzo region like lugio has been missing like picking up on those little details that i feel like a lot of people miss in the fake mon community that just kind of makes pokemon feel like pokemon there are a lot of normal types there are a lot of water types there are a lot of these little details that that have been featured in the mezzo region and that this is kind of a lesson and like just just kind of pay attention to those little finer details and that can really make or break your region. Next up is Stantler and a new evolution and Chantler. This is again before we had Weirdeer. So before everybody's like Weirdeer, you know, this was before we had Weirdeer. So this is really clever. I love the name Enchantler, like kind of pulling in that Stantler. Like Weirdeer is a really cool name. I won't lie, like Weird Deer, love that. But this is kind of like, I could even imagine this as a split evolution of, of, of Weirdeer, like Stantler, Weirdeer, Stantler, Enchantler, love that. Normal Ghost type was a new type combo at this time as well, before we got Hisui and Zorua and Zorark. So all of these elements really like draw me to this. Uh, the, you know, little balls on Stantler's horns are now floating little orbs of ghostly energy. You kind of have these talismans hanging off of its um, off of its antlers. What, what, what would you call it? Like the prongs of its antlers. And you even have a little bit more ghostly energy coming from the prongs of its antlers up top and its tail. I think it. I, th I think I probably would have removed the talismans. Talismans. I think that would have. That's like just one step too far. Just a little bit too detailed. You know, Game Freak wants to keep it so that they don't have to. You know, make a full. You know, render 3D model with so many details. But um, besides that, I think that's a. It's a, an incredibly solid design and a really, really just enchanting. It's a, just an enchanting design and its name is Enchantler. It all just works. Next up, we've got Stuffle and Beware and. What did you do to my boys? Oh my god, <laughs> so, they look so sad. So this ghost fighting and uh, the whole way through and beware literally lives up to that name now. Like it's beware of this thing. Like that looks like beware has this kind of cutesy appearance on the outside. And then it's like terrifying when you really find out like if you like get too close, it could like maul you. This one, you look like you want to stay away from. What this reminds me of is Monzaemon from, uh, from Digimon and then Waru Monzaemon. The kind of good, uh, I mean, Monzumon's still a little creepy, but it, it's not as creepy. And then Wadu Monzumon is like super, get, like leans into that like stuffed bear, but like looks like it could really hurt you kind of vibe. The stitch togetherness of it makes so much sense because it has that Frankenstein inspiration sewn in there. I just sewn in. That was that wasn't even on purpose, folks. That, I'm just a comedic genius. It's that's it's fine. It's fine. But yeah, that Frankenstein inspiration mixed with the stuffed toy inspiration, kind of coming together and looking all stitched together and torn like torn apart and then restitched together, is just so perfect and works so well together. And so that's just another example of one of those things. that once you see it together, you're like, oh yeah, duh. Also, ghost fighting is a sick type combination that only Marshadow has. I'm pretty sure. So be really cool to see it incorporated into like a regular mon, a non-legendary or mythical mon, or even a regional variant like this. Next up, we have Rober and Ragnum. Oh my goodness. Huge, huge Tangela vibes. I'm honestly, when I'm looking at it, it kind of gives me the same uh, energy as that scrapped mon that I think like it eventually became Snowrun, right? 
there was that scrap mod that kind of looked like it had that like kind of pelt to it um that is it, the, the pose is evoking that for me um but i love these two they're so gen one feeling they just feel so gen one like this is a pokemon like it has it's giving me tangela vibes it's giving me that scrapped mon vibes as well it's, it's just like something that like th this is kind of concept i don't feel like they would do nowadays i will say there's just a little too much detail going on there with all the different clothes that are incorporated in there i don't think that would have been able to incorporate into a gen one game you know kind of like just too many colors but Besides that, I think the it just the aesthetic and the vibe in general, it's giving off very, very much uh what was I saying? Oh yeah, Gen 1. Next up we have Filuff and Duffelast, and oh my god. <laughs> These things are so great. It's a reference to a pillow fight. I love that. The, the fighting fairy type. And it's giving me massive Kirby vibes with Falaf. Um Duffelast is great. You know, that whole vibe of you would like put, you know, strap the pillars to yourself in case they, I mean, a lot of kids, they, you know, in typical media, they would like put pillows all over themselves in a little helmet before they do anything dangerous, right? Um, it's that same kind of energy to it. Um, but I just, the like, pillow fights mixed with like, you know, pillow armor and you, this, this concept is so incredibly clever. I really, really enjoy it. Next up, we've got Diglett and Doug Trio in their ground fairy type based on star nose moles. That's just adorable. It's just like, like a little simple change. Just a tiny little simple change to make it feel all the difference. Because, you know, the star nose mole, it's literally a star. Then, you know, star nose mole isn't a perfect star, but these are perfect stars. And stars associated with the fairy type in space. You know, Clefairy kind of associated with the moon. Um, so adding that fairy type in there makes a lot of sense. And I like the little whiskers they gave to Doug Trio. Brilliant. Really, really well done. Next up, we've got Skiddo and Muscoat. Oh, baby. I like that. I like that a lot. Oh, Muscoat is ice poison. I thought it would be ice steel, especially based on the coloration. But um, wow, I really enjoy that ice type Skiddo. Wow, 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 wow. I love the fluffy kind of vibe it has going on to it. And Muscoat, I'm assuming it's kind of musk, like it's some kind of musky goat. Like I don't know if there's some uh, species of ghost uh, ghost a species of goat that has like a particular strong musk that this is based on but i enjoy it it does look a little derpy to me i know that the eyes are both facing the same direction but to me it kind of looks like they're facing opposite directions i don't know maybe it's a perspective thing um but i yeah this is just a solid line solid uh skiddo regional variant and regional evolution next up we've got tinderin marmoset and lion kong all pure fire that's awesome it's based on a, a tamarind i'm pretty sure a marmoset um and then like maybe a lion what's the word a lion tailed macaque i'm pretty sure that's the name of it lion tailed macaque but instead they've actually mixed in full-on a lion inspiration like it looks like part lion part monkey and that's cool especially because you're mixing in that fire type which the fire type has kind of that flowy you know kind of flareon vibe going on here with that where it has that kind of flowy fiery hair also the monster hunter fan of me is screaming like rajong blanganga you know those kind of monkey-esque monsters that gives me that same feeling next up we've got limstone marblock and gore granite and this is great it's nick it's a mixture of gargoyle which these are the gargoyles from the gyms which i love that like you know giving a little bit of lore to these you know statue pokemon that we've been seeing this whole time but also limstone and Gar or marblock are great they're little tower like block pokemon i think that's great i do i would say i think gorgranite is i don't know if they're part of the same line or if they're supposed to be they feel a little too disconnected for me. I'm not sure if he like put some of these on the same page that were just like, hey, these ones are rock type and this one's also rock type. So maybe put it on the same page. They do feel a little disconnected. I'm not certain if they're supposed to be a part of the same evolutionary line. Um, I It doesn't feel like it to me, but regardless, both of the, all the, all three of these mods are really, really cool. I, 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 there's not much more to say about them. They're just really cool. Next up, we've got Eevee and a new evolution, Dungeon. And oh my gosh duh like i have never seen that name used for a dragon type before because guess where dragons hang out dungeons dungeons and dragons why has no one done this before this is brilliant i think the design of the of the evolution itself is pretty cool for some reason i can't put my finger on it but it just feels slightly over designed but i don't i can't think of a thing to take away from it to make it feel a little less over designed because everything feels like 
it fits the de overall design i don't i don't know maybe i'm just talking out of my butt here probably um usually am um but i think it's solid the name and the design itself are both very very solid and i i, I just love the name dungeon i just i love it we've got ourselves armorillo which is rock steel type and then howitzar which is also rock steel type oh my god how it's our oh my god how how it's sore i should say it's how it's sore oh my gosh that's so great uh so that's an ar ar armadillo that evolves into an ankylosaurus i'm pretty sure it's supposed to be which is 100 percent giving me digimon uh armadillomon evolving into digmon or not digmon but uh ankylomon love that um but armorillo also has this kind of like ball and chain on behind it I love this. I I like what I love too is that Armorillo's little ball and chain evolves in kind of, of a mace on Howitzar. Also, it's named after a Howitzer, which I'm pretty sure is a type of cannon. Um, brilliantly done, brilliantly done, and it it kind of the face of Howitzar is giving me like Kangaskhan with the ears. So I adore it. I simply adore this line. Next up, we have Jalabrihe and uh, Habanata. Um, I'm pretty sure there's a. a I, the the, the Brihe part of that name is sounding fairly very familiar like Alabrihe I'm pretty sure that are those like are those a kind of uh forest sprite or something like that um I'm I, the name sounds very familiar to me um but mixing it with pinatas is awesome also the grass fire typing for a pinata Pokemon like yeah it's you know like the red yellow and 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 uh green all make sense in a pinata format so I think that, that that's a super smart, super clever of of uh, Lugio to do that. And yet again, it's an object Pokemon because it, it looks like it looks like a horse and then some kind of like monster of some kind. Uh, but it, it it's still an object Pokemon because it's a pinata. So really, really clever. Next up, we have Criscoll and Calatrina. And my goodness, Criscoll is such a giga brain name. Criscoll. Like the crystal skull also it's a crystal skull a part of this I, I think it might be um but there's their ghost rock type and calatrina has calavera as its name calavera skull in spanish like those kind of um uh deal de los muertos looking skulls that's that's like a calavera i'm pretty sure that's what that's called but um they're also based on the sugar skulls themselves um with the designs that they have embedded in them um and it goes rock type i'm pretty sure maybe rock it the rock typing is also a reference to rock candy so overall just the combination of concepts there's so many different concepts like that are working together here and they work together in such a uh, a way with such finesse and grace and i love that about it next up we have love disc and a new evolution cupidisc and that makes so much sense cupidisc as well as it is a bow for a bow and arrow because of cupid and it has a little tiny little like mini love disc follower that looks like an arrow the end of an arrow incredibly clever evolution to love disc i i you know love disc has been one of those mons that's just like what did why why does this mon exist you know because like it's based at totals are not great it doesn't evolve w what was the purpose of love disc you know besides it, it feels like such a filler mon so making this evolution is just perfect i i really hope that love disc gets an evolution in the near future who knows maybe this will age well and gen 9 will give us a love disc evolution maybe i don't know next up we got torkoal and it's a new evolution smell torque which is fire steel type and my goodness gracious is this so so good torkoal is another one of those mods that i felt like should have probably gotten an evolution and this is such a great way of doing it it's got fire steel type because of it. it's called smell torque it's based on a smelter um but as well as it has this kind of armor kind of blacksmithy looking um kind of aesthetic going on to it as well as you know those little you know those little uh, uh, hexagonal divots in torkoal's back well they've been turned into these little divots on the back as well as the bands around its neck and arms of of torkoal have been turned into these kind of like gauntlet looking or like armor armored shoes almost I am just so impressed by this evolution. I'm very genuinely impressed and I really like it. I would have Torkoal on my team in the Mezzo region just simply to get Smell Torque. I know that makes two fire types on my team, but you know what? Whoever said I was good at team balancing. Next up, we've got Flangolf and Flamengriff. Bro, 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 bro. Oh my gosh, I adore this concept. A freaking Flamingo Griffin? are you joking me 
I genuinely don't think I've ever seen this kind of concept explored before, and I'm so in awe of it. Like, it looks so graceful, and it fits so well. It doesn't, like, you know, you'd think, like, a flamingo with four legs would feel a little bit weird, but it doesn't. And it just, like, the flames kind of mixing into it gives me kind of a phoenix vibe, as well as that that griffin and the, the flamingo all come together super well. I will say, even, you know, I'll comment on the pre-evolution. Flengulf is also really cool looking. It kind of gives me ducklet energy, like... This almost feels like a rival to Ducklet and Swana as far as that kind of, you know, ugly duckling story. Um, you know, Swana and Ducklet are water flying. And this one's fire fairy. So it kind of feels like they could be rivals. I genuinely think I'm going to have to be like a fire type gym leader in Mezzo because all of these fire types are absolute bangers. Next up, we've got Burmaid and Laguna. And wow, wow. I like how its name is Laguna, like not L-A-G-U-N-A. -A. It's like L-A-G-O-O-N-A, -O -O like Lagoo, like as in goo or as in goon. I think that's super clever. And it's got this whole swamp monster vibe to it. Um, I like how Burmaid is this cutesy little thing, and it kind of looks like it's supposed to have the mermaid's tail out of its hair, but then it evolves into this swamp monster that's completely gross. It's kind of like a reverse uh, Feebas to Milotic, where it starts off really cutesy and kind of pretty looking, and then it turns into this complete monster. I love that. I might have to put this on my team. I, I just want so many of these mods on my team. I, I'm really enjoying all of them. Next up, we've got Searied and Mersteed. Water to water fairy. And they're based on seahorses. Searied kind of looks like an eel mixed with a seahorse. But then we've got Mersteed, excuse me, which I think is based on a hippocampus. I'm pretty sure that's what it's called. Um, and that's really cool. A hippocampus Pokemon, um, water fairy type, the fairy type being, you know, referencing the kind of mythical nature of a hippocampus, you know, a water horse. Um, really cool and really good way of differing it from the already existing seahorse Pokemon, the horsey line. Um, so yeah, I, I think it's cool. I, you know, it's, it's not my favorite, but you know, it's, I, I think it's impressive. Next up, we've got Vegetee and Hydralis, which are water and then water ghost. And I <laughs> just... <laughs> I don't know. There are no words anymore for the, how like cute these mons are. I, like, I literally can't describe them besides cute and adorable because half these mons are. I don't know how I feel about it being water, not water grass, because like vegety, like vegetation, and then hydralis is water ghost and hydro, like hydralis, hydraulics. I, I don't know. From something in me here is like steel type, so it's like water grass, water steel. That wouldn't make sense anyway. I'm not certain about the water ghost type, but I assume it's probably because of, um, you know, manatees having that issue with um, getting scraped on the back by boats, um, as well as maybe it's a reference to kind of like how Cursula has the um, dead coral. So maybe if the coral mixing in with that whole manatees, you know, endangerment issue, maybe that's the whole vibe going on here. Um, not my favorite design in the world. I think that there's a little too much in the coral. Um, Vegetee is simple enough. I think I think that's good, but I think Hydralis is just a little bit over designed, but I still like the concept in and of itself. It's a solid concept. Next up, we got Poison, Nauseum, and then Fearsome. Those names, dude. Poison normal type for one. Awesome. Um, I think that's great. I just the names, dude. The names really make this line for me. Like the design is pretty simple. The concept also pretty simple. You know, it's a possum that's a poison type, poison. Um, but like the, the names, like po Poison and Nauseam and then Fearsome, that's that, that's just so good. Um, and it's kind of giving me like, you know, the striped pattern of Fearsome is giving me that kind of like robber, kind of uh, criminal behind bars, black and white, you know, robed thing. I, that's like long gone by now. Like mostly prison uniforms are like orange now. Um, you know, orange is the new black kind of thing but this line is really cool giving us a new type combo with poison normal type and doing it in a really fun way next up we've got Vuju, Amin, Amin Sense, and then Hora Specs. that is ghost poison ghost poison and then ghost psychic I will not lie to you Vuju's eyes are incredible giving me like Digimon eyes Digimon have those like 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 a like a rookie not a rookie but like an in training stage or even baby stage it's in training. Yeah, no, in training. It could give me it's giving me in training stage Digimon um, with that kind of like the, those big eyes. And I, that I could I could definitely see. I don't like did for me comparing something to a Digimon is not an insult in any regard. Like there are some not super overly complex Digimon. I think a lot of the 
um, common consensus is that if you call something a Digimon, it means it's overdesigned. That's not necessarily true, especially with like the rookie and in training forms of, of Digimon. They're very kind of simplistically designed, a lot of them. Some of them are very complex, but Vuju definitely gives me that kind of in training or even baby Digimon um, vibe to it. But I think the whole line, like giving it like that voodoo, uh, you know, voodoo witch is really, really cool. It also, Vuju looks like, uh, to me, it kind of looks like Scrump, um, uh, Lilo's little, um, what's the word? Her little doll that she makes from uh, Lilo and Stitch. All of this is really just cute. It's a cute way of doing a kind of interesting concept next up we've got delphian and it's a water psychic type i'm pretty sure this is a, some kind of river dolphin um really interesting i think it's just kind of simple it just kind of looks to me like a dolphin drawn in a pokemon style i don't really understand the psychic typing besides the coloration um i feel like there should be something a little bit more to this but um i mean a dolphin pokemon I really want it, so I mean it's an A plus in my book. Next up, we've got Flow Wilder, and this is Grass Psychic type. This thing is straight up wild looking, and honestly, I think it's a really bit overdesigned. And you know how I said that Digimon are not kind of overdesigned in certain ways. This is a Digimon that this feels straight up like a Digimon to me, even the, down to the art style, that kind of thick line and the eye, um, mixed with the kind of like a little bit overdesignedness of it for at least for a Pokemon. Um, I think it's cool. It's a fun concept, but there's just a little bit too much going on. Next up, we've got Giltek and Sholoro, and I'm pretty sure they're based on um, Mayan and Aztec warriors, as well as the Sholo dogs. Um, the, I think that's incredibly clever. Sholo dogs are kind of gray already, so it kind of leans into that steel typing, but they add in this kind of uh, weaponry. I'm pretty sure that's a weapon. Uh, that's a specific weapon. I, I can't remember the name of it. It's a, pre it's a pretty, pretty long uh, weapon name but it's like essentially this wooden panel with like obsidian blocks in it um and it's super devastating and so i think the this is a i, I honestly would have this on my team it's it's I, I it almost it's supposed to feel like lucario in a way but it also is kind of just so different from lucario as far as the kind of um bipedal dog pokemon and i wouldn't even call it fur bait at this point because it just it, i don't think it doesn't give me that kind of aesthetic to it it just kind of feels like a very serious warrior dog pokemon next up we've got dragonda and amazonda and perfect perfect i'm pretty sure these are supposed to be supposed to be based on the quetzalcoatl um and that's great and i like the, oh my god i just noticed this the amazonda's patterns that like patterning on the back of it is just very like uh, Mayan, Aztec, kind of that feeling, that kind of ancient, um, uh, that ancient Mesoamerican feeling to it. And I love that they're pure dragon. They're not dragon poison. They're just pure dragon because I'm pretty sure anacondas aren't poisonous. I'm pretty sure that's like the thing. Like they use their size to kill their prey and like they're constricting. Um, and I love that. I, I really, it's simple. Um, it's, a, it's, it's, it's giving me like Ekans Arbok, you know, like, it, like it's like it's that simple snake bond you see why it's the type it is um and then it evolves into something with a little bit of an extra flair to it next up we've got aptiki and oculi and oculi is staring into the very depths of my soul and it's making me a little bit uncomfortable um i don't i don't know how i feel about it i'm looking away from it because i don't want it to look it's, it's it's looking at me isn't it it's 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 looking right at me isn't it these are really cool though i like i like the optiki like uh, optiki uh, it's, it's optiki isn't it or because it's optic you know plus tiki and then oculi oculus plus um ii really cool um the designs are simple but they get the point across next up we've got judojo and jitsudo um <laughs> I think the using the headband as like its fists is such an interesting little uh, design element to these. I think that's really clever and fun. It's giving me Ryu and Ken from uh, Street Fighter in that way. Um, I I will say a like the, though the designs are fairly different. I don't think this serves kind of the same purpose as Sock and Throw in my opinion. Um, or even Hitmonchan and uh, Hitmonlee. Like, you know, Sock and Throw were supposed to be kind of the same thing as Hitmonlee and Hitmonchan for Gen 5. So it's another one of those where it's kind of like redundant in a way, but still cute. Next up, we've got Terrawatt and Electerror. I like this. It's a dinosaur Pokemon that isn't actually a fossil, and I think that's really cool. Um, this is kind of what I imagined that the electric type fossil, like the uh, the Zolts of, of the Galar fossils, 
would be kind of a, a, a pterodon or a, a pteranodon, excuse me, a pterodactyl or something like that. But these are really cool. I like the incorporation of a lightning bolt into its face and its like kind of crest. Very clever, simple way of incorporating the design without being too crazy. Also, I just noticed its wings are also lightning bolts. So just three little lightning bolts. You get the point. It's a it's a it's a, a pterodactyl or pteranodon mixed with a, li a lightning thing. It's simple and effective. Next up, we've got Dartuna and Javerlin, and it's water to water steel. I like that. Water steel is a cool type combo. Um, but as far as the design goes, simple for Dartuna. Just kind of that you know typical fish Pokemon. I will say its fins look like the little the little tab on a like a like a Coke can, like a soda can. Um, that's what that looks like to me. I'm not sure. Or, oh, is it the little tab to a, to a, like a tuna, like a tuna can? Is that what that's supposed to be? That's clever. Javarlin, really cool. It's almost got like a trident or not, not even a trident, like a sigh, you know, like, uh, like, uh, Raphael's sigh from Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Um, that's kind of giving me that energy. And it's, it's just another simple incorporation of the steel type that makes sense. Next up, we have Natsu and a regional Zatsu, which is now Psychic Fighting, and it plays into that whole Native American inspiration because there is that North America part of the Mezzo region, like that, that inspiration in there. And I think it's cool. It it kind of has more of a uh, of the tan tone to it, which is kind of giving me like, it almost looks like a teepee. I would, I would like spread out its like, it almost looks like a dress that like mixed with the teepee, mixed with the totemness of Zatsu and I think it works really well. Next up, we've got Thumbelow and Victor. That is that's so interesting. So it's an electric fighting type buffalo mixed with like a Viking inspiration, mixed with Thor and Mjolnir. It looks like it's got a Thunderstone in its hammer. That's interesting. Um, I don't know 100% how, it, like, it, I, I, I think it's cool. You kind of have the buffalo inspiration because, you know, buffaloes roam in the US and America. That is kind of a thing. You know, the home where the buffaloes roam and the deer and the antelope. Yeah, whatever. Anyway, um, the Viking inspiration is is good. Like, you, not everything in a given region needs to be exactly it, based on its inspiration. You know, you do have buffaloes here and they added in a Viking inspiration. So I still think it's cool. I do think Thumbelow and Victor, it kind of feels just like Thumbelow got a hammer and then grew out its beard a little bit and then got a cape, you know? It's, it's, I guess it's that like Sinchino to Minchino kind of evolution style. Next up, we've got Dedene and it has an evolution of oh, a creator after my own heart. It's got Antinope. I love that name because Dedene is based on Antennae. And so then you just add in the Jackalope inspiration in there. And so it's got antenna horns and it just works so well. I, these concepts just come together so, so perfectly and um, I love how different his Dedene evolution is from mine, and it's it's just so fun. I just this region is so fun. Okay, let's let's keep going. Next up, we've got a new Gumi regional uh, line, and this was again. I'm gonna state this again. This was before Hisui, so no one be like, oh Hisui. Yeah. Anyway, it's Dragon Fairy type, and it's based on the uh, the Sea Dragon, the blue. I'm pretty sure it's blue Sea Dragon. Um, and to me, I don't know how I feel about the Fairy typing for this. Um, fairy typing feels a little bit misattributed for this. I feel like it would be water type. It's like, if you're going to make uh, it based on the blue dragon, I feel like it's just, the blue dragon is a aquatic, you know, kind of slug. Um, and it's blue, so it's like, kind of just feels water typey to me. Uh, maybe I would have done a different kind of slug inspiration. Be that being said, these designs are freaking stellar. They're so cool. I They really, 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 really work well um, on Tsugumi. I know I had the... Uh, Gumi that was dragon water type in my Gumi of every type. That was also based on the blue sea dragon. And um, everybody's been asking me, where's Sligu and Gudra? Well, you know, here's what that one would probably look like at least. Next up, we've got Numbril and Urquil. And this is cute. They're based on lionfish, but they also mixed in a cat. And that's really clever. Poison, poison, dark, uh, because lionfish are particularly very poisonous. Um, the dark typing, I'm not getting 100%. Uh, regardless, I think I love the idea of lionfish mixed with lion. We had it in a uh, fake man's uh, region, and it, it th I, th I just thought that was super clever. And I think that this concept is different enough uh, from that, you know, kind of concept that it makes it really cool and unique. Next up, we've got Tar Pit and Oliquid. 
and it's ground uh, pure ground i would have made it ground poison ah this is a perfect pokemon for ground poison type um but i love the name it's tar pet I, I said tar pit but it's tar pet like as in a tar pit tar like a tar pit pet that's great and then all liquid oil liquid I, I admit i said this so wrong oil liquid man i said their name so wrong but it's kind of giving me like uh eldritch monster oil monster like it's it's mixing in like kind of the oil from the ground oh that makes sense oil comes from the ground brandon i just i still would have done the ground poison type it's it's like they're mixing in like kind of the oil the tar pits all that kind of thing comes together I just feel like poison type really works well for that i don't know that's just me next up is kataiga and katundra ice steel type <laughs> sorry i'm having a mental break here kataiga is so adorable and then katundra is so freaking epic it's the cute epic dynamic that's what i'm calling it cute epic dynamic if you see me in future region reviews there's gonna have a be a cute epic dynamic and this definitely has that it's got the little it's not overly designed you can see feel the steel type from its steely fangs um and it's kind of steely white coloration mixing in with that i don't know the the, the tundra part the ice part where it's got these like fractally patterns in its fur perfect next up we've got iceros and glacieros and they're both fighting ice type and i'm thinking that these might actually both be the fossils uh katundra and glacieros might be the fossils and but instead of fossils they're the ice age that's kind of a concept that's been done um, in a few different regions um so this is really cool going for that ice age thing i think this is supposed to be based on the elasmatherium um the, that big unicorn woolly woolly mammoth with like a big unicorn horn pretty sure that's what this is based on but I think it's really cool. You kind of kind of see that fighting typing kind of looks like it's got this armory vibe to it, this armored vibe, and it looks like it's going to charge and that, you know, fighting typing. And it's another example of those quadrupedal fighting types that I really like. Next up, we've got Volbeat and a new evolution, Flylight, which is bug electric type. And it's cool. It's leaning more into the greaser vibe um you know kind of volby it's supposed to be kind of based on that kind of greaser thing but we're going more in a direct way and it's giving me elvis and i like that they connected the uh um the the antennae to make it kind of look like a light bulb um which you know light bulbs have that little you know part in the middle uh, at least the older light bulbs have not leds anymore but it's really cool and it's a very fitting evolution to volbeat i and it's a bug electric type is really cool i think i see a lot of bug fighting evolutions for volbeat but i think a bug, bug electric type works really well i'm assuming we're gonna get an Illumise. yep we've got Illumise, and it evolves into flylight as well so i guess this is a flylight female version and i guess it's a a case of conversion evolution where Illumise and volbeat you know evolve into the same thing but just just a you know a different you know under a different name i kind of feel like um that's kind of the same thing with Nidoking and Nidoqueen. Like, they're the, you know, same kind of Mon, but they just are named different things. Um, but yeah, also that bug electric typing. And it's kind of looks like it's got um, its antennae are hairpins, but it all they also look like the inside of a light bulb as well. Uh, I like the cute little shades it has. It looks like it's it, instead of rather than a, like more of a flapper girl, good girl kind of thing, it kind of looks like it's also leaning into more of a greaser thing, kind of like a Sandy from Greece where, you know, good girl gone you know bad and then there's the reverse where there's the bad guy gun good um in greece at least but anyway next up we've got kwansla which is poison electric and this thing is giving me huge chaos from sonic vibes except like an electric type and just like this electric goop that like it's something like something straight out of mario like where you would like step in this goop but it's like electrified goop like that that it gives me that kind of energy to it like that that aspect of mario mixed with that aspect of sonic is sonic and mario at the mezzo olympics it's really cool it's a creature i'm pretty sure it's supposed to is it some kind of legendary i, I wonder if it's some kind of legendary or mythical pokemon because it's very like kind of single stage so I, that's another thing i just noticed that i i don't think i've seen saw much of is single stage pokemon in this region that's one detail i think that alugio might have missed out on but next up we've got spudnot and Phototon. They're both pure electric, and this thing is so adorable. It's giving me like Eve vibes from uh from Wally. -E. I love that. I love that about it so much. So it like it takes it's just this little robot that evolves into a satellite. That's adorable. Oh, I'm looking at the description. It says it goes from Sputnot to Phototon, Mariton, Terraton, and Avaton. So is I guess this is gonna be kind of like a Rodomon? And we do, we have Mariton, like, like it said in the thing, it's a little submersible, a little tiny submarine, and that's super cute. Uh, let's see, is there... Yep, there's Terraton, which I guess is based on the uh, space exploration, the, uh, what, what are they called? The 
the space vehicles that, what are they called the all-terrain vehicles that space terrain vehicles the ones that are on mars you know what i'm trying to say the electric ground type though that makes a whole lot of sense because it's on the ground exploring and then we have avaton <laughs> avaton the last airbender wow oh my gosh that works because it's flying type when the world needed it most it flew away <laughs> But uh, Avaton, like I said, is electric flying type, and it's based on planes, and that's cool. I love Spotnot. This is such a clever little concept. A little robot that evolves into different technologies. Super cute. I will say, I wish Phototon had been electric steel type, because it kind of makes more sense to me. I don't know why you would have, like, one form that was pure type, but the rest of them are dual types. I don't know. Next up, we've got Aisling, Oregal, and Quenzuru. Ooh. So we have a, a Birdmon that evolves into like kind of um, like a, uh, what's the word? Uh, a Garuda, um, like though, though, or, or there's, there's, there's a version of it in Japanese mythology as well, but like kind of that bird, half bird, half man um, kind of thing going on, like Angel from, uh, from X-Men. Um, fairy flying type, that makes, that makes sense. It kind of looks like a superhero, it really does. Um, it's got like the mask of, on Aisling and then Oregal also has it. I, I, is Oregon supposed to be like origami? Like, is it supposed to be like origami? Um, oh, it looks like this thing is Aisling female. So is I guess there's going to be a male version. We do. We have Aisling male and it's look at. Oh, I'm just noticing that the little legs kind of have like an origami fold to them. Um, and then we have Oriel. Like, is that supposed to be like Oriel or, or origami or royal? Maybe royal. It's supposed to be like a royalty. Um, and then we have Kinzaru, which is fairy dark type. Oh, I just got it. I just got it. These are these are spades and hearts. It's it's this one's based on spades. The other one's based on hearts, uh, blacks and reds, the, you know, of cards. Um, and it, it's a king and queen of hearts and spades. Oh, my gosh. It's it's all coming together. It, OK, that makes a lot of sense. But yeah, it's kind of it's still giving me that kind of superhero uh, energy to it as well as like king superhero mixed together. That's a really cool concept. I like that. It's the it's that Nido King, Nido Queen kind of thing going on there that I really enjoy. I, I think that kind of um, concept doesn't really get explored a lot in the fake my community or even in as uh, like Pokemon really hasn't explored that kind of concept since has have they like a huge split divergent evolution based on gender uh, like three stages like that. Next up we've got Tapiro and it is a fire psychic type and I'm pretty sure this one is supposed to be one of the legends of the region. There's like there's the, these are the last three I'm pretty sure of the region. I, I could see these kind of guys at the top. I didn't look into them too much but it's a tapir mixed with a pyro fire. Um, it's it's kind of a little bit basic for a legend. I won't lie. It's the design is a little bit simplistic for a legendary Pokemon. Um, uh, I mean, that being said, there's very simple legends like Mew and Mewtwo. So I can't be too judgmental in that department. But I don't know. Something about it doesn't feel quite legendary to me. But I, I don't know, maybe that's just me. Next up, we have Jungwar, which is Jaguar plus jungle plus war, I guess. Maybe Jungwar, maybe. I don't know. I'm not sure. Uh, but it's ground psychic type. It, it's really cool. It's it's reminding me of that giant like Jaguar statue that Chase Miguel, Miguel and Tulio in, uh, in El Dorado at the very end. It very much reminds me of that. And I love that movie and I love that statue. I thought that statue was super cool, super neat. A monster design and this evokes that for me and i really like it um again i say i'd say it's a little simple i think this is better than tapiro as far as feeling like a legendary pokemon because it kind of has that kind of blocky like very like like statuesque feeling to it i mean that's me think also thinking of the statue from the movie but still it kind of has that 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 pose to it next up we've got Escari and it's ice psychic type and i don't know man i like this this one i think this is one of the most like disappointing designs to me it just feels like a monkey that got like ice eyes you know it doesn't it doesn't feel like a pokemon per se it kind of just feels like a, a monkey with a little bit of an eskimo um mixed in there but it, it it just feels a little too simplistic to me that's i i, I would say like a little bit of a uh it kind of sucks because it feels like we didn't stick the landing as far as the legendaries like the rest of this region was stellar but the, the legends feel like they kind of fell flat a little bit a little bit for me but there is one more legendary that isn't on their instagram um that i know is on their um is on their deviant art so we're gonna check that out real quick the final mon of the mezzo region is mu Three, and it is a dark type i think this concept is incredibly cool they made it feel different enough from Mewtwo and Mew itself and gave it a dark, like an entirely new type, typing. 
Um, so I think it's really cool. It kind of uh, combines aspects of Mewtwo and Mew3. It got a more sleek design, uh, more, even more jagged and like edgy to get, uh, really evoke that dark typing. Um, it feels like a mistake, like um, that when they were trying to, maybe they were trying to replicate Mewtwo and then Mew3 was born. Um, and it's just like at all, it, it's like, it's like Mewtwo's rampage, but Mewtwo didn't come to understand humans and he just completely demolished everything like like that th th this is like the darkest timeline for Mewtwo is what that feeling I, uh, the feeling I get from it this is just a very very cool design and that was the mezzo region so make sure to let me know what you think what your favorite mon was and maybe what your team would be if you enjoyed this video please make sure to hit that like button subscribe and hit that notification bell to support this channel and keep up to date with future videos thank you so much to Lugio for letting me review this region it was really awesome and thank you guys so much for watching. And with that, I will see you guys next time. Hey everyone, Brandon here. Welcome back to another region review where we review different regions around the Fakemon community. Today we are going to be reviewing the Kianos region by my good friend Malmistex over on Instagram. This is Malmus's first Fakemon region and we will be reviewing his second one later this month. As I said in the intro, this region is based on the island of Crete in Greece. And I can hear what you're saying, Brandon, didn't you already do a Greece region review? Yeah, but this is an island in Greece and it's a different artist and it's, you know what, just get off my case, okay? I actually haven't seen too much of both Malmus's regions, especially the first one because I've been trying to save it for you know this video anyway let's hop into this region and our grass starter is Politad. i'll be completely honest in that there's a lot of redundancies here for one it sounds like it's a member of the polywag family i mean Politad, polywag you know sounds kind of similar also it's a grass frog starter and we already have bulbasaur as far as design, I do really like it. I like how the head shape kind of makes an apple with a little leaf coming out of it. And then the legs look like little music notes, almost like eighth notes. The proportions are very in line with the modern starters, you know, have a head that's almost as big as its body. For our fire starter, we have Kaffire. This thing is freaking adorable. I think it's so cute. I really like we have a fire ox Pokemon. This is clearly in line with the fire zodiac, even though that is no longer a thing. Just for all those people that are going to get mad at me about the Fire Zodiac in the comments, I know they're coming, so... I love Catfire. I think this thing's super cute. I can't wait to see how it evolves. For our water starter, we have Bublinx, and this is so interesting. It is a Lynx water type. I think this is super fun and unique because usually starters are some kind of semi-aquatic animal, whether that be a mammal, amphibian, or reptile. I love the vibes it gives off. It's giving me that same kind of cuteness factor that Fennekin did. It also looks like red from Animal Crossing, which just makes me like it more. As far as base stages, I'm in between Bublinx and Catfire for which one I would pick. Politad evolves into Folly Frog. I actually really like this evolution. It is a big departure from the Bulbasaur line, which I like. It looks like he's slowly becoming some kind of maestro. Maybe he'll be grass normal type. Next up, we have Brassox, and it's a fire steel type. Yo, that's sick. He's still kind of cute, but it has like that serious energy to him, which I really enjoy. I'm thinking we're going to get a Minotaur Pokemon here, and I love Minotaur Pokemon. I just think that's such a fun concept, and I would love to see it explored in the actual games. It's got this Gladiator armor, which explains its steel type, but I like the idea of Minotaur plus Gladiator. That's really fun and unique. Bubbling evolves into Posse, and it looks like it's getting some kind of, like, idol elements to it. Almost like it's going to be some kind of, like, I don't know, Japanese idol Pokemon, maybe? I don't know. I really like the color combinations in this one because it has like pinks and blues and whites and purples and they all meld together really well. Follyrog evolves into Piperog and it is pure grass type, no grass normal. You know, normal is typically associated with sound based moves, so I figured grass normal, but pure grass also makes sense, I suppose. I could definitely see this thing learning grass whistle. I like the design. It almost feels like a dark type to me, the way it's like scowling at me. I feel like it could be grass dark, maybe. I don't know. Brassox evolves into Hephaestox. I really like the Greek god inspiration, Hephaestus, you know, god of fire and like smithing. The fire steel type makes a lot of sense for this. I will say I don't like the face. The face doesn't feel like a cow to me. It feels very humanoid, just like almost too humanoid. Like it, it almost looks like it doesn't have a nose because of the way that the uh, nose is drawn along with the like the the lines on its nose you know what I'm saying I guess what I'm saying is I wish that the nose was a little bit more protruded to make it feel more like a cow the rest of the design I love though I really like the armored appearance mixing in with that minotaur aspect like I was expecting it to posse evolves into neck queen a water psychic type and it's definitely got that kind of pop idol aesthetic that I was thinking it would I will say I really like this design but it feels like a huge departure from posse 
like the only real similarity I see design wise is the little dress it has is kind of similar to the tail that Posse had if you had told me this Pokemon was a part of a separate evolution line I probably would have believed you despite that I would still pick this as my starter because I think it has the coolest evolution line of the three even though it doesn't quite make the most sense I still like it a lot first up we've got our route one rodent and it is Plumbit the mascot Pokemon this is one of the few mons I have seen from Maumess and I know how it evolves and I'm pretty sure it's based on Tanuki Mario it's definitely adorable it kind of looks like Winnie the Pooh to me which just makes it even cuter Plumbit evolves into Plumster and yep full-on Mario full-on Tanuki all incorporated into one design this thing is freaking adorable I can't even lie next up we have our root one bird which is Hoopek and this is a dapper little guy I love its little bow tie and like kind of like the staff pale is that supposed to be like a musical staff as its tail I seriously just love how dapper this thing is and I cannot wait to see how it evolves ah. Hoop pop I I love that oh my goodness gracious <laughs> I can't stop laughing this thing this thing had such a brought such a reaction out of me it went from this like nerdy little dapper kid to this pop punk bird it kind of reminds me of a roadrunner in terms of appearance with this kind of like spikier hair and like the more ground-based look to it it looks like hoopop has another stage to it hoopesan or hoopesan I don't know how to pronounce it it looks like it grew out of its punk phase though so now it's just like this mature adult orchestral musician kind of vibe going on as far as theming this is what I feel like a chat hot evolution might be like next up we have striper which looks like some kind of electric cat Pokemon maybe a tiger of some kind or like a leopard I'm not sure but I really like the coloration the blue really pops against the black and yellow I like its electric-y static-y lightning bolt tail kind of reminds me of Gigantamax Pikachu in that way striper evolves into dandelite it's like a dandy lion Dan is it, is it like a dandy liger like <laughs> it's like a tiger mixed with a lion mixed with a dandy lion mixed with lightning bolts and there's there's a lot of concepts going on here this is definitely a unique take on a dandy lion like dandy lion I've seen dandy lion Pokemons where it's like a grass type and the main is this you know kind of the same vibe but I've never seen it used as an electric type so that's definitely interesting I might throw it on the team but we'll have to see what else is available for us next up we have spite fawn and this dude is walking like haters gonna hate bro <laughs> it just looks like it doesn't have a care in the world and I just love that um I like the dark typing it's called the Cree Cree Pokemon I'm not sure what it is it's the Cree Cree like a mythological creature I'm not sure I just figured it was based on fawns given its name spite fawn evolves into venom malice oh my goodness the name I would have thought it would be a poison type but I like the dark fire type and this design is really cool this is the first one I can say a hundred percent I would want this on my team I mean I have the water starter and now we need some fire coverage next up we have tortoise and this thing is so cute oh my goodness he's just a little nerdy boy with a nightcap oh my gosh I don't feel like I've seen a lot of ice type tortoise Pokemon so this is pretty unique to me tortoise evolves into skisicle and my goodness this thing is adorable I love its specs and then the mountain on its back and then it looks like it all comes together to be like a bobsled which these combinations of concepts come together in a really fun and unique way I'm tempted to say I'm tempted to put this on the team I know ice types are particularly weak but honestly this is such a cool concept next up we have Petalong which I'm assuming is supposed to be the regional bug it's a dragon like Pokemon so that's why it doesn't have the bug dragon type but maybe it will evolve to have the bug dragon type I love how this is based on those insects that make themselves look like tougher things than they are like caterpillars and mods often do Petalong evolves into Bubba turn which is the cocoon form and it looks like a paper lantern which I think is a really fun take on a cocoon form especially given the dragon inspiration of its previous stage this line so far is giving off a very Chinese feeling to it which some people would probably complain about given the fact that this is a Greece based region we're putting Chinese style things in here but you know Pokemon's pretty free like that there's lots of things in Pokemon that don't make sense for the region they're in like sock and throw being based on Oni yet being in an American region or having a giraffe and a Japan based region you know what I'm saying it wasn't until Alola that we saw a deck that was mostly made up of things that the region was inspired by Bubba turn evolves into Shengong and yes we have our first bug dragon type Pokemon I really like this I think it's interesting 
It kind of gives me the same vibes as Flygon. The long serpentine body of a dragon mixing with kind of like a long serpentine body of like some kind of centipede or millipede. Next up, we have our first regional form, and that is Kianosian Ditto. If you guys have watched this channel for a while, you'll know I'm not a really big fan of Ditto variants. I just think the concept's kind of useless. I mean, the entire point of Ditto is that it can transform into any Pokemon. So why would it have any reason to adapt to another region, given the fact that it can transform into anything? This variant is no exception to that opinion, but I will say that design is very cool I kind of like the digitized Pikachu look it has going on next up we have Geomoth and instant cop this thing is on the team a rock flying type it's not even a bug which I love rock flying types are a great type combination and the design itself is so cool next up is Fru Frutino Fru Frutino I'm not sure how to pronounce that it looks like it might be some kind of dragon fruit but it also kind of has like these tendrily hairs so maybe it's gonna be like a Medusa Pokemon it evolves into Yuri Vine and the hair is growing out I think we might be heading in a Medusa direction I like the pink and the green against each other that's a very very satisfying color combination yep we've got a grass psychic Viperusa I really like that that's super unique most Medusa Pokemon are just like some kind of pure poison type or poison dragon type but this is a grass psychic type that evolves from like a plant that's just a very Pokemon thing to do subverting your expectations about what a certain kind of concept will be executed as next up we have Hospray which I think is hostile plus Osprey which is a great name I will say it looks very similar to Hoot Hoot just like really similar design wise to the point where I can't overlook it it looks like the Hospray line is a male only evolution where the Viperusa line was a female only evolution so we're kind of getting a match here Osprey evolves into Barbite, which I think might be based on Peregrine Falcons and Mongols. I'm pretty sure that's what this is supposed to be based on because Mongolia is the birthplace of Falcon training, at least to my knowledge, which is actually a really interesting combination of concepts. We have our second regional variant and it is Kionosian Skitty and it is a pure steel type, which I really like. I really like the subtle changes that are made here, making things a little bit more spiky giving it kind of a sheen to it so it looks more metallic regional variants tend to have the slightest changes that make the biggest differences next is a regional Delcaddy, and I couldn't have asked for a more perfect evolution I think it's still got the subtlety of the changes while still being kind of a unique design next up we have Esquelf it is the warrior elf Pokemon and it looks like it has a lucky form and then a pawn form I'm not quite sure what to think of this it looks like maybe it might be based on leprechauns of some kind I mean just the like lucky form alone but I'm not sure what the pawn form is supposed to be based on maybe they're based on two different kinds of like pixies or sprites it looks like the lucky form evolves into a Paul elf which is based on the god Apollo and it is a fairy psychic type Apollo while being a god of the sun is also a god of music so this makes very much sense also I'm pretty sure there's like a lot of things about Apollo's harp I'm not sure if like Apollo has a harp I've just heard Apollo's harp before design wise I think this is really cool like the cape turning into the harp that it's playing is really interesting it looks like the pond form evolves into Artem Elf which is a fairy dark type and this concept is golden Apollo is the god of the sun and music and Artemis is the goddess of the moon and the hunt and they're twins so it would make sense for them to come from the same Pokemon and evolve in different branching ways. And the use of the kind of cape for both of these Pokemon, where one is a harp and the other is a bow and arrow, is just, ugh, just beautiful. Some insanely clever work here. This is, this is, this has got to be one of my favorite lines of the video so far. Next up, we have Baby, which is a normal fairy type, and uh, it's got a little belly button. Um, I hope that belly button doesn't turn into a bunch of weird mill tank udders. I guess we'll see. Oh, uh, Milkow. It's called the Pink Milk Pokemon. I will say this is just a very redundant concept when it comes to Miltank. Miltank is already a pink cow Pokemon with really weird nipples that make me uncomfortable. Next up, we have Tatchweb, which is like a spider mixed with a tennis racket. Now that I think about it, that's actually kind of clever because spiders weave a web and then this one weaves a tennis racket that it can bounce things with maybe I don't know in its dex entry it says it just uses it for traps but I don't know the body shape looks like a freaking tennis racket to me okay it was totally intentional we have sticko the bug grass type racket Pokemon and instead of a racket it looks like it uses these like mushrooms as kind of ping pong paddles it definitely looks like it's about to get into an intense ping pong match maybe it can use energy ball and use that as like a ping pong ball that would be kind of fun next up we have grubbard which is a poison flying type I am always a huge advocate for another poison flying type Zubat is the only one we have we can make more poison flying types people 
it looks like it might be a reference to oil spills and how the birds get the oil on them and it makes like pretty much impossible for them to fly definitely sad in reality but it makes for a cool pokemon so i mean I, there's that rubber evolves into wee punk whoa this thing is wild uh this <laughs> It definitely looks like a punk, that's for certain. I don't know if I'm a fan of the proportions. The body feels a little too thick to me, but it definitely looks like a poison flying type. I could even see a dark poison type, honestly. Next up, we have bad mice, uh, which is, is supposed to be a mixture of badger plus mouse. It just reads bad mice, which not my favorite name in the world, unless there's some kind of clever pun I'm missing out on. As far as design, it's an adorable little badger Pokemon, and I think this thing is super cute. It almost has like a sloth vibe to it with the way that its hands are hooked. It evolves into Jab Badger, which like, is that supposed to be like Jab, like Jab plus Badger? It continues to feel like a mix between a sloth and a badger, which is really interesting. This is also a very Pokemon thing to do with making two animals come together that seemingly don't have any relationship and then making it into this brand new creature. It reminds me of Appa from Avatar The Last Airbender, which kind of makes me like it more. Next up, we have Crabbit. This dude's intense. Guy Fieri who? Oh my gosh. While being super adorable, Crabbit also has this hot rod energy to it, which is super unique to put on a crab Pokemon, so I love that. Oh my goodness. We have Crabboom. I love that name. I love that concept. This dude looks like he's about to sell me some insurance, the general up in here. For a great low rate you can get online, go to Kraboom to save some time. I just love how one of its pincers is a straight up cannon. That's just great. Next up, we have Arctumbo, and this thing is a pure fairy type, but it looks like it's about to be a mind flayer of some kind. Holy crap. Yep, I called it. It's a fairy dark type mind flayer vampire Pokemon. It's based on a vampire squid. It's a vampire squid but also throws in a little bit of Mind Flayer energy into that. That is so good. Next up, we have Gladart. <laughs> Just a little dart fish Pokemon. I, I I don't have much to say about it. I think it's it's cute. Gladart evolves into Swoodlash. Now that's something to remark on. Holy good God, that thing is elegant. Wow. The way he's curved these lines around each other, making it look like his elegant rapier. And oh my God gosh that's so cool such a different take on a swordfish pokemon and i just love that it also looks like it could learn some fairy type moves which i always love when a design can evoke a different typing even though it has two typings already next we have <laughs> oh my god next we have kianosian smoochum which is a water fairy type i i don't there are no words the design speaks for itself i mean it's a it's a mermaid smoochum you you get you get it and now for kianosian jinx also a water fairy type this concept is great i just th this is just such it's just such fun honestly it's just a fun little concept and it's completely goofy in the best possible way next up we have wobblezer which is a ice water type whale that is a mountain as well this thing is sick I will say, I thought this was a Waylord variant at first, and it very much kind of feels that way to me. It could even be an evolution to Waylord, like a regional evolution. Overall, the design is super cool. Pun intended. Next up, we have Trovok. It's like a living Thunderstone, which is super cool. Like, I like the idea of, like, Pokemon possessing items in the Pokemon world. Or the reverse, where items are based on a Pokemon. I could definitely see this concept going to the other stones, like Firestone, Waterstone, Sunstone, Moonstone getting fire type, water type, uh, maybe psychic type and normal type or dark type, I guess. This concept is very malleable and I really like that. Trovok evolves into Trovolt and it looks like it's evolving into some kind of deer Pokemon of some kind or like a gazelle, like a lightning fast rock gazelle Pokemon. Fakemon do this more so than Pokemon do, but I like it when there's like a, a, a thing that starts off as like a complete elemental, like a rock or fire or something like that and then slowly evolves into more an animalistic side. So this design really works for me. Trovolt evolves into Gazellic, and I was exactly right. It's a rock electric gazelle Pokemon, and that is fantastic. The electricity within the Pokemon is starting to manifest outside of it into these horns and this like little side, I don't know what to call it, pattern. I've seen electric type gazelle Pokemon done before, but never like this. This is super different, super unique, and I really, really like it a lot. I would definitely add this to my team. A rock electric type is such a fun type combo, and this is such a fun design. Next up, we have War Kid, and I feel like I know where this is going. I feel like we're getting a Hercules-based Pokemon here. War Kid evolves into Warmy, and this is cool. I like the like headband and the little toga we got going on here. The way he handled like the pectoral muscle being like this swirly kind of 
Grecian feeling uh, to it, I really like. If it evolves further, I feel like it's going to be a fighting flying type just because of the kind of wings we have going on on the head. You know, Pokemon have wings on their heads like Gallade and, and Gardevoir, but they're not flying type. But I don't know. I feel like it's going in that direction. Next up, we have Herocules, and it is holding a Fruitino or a Fruitino. I still haven't figured out how that's pronounced, but it's supposed to look like the head of Medusa. That's just such a fun little reference. I love that so much. I think more so than Hercules, this is supposed to be based on just a bunch of different Greek heroes. I'm pretty sure it was Perseus who slayed Medusa. So there's that mix in here as well. I'm sure there's probably some kind of Odysseus reference in here as well. It looks like it has lightning bolts along its fists so maybe it's also supposed to be a reference to Zeus I just caught the connection Perseus and Hercules are both sons of Zeus so it's a mixture of the sons of Zeus that's that's clever that is so clever good job Malmus wow that really I that I, I just that makes me happy I don't know I really like Greek mythology and mythology in general so that just kind of like tickles me next up we have Kyrnosian Ralts which is a dark flying type and is this gonna be based on harpies a harpy Ralts I mean you can kind of see like it has like a beak like structure instead of like the typical thing that's really clever I, I can't wait to see how this thing evolves yep we've got a harpy Curlia we've got the little bird eye going on that thing's creepy this could even be like a Convergent Mon. This was before Convergent Mon were introduced, but this could be a Convergent Mon. Like the way it looks, it it just like it has those those like bird like eyes, um, which is completely different from Curlia's inspiration. So yeah, this could be repurposed. Definitely repurposed as a Convergent Mon. We have a Dark Flying Gardevoir and oh my goodness, this thing is epic. This thing looks like it's about to freaking tear my eyes out, bro. I love it. It's terrifying, but in the a really cool way. I'm very curious if there's a Gallade equivalent. Looks like that's a no, but we have Saipo, which is the Zen Hippo Pokemon. This thing is super cute, but very much reminds me of Slowpoke. Just the way the face looks and the coloration, and it just, it all is screaming Slowpoke to me. Almost as if this was like a pre-evolution to Slowpoke. Saipo evolves into Hippo Bomo, and oh my goodness. What is happening to this thing's legs because that is not physically possible like this thing's man this thing's legs are contorting in a way that is not natural like the fact that they're facing up in like a prayer situation is like cool because it's supposed to reference the psychic typing but also it should be like this i just smacked my mic and my webcam it's supposed to be like this so that way it you know they face out because no no one can put their legs like this i mean at least i can't that would hurt a lot I am absolutely not trying to roast this design. I think the concept itself is really cool. Like a hippo, like a psychic hippo is a really cool idea. I just think that this there's certain aspects that really creep me out about it. Next up, we have Kianosian Flabebe, which is a poison type. I really like how it has the little laurel here. That That's a nice touch. It looks like it has the ability to turn flowers into stone, which is interesting. Are we getting a secondary Medusa reference here? Looks like we are. We're getting a poison type Floet, uh, which turned its... I, I think the idea is really cool that it like turns its flowers to stone and then holds the stone flowers but we're we're moving into a, a bit of a redundancy in the region itself because we just already had a medusa pokemon unless that wasn't a medusa pokemon maybe that was just like a no wait there, there's another kind of it was a, a gorgon just a gorgon in general i mean medusa is a gorgon but some gorgons don't have any legs and instead they have a half snake body but some gorgons have legs and they just have them like i think medusa just has you know snake hair i'm not certain on that but either way you have like a snake medusa mon two snake medusa mons going on here i mean i see how it was hard to choose because so far these lines have been really cool and different both of them so it must have been hard to kind of choose between them so maybe just pick both anyway here is florges the snake garden pokemon i can definitely see it these both these concepts are really solid and really strong i i i i, I couldn't have, i probably wouldn't have been able to pick between them myself next up we have moros this thing is so interesting and, and completely different. Like, it's just a completely different Pokemon. Your ghost type, it just looks like it's just it's just a ghost. It's just it's I love Pokemon where you just can't tell 100% what the inspiration is. I mean, it kind of has a Cyclops thing going on there, but it's just so it's just a completely different creature altogether. So an interesting little detail about this Pokemon is that it is actually in collaboration with another Greece based region, the Helenos region, which is now the Masissos region on Instagram, but it evolves differently depending on the region it's in. 
So let me know if you would like me to review the Helenos region and I will check it out and we can see what the Moros evolves into in this region. But in the Kianos region, it evolves into Daybros. This thing is so eerie. It has like a Lunatone eclipsing a Solrock on its shield, which is such a nice little design detail. It's giving me Gengar vibes without being deliberately Gengar. It also has that like Cyclops inspiration in there because the head only has one eye, but there's like two heads. I guess two heads are better than one in this case. I don't really comment on abilities, but I love its ability name. Its ability name is Existential Dread, and it turns all ghost type moves into ghost and dark type moves. So this dude has stab out the wazoo. Next up, we have Scorpunt, a grass poison type. This thing could 100% be a convergent species for Skaroopy. I mean, the design and the proportions are so, so similar. It looks like it evolves into Succupion. Succupion. I, yeah, I can't do it. I don't know. I will say I'm a sucker for a Pokemon that has one big claw and one little claw. I mean, Kingler, Clotzer, I love those designs. Next up, we have Rollnut. That's just a fun name to say, Rollnut. It's a grass ground type, and it kind of looks like Cherubi without the like little, you know, second head that it has. It kind of reminds me of like a Mario enemy of some kind. Rollnut evolves into Palm Trio. Dude, I love when Pokemon just become a Pokemon with more heads. It's just such a Pokemon thing. You know, it's just, like when you think of Pokemon, you think of a Pokemon that evolves from one head to like multiple heads. Palm Trio is adorable. It keeps the adorableness of Rollnut, which I appreciate. And it just adds a new little spin with some more heads. Next up, we have Kit Six, the Sand Fox Pokemon. I love that. I love that. Is it supposed to be like kind of like a Fennec Fox? Because I love that. It's just so cute. I want to cuddle it. I don't know if I should. Is this it's a ground type? Maybe it'll earthquake me. I don't know. Kit Six evolves into Kit Sand and it's holding a bone. It looks like it's like give me Cubone Marowak energy to it. Um, ground type holding a bone. That is that is kind of the same as uh, as, as Marowak and Cubone, but I will overlook it because this design is freaking adorable. Its proportions almost give me like Blaziken in a way because it has those like feet that like don't like that that are covered by like this fur it almost feels like to me it could be a ground fighting type honestly I think I think I might put this on the team I think this might be like an alternating thing like I would put it in the team every once in a while and then maybe put it back in the box for another Pokemon looks like we have some Kianosian fossils with the old beak and the giant bone so let's see how these things resurrect we have Plumafin which is a flying dragon type not not rock dragon or or rock flying or flying rock that's um I'm not sure it maybe it's similar to the what I did in my region where or the you know the uh the Pokemon can be resurrected without having the type I mean mine was specific to my gimmick but I'm not sure how they explain it here I'm not seeing anything in the description that implies that there's something special about Plumafin so I'm not certain design wise it's a freaking Griffin I love Griffins and it's it's like fused with a dinosaur like dinosaur Griffin it looks like it's mixed with some kind of like pterosaur or or, or something like that and I love that. That's super interesting. Very different. Next up, we have Cornosaur, which is a rock dragon type. Okay, so what? Yeah, so, so what? So why why not rock on the last one in any capacity? I, I'm I'm a little confused here. Cornosaur is adorable. Also, I like the shields on its body and the like little dragony thing it has going on there. The concept is a dragon mixed with a dinosaur. I think that's the you know theming we have going on with these two fossils this one is like a ceratopsian mixed with a dragon which i think is really cool i love the idea that like the ancient fossils were dragons but like they're like mixed with dinosaurs so like dinosaurs were ancient dragons i think that's so fun next up we have honutops and yep they're definitely ceratopsian and this thing is a bunker bro this dude is the dragon and the castle it's guarding at the same time, and I love that. Apparently, this thing is massive and is as big as a castle, which, you know me, I'm a sucker for giant Pokemon. Waylord, I've made a couple in my own region, Cornera. I just love big old Pokemon. Next up is Gigaman, which sounds like some kind of Sentai series. Go Sentai Gigaman or something. <laughs> Definitely trying to emulate a Sasquatch of some kind. It's a fighting grass type, which I think is cool. Um, it kind of shares similarities with Abomasnow as far as concept where like it's like a tree mixed with a Sasquatch but I'll overlook it because the design is so different and unique I could definitely see myself encountering this in some kind of deeply forested area and just being terrified like some kind of boss Pokemon just lumbering around get it lumbering because it's a grass type <laughs> uh. next up we have Vinodon which is a rock grass type uh oh this is the resurrection from the giant bone was the wait I'm I am really confused how many 
how many fossil pokemon are there here i'm a little confused it says this is resurrected from the giant bone but also giga man is and it says the previous two lines are also revived from the giant beak so i, I don't know how I'm, the the logic of two separating dna paths like being resurrected from the same fossil as far as this design it's a cute little grass type mammoth pokemon i mean that's that's about all i have to say about it it's cute next up we have Mastodon, and that name is just perfection just perfection the design i definitely thought it was on two legs at first but it looks like it's actually on four legs which makes this a little bit more interesting to me i, I thought this was going to kind of feel like gigantamax uh Copperaja or something like that i'm kind of seeing how the dna branching is kind of working here because gigaman kind of looks like a tree and this kind of looks like a tree the previous two mons you know had the dragon incorporation mixed with the dinosaur incorporation it's an interesting concept having two fossils come from the same bone i just don't know if there's a lot of logic behind it but i mean it's pokemon so what logic really is there a fish evolves into an octopus for god's sake next up we have kianosian mawile and it is a dragon fire type i was saying earlier how kitsan reminds me of blaziken but this design definitely reminds me of blaziken I like the simple shift of turning the mouth on Marwile's head into more of a draconic looking face and then making its hair look like little wings. That's really clever. Next up, we have Kianosian Sableye, which is a ghost electric type. And actually, I have seen this design before. In like the baby stages of the Cornero region, I was looking for other regional variants because I was, you know, there's a lot of regional variants in Cornera and I was just kind of looking for ideas to help inspire me. And I found this design and it actually helped inspire the rock ghost Cornera and Sableye all this to say I really like this design a ghost electric type Sableye is so cool and taking the little subtle differences and getting these like electrically charged crystals like statically staticky lightning bolt ears and a lightning bolt symbol on its chest and its eyes even look like little lightning stones I was to say the thunderstone doesn't look like that but you know it still looks cool next up we have Donka which is thank you in German I think but it's a normal ice type which is a new type combination we still don't even have that in gen 9 actually it's a cute little llama or alpaca pokemon i'm not sure but it looks like it's wearing some kind of mesoamerican poncho of some kind because it has that mesoamerican pattern to it this is a really great example of a normal ice type you can get the normal from its coloration but also the fact that it's wearing clothes which is kind of like a normal person thing to do as well as the ice type because the ice you know colorations as well as it's kind of bundled up for the cold weather Donga evolves into Don Kappa and it looks like it's actually a camel I was wrong it's a camel Pokemon and the clothing looks like it's turned into these like little huts almost this whole line is just adorable it's just super cute next up we have Goriol which is a flying steel type it's called the angry bird Pokemon and uh I can't unsee like angry birds in my head right now I'm a little worried because this looks like it could lean into a harpy direction and we already had a harpy with Gardevoir Goriol evolves into Tengal or Tengle I'm not 100% certain but it's a flying steel type I'm not sure I think this is might be a different kind of bird mythological creature I'm not sure if it's a harpy because it doesn't look like it can fly at all but it is like a half bird half human kind of thing going on regardless it's called the ninja pokemon which is interesting I'm, I'm not getting ninja from this but it's still cool it's still cool next up we have kianosian duskull that is a ghost ground type and it's called the requiem pokemon this is really fun i like the slight difference it has like the little arms that it has like look like it's in a straight jacket now and it has like the slight like skull divot you know the the nose divot in a skull that's above its head which you know just very slight differences that make all the difference with uh you know regional variants I think this is going to go a mummy direction because in the little opening post of the Kianos region it says that there's some Egyptian influences here as well we have Kianosian Dusclops and I'll be 100 this is not a Dusclops this doesn't look like a Dusclops the proportions are completely different I would have made this an entirely new Pokemon to be honest it's just like the only things that are similar are the little thing on its head and then the eyeball but like the proportions are completely different and that's usually what you know is called for when it's a regional evolution spoilers for Scarlet and Violet if you haven't seen this yet but Wooper evolves into Claude Sire and that the proportions are different but the general vibe feels like a Quagsire it has that same kind of thing going on here aside from that it is going that mummy direction I thought it was I think this is really interesting and a really cool take on a regional evolution or not, not regional evolution but a regional version of this line it looks like it evolves into darko fagus which is crazy the uh, agus on the end of it makes it sound like a cofagrigus evolution of some kind i was just reading the description and this is actually pretty interesting i, I said that it's like seems like a cofagrigus evolution it is 
kinda so to get this evolution you have to trade Kianosi and Dusclops with a Kafagrigus to get this evolution so it's got a kind of Shelmet and Carablast kind of thing going on it kind of feels like Dusclops evolved into the body that would be inside the coffin that is Kafagrigus which is super creepy next up is Galaxic or Hilaxic I'm not sure if it's supposed to be pronounced like Gila monster or it's supposed to be Gil I'm not not 100 certain I like this it feels like a little Gila monster volcano which is really cool it evolves into Como Drake which feels entirely like a shift in concept what it evolves from Galaxic when exposed to a firestone sorry I just like it went from a fire poison type to a rock poison type but it was evolved with a firestone it just doesn't add up to me like a Gila monster evolving into a Komodo dragon really cool the typing though doesn't really make sense the concept I'm not following okay okay never mind I'm reading the description I'm wrong I'm wrong I'll admit when I'm wrong um the the armor that it has on its body is hardened magmic rock so it becomes a rock poison type and like kind of loses its magma-ness and like it's it's, it's cooled magma or lava what, whatever that's called anyway I still think it shouldn't evolve via firestone if anything I feel like it should evolve via water stone I think that would be more interesting is like you know, the water cooled off its armor and like turned it into like obsidian almost I might just be using Minecraft logic here I'm pretty sure that water and and magma make obsidian like gl magma glass am I wrong I might be wrong Minecraft has ruined me <laughs> next up we have Propelix steel bug type and it just looks like it's a little fly like a robot fly which you know kind of emulates those robot flies that like spies use in movies to like be the fly on the wall apparently it is one of the smallest beings alive which you know flies are it evolves into Sputnik <laughs> I love that name that's great the design is a little much for me um it's just a lot going on there um it doesn't really look like a satellite which is supposed to be based on Sputnik it kind of feels like an old satellite maybe I don't know I like how the head design does kind of look like common writer so I appreciate that aspect of it next up we have Kianosian chat out which is a fairy flying type and it looks like it's got the freaking treble clef on its head I like how it has this like collar very like orchestral dressing collar like very fancy and it, oh actually I'm seeing oh my gosh this is kind of like a Marie Antoinette kind of vibe just that that French white face like the dolled up face with the big hair and the big poofy collar that's really fun I like that incorporated with the treble clef that's really clever that's clever <laughs> uh, it looks like Chatot evolves into Chattakit like etiquette plus Chatot I think that's really fun apparently the simple flap of its wings will enchant any creature this is really cool it's very Marie Antoinette I just I think that's really fun next up we have Kianosi and Apom and it's a fighting type and it's it's got a big old chubby cheeks <laughs> <laughs> that's the first thing my eyes went to is a big old chubby cheeks it also looks like it has like kind of like a punching glove for a tail which you know makes sense for the fighting type were its teeth always kind of like jagged like that or was that an addition because if it's if that's an addition that's a really nice touch hello Kianosian apom evolves into Amberin. I wasn't expecting that I feel like this is the design people were hoping for when they saw Ambipom like a more traditional like monkey this is supposed to be based on is it supposed to be based on a tamarin I, I don't know if it seems more like a um what's the word a baboon to me as far as design I think this is an improvement on Ambipom in many many ways and I actually really enjoy it next so we have Surflint which that name is great it's an electric rock type surfing penguin Pokemon surfs up who for the record I love surfs up one of the better movies with penguins in it come at me happy feet I love the surfer aesthetic this thing has going on it's doing the hang loose it just gives me good vibes next up we have spell drawn which is a poison psychic or psychic poison type excuse me it's a little potion that's so cool I really like a, the a, like a little potion Pokemon that's such a fun concept its ability is power of alchemy which makes complete sense it evolves into mage drawn which is like cauldron plus mage into a ghost poison type lost the psychic typing and now it's a ghost and I can see why this thing is creepy it looks like it evolves when traded for a synesty uh, maybe there's going to be a Kianosian synesty so this also has a Shelmet and Carablast thing going on yep we have Kianosian synesty oh my gosh I love this ghost poison type it's a little like Grecian urn that's such a fun oh my gosh I really like this concept taking the pattern of Sinistee's face and making it all Grecian and like curly like that and like with the you know straight line very very Grecian very very cool as well making it based on wine I mean it is it, Pokemon so they're probably not going to do that but regardless it's a really cool concept it evolves into Genewine 
<laughs> like genuine that's that's great oh my gosh so when Sinistee and Spelldrawn evolve they trade types Genuine becomes a ghost psychic type and Maedron becomes a ghost poison type that is a very interesting and unique concept for sure I like how it looks like an old man with its cane I just looked at the dex entry and apparently it just acts like an old man all the time which is really funny next up we have Cubliss which is a pure ice type uh sea sea puppy Pokemon what's a sea puppy is that supposed to be like a sea lion what do I, is there an animal that exists that I don't know about regardless it's cute it's giving me corgi energy which I absolutely adore it evolves into Celadon dear god <laughs> it, uh, it looks like it's a seal plus Poseidon it's a ice electric type which is a dope type combination it just went full-on bearded Poseidon Greek god elements going on in there it, it, it's mixing in some Zeus elements in there too with that electric typing I really like how this is still an ice type seal Pokemon but it manages to be so different from seal and spiel next up we have Wooletric which is an electric type lamb Pokemon uh, uh that's uh Marie it's Marie ah. I've been pointing out a lot of redundancies in this and I feel bad but it's just like there there are a lot in there I mean I'm sure once it evolves it'll be different but as a base an electric sheep Pokemon is very it's just it's Marie that's like that's the electric sheep Pokemon its proportions also look like Wooloo as well so it's just kind of like a hodgepodge of redundancy it evolves into Zephon okay I was right once it evolves it becomes completely different it's an electric fighting type which is a new type combination well no it's not yes it is no it's not it's a freaking fawn Pokemon which we already got a fawn earlier but this one has like lightning bolt legs coming out of a thundercloud waist it's so different and quirky in like the best way next up is Agamander and it's a grass fire type pepper Pokemon mixed with a lizard which is different spoilers for Scarlet and Violet but we just got Capsicid and Scovillain which is a grass fire type pepper Pokemon but I'm not gonna judge it for that because this existed before that did and it's still a really cool design and I like it a lot I like the more lizardy aspects it has to it it evolves into Agamento and it's not helping its case that it's double-headed and so is Scovillain do you think Game Freak saw this I don't know they don't really they're not supposed to check out fake bond but it's kind of feeling like they might have seen this and was like oh yeah we'll do that it evolves into Agamolten and now it's got three heads which maybe in the future Scovillain will evolve and have three heads and be a Hydra Pokemon kind of like that this is supposed to be a reference to Hydra as well because this is a Grecian region and it's a uh, a Hydra mixed with a pepper which I think is a really really fun concept I imagine you could cut one of these things heads off and they would probably use it as some kind of spice for a dish or something a little morbid but it could probably grow it back because it's a Hydra Pokemon next up we have Javanite which is a ground fighting or excuse me fighting ground type um this thing is intense this it's got looks like it's got like bones or something are those bones what are those coming out of its back is it supposed to look like an erupting volcano because it kind of does and I love that about it next up we have the water dark type Crescella and it's giving eyes look at those eyes bro they're huge massive eyes it's giving kind of like Celebes eyes in a way is this supposed to be a mythical Pokemon I think it's a little early for it to be a mythical Pokemon but I think it might be based on a siren in it's a siren in a shell if this is a mythical Pokemon like Jirachi or Celebi I think this is really cool as it stands on its own I'm not sure how I feel about it but it's still like an okay design next up we have Basili the one eye Pokemon Ooh, this is a dragon type is it gonna be like dragon dark it looks like it could be dragon dark um it's like a Cyclops but its eye is inside its mouth that's eerie but I like it it evolves into Basiclops yep it is a dragon dark type this thing is so creepy I love it I, I'm assuming this is supposed to be the pseudo legendary um and it's mixing like a Cyclops with the dragon of the pseudo most pseudo legendaries are dragons I mean every generation since like gen 4 we've had a dragon type pseudo legendary so Basiclops evolves into Keyclops yo this thing is giving me Mecha Godzilla it's giving me like some kind of kaiju energy and I love it I really do definitely putting this on the team I think I already had a dragon type on the team but who cares move over freaking Keyclops is on the team next up we have Keonosian Litwick and <laughs> it's a torch I mean it makes complete sense the Olympics started in Greece and this is like based on the Olympic torch that people pass along to light the big fire I think that's great I wonder if it'll evolve differently we have Keonosian Lampent and it looks like it's starting to slowly meld into the bigger fire that they put the you know torch on to start the Olympics I like that it doesn't have like a little thing containing it anymore that it just it's just like 
the eyes on the fire very calcifer vibes it does evolve differently it evolves into flambalore and i gotta say i think this might be my favorite pokemon of the video i don't know what it is maybe it's the posing maybe it's the shading on it but something about this is speaking to me I really like the use of the pink flames rather than the traditional like orange or red flames. It almost feels like it could learn fairy type moves. Its ability is also levitate, so you're just completely taking out a quad weakness. This thing is 100% on the team. I'm kicking out any fire type I had before. I love this thing. I love how it has the little laurel hand pieces that come up in the pose of Chandelure. All around, this design is super solid. Like I said, probably my favorite of the video so far. Next up, we have Kelprite, which is a water fairy type. It's the Siren Pokemon, which is interesting. It doesn't really look like a typical Siren, but we'll see how it evolves and maybe I'll be proven wrong. It evolves into Drake Help, so we're getting kind of a shark thing going on here. Um, I'm still not seeing the siren aspect of it, but maybe it's trying to be something unique. Maybe it's called the siren Pokemon because it uses its voice like a siren would. Maybe not necessarily being based around a siren. I don't know. Whenever I hear the word kelp, I can only think of that quote from SpongeBob where it's like, where's my diet, Dr. Kelp? It evolves into Aqua King. Okay, I'll be honest with you. I thought we were going to go like in maybe like a kelpy direction. When I heard kelp. I thought maybe kelpy. You know, some because I'm pretty sure Kelpie lure their prey to the sea or something like that. Regardless of my expectations, this is still a pretty fun design. It's like a bipedal shark. Kind of looks like it's supposed to be like a mermaid. So maybe that's where the siren aspect comes in. I think I got too hung up on the siren thing. I was trying to guess at what it would be and then I was wrong. Apparently, we shouldn't let its cute face fool us. And it is actually one of the most brutal Pokemon in the sea. I don't know, though. It's hard to imagine something this cute could be that mean, right? Right? Next up, we have Naxareal, and this is a pure ice type, and it looks like it's based on like the Aurora Borealis mixed with a horse Pokemon. It's a legendary Pokemon. It's marked as a legendary Pokemon. That's good to know. Um, so apparently that it was think it was Crushella or whatever is not a legendary Pokemon. Design wise, it's really cool. I like how they incorporated the kind of Aurora theming to it. But one design detail I wish they had changed was the eye, and because it just makes it feel like Ponyta like some kind of like alternate branch evolution of Ponyta. All around though, I think it's a really solid design. Looks like we have another legendary Pokemon and that is Perosi and it is the South Spirit Pokemon. Naxareal was the North Spirit Pokemon, so it kind of makes sense because the North is like cold and you have the Aurora Borealis and all that. And this is the South Spirit where it's like kind of more warm. I, I shouldn't say South. Like South South is also cold, but like middle of the roads. You know what I'm saying? In terms of the Kianos region, North is very cold and the South is very warm. That's just how the region is laid out. Regardless, I think this pairs really well with Naxareal because you can kind of see how it has the same elements as Naxareal, but more water inclined rather than ice inclined. The tail even looks like a little fountain or like hose spraying water out of it. I, I'm not sure. I'm not sure if this is trying to reference Poseidon, but it has kind of like a little trident on its chest, which I like. It looks like we have another one. We have the Sky Spirit Pokemon, which is Delo Sky, and it is a Pegasus. So it looks like it might be a trio, actually. So we have the North, South, and Sky. So interesting. So, so we don't have East or West. We just have, we have North, South, and Up. <laughs> I mean, a pure flying Pegasus Pokemon is great. I, you know, that's what I would expect if we ever were to get a Pegasus Pokemon, that it would be pure flying type. Maybe based around clouds, it looks like this kind of has some cloud-like structures to it. Very solid design and a very solid trio. Here are our trainers for the region. We have Gale and Hino. I like their designs. They're pretty simple, you know, standard fare for Pokemon protagonists. I do like how they're blonde and ginger, though. That's a bit different. It looks like there's a gimmick in the Kianos region. It's called the Zombie Pokemon Phenomenon. It seems like it might be like Noble Pokemon or Titan Pokemon, kind of an equivalent to that, where a Pokemon faints and then it becomes even more powerful after it comes back to life. It has kind of like an electrical energy flowing through it, so maybe there's a Zeus reference in there? Or maybe it's a Hades reference, because, you know, the underworld and all that. Next up, we have our rival Poppy, and I love her design. She's got this pink hair, the shirt's great. It kind of looks like uh, Kionosian Mawile themed, maybe? Maybe I'm wrong, I don't know. But overall, I really enjoy her design. She looks like she'll be a solid rival. Looks like we have our first gym leader. His name is Mario, and he is not a fighting type specialist. He is a rock type specialist. Who is a boxer i think that's really cool i like it when we kind of subvert our expectations at what type a you know a trainer is going to be based on their design and i love his team two very solid rock types from this region next up we have emily emily either way she's a tennis player and of course she uses the tennis pokemon sticko and she also uses propellix which is great i like how she's a tennis player that uses bug types kind of reminds me of kahili who's a golf player who uses flying types next up we have Lito, which is just the most literal name i can ever think of literal 
<sighs> I just picked up on a theme here. They are all giving us medals and they are all athletes. So I guess we're going for an Olympics theme here and each one is going to be based on a different Olympic sport. Next up, we've got Olga and she's going to give us the sailing badge. She's a fairy type and she's a sailor. Um, so not giving us the water type, but she also uses a Kianosian Jinx, which is a water type. So kind of ties in there. Both of her Pokemon are actually aquatic themed, so that all works. Next up, we've got Amethyst, who is actually the mother of Poppy, who we met earlier, who is our rival. And she's a soccer player, and I really like her design. Her outfit very much reminds me of the outfits we'd wear in the gym challenge in Galar. Excuse me, Galar. Everybody gets on my case when I call it Galar. I like the little rocks in her hair to reference her name, Amethyst. And her team is pretty solid. Next up, we have Nikos, which is an electric type surfer. I didn't realize that surfing was an Olympic sport, but that's cool. Of course, he would have a surf lint. I love that. That's great. I just love how he gives off good energy. Oh my gosh, good energy. Get it? Next up, we have Dragan or Dragon. His, his name is literally Dragon. He looks super tall because he's a basketball player and a dragon type basketball player is a, a sick concept. I really like that. He also has two members on his team that I wanted to have on my team. So that's awesome. Next up, we have Mona, who is a steel type fencing specialist, which makes complete sense. And of course, she'd have a swood lash that, yeah, obviously, just it's just obvious. And it looks like there's kind of like a DLC situation here. We have Galadon, which is the kind of legendary that symbolizes the Sea of Trident DLC. And this one definitely references Poseidon. I think that's what it's supposed to be. Next, we have Kianosian Growlithe, which is a pure rock type. This was before we got Hisuian Growlithe, so cut him some slack. It looks like it's made out of a marble statue, which is perfect given its inspiration of food dogs. It looks like they like to guard the temples of Kianos, which is a great reference. Next up, we have Kianosian Arcanine, and this is certainly unique. It looks like it has little pieces of obsidian in its skin. Um, it doesn't look 100% like Arcanine to me. I think it's the eyes that are putting me off. If it had more Arcanine's eyes, I wouldn't be as put off by it. But it's still a really cool design. And now we actually get Kianosian Gallade, which is a part of the DLC, and it's a dark ground type, and it references centaurs. Split evolution of a centaur and a harpy is so good. And instead of having it these like blade-like arms, it has shield-like arms, which is a nice little subtle change. If you've seen the most popular video on my channel, then you know this Pokemon already. It is Reggie Sky. I love this design. You all know I love this design. I included it in my Reggie of every type video because of how much I love this design. The reason I love this design is because it doesn't exactly evoke a flying type typically but it evokes the idea of looking up at a mountain into the sky and just everything feeling so vast it's a unique take on a flying type and that's why i included it in the video is because i just love it so much and then yet another one from a reggie of every type we have reggie terra this is another one that i love 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 it just looks like you cut out a brick of soil and then turn it into a reggie and i just love that about it and finally we have galadon which is water steel type and it is the final pokemon of this dex I think it's really cool. I like its frills. Its patterning is really cool. And obviously, like I said before, it pretty clearly references Poseidon. I wonder if there's any connection with Empoleon here, maybe. And that's it for the Kianos region. So thank you so much to Malmus for letting me review this region. And thank you guys so much for watching. And with that, I will see you guys next time. Hey everybody, Brandon here, and welcome back to another region review where we review different regions around the Fakemon community. Today we're going to be reviewing the Talasia region by Maumestex, which is based on Athens, Greece, and is actually kind of a sequel region to the Kianos region which we covered earlier this month. It kind of has a Kanto Johto thing going on here, so make sure to check that out if you missed it. But if you're excited to see this region, make sure to hit that like button, subscribe, and hit that notification bell to help support this channel and keep up to date with future videos. Probably should be a bit quieter considering we have Jigglypuff sleeping right here. So starting off the Talasia region is our grass starter and that is Kitweed. Before we got the Gen 9 weed cat, we got this literal weed kit weed cat. Kitweed's cute. I think it's a little simplistic. It also kind of feels like Litten to me, but I still like it. I enjoy it. I like how it was a little clover on its butt and then like a tail. It's almost it almost kind of feels like my little pony with a little cutie mark there. Next up we have our fire starter Jabair and if that name is anything to go off of, I'm assuming it's going to be a fire fighting type and I know the comments are going to love that. Jabair is insanely cute though and I like it's a unique concept it doesn't follow the zodiac which is cool because you know they've kind of started breaking away from that in gen 9. I really like how its ears look like a bow but they are still just kind of like ears that's what they're supposed to be and now for our water starter flow duck I mean Malmus managed to predict two of the three animals that were going to be the gen 9 starters so that's pretty great I know Quaxley is supposed to be a blue-footed booby, but its name is Quaxley, as in like the quack of a duck. So I'm pretty sure they're also part duck. I'm, you know, they're kind of a water-based avian. I like Flow Duck though. It's cute. I like its little like kind of nerdy appearance. It almost looks like it's like little nerd glasses on. 
I also enjoy how simplistic these three starters are. They're very simple, but very effective. Some in the fake one community can make the mistake of having the base stage be too over designed, and so there's just no room to grow. So staying simple at this, you know, at least at the start is a pretty good way to go. Next up, we have Tigrass, and it's giving me Sabretooth Tiger vibes, which I really enjoy. I will say it's kind of giving me Toracat vibes, and this whole line so far is giving me Litten energy, you know, Litten to Toracat to Incineroar kind of energy. I'm pretty sure this thing stands up on two legs in its final evolution, too. So we'll see, though. Jab Air evolves into Panchin, which is a firefighting type, just like I thought. And also, it's amazing. It's giving me Chun Li vibes as well as Briggs and vibes, and they're coming together in such a great and fun way. I love the little flowy ribbons coming from its hair. I could definitely imagine this thing in game. It also kind of has like a little Sailor Scout bow going on with the front, and it almost also kind of looks like a flame starting to build. I'm not sure if that's intentional, but that's what I'm getting from it. Next up, we have Platide, and now I'm thinking that this was not supposed to be a duck at all, and I just realized that the tail was definitely a beaver tail on flow duck as well as its little nerdy glasses are actually supposed to be goggles like swimming goggles i kind of like how seeing the evolution made me discover things about its pre-evolution as far as plat side goes i really like it's kind of surfer aesthetic and i love the little pattern on its like waist you can see it's supposed to look like little drawstrings of, a, of swimwear. And the final stage of Kitchweed is Tyroger. Malmus even managed to predict the final typing of the Grass Cat starter. I will say the concept of a tiger using its fangs like a knife, really cool. But also, it kind of disturbs me a little bit, the idea of it just breaking off its fang. That just feels painful to me. It just like makes my teeth hurt. One thing that I probably should have pointed out that I haven't by now is you'll notice above Tyroger, it says 134 instead of three. And that's because of the thing I was talking about earlier where this is a sequel. So the dex numbering continues from Kianos. The final evolution of the Jab Airline is Hatsukien. And I have to say, this is definitely my choice for my starter. I love this line the whole way through. It goes from super cute to kind of like cute C, and then finally to like cute but also can kick some butt it kind of has the vibe of a panda while being based on a red panda i like how the pattern on its fur kind of looks like a gi but also has these like kind of flames going over the gi and the final stage of flow duck is certide i love all the little design details of this mon you can see on its wrist it looks like it has a little shell bracelet it has the drawstring thing going on from the previous stage the surfboard is actually supposed to be a platypus's tail. One note that I will say is it feels very, very conceptually similar to Surflint from his last region, which was a surfer penguin. Kind of both have that surfer plus bird thing going on there, even though they're different types and kind of different concepts. Regardless, Surtide is a really solid design as well. Next up, we have our Route 1 Rodent, and it is Aromice. I love that name so much. That's super clever. Also, its design is adorable it does give me kind of the same vibes as shaman the whole literal hedgehog plus the flower and the coloration all kind of come together to give me that feeling to help with that i probably would have made the coloration slightly different and then maybe removed the flower just because you know flowers are so iconic to shaman aromice evolves into shrubberry i really love this concept i'm pretty sure it's supposed to be based on sloths and how they can eventually grow like moss on their backs from how slow they move i think it's really interesting how we can go from a mouse to a sloth and it still feels natural i could definitely definitely imagine how this would interact in the Pokemon world and maybe using its berries for something kind of like how in Paldea they drop certain items like you could get a strawberry berry or something next up we have our root one bird which is Quaylic making a little quail electric type with the little thing coming out of its head being a little lightning bolt shaped is so great it's one of those things when you see it you're like oh yeah that really makes sense why didn't I think of that also its coloration kind of gives me like a mask of some sort like almost like a superhero of some kind maybe that's where it's going I don't know Quay like evolves into Runaleki. It's still giving me that kind of superhero, almost the flash energy to it. I kind of like its cocky expression and then its little hair going out. It kind of feels like an anime protagonist of sorts. And I really like the subtlety of the electric typing. Like you can see its tail is electric shaped and there's like little you know, yellowness throughout the design, but it's not outright like bright yellow. I always find it interesting when you can make a Pokemon feel like that type without using that type's like signature color. Next up we have Hoppy and this thing's freaking cute, man. Its eyes and antenna are making me feel like Beedrill, but its legs and the, its general body shape is making me feel like Grasshopper. So I'm a little confused design-wise. Not to say the design itself is confusing, just kind of like trying to wonder where this is going to go. Next up, we have Hive-E, and it's supposed to look like a hive, I think. It's supposed to be like replicating a hive, which I think is fun, like a cocoon replicating the hive. I'm still confused as to what direction this is going to go. Is it going to be Grasshopper? Is it going to be B? Is it going to be both? Okay, it's going to be B or wasp i'm not sure maybe wasp so maybe it's neither i like the bug steel typing it almost feels like it could be bug dragon i know he did bug dragon in his last region but this almost feels that way it also 
also evokes kind of superhero it's giving me wasp from from ant-man it's a very solid design though and it's very edgy I can definitely get the steel typing from it next up is muffin which is a poison type and it's like a muffin fiend I've seen this Pokemon before and I think the concept is genius a lot of people could say make it part fairy type because it's based on a sweet food but it's pure poison typing plays more into its design it's supposed to be a fake muffin that it wants you to try and bite it so it poisons you kind of like a poison apple situation it looks like a normal delicious muffin or I guess cupcake but there's actually something more sinister going on beneath the surface it evolves into Rouvette I love this kind of method of evolution something looking completely normal and evolving into this monstrous being I love the little beading on the top which is supposed to look like some kind of sprinkles or like cherry on top or anything but it's actually just multiple monstrous eyes I love the creep factor of this Pokemon next up we have our Pika clone for the region and it is Magichu a lot of people took note that the Kianos region didn't have a Pika clone so we have one for this region I will say though I'm a little upset that it isn't part psychic type I mean magic and psychic type kind of go hand in hand as well as we haven't had an electric psychic type Pika clone yet as far as design this thing knocks it out of the park having its ears come together like a little wizard's hat and then holding its tail like a little wand are some very clever design choices I also like that its little electric pouches are purple which makes me question why it wasn't the psychic typing still but you know what whatever next up we have Gowl and that name is so good also I love the typing and the general concept it all comes together really well having that slightly tilted head to make it feel kind of ghostly and like otherworldly like oh that's not right the design kind of gives me ghastly vibes where it looks like a floating head where the body is just purple and then the head is white so kind of gonna give that differential to make it feel like it's just a floating head I imagine in a dark place you wouldn't be able to see the purple as much and you just see the bright white and think it was a floating head also those yellow piercing eyes you just see yellow piercing eyes and white face that would be terrifying Gowl evolves into Banshoot also love that name it's Banshee plus Hoot Gowl and Banshoot have a really clever naming scheme I like that a lot honestly I'd probably throw this line on the team the typing is really solid also the designs are really solid I just read its dex entry and this is terrifying apparently the little beak it has is not a beak and it opens up to reveal its singular eye that's freaking terrifying next up we have Supider you guys know what it is it's clearly based on Spider-Man it's a bug fighting type which makes complete sense if there ever was going to be a Spider-Man Pokemon I'd probably want it to look something like this I love its little chibi aesthetic with the little limbs and the you know cute face it even looks like it has a little stinger as its abdomen which is different and it evolves into arachnidae this is just a stellar presentation all the way through it also kind of reminds me of man spider the pose definitely evokes the same pose as spider-man swinging through the city and I can definitely imagine arachnidae doing much of the same I also love the yellow eyes because it kind of evokes the amazing spider-man one where he used kind of sunglasses as the visors next up we have Barcliff, which is the puppy Pokemon and it's rock type and I'm pretty sure Rockruff is also a puppy Pokemon and a rock type and I will say this design feels really reminiscent of his Kianosian Growlithe line it just feels really similar for me to ignore but if that Growlithe didn't exist I think this design is just really solid I like the mud caked paws and also the kind of stone statue feeling it has to it also it just kind of has a no thoughts head empty kind of vibe to it next up we have Penfeet and this looks like it might be a pre-evolution to Surfland from his last region I'm actually kind of remembering Malmus said to me in the past that his theme for this region was baby Pokemon that was kind of a part partial gimmick of the region kind of how like in gen 2 we got a lot of baby versions of previous Pokemon it's a very cute design and you can see how it evolves into Surflint and it fills that baby Pokemon role next up we have Piglet and it is yet another baby Pokemon I'm pretty sure it's based on Javanite from his previous region this is why I said you should probably check out the Kianos region before this video definitely come back and watch this video but if you missed the Kianos region review definitely go check that out so you can have a few more things explained in this one also don't mind my panel that's slowly falling off of the wall it you know it kind of just does that next up we have Shiren which is a pre-evolution to Crushella the one that had the huge eye from Kianos and that name is so good Shiren like a shy little siren I love that idea and she's just in her shell literally she just can't she hasn't come out of her shell yet like Crushella will so adorable and I love how it plays into the concept rather than just making it smaller it has its own concept in and of itself next up we have Misby which I'm pretty sure is a pre-evolution to Mistrevis but it's a fire type so do we have a pre-evolution regional variant that's a fun concept I like that I knew about regional mistrevis but I didn't know that there was a regional baby Pokemon I really like the idea of 
fusing those two concepts together kind of like how I did with my regional mega evolutions idea this is kind of in that same vein next up we have Otzel which is a water fighting type and it's the stoat Pokemon so we have Otter Weasel and Stoat all infused together I kind of love when Pokemon is just kind of vaguely mammalian with their Pokemon they don't just pick one specific mammal to base it on but generally just a group of mammals that look similar a lot of the time in Fakemon we can get bogged down with the like specific details of things like this animal needs to evolve into this animal and it has to be very specific when we have Pokemon like Rummerade and Octillery which is a fish that evolves into an octopus or things like the Needle King and Needle Queen line where it's just kind of vaguely vaguely like oh it's a mouse plus a kaiju plus like what and this kind of gives off that same vibe it's like oh it could be an otter but it also could be a weasel it could be a stoat I'm not certain next up is Minicorn and it is a pure dark type horse Pokemon it's the pony Pokemon which I'm pretty sure is also Rapidash's is there gonna wait hold on is this gonna be a pre-evolution to a regional Ponyta I was about to say it looks a lot like Ponyta which was the critique I gave in the Kianos region of the le legendaries in that one but I think this one is actually intentional next up is a regional Mistrevis Talassian Mistrevis and it is a fire psychic type and I adore this concept for a regional variant all Malmus did is flip it upside down and change its coloration it's such a slight change but it's so effective it's like oh yeah that completely changes the design of the Pokemon to make it look like almost a different Pokemon but you know it's still Mistrevis that concept also can be applied to regional evolutions like something flipped over also I love the psychic typing on this Mon the kind of reddish pinkish hue that it has to it feels very much like a fire and psychic type and then the beads have been turned pinkish rather than that reddish color they are in the original Mistrevis also it's hair how like Mistrevis's hair is kind of dyed at the tips like red instead it's orange and so it looks like a flame it all just comes together really really well and if I didn't already have a fire type starter I probably would put this on my team oh my god Otzel is a pre-evolution to Buizel. I was literally thinking I was like Otzel you know Stoat plus Weasel plus Otter that kind of feels like Buizel. and now it makes sense it's a water fighting type Buizel variant pre-evolution this is such a fun concept because I'm just like oh that feels like it could be a new Pokemon but at the same time it feels familiar and that's because it is if you guys know me at all I'm really not a fan of the Buizel line to be honest I, specifically Floatzel I like Buizel. I think it's cute um but I really just am not a fan of Floatzel next up we have Talazi and Ponyta pure dark type and this thing is cool oh my gosh it's so edgy what an edgy boy I love that it's the dark horse Pokemon I think that's such a fun classification because you know of the phrase a dark horse and this is literally a dark horse next up we have a new evolution for Mistrevis and it is Miss Malice these lines are getting the hookup they get a baby Pokemon that's also a regional variant a regional variant and then a regional evolution I wonder if the other two are going to do the same probably that's what I'm assuming is probably going to happen I really like this one though it kind of feels like the bottom is the hats of Miss Magius but it also is like folded in what I find interesting is it feels like a true evolution to the original Mistrevis it kind of feels like the original Mistrevis but expanded because it has the same hair as the original Mistrevis with this little crown included it gives me Scarlet Witch vibes which I'm pretty sure is intentional just because of the way the crown is shaped and its general like appearance being you know like a Scarlet Witch it's literally Scarlet and kind of witch based now we have Spartzel and yes it is doing that thing where you know new evolution as well and it's not Floatzel so that's already a win in my book I like how it's using its two tails as weapons of sorts it also has that kind of Spartan helmet thing going on with its crest and general like armored looking appearance because of these like fins that it has going on next up we have Rapidash so Rapidash is the only one that didn't get this treatment that's interesting to me the body proportions feel a little weird on this one to me like it feels like it has a huge torso but then like little legs and then like a massive horn it almost feels like it's supposed to be like a mini pony if that was intentional then that's dope like a mini pony version of Rapidash that's fun I also like how you can see a little spirit of flame in its horn wisp to reference its original typing next up we have Finray which is a water electric type and this thing just gives me flounder from the little mermaid energy you can most definitely feel the water electric typing in its coloration I mean that's blue versus yellow a very satisfying color combo as well as it just kind of exudes those two typings and you can see it has little lightning bolts running through it in its design which just kind of is pretty obvious why it's an electric type next up we have Delbliss and it's a dolphin Pokemon that it has like a beak like I mean I know dolphins have beaks but that's like a like a bird beak Dude, is there a dolphin that has like a bird beak it adds kind of a sinister vibe to this otherwise kind of cheery and bright design which makes it very unique I mean it definitely feels different than Palafin which is the dolphin Pokemon we got in Gen 9. next up we have Oni Lucky, that <laughs> that name I love that name Oni Lucky it's just kind of fun to say it's called the creepy Pokemon which is understandable this is a creepy little dude if I saw this dude running around I would probably feel uncomfortable 
Though seeing it on my screen, it's pretty cute, actually. It evolves into Onisuku, which is kind of giving me Majora's Mask vibes. I'm pretty sure this is supposed to be based on Orb Weaver spiders, because Orb Weaver spiders have this kind of mask, almost mask appearance to their, like, what's it called? Thorax? Their butt? I'm pretty sure that's what Majora's Mask is based on. It's supposed to be kind of like the Orb Weaver's butt. So it would make sense why I would get Majora's Mask from this. I thought it was going to evolve a step further, but I was wrong. Next up, we have Lycub, which is a normal ghost type. It's called the Ghost Hat Pokemon. Is this the ghost of like a wolf pelt that like people would wear? You know how people used to wear wolf pelts? It reminds me of Wofy and Rugrath from my region, Cornera, where it's a haunted remnant of an animal, which makes me like it a lot, as well as it's just kind of cute and derpy. Off the top of my head, I can't think of a lot of cute and derpy ghost types, but this, this one definitely fills that role. Lycub evolves into Spectroof, and you can kind of see it has a little hole at the bottom of it where it like would have been worn, like put on a head. It kind of reminds me of the Ghastly line where it's like, you know, just a floating head and now it's got a floating head with arms. It's creepy and still has that derp factor, which I really like. It evolves further into Wolf Fury and this is definitely, definitely inspired by the Ghastly line. I mean, you can see Gengar in this design 100%. It almost feels like this could be a convergent evolution of sorts where instead of Gengar, it's like a wolf that's an ice type. Not that that's the concept at all, but that it kind of gives me that energy. Now I want to make that a real thing. Dang it. Why did I say that out loud? Anyway, it's a werewolf Pokemon and it's normal ghost type. I like that we have a ghost type werewolf to, you know, kind of reference that it's supernatural. It's hard not to like this design because it definitely evokes those same things that Gengar does and everybody likes Gengar. It's just a pretty universally liked design. Next up is Talosian Sunkern and it's a grass fire type. It's interesting that its face changed and it feels more like a Sunflora's face and then it changed the seed that it's based on. It almost feels like this could have been a pre-evolution to Sunkern just because of the way it's shaped. Like Sunkern feels a bit bigger than this and more wide just a personal note i probably would have just kept the eyes the same because right now it just feels more like sunflora than sunkern sunkern had its eyes open and that was like kind of the difference between them but i do like the idea of changing the seed that sunkern is based on to make it a completely different type looks like sunflora got the alolan executor treatment and this boy is tall this is fun giving it the grass fire typing that you know a sunflower kind of deserves i did it in cornera because i thought the same thing it's a really fun way to play on the grass fire type that isn't just you know chili pepper looking at you sco villain next up we have talassian cubone which is an electric ground type and fun fact about this design this was actually submitted as a variant for cornera for a contest i did back when i hit 1k over on instagram so this was originally cornera cubone and marowak but i ultimately liked the rock type variant that i ended up choosing better so I let Malmus use this for his region. I just adore this design though, so much so that I almost picked both of them to be in the region and have two variants in Cornera and have it so that this one would hang out near the power plant and then the other one would hang out by Bones Ridge. But I ultimately cut it because I just, you know, two variants in the region has never been done before except for like Gastrodon, but that's not really a variant per se. I just really love this design so much. I just, there's not much more to say about it. It's just a really good design. It evolves into Talassian Marowak and you can see its skull is actually a Zapdos skull, which is so clever and it changes it's like tail giving it a little spikes little electric -y spikes and its bone is now like a hammer kind of referencing thor with the electric typing there it all comes together so well and i love it so much next up we have a variant of mimikyu which is a fairy normal type and this one is trying to reference chonky pikachu this mimikyu is trying to appeal to the chonky pikachu fans out there which is just a hilarious concept like even in the pokemon world like somehow the chonky pikachu design faded away over time as if in universe there was a chonky pikachu back in the day and then it eventually became the more modern pikachu that we know in universe it's just a fun concept concept to think about next up we have nagrog apparently it's gorgon spelt backwards got it and so it's like a, a gorgon trapped in a mirror i'll say this is conceptually different than the other two gorgon pokemon that he did but there are two other gorgon pokemon so this will make a third amongst his two regions now that i'm thinking about it that name is actually really clever because it's a mirror of gorgon i used to do that with the player character in pokemon games i would do nod narb which is my name backwards because it was like me in a mirror universe of pokemon it kind of appeals to me in that way actually next up we have nozzle which is nozzle plus azul it's a flying ice type and i'm pretty sure it's supposed to be based on a puffin it's super cute i think it's cute it's got a little bit of edginess to it which is just you know a really pokemon thing to do edgy plus cute pokemon yay it evolves into puff Freeze, so it looks like nagrog doesn't evolve that's just, that's just a single stage pokemon kind of got like a klefki vibe to it I figured Nogrog would evolve eventually, but maybe not. Anyway, Puff Reese, you can see the little ice type elements in its design. It kind of looks dapper, has a little bow tie going on there. This kind of feels like it could have been a root one bird where there was like a pre-evolution to Nuzzle and Puff Reese is the final evolution. Next up, we have Scaldi, and I'm pretty sure this is supposed to be based on like the scaly foot 
snail, which is actually what the fire type Gumi and our Gumi of every type is based on. It's a water dark type, and I love how it's just wearing a little helmet, like its shell is a helmet. It's a shellmet. Oh my gosh. I will say, as far as proportions, it does kind of look like a Gumi wearing a helmet in a way. It evolves into Molusku, and it's, a, it's still a water dark type, and it looks like it's trying to emulate a dragon. That's really cool. It's also kind of cute. It's really derpy. It's just kind of got this big old smile, and it's like the tongue of a dragon. Is there something called the dragon's tongue snail? Because that sounds like it should exist, and if it doesn't, then like someone create that in like some kind of fantasy universe i guess malmus is doing that here so never mind it evolves further into malogre it's a dragon dark type okay so now it goes straight up dragon it definitely has an intimidation factor to it i think it's interesting how it changed to dragon at the last second from water dark to dragon dark next up we have batrol which is a fighting fairy type it looks like we're getting a dedicated cyclops mon here we kind of had a vague cyclops mon in kianos but this one's like dedicated it has like a club for a hand which is fun and i love the fighting fairy type on this thing it makes complete sense you know oh you know mythical creature that's known for its kind of brutish nature kind of the same vibes as the grim snarl line it evolves into gigantrol and yep it's a cyclops mon that's kind of what it is and it feels good like i mean it feels right it's a fighting fairy type it has this kind of muddy caked appearance almost like a ground fighting type in a way maybe it could learn a few ground type moves if we ever get a dedicated cyclops mon i hope it's something like this i know we have dust clops which literally has clops in its name as in cyclops but I still think we need a dedicated Cyclops Mon that isn't just like a ghost type, but one that's based on the actual myth. Next up, we have Flufffly. It's a normal bug type Poodle Moth Pokemon. <laughs> this thing is hilarious. It almost feels like a conversion evolution of a puppy Pokemon that doesn't exist. Like it's a bug type that evolves dog like traits to be more like lovable and kept by humans so it could be safer from predators or something. I love that concept and the fact that this design kind of gave me that idea makes me love it even more. Next up is Talassian Meowth and those who've been on the channel for a while might recognize this design because it actually premiered in our Meowth of Every Type video. Maumus already had the idea for this mod but I kind of pushed him to create it so that we could have it for the video. And obviously it's based on Sphinxes just based on the pose alone and it evolves into to Persian, which is a ground psychic type. I really love how he used the neck floof to kind of give off that pharaoh-esque appearance of the head of a sphinx. I mean, not all sphinxes are like that, but the very famous one is. I also like its upturned nose. It almost kind of makes it feel snooty in a way, like it has its nose upturned to you. Next up, we have Talassian Diglett, and you might have seen this recently in a Diglett of every type. Check that out if you missed it. Obviously, I love this design. It's why I featured it in a Diglett of every type. I love its little beard, its little icy beard, and its little you know kind of like ice floor that it's coming out of I'm always a fan of little subtle changes to make a regional variant change its typing like Diglett and Alolan Diglett this kind of does that same thing it evolves into Talassian Doug Trio and I just it, yeah I just love this design it's so great I love the little pattern on the side that look like icy crystals and it has a lengthened beard and you know me I you know I I like beards this line is just fantastic and I really haven't added anything to my team in a while so yeah let's add this to the team next up we have Talassian Stone Journer and ah this design is so good making it a rock water type and being based on the lost city of Atlantis it's just honestly so clever and I just really love this design it's simple and effective and still very much feels like Stone Journer next up we have you fly which is UFO plus fly it looks like this is its solo form so it's going to be a grouping Pokemon like wishy-washy and it turns into a giant UFO of flies the concept's really fun and makes sense and I like the you know incorporation of the design to make it feel more alien but then making uh you know actual alien spacecraft out of it this one is called its swarm form which I like that it's swarm instead of schooling next up we have dwarfe which is an ice grass type this thing is giving me like toad bobom goomba freaking shy guy energy just vaguely mario enemies I guess but I love it honestly it's little winter hat that is also kind of like a bush on its head it seems like it's supposed to be based on dwarves but it kind of just feels vague which is you know I'm not saying that's a bad thing I actually really like that it's vague I, I mean, like I said before I really kind of like those vague designs that you're not can't really tell what exactly it's based on Dwarfe evolves into Joters or Yoters because it's based on Jotunheim I would have gone Jotuners because at least that kind of goes into each other rather than Joters or Jotuners you know it kind of rolls off the tongue better just my personal opinion I'm assuming this is supposed to be like the nurse Joymon of the region I like the idea of the dwarves evolving into the frost giants you know dwarf to giant and also it has the incorporation of wintry clothes into it and it just kind of feels fun I really like its design honestly oh and it looks like we have fossils again am I going to be as confused as I was last time so from the magic horn fossil we have pink horn which is a rock fairy type and it looks like it's going to do a little wizard hat thing on its head instead of its horn which is so fun I'm pretty sure this is going to be based on the elasmatherium so elasmatherium plus wizard is such a fun concept the fairy typing makes sense because of magic I kind of feel like magic can be either psychic or fairy and it kind of falls between those two just kind of the based on the kind of magic you're doing the fun kind of whimsical magic kind of fits into the fairy type and then the more serious dark magic kind of 
of fits into the psychic typing next up we have rhino like rhino plus rainbow and it is going on that full-on freaking wizard hat and elasmatherium mixture also throwing in a little bit of woolly rhino in there it's really freaking cute i just love how simple its design is and it's it, yeah it's just frankly just cute next up we have titic which is a rock dragon type i also just noticed that they're both rock type rock fairy and rock dragon and those kind of coincide kind of like how we had the ice dragon thing going on with gen 6. man i really miss traditional fossils you know we haven't had one in like three generations and i'm kind of tired of not having one i realize what we got in gen 9 is kind of equatable to that but still anyway titic it looks like it's supposed to be based on a cockatrice you know like kind of a rooster plus dragon i don't know what it is but the cockatrice always just feels like it fits so well into pokemon like mixing the concepts of a chicken and a dragon together feels like such a pokemon thing to do so it just always feels like it works so naturally as a pokemon design titic evolves into titan zord titan i said titan zord what is this power rangers <laughs> its name is titan zard and it's based on that cockatrice like i was saying but it also references the fact that chickens are descended from theropods like raptors who also have feathers in and of themselves next up we have talassian yamask and you'll recognize this from our yamask and kafagrigus of every type it is a pure fairy type and it's been purified by this eye it's holding the thing it's holding is supposed to be arceus's eye and i think it's supposed to be just a stone that looks like arceus's eye but it's not actually arceus's eye itself unless it is and maybe i'm wrong there isn't too much to say that i didn't already say in our yamask and kafagrigus of every type video so i'll move on to angerigus which is based on biblically accurate angels and this thing is crazy this is probably one of the most wild designs i've ever seen in the fake mon community and you know what i love that about it next up we have brassagon which i'm pretty sure is the pseudo legendary of this region and it is a dragon steel type and it plays into the idea of dragons who hoard gold this thing is cute as all hell it looks like a traditional dragon which not a lot of dragons in pokemon kind of have that traditional like almost welsh dragon feel to them it evolves into silvern so we're going from brass to silver now which is a fun evolution of the concept i love when an evolutionary lines concept evolves with the line rather than just you know doing the same thing but bigger you can see it still kind of has brass scales in there like it's still kind of growing out of its brass form it continues that traditional dragon feel but also kind of brings in a more serpentine appearance as well and finally it evolves into smaugold and we go into the full western dragon kind of appearance i mean its name is smaug based on smaug from you know the hobbit it's become one with its gold pile which i'm sure that makes it immensely happy i'm sure it would make any dragon happy to be one with the gold that they hoard so that they didn't have to like transfer it everywhere i wonder how do dragons transfer their gold from place to place or do they just leave it and collect a new treasure these are the questions that plague pragmagic's brain next up we have reggie war which is a fighting type legendary titan which is what the you know reggies are formally called i really enjoy this design from head to toe i love its little blade arms to evoke you know war and also it kind of gives off a trojan horse feeling to it as well as being generally gladiatorial gladiatorial is that a word probably i made it up it's a gladiatorial it means like kind of gladiator-esque there you go miriam webster if it exists now i'm gonna feel real stupid next up we have reggie mind which is a psychic type legendary titan and honestly i'm not as much of a fan of this design i know it's supposed to be kind of based on the holistic side of crystals and you know the kind of spiritual essence that they give off but to me it just kind of comes off as another rock type reggie but with reggies it's supposed to be like they're an incarnation of that typing and rocks don't exactly feel like an incarnation of the psychic typing that's just my personal opinion you're free to just agree I just that's that's how I'm feeling on it as far as a crystal Reggie it's a cool design I, I think it's a cool design in general I just don't kind of agree with the uh you know design basis next up we have Reggie Vile and it is a dark type legendary Titan this one's interesting I don't know how I feel on it it's like spiky and edgy like you know dark types are it kind of reminds me of the fencing on like a haunted house you know that kind of metallic spiked barbed look it has to it it also has the devil horns so I'm seeing it more and more as I look at it I do like the different kind of body type it has it's very long and skinny which is very different for a Reggie next up we have Denki Rex which is a ghost electric type and I'm pretty sure this is a legendary Pokemon it's part of a legendary trio that's supposed to kind of mirror the legendary beasts since this is Malmus's Gen 2 kind of tried to emulate some of the things that gen 2 did their legendary trio title is the distortion hound so i'm pretty sure they're supposed to all be part ghost type yep next up we have venorex which is the ghost poison type and it looks like they're all going to have the rex suffix as, as a part of their name kind of like tornadus landorus and thunderous this thing is definitely eerie it gives off that ghostly miasma kind of gives off the same vibes as ghastly because that is also a ghost poison type miasma is such a good word for ghost types because it you know incorporates both a kind of like a poisony miasma as well as a ghostly miasma it almost gives off kitsune vibes 
but I know it's supposed to be a dog. That's the difference between the legendary beasts and this line is these are supposed to be straight up dogs where the other ones are more vaguely cat like and almost, you know, that's why they're called the beasts. They're not very much dog or cat. They're kind of a mixture of both. And finally, we have Samurex, which comes from Samui, which means cold in Japanese, and then Rex, that suffix we've had before. It has that ghost eyes typing, and it looks super intimidating. I love how this mirrors the legendary beasts. It feels really cool. Like, it feels unique in and of itself, but also kind of feels like an homage. It also kind of gives me Jolteon energy with its general spikiness, which I love Jolteon. It's one of my favorite evolutions. Next up, we have Mark Tyrant, and I'm pretty sure this is supposed to be like the legendary Pokemon of the region. It's a dark dragon type, and it looks like it comes from the distortion world, actually. This thing is definitely intimidating and very much gives off that legendary feeling. It even kind of has the same eye as the creation trio with the, you know, black part of the eye and then the red iris. I'm pretty sure the plot of this is kind of supposed to be an extension of Team galactic where mars ends up taking over team galactic and trying to get back to the distortion world and i guess more tyrant must be another pokemon that comes from the distortion world like giratina looks like we have another legendary trio this is almina it's a fairy grass type and it's the youth pokemon i wonder if this is gonna do like a hakate kind of thing where it's the maiden the mother and the crone because this one's supposed to be the youth pokemon it's almina which comes from minor next we have almaga which is the matriarch pokemon yep nailed it hit it right on the head it's a fairy fire type it kind of looks like a grown-up version of of Almina, but you know, switching the type. It's got a very wizardly vibe to it. And finally, we have Almasta, which is the wisdom Pokemon. It's a fairy ice type. Looks like it's supposed to be the old hermit that secludes themselves to the icy mountains, but also is a part of the mountains. The name of this trio is the Magical Sisters trio, and I really like that. I, I just this whole trio is really nice and I love the, you know, Hakate vibes it gives off, with Hakate being kind of like the mother of witches, from my understanding. And the Pokemon don't stop here because we have the gimmick of the region, which is called Typecraft. This is kind of like terrestrializing, but if they actually changed forms when they changed types. So starting us off is Tyrogre, and it's a water dark type now. I love the switching of concepts because its teeth used to be its main focal point, but now its claws are. Also, it looks like it has this hat that's like almost giving Kappa vibes, and the grass on its pelt has become more like swamp like. As you well know, I love the idea of taking a Pokemon and just kind of slightly shifting its concept and type. I mean, that's kind of like the focal point of my channel. I forgot to say these are called Alpha Pokemon. So this is Alpha Hatokian, and it's a grass fighting type. There's some very simple changes here. We have like little rows coming out instead of like the flowiness of its buns. And uh, it looks like it's, you know, Gi has turned into more of a robe. And you can see the pattern on its sides. It's kind of been more floofier, almost pollen-y or kind of flower-like. Next up, we have Alpha Surtide, and it's a pure fire type. And I love this, I think, more than the rest. Taking the watery elements and making them fiery and like kind of like flames rather than the swirling water effect. It just works really well. And I love it how it's kind of like a explosion wristbands, kind of like Bakugo from My Hero Academia vibes. I can imagine this thing surfing on waves and not even being scared of them and just making like steam as it rides the wave. Next up, we have Alpha Magichu, and it is a psychic type. Okay, okay. I take back what I said, Malmus. I'm sorry. Forgive me. I understand now. So the Alpha Magitou is a psychic type. Rather than making it electric psychic, it has an alpha type that is uh, it is psychic type. And I just realized it switches the coloration so that the purple is more prominent and then the yellow is its cheek color. That's really fun. And it also gives me that like the cat witch from Soul Eater. I can't remember her name off the top of my head, but it kind of gives me those vibes. We have Alpha Miss Malice, which is a ghost psychic type. Interesting that the, the alpha type switches back to the, you know, its original typing. That's kind of fun. Is this supposed to kind of reference Agatha? I'm not sure if this was around during WandaVision, but maybe is this supposed to reference Agatha, her being like the purple witch? I can kind of see it in the design. And if that's the case, this is really fun. Next up, we have Alpha Wolf Fury, and it is a dark ghost type. And this thing is intimidating as hell. Yo, it went from like kind of cutesy and Gengar-ish to like straight up like a demon. Next up, we have Alpha Plumster. <laughs> If you remember, Plumster was from the Kianos region and it was like kind of kind of like a Mario-esque Pokemon. And now this one is Luigi and it's flying type to reference Luigi's really high jumps. Luigi throughout the franchise has been kind of known for the fact that he can jump really high. And I think he can kind of do like a floating thing a little bit too. That's all around a fun little Nintendo nod and I love it. Next up, we have Alpha Celadon and it's a fighting electric type going full on Zeus mode with it. I love that. I'm pretty sure it was supposed to be kind of a Poseidon reference before, but now it's like just full on Zeus, got the big flowing beard. It almost kind of looks like Thor, actually, because it has like the lightning hammer. Maybe it's both. Who knows? Mixing different mythologies. That's what Pokemon does all the time. Next up, we have Alpha Zephon. It is an ice fighting type. It was an electric fighting type before. And I love this because it references the, you know, snow clouds versus thunder clouds. I'm sure there's more scientific way of saying that, but that's what the, that's what it's referencing. And that just makes this super fun. I mean, it, you know, it's lightning bolt limbs are kind of more icy now. It kind of looks like icicles. It's kind of giving me tornadoes, thunderous vibes. Next up, we have Alpha Milkow or Milka. Was it Milkaw before and I just called it Milkow? Either way, it's now a psychic fairy type and it's like 
using like milk bending it's like making its milk into a vortex <laughs> if i wasn't disturbed by milk owl or milk Ka before i definitely am now next up we have alpha hercules and i know it's based on heracles not hercules i know i messed that up to be fair it says hercules not hercules so it can be both now it's leaning full on into the kind of Zeus theming it had before, being a pure electric type. Also, its hair reminds me of Giorno from JoJo's. <laughs> and I just love its leotard. It just feels very epic and just ready to like strike you. Haha, <laughs> get it? Lightning strike. Anyway, now we have Alpha Hippobomo. Was that always its name? I feel like Hippobomo does not feel like it was its name before, but it's a water type now. Um, and now its feet aren't doing the creepy thing and it's very zen it's kind of doing tai chi we love to see it I just realized it's literally water bending and water bending is based on tai chi so that makes sense I love a good avatar reference so this is great next up we have alpha darkophagus and it is a ghost fire type this thing is creepy <laughs> if it wasn't creepy enough with this kind of cofagrigus hands that it has now it's even creepier because it now has like these fiery orbs that it could probably summon at you I will say the design doesn't change too much aside from the like orbs which you know whatever I mean it doesn't have to be exactly a huge change it also is kind of giving me like the nurses from Silent Hill like the way it's posed the Pika clone got an alpha form and now Pikachu itself has gotten an alpha form it is pure dark type and it is definitely referencing Gorochu you can just see it from its more aggressive vibes in the way it's holding its tail and also the coloration itself which is just great also its ears are kind of like straight up and they almost look like horns kind of like an Oni next up we have Alpha Eevee and I don't even know what I'm looking at right now this this is a lot to take in I won't even lie to you like long neck Eevee I didn't think was going to be a part of my day today but now suddenly it is and now it's part of your day as well I don't I don't know how I feel the long neck doesn't feel like it really fits the body like I feel like the body should be also a little bit longer than it is aside from the wonky proportions if this I feel like if this had just had a had, had a short neck I feel like I would have liked it a lot more like a dragon type Eevee is a fun concept like every part of this design is working for me except for the long neck to be honest next up we have Alpha Spartzel and it's a water steel type now and its tails have axes on them this thing is epic dude and its coloration is really nice and pleasing to the eye it's kind of giving me Garurumon energy with that dark blue against the white looks like we're getting alpha versions of his original starters from Kianos and this is alpha neck queen which is a fire psychic type I love that it's doing kind of a mag mortar thing where its arm sleeves have now become like cannons it also looks very sinister and not as pleasing whereas like neck queen before looked like a kind of like a pop star this looks like it's like mortal enemy almost like neck queen was a magical girl and this is also a magical girl but it's like the evil magical girl sailor moon style I guess I was wrong because I thought there were going to be the other two but I guess it's just neck queen and then we have Alpha Galadon, which is a water ground type. Galadon was kind of the DLC legendary Pokemon of the Kianos region. And now it has its own alpha form where it's based on a Sphinx rather than Poseidon. And surprisingly, this fits its design so well. Like before, it kind of had this like mermaid-esque thing going on with it, like or a merlion kind of thing going on with it. That's what I love about this type shifting concept is you can kind of shift the type and it also shifts the design inspiration a little bit and it still makes sense. And finally, we have Omega Martyrant and it is a dark steel type so this looks like it's its form when it's in the distortion world kind of like Giratina has its origin form this thing is freaking wild looking like it, it's giving like kaiju it's beefed up like it, it, it's got some freaking haunchers bro look at those legs it kind of reminds me of Transformers Beast Wars which I actually just had a trailer recently but like the original where it was kind of like an animal and then they would transform and it still had like kind of animalistic traits to it but also it kind of had like a more humanoid appearance and finally we have Alpha Almina Almaga and Almasta and they all come together to form like a Hakate Pokemon I like how they all come together to make the same Pokemon I don't think this is a fusion per se but like just kind of each individual's alpha form I would love to see the Lake Trio do something like this honestly I could kind of see it and those are all the Pokemon of the Talasia region so thank you guys so much for watching and with that I will see you guys next time by Poketubing icon Birdkeeper Toby this was a region that Toby made back in 2021, and there isn't really any particular place that it is based on, though there are some Grecian elements to the character designs, region, and some of the Pokemon. As many of you may know, Toby is actually leaving YouTube at the end of this year, so this video is kind of meant as a as a send-off, as, as an appreciation to Birdkeeper Toby and all he's done for the Poketubing community. I'll be giving some more heartfelt sentiments at the end of the video, so make sure to stay tuned for that. So let's go ahead and jump into this region with our grass starter, Twiguana which is just a freaking perfect name. I love that name so much. According to its dex entry, this Pokemon was thought to be extinct, but was found on Solympia and was actually thriving. And I just think that's so cool. Like a, a Pokemon that was thought to be long gone is like 
revived in the eyes of the public. As far as design goes, it hits a lot of the kind of typical first stage starter Pokemon, um, especially the modern ones where it's big head, little body kind of thing going on. I think it has just one too many elements for a base stage though. You have the stripes and then the coconuts and then the rock head and the leaves. Um, you know, starter Pokemon typically don't have a, a bunch of elements. You know, they us usually have one kind of feature um, that is like the main part of their design. And Pokemon in general usually have like one or two main features to their design. Um, like I think uh, if you're gonna maybe strip this back a little bit, you would probably have like either keep the rock head and remove like the, you know, coconut. I don't know if there's supposed to be coconuts or, but kind of coconut theming, theming here, or maybe strip down the stripes a little bit or make the top thing have like a stripe instead of being a literal rock. I know it becomes a rock type later in its, its line. And you know, the whole prehistoric thought to be extinct thing. Uh, kind of plays into the rock typing with the fossil Pokemon. Keep in mind, these reviews are just what I think and what I would do. This is just my subjective opinion. Uh, th I don't think my word is law here. I think Toby did an amazing job with this region. Um, and uh, everything I'm going to say is done with love. I'm, I'm not coming for you, Toby. I, I promise. I love you. <laughs> My design opinion usually falls into the less is more category. So obviously my, you know, with this, there's a lot of elements to it. So I'm going to be wanting to remove things, but that doesn't necessarily mean it's a bad design. It's a good design. It is a good design. And that's not what I'm trying to say is that uh, anything I say in here is not saying that like, oh, this is a bad design because it's saying like, oh, here's what I think and what, how I would have handled this situation. One thing to also keep in mind is I have watched Pokemon Tempest and I have watched the entire series in its entirety, but it was a, you know, two years ago when it was premiering that I watched the whole thing. So my memory on every little design de detail and choice might not be as, you know, uh, uh, keen as they once were. Next, we have the evolution of Twiguana. Twiguana? Twiguana? Twiguana is so hard. The double, the double, you know, W sound, the double W sound. It's tough to say. Anyway, we have a Guanagoon here, which is now a grass rock type. Apparently, there's somewhat of a bully to other grass types, which is kind of crazy to think of like a that kind of relationship between grass types like being studied. It's just like, oh, this guy is kind of a jerk. <laughs> it's really interesting the way that this Pokemon is posed because it almost feels like and, and like design wise too, because it almost feels like if you like removed its legs, it would very easily look like a snake Pokemon. I guess that's just lizards in general. But, I, but but specifically this one, like the striping, do you, do you know what I'm saying? I don't, maybe I'm, maybe I'm being dumb. Knowing what the final evolution looks like, I can definitely say that this is like a good middle stage, a good lead in to what the idea uh, of the next one's gonna be. Though one thing I will say is like, I think a lot of the middle stages kind of get that treatment that is just like, this is, you know, the in-between where, you know, we have the reboots and the septiles of the world where like they still feel like a natural bridge between the base stage and the final stage, but kind of have a per power, kind of have a personality all their own. I think the personality comes through it through the dex entry, not necessarily through the design. Like, you know, if, you know, the being more uh, 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 bullyish and stuff like that, maybe there could have been, I don't know, some kind of element to the design to display that it's kind of a bully um maybe you know and it's it says it's the goonish pokemon so maybe some kind of traditional goon element i don't know this is just me thinking on the fly but finally we have chlorodon the legacy pokemon i think this pokemon is pretty epic i mean like you have these like freaking diamond like shanks that's <laughs> shanks what a what a term do you but it's, it's like the little little daggers i guess like little diamond daggers coming out of its fist and its tail is really cool this kind of swoop that it has at the top like the the, the diamond swoop that it has i feel like kind of applies to that thing i was talking about with with iguanagoon is that like the, that that swoop of hair is that you know a, a pompadour as it were um kind of evokes the the you know the yonki or 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 a uh, boncho kind of thing going on there where you know the traditional thug kind of characters um, i feel like could apply really well to a guanagoon who's supposed to be this kind of bully character next we move on to the fire starter emble this guy is like so cute like definitely my choice definitely my choice for this region i think it's just so freaking adorable also the pun of ember plus bull is just like perfect it's got that like it's just you know embor embol it kind of has that like that natural flow to it Embol evolves into Brazian, a fire ground type. I really like the addition of this kind of hardened earth around its, you know, feet and backside. They feel like a very natural placements to it. it while, like kind of like feeling like a, like a fur pattern without being a fur pattern and being the literal element of earth. One tiny little detail I would change is the little fire on the side. Um, it kind of doesn't feel intentional with it. It just it like it kind of just feels like a little like a little pattern, but like there's no other parts of that pattern. It's just like this one dot there 
and so either I would cover it up or add another one or add a few more specs somewhere in there just so it feels like a bit more intentional with with that fire placement because like you have the lines on this head which feel very intentional um, and I know that this is carryover from Embol, which did have the fire on the side but you know as it evolves you know you got this ground element take that ground element cover it up or re retract the ground element a little bit so that we have these more, more focused finally we move on to minotaur which is just a perfect name like minotaur plus tar brilliant i mean look at this thing you can you can see why i chose it i mean it's so epic like and also the fact that it's this whole line is based on a like a torture device is is crazy to me like <laughs> But it really does come together very well. I just really like all the elements of it. Um, the, the tar element is such a unique way of presenting the ground type that I really like. My only little note is a color detail. I think that the color of the tar and the color of the fur is just a tiny bit too close to each other. So I would kind of lighten the fur to make the tar stand out just a little bit more. But that's it. I think it's a really solid design pretty much all around. Next, we have Kinfisher, our water starter. This to me is my favorite base stage because it feels so much like what a water, you know, water bird starter would be like. Water starters typically have a lot of blue in their designs, and this one does too, but it also has this striking orange going down the middle of it, which really breaks it up, and orange and blue are complementary to each other, so it just really works well. Kinfisher evolves into Heronin, which is a solid design. I the kind of like back feathers it has here remind me of Helioptile or, or Heliolisk. Uh, because of just the, the shape of them. I'm not sure if that was intentional. I can't remember if Toby said something about that. My only my only really gripe about this is that it's it just feels too big for a middle stage. Like, I know it's supposed to be based on a heron, and the final stage is pretty big too, but, like, this feels too big for a middle stage. I would have, like, shrunk down the, the proportions a little bit more so that they feel a little bit more compact, middle stagey, um, because it just, yeah, it feels kind of like a final evolution. And Heronin evolves into Washido here, which is such a solid design. I really like the posing of it. Honestly, when I first saw this, I thought it was going to be like part steel type because like the coloration kind of lightens when it uh, when it evolves, as well as the, that beak just looks like it is a sword. You know, I know that's kind of the point. It's supposed to be like kind of a sword master, but um, I don't know. I felt like steel type was a really natural fit, though we already do have a water steel type starter, which makes sense. And we don't have a water flying starter. So and my comment about Heronin being really tall and this one being kind of bigger. I kind of feel like the proportions could have been flipped a little bit. I know the pose is supposed to kind of evoke a Swordmaster and stuff like that. But as far as proportions go, this one feels almost the exact same as Heronin. Um, and so it like kind of feels like not as much of a step up as far as, far as evolution goes. Because um, Heronin has a lot of the same elements as Washido. Um, but Washido is, like, has a color change and then like a pose change. But like if you pose them similarly, I feel like they would feel a little too similar as far as evolution goes. Not to say that like Pokemon Evolution can't be like super similar. I mean, look at Minchino and Sinchino. It's just when it comes to starters, I feel like there needs to be like a little bit more of a step up. That's my, that's just my personal opinion. That being said, Washido is actually like a close second to me as far as what I wanted my starter to be going through this Olympia region. Like this is a very solid final stage for a water starter. Do not get me wrong. I really do enjoy this design. The pose feels really epic. It feels offensive and defensive at the same time. It has that kind of Asia slash thing going on to it. Anyway, we finally move on to our traditional Route 1 bug, which which is Barbug. These are based on these little fuzzy enemies from Legend of Zelda The Wind Waker, which is one of my favorite Zelda games, so of course I love this design. It's a really interesting take on a Route 1 bug Pokemon. It has that bug poison type, which is kind of traditional for a lot of Route 1 bugs, um, but it also is Cyclopsian, which is so different. Like, I love it also, it has this like big old smirk. I don't know if that's like a, a part of its, its, its like actual mouth or if it's just a part of the design, but it kind of gives it this little sinister grin, which I think is cool. It just kind of gives the feeling of a munchy little guy, you know, that alien hominid effect, if you know that reference. Barbug evolves into Hip Hopper, which I feel like should be the mascot for like hoops and hip hop. It is a bug steel type, and you can definitely tell with these like big chomping jaws. It is, it is a munchy guy. It's just munching in a different way. I think it's interesting how these jaws are supposed to be like the thing that evokes the steel type for them but ultimately they're just appendages that are not really used. They're just more for like a scare tactic than anything. And the final stage is Hypmothic, which I think is a stellar name. Also, I love moths. Um, moths are awesome. Um, I used to be afraid of them, but then like I kind of realized how beautiful they are and the, the, the fear went away. It's, it's really interesting. It's a flying bug type, which I don't quite agree with. <laughs> I think changing from a poison to a steel to a flying type is like, it's kind of a, it kind of screws with the move set, if you know what I mean. It's like, now they get like, they have poison type moves that don't really do as much damage. And now they have steel type moves that don't really do much. So I feel like I would have either kept it bug poison the entire time or 
kept it or, or kept this be bug steel or something along those lines i there's not really been a pokemon that changes type each thing just from a I think a logistical standpoint as far as move sets and, and and like kind of that that idea not to say it can't be done maybe pokemon will do that one day also i feel like its name is hypnotic but it's a flying type i feel like i would have made it psychic unless they unless toby did in post or something like that but i, I feel like i feel like psychic if it's you know a hypnotic pokemon i feel like it should you know hypnotism is is like this it's like psychics domain again forgive me if like toby has explained this already and i just forgot um and, like i said it's been two years Next, we have the Route 1 Bird, which is Corvidae, a flying ghost type, which is such a cool type combination for a Route 1 Bird. I shouldn't say Route 1 Bird, or it's more so early Route Bird. I, I said Route 1 is just kind of like lodged into my brain. That's kind of like been like the design pattern for forever until freaking Paldea came in and was like, nope. This coloration for a ghost type is sick. The, the design is simple and effective. I really like it. It kind of has like Raven elements, a little bit of, 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 uh, of Vulture elements. I think it's just solid all around. Really simple and effective. I like the beak. It kind of reminds me of Toucan a little bit, but like in a good way. Corvidae evolves into Samorg, which is also another solid Pokemon. Uh, this was inspired by the Helmarok King, um, but as well as I think something from D&D, &D, if I recall correctly, um, but just beautiful design i think it is a little too grand for a for a, you know an early root bird evolution I fe it feels legendary to me when i look at this i feel like this is like a fourth uh uh you know legendary bird you know what i mean like this could be the the ghost legendary bird or something like that that doesn't take away from the fact this is a really solid and really cool design the posing is on point um i think the inspirations are really fun uh, and the coloration is simple and effective. They got those purples and the golds against each other, which are really nice. Uh, it blended in with the white, really solid. I'm dumb. That isn't the root one bird, I, or unless there's two root one birds. But I, this is the root one bird. It's Capon. Uh, duh, I forgot about Capon. That's like a whole story point. This dude's cute. He's very simple. He's just a little chick, kind of giving Torchic a vibes without like the fire element to it. It's like, it's like screw you. Untorch is your chick. <laughs> it's so stupid. Its design is very cute and endearing and definitely something you'd want to catch uh, and have on your team because, you know, that Route 1 bird sometimes, or I guess I should say most of the time, is something you bring with you the entire way through your journey. Next we have Scraptor, and I believe this is the male form, and that name is brilliant. Such amazing pun. Amazing pun. When you can perfectly entangle two words together, it's just, that's just so Pokemon. It's, it's just so Pokemon. <laughs> that being said, Talonflame also exists. So I really like the design choices here. The coloration is very cool. I, I really like the mixtures of the kind of uh, aqua dark blue with the orange and red very much pops. The wing hands being smaller and the legs being bigger very much evokes a theropod, um, which gives a double meaning to the whole raptor thing coming from both a raptor as in like the, you know, velociraptor and a raptor as in a bird of prey. Just adding extra layers to that scraptor name, which is just perfect. And we have the female form, which feels more in line actually with Capon's design. Surprisingly enough, I feel like the male form takes a pretty, pretty big leap from the initial design, but you can see the elements of Capon within the female form. It has those dots. It still feels kind of cute and endearing despite being a final stage. Also, I just noticed this. Both the scraptors have this design pattern on the legs that looks like the wrap of bandages, like the kind of like bandages that fighters wear which solid solid designs it decision and it's subtle which is cool because like chicken's legs already look like that naturally i'm not sure if these are supposed to be chicken legs i should say bird legs in general kind of look like this naturally we move on to pop oil which is a water flying type and this this was tad bulb before tad bulb existed can we just be real can we just be so real pop oil walked so tad bulb could flounder furiously if, if no one knows, I, I don't like Tadbulb and Belly Bulb. I, I, I just don't. Giving this Pokemon Delta Stream is probably the like wildest thing to me. Just this little itty bitty like balloon tadpole thing getting like, <laughs> getting like Mega Rayquaza's ability is so funny to me. Also the idea that Kinfisher really love to prey on these guys. Like they pop, they pop them. That's sad actually. It's like popping a balloon, you know? Or those balloons that just kind of sail away into the distance and you're like, oh man, this has nothing to do with the design. I just, I'm reminiscing now. <laughs> the design is very cute though. And I think like this, the color choices were really good. Uh, the the green with the, the cream and the orange, it all feels very welcoming and cute. It evolves into Amphibolimp, which is a mouthful. <laughs> That's whoa. Uh, it's, it's good though. I like, I like the, I like Amphibolimp, like, you know, amph I, it almost looks like Amphibolimp, Amphib, Amphib, 
If it, 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 uh, I'm having too much fun. Um, anyway, uh, I like the uh, carryover of the kind of more balloony elements, like kind of the 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 um, what's the word? Uh, when frogs ribbit this part, I can't remember what it's called. There's a there's a word for it. I can't remember it. Anyway, that element playing into a flying typing for a frog, I think, is super fun and a unique take on the flying type. I like the big bulbs coming out the sides, but I almost wanted like it to come out here, you know, like it's like floating, you know, like by its thing, you know, how, how ridiculous would that look? You just see a frog floating, but it's like thing. It's just like help, help. Regardless, it does carry over well from pop oil. I keep wanting to say poi pole because it's just like one letter switching away. It's like poi pole and then pop oil. Anyway, yeah, it carries over well. The coloration carries over well, as well as the concept itself carries into this, this, you know, inflating frog. Next, we have Salivite, which is probably one of the more creepy designs of this region. <laughs> it's so interesting. It's one of those kind of like Wobbuffet ideas, but like more forefronts. Like Wobbuffet, its actual body is the tail, and then the, the thing above it is the uh, is when you're what you're hitting is supposed to be hit that's like that's what it wants you to hit it doesn't want you to hit its tail I believe this is based on an enemy from Twilight Princess I might be incorrect in that as well um, but uh, the the thing to me the the little thing coming out of the mouth always looks like a blooper from like Super Mario Sunshine to me that's like that's what it looks like to me and I can't get it out of my brain it just looks like it's a blooper coming out of this in insect's mouth Salivite evolves into Zevolve, which honestly, a Zelda-based Pokemon evolving into an alien-based Pokemon was definitely not on my bingo card, but I'm not complaining. Bug Psychic, also a really cool type for like in more alien Pokemon. Psychic kind of deals in the realm of space and the cosmos and stuff like that. That's why we'll never really have a cosmic type. Also, the arms are almost in the uh, position of what wings would be. So it kind of looks like these wings that come forward and become arms, which is infinitely creepier. But also very fitting for an alien-based Digimon. Digimon? Digimon? Where am I? Pokemon! Next, we have Solympian Vigoroth, which I thought was Vigroth for the longest time. I thought it was V-I-G-R-O-T-H, not the other spelling, and I don't know why. Regardless of that, I think this is really fun. I like the idea of kind of flipping Slacking and, uh, and Vigoroth on their heads. Like, you know, Slackoth goes from this lazy dude to a super hyper dude to another lazy dude which honestly like same you know <laughs> i also really enjoyed the grass type being applied through the idea of sloths growing moss on their back like because they move so slow um that that just happens in nature and i think when that's applied through the lens of pokemon whether it's a regional form or brand new pokemon it always turns out pretty freaking cool it almost looks like vigoroth is sick in a way you know how in like cartoons or even anime like when someone's sick they have that kind of like blue that comes over their head or, or, or something like that, that kind of blue tone. Um, it's the, that, that, but green. There's one tiny thing I'll comment on, and the hair, it's kind of like straight line pattern thing. Like the rest of the, the kind of green is blended, but this one area is just not, and that just, that just bothers me. <laughs> I don't know why, it just does. I feel like it should like, you know, kind of have that, like that fading into each other, but this one little part doesn't, and I, I just don't know why. Obviously, next we have Solympian Slacking, which is standing up. I think it it doesn't seem as energetic as Vigoroth, but it definitely is like up there. It's like, oh, you know what? I'm not laying down anymore. And now it has that green fully incorporated into its design. And I, I like the little frumpy kind of hairdo it has. I think that's really fun. My only little comment on this is I just feel like you could probably remove the belly pattern on this and it would be fine. Like I think or or, or like amplify it a little bit more and make it more spread out through the design or or like make it bigger. Uh, something like that because like just just being here it just doesn't feel like it's really adding anything next we have cyrox a rock fighting type and i just love this design a lot of people wanted an evolution for it myself included which toby did later give spoilers in uh in the legends version of his project um which we will be reviewing here in this on this thing as well at just at the end because i wanted to uh get through the base version and then do the legends version after one of my favorite elements of this design is the coloration because of this gold and black coloration it's very simple but really cool black against most colors is like when when like black it takes the back seat it's just always really cool to me maybe that's like black is one of my favorite colors as well as like red is my favorite color and black is one of my like second favorite colors so like this has red black and gold in it which is just 
awesome. <laughs> Next up, we have Rataru, a pure fighting type, and I love this design. It's so cute. It is adorable. It almost feels like it could be a Pika clone with its proportions, um, though there is a Pika clone that we'll talk about later. It just has all the right things going for it. I mean, its coloration is really solid and leads into its evolution really well, which its evolution is even more adorable somehow. Usually when Pokemon evolve, they become less adorable, but this one becomes more adorable. The kind of neck floof it has coming down into the fur pattern, feeling like a fighter pilot jacket is just so cool but it's like so simple but you can see the inspiration which is so pokemon like usually pokemon will have some kind of design element that's more hidden but when you look closer you can see oh that's what that is that is one of my favorite parts of pokemon and it's something i try to implement in my designs Rideru evolves into a rodent which such a solid name <laughs> oh the puns in this region are so good uh, uh toby did a great job with the naming of these these pokemon it is a fighting flying type and a fighting flying type mouse pokemon is so unique and so like such a different take i will say i did not know that it had a little nose here for some reason i think maybe because i was so far away from my screen or like i was watching it on mobile or something like that i just think i just thought it didn't have a nose straight up i just thought it was one of those like kind of like i don't know chrono trigger feeling or chrono cross feeling uh, uh, creatures that, like, that just didn't have a, a nose. Or even Fantasy Star. <laughs> I don't know. But the nose, honestly, makes it even cuter. That that being said, if the fact that I didn't notice it, maybe we should make the nose just like a little bit bigger. <laughs> and upon evolution, the elements of the fighter pilot jacket have evolved with it. You know, it getting this like kind of more full on scarf. The headpiece coming down to kind of look like the uh, the um, like the helmet. The helmet? Is it the helmet or the the hat? What's the proper terminology? Either way, it has that that the fighter pilot thing, helmet, I guess. Um, and then the ears coming around to look like plain. This design all around is just so solid to me. And I just, it's one of my favorites of this region for sure. Just the idea of like a kangaroo mouse that jumps into the air and can soar is such a fun concept. It, it's just so fun. And that's like, that's it's just Pokemon. It's just Pokemon. Next we have Pegasir, which, woo, Wowzer Bowsers. That is like, this thing is like epic no matter what way you slice it. I mean, looking at this thing, it looks like something out of God of War to me. Like, honestly, like an enemy, like a boss enemy in God of War. I also really like that it's part fairy type because, you know, it acknowledges the genetic potential of the Ponyta line with Galarian Ponyta becoming a psychic fairy. Or actually, no, it doesn't become psychic fairy. It is uh, Rapidash, that psychic fairy. Um, so there's that genetic potential there. Uh, and so it acknowledges that it's kind of like a, a meeting of, of both worlds because um, it also has that purple coloration to the flames, which is another part um, that uh, uh, Galarian Rapidash has as that purple mane. So it's kind of like a fusion of those two. It's a little bit like Pikachu from the collab that Toby and I did that maybe you should totally check out. Link in the card and description. Next up, we have Tridoom, a ghost fire type. Um, and I can't remember if this is a split evolution from Houndour or if this is an evolution to Houndoom. Um, or if it's like a it's supposed to be like a regional situation, I can't remember. But if it feels the long fan requested idea of Houndoom getting itself a, uh, a like a three headed version to acknowledge like the Cerberus kind of inspiration. One design detail that I noticed and I think is really cool is there's technically a fourth head to this Pokemon. If you notice here, there's that symbol that's like looks like a skull that was on Houndour and Houndoom, but it's been expanded a little bit to have these teeth. And then the way that the fur pattern comes up makes it look like a mouth. So it's like a full on head, like skeleton head now with the flames coming out of its eyes leading into the other two heads which is just it's it's such a solid little detail i love little details like that next we have solympian togepi which is a fairy grass type and i just sometimes I, I know this is like this is a thing that i do but whenever grass is added to a pokemon for some reason it becomes so cool like i just like the idea of the togepi is just hanging out in a little coconut that's great is that supposed to be a coconut? It looks like a coconut. I can't remember if it's supposed to be a coconut. And now I'm feeling like I might have... No, is it a berry? It looks like it could be a berry. Am I forgetting? I don't know. Either way, it's cute. It's super cute. It's Togepi. It's Togepi. Of course it's cute. Next, we have Solympian Togetic, which, you know, kind of continues the same thing. But it's kind of even more bird-like than it was, like, a, 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 as a um, as a normal Togetic. Because Togetic uh, feels like more of like a Cupid, slightly humanoid, slightly bird-like. But this one is, like, fully bird-like. Um, which is kind of funny because like Togetic becomes Togekiss, which is like still semi bird like, but not 100% bird like. It still has that kind of like almost human face, which is very like mythological. Anyway, yeah, the more bird like elements are at play here. It almost looks like uh, uh, Togetic's hair is like a Chia pet, which I think is fun. It's definitely a coconut because I'm seeing the little, little dots here. Um, or it's a bowling ball. 
and I've been completely wrong this entire time, and for some reason, bowling balls are grass type. And finally, we have Solympian Togekiss. This Pokemon's category as the Jubilee Pokemon, you can definitely feel. Um, it feels very chill, but like really happy. It's just like so content with life. It's like, and it's got kind of almost like a surfer dude haircut. It's just like, yeah, man, we're on Solympio. What do we what do we have to complain about? You know? <laughs> we got we got it made, dude. This 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 Pokemon looks like it would say dude. Like, it doesn't say Togekiss, it's just like, dude, 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 dude. It's kind of like the same thing as, as Alolan Dugtrio. I will say the design feels like it has one too many, like, grass elements to it um, that to kind of differ from each other. Like, you have these like, vine elements, and then you have these leaves that are kind of this pattern. But then on the head, you have these different kind of leaves, and then a bush, and then it just kind of like kind of feels uh, like the the leaf elements need to be a little bit more cohesive. Next, we have Snows, which is kind of like the mascot Pokemon of Team Snooze. It's so cute. I just, I really, like, honestly, I could use a plushie of it, Toby. Kind of, like, when? When, man. When? Give me the plushie. Give it, give it to me. No, legitimately, though, like, this Pokemon is so adorable. And it has, like, all of the fun little design tropes. Like, a lot of Pokemon tend to show their eyes, but this one doesn't, which makes it even more endearing somehow. Snows evolves into Zlumber, which I just love that it's just, like, simply just changing the S to a Z. And and that just feel, it feels, it's fun to say Zlumber. I don't know. Um, I, I like that it's like, it's a mixture of slumber, um, Z's as in like, you know, uh, sleeping, but as also like lumbering around because now it's got these legs that it, you know, kind of lumbers around on. And that dex entry, I'm just, uh, that dex entry, man, like, I'm just saying, like, I want to sleep with a snows or a slumber and like, so that my dreams can be sweet and fulfilling. Make it, make it happen, Toby. Come on. We're all asking. <laughs> By we, I mean me. I'm asking, please. <laughs> Oh, man. Next up, we have Dozermon, which is the final evolution. It's got that Sully feeling, that Monster Sync feeling that, that you just want to cuddle up with this guy. Um, even though he looks like he might crush your spine, you still want to cuddle with him. You know, that Totoro effect. It's funny because I mentioned Digimon earlier. And so, like, Dozermon sounds like it would be either, like, a bulldozer Digimon or a Digimon that sleeps. <laughs> because, like... Most Digimon end in Mon, like Agumon, Gabumon, stuff like that. Dozermon is so relatable because it just feels like you, after you like finally get that really good night's sleep, that's like, that's what it feels like. You get a really nice dream, you wake up feeling well rested, which is a rarity nowadays. Um, and that's just, it just feels like that's the, like, this is the epitome. Epitome? The epitome. Wow. The epitome of that. <laughs> Next up, we have Gulalabai. I think it's Gulalabai. Is it Gulalabai? I think it, it, I can't remember if it's Ga or Gulalabai. Either way, Fairy Ground type, which is a type combination we still have yet to get. And girl, she got legs for days. She is sissy in that walk all the way down the runway. We got we got that long ears that come down to look like curly hair. It, it, it's 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 such a gorgeous design. It's so cute and simple. Um, I like the the eye being a little bit different than uh, like traditional Pokemon eye, uh, eyes and like being more goat like, but not entirely goat like. I know I already commented on it, but the idea of these like cur like long ears coming down to be curly hair is so is so genius, and I love it so much. And then it becomes Seder Corn, and then uh, uh, girl, she's not sissy in that walk. <laughs> I don't think I don't think the design is bad. I just think it's funny that we go from this like beautiful, elegant Pokemon to this guy that's just like <laughs> to this Pokemon you really don't want to look at for too long because you're afraid of it looking into your eyes and piercing your soul. I really like the patterning on this Pokemon, like the diamonds on the side and the way the pink comes up from the ears. The ears not even like being really curly anymore and kind of almost looking a little bit more disheveled and un untangled uh, or, or tangled, I guess I should say. Or like un uncurled is what I meant. Next, we have Solympian Alakazam, which is a psychic electric type. And I find this thing so cool. It like reminds me of like a Mind Flayer or something like that um, from D&D. Uh, and I think that's such an interesting and fun concept. Or, or, or even just like a, a wizard. Just a wizard from D&D. Like an old arcane wizard who specializes in lightning magic. But yeah, the way that headpiece comes down with like, it almost looks like tendrils coming down. Like, like, like a mind flayer. Next up we have Drudigoil, which Toby never specified what kind of Pokemon this is. Whether it was a regional variant or an evolution or, or some kind of separate Pokemon. Uh, but essentially predicted convergent Pokemon. So good work, Toby. As we know with Sinistra, Pokemon can have the same type as their original Pokemon that they're quote unquote based on. So this does perfectly fall in line with being a convergent Pokemon. So maybe in the future, Toby, you can refer to it as such. I don't know if, I don't know if you have already, but there you go. Either way, this design is really, really solid. Haha, <laughs> cause it's a rock. It's a solid rock. Haha. <laughs> to me, it feels like wholly a rock monster. It doesn't even feel like there is 
kind of any biological element to it. It feels very much like Geodude in that way, where it just feels like a rock monster that has like a tongue for some reason. Um, and it just, it doesn't feel like it has that, like the draconic element is still there and it makes sense why it has dragon typing, but it doesn't feel like it's a dragon animal. It feels like it's a flowing with draconic energy. Does that make sense? You can kind of see from its skin and like all the spikes coming out of it. It just feels like it was like born out of a, a cave, like the cave, like just emerged out of the cave walls at some point. This is kind of a niche reference, but kind of like those rock monsters in the Power Rangers movie. Oh, they just kind of came out of the wall and started attacking them. Do people know that movie? A am I too old? Probably. Next up, we have Go Gopher, which is the Pika clone of the region. And I do believe that it's, this has been changed to ground electric type rather than steel electric type. But this thing is just like an adorable little potato. It's so cute. You know, that's why the ground type makes sense for it. It's just like a little potato. It just feels like the potato experiment. I don't know if this was in the, the intentional. I can't, I can't remember if this was intentional, but Go Gopher feels like the little potato experiment where you like plug it in and it has electricity or whatever. Next up, we have Tenfin, which I love that name. Um, it is a water type, not water fire yet, um, but I really enjoy this, this thing's design. Like, I think the water fire type being exclusively owned by Volcanion is a dang shame. Um, and this Pokemon and its evolution kind of fulfilling that niche is really cool. This dude is so angry at me and I did nothing. I, I've done nothing. I've done nothing to this man. Why, why, why are you so angry at me? I will say it being pure water type. I feel with in combination with the dex entry and the design, I feel like this could have been water fire type already. Um, because it like spits fire and water. So it's like, why not like give it the fire typing to kind of accent that like ability, you know, unless that's exactly what steam lung does. I can't remember, um, honestly, I can't remember what the ability does, but if that's what it does, then sorry. Also, I just read the dex entry and yeah, the reason that he can't, he just looks angry is because he has no friends because there's really no other water fire types aside from other Tempin. There's only one water fire type, Volcanion. He'd probably, he'd probably be his friend. I'll be your friend, Tempin. Next, we have Temferno, and this is the fire water type. Uh, finally, uh, it also has, uh, it's interesting that its hidden ability is Steam Lung. Tempfin doesn't have a hidden ability, so how would it get the hidden ability? Unless, I guess, I guess you're hunting for Temferno exclusively. I'm not sure if that Temferno is a Pokemon you can get on its own, because then that would make sense for you to be able to get its hidden ability. Um, but if it's only you can get Tempfin to evolve them, then that wouldn't make Anyway, this design is awesome. I love the idea of this kind of like Leviathan Pokemon, the sea serpent. Kind of reminds me of like the, the sea serpents from Avatar The Last Airbender. It kind of having steam vents coming out of its body, um, evolving from this little fish Pokemon, kind of the Magikarp Gyarados effect, um, evolving from this little small fish Pokemon into this raging beast. I, I, I That's like one of my favorite design tropes of Pokemon, of Pokemon is just like this weak little guy, little meek guy evolving into this beast. You know, we have Wimpod, we have Magikarp, we have Feebas, we have all these like examples of it happening. I feel like this dude would be solid for like opening up a hot springs business. If like you could tame a Temperno, you could like open up your own like natural hot springs and just have like a Temperno hanging out below the surface. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like way below the surface. Next up we have Sarah Surf, which I love. This is cute. It's supposed to be based on sea angels, which we do have Manaphy, which is already based on sea angels, but this is such a different take that's like, it's fine. There are so many Pokemon that are just like the same concept, but just done in a different way. It is water fairy type and it has liquid voice, which that's, you know, our other water fairy type that we have is, is uh, Primarina, which also has liquid voice. So that makes sense. I would say makes it a little less unique in, in that way, because it's like, you know, uh, you're giving the same ability to the same type combination. Um, but that's, you know, that's fair. It's, it's what it, it is, what it is. It's all subjective. This is not even, none of this is real. I also like the idea of it being like a guardian angel Pokemon. Like I just, that's fun. It's just like, Hey, you got a Sarah surf watching out for you. You're, you're set. Next up we have Flamingo, which was based on a kind of a joke. Um, it, it, you know, the, uh, putting, you know, flame plus Flamingo is a Flamingo. This, it was kind of based on that joke, but, um, still better than Flamingo. <laughs> I'm just saying, at least it looks really cool. Like if you're gonna have a Flamingo Pokemon that changes one letter to make it a Pokemon, at least it's this. I mean, the idea of a Flamingo being like this kind of fire elemental is just really cool to me. Cause like, yeah, this, 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 it's like, it kind of looks like it could be part of its plumage, but at the same time, it's just like literal fire, which is really fun. I kind of like when, uh, with, when Pokemon play with the literal elements that they're embodying. Next we have Panthenum, which is based on a lionfish. It's poison water type. I think it's solid. I think the idea of making a lionfish look like a literal lion is just so fun. I just, I just really do. I just do. My only comments on this is that I wish that the brown was white instead, um, because I feel it would have made that red, the reds and the purples of this design pop a lot more. Uh, the brown feels like kind of muddies down that that red and 
in in sequence kind of muddies down the the purple. Also, with that coloration, it would kind of be like Periwinkle from Blue's Clues, and that would make my inner child happy. Next, we have Shrilp, which what is there to say about Shrilp that has not already been said? It is amazing. The idea of a ghost shrimp that like has its body being translucent so that it only you know only see the skull, fantastic. It also kind of feels like what are those enemies from uh, Wind Waker that are just the skulls? I think they're called Bubbles. Are they called Bubbles? I can't remember. But yeah, it feels like that. Like you would just see this floating skull in the water and you'd be like, ah, but it's actually just a shrimp. Like for real, the like texturing on this design, like and, and like the way that you can make it look like it's like almost like, well, it kind of looks like it's made of bubbles. Uh, the way that like they, they uh, what's the word? Highlighted the parts of this design. Next up we have Draken. And honestly, like where is she go? Where, where, where'd she go? I'm, I'm on something today. I don't know. Dragon is a dark dragon type and it is great. I think like the idea of a Kraken mixed with a dragon and, or like the, or Drake becoming a Draken, um, also has that kind of mind flayer energy to it. I think it's really epic, really cool. Um, it feels like it's, it, it, it also feels like it could be a legendary Pokemon. If I'm being honest, it feels like it has that, that level of, uh, uh, um, like grandeur to it. The one thing that kind of wish for this design is that the wings were more incorporated with the tentacle aspect, um, because like we have so many tentacles going on here. I feel like two of them could have come out um, and then had the wings come down from those instead. Because right now it kind of feels like the the wings the, the wings do feel like a part of it, but at the same time it's like there's wings coming out of the back of an octopus, which you know Pokemon's done crazier things but um I, that that's pr my personal thing is like you have these tentacles that have the, the tentacle coming up and these little buds i feel like you could have had the little spindly um like uh, what are those called the parts of the wings you know come down out of those and then like been a part of that that may, maybe that would have been too much for the design that's just me picturing it in, in my head that could have also not worked out and maybe you tried that already who knows next up we have scarecrews which i think is a pretty solid name i think i like the you know use of the o's to kind of come into each other it's you know it's 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 this oozing hay bale is, is it a hay bale or it's, it's kind of like a bush of hay um that's supposed to be kind of like a scarecrow mixing in some venom elements in there it says that it was brought to life by an ancient population or ancient peoples um and that it infests these hay bales but it doesn't really say why um, like what, what do, what do these, this virus get out of, you know, inhabiting these hay bales? Uh, or do they get a sense of protection? Do they, um, do, like, do they, is this the only way they can feel complete? Um, is it way, a way of sustaining their life? Like they can't survive without the hay bales? Um, you know, uh, what, what's, what's the distinction there? Cause right now it kind of just feels like two elements put together. Um, and there's like kind of no lore surrounding why exactly they uh, they are together. Next up, we have Hermite, which is a rock ghost type, another type we have yet to see in the actual games. Um, I like this being a reference to like the Gen 1 uh, ghost, like the missing no kind of thing going on. Obviously with its name, it embodies some hermit crab like elements to it too, which is also cute. I had a hermit crab, um, it, like we had a class hermit crab when I was younger and we all loved that thing. Then we have Hermite's like kind of roaming form when it doesn't have like a shell, kind of like a hermit crab when it doesn't have a shell and it's looking for a new one or it's sizing up and stuff like that. Um, I don't see how it's still part rock type. I feel like this form maybe should just be pure ghost because, um, you know, there's no really rock it's inhabiting. Um, kind of like, like, I feel like there's an ability that does that where like it loses its, um, fire typing. I think that might be heat crash where it loses its fire typing momentarily or something like that. This kind of could kind of be like that, except just it's different form. I mean, multiple forms have had different typings for forever. So it's like, like it's unheard of. Next up, we have Kabutops. <laughs> Yet another reference to Missing No, this time in its Kabutops form. Not much more to say than that. It's it's kind of just that, you know, adapted into this kind of design, which I think is fun. And the same can be said for Omen Star, which is the Lord Helix version of the Missing No. One detail I just noticed, and I went back and looked at Kabutops, and it has the same detail, is that within the eye, you can see the little Hermite. You can see the Hermite, like little the little Missing No spirit within its eye, which I think is a nice touch. Next, we have Spookoot, which I believe is an evolution to Hoot Hoot not Noctowl. I believe it's like a split evolution situation where this one is dark flying. It definitely lives up to its name, that dark flying type. It kind of reminds me of Tokoyami from uh, My Hero Academia. Not sure if that was intentional, but those that kind of purple and yellow elements very much remind me of, of, of that guy's quirk. I think the design detail of bringing the foot all the way up um, to its like chest area rather than like hiding it kind of how like when you lift up a, a, an owl, that's what exactly what it looks like. It adds to the creep factor while being like kind of biologically correct. 
Next up, we have Saltorian, which is a rock psychic type. I think it's really interesting. It's like one of those kind of Sigilyph kind of feeling designs where you can't, you don't kind of know what to make of it, or even like Behem, um, where you kind of don't know what to make of it. Um, but it's like it has its own little weird charm to it. It reminds me of like the uh, the, the spirits from uh, Princess Mononoke, the the tree spirits, I believe they're called. After that, we have Centaurian, which is a rock psychic type, and I like the idea of a centaur Pokemon being not. A literal horse half horse half person but like being embodied through something else i also believe this was before we got palkia's uh, uh origin form um palkia and dialga's origin form so so this is the original origin palkia the original origin thing what there's also the little detail of like kind of like the triforce going on in its back legs which is interesting it's funny how this design kind of has a lot of the same elements as uh, uh of palkia origin form as well as dialga origin form before that game even released. Next up, we have Whimper, which is a ghost fairy type, and it is based on the Cheshire Cat, and I just love that so much. Look how cute this thing is. It's it's adorable, but also, like, it has that feeling of the Cheshire Cat where you're, like, not quite sure where its intentions are, but it also just, just is fun to look at. I do wish the pose was a little bit more uh, slanted to the other, like, turned, so that you could see more of the kind of unraveling body that it has because it kind of just you can kind of see a little window of it but you can't see the full thing like and I, I imagine with a 3d model you would be able to but as far as like just a fake bond art perspective i kind of wish it was you could see more of that unraveling body because i think it's a really fun design detail next up we have whiskers which is just a natural evolution to whimper it, I, I love that it has that kind of ghastly gengar feeling to it while being its own cat pokemon as well it just combines those elements in a fun way that makes it feel unique while also being reminiscent of other pokemon this is one i would definitely have on my team if i were traveling through Solympia. the ghost fairy typing is just awesome as well as the design itself is just so fun to look at next up we have adorsum which is a water rock type and it's like an invertebrate of some kind i don't i don't remember what this was based on um i do like its little it's a widow teeth it has widow two first i think that's cute um but that actually makes it really endearing <laughs> like just having those two little teeth changes the entire design for me like you have these veins going on in the back but when you look at that face you just that that gosh darn face you know after that we have a jawsome which i think is a great name it's funny it's just like putting jaw in the middle of awesome but like it also still works because it's like jawsome or, or, or uh, Jossum. I, I guess Jossum also could have worked because it's like, it's full of jaw, but at the same, but yeah, I guess that would just, no, yeah, you could still do that. Anyway, it kind of reminds me, um, spoilers, spoilers, AOT spoilers, um, but it kind of reminds me of the, the kind of creature uh, the, that like kind of comes out of Aaron um, in the, you know what I mean? I, that, what that, whatever that creature is that what, like essentially birthed the, the Titans. I don't know if that has like an actual name. It reminds me of that. Next up, we have Arachnid, which is a psychic grass type. And I just love this Pokemon because of its design inspiration, which are the Spriggans from Skyrim and the Elder Scrolls series, I believe. It's an elemental, but also plays into an Arachne, which is like, you know, a half person, half spider, which is a Greek myth kind of tying in that kind of overarching Greek theme within the Solympia region. Next up, we have Arachne, which is, I believe, Arachne plus Fey, but I am fairly certain there are other pronunciations of Arachne that sound like Arachne. Um, uh, so maybe I'm wrong on that one, but I'm not 100% on the name there. Um, but I mean, we have Pokemon like Seal, so like, and Dugong. So who can really complain here, I guess. I have the same things to say about it that I did Arachnid. I think it's just a really fun design. I like the glowy green elements of it. And it's, you know, based on Spriggans, which I like the Spriggans from Skyrim. Next up, we have Escar Cloak. I believe it's pronounced that way because like Escar Go. Um, but I think it could also be Escar Clock because it's like Lock, like Loch Ness Monster, I believe. That's kind of the idea behind it. It's very water type and it, it gives off a draconic feeling even though it is a fairy type. And I really like the addition of the shell being very highly reminiscent of Slowbro and Slowking's like shelter, helmet, and tail. It's a really fun and colorful Pokemon that evokes its typing very well. Next up, we have Solympian Lapras, and Toby did my girl right. I love Lapras so much. It's one of my favorite Pokemon for it to get a grass water type and it kind of have this like bushy shell as well as these like kind of tendrils coming out of its mouth. I think it's so fun. I did a Lapras form in Cornera and I really enjoyed that. And this kind of has that same kind of feeling to it as that. I believe in the storyline, even like Corneran Lapras and Solympian Lapras kind of have the same thing where they try to avoid humans. 
or, or they're rarer to see or something like that. I, I feel like I remember that being a part of the series where you saw uh, a Lapras and they were kind of rarer to see. Either way, it's a really cool design that makes some simple changes that make all the difference. Next up, we have Seijin, which is a grass rock type and it is the wizard Pokemon. I can definitely see the wizard feeling to it. I feel like it, it kind of feels a little bit redundant when we have uh, Solimpia and Alakazam because um, that is already kind of a wizardy Pokemon. Um, the design is pretty cool. I, I think it has another one of those things where it's like a little too much uh, uh, grass elements going on. The vines with the leaves and then the leaves on top of the leaves. Um, and it kind of the, the vines kind of take away from the face because like the face is a cool face. It has some really dis cool design details going on there. But the vines kind of distract you from that, in my opinion. You can definitely tell what it's going for. Having that kind of sage, you know, old statue overgrown to Flana. Flana? Lana. Overgrown with Fauna that ultimately tells you some hidden truth or hidden wisdom uh, kind of thing, like comes to life and tells you some kind of hidden truth. Kind of like Great Deku Tree, but like as a rock statue. Next up, we have Marion, which is a dark grass type, and I believe its evolutions kind of evoke Puppet Ganon um, from Wind Waker. So many really cool Wind Waker references in this region, and Wind as Wind Waker is one of my favorite uh, Legend of Zelda games, it like makes my heart happy. I love when I love when Dex entries say like you've never seen one born in the wild, because then it's like if you then go breed it, then it's like, I, I guess it would probably be in the unbreedable category, um, which I think would be a fun little lore addition there. But if it isn't, if it does have like an egg category, I think it would be interesting to be like, oh, I bred the first one, come look. As far as design, it's really simple. You can kind of see what it's leading into. It's gonna lead into that kind of puppet cannon kind of feeling. Um, I like the idea of a puppet Pokemon. It almost kind of feels like a cinnamon roll like the kind of swirly hair and then like the brown bottom it kind of feels like a cinnamon roll not sure if that was intentional but it reminds me of like the angry little cinnamon roll does anybody remember that video like like in the late 2000s and here is hypnotrist exactly as promised this is kind of a puppet ganon kind of thing going on there i love the multiple arms feeling you know like an arachnid without being an arachnid it's got that it's got that vague animalistic feeling going on to it because it's supposed to be a marionette it's supposed to be you know it's pokemon in general they have kind of a lot of them kind of have that vagueness to what their inspiration is as far as the animal side of things i really like the idea that hypmothic and hypnotrist kind of have like hypnotism battles i like little lore expansions like that in the dex entries i wonder if hypno would get in on that like do you think they would also want to try and get into this like hypnotism battle after that we have coink which is a steel fairy type and it's a, it's a it's a it's a it's a piggy bank and i love that and it's also kind of like when pigs fly and it's so cute like honestly it could be a mascot pokemon honestly also giving it levitate as an ability to acknowledge it's like flying i think is really cool and so kind of to subvert the flying type rather than you know having it be flying type it, it, it subverts that by having levitate next up we have hot golden which is an evolution to coink it is also steel fairy type and I really like the kind of pot of gold that it's coming out, out of. I like the like the design element of it coming out of a, a pot of gold like that. Um, and the kind of, uh, I'm pretty, pretty sure that's a pokey dollar tail as well. If I were to change this design, I would kind of re remove the hair and then like kind of the handle on the side of the kind of pot of gold because you can kind of get the pot of gold without the handle and it just adds an extra element that I feel isn't necessary to this design. I also just noticed it has like coins on its like hands, which I think is also cool. I would also make it so that the wings match up um, like they kind of mirrors of each other rather than the kind of perspective thing that's going on here where um, the right side is way bigger than the left side. Um, it is like the perspective is fine, but I think the perspective of the right wing is just a little too exaggerated um, to the point where it feels like I mean, that's like literally the, the, the right wing is the size of the entire design. So I, I would have I would have tailored the wings to be a bit smaller um, and like had them be more like the left side. Overall, it's a solid design and I really like the name Hot Golden. After that, we have Tyclone, which is an electric flying type. Um, and this is kind of a rival to another Pokemon that's a cloud based Pokemon called Zelossus. And the my one kind of gripe with this design, uh, it's not even the design itself. The design is solid. It's that we have also in later you'll see we have another kind of cyclone based Pokemon that's actually like the main like one of the main legendary Pokemon of the uh, of Pokemon Tempest. It's like the, it is the Tempest Pokemon. With there being a Tempest, it ultimately makes sense that there's multiple wind based you know Pokemon in this region. They would probably adapt to the wind. I think having two cyclone based Pokemon in the same region. Um, with kind of similar design traits it feels kind of redundant to me especially when one has like a huge role in the story aside from that as a cyclone pokemon regardless of if there's another one i think it's a solid design i like the idea of this being like a parasite that infects zelosis 
um, and like sw swirls them around and turns into turns into this like electric flying type thing. I think it's a really cool concept and really solid concept. I just feel like it's taken away a little bit by having the main legendary be kind of a similar concept. I'm not sure if Toby connected them lore wise, if maybe there is some kind of connection be between Tyclone and that legendary. Um, but yeah, I, I don't remember there being like a huge focus put on Tyclone in that legendary unless like I even or even like using Tyclone as like maybe ads in, in in a boss fight like something some things you have to defeat before defeating the main legendary I can't even remember if that was a part of it maybe it was and I'm just forgetting and then we have Zolossus which we had talked about uh Tyclone inhabiting um Zolossus you know this big cloud Pokemon I think is so cool I've used clouds as like an inspiration for flying types in my designs frequently enough that I'm like I need to probably take a break on that um I just think it's fun I think it's so fun and I know that I've done it a few times now but I just enjoy doing it I just really like how this is a grumpy old cloud Pokemon it just has this this grumpy old man appearance to it which is a fun take on the a cloud Pokemon next up we have Sleedle which is an ice bug type and I really like this design this is its form without a snowball um, and I believe JJ Mons did this design. Uh, I think to I remember Toby saying that JJ Mons did this and I love JJ Mons. We work with JJ Mons regularly on this channel. Um, so it's always cool to see a design of theirs, pun intended. <laughs> I, I was actually the pun wasn't intended, but now it is intended. I really like the idea of a dung beetle rolling up snow rather than, you know, dung and it having these kind of like furry elements on its on its cuffs kind of having like a like a long sleeve almost parka kind of thing going on it almost looks like a jacket with its shell it looks like kind of like one of those poofy jackets with its shell I love when Pokemon incorporate clothes into the design I mean we've seen this a couple times throughout this region and I like it pretty much every time here is Sleedle in its snowball form and it's just amazing it's just like it's so huge look how huge that snowball is and it's it's fantastic and uh it reminds me of like that Mario Party mini game when you're trying to roll up snowballs and shoot them at each other. But also it reminds me of GMAX Cinderace in that same way. Also the way it's posed, it's just like, attack, charge, brethren. You know, I it makes me endeared to it even more. After that, we have Harapin, which is a flying poison type. And I love the flying poison type combination. We've only seen it with the Zubat line and we need, we need more. We need more. I say this all the time. We need more. And using a harpy to display that type combination is even cooler the pose to me feels a little awkward i don't know how to put my finger on it it just doesn't feel like it's displaying harapin's traits in the most effective way um that being said like it says in its deck entry that it's the baby of the sky and babies famous for not knowing how to operate their body properly so maybe harapin just didn't get the pose right when the person was sketching up this there there are you know <laughs> like that from a lore perspective I don't know uh it just kind of feels a little quirky to me and Harapin evolves into Fury Pin and I think this design is it does exactly what I was kind of trying to say it like it, it displays this the cool elements of this design it, it's a simple pose it's a simple pose and it's kind of straightforward but it also displays a lot of the really cool um aspects of this design this being the sky knight pokemon it like comes from being this like kind of quirky kid to being this like knightly presence in the sky while still being a poison type which is cool not like not being like a steel type traditional like knightly feeling thing i think is really cool i'm also just kind of a fan when character designs like hide their face a little bit like you know that's kind of maybe that's just the edge lord in me kind of like inumaki or even uh grisha is it grisha grusha grusha it's grusha grisha is is uh, a really bad dad Fury Pin evolves into Seraphim, which is a great progression of the name coming from like Seraphim. Um, and it being a flying fairy type, it's kind of like redeemed itself from the poison typing. Um, once again, one of those things where it's like, I'm not, it serves the greater design story. I don't think it serves the Pokemon itself being two stages of poison and then suddenly fairy. Um, I guess you could just Eviolite Fury Pin and have like a solid poison type Pokemon. The design though, the design though infusing elements of a, you know a biblically accurate angel someone said that like biblically accurate angel isn't the correct term maybe seraphim is i'm not sure what the exact terminology for that kind of angel is but like infusing that into this design it kind of feels like garudamon to me from from digimon it feels like garudamon mixed with its evolution ho -Oh mon which you know yeah i know i know there's ho-oh the pokemon but there's ho -Oh mon the digimon which has these four wings um and i just think that's so cool it's just such a cool design the eye being on the chest rather than in its face it just it's like haunting but at the same time it's epic and it's a, a pokemon i definitely would love to have on my team it almost feels like an ultra beast to me like this could be like ub seraph or something like that or ub angel just because of how different it feels from the a, a typical like pokemon design like ubs kind of broke 
what a Pokemon design could be, and they added like all these extra features and stuff like that. Like this being a, a vortex of wings kind of feels like kind of Guzzlord in a way. How like Guzzlord is kind of like a kind of all these like different hands and things coming out of it. It has that same vibe, that same effect to me. After that, we have Griffoon, which I love that this is pure flying type for one, and for two, it's like a fusion between Braviary and Arcanine. And I love that. Like, of course, in the Pokemon world where there's we have like Arcanine, which is almost this lion like dog um, infusing in an eagle, which is Braviary into that design. I, I know like I'm pretty sure a Griffin is supposed to be part lion, but like whatever it's, you know, the, the Arcanine kind of feels like a, a tiger. So it's it's close enough and it's epic. So don't question it with the coloration. It feels like it could be ice type, but like really doesn't need it. Like not every white Pokemon needs to be part ice type. Next up, we have Solympian Onyx, which is the ice type, referencing the Crystal Onyx episode of the anime, which has been like a hallmark of, of, of Bird Keeper Toby's channel. And this dude is just so monstrous feeling. I love that. It just looks angry. It's, it's, it's coiling around, about to attack you. This pose is fantastic. Simple changes that are super effective, and I, I just love it. After that, we have Solympian Steelix, which has these kind of crystals growing out of it, and, you know, also invoking the Crystal Onyx, um, but also a little bit of Mega Steelix. Ice types are typically pretty frail, so having this bulky ice type with, with ice harder than steel is really neat, and I think it, it's, it's, it's well needed, honestly. After that, we have Cerebat, which is a psychic flying type, and yeah, you can definitely see it's a psychic flying type. Like, I, I, don't, I don't even think I needed to say the type there. This thing is so freaky looking to me. It just looks like the head of a fully evolved Pokemon with wings of a, le a lesser evolved Pokemon. The brain pattern on it kind of feels a little a bit like an afterthought, like maybe it could have been a bit more intentional. It kind of just feels like, you know, Squiggles kind of loosely put around that area to try to make it feel like a brain, but I feel like it could have been more intentional with that design trait. I really like this Pokemon's concept. I think it, like the kind of idea of being a mind vampire, uh, like, you know, or, or even like a kind of an energy vampire in a way um, is, is fun and um, it almost has that of uh, that idea of like a flying head. Like I know I said earlier that um, it looks like the head of an adult Pokemon put on with like the wings and you know of the of a base stage, um, and I think that plays into it pretty well with it kind of almost feeling like a floating head, kind of kind of like Shrilp was, um, where it's just like this flying head flying at you. Of course you would be freaking terrified. And then it evolves into Vampirain, and honestly, this feels like Mandark to me from Dexter's Laboratory. It feels very much like if like Mandark was a Pokemon. It has this big old brain and these kind of goofier glasses, and it's like all wrapped up in itself, um, you know, giving that kind of Dracula, Count Dracula vibe to it. I love its category of the mind munching Pokemon, just munching, munching on a brain. It being wrapped up like that makes it still kind of feel like a floating head. Um, I, I feel like it, the, the, while the reference is really cool of like the kind of Dracula draped in a cloak thing, um, or even like it hanging upside down, um, pretty much probably how you would naturally see it according to its dex entry. It, it limits the design and makes it kind of like uh, it kind of partitions the design where it's like brain face body where the body doesn't feel like it has super unique aspects to it like if you had maybe like had one of the part of the cloak do this and then the other part come out like this like bleh, you know um, you could have seen parts of the body and maybe given some of the interior some extra design traits after that we have wall rice which is an ice water type and this is like yet another one um, where it was kind of like almost a form of convergent evolution where it's like it, it's a combination of Snorlax and, and Walrein which you know a bear and a walrus don't really share a lot in common except for like the kind of more blubbery aspect of their like, their designs. I know it's not blubber on Snorlax it's like stored fat and stuff like that like bears do went for to hibernate for the winter but still it kind of that, that shared basic idea. Even in the deck entry, it talks about convergent evolution. So, like, yet another Pokemon that was a convergent Pokemon before there were convergent Pokemon. Though, it doesn't have the kind of same, like, vibe of, uh, of reflecting either of the Pokemon completely. It, it, it lands more in the middle, which I honestly think is, is a, a more fun way and, like, is a form of getting us getting more, like, Pokemon fusions or Pokemon hybrids. I think that would be a fun way to tackle that within the Pokemon sphere. After that, we have Claudel and by god this is not the cutest thing i've ever seen in my life look how cute he is like this is another one that needs a plush i'm just saying there's another one that needs a plush it just does it just does it's like a little teddy bear i want to hold him and i want to sketch him and i know that's the point of his concept and you're not supposed to do that but i want to do it anyway it kind of plays into a sloth bear a little bit you can kind of see those savage claws like yeah you know bears look really cute and you want to cuddle them because they look like cute little big old dogs or whatever but like you shouldn't do that and that culminates in embarrass which is like it also sounds like embarrass it's, it's supposed to be like embrace but it also sounds like embarrass like you're gonna be embarrassed if you try and hug this pokemon and like it mercs you it's a ground dark type 
playing into that. It's the bear trap Pokemon. It makes itself look happy and look fun to hug before trapping you in an embrace of death. Next up, we have Solympian Agron. And my honest take is that I think this should be like an completely new evolution to Laron, like a split evolution or regional split evolution or something like that. It's just that different from Agron. Um, that being said, it's a really freaking cool Pokemon. It's an insanely cool Pokemon. Um, like this croc, like giving these crocodilian aspects to the Agron uh, design is is so sick. And like the point where you meet it in the story is also a really fun point to me. I really enjoy that kind of like a little bit more of a side quest that we did uh, to get to the like water type gym. I also enjoyed the gym leader. I can't quite remember their name, but I enjoyed the gym leader. Um, they had a really fun personality. This Pokemon really encapsulates the epicness that Pokemon can have in the, like all the best ways. Um, it doesn't feel insanely over designed. Like there are a few elements maybe I would like simplify a little bit, but I, 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 I don't know. I don't think I don't can't, I can't tell even where I would start. Um, I think it's just so epic that it really doesn't need to. After that, we have Solympian Aegislash, which is Steel Fairy type. Love this design. Love the idea behind it. Love it. It's like it's kind of like Excalibur feeling Lady of the Lake sword kind of vibe going on to it, uh, which is probably why it gets that fairy type. Giving Aegislash these softer, almost pastel colors works so well, what, like along with the like thinning of its blade. So it's not this like bulky blade, but just like this thin, elegant blade. Honestly, I'd love to see the entire line done in this style, though I know like, you know, it's it's expensive to commission artwork. So, you, you know, gotta save where you can. After that, we have Exwomari, a steel water type, and this dude, is awesome he's just it kind of feels like it's just a robotic little creature just a robotic little guy it, it, i love the idea of the the like kind of cranium of a squid or or an octopus um uh being a grenade <laughs> that's just that's so cool and so just and it's simple too it like makes the design simple you can see what it is it's like oh grenade head like robotic body feels feels is, is it cephalopod is that what it is a cephalopod it is a cephalopod i need to stop doubting myself i'm correct most of the time and you know, if you if I'm not, you guys will correct me anyway. Next up, we have Squiboom, which is the evolution to Ex Exquamari. Honestly, I feel like Squiboom fits fits Exquamari better, and like this name Exquamari fits this name better because this one is like super explosive, where the other one feels like it's like a, a boom. You know, like this is a this is a boom, but this one's an explosion. Regardless of that, I think this is a mixture of the uh, giant blooper from Super Mario Sunshine and those squids that you see in uh, Legend of Zelda: Wind Waker. There was a lot of giant squids going on in the GameCube era. I'm not sure if Toby clarified that this is an experimental Pokemon, like some kind of Pokemon that was born from human technology, but it definitely feels like it. It feels like something like maybe the Aether Foundation would have experimented with uh, to, I don't know, try and hunt the Ultra Beasts. Maybe the Aether Foundation is trying to expand into the Solympia region um, and like take out Dra the Draken because it says like the Draken is trying to kill the Draken, I believe. Yeah, it says the Draken are their rival, so maybe like Aether Foundation was trying to push through into the the the, the Solympia region um, to try and expand their domain, maybe before the events of Sun and Moon. Who knows? After this, we have Calm Ice. Um, this is yet another one. I kind of talked about how the type, or like where the type changes each level. Um, I think th this one does it well because of the design story, and each of them feel like unique enough that that justifies their like, like type situation. And I honestly feel like maybe it should have been saved for this Pokemon specifically because it feels like it's very intentional in its design that it should be three different types along the way um, because of the nature of a comet. It's kind of like some of the comments I got on a legendary bird of every type where they were saying like, you know, making an Eevee clone uh, like this makes Eevee less special. It kind of has that same kind of effect, like when you have a Pokemon that's early on that changes types each level, and then you have one that's later on that does it, it kind of takes away from the one that does it later on. Not to say that this isn't a freaking awesome design, I really like it, like the Ice Rock type, also a fun type. A lot of people dunk on it because it's quad weak to fighting and uh, and, and whatever, uh, but I think it's a fun type. I think fun, fun, like type combinations, regardless of their weaknesses and stuff like that, are just fun to see sometimes. Next up, we have Median, which is a Fire Rock type, changing that type from Ice to Fire. Um, which makes sense, kind of melting off as, a, you know, a, a meteor enters orbit uh, or, or, or a comet enters orbit. It, like, starts to melt off and, like, become, you know, engulfed in flames, which makes sense for this design for sure. And this design is smaller than Calm Ice, which I think is a fun design trait that, like, as it evolves, it gets smaller and smaller because that's what happens when, you know, a, a, a comet or a, or a meteor enters our atmosphere. It breaks away and gets smaller and smaller. And finally, we have Fragmite, which is an electric rock type, and I really love this design. It almost reminds me of like some kind of Power Rangers character of some kind. I don't know why. It's just the design feels so solid in that regard, and, like, the 
rock has turned into this like diamond like this uh the, like you know the meteorite diamond some kind of like uh harnessable elements um it's the new star pokemon so like it, it's become um like gone from fire to becoming plasma in a way the design story of this is like big things come in small packages kind of thing like it may be the smallest of this evolution line but it's the strongest it's also the coolest looking he just like looks like a total dude like one of those like 2000s kind of character designs where like like jet set radio where you have that design guy who just like looks super cool because he's wearing these like goggles or whatever that's probably why i equated it to power rangers is because it has that like singular goggle design with like the mouthpiece after that we have ko ko which is an ice rock type um and this was i believe from a very early video on in an, on toby's channel um talking about i believe it was like common ancestors and stuff like that because you know this pokemon is named the ancestor pokemon and it's believed to be the ancestor of fox pokemon everywhere as it says in its next entry and i can definitely see it you can see kind of like rock rough coming in through here a little bit of growl like growlith isn't even a, a, a fox pokemon but you can see that in there um you can see some elements of 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 alolan vulpix because of that ice rock typing also i know that rock rough isn't a fox pokemon you don't have to come for me I know it's more of a wolf pokemon but it still has that kind of feeling to it where like the, the the poofiness of its of its fur feels very much like rock rough and as well as these like kind of head spikes going on feels like lichen rock after that we have kaoki kaoki um which is great i love this i just it's such a cool design it's very sleek it's giving out what's that was that like really long-legged like wolf or fox something or other there's like a, a specific breed um or maybe it's like a, a thing of myth i can't remember there's like the long-legged wolves or something like that um and it very much feels like that but not in a creepy way but in a very epic and elegant way after that we have diavern which is an ice dragon type and this thing is so neat it feels like i you can see it in its like claws but it feels very necrozma maybe some kind of uh situation where it's like comes from the same planet or or or, or dim dimension as necrozma um i'm not sure if that was like a part of the idea but um it definitely feels like maybe this thing could have come through an ultra wormhole at some point the wings are really like i really like the mist wings i would you have this kind of diamond pattern going on throughout all of the design and then suddenly when the wings it changes the design i would have just like kept those diamonds like lining it rather than this kind of spiky ice just to kind of continue that same kind of design story you have going on there this to me feels like it could definitely fit in as like a Yu-Gi-Oh monster um and i wouldn't think twice about it i think it's really epic and it's like it's like blue eyes ice dragon or something like that i don't know after that we have electric which is an electric dragon type and i love that name it's very very punny um you can see these three eyes coming out of uh, out of it and it has these little tendrils coming out of its the, the egg itself it reminds me of digitamamon um did i know i know if i've compared a lot to digimon and i don't mean that as a bad thing at all i love digimon i love digimon so much um and i think digimon are awesome and i think people calling pokemon oh it looks like a digimon is as an insult is is dumb like i think that's a that's a bad insult because digimon designs are all like most of them are pretty epic anyway making an egg pokemon that feels different from togepi and execute is a, is an awesome feat uh by toby here and it almost evokes kind of like a same like that mimikyu feeling or or you know that thing of something hiding underneath the surface um that's about to come out mimikyu doesn't ever come out but you know it, you can tell this this is about to evolve and boy what an evolution we have thundra which is of course a reference to king Ghidorah from the godzilla franchise a dragon pokemon made up of pure electric energy like i said earlier i love like when pokemon embody the element that they are and this is no exception like i think this is super epic um it, it's simple it kind of feels like you can see some like traces of reggie alecky um in that like kind of tail area there it kind of feels like reggie alecky's uh arms all the while this is a reference to the hydra bringing in that greek inspiration as well after that we have lagaladon which is a fairy ground type there's another form as well um this one is the dragon slayer pokemon i believe uh, uh toby said this was made by phoebe uh cup of Fee. if you have not checked out their channel they are a friend of the channel and a friend of mine that you should definitely check out they're making some really quality content over on their channel i believe the story was that this was a pokemon phoebe was working on and uh toby thought it would work for this region and so the, you know toby implemented it into this region i'm not exactly sure the inspiration it kind of is giving me like uh, a Volpertinger um or Wolpertinger I, I'm I'm pretty I was trying to pronounce it German I don't know if that worked um but you, the Wolpertinger is like a a, a part uh like kind of like a um a jackalope but it has like wings that's what this kind of gives me but I like that the horns kind of feel like an extension of the fur I think that's really cool and it kind of feels draconic in and of itself with these kind of this kind of curly long like mustache or like antennae 
here is its other form and this one feels a little bit more sweet and innocent like the other one feels like like it's bigger and this one feels like maybe it's like it's smaller almost like uh kind of like not as drastic but like the hoopa to hoopa unbound kind of feeling to it like this one feels like much more elegant i mean i think the ice ground type like the bringing in that ice ice kind of has a certain feels like a certain elegance to it like the softness and the quietness of snow i feel like that gets brought into ice type designs pretty well i like you know big example is alone in nine tails this one definitely feels more rabbit like the last one felt like a mixture of like a rat and a rabbit but this one definitely feels like an arctic hare of sorts and i definitely think this is based on a wolper ginger i mean look at these little wings coming out of its like backside like you can kind of see um that in the previous design as well um it also like the the main kind of has it reminds me of my little pony and i mean that in a, a super positive way my daughter loves My Little Pony, and I enjoy watching it with her. After that, we have Oceatus. I think this is the, uh, another, yet another like kind of legendary Pokemon. Um, this is an elemental, and it's based, I believe, you can see it in the mask. It's based on uh, like kind of like the Twilight masks from from uh, Pokemon Pokemon from Zelda Twilight Princess Pokemon Twilight Princess. Hmm, there's a thought. Anyway, this is the elemental of water, much the same as kind of like the Regis are. This is like uh, Solympia's equivalent to that, um, uh, but in its own like unique way where it feels a little bit more um like literal like it's just water with the mask like the, the mask you know is is i don't is the mask the, the the body or is the water the body i assume the mask is the body and the water forms around the mask i believe there's some kind of lore that this pokemon was split off from uh, a legendary pokemon um I, I think i think thundra actually has something to do with it i might be mistaken i believe that there was some kind of lore that like there was a Pokemon that was like of almighty power and then like its body split in, into pieces um, and like Thundra was the body and then these were like or something something to that effect. Moving on to the next elemental, we have Heliphos, which is the fire elemental. It's the sun child Pokemon, you know, Helios, the sun kind of got getting that inspiration in there. I will say I don't know if I'm as much of a fan of the kind of literal Galarian Moltres and slash Moltres elements infused into there i feel uh maybe they could have been incorporated a little bit differently to make it feel uh like i think the wings i think it's mostly the wings like if you had made the wings let's have that black part to them and just made them more i, I think you could have even you know you have this uh the the regular moltres fire at the, the bottom i feel like it could be incorporated have been incorporated into the top to to be the bridge like the kind of like the arm of the wing uh rather than this like uh black part because it feels like the uh um the actual mole trace elements is kind of almost an afterthought like a like a thing you did in coloration not like it was as uh, as intentional i guess that being said there is something to the rule of cool you know uh, uh toby is a, a D, D player and they're i, I don't know if, i'm pretty sure they're a dungeon master as well and you gotta follow the rule of cool sometimes and in this case like is it cool to have like kind of a weird hybrid between mole trace and galarian mole trace sure yeah it is and so why not do it you know but not everything needs to be completely dissected to death but this is just me that's part of the region review so um yeah <laughs> after this we have guyana uh Gion is it guyanus or guyanus is it supposed to be guyanus uh i'm not quite sure um this is the grass elemental and here is yet another gripe of mine uh this makes three tornado pokemon in the region total um and this is the embodiment of the grass elements um and so it does have that in the top half but this uh, kind of whirlwind um elements is like okay well shouldn't it be an embodiment of air as well like why is it this uh embodiment of grass but there's like it feels like there's this air element to it too that's not presented in its type there's something to be said about the wind carrying like aspects like you can see there's like berries and stuff in its in its uh tornado that probably or gets carried and planted in other places um, I, but as far as like a, an embodiment of an element, I feel like um, making such a huge focus air rather than the grass element that it is, I feel it like, takes away a little bit. On its own, the design is really cool. I think it's a cool design. I mean, I um, I think in one of these Cyclone designs, um, I believe it was the Legendary, that um, Toby said that, that that was one of the first Pokemon they had ever drawn or, or something like that, or something that like one of the Pokemon they drew when they were little. And I was obsessed with like the tornado things when I was uh, little, like... A lot of my drawings are filled with these like mo monsters that have like a, a tornado body but like then like this you know kind of this 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 kind of thing almost i i probably drew something akin to guyanus in in some of my books as well when i was younger um and this this uh, the Slimpia region is kind of an embodiment of that for toby so i know i've clarified this a bunch but anything i'm saying here is not meant out of rudeness or anything like that after that we have the pseudo legendary of the Slimpia region or should i say the kind of like hidden pseudo legendary of the region because 
Um, this is meant to reflect Capon. That's why it's called Mimichick. It's a pure flying type. It's the Mimic Pokemon. It's meant to mimic Mimichick. So people think it's a Mimichick or um, think it's a Capon. Um, it's kind of that idea that birds, they will like lay their eggs or some like, there's some birds that like look similar to a certain bird. Um, and so they will like lay their eggs in that bird's nest and like when the bird is a baby that that bird will get tricked into feeding um the wrong babies that aren't their babies and then eventually they'll like push them out it's like awful it's, it's, it's one of the most awful feeling things in nature but that's the basic idea of this pokemon it's trying to look like cap on so he can steal the food from their parents and stuff like that mimichick evolves into foul raptor which is a flying poison type um and it is uh you know it looks exactly like a scraptor uh, it's still carrying on that, that that idea, like the male Scrapter at least, um, but but being different enough that it, you can definitely recognize this is its own Pokemon. But this is kind of a middle stage to kind of show you that the veil is slowly lifting. Like this is not, you know, a Mimichick. This is not a Mimic anymore. This is its own thing. Um, it still kind of looks like this Pokemon, but like there is a final stage that completely breaks from those those tropes. And that is Avalisk, which is a Poison Dragon type, and this thing is so freaking cool. It has that intimidation factor that a pseudo legendary should have and feels completely unique to anything a, a pseudo legendary has done before. This is once again one of those Pokemon that changes type each time it evolves, which I feel like maybe we should have had Mimichick just be a flying poison type from the start so that way we could kind of solve that problem. Um, uh, just so, you know, because it is an, you know, it doesn't need to be pure flying type. If it, it's one way to differentiate that, you know, Mimichick and Capon is adding that poison type to the end of it. Regardless of that, this is a Pokemon I definitely would want to have on my team. I know, like, a lot of people would definitely want the pseudo legendary on their team because it's strong, but, you know, I didn't, I didn't really, um, use Dragapult or Vaxcalibur in my playthroughs of Sword and Shield and, and, uh, uh, Scarlet and Violet. I feel like a lot of the time the pseudo legendary is a very late game addition and then you have to grind it up a bunch. So it's like, you kind of, really have to work for a pseudo legendary and for this one i would definitely want to put in the work after that we have Tidafoon, which is the pokemon that i've been talking about this legendary pokemon it's a flying dark type and it is the pokemon that brings around the tempest which pokemon tempest is kind of named after i really like Tidafoon. i think this design is so solid it, it once again has like elements of gengar that i appreciate but it has this like really long tail that goes throughout the design which i think works really well with the cyclone that it has going on around it this tornado it has going around it you can feel that its tail almost controls this tornado like it this wherever its tail goes the tornado goes as well um and like it feels like the tornado is like an organic part of its body uh just so much as the tail is and this is Tidafoon's kind of like more like unleashed form which again you can see the tail kind of going up into that storm that it has um and uh, it's so it's like this this is giving definitely uh gmax gengar I pro this is probably a little bit of a design inspiration there uh definitely gives that same kind of vibe that terrifying gaping maw that it has um, is, is definitely scary. You would definitely not want to be on the uh, front end of that. Also, the eyes, kind of like Scarecrews, are giving this kind of venom feeling to it, which I quite enjoy. After that, we have Aelura, which is a flying rock type, and it has this kind of like more Grecian statue atop this, you know, ball of air akin to the ones that uh, Aang would make in Avatar The Last Airbender. It kind of has that like Celebi, Mew, Hoopa, Jirachi kind of feeling to it. I really love Pixie Mythical, so of course I really like this as well. I can see it fluttering about like Aang does on the like, you know, the air ball that he makes. I can't, there's a name to it and I can't put my, I can't remember what the name is. After that, we have the Primordials, which I think are an interesting take, kind of like an own, their own like little unique legendary subgroup. Kind of like the Ultra Beasts in a way. I think the kind of glowing design trip that they have going on to them throughout these different designs is really fun. Starting with Beta, we have a, the, the Dark Grass type. They're all part Dark, I believe. This one, of course, being based on the Trojan Horse, which was thought to be a gift, was but was ultimately, you know, the demise of the Trojan people. The idea of this like, kind of archaic thing that was, that was supposed to be a gift but turned into a weapon made into like a, its own devastating creature is super unique and super cool. After that, we have Kappa, which I... It's just brilliant just brilliant like of course like there's kappa which is the greek you know they're all based off of greek letters but there's kappa but there's also a kappa which is the japanese mythological creature you know and i think that's so fun that's so, it's such a fun little coincidence this one is of course dark water type i think they all kind of represent a different kind of element as it were we're not an element but like a you know a different type i think the kind of blue glowing elements against the grays and the greens is really really nice touch it, it really uh pops against those two colors and the kind of like water pool that's on the top of the kappa's head it it, it looks like it's glowing as well but it, it looks like it could be like almost like a cannon it fires water blasts out of 
Not sure if that was intentional, but that's it looks cool. Following Kappa, we have Sigma, which is kind of this like mermaid, almost like siren Pokemon. Um, and his dark ice type, which I think is such a fun, unique take on like the, kind of these aquatic uh, creatures that are the mermaids and sirens. Also the tridents, you know, associated with Poseidon, who is also associated with merfolk, um, being, you know, integrated into the tail, I think is really cool. I think it being gold um, is, is, I think maybe it could have been more in line with the hair color of Sigma because the gold kind of just feels out of place in this design like we have these like greens and whites and blues but suddenly there's this gold element not to say Pokemon can't have touches of unique coloration I just think it's like it just kind of feels out of place but I really enjoy like the this darker take on a mermaid or, or, or a siren as it were I really like this darker take for a for this kind of Pokemon I think um, there's a lot of folklore of, of the, the darker sides of these creatures that is missed out on by Pokemon, um, that I think, that, or in, in creatures in general that they do, that I think, um, some are very well executed, but some, I feel like we go for the, like, the happy part. I feel like there we can get some of the, those darker aspects in there as well. After that, we have Epsilon, which I believe is kind of like, almost like a partner to Upsilon, which we'll see next. This one is a dark fire type, though. Um, I will, I won't lie. I don't see the fire as much in this design i don't i don't i don't feel fire i feel more fighting from this design um like the red aspects almost feel like the kind of fighting red like the the red of of the fighting type is kind of more like a orangish dark orangish red and this kind of gives me that same feeling the design is very intimidating and i do like it i think it's a really cool design it kind of feels like wear sonic from uh, sonic unleashed it gives that that kind of feeling a little bit while i know while i know for certain this wasn't intentional the kind of claws are kind of like doing those are like, hey, who a touch of my spaghetti? <laughs> That's just a stupid observation, but it's just, it's just, it made me laugh. After that, we have Upsilon, the partner to Epsilon, and it's a dark ghost type. It kind of has that kind of uh, uh, lichen almost feeling to it, that, that werewolfy spirit to it. But I think this one is supposed to be more cat like. Um, and, you know, where cats exist, where tigers, where, you know, where any kind of cat creature also exists. I do quite enjoy the posing of this one. It has that feeling of a cat that's like really like angry, like the, the fur gets raised and it's like, get away from me, you know? Uh, it's, it's like, it, it looks like Upsilon could be hissing at all times. The vibe I get from this thing's attack style is very much like the like those cat characters in video games, like in fighting games specifically, the ones that kind of like jump really high and lunge at you. Um, like Cat Mario is a good example as well, uh, but even those ones that are uh, in like fighting games that like kind of wrap their arms all the way around and like slice at you and they, they have like that X like slice attack. Um, I think, uh, uh, is it Felicia um, from Darkstalkers, I believe? I think that's her name. I think that's the game names as well. Yeah, that kind of thing. Then we have Gamma, which is a dark psychic type. I will say the psychic type on this thing is like it still looks the same as ghost uh, the ghost coloration um but uh i this is sick uh this is this like i've talked about all the different kind of mind flare pokemon before this one most definitely is evoking that for me um i really really like it <laughs> like I, th I think it has like this like bar on the side of its head it almost looks like like charging up of brain level like the like the level of its intelligence or something like that i don't know how to explain it Do you, you know what i mean like when a battery is full it kind of gives that same vibe it is very lovecraftian very very lovecraftian uh got that cthulhu thing going on there um and i i really appreciate that of course like the dark psychic type this this kind of creature like a mind flayer or cthulhu kind of messes with your brain um very much fits this type combination and this legendary series then we have Delta, which kind of, I'm pretty sure it's supposed to be Dark Dragon type. I think the Poison Dragon type is an error on this little sheet here. Um, it's a, it's, I think, I'm pretty sure it's supposed to be Dark Dragon type, not Poison, or Dark Poison type. Not certain. Um, but uh, it's kind of got this, like, uh, what's, what is the name of that Japanese myth? It's escaping me. Is it Orochi? I believe it's Orochi. I, my, I pulled from my One Piece knowledge there. Um, I believe it's Orochi, um, the, 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 uh, um, the multi-headed kind of serpent. Um, as well as like it's got this gaping maw very much like uh like kind of like a, a guzzlord with that that mouth in the stomach super intimidating i like how the the main head the like kind of like fifth or like middle head is different from the rest of the heads kind of giving it its own distinct features i think that's really cool also the coloration of this it's very you know like i like the i like when when it comes to poison types i'm pretty sure this is i'm not sure if this is supposed to be poison or dark poison or dark dragon um but like if it is poison it definitely feels like i like green when applied to poison type um we get a lot of purples when it comes to poison types and sometimes blues but i really like green and this like kind of darker green really is appealing to my eye 
Finally, from the Primordial series, we have Alpha Omega. And this is a com combination, it's like a fusion of, of uh, um, Kyogre and Groudon that comes together to look like this Godzilla, like uh, uh, Shin Godzilla kind of feeling to it. Also, it being the pure dark type, kind of being the culmination of all the rest of the primordials, it embodies, like, it's the Alpha, the Omega, the beginning and the end. It is all encompassing. It is this darkness that that, that is all encompassing. I really like Kaiju Pokemon. That's why I really liked G-Max. So, yeah, I, I, I'm, this one, my heart goes out to this one. I also love Godzilla. Godzilla, I like, I, I just, I really like Godzilla. After that, we have Scarodactyl. I don't think this is kind of a part of the Hermite line. I think this is its own thing, um, but this is definitely a part of that kind of Missing No series. It's number 151 to kind of reference the Missing No in that way. That's why its dex number is that number. Um, the, yeah, the Missing Number Pokemon as it is. This kind of this kind of digital effect it has is also really like eerie. Like seeing this digital Pokemon kind of come to life and have still have this digital effect swirling around it, I feel like it would be really creepy and really, you know, helps with it being, you know, a ghost rock type and Scarodactyl. And the name, as with like Omen Star and Kabutops, I think is perfection. And here is the final Pokemon of Pokemon Tempest. There is also the Legends game that I'll be doing after this, like, you know, after this Pokemon. But this is the kind of final one in the decks, as it were. And it is Cyclops, a psychic rock type. I love the name. I love the idea. The concept is really solid. This kind of Titan made of stone that is also super cerebral is really cool. The eye, very creepy. I don't know if I like the eye. It kind of feels a little bit out of place with it having that glow around it. It kind of feels like someone like stuck it on there, if you know what I mean. Um, I feel like if, if we were going to have the natural third eye, it would, you would either need it to be big on the center of the brain, or you would need it to be, like, right in the middle, like this kind of third eye, like, situation. As far as the rest of the design, I think it's super solid. I like, I, I have an affinity for, like, big, hulking Pokemon. I don't know what that says about me, but I just, I do really do enjoy that. This kind of crack in its hand, I'm not sure if that's, like, a design choice, or if that's, like, a, there's, like, a story behind that. I would kind of like to know the story behind that, if there's some kind of, like, Oh, he was once, you know, attacked by some kind of uh, a dark creature and like this left this scar or maybe the, this was he was on a rampage and this hero defeated him by cutting open his hand or something like that. Now we move on to the Legends Pokemon, the Legends Tempest Pokemon that uh, Toby recently did a video on. This one is Zelevate and Evolution to Zevolve, which it wasn't supposed, we're pretty certain that it wasn't supposed to evolve in the first place. Like I think it was Salivite that wasn't supposed to evolve in the first place, then it became Zevolve and now it's Ze uh, Zelevate. Um, it's elevating. It also kind of infuses the name of, of Salivite in there as well. Um, but it's like, it's the alien queen from Alien. It makes Evolve into a middle stage, which feels right to me, honestly. After seeing this final stage, it feels like a, you can see the progression of this line from this little, little guy that kind of like hides, you know, he has this like little uh, main body coming out and then it kind of starts to hide that a little bit more and become more defensive. And then like it's completely hidden within its mouth and becomes the bottom jaw of Zelevate. It really rounds out the entire line very well. After that, we have Gold Lyoth, which is an evolution to Cyrox. Um, the, the, the evolution many people were hoping for. I believe this one is uh, steel fighting now. And uh, like that, those kind of golden elements that I told you that I liked about Cyrox are now more embodied as literal gold, literal metal. This definitely feels like the kind of evolution a Pokemon that, you know, a lot of people wanted to get an evolution would get. Kind of like Basculin in that way where we've, you know, there's this Pokemon that we everyone really wanted to evolve and then it finally evolves and it's super epic. Then we have Petawatrol, which is an evolution to Kilowatrol. This very much feels like a natural progression from, from Kilowatrol, kind of giving it some more elements, a few more uh, 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 like patterns in its, in its wings. I can definitely see a Zap Cannon firing from its little nose kind of cannon thing. Though in the video, it said it was an electric ground type and I just, I, I don't, I don't know why suddenly the, the shift to electric ground, you know, it's this very bird Pokemon. Like I don't see the, the ground typing exhibited through the design itself or really through um, like the coloration. It just, it, it just feels still like an electric flying type to me. I know it's on the ground. It's not flying in its pose right now, but like, I don't, I, I don't, I didn't really need, see the need for the ground type in this design. It's a really solid design and I, it makes sense as an evolution to Kilowattrol. And the name, like Peta coming from Kilo, I, I, it's awesome. Then we have Palamage, which at first I was like, that's just Paladin plus Mage. I'm like, oh, Magenta, Magenta, Brandon. I like that it kind of has the elements of Solympian Aegislash. It has that same shield, the thinner sword with the little kind of bubbly fairy type kind of thing that uh, Aegislash did, as well as this kind of cotton candy 
like plume coming out of its helmet. Having magenta, which is kind of like this purple, almost like pinkish blue, uh, be the kind of in between between a sword Pokemon that is blue and a shield Pokemon that is red, I think is a nice uh, mixture of those two elements, as well as it kind of having the pink and the blue in there to embody both Cyril Edge and Armor Rouge. I can't quite remember the lore for this off the top of my head, but I think it'd be cool if like maybe this was like the original, like, bef like you know, or before there was Armor Rouge and Cyril Edge, like Charcadet evolved into this, but then there was like a certain subsection of, of, of you know, Palamage that was that believed in the sword and then another stab section that believed in the shield and eventually they started evolving differently as time went on so that like they became a split evolution uh, that's a fun concept I, I don't know if that's what the concept was but i think it would be a fun concept after that we have draconium which is an evolution to diavern that pokemon i kind of described as feeling ultra beast like or necrozma like maybe coming from that same dimension this pokemon is so beautiful like i love the use of the rainbow throughout the design um, kind of referencing like a refraction of light it almost feels like diavern you know maybe originally came from necrozma's universe but then spent enough time in ours that like it started adopting the more or, or i should say ours like the pokemon world that it started adopting more like uh, our pokemon world traits within its evolution i mean last but not least we have Lagaladon, which is it's this is kind of more of like its origin form as it were uh the the forms that like a combination of the two forms that we saw before it's just giving me haku from spirited away that, that elegant like serpentine dragon um and i just like it so much i i love the way the elements of both of the different forms were incorporated in here and it feels natural and really elegant and that was bird keeper toby's olympia region if you've made it this far thank you appreciate the watch time if you skipped just to see the heartfelt stuff i mean maybe go back and watch the video i'd appreciate it all i want to say is to bird keeper toby thank you toby has been such a amazing presence in my life uh since i got to meet him and got to know him uh, i got to meet him in uh, uh 2022 at pokemon the pokemon world championships in london and he, he is this is an joyous infectious person with a work ethic like hell um loves talking about content and ha like treats you like a genuine friend um even if they're meeting you for the first time um just an absolute pleasure to be around and a pleasure to work with when we were working on the kind of uh mewtwo clones video please go check out that video it was so much fun to do um but when we were working that it was just so fun to have our like we were in a call just discussing ideas and we we're just like oh that would be so cool and toby think of this it, it it was so much fun and one of the most fun like some of the most fun i've had doing content creation so again thank you to bird keeper toby i'm sad to see you go but hopefully maybe in someday we can see you come back you are, are an inspiration you changed the game as it were for pokemon content creation your legacy will not be forgotten and i appreciate you so much dude and uh hopefully we can have another call soon to catch up Anyway, thank you all so much for watching, and I will see you guys next time.